You have had the world's only lottery system for 20 years, but have never drawn a divine level physique or technique. Every time it's either an earth level technique or the lowest level yellow physique. Just when you thought you could only be a useless prince in this life, the arrival of a person brought you an unexpected joy. Brother, can you pull yourself together a bit? You've been so incompetent. I really can't rest assured about you. The one speaking is your own royal sister, Meng Xiaochan. When it comes to the eighth prince in the great Moon dynasty, everyone will involuntarily think of two words, waste, except for you. The other three princes of the great Moon dynasty are all absolute talents. Moreover, shortly after your mother gave birth to you twins, she passed away. Therefore, the great Moon emperor doesn't care about you siblings at all, to the point of disgust. In the entire palace, only you siblings support each other. At first, you thought you could change your destiny by relying on the lottery system, but now it seems like nothing but a ridiculous dream. Just as you were about to resign yourself to fate, a sudden ding sounded in your mind. Congratulations, host, for drawing the divine level technique 9 heavens emperor god's secret. What kind of rubbish is this again? As you were about to click to give up as usual, your hand trembled as you read the prompt. Divine level technique? Have you finally drawn a divine level technique? What is the concept of a divine level technique? The strongest technique owned by the great moon empire is only at the profound level. And this profound level technique can only be cultivated by the emperor and the crown prince. Even if you are a prince, you can only cultivate the yellow level technique. For the mortal realm, divine level techniques are akin to the will of heaven. As the system's voice fell, in just a few breaths, you went from being a mere mortal without cultivation to directly breaking through to the third level of qi cultivation. Before you could even rejoice, Meng Xiaochan brought some bad news. Imperial brother, envoys from the northern tomb kingdom have arrived at the imperial city. They wish to seek marriage with the emperor and marry a princess. After speaking, Meng Xiaochan's expression turned dim, devoid of her usual vitality. Upon hearing this, you clearly knew what was going on. The northern tomb kingdom, a mere tiny country, dares to propose marriage to my imperial sister? Although there are three princesses in the royal family waiting to be married off, anyone with discerning eyes can see that there is no suspense at all. The seventh sister is born of the empress, and the eleventh sister is deeply favored by the emperor. Therefore, this time, the northern tomb kingdom's proposal is almost certain to fall on Meng Xiaochan's head. When will the northern tomb kingdom's envoy return to the northern tomb? You suddenly asked out of the blue. Meng Xiaochan was momentarily puzzled by the question, not understanding its meaning, but she replied, according to convention, it should be three months before I return, if I am chosen by the emperor, I will definitely return to Biling with those envoys, three months, you furrowed your brow slightly, then relaxed it, three months, it's enough, you picked up a piece of braised pork with your chopsticks and handed it to Meng Xiaochan, Meng Xiaochan was a thoughtful person, she looked at the braised pork and sighed, brother, are you implying that I should accept my fate without resistance, like a fish on the chopping board? To be honest, she was a little disappointed and a little sad. Her brother, as always, was unreliable, not even offering a word of comfort. Without saying a word in response, you just quietly drank and ate, because you knew that her fate would be in your hands. And in the following two months, your incredible luck continued. Not only did you draw the divine physique, the six paths divine body, but you also drew the emperor's bloodline capable of harnessing the luck of the world. Setting aside how powerful the six paths divine body is, the key lies in this emperor's bloodline that grants temporary invincibility. And at the moment of choosing to activate the emperor's bloodline, you felt the boundless luck between heaven and earth. At the next moment, you unexpectedly felt a surge of golden dragon energy drilling directly into your body. From qi cultivation, foundation establishment, core formation, to nascent soul, and finally infant transformation, you are instantly elevated to the nascent soul realm in one breath. To be honest, you are completely stunned at this moment. This talent actually allowed you to reach the nascent soul realm directly from qi cultivation. However, this advancement is only temporary, as the energy dissipates, you will return to your normal state. According to the system panel's introduction, you can maintain this state for about half an hour. Moreover, the emperor's bloodline can only be used once a month. Even so, it is still exaggerated to the extreme. It can only be said that a divine physique is truly a divine physique, you have not waited in vain for these 20 years. In the nascent soul realm, in the mundane world, they are already known as terrestrial immortals. Only in the major immortal sects can one find the existence of the nascent soul realm, and those at this level rarely walk in the mundane world. It can be said that the nascent soul is invincible in the mortal realm, and there is not a single nascent soul in the entire great moon empire. At this moment, you are definitely the ceiling of combat power. 
Thinking of this, you immediately spread out your divine sense, almost covering the entire imperial palace in an instant. However, when your divine sense captured a person, a rare hint of coldness appeared on your face, and a hint of killing intent was revealed in your eyes. Zhuang Fei, a concubine newly accepted by the Emperor Daiyue this year, is stunningly beautiful. The Emperor Daiyue was captivated by her at first sight and bestowed her the title of concubine. However, what no one could have imagined was that this Zhuang Fei turned out to be a spy from the Demon Clan infiltrating the Great Moon Dynasty. The Demon Clan is a great enemy of the Human Clan. In the Eastern Wastelands, there is a kingdom of 10,000 demons with astonishing power, almost dominating the Eastern Wastelands. And now, this kingdom of 10,000 demons has extended its reach to the Great Moon Empire. This Lady Zhuang is a hybrid of human and demon blood. By infiltrating the Great Moon Empire, she aims to sow chaos within it. She even dares to bear a son, intending for her own son to inherit the throne of the Great Moon Empire. At that time, the Great Moon Empire became a puppet state of the 10,000 demons country. Truly ambitious. However, you were not angry because of this, you did not have such a strong sense of honor towards the Great Moon Empire. You were angry because in the secret conversation between Princess Zhuang and her maidservant, a piece of news was revealed that made you extremely furious. This Zhuang Fei, surprisingly, secretly sucked the brain marrow of infants every other month. It was no secret that the demon race liked to eat human brain marrow. It could be said to be well known, but this kind of thing, Meng Fan was listening to it as a legend. And now that this kind of thing had happened around himself, it really made Meng Fan furious. This kind of unscrupulous demon caused Meng Fan's wrath. Ding, you have discovered a demon spy. You can make the following choice. Option 1, turn a blind eye and allow Princess Zhuang to lurk in the Great Moon Dynasty, waiting for her to be exposed. Reward, none. Option 2, the demon race is brutal. Everyone should be executed. Go out and kill Princess Zhuang. Reward, the sword technique of flying fairy out of heaven. I can't believe I triggered the system's mission. Meng Fan, who was already very shaken, did not hesitate to choose two. It just so happens that I'm experiencing the land god immortal realm at the moment. So let's take this demon and test the might of a land god immortal. Meng Fan didn't hesitate. And without saying a word, he directly struck out at concubine Zhuang through the air. At the moment, he was five or six kilometers away from consort Zhuang's chambers. But at such a distance, Meng Fan still mobilized the power of heaven and earth to blast Princess Zhuang. Yuaning realm, the land god, can mobilize the power of heaven and earth against the enemy? The power is extremely terrifying. Princess Zhuang's chambers. Princess Zhuang, who was spying with her maid, looked up sharply. She sensed danger coming her way, and as a demon, her sixth sense was stronger than a human's, yet she didn't see anyone around her, much less anyone striking out at her. This, where is the danger? On the surface, Princess Zhuang was a weak woman who couldn't take care of herself, but behind her back, she was an extremely terrifying foundation establishment realm demon clan. In the entire palace, not a single person had seen through her true form. This was certainly related to the fact that she was a human demon hybrid, born in human form, but it also proved sideways that there weren't any terrifying experts in the Great Moon Imperial Palace, but any Jin Dan realm cultivator would be able to see through her true form, so she knew very well that inside the Great Moon Palace, there was no Golden Dan. However, if it wasn't the Jin Dan realm, who would be able to bring such a terrifying sense of crisis without even showing his face? And most importantly, with such a terrifying person striking out at him or her, the odds were that this proved that his or her identity had been exposed. Big Trouble. Chapter 5, The Supreme Talent, Swordway to God. Where are the rats from? How dare you sneak up on this palace? With a frosty face, Princess Shuang let out a stern cry. At that moment, a terrifyingly huge force came and bombarded her body, directly embedding her into the wall, unable to buckle down. A few breaths later, a young man in plain old clothes appeared in the bedchamber. Zhuang Fei, who was embedded in the wall and couldn't get down, looked at Meng Fan with a face full of shock and incredulity. Eighth Prince, it's actually you. A waste. No, you're not a waste. You're hiding so deeply. I can't believe Meng Chuanxiu gave birth to such a horrible son. Her heart and veins were all broken inside her body and she was already seriously injured and on the verge of death. Meng Fan waved his hand, and a majestic force blasted onto the maid on the side, and the maid instantly died of gas. A foundation establishment realm demon race, their physique is really not bad, and they can actually talk. Meng Fan said with a calm expression, he had just struck out across the air at a distance, plus he hadn't struck out with his full strength, so now Zhuang Fei hadn't died out and had the strength to speak. However, it definitely wouldn't survive half an incense burner either. Zhuang Fei, who was still embedded in the wall and hadn't fallen off, 
looked at Meng Fan with an incredulous expression. To be able to crush me to such a point, you are bound to be in the Jin Dan realm without a doubt. To be in such a realm at such a young age, even if it's an absolute demon that comes out once in a thousand years, it's nothing more than that. Meng Chuanxiu really gave birth to a good son. With your presence, my demon kingdom's plans will definitely be hindered. It's a pity that I didn't have the chance to send the news to the demon kingdom, or else the demon kingdom would have done everything in their power to send out experts to strangle you in the cradle. In Princess Zhuang's opinion, the most terrifying thing about Meng Fan was not his strength today, but his potential. To have such a cultivation level at such a young age, the future is absolutely unlimited. With such a prince in the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty, he was destined to soar to the heavens, and no one could stop him. Unless, of course, it was possible to strangle this talented royal son in advance. Unfortunately, you don't have a chance. Meng Fan said lightly, then walked over to Concubine Zhuang, killing machine, undisguised. You can't kill me. Princess Zhuang had a terrified look on her face. I'm already pregnant with Meng Chuanxiu's child. He's your brother. He's innocent. Please, let him go and let me kill me after I give birth to him. Meng Fan's brows furrowed as he took a step. When Princess Zhuang saw Meng Fan pause, she hurriedly continued, Please, let him go. He's your brother. Ah, blood is thicker than water. I promise I won't do any more evil. You can imprison me. I'll cooperate. Fully cooperate. It's not impossible to let him go. Unless, Concubine Zhuang was overjoyed and said excitedly, Unless what? Meng Fan took a step forward, then stretched out a finger and pressed it to the center of Zhuang Fei's brow. In the next instant, Princess Zhuang died of gas. Unless, of course, he's not your son. Meng Fan ignored Concubine Zhuang's corpse and walked over to Concubine Zhuang's couch. Then with a sweep of his divine sense, he found an organ from which he took out a small box. He made a personal trip over. Naturally not to kill Princess Zhuang. Killing Princess Zhuang, he could have done it from his room across the room. The reason why he came over personally was because his divine sense heard a message. The news is that Princess Zhuang has hidden a face painting elixir. This thing, the resident skin pill. Meng Fan he himself didn't need. But the moment he heard about the face residing pill, he thought of his sister. Meng Xiaochan, giving this elixir to Xiao Chan as a gift. She should be very happy, right? Meng Fan returned to his room, and from the beginning to the end, no one saw him, his strength at the Yuaning realm was enough to make him a god in the palace. Half an hour quickly passed, and Meng Fan's cultivation dropped to the 8th level of qi refining once again. Instantly, Meng Fan had an empty feeling of loss. He tried to activate the human emperor bloodline once again and undoubtedly failed. The system said it could only be used once a month, so there must not be a bug. Meng Fan began to adjust his emotions, secretly alert. This kind of power brought about by an external force cannot be too attached to oneself or else something will go terribly wrong. One must work hard to improve one's cultivation. That's the way to go. Now that he was burdened with a divine grade physique, the six-path divine body, he cultivated at a blistering speed and didn't need to worry about his cultivation at all. As long as he was given time, he would step onto the top of the world sooner or later. Still, one has to keep a low and steady profile before stepping on top of the world. There was never a lack of geniuses in this world, but only the geniuses who grew up were strong. The number of geniuses who have died in the middle of their lives is as numerous as the river. After killing Princess Shuang and completing choice 2, Meng Fan had an additional sword technique in his mind. The Flying Fairy. This sword technique was not a sword technique from the Xinling Great World, as Meng Fan had once heard of it on Earth. This is the sword technique of the Lord of White Cloud City, Yip Kuk Xing, in the legend of Lu Xiaofeng, Kul Sun Ye, a supreme swordsman who was 50-50 with the God of Swords, Simon the Snowblower. Heavenly Flying Immortal, a beautiful yet deadly and terrifying sword move. This sword technique, its power is naturally beyond doubt, but apart from its power, the greatest characteristic of this sword technique, is, cool, handsome as hell. A sword comes from the west and flies out of the sky. Meng Fan calmed his mind and began to study this sword technique. Then, he learned, one of the three supreme talents attached to the six Dao Divine Body, the, Sword Dao Tongshan was in full force, talent, sword Dao Tongshan, top qualification in sword Dao. Any sword skill can be learned at once, and the power of the sword skill is enhanced. Any sword technique could be learned in one go. This qualification could no longer be described as a genius. Even the use of a demon was not enough to describe it. On top of that, with this talent, the power of using swordsmanship would be enhanced. Aside from the word pervert, Meng Fan couldn't think of any other adjectives. Meng Fan had some itchy hands and couldn't help but want to perform this sword technique to get a taste of it. But after a moment's hesitation, he held back. 
There was no doubt that he was a genius now, but he didn't want to expose the fact that he was a genius. What shows in the forest and the wind will destroy it, there are too many geniuses in this world who die in the middle. Meng Fan made up his mind to go, steady flow. Outside his room, there were many eyes and ears. Now that he had fallen from the Yuaning realm, he could no longer easily avoid these ears and eyes, and needed to be careful and not be careless. His persona at this stage was that of the Waste Prince, which he felt was quite good and didn't want to change. At least at this stage, he didn't want to change. With Meng Fan's realm today, along with this sword from heavens beyond flying immortal, his strength was already completely no weaker than the peak of qi practicing. This was still the case when the Six Path Divine Body wasn't in power. From today onwards, he would start cultivating with the Six Path Divine Body. He, Meng Fan, will redefine the meaning of the word genius. At the same time, Zhuang Fei's bedchamber, the maid who came in to clean found the bodies of Zhuang Fei and the treacherous maid. At once, the entire palace shook. The news reached the imperial study. An emperor Meng Chuanxia was furious with the dragon's face. Pass the word down. Check. Thorough investigation. We must find out who killed Princess Zhuang. I will execute his nine clans. Chapter 6, Entering the Innate in Three Days. Strain the Nine Families. If Meng Chuanxiu knew that the first one who should be implicated was himself, he was afraid that he wouldn't be able to roar so loudly. The palace investigated the matter thoroughly for three days, but did not find the slightest trace. At that time, Meng Fan was too strong. At the Yuaning realm, a land god, there was no trace of him at all. And the saddest thing of all was that in the entire palace, there was not a single person other than Meng Fan who could see through the fact that Princess Xuan was a demon spy. The Great Moon Dynasty, simply weak. In these three days, Meng Fan had already crossed the ninth level of qi practicing and had successfully reached the innate realm. Because Meng Fan was not able to leave his home these days, no one had even noticed that he had begun to cultivate. After reaching the innate realm, only an existence with a higher cultivation level than Meng Fan would be able to see through Meng Fan's cultivation. And in the palace, although there are quite a few innate realm existences, these existences are all masters, and their official positions are not low. And this kind of person, Meng Fan, generally can't be seen. Five days later, Meng Xiaochan once again came to Meng Fan's residence, and at this time, Meng Fan had already cultivated to the third innate layer. A divine grade technique coupled with a divine grade physique was just too terrifying. It was like raising a realm in two days. This kind of cultivation speed was simply the same as riding a rocket. If an ordinary martial artist wanted to cultivate from the first innate layer to the third innate layer, it would take at least five years, and that was still if they had good natural talent. Meng Fan, on the other hand, only took five days. This, news of this, will scare the hell out of people. Nope, and it can't possibly scare people to death, because no one would even believe it. Meng Xiaochan still came over with a food box with wine and meat inside. Imperial brother, news has come from the front line that third imperial brother led an army that crushed an army of the great wind imperial dynasty. Then he also led an army of 30, 000 troops to chase down the collapsed 10, 000 defeated troops, wanting to kill them all and raise the prestige of my great moon kingdom. Meng Xiaochan's tone was filled with admiration and envy. If his own sibling, Meng Fan, possessed this kind of ability and prestige, it was estimated that his father would not have used himself as a pawn to marry down to Biling. She was not blaming Meng Fan for disliking him when she said this to him. She was simply trying to motivate Meng Fan, hoping to cheer him up and stop being so disheveled. Meng Fan nodded and said, Lao San is really good at leading soldiers into battle. It's not uncommon for him to win battles. Seeing Meng Fan's attitude filled with indifference and unconcern, without even a hint of envy, Meng Xiaochan sighed slightly in her heart. Imperial brother. Father gave the order yesterday, ordering me to marry in Biling. There was an uncontrollable sadness and resignation in her tone. In fact, Meng Xiaochan, like Meng Fan, had not been favored since she was a child. Apart from enjoying some glory and wealth in the palace, there was nothing else for her to stay in, and she's not happy in the palace. It wasn't unacceptable to really marry in Biling, even though she had never been there and was unfamiliar with Biling, but all of this was irrelevant. She couldn't talk about happiness inside this great moon palace anyway. The main reason why she was unwilling to marry in Biling was still because of Meng Fan. She was uneasy about this royal brother of hers, this imperial brother of his own, decadent and depraved, uninspired, but no matter what, this was his own imperial brother, his own blood brother from the same mother. Who else would take care of the royal brother if he were to leave? She was afraid that one day her royal brother would die in this room and no one would even know. Once she thought about all this, she really didn't want to marry to the northern mausoleum. She wanted to continue to take care of her royal brother. When will you leave? 
Meng Fan asked. Hearing Meng Fan's words, Meng Xiaochan didn't feel good in her heart. At this time, she actually hoped to hear her royal brother comfort her more. It didn't help to say that consoling didn't work and couldn't have stopped this, but at least it would make you feel better inside. However, her royal brother directly asked when he was going to leave, as if he couldn't wait for her to hurry up and leave, which really made her a little sad. At once, this girl's heart was filled with hard feelings, sadness and aggression. However, she still forced herself to endure all of this and didn't show it in front of Meng Fan, but instead replied in a calm tone, the eighth day of next month. Meng Fan counted the days. Today was the tenth day of the first month, and there was still twenty-eight to go. That's enough. At that time, even if he didn't rely on the human emperor's bloodline, I believe that his strength would be able to rise to the foundation establishment realm. At that time, Meng Chuanxiu's orders and holy decree would be nothing to him. Meng Fan. Okay. Meng Fan smiled at Meng Xiaochan, then opened the food box and started eating and drinking. Hearing Meng Fan's words so briefly, and still not comforting herself, Meng Xiaochan felt even more aggrieved and uncomfortable in her heart. Meng Fan ate two mouthfuls of meat and drank a mouthful of wine, and when he saw that Meng Xiaochan wasn't moving, he said, What are you waiting for? Eat together. I'm not hungry. Meng Xiaochan forced herself to hold back the aggression and hard feelings in her heart, and still didn't show it. But soon, she just couldn't stand it anymore. Brother, there's nothing you want to say to me when I'm leaving? Meng Fan held his wine glass and laughed. Aren't you still here? Upon hearing this, Meng Xiaochan was so aggrieved that she couldn't control herself. Her eyes began to glaze over and the corners of her eyes began to moisten. Then she ran out of Meng Fan's room without turning her head, not wanting Meng Fan to see her shedding tears. But how could Meng Fan not see it? Alas, Meng Fan sighed. It wasn't that he was cruel and had to treat Meng Xiaochan like this. But he didn't want to have an accident during this last month. If he told Meng Xiaochan that he was prepared to stop Meng Xiaochan from going to Biling, then with Meng Xiaochan's simple character, he would most likely expose something. He still needed time to cultivate himself, and it would still be 20 days before the human emperor bloodline could be activated again. These last 20 days or so, one must behave as usual when on one's own. If you expose your abnormality at this time, something will go terribly wrong. One must be steady and bear it. These last 20 days or so could only aggravate Cindy a little more. When the time comes, no one will be able to aggravate their sister again. Then, not long after Meng Xiaochan had left, the system's voice appeared in Meng Fan's mind. Ding! Emperor Meng Chuanxiu of the Great Moon is ready to marry off the ninth princess to the Biling Kingdom. You can make the following choice. Option 1, don't listen to it, dedicate yourself to cultivation, and sit back and watch your own sister marry a barbarian and suffer for the rest of your life. Reward, none. Choice 2, the son of heaven is the king of the country, and the king is the king of the earth and grain. When did I ever need a woman to guard the kingdom of the great moon? Come out with your sword to suppress the barbarians. Reward, Regulus. What's the point of picking? Even if the rewards were switched, Meng Fan would not hesitate to choose two. It's just that the system's brain circuits aren't the same as your own, and it's a bit far off. He himself had only wanted to prevent Xiao Chan from marrying into Biling. It was an internal matter within the palace. But now the system was asking him to come out with his sword and suppress the northern mausoleum, which was a bit of a big difference from what he had thought. But it doesn't matter. The district Biling, a small country, is far worse than Great Moon. In a month's time, one person and one sword by himself would be enough to press Biling to lift his head. Originally, Meng Fan was too lazy to get into so much trouble, and even lazier to make a trip to Biling, but he couldn't resist the richness of the system's rewards. Reward, Regulus. Who wouldn't be impressed? Regardless of the version of Regulus, it is definitely an extremely powerful weapon. With this sword in his hand, his combat power will explode? It's a bit of a hassle to get to the North Tomb, but this reward, worth it. It was only imperative that he still had to cultivate and work hard to raise his cultivation realm, because if one wanted to sword press Biling, one had to have at least the cultivation level of the foundation establishment realm. The Great Moon Dynasty didn't even have a Jin Dan, and it was even more unlikely that Bei Ling would have a Jin Dan. So the foundation establishment realm should be enough. According to the overwhelming cultivation speed based on Meng Fan's god tier technique plus god tier physique, cultivating to the foundation establishment realm within a month should be the nail in the coffin. Meng Fan began to continue his cultivation, not hearing anything outside the window. Two days later, the cultivation level was raised to the fourth and eight layer. Two days later, the cultivation level was raised to the fifth and eight layer. Three days later, the cultivation level was raised to the sixth and eight layer. Three days later, the cultivation level was raised to the seventh and eighth layer. Four days later, the cultivation level was raised to the eighth and eighth layer. 
14 days had already passed, and exactly 14 days were left until Meng Xiaochan was married off and Biling as well. In 14 days' time, breaking through to the foundation establishment realm was no problem at all. During this period of time, Meng Xiaochan didn't even come back to Meng Fan, probably because Meng Fan had really disappointed her a bit. It could also be that it's almost the critical time for her to get married and she's not allowed to wander off now. Meng Fan wasn't distracted and continued to cultivate hard without any distractions, because before she got married, Meng Xiaochan was definitely incomparably safe. And even those people who disliked Meng Xiaochan before would try their best to protect her at this time, not allowing her to have an accident. But this day, an unexpected visitor disturbed Meng Fan's cultivation. Meng Fan was a notorious waste of a prince, so his residence was rarely visited, allowing him to cultivate in peace. Today's visitor is a eunuch, eunuch Lu. Lu Haorun. When hearing such a name, one would always instinctively think that it was a great scholar, but in fact it was a eunuch. Let's just say that not everyone lives up to their name. This eunuch Lu is one of the godchildren of eunuch Wei Chongfeng Wei, the chief of the Grand Interior, and is considered to be a big eunuch in the palace with a not so low status. On weekdays, this kind of big eunuch actually looked down on Meng Fan, and although he wouldn't take the initiative to offend him, he wouldn't come and take the initiative to visit either. This eunuch Lu came, not with the decree of the emperor or any of the empresses, but he personally came to visit Meng Fan, so Meng Fan felt a little surprised and strange. Eunuch Lu, there's nothing to do, why did you run to this imperial prince's residence today? Eunuch Lu waved his hand at the eunuchs under him, shooing them outside the house before reaching back to close the door behind him. Meng Fan's brows furrowed, feeling that this eunuch Lu's acting style today was a bit unusual, but he didn't worry about anything. No matter how bold this eunuch was, he wouldn't be so bold as to close the door and take a swing at himself. Moreover, although this eunuch Lu knew martial arts, he was only at the sixth level of qi practicing, and Meng Fan could crush him with a single finger. Your Highness, the Eighth Prince, we have come over today to deliver a heavenly creation. Chapter 7, The Sword of the Holy Spirit, A Great Creation? Meng Fan sneered in his heart. A little eunuch is just a little eunuch. What kind of creation can he bring to himself? However, Eunuch Lu's gesture made it clear that he had a problem, only he didn't know what it was. In the palace, fish and dragons are mixed, and there are all kinds of people, and even the spies of the demon race have appeared, so Meng Fan won't be surprised if anything else appears. He would like to see what kind of drugs this eunuch Lu was selling. What kind of creation can you, a little eunuch, give me? Meng Fan said in a tone filled with disdain, eunuch Lu glanced around to make sure no one was around, then whispered. I can help you become become the emperor of the great moon dynasty. Isn't this a great creation? Help me become the emperor of the great moon dynasty? Meng Fan couldn't help but laugh. A somewhat disdainful laugh. And this time it wasn't feigned. It really wasn't held back. A little eunuch. Mouthing such words. Is like a kindergarten child who is coming to help you with your high math papers. Ridiculous to the core. But the fact that this eunuch Lu dared to say such things proved that he was definitely not an ordinary little eunuch and that there was definitely someone behind him, and odds are, not good people, not good people, at least for the great moon dynasty, the four princes of the great moon imperial dynasty, explicitly only himself was a waste, the remaining three had their own merits, under normal circumstances, the various forces of the great moon imperial dynasty would not support whoever became the emperor to support themselves as the emperor, unless, of course, someone is scheming, what good can come from supporting a useless prince as emperor? Meng Fan was now a bit curious as to which side this eunuch Lu was on. If it was someone from the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty, then the forces behind eunuch Lu were probably plotting against him. And if it's a spy from an enemy country, then this kind of operation is normal and nothing to write home about. Eunuch Lu, do you know what you're saying? If this gets out, you'll lose your head, Meng Fan said in a bad tone. Eunuch Lu took a step forward and came before Meng Fan. Of the four princes of the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty, aside from you, Meng Fan, who is a waste, the other three are all talented, and I'm not afraid to tell you that we picked you because you're trashy enough, the eunuchs and palace maidens in the palace, who said behind their backs that Meng Fan was a waste of space, must be in the minority, but there really wasn't one who dared to call Meng Fan a waste to his face, eunuch Lu dared to say this, he was ready to tear his face off and take off his mask, Meng Fan wanted to see what kind of face this guy had underneath his mask, how dare you, you dog lackey, how dare you speak out against this imperial prince? Meng Fan said in a furious rage. Eunuch Lu laughed coldly. Your Highness, the eighth prince, can't you see the situation clearly by now? I dared to say this to you. Naturally I have made enough preparations. Today you either agree to cooperate with me, or, 
you won't see the sun tomorrow. Within the imperial palace, everyone knew that Meng Fan was uneducated and unable to achieve anything in literature or martial arts. Yunek Lu was a martial artist at the sixth level of qi practicing, so naturally he wouldn't take Meng Fan seriously and felt that he could rub Meng Fan as much as he wanted. Meng Fan continued to feign a look of anger. You want to kill this emperor's son? Do you know that striking out at this emperor's son is a great offense that will involve all nine clans? Yu Nak Lu said, taking a shot at the prince is indeed a great crime that will involve all nine clans, but what if the prince takes poison and kills himself? Meng Fan revealed a scared expression and asked with a nervous expression, what exactly are you going to do? You just said you guys, who are the people behind you, and what exactly are you going to work with me for? Yu Nak Lu couldn't help but have a smile on his face when he saw Meng Fan wimp out and take the initiative to ask about cooperation. Who is the person behind me? There's no harm in telling you. The one standing behind me is the Great Dragon Dynasty. Meng Fan was filled with shock. You are a spy of the Great Dragon Dynasty. The three imperial dynasties of the Great Moon, Great Wind, and Great Dragon are all close neighbors, forming a three-legged triangle, all eyeing each other. Yunek Lu smiled and said, Not bad. I am indeed a person from the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty and my great dragon imperial dynasty is prepared to support you to become the emperor of the great moon imperial dynasty. As long as you behave yourself and become a puppet emperor, you can still enjoy all the glory and wealth. Otherwise, if you know my identity and don't agree to cooperate, then it's a dead end. Meng Fan endeavored to act out a look of nervous fear and dread, and asked with a trembling voice, what exactly do you guys want me to do? Yu Nak Lu said, there is no need for you to do anything, as long as you behave yourself. Okay, I promise. He he, promising so decisively, you kid is afraid that you don't want to wait for me to leave and then turn me in, right? No, it wouldn't, how could it? Eighth Prince, if I dared to come to you, I naturally made all the preparations, how could I let you take advantage of it? What do you want? This is a poison pill, after you take it you will be poisoned, then once a month I will give you an antidote, the antidote can only last for a month when taken once, if you turn me in and don't have the antidote, wait for death, remember, since we dare to threaten you with this pill, then we can guarantee that your great moon dynasty does not have an antidote. Meng Fan's complexion changed drastically and his face was filled with horror. No, this medicine I don't eat. Absolutely not. Yunuk Lu did sneer. Take this medicine and you will at least live and have an antidote every month. If you don't eat it, I'll send you to your death now. Meng Fan then acted for another two minutes, and then was forced to take Yunuk Lu's poison. He wrapped the elixir in his innate true chi and then placed it in his mouth. The innate true chi can completely lock and isolate the elixir. Open your mouth. Yunuk Lu snapped. Meng Fan obediently opened his mouth. And seeing Meng Fan's mouth empty, Yunuk Lu nodded in satisfaction. Good. Very good. You don't need to do anything next. You just need to wait for my news. And don't worry about the antidote. I'll send it every month. After saying that, Yunuk Lu left satisfied. Meng Fan looked at Yunuk Lu's back and a hint of coldness appeared in his eyes. But he did not stop him from leaving. This point in time was critical now, and Meng Fan didn't want to make any waves. Surely, he could have just run over this Yunek Lu directly. But once Yunek Lu is dead, how can he explain? Yunek Lu was a martial artist at the sixth level of Qi practicing. Killing him himself would reveal his strength. There were still 14 days to go, and Meng Fan wanted to put all of his energy into cultivation and didn't want to cause any trouble. So he had just accompanied Yunek Lu in his act. 14 days from now, it will be Yunek Lu's time to die no matter where he is and with whom. After Yunek Lu left, Meng Fan operated his innate true qi and spat out an elixir from the position of his throat. As soon as the true qi was crushed, the elixir was completely worn out. At the same time, the system's beeping sound appeared in his mind once again. Ding, Lu Haoran, an undercover agent of the Great Dragon Dynasty, wants to work with you. You now have two choices. Option 1, agree to join forces with Lu Haoran and become the emperor of the Great Moon Dynasty with the help of the Great Dragon Dynasty. Reward, Foundation Building Pill. Option 2, refuse to join forces with Lu Haoran and directly behead Lu Haoran. Reward, the Holy Spirit Sword Technique. Chikudin. It's good stuff. A martial artist at the peak of the ninth innate layer would be able to increase their probability of breaking through to the Foundation Establishment Realm by at least 50% once they took the Foundation Establishment Pill. This was definitely a dream elixir for martial artists at the innate realm, but that's not a good reward to get. Even if Meng Fan agreed to cooperate with the Great Dragon Dynasty, he didn't know how long it would take to become the Emperor of the Great Moon Dynasty. At that time, he was estimated to have exceeded the Foundation Establishment Realm. So why did he need this Foundation Establishment Pill? As for the Holy Spirit Sword Technique, 
this was the same as the heavenly flying immortal, neither of which were sword techniques of the Xianling Great World. The Holy Spirit sword technique was an unparalleled sword technique belonging to the sword Saint Dugu Jian in the wind and cloud. It could even be said that this sword technique of the Holy Spirit was not at all in the same class as the heavens beyond flying fairy. This is a true Jedi level sword technique. Meng Fan was so excited that even his eyes were vaguely red, and he couldn't wait to rush over and behead Lu Haoren right now, completing the mission to obtain the sword technique, but finally he took a deep breath and forced himself to calm down. The rewards are here, they can't be run away. It makes no difference if you take them a few days late or a few days early. The most important thing he needed to do now was still to cultivate. Not bad for a few days. Time passed in an instant. And four days later, there were still ten days left before Meng Xiaochan married Biling. On this day, Meng Fan broke through to the ninth level of the innate realm. The next step is to build the foundation. In the Great Moon Palace, a bloodstained Jingbiao appeared on the desktop of the Imperial Study. Emperor Meng Chuenxiu's hand that was pinching the Jingzhu couldn't help but tremble and even this trembling spread to the entire arm, shoulder, and even the whole body. The inside of the zigzag was shocking news. Even though he was the emperor of the Great Moon Dynasty and his city had always been as deep as the bottom of the sea, his face still changed greatly at this moment, and he even vaguely carried panic. Third Prince Meng Tianxiao, killed in battle. The 30, 000 strong army was ambushed and wiped out. Previously, Meng Xiaochan had also talked to Meng Fan about the third prince leading an army of 30. 000 men, chasing down the 10, 000 defeated troops of the Great Wind Dynasty, wanting to kill them all and raise the prestige of the Great Moon Kingdom. At that time, Meng Xiaochan's tone was filled with admiration and envy inside. As it turns out, the world is not what it seems. Only after a long time did Meng Chuanxiu put down the Zhengzhua. His face was extremely ugly, and he even had the feeling that he had aged 10 years in an instant. This change is not obvious in the appearance, but the essence can be reflected above. There is one thing to say that Meng Chuanxiu did take a huge hit. Although he had enthroned 6th Prince Meng Tianji as the crown prince, 3rd Prince Meng Tianxiao was his favorite son. At first, he wanted to make the 3rd Prince Meng Tianxiao the crown prince, but Meng Tianxiao firmly refused and had to join the army. That's why in the end, this crown prince position fell to the 6th prince. From the beginning to the end, 3rd Prince Meng Tianxiao was Meng Chuanxiu's favorite son, and Meng Chuanxiu's most outstanding son. And now, this son, killed in battle. In addition to Meng Tianxiao's death, the total annihilation of the 30, 000 strong army had also dealt him a great blow, the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty. Although there were 300, 000 troops, the 30, 000 troops that were completely destroyed on the Jingji were under the Blood Wolf Army. The Blood Wolf Army, the most elite army of the Great Moon Dynasty, only had 50, 000 in total. Now a one-time loss of 30, 000 was too much for Meng Chuanxiu to accept. Big Moon, Dangerous, Chapter 8 Out of the Gate, Sharp as a Horse. Once Third Prince Meng Tianxiao died, in addition to the total annihilation of the 30, 000 Blood Wolf Army, this was a huge blow to the entire Great Moon Imperial Dynasty. In this battle with the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty, originally, the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty was not at a disadvantage. But now, it was a complete downfall. The Great Moon Imperial Dynasty was truly in danger this time. This kind of news, which can't be kept from the public, spreads quickly. This bad news caused countless people in the Great Lunar Imperial Dynasty to be in a state of panic. Meng Fan didn't know about this news because he didn't listen to anything outside the window with both ears, and was still cultivating intensely. On weekdays, when there was news from the outside world, only Meng Xiaochan would come and talk to him. Aside from Meng Xiaochan, the entire palace basically didn't pay much attention to Meng Fan. Time passed quickly, and in the blink of an eye, another five days passed. On this day, Meng Fan finally broke through to the Foundation Establishment realm. To break through from the ninth and eight layer to Foundation Establishment, there was a bottleneck that existed, and many people would be trapped in this realm, needing time to break through. However, Meng Fan, relying on the terror of the Six Tao Divine Body, almost didn't even feel the existence of a bottleneck and directly broke through to the foundation establishment realm in a single burst of energy. God's body. God's body. The reason why it was called a divine body was because it could do things that a mortal body could not do. After stepping into the foundation establishment realm, Meng Fan took a deep breath and satisfaction appeared on his face. There were no Jin Dan realm existences in the entire palace. He was already strong enough when he broke through to the foundation establishment realm. The foundation establishment realm is not divided into nine levels and nine realms like in Qi practicing and in eight. Starting from the foundation establishment realm, each realm was only divided into four layers. Beginning, middle, 
End, peak, Meng Fan was now at the early stage of foundation establishment, and there were still six more days until Meng Xiaochan would be married off in Biling. Even with the power of the six Tao Divine Body and the Nine Heavens Emperor Divine Skill, it was impossible for him to break through to the middle stage of foundation establishment in just six days. So now, he finally didn't have to cultivate like crazy anymore. Retreat, over. Meng Fan, who hadn't stepped out of his room for many days, stepped out of his room for the first time. The soldiers guarding Meng Fan outside the door hurriedly saluted him. Although in many people's minds, Meng Fan was all just a waste of a prince. But a waste of a prince was still a prince. And they didn't dare to show the slightest bit of rudeness in front of Meng Fan. Your Highness the Eighth Prince, where are you going? The guard asked with a bit of surprise. Because this Eighth Prince hadn't gone out for a long time, going out all of a sudden made him feel a bit strange. Meng Fan said calmly, go see the Ninth Princess. The Ninth Princess was Meng Fan's sibling, something that no one in the palace knew about. Meng Fan was going to see his sister. This was reasonable and no one could comment on anything. Meng Fan then proceeded to his sister's residence, while the two guards followed behind Meng Fan. When the prince traveled, naturally he could not be alone. He had to be protected by guards, and the duty of these two guards was to guard Meng Fan. Soon, Meng Fan brought two guards to Meng Xiaochan's residence. Stop! Outside Meng Xiaochan's residence, Meng Fan was unexpectedly stopped by a palace maid. A small palace maid who actually dared to stop in front of the prince. How dare you! Meng Fan let out a furious rebuke and looked coldly at the courtesan. Facing Meng Fan's angry rebuke, the palace maid's face remained calm as she opened her mouth and said, The Empress Mother has ordered that the ninth princess marriage is imminent, and no one is allowed to set foot in the Hall of Meditation. The Hall of Meditation was Meng Xiaochan's current residence. Meng Fan glanced at this courtesan. It turned out to be a courtesan from the Empress's palace. No wonder she was so wild. She dared to contradict herself in her own face. A normal palace maid even if she despised herself in her heart, would still treat herself respectfully on the surface, but it was normal for a courtesan in the empress's palace to be arrogant, not to mention that she had the empress's decree. Unfortunately, the current Meng Fan was no longer the Meng Fan from before. Even if he hadn't broken through to foundation establishment a day ago, he might have still begged for the sake of cultivation, not wanting to cause trouble. But now, he was no longer prepared to continue cultivating and wasn't afraid of anyone disturbing him. At this moment, Meng Fan was not afraid of exposing his sharpness at all. Xiao Tai, Xiao Mu. Meng Fan turned around and glanced at the guards behind him. Your Highness. Upon hearing Meng Fan name him, the two immediately saluted. This courtesan is disrespectful to this prince. Press down and slap her mouth for fifty. Throw her out of the palace and leave her to fend for herself. The two guards, Xiao Tai and Xiao Mu, subconsciously glanced at each other before looking at Meng Fan with a face full of disbelief. They had been responsible for guarding Meng Fan. So they were well aware of Meng Fan's habits, and it was hard to believe that such words came out of Meng Fan's mouth, coupled with the fact that the opposite side was a palace made from the Empress's palace and seemed to have the Empress's decree. They froze there for a moment, not daring to make a move. The courtesan on the opposite side had also heard Meng Fan's words, and she stared at him with wide eyes, similarly unable to believe that Meng Fan would say such words. Unbridled, eighth prince, you dare to charge the Empress mother. How dare you, a palace maid who dared to chide the prince. It had to be said that Meng Fan, the royal son, was indeed a bit miserable. Pa without saying a word, Meng Fan slapped this courtesan in the face. He struck a bit hard and directly slapped this courtesan to the ground. Then half of her face bone was shattered. It's worse than disfigured, considering that you are a first-time offender. This prince is merciful and will spare you from death this time. After saying that, Meng Fan stepped on this courtesan's body and walked into the meditation hall. Behind Meng Fan, the two guards, Xiao Tai and Xiao Mu, were currently dumbfounded. Was this still the His Highness the Eighth Prince they knew? The two of them reacted and hurriedly prepared to follow Meng Fan. Meng Fan, however, said without looking back, You too, stand guard outside. If it was a normal day, these two guards probably wouldn't be so obedient and would say that they were ordered to guard Meng Fan and didn't dare to leave. But at this moment, Meng Fan's sudden change caused their hearts to be a bit stunned and uncertain. And in the end, they honestly followed Meng Fan's orders. That courtesan lying on the ground should have some status. A big courtesan. Because just now, behind her, there were three other young courtesans who looked to be her men. As a result, after Meng Fan slapped this courtesan down, the three small courtesans behind her were also terrified and were as quiet as chills, not daring to stop Meng Fan at all. To be honest, Meng Fan had just been too fierce and scared them. Only when Meng Fan had completely entered the meditation hall did the three small palace maids dare to help the large palace maid on the ground. On the side, 
Servant Xiao Tai was filled with a bizarre expression as he looked at Servant Xiao Mu and said, Xiao Mu, why do I feel that His Highness the Eighth Prince is like a different person? In all these years, I have never seen His Highness the Eighth Prince being so strong. There was a saying that at the moment, they felt that Meng Fan, the waist of a royal son, was still quite manly. Xiao Mu thought for a moment and said, it may be that knowing that Her Highness the Ninth Princess is going to marry Bei Ling, His Highness the Eighth Prince is furious. After all, His Highness the Eighth Prince and Her Highness the Ninth Princess have always been brother and sister. It was the only explanation they could think of. Knowing that his own sister is going to marry Bei Ling, the always weak Eighth Prince rushed to anger, lost his mind, and hardened his heart. As for Meng Fan injuring the palace made with a slap, they thought it was normal and didn't suspect anything. After all, the prince was a big man even if he was called a waste prince. Isn't it normal to injure a defenseless courtesan in a fit of rage? However, in their opinion, this behavior of the eighth prince was a bit impulsive. Because the nine princesses' marriage to Biling has been finalized and cannot be changed. Whereas Meng Fan had been so impulsive, there was a risk of angering the empress dowager, and there would be no good consequences. Inside the meditation hall, Meng Xiaochan knelt on a futon, holding a rosary in her hand and chanting. Pray to the Bodhisattva to keep my royal brother safe and sound. Meng Fan walked in just in time to hear what Meng Xiaochan was chanting from her mouth. He sighed and walked over to Meng Xiaochan. Whether the Bodhisattva will bless me or not I don't know, but it will definitely bless you. Hearing Meng Fan's voice, Meng Xiaochan's face was filled with surprise as she turned around violently. Brother, what are you doing here? She stood up in a hurry and glanced out the door a bit nervously, wondering, this meditation hall is not for me to leave nor for others to enter. Brother how did you get in? Meng Xiaochan was obviously particularly excited, because normally she addressed Meng Fan as her royal brother, and only when she was surprised to such an off-the-cuff moment would she subconsciously call out for her brother. Meng Fan smiled, compared to the royal brother, or brother this name is comfortable to listen to, it's okay, from now on, you can go out if you want to go out and come in if you want to come in in this meditation hall. Meng Xiaochan's eyes widened when she heard this, a puzzled expression of disbelief on her face. In the next second, she seemed to realize something, and then ran violently to the door. Looking at the courtesan who was lying on the ground with blood on her face, Meng Xiaochan was suddenly pale and bloodless, with an anxious and worried face. She shouted at Meng Fan, Brother, you're in big trouble. She's the Empress Dowager's palace maid. Even too anxious and nervous, there was already a faint hint of crying inside her tone. It wasn't a secret in the palace that the Empress had a small heart and a small temperament. Meng Fan had beaten up the Empress's palace maid, and the Empress would surely come looking for trouble from Meng Fan. Meng Fan said, I know she's a courtesan in the Empress palace, then you hit her. How am I supposed to get in here if I don't hit her when she's stopping me from coming in? Then don't come in. Meng Xiaochan was about to cry in a hurry. In the next second, the corners of her eyes moistened and tears literally trickled down her face. Meng Fan walked over to Meng Xiaochan and wiped away the tear tracks at the corner of her eyes. Then he rubbed Meng Xiaochan's head, messing up her head of hair. Cindy, there is something I wanted to say to you three months ago. It's just that the time wasn't right before, so I could only hold back and not say it. But now, I can finally say these words to you with impunity. What words? Meng Xiaochan raised her head and looked at Meng Fan with a confused expression. Her eyes still had tears in them. Xiao Chan isn't afraid. Brother won't let you marry in Biling. Chapter 9 It's an incompetent rage. Meng Xiao Chan's brows furrowed as she said with some nervousness and concern. Brother, you're crazy. What nonsense are you talking about? Before, she had gone to find Meng Fan and said something to him because she was having a hard time in her heart and wanted to be comforted by him. At that time, if Meng Fan said such words, she would still feel comforted, thinking that her brother cared about her was heartbroken. But now, she was panicking. Because if three months ago, Meng Fan had said such words, she would have only thought that her royal brother was just talking to comfort himself. But the situation before her made her realize that her royal brother wasn't just talking, because imperial brother is already doing it. He even beat up the empress palace maid. So at this moment, Meng Xiaochan was panicked, nervous and scared. She felt that her royal brother had gone mad and lost his mind, wanting to strike a stone with an egg and a moth to a flame. Imperial brother, calm down. Don't do anything stupid. The thing that Meng Xiaochan was most worried about was that after marrying in Biling, her royal brother would have no one to take care of him, fearing that he would have an accident. As a result, this self has not even married Biling yet. The accident happened. She knew very well that her royal brother was so impulsive to do such an out-of-the-ordinary thing for his own sake. To be honest, she did feel moved and happy in her heart when her royal brother did this. The always-weak imperial brother was able to do this for himself. 
which meant that he cared about himself and was concerned about himself, but more emotions in Mang Xiaochan's heart at the moment were worry and fear, because the royal brother is doing something stupid and dangerous, her own marriage to Biling has become a foregone conclusion, and she can't change it at all, imperial brother, you're looking out for me, you don't want me to be wronged, you want to help me, I understand what you mean, but you can't do anything stupid, listen to me, let's go and apologize to the empress and then this matter will be over, don't ever say anything like stopping me from marrying and biling again, Meng Fan laughed helplessly when he saw his sister reacting so much, but he did expect her to react this way, there's no way that anyone else looking at it would think they were crazy, because in this world, there is no such thing as one step ahead, unfortunately, Meng Fan wasn't from this world, and he was partial to being able to reach heaven in one step, okay, Cindy told brother not to say anything, so brother won't say anything, Meng Xiaochan breathed a sigh of relief, but before she could get that breath back, she heard Meng Fan's next words, brother do it for you, it's really no fun to just talk about it, brother, Meng Xiaochan was instantly anxious again, if she didn't know this royal brother of hers very well, she would even think that he was teasing her, you think that if brother can't do it, he's mothballing himself and looking for death, Meng Fan asked, isn't it, to be honest, at this time, Meng Xiaochan was already a bit angry, angry that Meng Fan didn't know what was important, of course, this anger was frankly because of worry, Xiaochan, if you were the boss's sibling, do you think Meng Chuanxiu would still marry you off to Biling? Meng Fan called Meng Chuanxiu by his name in front of Meng Xiaochan, instead of calling him father, something that Meng Xiaochan was already not surprised by, I don't think so, eldest imperial brother has joined the Wuji sword sect, his cultivation has already reached the innate realm, and in the future, he will become the premier expert of the great moon imperial dynasty, if I were the sibling of my eldest brother, father would definitely not marry me off to Biling considering my eldest brother's feelings, at this time, Meng Xiaochan wasn't afraid of hitting Meng Fan anymore, she even felt that she should hit this royal brother of hers harder to make him recognize the reality before she did, Meng Chuanxiu values the boss not because he loves the boss, but simply because the boss is in the innate realm, indeed, although the great imperial brother isn't as deeply separated from father as you are, he wasn't close to father since he was a child, so father didn't like him, but ever since he broke through to the innate realm, his status has risen so high that even the third and sixth imperial brothers are below him, Meng Fan nodded, then pulled a stool and sat down, continuing, then Xiao Chan, do you know what is so special about the innate realm? In the innate realm, the true qi is released outwardly, and it can even kill people through the air. As she spoke, Meng Xiao Chan's words abruptly stopped, and she widened her already large eyes, and inside a pair of beautiful eyes, they were filled with shock and disbelief, because she saw that a water cup on a distant table flew up from the table and then fell straight into Meng Fan's hands, the true qi is released outwardly spacing out, this is, innate, this imperial brother of his, is actually an innate, this, how is this possible, Meng Xiaochan was stunned, at the moment her small mouth was slightly open and she forgot to close it, her mind had gone blank, Meng Tianyang's sibling may not marry Biling, Meng Fan stood up from the stool, then flicked Meng Xiaochan's forehead and said with a smile, then my Meng Fan's sibling, even more so, will not marry, it took a pain in her forehead for Meng Xiaochan to recover from the blank state of her mind, she rubbed her eyes, then took a fresh look at Meng Fan's hand and saw that Meng Fan's hand was still cupping that water cup, she pinched her thigh again, hiss, ouch, it's not a dream, brother, you, after determining that it wasn't a dream, Meng Xiaochan was instantly filled with excitement and thrill, anyone who dares to call you a loser in the future, I'll rip her mouth off, when she learned this news, her first reaction was not whether Meng Fan had the ability to prevent her from marrying and biling, but she was happy that his brother was not a waste anymore. Previously, she was worried that this cell brother of hers was decadent and depraved, not thinking about progress, and would have a hard time living and be bullied in the future. Now, knowing that Meng Fan was actually an innate, all these worries were swept away. She looked at the sky outside her door for a day. Clear skies. Meng Fan took the initiative to reveal some of his strength, also to dispel some of Meng Xiaochan's worries and doubts. If he didn't show some strength himself, he was afraid that Meng Xiaochan would do something stupid without his knowledge. In his previous life on Earth, he often watched some TV and novels, in which the protagonists often hid their strength and pretended to be pigs eating tigers. However, hidden strength must also have a proportion, cannot be hidden, or around the relatives think you are a waste, sometimes want to help you instead of making a mistake, and even hurt people hurt themselves. But, brother, how could you be an innate? I've never seen you cultivate before. I thought you were an ordinary person. 
Meng Xiaochan asked excitedly. Meng Fan smiled and said, Just because you've never seen me cultivate, that's why I'm an innate. It's because all the times you haven't seen me, I've been cultivating. Meng Xiaochan's eyes lit up and said, I get it. Everyone thinks you're a waste and thinks you're just moping around every day. But it turns out that you're actually secretly hiding and cultivating. I have to say, a lot of times people brainstorm, and even brainstorm information that is more effective than you can explain yourself. Brother, you are truly outstanding. The eldest imperial brother worshipped the Wuji sword sect to cultivate, and now he is only at the innate realm, and he is already being called a genius, and you're younger than him, and you don't have a famous teacher to guide you, but you've even cultivated to the innate. Genius? Brother is a divine body. Geniuses aren't even worthy of mentioning their shoes to brother. After all, Meng Xiaochan hadn't practiced cultivation and was a cultivation buff, so she didn't catch the loopholes within Meng Fan's words. If Meng Fan had been secretly cultivating, then how could no one have seen that he was a martial artist all these years? But no one would have thought that Meng Fan was a step up, and in just a few months the ordinary person who had never practiced before had directly crossed over into foundation establishment, because it's not going to happen. So just don't worry, with brother here, I definitely won't let you marry in Biling, Meng Fan said to Meng Xiaochan. After the excitement, Meng Xiaochan had calmed down and regained her senses by this time. She frowned and said, But, father has already ordered me to marry in Biling. If you had revealed your innate realm cultivation earlier, brother, father might have taken you into consideration and not allowed me to marry in Biling. But now that father has decreed it, the holy decree is the order of heaven. A word is a word. The holy decree has been issued and it will not be easily changed. Meng Fan patted Meng Xiaochan's head and said, Leave these things to brother. You don't need to think about them. But, no buts, brother is now an innate. There won't be any danger. Just wait for brother's news honestly and peacefully. By the way, you mustn't do anything stupid and come to help. I know. Meng Xiaochan deflated. If Meng Fan hadn't revealed her innate cultivation, she would have done something foolish. Meng Fan was also considered to be very well thought out. Leaving Meng Xiaochan's meditation hall, Meng Fan returned to his residence. There are two things to do next. 1. Find that eunuch Lu, get him killed, and get the system's reward, the Holy Spirit Sword Technique. This Holy Spirit Sword Technique, Meng Fan could be said to have thought about it day and night, and now he could finally strike out with impunity. Secondly, he traveled to Biling, and his sword pressed down on Biling, so that Biling's country would bow down. The reward for this quest, which was the Xian Yuan Sword, was even more advanced. For these two quests, Meng Fan would definitely get Eunuch Lu killed first to obtain the Holy Spirit Sword technique. There was no way he could go to the North Mausoleum first and then come back to get this eunuch killed. It's all about proximity. Meng Xiaochan thought that this royal brother of hers had accurately gone to her father to plead for leniency, and then revealed her innate realm cultivation in the hopes of gaining her father's regard and then preventing her from marrying in Biling. But in truth, what Meng Fan was prepared to do was even more outrageous than the limits she could imagine. Meng Fan was prepared to go directly to Bei Ling with one person and one sword. This was something that Meng Xiaochan just couldn't possibly think of even if she thought about it. In the Empress's chambers, the Empress looked at the palace maid who was carried in, her eyes showing coldness and a face full of frost. Beating a dog still depends on the master. Her own palace maid was actually beaten so badly. How could she not be angry, hearing that the assailant was actually the eighth prince? Meng Fan caused her brows to furrow. This Hachi, who has always lived in deep seclusion and never dared to take the initiative to stir up trouble, actually messed with his own head this time? It was vaguely strange, but more than that, it was anger. This kid doesn't dare to mess with anyone, but when he does, he messes with himself. Doesn't that make him look like a bully? Thinking so, the Empress was more than a little angry. She was able to think of why Meng Fan was causing trouble. It was simply because she had seen her own sister getting married in Biling and ended up being unable to do anything about it. And this kind of trouble was a manifestation of impotent rage. But although she understood Meng Fan, she would not let him go. Chun Feng, you don't need to care about the palace. Get well and recuperate. This palace will go and take out your anger for you tomorrow. Chapter 10, Sword 23 In the Empress's opinion, even the 8th prince, a waste of space, dared to provoke herself which proved that her prestige in the harem was really a bit lacking, whether it was in love or reason. She had to properly punish and penalize this 8th prince Meng Fan, especially since the mother of the 8th prince and the 9th princess had died long ago, and the emperor did not favor these two children. It could be said that these two children basically had no backstage. So as far as the empress was concerned, she could twist and turn this 8th prince as much as she wanted. Although Meng Fan didn't know what was happening in the empress chambers at the moment, 
He could imagine that the Empress would definitely be furious and want to trouble herself. But now in Meng Fan's eyes, he didn't care about the Empress at all anymore. Even if the Empress dared to go too far, Meng Fan himself didn't know how he would react. Will he kill the Queen in a fit of rage? Who knows? Anyway, for the current Meng Fan, it wasn't like he didn't dare. That night, Meng Fan changed into black clothes, avoided the guards outside the door, and walked out. Originally, according to his sense of ritual from Earth, he should have changed into a night clothes in order to be forced, but he really didn't have that, so he could only reluctantly change into black clothes, and then symbolically cover his face with a black cloth. Meng Fan arrived at Eunuch Lu's residence, and this afternoon he had already inquired about where that Eunuch Lu lived. With Meng Fan's current cultivation at the Foundation Establishment Realm, he could really be said to come and go as he pleased in the palace, and no one would be able to capture his trail at all. When he appeared in Eunuch Lu's room, that Eunuch Lu was not sleeping and was sitting on his bed counting silver. Many of the eunuchs in the palace have the same pleasure of counting silver. It's just that some people count for a long time and some for a short time. Counting money until your hands cramp up is an absolute blessing in any world. What man? Seeing the steep appearance of a man in black in the room, Eunuch Lu was startled and hurriedly pushed all the piles of silver into the quilt. Kill your people. Meng Fan took a few steps forward, then removed the black cloth from his face. Beneath the mask was an extremely handsome face. 8. Before Eunuch Lu's words could fall, Meng Fan shot out a ray of true essence from his fingertips, penetrating Eunuch Lu's brow. The foundation establishment realm, too strong, had completely surpassed the innate realm by one level. Martial artists in the qi practicing realm cultivate true qi. Martial artists in the innate realm cultivated innate true qi, which was stronger than ordinary true qi by more than one star. In contrast, Cultivators in the foundation establishment realm had already cultivated their innate true chi into true essence. Innate, still in the realm of practicing martial arts. Foundation building, on the other hand, is already cultivating immortality, so it is called a cultivator. This eunuch Lu of the chi practicing realm was really as fragile as a mole cricket in front of Meng Fan, and could be pinched to death at the drop of a hat. Looking at eunuch Lu's corpse, a cold smile appeared on Meng Fan's face. From the beginning to the end, he did not give Eunuch Lu a chance to speak because he did not care no matter what Eunuch Lu had to say. He also took off his mask out of absolute confidence in himself and to satisfy his small sense of ritual. It's not cool to kill people and not show your face, and not to return home when you're rich and famous. All of which is like a brocade coat that goes out at night. After Meng Fan beheaded Eunuch Lu, he directly turned around and left, not even bothering to pick up the silver on his bed. Back at his residence, the system's mission rewards had arrived in Meng Fan's mind the sword of the Holy Spirit, this sword law, Meng Fan has been red in the eyes for a long time, even before when he was in seclusion, he did not meditate, wanting to go directly to kill Eunuch Lu first to obtain the sword law, it was a good thing that 20 years of consecutive draws had tempered his patience so well that he finally relented, when the Holy Spirit sword technique arrived, Meng Fan couldn't wait to study it, and even saved himself a nap, the supreme talent, sword Dao Tongshan, began to shine, Sword Dao Tongshan, top qualification in Sword Dao. Any sword skill can be learned at once, and the power of the sword skill is enhanced. Soon, Meng Fan learned the Holy Spirit sword technique. It had to be said that this, Sword Dao Tongshan, talent was just too terrifyingly strong. Under normal circumstances, like the Holy Spirit sword technique such an extreme sword technique, without years of hard training, simply cannot learn, and Meng Fan did learn it on arrival. Simply like hanging cheating. The fact was that Meng Fan, who possessed the system, was indeed open to cheating when it came to cultivation. Only, although Meng Fan had learned the Holy Spirit sword technique, he was only able to execute sword 1 to sword 22. As for sword 23, although Meng Fan had learned this move under the blessing of the supreme talent, sword Dao Tongshan, he was unable to perform it, because this sword 23 was far too strong, surpassing the first 22 styles, and was not something that today's Meng Fan could control and use. Sword 23, this style, actually has to be subdivided into three moves. Sword of Destruction and Jedi XXII, Sension Heaven and Earth Sword XXII, The Sixth Extinction of the Sword of Selflessness XXII. Meng Fan, on the other hand, was unable to perform a single move. In a nutshell, it was that although he had learned the sword move, his cultivation was too weak, so he couldn't execute it. But the first 22 stances of this Holy Spirit sword technique were already terrifying enough, with Sword 22 in his hand. Meng Fan even had the confidence to decapitate a late stage foundation establishment. Originally, Meng Fan's strength was no weaker than that of the middle stage of foundation establishment with the addition of his divine grade physique and divine grade technique. 
And now that the Holy Spirit sword technique was in his hands, his strength was even more incomparable. The next day, it was only after dawn that Meng Fan went to sleep with red eyes. He had been excitedly studying the Holy Spirit sword technique all night and had not slept at all. This sleep, Meng Fan slept until the afternoon. Originally, the Empress was going to come to trouble Meng Fan today, but she didn't come over. The Empress didn't come, but an eunuch who delivers the decree came. This eunuch passed on not the Empress's will, but Emperor Meng Chuanxiu's will. By the grace of heaven, the Emperor decrees that the 8th Prince Meng Fan be appointed as the Grand Commander of the Imperial Forestry Army to guard the palace gates. Upon hearing the words of the eunuch who passed on the orders, Meng Fan's brows furrowed in a bit of confusion. The King's Guard? Chancellor? What a joke! Yesterday he had just beaten the Empress's palace maid and was waiting for the Empress to find trouble. How could he wait for a heavenly decree? It's not right. It's very wrong. This decree, which obviously had nothing to do with the Empress, was Meng Chuanxiu's own decree. The harem is not allowed to interfere in politics, and such an important position as the commander-in-chief of the Imperial Forest Army. The Empress did not even dare to mention it. But what the hell is Meng Chuanxiu up to? The image of himself as a waste of a prince was ingrained in the minds of the people. How could he make himself the Chancellor of the Imperial Guard? Unbelievable. It's just ridiculous. Even Meng Fan himself felt that Meng Chuanxiu's decree was a bit absurd. Could it be that the great dragon emperor behind Eunuch Lu has struck? But no amount of power from them could make Meng Chuanxiu make such a decision. Eunuch Li, what's going on here? Meng Fan asked, extremely puzzled. Chapter 11, Can You Beat the Land Immortals? If it wasn't for the fact that the opposite side of the battlefield was larger and looked more complete in terms of formalities, Meng Fan would have suspected that this eunuch Li had falsely passed on an imperial decree. The truth is that even a fake decree can't be that outrageous. Your Royal Highness the Eighth Prince, why don't you accept the decree and kowtow to His Majesty's Great Grace? Eunuch Li held the imperial decree in both hands and said in a cold tone. Meng Fan walked over and took the holy decree as soon as he could carefully reading it over. There is no doubt that this holy decree is true and not a false decree. If on a normal day, Meng Fan had taken the holy decree directly without kneeling, Eunuch Li would have chided, because he was delivering a decree, representing the emperor and the authority of heaven. Meng Fan's behavior was a great disrespect. However, at this moment, not only did he not reprimand Meng Fan, but on the contrary, in his gaze toward Meng Fan, he was filled with sympathy and pity. Eunuch Li, what the hell is going on here? Meng Fan asked again with a frown. He was genuinely puzzled. The decree was too bizarre. According to reason, Meng Chuanxiu could not have sealed whoever he sealed as the Imperial Army's Grand Commander. Nor could he have sealed himself. Your Highness the Eighth Prince, the decree has been delivered. We must return to resume our duties. Eunuchly ignored Meng Fan's question and directly turned around and led a group of small eunuchs who had passed on the decree back. Meng Fan held the holy decree. Puzzled. He was really kind of puzzled. Could it be that this girl, Xiao Chan, had revealed to Meng Chuanxiu the news that she was an innate? Impossible. If that was the case, Meng Chuanxiu would have definitely summoned himself over and investigated. It simply wouldn't be straightforward to make himself the grand commander of the Imperial Forestry Army without saying a word. Moreover, that eunuch Li, who had just passed on the decree, actually had emotions of sympathy and pathetic pity within his gaze. So this will, no good intentions. Meng Fan's mind was clear, and he analyzed the meaning of this holy decree almost instantly. Only, Meng Fan knew too little information and couldn't figure out how this holy decree was a disturbing method. But instinctively, Meng Fan felt that there seemed to be something raging hidden in the darkness of the apparently calm palace. Meng Fan casually threw the holy decree inside his residence, then headed directly to the meditation hall. If there were really any changes or problems in the palace, he had to ensure Xiao Chan's safety first. As a result, when he arrived at the meditation hall, Meng Fan pounced. Meng Xiaochan was not in the meditation hall. Instantly, Meng Fan's face went cold as he felt more and more that something had happened in the palace. After some inquiries, Meng Fan walked back to his place alone. Meng Xiaochan actually left the palace. Not an early marriage to Biling, but a summer vacation from the palace. Not only did Meng Xiaochan go out of the palace, but the emperor, the empress, and even the concubines, etc all went out of the palace, using the name of Summer Vacation. In the Great Moon Dynasty, the Emperor's concubines did have the habit of going out of the palace to avoid the summer heat during the hot summer months, because it was indeed too hot in the palace. But now that it's fall and it's already starting to get cooler, what's the point of avoiding the heat? Intuition told Meng Fan that something big had happened. He continued to ask for information, and finally, he figured out what was going on. 
Third Prince Meng Tianxiao was killed in battle. The 30, 000 Blood Wolf Army was completely wiped out. The Great Moon Imperial Dynasty was defeated. The Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's 100, 000 Strong Army headed straight for the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty's Imperial City. Where did Meng Chuanqiao and his consorts go to escape the summer heat? It's going for shelter. Meng Fan was thrown out as an outcast. It would be a shame if the royal family of the Great Moon Dynasty, all of them, ran away cleanly. That's why Meng Chuanxiu appointed Meng Fan as the Grand Commander of the Imperial Forestry Army and asked Meng Fan to guard the Imperial City. Prince guarding the Imperial City, certainly still shameful, but at least the face can still hang on. At least Meng Chuanxiu still have the face to say that they are going to summer vacation. The defeat of the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty, the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's 100, 000 troops went straight to the Great Moon Palace. This wave, the Great Moon Palace is definitely unable to defend. Meng Chuanxiu must hide. As for the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's 100, 000 troops, even if they broke through the Great Moon Palace, they would not be able to defend it. When the time comes for the news to spread, the Great Lunar Imperial Dynasty's armies from all borders will surely march out to serve the king. At that time, Meng Chuanxiu would then step in and could take back the palace in the process. As intended, it was a good plan, except Meng Fan became a castaway. Once the 100, 000 strong army invaded the Great Moon Palace, Meng Fan, the only royal son left in the palace, would surely die an extremely miserable death. What a Meng Chuanxiu, ha, huh? Meng Fan said grimly. He did get a little angry, but not nearly as angry. This was because he originally had no feelings for Meng Chuanxiu, nor did he really consider Meng Chuanxiu as his father. If there was a different prince and Meng Chuanxiu had treated him as an outcast, that prince would have torn his heart out even grieving and despairing to the point of rage. However, Meng Fan was not at such a point, but his mood was certainly not good, and there were always some negative emotions. Luckily, this guy Meng Chuanxiu had taken Meng Xiaochan out as well, which was good news. Meng Xiaochan's role right now was mostly bigger than Meng Fan's, and she was married to Bai Ling. When this matter was over and the storm had calmed down, Meng Chuanxiu still had to rely on Meng Xiaochan to stabilize Bai Ling. However, you're wrong to treat me as an outcast. Even if it was the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's 100, 000 strong army, they wouldn't be able to hurt me in the slightest. Meng Fan shook his head and muttered to himself. It had to be said that Meng Chuanxiu's image of the emperor fell one way and then another in Meng Fan's mind. Before, in order to stabilize Bai Ling, this one who was the emperor married his daughter down. Now afraid of the gale, he fled the palace again, dragging his family with him. These two things, one more than the other, made Meng Fan look down. Admittedly, this is really the best option. When Meng Fan still looked down on him, it was said that he was the wasteful prince of the Great Moon Dynasty, but now it seemed that this emperor was the most wasteful. What upset Meng Fan the most was that such a loser was his sister's father. Meng Fan walked out of his residence and glanced at the palace wall in the distance. The Great Wind Dynasty, a hundred thousand troops, can you beat a land god? Meng Chuanxiu, if you're willing to run like a dog with your tail between your legs, I'll show you what a true human emperor's chi is. Meng Fan left his residence and headed to the imperial study room. As of today, he doesn't live in that filthy little room. He lives in the Moonlight Palace and sits in the imperial study. Moonlight Palace, the emperor's chambers, the imperial study, the emperor's study. Soon, Meng Fan arrived at the imperial study room. Stop. The guards with swords outside the imperial study room stopped Meng Fan. This emperor is the new grand commander of the imperial forest army. From now on, you will listen to this emperor's orders. The guards glanced at each other, all of them giving Meng Fan a somewhat startled look. They naturally recognized the eighth prince. But how could such a waste of a prince be the grand commander of the Imperial Forest Army? However, they weren't stupid and quickly figured out the beginning and end. It was no secret that the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's army was pressing down on them, and the emperor had taken the royal family out of the palace to take refuge. So they quickly realized that the eighth prince was the scapegoat that was left behind. After figuring this out, they couldn't help but feel some sympathy for Meng Fan and stopped making things difficult for him. Now that the royal family is out of the palace for refuge, the highest status in the palace is now this 8th prince. Since the 8th prince wants to enter the imperial study, then let him enter. Seeing the guards obediently give way, Meng Fan's face showed surprise, having thought that they were still going to make things difficult for themselves. However, they were so well behaved that they left themselves with no way to make an example of them. Meng Fan pushed the door into the imperial study then ordered without looking back, call eunuch Li over. Eunuch Li, the same eunuch who had come earlier to deliver the decree to appoint himself as the grand commander of the imperial forestry army, 
This old eunuch passed the decree, but did not give himself the tiger's talisman for the deployment of troops. Yang Yang, is this a rebellion? Chapter 12, The Eighth Prince, a waste of space, is also worthy of plotting against the emperor? This eunuchly, to be able to become the eunuch for the transmission of orders, was enough to prove that his status in the palace was not low. The highest status eunuch in the palace's inner sanctum was undoubtedly eunuch Wei, the chief administrator of the inner sanctum. Wei Changfeng not only had a high status and was favored by Meng Chuanxiu, but he was a strong person of the foundation establishment realm, and was one of the top experts inside the entire palace. Originally, this time when Meng Chuanxiu took refuge in the palace, he wanted to take Wei Changfeng with him as well, which would maximize his protection and safety, but in the end, he still left Wei Changfeng inside the palace. If there wasn't someone inside the palace who could hold down the scene, and then everyone ran away, leaving an empty palace, then the Great Moon Dynasty would really become a joke. At that time, it is estimated that all the feudal lords are afraid that even the king is too lazy to be diligent, then the Big Moon will really die. Wei Changfeng, the backhand left behind by Meng Chuanxiu, was responsible for guarding the palace, maintaining order, and preventing the crowd from following suit and also escaping the palace and abandoning the Great Moon. The eunuch Li who passed the decree was one of Wei Chongfeng's most valued godson. Wei Chongfeng has many godchildren, nine of them. That eunuch Lu, one of Wei Chongfeng's most insignificant godchildren, had been hacked to death by Meng Fan yesterday. Eunuch Li, on the other hand, is one of Wei Chongfeng's most valued godchildren, and today he is afraid that he will also be chopped by Meng Fan. Meng Fan sat on the dragon chair in the imperial study and quietly waited for eunuch Li to arrive. After a long time, the door to the imperial study was pushed open. Your Highness, the eighth prince, I don't know. Before eunuch Li stepped over the door bar, he saw Meng Fan sitting on the dragon chair. He was shocked and dazed. It took half a second for him to respond with a stern rebuke. Bold Meng Fan, how dare you sit on the dragon chair? This is a strain of nine. This is a capital offense. Even if you are a prince. No, even if you are a crown prince, you are not allowed to sit on the dragon chair until you ascend the throne. For a prince to sit on the dragon chair was tantamount to a rebellion, let alone a waste of a prince like Meng Fan. Somebody, someone come, take this bastard down for our family. Eunuch Li shouted at the door. At once, a group of guards with swords rushed in. These guards were filled with shock as they looked at Meng Fan sitting on the dragon chair, their hearts beating wildly in fear. The eighth prince is plotting a rebellion? That was the first thought that popped into their heads. But then, they themselves found the thought absurd. The eighth prince is such a waste of space. He's worthy of plotting against the emperor? What are you still standing there for? Eunuchly scolded the group of guards. These guards glanced at Meng Fan on the dragon chair and were somewhat hesitant. After all, Meng Fan was now the only prince within the palace, and his status was still honorable. Of course, this was also because the one who opened his mouth to order them was Eunuchly, who in their minds was not as high as Meng Fan. If the one who opened his mouth was Wei Changfeng, then they would definitely act immediately without the slightest hesitation. After all, Wei Chongfeng's prestige was indeed a bit terrifying. I'll see who dares to touch a single hair on this emperor's head? Meng Fan let out a similarly stern cry, his aura even more full than eunuch Li's. He held up the holy decree in his hand with a solemn expression. This imperial prince is now the grand commander of the imperial forest army, and all of you are under the command of this commander. Now, this commander orders you to retreat or else you are disobeying the decree. Looking at the holy decree in Meng Fan's hands, those guards hesitated for a moment, but finally chose to retreat. The holy decree is the order of heaven. Meng Fan's holy decree was in his hand, making them not dare to act rashly. As for the matter of the emperor's son sitting in the dragon chair, it was certainly treasonous, but only the emperor could order the emperor's son to be punished, and they, the guards, were not yet qualified. This kind of thing would have to wait for the emperor to return to personally punish Meng Fan. Them, it's better to stay out of it. Eunuch Li immediately became furious and shouted at these guards. You give us back. Didn't you hear what we said? Meng Fan stepped down from the dragon chair, looked coldly at Eunuch Li, and scoffed. You're a waste of space without a handle. Not even a man. So what qualifications do you have to order someone else with a handle? Those guards were instantly dark. Although they had retreated to the door they were still able to hear the voices inside. Eunuch Li was furious. Meng Fan, you're nothing but an outcast, a piece of trash left behind to die, a lamb to be slaughtered. You won't live for a few days at all, and you still dare to look down on me. The guards outside the door, in fact, understood that what Eunuch Li said was true. Unable to help it, they actually sympathized somewhat with Meng Fan. 
being a noble prince, but only able to stay and wait for death, it is indeed a bit pitiful and sad, they, the guards, might have a chance to escape, however, Meng Fan, as the last imperial son, the great wind imperial dynasty would surely decimate him, so Meng Fan would surely die, thinking about this, they suddenly somewhat understood why Meng Fan was sitting in the dragon chair, we're going to die anyway, what's wrong with being crazy, Meng Fan looked at uniquely, whose expression management had gone out of control, and without hiding the contempt on his face, sneered, if you don't carry a handle, I despise you, you're the trash, how dare you look down on our family, if you weren't a prince, our family, you don't carry a handle, we are a martial artist of the innate realm, if you provoke us, we will directly make you drink hatred here, you don't carry a handle, Meng Fan, you're looking for death, you don't carry a handle, aha gasp, Uniquely was so enraged that he lost his mind and slapped his palm at Meng Fan, under normal circumstances, it would be impossible for him to take a shot at Meng Fan, much less lay a hit, because Meng Fan was still useful and couldn't die, if the army of the great wind imperial dynasty came to attack, there had to be Meng Fan, the emperor's son, standing out to be able to hold up his face, but now that he was in a state of rage, he had been provoked by Meng Fan to the point where he had completely lost his mind, Meng Chuenxiu, the great moon dynasty, the great wind dynasty, and Wei Chongfeng, Laozi is to kill this little man today, so that this little man knows that although Laozi does not carry a handle, Laozi is more brave and fierce than the one with a handle, the berserk and violent innate true chi that was attached to this palm of uniquely made the power of this palm become terrifying and overwhelming, even if the Meng Fan standing in front of him was a marble sculpture, he would have to be shattered by this slap, die, die, Yunekli's face was full of distortions, his eyes were full of malice, and his killing intent was boiling, and then, the next second, Meng Fan shrugged off his hand expressionlessly, Ka Ching, Yunekli's entire arm was ripped off and fell to the ground, at the location of the shoulder, blood suddenly spurted out like a spring, his Yunekli took a long breath, and his twisted face became even more hideous, but this eunuch is really tough, arms are broken, just long hiss, did not scream in pain, unable to help it, Meng Fan fell back and gave him a high look, Eunuch Lu stretched out his left hand and hurriedly pointed twice at the location of the broken arm, sealing the acupoints and stopping the blood from continuing to flow horizontally, he gritted his teeth and said, your highness, the eighth prince, what a powerful tactic, what a deep city, this time, he no longer called Meng Fan directly, because Meng Fan's status had soared countless levels in his mind with this hand, even the recognized genius Grand Imperial Prince Meng Tianyang would not be able to break his own arm with a single strike, this eighth prince, what a terrible hide, everyone thought he was a waste of a prince, but in fact he was a submerged dragon in the abyss, lying extremely dormant, I'm flattered, you're still tough even though you don't carry a handle, Meng Fan was praising him for not even grunting when he broke his arm, he was indeed tough, Uniquely saluted at Meng Fan with one hand and said, today it was the old slave who was reckless and bumped into the 8th prince, I hope the 8th prince will atone for his sins, Meng Fan had broken one of his arms, and not only did he not dare to resent it, he instead acted extremely respectful, this was the most basic respect for a strong person, before he looked down on Meng Fan, so he was not polite to him, now that he knew how powerful Meng Fan was, he was respectful and didn't dare to act out, to put it bluntly, it's human nature, bullying, Meng Fan shook his head inside, he did originally intend to behead this uniquely, and in the meantime, set an example, but as the saying goes, a hand is not a smiley face, this uniquely all of a sudden became respectful to himself, Meng Fan on the contrary could not get off this hand, it's still pretentious, and I don't think it's fun to kill people like that, you slap someone and they offer to stick the other side of their face out for you to hit again, instead you lose the urge to hit them, in the same way that you want to kill someone, you feel no pleasure in cutting them when they respectfully offer to stick their neck out for you to cut, Meng Fan sat down on the dragon chair and asked with a calm expression, do you know what this emperor's son called for when he looked for you to come here? Yunekli bowed and said, the old slave is stupid, the old slave does not know, but please show your highness, the imperial decree made me the grand commander of the imperial forest army, where is the tiger talisman to move the troops, hearing Meng Fan's words, Yunekli's heart chilled, and even his shoulders couldn't help but tremble, he thought of something extremely horrible, his royal highness, the eighth prince, had been dormant for so many years, and had always behaved as if he was a waste, without the slightest threat, but today, he was sharp, not hiding his power in the slightest, what's this for, could it be that, rebellion, looking at the 8th prince sitting on the dragon chair, Unikli couldn't help but think of the word rebellion, 
Now that the emperor has taken refuge in the palace with the royal family, there is only one prince within the palace, the eighth prince. At this time, if the eighth prince showed absolute strength and then raised his arms, there was a real possibility that the rebellion would succeed. It's not just possible, it's very possible. Eunuch Li quietly looked up at Meng Fan and felt that he had guessed what Meng Fan was thinking. What are you looking at? I'm asking you. Meng Fan had a cold face. Back to your highness. The tiger talisman for mobilizing the troops is in the hands of Generalissimo Wei. Although his majesty previously passed down the decree for you to be the Imperial Forest Army's grand commander, the tiger talisman was given to General Manager Wei. After all, in his majesty's mind, you, Eunuch Li's voice became smaller and smaller and finally shut up very sensibly and did not continue, because there are some things that need not be said, everyone understands, after all, in Meng Chuanxiu's mind, this prince is an outcast, a scapegoat, Meng Fan said in a calm tone, hearing Meng Fan call Meng Chuanxiu by his name, Eunuch Li was even more determined that Meng Fan wanted to rebel, it didn't run, solid hammer, although it was said that the Great Wind Dynasty invasion was imminent, and it would still be a dead end at that time, but it was quite cool to have a yellow emperor addiction before dying, wasn't it? No, the eighth prince's strength was so amazing that he didn't necessarily have to wait for death at all. If he wanted to leave, there was no one to stop him. Godfather would be able to stop it. But Godfather didn't even know the true strength of the eighth prince. So the eighth prince had a chance to live. Why didn't he leave? Instead, he exposed himself in the palace? Eunuch Li frowned, puzzled. A gentleman does not stand under a dangerous wall. He felt that if he was the 8th prince, he had the strength to do so and must have quietly left the palace already. To be emperor for a few days, he put his life on the line. Is it worth it? Not worth it. Meng Fan simply couldn't imagine that in just a few moments of work, so many ideas had actually popped up inside Eunuch Li's little head, and it would really be a waste of talent for this guy not to go and write a book. Your Highness the 8th prince, his majesty has no choice. In fact, he doesn't want to let you fall into such perilous situations. This is a helpless move. Eunuch Li both hypocritically and falsely defended Meng Chuanxiu. In fact, he didn't believe it himself. Even he couldn't help but feel that his majesty was truly blind this time. Such an excellent son had never taken a proper look at him. Of course, if you do the math this way, he's blind himself, and the whole palace is basically full of blind people. By the way, Eunuch Li, just now, as soon as you entered the door, you chided that this emperor should not sit in the dragon chair? Meng Fan sat his ass on the dragon chair, then folded his legs and crossed them on the tablet in front of him where he was reviewing the Zhang Fu. What? This dragon chair? Meng Chuanxiu can sit on it, but this prince can't? Chapter 13, Wei Chongfeng, head of the Grand Chamberlain. If Meng Chuanxiu can sit, this prince can't? Hearing Meng Fan's question, Eunuch Li immediately turned pale with fear. Without the slightest bit of blood, this was tantamount to telling himself plainly that he, the eighth prince, wanted to rebel. Gosh, is this the kind of thing that one can listen to? Let alone answering that question. A question he didn't even dare to hear. As a result, Eunuch Li could only lower his head and become a shrunken turtle, pretending not to have heard. But Meng Fan wasn't going to let him off the hook and asked again. Eunuch Li, this prince is asking you. This prince's words, are you going to treat them as a whisper? Eunuch Li directly softened his knees and knelt on the ground, begging for forgiveness. Your Highness, the eighth prince. Please don't make things difficult for the old slave anymore. Meng Fan was still sitting in the dragon chair with his legs crossed, and said in an indifferent tone, Then this emperor must make things difficult for you today? Eunuch Li knelt on the ground and buried his head in front of his knees, not daring to speak. It looks, well, kinda pathetic. Someone else with a soft heart might have let him off the hook and stopped giving him a hard time. Unfortunately, Meng Fan's heart was ruthless, and if his heart wasn't ruthless, he wouldn't have raffled off 20 years in one breath until he was satisfied before opening his cultivation. It was clear from here that Meng Fan was a ruthless man. Anyone else would never be able to do this. Seeing Eunuch Li pretending to be a wimp and not saying anything. Meng Fan laughed. He liked to bully honest people. Eunuch Li, do you know that earlier? When this emperor called you over, he was prepared to kill you. Eunuch Li quickly cowed out and said, Thank you, your highness, for not killing me. Meng Fan shook his head and said, whether or not to kill you is not certain at this point. It depends on this emperor's mood. Upon hearing this eunuch Li continued to kowtow. His forehead had broken the skin and began to ooze blood. There was no doubt that he was afraid of death and didn't want to die at all. Even without an arm, he wanted to live. Answer this emperor's question. And if you answer correctly, this emperor will spare you from death. Meng Fan said softly, his voice extremely small. 
Even if a weak person shouts at the top of his voice, no one listens to him, and even if a strong person's voice is low, others have to strain their ears to hear it, not daring to miss a word. Eunuch Li knelt on the ground and buried his head extremely low, as if this would avoid Meng Fan's line of sight. Within ten breaths, if you don't answer within ten breaths, this emperor will step in and behead you. Eunuch Li didn't have the slightest doubt about Meng Fan's threat, because he had just taken the initiative and had his arm broken off in a like manner. This eighth prince's strength, so much stronger than himself, to kill himself was simply a matter of one move. Not even a second move was needed. If you don't answer yourself, you will surely die. And if he answered, then when his majesty returned, he would still be dead. Unless, his royal highness the eighth prince was really able to succeed in his rebellion and ascend to the throne as emperor. Ten breaths to consider a question. Should we die now, or wait until his majesty returns? In fact, the question is so simple that it doesn't even take ten breaths to think about it. Three breaths later, this dragon chair, if Meng Chuanxiu can sit on it, your highness can naturally sit on it as well. One more day to live is one more day, and this choice should not be too good to choose, without any hesitation at all, even in order to survive. Uniquely called Meng Chuanxiu by his first name and no longer referred to his majesty. Only, from today onwards, one had gotten on the eighth prince's pirate ship and couldn't get off. Either the ship sinks and drowns, either jump or drown, and it's hard to get this ship to shore safely. Good answer. You may go down. Meng Fan waved his hand at Eunuch Li. Eunuch Li gave Meng Fan a surprised look. Letting himself go just like that? Isn't he afraid he'll go to Chief Wei and complain? However, he soon reacted to the fact that if he really went to Sue, he himself would surely die. Obviously, the Eighth Prince had already seen through his own life-hungry character and knew that he didn't dare to take the initiative to go to Wei Chongfeng to tell him off. In fact, Eunuch Li was really overthinking it. Meng Fan didn't think about this at all. He purely wasn't afraid of Eunuch Li going to complain at all. If Eunuch Li went to complain, he called Wei Chongfeng over, just to save himself from taking the initiative to find Wei Chongfeng. According to Meng Fan's knowledge, this Wei Chongfeng was a mid-stage foundation establishment powerhouse. It was indeed very strong, and there was probably no stronger expert than Wei Chongfeng in the entire palace. But Meng Fan wasn't even afraid of the late foundation establishment stage right now, so he was still afraid of Wei Chongfeng. The middle foundation establishment stage? What's more, it had been more than a month since Meng Fan had last activated the human emperor bloodline, so he could activate it again. Once the human emperor bloodline came out, Meng Fan became immortal in place. Land gods, at that time, not to mention foundation establishment, even if it was Jin Dan Yuaning, Meng Fan would not put it in his eyes. A month ago, when Meng Fan activated the human emperor bloodline, he was only at the third level of qi practicing, and at that time, activating the human emperor bloodline could all have the strength of an early yuaning. Now that he himself was already foundation establishment, once he activated the human emperor bloodline, he would definitely be stronger than a month ago. All in all, Meng Lang now could make as many waves as he wanted. Fearless, although uniquely did not go to Wei Changfeng to inform on him, the news that Meng Fan was sitting in the dragon chair in the imperial study room still reached Wei Chongfeng's ears. After all, there were many guards at that time who had seen the scene of Meng Fan sitting in the dragon chair. As for Wei Chongfeng, in the palace, he could be described as a figure with his hands in the sky, and it was not surprising at all that he was able to learn of this news. Of course, Eunuch Li broke his arm and walked out of the imperial study, and the news also reached Wei Chongfeng's ears. In the back garden, Wei Chongfeng, sitting on a stone chair, was trimming his nails. Are you saying that this eighth prince of ours is not only not a waste, but also a genius of the innate realm? Wei Chongfeng said to the kneeling guard while trimming his nails. Back to the chief steward. That is indeed the case. Although I was outside the door at the time and didn't see the situation clearly, I can confirm that Eunuch Li was indeed no match for the eighth prince. Little Li Zi this guy, now is more and more self-reliant, suffered such a big aggression. Actually also not to me this godfather in front of the complaint. The guards kneeling on the ground didn't dare to raise their heads and didn't know how to answer, so they could only keep their heads down and not say anything. Wei Chongfeng blew on his fingernails and said, The eighth prince, ha, huh, really underestimated him, surprisingly hidden so deeply, I didn't expect even our family to look away. However, what do you think he is trying to do by choosing to expose himself at this time? Whether you look at it from that point of view, exposing it at this time is not a wise choice. I don't know. The guard kneeling on the ground said without daring to raise his head, could it be that he wants to take this opportunity to rebel? Wei Changfo muttered to himself, hearing the word rebellion, the guard buried his head even lower. Were these two words for such a small guard like him to hear? Choosing this time to rebel, 
unless the eighth prince's head has been kicked by a donkey. This was still Wei Chongfeng talking to himself. Then, Wei Chongfeng put down the small clippers for repairing nails, straightened his clothes and stood up. No matter what kind of medicine this eighth prince is selling in his gourd, let's go pour it out and see. Chapter 14, What If My Son Rebels? In the Imperial Study Room, Meng Fan was waiting for Wei Chongfeng to come over. It was impossible for Wei Chongfeng not to come over after making such a big commotion himself. For Meng Fan, taking care of Wei Chongfeng earlier and determining who was the boss of the palace now earlier was something that had to be done. In the eyes of others, now that all the dignitaries with status inside the Great Moon Palace had gone, Wei Chongfeng was clearly the person with the highest status. So as long as Meng Fan suppressed Wei Chongfeng, the entire palace would be his call. What made Meng Fan unsatisfied was that the wait was a bit long. After a full two incense sticks of time, Wei Chongfeng came late and walked into the imperial study. Eunuch Wei is in the end old and has bad legs. How dare he make this imperial prince wait for you for so long? Meng Fan said expressionlessly to Wei Chongfeng who walked into the imperial study room. Wei Chongfeng entered the imperial study alone. The subordinates were all left outside the door by him. Since all these underlings combined couldn't beat him with one hand, there was no point in coming in. Your Highness, the eighth prince, knows that the old slave is coming? Of course you have to come. Your Highness is a dragon and phoenix amongst men. Even the old slave has looked away. It is indeed impressive. However, your Highness lives in deep seclusion and is extremely well hidden, but is choosing to be exposed at this time, the old slave really cannot understand. Meng Fan remained casually seated on the dragon chair. His legs still crossed over the tabletops, and indifferently said, whether or not you can understand is not important, nor do you need to. Wei Chongfeng walked forward slowly, and his tone gradually became harsh as he said, but no matter how much your highness is a dragon and phoenix among men, this dragon chair is not something you can sit on. Meng Fan couldn't help but smile as the corner of his mouth curved up. Coincidentally, Eunuch Li just said the same thing. And then what? Then he knelt in front of this emperor, thinking that this emperor should sit in this dragon chair. Chief Wei, why don't you kneel as well? Wei Chongfeng said solemnly, if your highness lets the old slave kneel, the old slave naturally has to kneel. Only that your highness has to get down from this dragon chair first. This dragon chair, you can't sit on it. Meng Fan laughed coldly. If you feel that this emperor cannot sit in this dragon chair, then pull this emperor down. Wei Chongfeng said in a cold voice. In that case, then the old slave is offended. After saying that, Wei Chongfeng's speed steeply accelerated before grabbing at Meng Fan with a grappling hand. Having come all the way here, he was bound to take a shot at Meng Fan. If Meng Fan was honest, he would still take into account the honor of the royal family and give Meng Fan face, and wouldn't easily take Meng Fan down. But Meng Fan was so insensitive and lawless that he even dared to sit on the dragon chair, so he naturally had a reason to strike. Wei Chongfeng's grappling hand was aimed not at Meng Fan's arm, but at Meng Fan's neck. Extremely wanton. Ha! Meng Fan let out a cold laugh and merged his fingers into a sword. Sword 1. The first stance of the Holy Spirit sword technique, Wei Chongfeng struck without mercy, but Meng Fan was even more ruthless than him. As a sword light swept by, a line of blood instantly flashed in front of the case couch in the imperial study room. The next second, a finger was thrown from the air and fell to the ground. This is Wei Chongfeng's right thumb. With his thumbs chopped off, the tackle naturally broke. With the remaining four fingers, even if Meng Fan took the initiative to stretch out his neck for him to tackle, he wouldn't be able to do so. Wei Chongfeng's face changed drastically as he violently retreated six steps backward. Looking at Meng Fan with a face full of astonishment and shock, he hadn't actually put Meng Fan too much on his mind, so he had just struck out casually and hadn't used his full strength. But even so, even a Pekinate martial artist could not easily chop off one of his fingers. This eighth prince, what the hell is going on? Could it be that this kid is also a foundation builder? That's not possible, is it? But looking at his thumb that had fallen to the ground, Wei Chongfeng felt that it had to be possible even if it was impossible. Meng Fan put his feet down on the table and then stood up from the dragon chair. This time, this prince chopped off your finger. Next time, if you dare to be rude to this emperor, it will be your head that will be chopped off. Wei Chongfeng stood still, looking at Meng Fan with a face full of shock and scorn. There was no doubt that after the encounter just now, Meng Fan's status in his mind had skyrocketed. This kid, he's actually better than himself and he himself had just been careless and had his right thumb chopped off. This finger was crucial. Without it, one could not even utilize 80% of one's combat power. So at this moment, facing Meng Fan, Wei Chongfeng dropped completely from his previous lofty state of mind. Your Highness, the 8th Prince, good tactics, the old slave is willing to bow down. 
After falling into a disadvantage, Wei Changfeng directly conceded and no longer fought hard with Meng Fan. The main reason was that Meng Fan at this moment gave him a feeling of unfathomability, and he even felt that if he went on fighting to the death, the probability was that he would be the one to die in the end. He was as afraid of death as uniquely, so he wimped out. Fear of death. No shame. Wei Changfeng can mix to this position today. His mind is extremely deep and delicate. He felt that Meng Fan on his own, with no help, couldn't possibly be as demonic as he was now. This indicated that behind Meng Fan, there was definitely another terrifying force. Even if he himself was able to fight Meng Fan hard at this moment, he certainly wouldn't be a match for the forces behind Meng Fan. Knowing the times, Wei Changfeng decisively decided not to go against Meng Fan anymore. Anyway, the emperor was out of the palace, and the eighth prince was now supposed to be the most honorable person in the palace. Wei Changfeng didn't think he had any problem obeying the eighth prince. Can't beat it anyway. From now on, the entire palace will have to listen to this emperor. Do you have any opinions? Meng Fan walked up to Wei Changfeng, his eyes staring straight at Wei Changfeng. Wei Changfeng hurriedly bowed his head and arched his hands. Within the palace, nowadays, your highness is supposed to be the one to be honored. So naturally, I am at your highness's beck and call. Meng Fan said, you also listen to this emperor's commands? Wei Changfeng lowered his eyebrows and said, the old slave naturally listens to your highness orders. Meng Fan smiled in satisfaction. He had thought that this Wei Changfeng was loyal to Meng Chuanxiu, thinking that Meng Chuanxiu, as the emperor, must have people who were incredibly diehard loyal to him. Now it seemed as if his own father in this body didn't have that much charisma. Indeed, from Meng Chuanxiu's last few events, he was able to tell that this guy was not a male lord. A bear lord was more like it. Wei Changfeng submitting so easily was actually unexpected by Meng Fan. Of course, it can't be called submissive, just superficially submissive. But for Meng Fan, it was enough. He doesn't need to be loyal either, just obedient for now. Meng Fan stretched out his hand toward Wei Changfeng and calmly said, the tiger talisman for mobilizing troops, take it out. Wei Changfeng didn't ink, and directly took out the tiger talisman from his bosom, then offered it with both hands and handed it to Meng Fan. Meng Fan took the tiger talisman and glanced at it before putting it in his pocket. To be honest, he didn't really care about this, but since he was now the grand commander of the Imperial Forestry Army, then what should be his? No one else was qualified to get their hands on. What is your highness next plan? The old slave is willing to saddle up for your highness. Meng Fan laughed at Wei Changfeng with a playful expression. If this prince rebels and ascends to the throne, you will also wave the flag for this prince? Chapter 15 Are there any accomplices among you? Wei Changfeng's heart jumped. This eighth prince is sitting in the dragon chair again and exposing his strength. The seat of this rebellion is indeed not small, but if he waved the flag, then if Meng Chuanxiu came back, he would definitely have to die. However, this great Wind Dynasty's army was pressing in, and it wasn't certain that he would be able to survive until Meng Chuanxiu returned to the palace. Anyway, he was now no match for the 8th prince and was being coerced. If you think about it like that, waving the flag for the 8th prince to rebel doesn't seem like an impossible thing to do. The country cannot be without a king for a day. His majesty has already left the palace. Now that the Great Wind Dynasty invasion is imminent, people's hearts are in turmoil. If His Highness ascends to the throne at this time, it will instead appease the people's hearts. This is for the sake of the country and the people. Stabilizing my Great Moon's kingdom, the old slave is willing to wave the flag for His Highness. Wei Changfeng also went out of his way. Anyway, the Great Wind Dynasty's army is coming. It doesn't matter how it is tossed. Originally, he was preparing for the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's army to come before they attacked and then sneak out of the palace to save his little life. Meng Chuanxiu felt that Wei Changfeng was loyal and would defend the palace to the death, but that was only what Meng Chuanxiu felt, and it didn't mean that Wei Changfeng was really loyal. Between the palace and his little life, Wei Changfeng felt that it was still his little life that mattered. Meng Fan looked at Wei Changfeng and laughed, you're slippery as hell. It looks like Meng Chuanxiu was also blind when he chose you to guard the palace. Wei Changfeng couldn't help but echo in his heart that if Meng Chuanxiu wasn't blind, he wouldn't even look away from his own son. If your highness wants to ascend the throne, the old slave will go and fake transmit the imperial decree. Order all the officials, and serve your highness as the emperor. Wei Changfeng this guy, is really able to go out of his way, but also a little bold. Meng Fan shook his head. This prince just casually said, for the time being, he doesn't see this throne. You go down first. Take the broken finger with you. It was just broken not long ago. With your cultivation in the foundation establishment realm, there is still hope to connect it. Wei Changfeng hurriedly said in a respectful voice, Many thanks to your highness for your mercy. 
Then he respectfully picked up the broken finger from the ground and left the imperial study. Meng Fan looked at Wei Changfeng's back and shook his head with a smile. To be honest, this Wei Changfeng disappointed Meng Fan a bit. Meng Fan had thought that this great inner governor of the Great Moon Dynasty would be able to have more backbone. As a result, like that godson of his, he is a person who tends to avoid harm and lose his style. However, it had to be said that this Wei Changfeng had made the right choice, because if he had just had a little more backbone, Meng Fan would have just shot out and chopped him up, making him a corpse with backbone. As for the matter of ascending to the throne as emperor, Meng Fan was indeed just talking casually, flirting with Eunuch Li and this Wei Changfeng. With regards to the throne, Meng Fan was not interested. He's too strong. Once the human emperor bloodline was activated, the strength would completely transcend the level of the imperial dynasty. Being the emperor of a small imperial dynasty was pushing it too far. Instead it was a bit low. However, even if he didn't ascend to the throne as emperor, it didn't stop him from controlling the entire palace. Subduing Wei Changfeng was only the first step. Next, he's going to reorganize the military. In the imperial palace, there were only the imperial guards, and those feudal armies were too far away to have anything to do with him for the time being. As he was the grand commander of the imperial forestry army, and as he was the son of the emperor, in public and in private, and in reason, these imperial forestry army had to listen to him. If you don't listen, chop them all up and leave only the obedient ones. Xiao Tai Xiao Mu, you two come in. Meng Fan shouted at the door. Kotetsu and Koki, these two guys were his personal guards for many years. All these years Meng Fan was addicted to the lottery and didn't ask about the world. And he didn't have much contact with these two guards. So naturally he didn't talk about having any feelings. But at least these are two guys he's familiar with and comfortable using. Greetings, your highness. Xiao Tai and Xiao Mu walked in and directly kneeled down to salute. Now that his royal highness the eighth prince was in their hearts, his status had changed drastically. They had seen with their own eyes that just now, his highness the eighth prince had actually ruled Chief Wei into submission. For Meng Fan, right now they didn't dare to show the slightest disrespect, and did so from the bottom of their hearts. Pass on this imperial prince's order to summon the eight imperial forest army commanders to an audience. Meng Fan said expressionlessly, the imperial forestry army has one grand commander and eight commanders. Kotetsu and Kuki looked at each other, both seeing the embarrassment in the other's gaze. Your Highness, the two of us are of low status and are not qualified to see Lord Commander at all. Meng Fan pulled out the tiger talisman in his pocket and casually threw it over. Xiao Tai's quick eyes and hands took the tiger talisman and took a closer look at it, and then he was shocked and stunned. Although he had never seen a tiger symbol, he had heard descriptions of it. It's the tiger's talisman. Your Highness, this. Little Iron opened his mouth trembling, not even knowing what to say. Go over there with the tiger's talisman, and this emperor will see who dares not see you. Kotetsu and Koki got up trembling and left the imperial study. They never dreamed that a small character like themselves could actually touch the tiger's talisman one day. After leaving the imperial study, they went in search of the eight commanders. Your highness is also too broad-minded, right? Such an important thing as a tiger talisman, but to take it out and use it so casually. In case it gets lost, wouldn't it be? It was Cookie who spoke, and he was afraid to say the next words. If you lose it, it's a headache. Don't guess his highness's mind. These two days I feel that his highness has completely changed into a different person. Simply more unfathomable than his majesty. Deliberate. Be careful what you say. Xiao Tai and Xiao Mu, with the tiger talisman, met the eight commanders unhindered, and none of them dared to stop them. An hour later, outside the imperial study, there stood seven armored commanders of the imperial guards. Only seven came. The seven people marched into the imperial study room in unison. And when they saw Meng Fan sitting on the dragon chair, all of their faces changed drastically and were filled with shock and anger. Bold Meng Fan, are you plotting a rebellion? One of the commanders, at once, drew the saber at his waist and rushed towards Meng Fan, wanting to take him down. The crown prince is not even qualified to sit on the dragon chair, let alone an ordinary prince. The news of Wei Chongfeng's defeat at Meng Fan's expense had yet to reach their ears, so Meng Fan was nothing more than a waste of a royal son in their minds. Seeing that Meng Fan dared to sit in the dragon chair, they naturally couldn't just sit back and watch. The commander who was rushing towards Meng Fan stopped when he was still about three meters away. He didn't stop of his own accord, he was forced to stop, because Meng Fan snapped his fingers and a sword she swept out, directly chopping off his head. Instantly, this commander's head and body landed on the ground at the same time dead beyond repair. The remaining seven commanders were originally filled with righteous anger and rage. As a result, when they saw such a scene, each of them immediately quieted down. 
and even their expressions froze in synchronization. Is this the legendary Prince of Waste? Punk ass. Martial artist in the innate realm was killed by the snap of a finger. If this is all a waste, what are they then? Crippled? Meng Fan stood up from the dragon chair and coldly looked at the remaining six commanders with an imposing aura. This person wants to assassinate this prince, has been killed by this prince. Among you, can there be an accomplice? Chapter 16, Responding to Your Highness is a Capital Offense. The seven people looked at each other and all of them lowered their heads in tacit agreement. Assassinate the prince, that's a charge they can't afford. Most importantly, the strength that Meng Fan had just displayed had shocked them. Obviously, this His Royal Highness, the eighth prince, wasn't the kind of trash that legends said he was. Not only is it not a waste, but on the contrary, it's horribly good. To be able to snap his fingers and kill an innate, this kind of strength was not a few even in the entire imperial palace. Now that the emperor is out of the palace, the person with the highest status in the palace nominally, would have been this eighth prince. What was even more terrifying was that this eighth prince was also terrifyingly strong. At a time like this, anyone with a little bit of brains wouldn't offend the eighth prince. Your highness, my subordinate was late to save the day. I hope that your highness will atone for your sins. A commander named Huang Lei was the first to speak as he knelt down on one knee and saluted Meng Fan. Seeing Huang Lei's action, the remaining five people also reacted in a hurry, following suit and kneeling down, shouting at the top of their lungs, my subordinate is late to save the ship. I hope your highness will atone for your sins. Looking at the commanders who were kneeling in a row, Meng Fan didn't make things difficult for them anymore. All he needed was the attitude of these few people. Since they had shown the attitude that Meng Fan needed, then Meng Fan naturally wouldn't hold on to them. All rise, Meng Fan said expressionlessly. The six remained kneeling on the ground, not daring to get up. At this moment, a thought flooded their minds at the same time. His majesty is out of the palace, and his royal highness the eighth prince exposes his strength that has been hidden for many years, and sits in the dragon chair in a dignified manner. None of this shows a message. Big moon, it's going to change. To be able to mix into a commander proves that they are all smart people. So although Meng Fan hadn't said anything, they had already thought of many things. However, the Great Wind Dynasty's army was pressing in. And if His Royal Highness the Eighth Prince exposed himself at this time, what would happen even if he seized the throne? It's still a dead end? These few commanders appeared to have the exact same doubts as uniquely in Wei Chongfeng. Meng Fan looked at the six and was silent for a moment before speaking. Where's He Chongfeng? The Imperial Forestry Army. There are eight commanders in total. Seven had just arrived. One was dead, and the remaining one had not arrived. This He Chengfeng, before, was actually the grand commander of the Imperial Forestry Army. But Meng Chuanxiu appointed Meng Fan as the grand commander, so He Chengfeng could only take a step back and demote himself to become the commander. It was only that although he was nominally the commander, he was still the chancellor in terms of both prestige and power. After all, Meng Chuanxiu's ordination of Meng Fan as chancellor was just for show. This imperial army, to put it bluntly, is still He Chengfeng in charge. In fact if Meng Fan hadn't pulled out the tiger talisman, these few commanders of theirs, wouldn't have come to see Meng Fan. They had come here solely for the tiger talisman, not for Meng Fan's face. As a result, now they realized that Meng Fan's face seemed to be even bigger than the tiger talisman. He commander has some physical discomfort, should be recuperating. The name of this commander who opened his mouth is called Wang Fei, usually is the dog leg of He Chengfeng, and also relies on He Chengfeng to promote before mixing into the commander. Meng Fan didn't give him a chance to finish his sentence as he walked over to Wang Fei and slapped the guy in the face. Instantly, a mouthful of blood mixed with a full three teeth sprayed out of Wang Fei's mouth. This is a lesson, but this emperor will only teach you once. Next time you dare to talk nonsense, you'll go and accompany Yi Chuan. Yi Chuan was the commander who had just had his head chopped off by Meng Fan. My subordinate knows that I am wrong. Wang Fei instantly dropped to both knees and threw himself on the ground. When Meng Fan had just struck out at him, he hadn't noticed anything, and didn't have the slightest bit of leeway or opportunity to defend against it. This meant that if Meng Fan wanted to kill him, he would have just died. His Highness, the Eighth Prince, was even stronger than he had previously imagined. Facing such an Eighth Prince, there was only fear in his heart. Meng Fan laughed coldly. Unwell? What a ridiculous excuse. The tiger talisman is out. He is missing arms and legs, but also have to give this emperor hands and feet to crawl over. And the two guards that this prince sent over to hold the tiger symbol have not returned at this moment. I guess, it was held by He Chengfeng, right? Wang Fei, who had just wanted to defend He Chengfeng, mutinied faster than turning over a book, and he hurriedly raised his head and said, Back to your highness, 
He Chengfeng did indeed detain those two guards of yours. Meng Fan laughed coldly. Docking two of my guards is a small matter, but to dare to dock the tiger's talisman. Is this eating bear's heart and leopard's gall? The six commanders didn't dare to speak. At this moment, the aura emanating from Meng Fan's was simply more appalling than that of the third prince Meng Tianxiao who had been fighting in the army for years. What is the offense of hiding a tiger's talisman? None of the six dared to answer Meng Fan's question. The six commanders all lowered their heads, not daring to speak. Say, what is the offense? Meng Fan snapped angrily, then stomped his foot violently. A terrifying aura raged, and a thick crack began to spread from underneath his feet. Back to your highness, it's a capital offense. The one who opened his mouth was still Wang Fei, the commander who had tried to defend He Chengfeng before. But at the moment, he doesn't hesitate at all to sell his teammates. Not bad, a capital offense indeed. Meng Fan smiled, then the smile instantly disappeared again, replaced by a glare. Pass on this imperial prince's order. He Chengfeng is bold enough to withhold the tiger talisman. An unforgivable crime. You and others immediately go to He Chengfeng's residence and kill He Chengfeng on the spot. It would certainly be easy for Meng Fan to behead He Chengfeng if he were to do it himself. However, if these commanders were made to take action to kill He Chengfeng, the effect would be even better. He didn't have any wistful tactics, he just had to use thunder to make all these guys submit to his lustful power. Your Highness, He Chengfeng is overpowered. We are no match. Wang Fei knelt on the ground and said with some trepidation. Meng Fan coldly swept a glance at him and said in a chilling voice, If the six of you can't kill a He Chengfeng when you join forces, then there's no need for you to live. Seeing that the six people were still a bit squirmy, Meng Fan cursed without a trace of anger. A bunch of losers, with this prince pressing the battlefield, what are you afraid of? A few people then breathed a sigh of relief because Meng Fan was giving them more pressure than He Chengfeng, and they felt that Meng Fan should be even stronger than He Chengfeng. The six of them exited the imperial study and began to head to He Chengfeng's residence. Meng Fan, on the other hand, was following behind them, walking unhurriedly. For these six commanders, He Chengfeng had accumulated power for a long time, and they actually didn't quite dare to take action against him. However, Meng Fan had just acted even more ruthlessly than He Chengfeng, and they were forced to listen to Meng Fan again. These people, they are all bullies. If Meng Fan was pleasant to them, they might even try to find an excuse to excuse themselves or something. However, Meng Fan directly thundered and killed at every turn, scaring them so much that they didn't dare to have any petty thoughts. Stop. No one is allowed to set foot here without the orders of the Grand Commander. Outside of He Qingfeng's residence, the six commanders were stopped by a few guards. Chapter 17, Because You're Unlucky. Huang Lei took the lead and immediately rebuked angrily. How dare you? Nowadays the Grand Commander of the Imperial Forest Army is His Royal Highness Meng Fan, the 8th Prince. How dare he Cheng Feng claim to be the Grand Commander? The guards guarding the door glanced at Huang Lei in surprise, not understanding what kind of madness this Commander Huang was having today. How dare he charge Grand Commander He in public? If He Cheng Feng is the Chancellor, then what is this Imperial Prince? Meng Fan walked slowly to the crowd and said expressionlessly, The 8th Prince? Those guards looked at Meng Fan in disbelief. The fact that the 8th prince had been made grand commander of the imperial forestry army had already spread within the palace, but this waste of a prince, no one put it in their mind. But at this moment, how do you feel that all the commanders seem to have a bit of a feeling that the 8th prince is the only one who looks up to them? Creepy, the guards guarding the door were puzzled, but in their hearts, they had already vaguely sensed that something was not normal. Your highness, commanders, I will report to commander he. At this time, he didn't dare to say chancellor and could only weakly change his name to Ho-Ho Chancellor. Meng Fan laughed coldly. If this emperor wants to see him, He Chengfeng, do we still have to wait for him to summon us? Your Highness, Commander He has commanded who? Noisy. Meng Fan frowned and interrupted the guard. As Meng Fan's words fell, there was the sound of blades being sheathed beside him. Huang Lei, who was the closest to that guard, casually drew his sword and chopped off the guard's head. Fi Fi Chengfeng, bold and daring. How dare he withhold the tiger's talisman? A great crime, according to the law should be executed. Anyone who blocks the way is considered an accomplice and will be killed. At once, the surrounding guards pissed themselves in fear. This battle was too big for these tiny guards of theirs to carry. And one by one, they directly threw their sabers on the ground and squatted aside, not daring to resist. The six commanders, in unison, marched into He Chengfeng's residence. He Chengfeng, who was originally in the bedroom, heard the commotion outside and walked out with a frown. He had the tiger's amulet in his hand and was playing with it. You few have great guts, how dare you force your way into my residence without my orders. 
He Chung Fong looked at the six commanders with cold eyes. Although he was also a commander in name now, the commanders, Huang Lei and Wang Fei, were still his subordinates and were held by him. The bold one is you, He Chung Fong, you are bold enough to hide the tiger talisman. This is a capital offense. Why don't you hurry up and hand over the tiger talisman? Wang Fei Jia, who was usually the most fawning to He Chung Fong, had the courage to be the first to stand out and angrily rebuke He Cheng Feng at this time. How dare you! He Cheng Feng's eyes widened angrily as he looked at Wang Fei with a fierce aura. This dog's leg of his own. What kind of mindless drug did he take today? To actually dare to rush himself. And looking at the six that came, it seemed like they were all here to cause trouble for themselves? Did the sun come out of the west? He Cheng Feng felt a bit baffled. Could it be that Wei Chang Feng was going to find himself in trouble and these guys were tamed by Wei Chang Feng? It was the only possibility he could think of. But he and Wei Chang Feng do not interfere with each other. What is Wei Chang Feng doing looking for trouble? Especially now at this juncture. The Great Win Dynasty's army is pressing. Wei Chang Feng's brain is broken is not so bad as to come to find his own trouble to engage in infighting ah. Just at this moment, the leisurely Meng Fan, too, walked in and stepped into He Ching Feng's line of sight. When He Chang Feng saw Meng Fan, his brows furrowed extremely tightly. It was this eighth prince who had just sent someone with a tiger's talisman to order himself to go to the imperial study for orders. How could he possibly listen to the orders of this trashy prince? So he directly detained the tiger symbol and the two guards who had passed the order altogether, and then ignored Meng Fan. As a result, this Meng Fan actually came to the door? This trashy prince, how dare he? And how could these assholes, Huang Lei, be driven by Meng Fan? Your Highness, the eighth prince, has come to visit. I wonder what is your business? He Chung Fong asked with a bit of surprise. Now that this was happening in front of him, he did wonder a bit. Logically, these six commanders, who could not possibly look up to Meng Fan at all, would not listen to Meng Fan's dispatches at all. But it happened. And it happened right in front of his eyes. Meng Fan's face was cold as he calmly looked at He Chung Fong and said, Hand over the tiger talisman, kneel down and kowtow, and break one of your own fingers, and this imperial prince will spare your life. He Chung Fong laughed loudly, is the 8th prince drunk? You think you're his majesty, and even if you were his majesty, you wouldn't insult me like this. Meng Fan shook his head, isn't comparing Meng Chuanxiu to himself an insult? He Chung Fong, you're not as good as Eunuch Li, not as good as Wei Chung Fong, and not as good as these 6 commanders. What do you mean? He Chung Fong looked puzzled, because they're all still alive, and you, dying. Meng Fan sighed, inexplicable. He Chung Fing's face went cold. Actually, He Chung Fong died at a loss. Ah, uh, he's not dead yet, but he's dead. Whether it was Eunuch Li, Wei Chong Fong, and these six commanders, they had all seen how powerful Meng Fan was and had voluntarily conceded defeat, which was why they had survived. Instead, he was sentenced to death without even having the chance to see how powerful Meng Fan was. It's also a bit miserable. Meng Fan glanced at the six commanders, then gave the order in a cold tone. Kill on the spot, said words just fell. Clank 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 clank. The sound of six Dao drawing their swords and sheathing them rang out at the same time. These six commanders drew their swords in unison and pointed them at He Chung Fong. You guys are crazy. How dare you draw your swords on me? He Chung Fong was filled with shocked anger. But more than that, he actually didn't understand. He just couldn't figure out how these six guys were suddenly obedient to Meng Fan. This punk? He Chung Fong, you're withholding the tiger talisman. This is a capital offense. Punishable by law. He Chung Fong, how dare you disrespect His Highness, you're looking for death. He Chung Fong, His Highness gave you a way out, but it's a pity you didn't grasp it. The six commanders said to He Chung Fong with seven words, do it. Meng Fan let out a stern shout, he was too lazy to listen to these mouth breathers. In fact, he also understood that these people still had fear of He Chung Fong, so they were hesitant to make a move and wanted to use words to bolster their courage. But with myself around, what are they gonna do? Just do it and be done with it. This He Chung Fong was indeed very strong, an existence at the ninth level of the innate, one step short of being able to cultivate into foundation building. And of these six commanders, the strongest was only one at the seventh innate level. That was that Huang Lei. The rest were all below the fifth innate level. It was normal for them to have a fear of He Cheng Fong after being under his shadow for so many years. But three ignorant cobblers can do a Zhu Liang. They were six innate. They disliked He Cheng Fong even if they disliked him hard. So what were they afraid of when they bullied the few with the many? The six men drew their swords and rushed towards He Cheng Fong, babbling and shouting under their breath to give themselves strength. A bunch of assholes. I'll go on a killing spree today. He Cheng Fong was furious and drew his sword to battle these guys. One incense stick of time later, 
He Chung Fong leaned on his knife and knelt on one knee, his body bruised and bloodied. The reason why he was on one knee was because one leg was broken and he couldn't stand up. As for the six commanders, each of them also had injuries on their bodies, but they were not fatal. They won, there's no doubt about it. Six hits and one drain can also drain He Chung Fong to death. Meng Fan didn't make a move, and although he said that he had come to press the battlefield, he didn't intend to make a move from start to finish, because he knew that the six of them would surely win when they joined forces, and at most one or two would die. Now it turned out to be even better than he thought. None of them were dead. Why? He Chung Fong knelt on the ground, staring at Meng Fan in death. The moment he opened his mouth he couldn't help but spill blood from the corner of his mouth. He was already at the end of his strength. He didn't understand why Meng Fan wanted to kill himself. Even more so, why did these few commanders listen to Meng Fan's commands? Because you're unlucky. Meng Fan turned around, leaving He Chung Fong with a backstory. At the same time, Huang Lei chopped off He Chung Fong's head with a single slash. From now on, the entire palace is named Meng, not Meng Chuan Xiu's Meng. It's Meng Fan's Meng. Chapter 18 This sword can break a thousand armies. He Cheng Fing's death could be said to have shaken the entire palace. The former grand commander of the Imperial Forestry Army had an undisputed position in the Imperial Palace, with Emperor Meng Chuanqiu dragging his family out of the palace, now the entire palace, in addition to Wei Chongfeng, the chief of the Inner Sanctum, and then back row, the first one will have to row to this He Chengfeng, but it was such a big man of incredible power who died, most importantly, this He Chengfeng was actually forced to die by the 8th Prince Meng Fan, this news was even more shocking than He Chengfeng's death, the 8th Prince, who was known to be a waste of space, was able to force He Chengfeng to death, for this reason alone, the 8th Prince could not be a waste, the same thought popped up in everyone's mind, so this 8th Prince was not only not a waste, but instead was a hidden dragon, 3 days later, night, Meng Fan was resting in the Moonlight Palace, originally, the Moonlight Palace was the bedchamber of Meng Chuanxiu, the Emperor, but now Meng Fan was staying here recklessly, not caring at all about the words of outsiders, some of them accused Meng Fan of treason, and as a result, they were beheaded before Meng Fan could pay any attention to them, the one who made the move was Wang Fei, the commander of the Imperial Army, who was quite talented at being a dog's errand boy, but wherever there was opposition to Meng Fan in the palace, they were all chopped clean by him, this Wang Fei, who was He Chengfeng's lapdog before, ended up stabbing He Chengfeng, now that he was Meng Fan's lapdog, I wondered if he had the courage to stab Meng Fan, your highness, my subordinate has something important to report, outside the bedchamber, Huang Lei, the commander of the Imperial Forest Army, shouted at Meng Fan, among the Imperial Guards, besides He Chengfeng the most powerful is this Huang Lei, now that He Chengfeng was dead, Huang Lei's status had naturally been raised, Meng Fan walked off the bed, he was sleeping with his clothes on, so he walked straight off the bed and opened the door to his room, what is it, the night was already late, and if there was no major event, Huang Lei would never dare to come and disturb. Your Highness, please look. Huang Lei handed up a bloodstained Zhengbiao. There was not only human blood on it, but also horse blood. And the horses had run dead twice in order to deliver this dispatch. The Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's 100, 000 strong army has already stepped through Jinnan Pass and is heading towards the Imperial City. At this speed, tomorrow afternoon, they might be able to march on the Imperial City. Huang Lei's face was unsightly and his heart couldn't help but start beating faster. This proves that the moment of life and death has arrived. Your Highness, the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's soldiers are approaching the Imperial City. Whether my subordinates and the others will defend to the death or temporarily avoid it, we will all listen to Your Highness's orders. Huang Lei saluted at Meng Fan. Meng Fan shook his head, full of calm, and said, neither defend to the death nor avoid for the time being. Huang Lei raised his head and looked at Meng Fan in surprise. Does your highness have any brilliant ideas? At this time, there is no third choice but to defend or avoid. Ah, uh, the corner of Meng Fan's mouth curved up. Neither defend it to the death nor avoid it for a while, but crush it. Crushed? What a joke. 100, 000 troops. What can we use to defeat them? With less than 20, 000 imperial guards in the imperial city? Your highness. Meng Fan waved his hand, interrupting Huang Lei's words. I know what you're going to say. No need to say it retreat and rest in peace. Tomorrow, this prince will personally ascend the city wall and meet this great wind imperial dynasty's 100, 000 strong army. Huang Lei was confused, but he honestly shut up, and when his highness told him to keep quiet, he stopped talking. At the same time, various suspicions couldn't help but appear in his mind. Your highness is so confident, could it be that you have something up your sleeve? 
Could it be that there are more armies hidden outside the imperial city? No way. If there was a large army to serve the king, his majesty would not have taken refuge in the palace. His majesty would not have left the palace if he had not been forced to do so and was desperate. For this is nothing short of a national disgrace. So what's your highness's card? After all, it was a hundred thousand troops on the other side. Although he didn't have a clue. Because of Meng Fan's confidence, Huang Lei couldn't help but have some confidence as well. In his opinion, his royal highness the eighth prince couldn't be aiming at nothing. He must have an undercurrent that he didn't know about. Early the next morning, Meng Fan gave the order. Prepare for war. Inside and outside the imperial army, if there are any defectors, they will be killed. Meng Fan hadn't fought in a war, much less led an army, so he continued to leave the specifics to the six imperial forest army commanders. He himself, on the other hand, came to the walls early. As for his side, he was followed by Wei Chongfeng. At this moment, Wei Chongfeng's broken finger had been attached and recovered well. However, this great inner chief, at the moment, was clearly a bit distracted. Chief Steward Wei, why isn't your mind still? At noon, Meng Fan glanced at Wei Chongfeng and asked. Wei Chongfeng hurriedly said in a respectful voice, returning to your highness words, with the great wind imperial dynasty's 100, 000 strong army pressing down on the border. The old slave was indeed a bit flustered, making your highness laugh. Meng Fan nodded and said, in the face of this situation, it's hard for anyone to be able to not panic. Your highness, the old slave has a question. I don't know if it's appropriate to ask. Ask, why isn't your highness panicking? And why did your highness take the initiative to step onto the city wall when you could have left the imperial city to escape this calamity? Hearing Wei Chongfeng's question, Meng Fan smiled. Wei Chongfeng, if this emperor didn't pull you, would you have already escaped at this moment? I wouldn't dare. Don't you dare, because you're afraid to die. Wei Chongfeng sniffed and quickly knelt down, did not dare to say more, this time more words more wrong, honestly kneeling on the line. Meng Fan patted Wei Chongfeng's shoulder and casually said, don't worry, you won't die today. With the blessing of your highness, the old slave naturally won't die. Your highness is the destiny of heaven. And a mere great wind imperial dynasty naturally can't hurt your highness in the slightest. Wei Changfeng said respectfully. Though this is a slinky comment that you are flattering against your will and even you don't believe it. But it is right on the money. Meng Fan smiled. With this emperor's presence, you indeed won't die. Unless, the person who wants to kill you is this emperor. Wei Changfeng's face twitched and he couldn't help but ask. Your Highness, could it be that you have some kind of card? Anyone who saw Meng Fan's confident demeanor would think that Meng Fan had a card up his sleeve. Huang Lei did, and so did Wei Chongfeng. Count on it, Meng Fan said casually. Can Your Highness reveal a bit or two? Wei Chongfeng couldn't help but ask. He knew he shouldn't ask, but he really couldn't help it. After all, it was his own little life at stake. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Your Highness's words, how dare the old slave not believe them? The bottom card is very simple. It is this sword in the hand of this imperial prince. Ha! Huh? Wei Changfeng was dumbfounded as he carefully looked at the sword in Meng Fan's hand, thinking that the sword had some special meaning. Could it be that this sword is related to the Great Wind Dynasty and can make the Great Wind Dynasty retreat? But after he carefully distinguished it, he realized that he really recognized this sword. It was a divine weapon inside the palace treasury. The sword was a good sword, but it didn't have any special significance, much less any relationship with the Great Wind Dynasty. Meng Fan couldn't help but smile as he looked at Wei Chongfeng's face full of confusion and doubt. This sword can defeat a thousand armies. Chapter 19, Bloodshed in the Imperial City. No one left behind. What Meng Fan meant was not that this sword could defeat a thousand armies, but that this person holding the sword could defeat a thousand armies. Unfortunately, Wei Chongfeng simply couldn't understand the meaning. Time passes. On the city wall, Meng Fan stood there like a statue, blatantly unmoving. For lunch, Meng Fan didn't eat. At his realm, he was already able to dispel the grain, and absorbing all the aura from heaven and earth was enough to replenish it. And since Meng Fan hadn't eaten, Wei Chongfeng was even more afraid to eat. More than 10, 000 imperial guards, ready to go. Originally, there were indeed many people who were frightened and had thoughts of defecting. However, under Meng Fan's orders, several commanders were decisive and shockingly murderous, forcibly calming that atmosphere of panic in the army. Many people were looking at the figure on the city wall. The eighth prince, Meng Fan, had suddenly risen from a waste in the past few days, and had been rumored to be more and more godly and terrifying. Not only were Wei Chongfeng and the several commanders of the Imperial Forest Army curious about Meng Fan's undercard, 
But these ordinary soldiers were equally curious. Don't think that ordinary soldiers are just cuties. They have brains too. They are actually smart. Not only did His Highness the Eighth Prince not flee, but instead chose to expose his strength at this time. Even ordinary soldiers were able to feel that it was abnormal. This Your Highness, what the hell are we going to do? After a long time, the sun was all but about to set, and the sunset appeared. Coming, Meng Fan stood on the city wall, staring into the distance, and whispered softly to himself. Wei Changfeng sniffed and raised his eyes to the distance. It was a while before he saw the dust and smoke rolling and the ground shaking. There are a thousand armies, coming from the south. The 100, 000 strong army of the Great Wind Dynasty has arrived. It was said to be an army of 100, 000, but it was actually an imaginary number. And there must have been quite a number of people killed in battle in it. But even then, it wouldn't be less than 80, 000 people. The 10, 000 or so Imperial Guards in the Imperial City were simply not enough. And the Imperial Army this thing, every day to raise in the palace, even if the original is a prima donna, but also to be raised waste, compared to these iron-blooded armies charging over the battlefield, the Imperial Guards really weren't enough to look at, the horses' hooves rolled, and soon the soldiers were at the city, in the middle of the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's army, a general on a warhorse rushed to the bottom of the city wall and shouted at the top of his voice, who is the commander on the city wall, quickly open the city gates and surrender directly, or else when my Great Wind Iron Horsemen enter the city, they will surely slaughter the city and shed blood. Hearing this general's words, a trace of coldness appeared on Meng Fan's face. A massacre? There's one way to say it, and that's a bit much. On Meng Fan's side, Wei Chongfeng's face instantly turned ugly, and there was even some hidden fear in his eyes. Your Highness, the other party's commander should be Marshal King Nyaren II of the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty. Originally, they didn't know who the commander of this large army was, but when he heard the word massacre, Wei Chongfeng immediately thought of Nyaren too. In the entire Great Wind Dynasty, there was only one person who liked to do things like slaughtering cities. That was the only king with a different surname in the Great Wind Dynasty. Marshal King Nyaren too. Massacre. This kind of thing. Heaven's wrath. Even if it's a massacre against an enemy country, will be criticized. After all, the people are innocent. However, this Marshal King, Nyaren too, was extremely murderous, and had done several massacres of the city. He has been punished by the Emperor of the Great Wind Dynasty many times, but he still remains unchanged. This king with a different surname, Nyaren II, was not only good at slaughtering cities, but also good at killing prisoners of war, once killing tens of thousands of descended soldiers. Because of this, more and more people forgot his real name, Nyafejo, and only knew him as Nyaren II. Nyaren II had created so many killings that it could be said that he had enemies all over the world, and countless people had come forward to seek revenge on him but he's still alive and well, because he was not only the number one killing general of the Great Wind Dynasty, but also the number one expert of the Great Wind Dynasty. He was in the Jin Dan realm, the entire Great Wind Dynasty, the only Jin Dan. Who can kill such a person? Your Highness, there's big trouble. It's actually Nya Ren Tu himself. We can't escape even if we want to. Wei Chongfeng's face was filled with despair, and his tone was a little trembling. Meng Fan looked at Wei Chongfeng smilingly and said, Chief Steward Wei really wants to escape. Meng Chuanxiu was indeed blind when he gave you the heavy responsibility of guarding the Imperial City. Your Highness, the old slave didn't mean that. The old slave. There's no need to be nervous. It's not like this emperor said to punish you. Your Highness, what now? What to do? Meng Fan did not reply to Wei Chongfeng's words. Although he didn't answer Wei Chongfeng's words, he had a choice to make. Because just as Wei Chongfeng was panicking and asking what to do, a voice appeared in Meng Fan's mind. The sound of the system, ding, the Great Wind Dynasty's army is pressing in and eyeing the Great Moon Palace with the intention of stepping on it. You can make the following choices. Option 1, a gentleman does not stand under a dangerous wall. In the face of an army of thousands, it is not cowardly to avoid a moment's sharpness. You can turn away and seek self-preservation. Reward, foundation building pills. Choice 2, a general dies in a hundred battles. How can he face danger and run away with his tail between his legs? You can choose to die defending the imperial city, fighting in blood, fighting to the last soldier, never surrendering, reward, Yuan Chi Dan. Option 3, a great man is born between heaven and earth, and should be courageous and brave. You can choose to take the initiative to attack and kill the generals of the Great Wind Dynasty who are calling for battle, raising the might of the Great Moon, reward, 10,000 swords sword technique. For that bonus, you have to pick 3 as well. 
Meng Fan didn't hesitate to choose the third option as he glanced at the general who was calling for battle under the city wall. It wasn't a big shot, but it must have some status, after all, it wasn't the turn of a nobody to call for such a thing. Although the city walls were very high and the other party was not close, but with Meng Fan's eyesight, he could easily see through this person's cultivation level. Late in eight, not weak anymore, but definitely not strong either. In front of Meng Fan, it wasn't enough to look at. Meng Fan stood on the city wall and didn't reply, only stretching out his right hand and snapping his fingers to shoot out a sword chi. The cultivation of the foundation establishment realm completely crushed this tiny innate. The sword chi instantly arrived and directly shot through this person's brow. Without a doubt, this was a provocation to the great wind dynasty. This sword chi was like heavenly thunder stirring up earthly fire. The great battle was about to start, in that there was no possibility of peace talks. In the middle of the great wind imperial dynasty's army, Marshal King Nyaran II sat on the king's throne and watched as the general who had called for battle was beheaded, a sardonic smile appearing on his face, pass the word down, attack the city, after breaking the city, wash the imperial city in blood, leaving no one behind, on the side of Nyaran II, a crowd of generals had their hearts trembling, they knew that this his highness, the Marshal King, couldn't help but want to slaughter the city again, it was said that accompanying a king was like accompanying a tiger, but in the eyes of these generals, this his royal highness the martial king was even more terrifying than his majesty the emperor. This master, he is a real killer. Murder, addiction. Although they belonged to an enemy country, these generals couldn't help but sigh in their hearts. They understood that the imperial city of the great moon dynasty was finished. Meng Chuanxia was still thinking that after the fall of the imperial city, he would then look for a time to consolidate his army and retake the imperial city back. But if it was an imperial city after being bloodied and slaughtered, would he really dare to live there even if he recaptured it? At that time, countless unjust souls and dead souls would be afraid to torment him so much that he wouldn't even be able to sleep. Chapter 20, The Return of the Ten Thousand Swords Just as Nyaren II ordered the siege and slaughter of the city, a set of sword techniques appeared in Meng Fan's mind on top of the walls of the Great Moon Palace. Choice 3, Decapitate the General Who Called Out the Formation Meng Fan had already completed it. Mission rewards come directly to your account. The Return of the Sword this sword technique, like the Holy Spirit sword technique, is an unparalleled sword technique from the world of wind and cloud. The Holy Spirit sword technique, belonging to the sword Saint Dokken, the Ten Thousand Swords, on the other hand, belongs to the martial arts myth that the heavenly sword is nameless. This person, nameless, is a genuine myth that has suppressed the world for more than one era. It was only that this person had an ill-fated fate, and was jokingly called, full-blooded pulling arrow, residual blood waving everywhere. A strange character in the world of wind and clouds, Nameless plays the arrow every time he appears, as long as he's in full form, and never strikes, and once it came to the point where he had to make a move, he was either seriously injured or poisoned, and hardly ever utilized his peak strength, however, even in his bloodied state, his force value was still explosive, hanging over the others, this 10,000 swords sword technique was his signature, the holy spirit sword technique was certainly strong as well, but if Sword 23 did not come out, it really wasn't a match for 10,000 swords. Meng Fan's supreme talent, Sword Dao Tongshan, came into play, and in just a matter of moments, he had learned to return to the 10,000 swords. Sword Dao Tongshan, top qualification in Sword Dao. Any sword skill can be learned at once, and the power of the sword skill is enhanced. This supreme talent attached to the 6 Dao Divine Body had already given Meng Fan a lot of sweetness. I have to say that the system is also more humane. Meng Fan possessed the talent of Sword Dao Tongshan, so the system had several quests that rewarded swordsmanship rather than sword and gun techniques. Obviously, even if the system rewarded to sword and gun techniques, Meng Fan could not possibly practice them, otherwise it would be a waste of the supreme grade, Sword Dao Tongshan, talent. The return of the 10,000 swords. A smile appeared on Meng Fan's face after he learned the sword technique. There was one thing to be said for the sword technique. It wasn't much fun at all to use for solo fighting. It wasn't suitable. But once faced with a big scene, this sword technique would be truly useful. When the heavenly sword comes out, all swords return to the origin. In front of the 10,000 swords, the other swords were just accompaniments. Your Highness, the army has started attacking the city. Wei Changfeng said with a bit of anxiety. The great wind imperial dynasty had come with a fierce force, carrying the killing intent of slaughtering the city. And these imperial guards of the great moon imperial city would definitely not be able to defend it. At this moment, Wei Changfeng felt the threat of death. Once the army of the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty entered the city, then not only would he himself die, 
but the tens of thousands of people in the entire imperial city would fall under the sword. The imperial city will be a river of blood and a sea of corpses. Even though Wei Changfeng was a cultivator of the foundation establishment realm and had already stepped into the door of immortal cultivation, he still had some chills when he thought of that image of the slaughtered city. Don't worry, with a few commanders guarding the city, the city won't break down for a while. Meng Fan said with a calm expression, Wei Changfeng said anxiously, but what if it's more than a moment? If you can't break it in a moment, you'll break it in more than a moment, won't you? There's nothing wrong with that logic. Meng Fan laughed and said, more than a moment, they still can't break it. Just at this moment, under the city wall, a silver armored general galloped his horse, rushed to the city wall, and shouted, who is the commander in chief in front of you? And do you dare to fight with Pang? This is a Tsukiji, like Meng Fan. They were both early stage foundation establishment existences. Your Highness, this is the general under Nye Rin Tu, Pang Xiaohu, Wei Changfeng reminded from the side. Pang Xiaohu and Wei Changfeng were also in the same realm, but Wei Changfeng thought that he was not Pang Xiaohu's opponent. After all, he was pampered in the palace, while Pang Xiaohu was bloodied on the battlefield, and although he and the other party were on the same level, they were not on the same level. Meng Fan ignored Wei Changfeng's words, a Pang Xiaohu is just a Pang Xiaohu not a Nye Ren too, and was not worth looking at differently. Looking at Pang Xiaohu below the city wall, Meng Fan opened his mouth, his tone clear and cold with some disdain. Pang Xiaohu, a nameless person, is not worthy of fighting this imperial prince. If you want to fight with this imperial prince, let Nye Ren too come here personally. The other side's commander-in-chief is a prince? Pang Xiaohu was furious at his words, a royal son who was pampered in the deep palace. How dare he underestimate himself and dare to provoke the king? He really doesn't know how to die. He clipped the horse's belly, then stomped one foot on the horse's back, and his entire body flew up. Martial artists of the innate realm could all rise up in the air, and with the help of a single leap of true chi, reaching the height of a ten-story building was no big deal. As for cultivators in the foundation establishment realm, their body's true essence was as thick and continuous as water. Trying to leap up to the height of the walls was a breeze. In the next instant, Peng Fei who had flown down to the city wall, drew his battle sword and looked coldly at Meng Fan, killing intent that had been poured out unconsciously, beheading an enemy general, especially the head of the commander-in-chief, is a great feat, which prince of the great moon dynasty are you, a yellow-haired child, how dare you provoke the king, you are really looking for death, Pang Xiaohu pointed his sword at Meng Fan, his face full of disdain, Meng Fan didn't open his mouth, on the side, Wei Changfeng was filled with shocked anger, daring, Standing in front of you is His Highness the 8th Prince of the Great Moon Dynasty. You, a martial artist, dare to disrespect His Highness. To be honest, at this time, Wei Changfeng was actually very wimpy in his heart, but now he had to stand firmly on Meng Fan's side, and could only pray that His Royal Highness, the 8th Prince, would really have the undercurrent of a Jedi counterattack. You're the rumored famous waste of a prince? I heard that Meng Chuanxiu, this little child, escaped from the palace, and it looks like he's letting you. This waste of a prince, be the scapegoat? Unbridled, Wei Changfeng was furious, pulling out the sword at the waist of a side imperial guard and chopping directly at Pang Xiaohu. At this time, the only thing he could count on was Meng Fan. Pang Xiaohu dared to humiliate Meng Fan, so he had to step in and show his heart. As Meng Fan watched Wei Changfeng and Pang Xiaohu battle together, the corners of his mouth couldn't help but curve up. This Wei Changfeng is a little wasted, but at least he still has some eyesight. A battle in the foundation establishment realm was a dozen moves down in an instant. Three wounds had been added to Wei Changfeng's body. Pang Xiaohu, on the other hand, was unharmed. At the same early stage of foundation establishment, Wei Changfeng was indeed much weaker. Wei Changfeng, on the other hand, was already the strongest card in Meng Fan's hand. It's also sad that there is no one under you to use. After another dozen moves, Wei Changfeng was losing ground. As he watched, Pang Xiaohu chopped at Wei Changfeng's head with his sword. And at this moment, Wei Changfeng was no longer able to parry. If Pan Xiaohu succeeded in chopping down this sword, Wei Changfeng would definitely die. Your Highness save me. Wei Changfeng let out a terrified cry for help. Hearing Wei Changfeng's words, Pang Xiaohu couldn't help but glance at Meng Fan with his afterimage. This eunuch was at least a foundation builder. Although not as good as himself, he was still considered not weak. Such a personage. To ask for help from this notorious waste of a prince? Pang Xiaohu was a bit baffled. However, no matter what he thought in his mind, the sword in his hand did not hesitate for a second and still chopped at Wei Changfeng's head. He was confident that this old eunuch would land on his head in the next second. The next second, a head fell to the ground. 
Chapter 21, Re-Entering the Land of the Immortals Only this head that landed on the ground was not Wei Chongfeng's head, but Pang Xiaohu's head. Hearing Wei Chongfeng's plea for help, Meng Fan stepped in. Although Meng Fan was also at the early foundation establishment realm, with the six Tao Divine Body and the Nine Heavens Emperor God skill, his strength was not at all weaker than that of a mid-foundation establishment. He struck out with the Holy Spirit Sword technique, and even though he only struck out with Sword 1, he easily chopped off Pang Xiaohu's head. Many thanks to your highness for saving my life. Wei Changfeng hurriedly saluted Meng Fan in a trembling manner, and truth be told, his legs were a bit weak at the moment. For a moment just now, it seemed like he saw Meng Fan strike, but then again, it seemed like he didn't, because Meng Fan's sword was too fast. He only saw a sword light appearing at first glance, and neither saw Meng Fan's action of drawing his sword nor his action of closing it, but he wasn't too surprised by the scene. This was because back in the Imperial study room, he had already seen how powerful Meng Fan was. Only, although he had escaped, his heart was filled with worry and gloom. Because although His Royal Highness the Eighth Prince was amazingly forceful, if the Eighth Prince alone, he would not be able to turn the tide. No matter how strong the Eighth Prince was, he couldn't possibly be stronger than Nyaren II. What's more, even if we don't mention Nyaren II, there's still a hundred thousand troops on the opposite side. Wei Changfeng really couldn't figure out what other cards His Highness the Eighth Prince had? Why is it that until this moment, His Royal Highness the Eighth Prince is still light-hearted and incomparably calm, and even vaguely has a feeling that he is winning? Below the city wall, amongst the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's army, Nya Ren Tu, who was sitting on the king's carriage, had a hint of surprise in his eyes. Although they were far apart, he could see and hear clearly what was happening on the city walls. Jin Dan Realm, Possessing Divine Sense Divine consciousness, this was an aptitude means that existences under the gene dam were simply unable to comprehend. Interesting, the eighth prince of the great lunar dynasty whose reputation as a waste is spread all over the world is actually so amazingly talented in real life. It's really interesting, Nya Ren too muttered to himself, a distinctly evil smile appearing on his face. Your highness, the commander in chief on the imperial city, is that trashy prince of the great moon dynasty? Beside Nya Ren too, a general in black armor spoke up and asked. This person was the number one fierce general under Marshal King Nya Ren II, Zhao Bat Ian. Although the name is reckless, but it is a brave and resourceful character. A body of force is to reach the realm of the late stage of foundation building. He's not a waste. If someone who can kill Pang Xiao who with a single sword is still a waste, then how many people in this world dare to say that they are not a waste? Your Highness, my subordinate requests to go to war and behead this son to give your Highness a boost. Forget it. This king will personally take action and fetch the king's piercing cloud bow. Your highness, how can I trouble you to do it yourself? My subordinate will be able to behead the sun. Fetch the bow. Yes, your majesty. Jalbadian hurriedly ran to the side and fetched Nyaren II's cloud piercing bow. When the king repeats a sentence, it proves that he has overstepped his bounds, and if he dares to say more, he is unaware of what he is doing. Nyaren II picked up the large bow and waited in his hand, a satisfied look on his face. He didn't ask Zhao Badian to make another move because there were only a total of three foundation establishment under him. The loss of a Pang Xiao who had been a blood loss that caused him heartache. In case Zhao Badian had another accident, this loss would be too great. Although he could tell at a glance that Meng Fan was at the early stage of foundation establishment while Zhao Badian was at the late stage of foundation establishment, it was logical that Zhao Baishan's strike should be foolproof. However, Nye Ren Tu felt that this eighth prince of the Great Moon Dynasty was a bit evil and he didn't want to risk Zhao Badian, so he chose to take action himself, for such an amazingly talented prince to appear on the city walls, this in itself was extremely unreasonable, he would be the first to disbelieve it if he said there wasn't some kind of trap in it, after Nya Ren Tu weighed the cloud piercing bow, Zhao Badian handed up another cloud piercing arrow, Nya Ren Tu knocked his arrow and drew his bow, the bow was drawn to the full moon, on the side, Zhao Badian sighed in his heart, he wanted to personally behead the trashy prince of the great moon dynasty, but unfortunately, he didn't have the chance. Once the king strikes, that trashy prince will surely die. Not only did Zhao Badian think so, but all the warriors who saw Nya Ren Tu draw his bow thought so. Nya Ren Tu, himself, fought the same thing, the moment he drew his bow. That eighth prince Meng Fan of the great moon dynasty, no matter what traps he had or what cards he had, he would be reduced to a corpse next. There is no doubt about that. On the city wall, although Meng Fan's eyesight was overpowering, he couldn't see Nya Ren Tu pulling his bow on himself in the midst of the vast 100, 000 strong army. But instinctively, he sensed an aura locking onto him, an aura of death that was closing in on itself. Although he hadn't seen Nya Ren Tu draw his bow, 
Meng Fan was able to understand that that great wind imperial dynasty's only Jin Dan, Marshal King Nya Ren II, was going to make a move against himself. Meng Fan didn't hesitate and instantly activated the human emperor bloodline in his body. At that moment, the vast chi fortune between heaven and earth surged into Meng Fan's body. The five-clawed golden dragon of chi luck in the sky above the imperial palace also rose up in the air and turned into Meng Fan's body. In the next second, Meng Fan's aura instantly skyrocketed. Foundation building, Jin Dan, Yuanying. It was only until the middle stage of Yuanying that his cultivation stopped skyrocketing. A month ago, when Meng Fan was still in the chi practicing realm, he activated the human emperor's bloodline and raised his cultivation to the early Yuanying stage. And now that his own cultivation was already foundation establishment, after activating the human emperor's bloodline, his cultivation was raised to the mid Yuanning stage, practicing qi to building the foundation, although the difference was far, and there was still an innate in between, but posing that gap to the Yuanning realm was nothing, it only allowed Meng Fan to rise from the early stage of Yuanning to the middle stage of Yuanning, on the opposite side, Nye Ren Tu's brows furrowed slightly as if he had a strange feeling, but where the strangeness lay, he could not perceive it. This thing called Qi Luck was not something that could be touched by the Jin Dan realm. Therefore, when the rolling Qi applications between heaven and earth surged into Meng Fan's body, Nya Ren Tu couldn't sense them at all. He was only vaguely aware that above the city walls, there seemed to be a bizarre fluctuation of breath. Meng Fan, who had reached the Yuanning realm, would not be able to see through him? He could sense a hint of abnormality, or a slight leak in Meng Fan's aura as he began to raise his cultivation from foundation establishment. However, at the moment, the arrow was already on the string and had to be sent. There was no way that Nya Ren Tu would terminate this arrow just because he detected a hint of a particular abnormal aura. Hands loose, arrow out. A stream of light, interspersed with the momentum of breaking through the air, carried an astonishing sharpness and shot towards the city wall. This arrow, under the Jin Dan, it is absolutely impossible to resist, and will certainly die. On Meng Fan's side, Wei Changfeng was able to sense that there seemed to be a change in the aura of this eighth prince. His Highness, but what kind of change is beyond his comprehension? He just instinctively felt that His Highness the Eighth Prince had become even more unfathomable. Then just at this moment, he saw a stream of light that simply carried a terrifying might of heaven and earth, shooting towards the city wall. This arrow, just the breath that flowed out of it, had already suppressed him so much that he couldn't even move. If this arrow had been shot at him, he would have died for sure. However, he clearly felt that the arrow was not shot at himself, but His Highness the Eighth Prince. Your Highness be careful, there are hidden arrows. Although Wei Changfeng couldn't move even though his body was subdued by the arrows, he still roared out this sentence with all his might. However, if he was able to see things, would Meng Fan not be able to see them? Meng Fan's face was expressionless as he coldly watched the arrow shoot out. When the arrow was only a foot away from him, a terrifying and overwhelming aura erupted from his entire body. Hidden arrows hurt people, the famous Martial King Nya Ren Tu is nothing more than that, a false name. Meng Fan didn't draw his sword, he just stretched out two fingers. Chapter 22, I killed him. The arrow with its earth-shattering and terrifying divine might was precisely clamped by Meng Fan's two fingers. To the side, Wei Changfeng watched the scene with a dumbfounded expression. Your Highness, this, is an arrow shot by Nye Ren too? Nice. Hearing Meng Fan's reply, the shock on Wei Changfeng's face was practically fixed on his face. His Royal Highness, the Eighth Prince was actually able to catch an arrow shot by Marshal King Nya Ren Tu himself? How is that possible? Nya Ren Tu, but the legendary Jin Dan realm, was simply not something that others could contend with. An unrealistic idea popped up in Wei Changfeng's mind. Could it be that His Highness, the Eighth Prince, actually had the strength to fight against Nya Ren Tu? As soon as the thought popped up, it was banished from his mind because it was impossible. Something that shouldn't even be thought about. It's unrealistic. It's delusional. Below the city wall. Amongst the 10,000 troops, Nya Ren Tu, who was holding a cloud-piercing bow in his hand, frowned. His arrow, surprisingly, was caught. That 8th Prince Meng Fan, who was rumored to be a waste of a prince, had actually received his cloud-piercing arrow with his bare hands. Not even a hand. Exactly. Just two fingers. Seeing this scene, Nya Ren Tu's face, instantly, became a bit more grave. The gravity was accompanied by a slight smile. Interesting. On Nya Ren Tu's side. That first fierce general Zhao Badian also saw the scene. His shock-filled expression was exactly the same as Wei Chongfeng's. He couldn't believe that the legendary waste of a prince could catch the king's arrow. Even if it was himself, he would surely die in the face of the king's arrows, without the slightest possibility of survival. Could it be that this waste of a prince was really better than himself? 
He didn't want to believe the results, but the facts were in front of him and spoke louder than words. If the king hadn't stopped himself just now, he might have gone to his death as well. Thinking of this, a large cold sweat instantly overflowed from his back. The Great Moon Imperial Dynasty, it's not all incompetent. This eighth Prince Meng Fan, is quite interesting. Nya Ren too laughed, then once again said to Zhao Badian, fetch the arrows, that arrow just now. He had only shot it casually and hadn't used his full strength. He wanted to see if this bizarre eighth Prince Meng Fan could catch it when he struck out with all his might. Zhao Badian hurriedly handed over another cloud-piercing arrow. Nya Ren too took an arrow and strung his bow, pulling it to a full moon. His body was bulging with true essence, the aura of the Jin Dan realm overflowing out, and this time there was not the slightest bit of retention. With this arrow, even a cultivator of the same Jin Dan's realm could be seriously injured. And below the Jin Dan realm, if one was locked by this arrow, one would surely die. He didn't believe that a tiny junior could still have the cultivation of the Jin Dan realm? Nya Run 2's fingers loosened, and the arrow transformed into a meteor that shot toward Meng Fan, the city walls. Meng Fan's face was cold, and with a twist of his two fingers, the arrow that he had clamped in his hand reversed its direction. The arrow, aimed at the army of the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty, aimed at the Nya Run 2 in the army. Meng Fan didn't need a bow, at the moment, his fingers were the undoubtedly strongest bow. With a snap of his fingers, the arrow shot out. The sound of breaking air came. In the next second, the second arrow shot by Nya Ren 2 was directly crushed into powder. Even arrows made of fine iron were no exception, and they were all crushed into powder. Meng Fan flicked out this arrow with his finger, and after crushing Nya Ren 2's arrow, it went on to shoot into the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's army without decreasing its momentum. This arrow was shot by Meng Fan himself, and naturally, when he strikes, he doesn't aim at nobody's. His target was Nya Ren 2, in the middle of the army. Nya Ren 2 no longer had his previous composure and indifference, and was replaced by a face full of shock. That's not possible. He had seen with his own eyes the second arrow he had shot, which had turned into pieces, as well as the arrow that Meng Fan had shot at him. It feels like it's all, like, backwards. In the nick of time, he pulled out the saber at his waist, wanting to cut off the arrow shooting at him. Results, the knife breaks, the man dies. The arrow, with unerring precision, shot into Nya Ren 2's brow crushing all of his divine soul directly. The incomparable martial king Nya Rin Tu died just like that. The death was so sudden, without the slightest sign, like a joke. On the side, Zhao Baishan's eyes rolled round, staying in place at a loss for words, his mind in a state of terror. The king is dead? How is that possible? No way. On the city wall, Meng Fan was still full of calm. Perhaps martial king Nya Rin Tu was renowned and famous, a nightmare for countless people. But to Meng Fan, it was just an ant that could be killed with his hands, because in front of a Yuaning, killing a Jin Dan was indeed easy and effortless. So after beheading Nya Ren Tu, Meng Fan didn't feel any sense of accomplishment and was extremely flat inside. Nya Ren Tu, dead, Meng Fan said casually, his voice was not loud, and only Wei Chongfeng, who was the closest, heard him. But although Wei Chongfeng heard it, he felt that he had misheard it, and he asked cautiously, Your Highness, what did you just say? I said, Nya Ren 2 is dead, dead, how is that possible? Wei Chongfeng's face was filled with astonishment, not believing Meng Fan's words at all. He looked towards the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's army, and there did seem to be some turmoil amongst the army, but he was unable to see if Nya Ren 2 was dead or not. The point is how could Nya Ren 2 suddenly die? It's not possible to choke on water, is it? Suddenly, he thought of the arrow that Meng Fan had just shot. Did that arrow kill Nya Ren 2? Wei Chongfeng let out a bitter laugh. What is wrong with himself today? Always having such unrealistic fantasies. However, the fact that His Highness was able to catch one of Nya Ren 2's arrows unharmed just now did shock him beyond measure. Once Nya Ren 2 dies, the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's army will be leaderless and should retreat. Meng Fan looked at the vast army on the opposite side and said in a slightly uncertain tone. Once the commander-in-chief was dead, the army was in chaos and out of command, and it was indeed possible for this Great Wind Dynasty's army to retreat. Unless there was also an extremely high status existence in the opposite army that was able to subdue the army. But even so, the other side did not necessarily dare to continue the siege. Because Nya Ren 2 is dead. It's not just as simple as the commander in chief being killed in battle. This represented that there was an existence that could decimate a Jin Dan in the imperial city of the Great Moon Dynasty. With such a terrifying existence as a deterrent, the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's army had a higher probability of retreating. This is not a historical world or a martial arts world. This is a world of immortal cultivation. Oftentimes, 
One person can defeat a thousand, ten thousand, or even ten thousand armies. Wei Chongfeng's brow furrowed as he looked at how Meng Fan was speaking so eloquently. He was really a bit convinced that Nye Ring Tu wasn't really dead. The main reason was that Meng Fan had just caught Nye Ring Tu's arrow with his bare hands, giving him an unrealistic fantasy. Your Highness, is Nye Ring Tu really dead? Dead. I killed it. Chapter 23, The Sword Comes. Meng Fan spoke the most appalling words in the most bland tone. Wei Chongfeng originally absolutely did not believe this, but Meng Fan's expression and reaction instead made him believe it more and more. This His Highness, the Eighth Prince, had refreshed his perceptions time and time again. Your Highness, please forgive the old slave's presumptuousness. There is a question that the old slave doesn't know whether to ask or not. Ask, Your Highness, what realm are you in now? Wei Chongfeng asked cautiously, bowing his body for fear of angering Meng Fan. Meng Fan smiled, then said, my realm is not weaker than Nye Ring Tu's. Hearing Mang Fan's words, Wei Chongfeng's eyes widened. Your Highness is actually a Jin Dan? To be honest, the way Wei Chongfeng looked at Meng Fan at the moment was simply like he was looking at a god, a Jin Dan at only 20 years of age. This seemed to really be no different from a god. Is there really such a wonderful person in the world? Although Meng Fan's true realm was only foundation establishment, he wasn't exactly lying at the moment, because at least at this moment, he was a Yuan Ing. Yuan Ing? Of course, is not weaker than Jin Dan, and much stronger. After a long time, Wei Chongfeng hadn't digested the information and was still immersed in shock. From now on, he would stand firmly by Meng Fan's side, even if Meng Chuenxiao was back. Oh, Meng Chuenxiao, my ass. At the moment, in Wei Chongfeng's eyes, Meng Chuenxiao was a piece of, at least compared to Meng Fan. To call him blind is a compliment when he clearly has such a wonderful son and never takes it seriously and wants to leave that son behind to die. On the city wall, Meng Fan frowned slightly. Two incense sticks of time had passed since Nye Ring Tu's death. However, the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty showed no signs of retreating, and when Nye Ring Tu had just died, the army had indeed faltered and panicked. But gradually, this Great Wind Dynasty's army actually stabilized. At this moment, it is even more reorganized and continues to attack the city. Wei Chongfeng had also discovered that the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's army had begun to continue their assault on the city, and he said somewhat helplessly to Meng Fan. Your Highness, Nye Ring Tu is dead, and the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty hasn't retreated. It's determined to take down my Great Lunar Imperial City, so what can we do about this? How's that? Since we're not retreating, it's better to stay here forever. Among the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's army, the crowd did panic after realizing Nye Ring Tu's death. The first reaction of many people is to retreat. If the Commander-in-Chief dies in battle, what's the point of continuing the attack even if we capture the Imperial City? Most importantly, once Nye Ren Tu died, the group was leaderless and no one was qualified to order the army. People want to retreat, there's no stopping that. But Zhao Badian stepped forward. He was originally the number one fierce general under Nye Ren Tu, and had quite a lot of prestige in the army. Once Nye Ren Tu died, he immediately beheaded the disobedient generals and then took the power into his own hands. He wasn't trying to take Nye Ren Tu's power. The reason he chose to take power at this moment was precisely because he wanted to avenge Nye Ren Tu. If we retreat at this time, then we don't even know who the murderer of Nye Ren Tu is. Zhao Badian was loyal to Nye Ren Tu, and he knew that someone who could kill Nye Ren Tu must be an incomparably strong existence. Even with such a large army, it was impossible to kill the other party to avenge the king, but he couldn't do it if he retreated in disgrace without even knowing who the murderer was. At the very least, find out who the killer is. If we break through the imperial city and capture Meng Fan, the eighth prince of the great moon dynasty, we'll be able to find out who the murderer is. Although he didn't know who the murderer was, he knew that the murderer must be related to the eighth prince, Meng Fan, because the king was killed when he took a shot at Meng Fan. That murderer? must be the guardian of the 8th prince of the great moon. Zhao Badian hadn't thought that the murderer was the 8th prince himself, because it was too heavenly to be possible. Attack the city. Zhao Badian let out a roar and ordered his generals to continue attacking the city. He had killed a total of 8 generals who were extremely powerful in the army before he took control of the military and forced the people to follow his orders. It's messing with military discipline. Even if he managed to stay alive after this battle, he would still face serious chastisement, even death. When he returned to the Great Wind Dynasty, but for the sake of the king, he will die by all means. Even if he couldn't avenge the king's death, he would at least find out who the king's murderer was. The Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's army began to continue attacking the city. In the Imperial City, those Imperial Guards defending the city, before still curious about how to become relaxed, 
the result of the other side of this attack suddenly fierce again? Especially the generals of the Imperial Forest Army behind the city gates, all of them were holding their faces red. The city gates, the single most important barrier. Once the city gates were forced, the Great Moon Imperial City was basically finished. Huang Lei, as the strongest of the six commanders of the Imperial Forest Army, was tasked with guarding the city gates. On top of that, there was also a commander called Lin Fei Hua, who was also with Huang Lei. Because the city gates were so important, two commanders were guarding the gates. Old Huang, the city gates are about to become untenable. There's at most one incense stick of time left before the city gate breaks. Lin Fei Hua was a bit worried and said to Huang Lei who was at the side. Huang Lei said with a serious face, when the city gates are there, the people are there, when the gates are broken, the people are dead. These pups of the Great Wind Dynasty, if they want to enter the Imperial City, they will pass over my corpse. As long as I'm still alive, not a single one of them will enter the city. Lin Fei Hua said helplessly, try to say this kind of thing as little as possible. Once you say it, Huang Lei laughed out loud and said, afraid of an egg. What did you say his highness's bottom card was, exactly? Now that the city gates are almost broken, it's time for his highness's bottom card to come out, right? Not only them, everyone thought that Meng Fan had an undercurrent. Otherwise, how could his royal highness the 8th prince, who was so powerful and so honorable, personally defend the city? Regardless of whether or not your highness has any cards, I will not allow these scumbags to set foot in the imperial city. Not to mention the righteousness of the country, there is still my old mother wife and children in the imperial city, how can I let them suffer? Yeah, definitely can't let these mongrels into the city. Just as they were chatting, the first crack appeared on the city gate, the first crack appeared, then soon there would be a second one, which indicated that the time before the gates were broken, was not far away. On the city wall, a soldier rushed to Wei Chongfeng in a hurry, full of eagerness to report the news to Wei Chongfeng. Your Highness, the city gates are in a state of emergency, they're about to be broken. After the soldier reported Wei Chongfeng, Wei Chongfeng hurriedly reported Meng Fan again. Meng Fan sighed slightly as he looked across at the army of the Great Wind Dynasty. Great Wind Dynasty, this is not seeing the coffin. Originally, Meng Fan wanted to wait for the army to voluntarily retreat. But unfortunately, they didn't and chose to continue attacking the city. Since this was the case, one couldn't blame Meng Fan for going on a killing spree. Wei Chongfeng, haven't you always asked what this imperial prince's bottom card is? Next, I will let you see this imperial prince's bottom card. After saying that, Meng Fan waved his hand violently at the front. At once, a terrifying force of heaven and earth surged towards the 100, 000 troops on the opposite side. Sword come, Meng Fan let out a whisper. Countless battle swords began to tremble and emit sword chants within the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's army. Clank, clank, clank. A war sword was automatically sheathed, and the warriors couldn't stop it. In an instant, Countless battle swords rose up into the sky, surging toward Meng Fan and converging in the sky above the imperial city. All swords return. Chapter 24 One man can be a million divisions. 10,000 swords return to the clan. This sword was like Meng Fan learning from the present, and as a result of executing this sword at the Yuaning realm, the power was even more terrifying than Meng Fan had imagined. At the Yuaning realm, one could directly borrow the power of the heavens and earth, a realm that was simply unimaginable to ordinary people. The land deities were really just like gods, possessing divine might, immortal might, and even heavenly might. Among the 100, 000 troops, but all the warriors who wore battle swords, the battle swords all rose up to the sky. Even among the imperial army warriors, the battle swords all took off whenever there was a situation where they were wearing swords. Countless battle swords converged in the sky above the imperial city, forming an overwhelmingly terrifying sword formation. 10,000 swords returning. Although it was called 10,000 swords, the sword weapons hovering above the imperial city at this moment had far exceeded 10,000. The number of warriors who wore swords in the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty alone was already 20,000. At this moment, if someone were to count the sword weapons flying above Meng Fan, they would realize that they had reached the horrifying number of 25,000. Wei Chong Fong, who was on Meng Fan's side, had already knelt down for Meng Fan. It was from the bottom of my heart, kneeling and worshipping. Other people didn't know that such a big scene was made by Meng Fan, but Wei Chongfeng had just seen it clearly. Even the sound of sword come from Meng Fan's mouth was practically immortal in his ears. So this is his highness's bottom card. When you have absolute force, then even in the face of a thousand armies, you can likewise raise your hand to suppress them. Your highness is no longer a man, but a god. 
Wei Changfeng knew that the image of the Ten Thousand Swords returning to the sect was something that Meng Fan had created, but no one else knew. Whether it was the Imperial Guards and people within the Imperial City, or the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's army outside the Imperial City, all of them could not help but raise their heads to look at the sky. Looking at the more than 20, 000 battle swords hovering in the sky, everyone's heart was appalled and felt fear. This is an image that ordinary people never see in their lifetime. Even Jean Dan Realm bigwigs, absolute human masters like Nya Rin too, had likewise never seen such a picture in their entire lives. Unfortunately, if he had died a little later, he would have been able to see this image and could have died without regret. In the middle of the army, after Zhao Badian was shocked, his face was replaced with bitterness. Obviously, this was the one behind the eighth prince of the great moon, the murderer of the king. With such a terrifying and overwhelming person, what will he do to avenge the king? Even if they spelled out the last soldier of their 100, 000 strong army, they might not even be able to hurt the other side of it. Not to mention revenge, even if you want to die together, it's a dream. Within the imperial city, the crowd saw the flying swords spreading all over the sky. All of them were heartened and excited. Huan Lei was pleasantly surprised. So this is your highness's bottom card. Your highness has such a terrifying expert by your side. Lin Fei Hua laughed out loud. No wonder your highness has been so calm and has never put the Great Wind Dynasty's 100, 000 strong army in your eyes. With the presence of this expert, not to mention a hundred thousand troops, even if it's a million troops, what is there to fear? After strength reached a certain realm, one could simply only compare realms, as numbers were no longer meaningful. People, after all, are just people. Any more than that, and it's impossible to hurt Xian. On the city wall, Meng Fan looked indifferently at the densely packed army in front of him. He had given these people a chance, but unfortunately these people were too greedy and knew that there was a tiger on the mountain. Go! Meng Fan pointed toward the front. In the next second, the war swords that covered the sky flew towards the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's 100, 000 strong army in a vast manner. This scene, this means, it was simply the means of a god. Where could a mortal man fight against it? All of a sudden, the army was filled with miserable screams. More than 20, 000 battle swords surged into the densely packed army. Even if a few of the swords were off target, most of them still hit people. Meng Fan's lighthearted strike had already caused this 100, 000 strong army to lose at least 10, 000 of them. This was the means of the firstborn, the divine power of the land immortals. One man, against a thousand armies. No. It can destroy 10,000 armies. Meng Fan's face remained calm, but there was a touch of complexity in his eyes. There was no doubt that a lot of people had died down there, and all because of him. So it was normal for Meng Fan's mind to be somewhat affected. Although he came to this world with a game life mentality, treating this world like a game, but after living here for so many years, could he no longer treat the world like a game? After killing so many people, he couldn't be indifferent. Even if you step on a dense piece of ants, the human heart will fluctuate a little, let alone the dead are not ants, but people, living people, but this was a national war, and these people were invaders, and there was nothing wrong with Meng Fan for killing these invaders, if we don't kill these people, when the city breaks down, it will be the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty that will be slaughtered, at this moment, the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's army was truly strewn with corpses, Zhao Badian was covered in blood, mostly that of his companions, his eyes were lifeless and he was lost, defeated, a crushing defeat, in fact the moment Nya Rin Tu died, they were already defeated, but it was not until this moment that they realized what kind of real failure was, retreat, Zhao Badian shouted miserably, those who are uninjured carry a corpse in pairs, those who are lightly and seriously injured support each other, and never allow the corpses of my great wind men to remain in this great moon to be spoiled, retreating and still wanting to take all of these corpses away. One could only say that this decision by Zhao Badian was just as stupid as having to attack the city just now. In this situation, if the Great Moon sent out troops to chase after them and encountered some accidents on the way, it was very likely that this Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's 100, 000 strong army would be completely wiped out. So this Zhao Badian was destined not to be a real commander-in-chief. If Nye Ren Tu was still alive and faced with this kind of situation, he would definitely give up on these corpses and directly retreat. Wait until later then fight back and completely occupy the Great Moon Imperial City. By then, this burial ground will be the land of their Great Wind, the home of the buried. Zhao Badian was ultimately far inferior to Nya Rin too, and the only thing he was stronger at was being more humane. The gates of the Great Lunar Imperial City had been completely torn apart under the successive crashing blasts. 
Just as the Imperial Guards in the Imperial City were preparing to fight to the death, they heard the horn of the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty retreating. Gale. Retreat. Winning? It was a war that could not have been won, and it turned out to be won in a way that was inexplicable and confusing to them. On the Imperial City, Wei Changfeng shouted with a face full of excitement. Your Highness, the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty has retreated. Really retreated. He was genuinely excited and a bit giddy. I don't blame him for being excited, because he had thought he was going to die today. As a result, in the end, not only did he not die, but even the entire Great Moon Dynasty forced back the Great Wind Dynasty's 100, 000 strong army without losing a single soldier. Not only was it so simple to force back, he visually estimated that at least 10,000 of this Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's army must have fallen, and all of this is due to His Highness the Eighth Prince. One man can be a million divisions. He'd heard that before, but at the time he thought it was a fart. One person? A million divisions? Dreaming? As a result, at this moment, he was standing alive in his dream. Chapter 25, I have to go back and report to my brother. The Great Wind retreated, and the entire Imperial City of the Great Moon was thrown into a frenzy. The people in the Imperial City all knew one thing. That's when His Majesty, the Emperor, took his concubines and fled the palace, abandoning them to their fate. The Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's 100, 000 strong army was pressing in, and the commander-in-chief was the legendary demon. Great Wind's Marshal King Nya Ren II, this human butcher, most liked to slaughter the city, but also threatened to break through the city after the slaughter of the entire imperial city, not to leave a single one. Then at this moment of despair, His Royal Highness the Eighth Prince Meng Fan stepped forward, he destroyed the King of Wushu, retreated the army, and saved the imperial city. At this moment, in the Great Moon Imperial City, the prestige of the Eighth Prince Meng Fan had directly jumped from a waste prince to a myth the object of everyone's praise, His Royal Highness the Eighth Prince lies in wait, His Royal Highness the Eighth Prince endures humiliation, His Royal Highness the Eighth Prince does not count with the side, His Royal Highness the Eighth Prince doesn't care about vanity, His Royal Highness the Eighth Prince for the country and the people. For a time, Meng Fan directly became synonymous with perfection and was subjected to countless glorifications, and this prestige and good name was not only circulated among the imperial city, but gradually spread out to the whole world as well. And all of this prestige was climbing up by stepping on Meng Chuanxiu's spine. The greater Meng Fan's prestige, the more Meng Chuanxiu's reputation stank. If the imperial city is broken, then Meng Chuanxiu's flight can still be interpreted as lying in wait and enduring humiliation, with the hope of regrouping in the future. However, the imperial city was not broken, and not even a single soldier was lost. The two words to taste the gall and to endure humiliation did not fall on Meng Chuanxiu's head. But on Meng Fan's, the two words to taste the gall and to endure humiliation did not fall on Meng Chuanxiu's head, but on Meng Fan's head. Half a month later, Clear Moon Villa, Meng Chuanxiu led a family of old people, is hiding here, outsiders do not know at all. The news of 8th Prince Meng Fan defending the imperial city and forcing back the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's 100, 000 strong army had already reached the Clear Moon Villa at this moment. Meng Chuanxiu sat in the middle of a study. Looking at the information recorded on the letter paper, his fists clenched extremely tightly, and his body was lightly trembling. This trembling, instead of excitement and thrill, was pure rage. The fact that the imperial city was preserved, even without losing a single soldier, would have been great news. His son's power to save the day would have been something to be proud of. But these prerequisites were all based on the fact that he was still in the palace and not hiding in this small clear moon villa. Today, he is a deserter. How humiliating it was for him that his son had made a miraculous achievement. Why don't you go die? Why don't you go die? Meng Chuanxiu tore the letter paper in his hands to shreds, his eyes wide with rage as he roared with a face full of grimace. The object of his curse was none other than his son. In extreme anger and shame, he wished his own son dead. On earth, this would be considered psychotic, wouldn't it? It's unbelievable, unthinkable. Meng Chuanxiu growled several times in succession before slamming both fists on the table in despair for there was a message in the letter that made him despair, that made him feel scorn and even fear for the son of his, the message was, Nya Ren Tu, Martial King of the Great Wind Dynasty, died in battle, who is Nya Ren Tu, the undisputed number one in the Great Wind Dynasty, the absolute number one, as the emperor of a rival imperial dynasty, Meng Chuanxiu naturally knew this person, Nya Ren Tu, extremely well, he knew very well how powerful and terrifying this person was, Nya Ren Tu, was an existence in the Jin Dan realm, an existence that had stepped onto the immortal cultivation Dao. If Nia Ren's carnage wasn't too heavy and he was greedy for power, 
He could have even gone for the immortal sex examination and was expected to join the immortal sect. As a result, such a terrifying existence, the Nyeren too who could practically walk horizontally in the secular world and was hard to defeat, had unexpectedly died, and he died outside the imperial city of the Great Moon, in front of his own good son, how is that possible? In the entire Great Moon Imperial Dynasty, there was no one who could resist Nyeren too, let alone kill him. When did Meng Fan, this punk, have such a terrifying presence by his side? Meng Chuanxiu never dreamed that the murderer who killed Nye Ren Tu was Meng Fan himself. He would only think that someone was secretly guarding Meng Fan. But why was such a terrifying expert guarding Meng Fan? A punk? Yes, up until this moment he still thought Meng Fan was a waste, only that someone was secretly protecting this waste. Who is it? Who the hell is it? Is it? Meng Chuanxiu's eyes showed a hint of surprise as he thought of a possibility? Could it be related to that? This is still causing me trouble after being dead for so many years. If I had known this, I should have gotten this little killed along with me back then. Meng Chuanxiu cursed and tore everything on the table that he could and couldn't. What he didn't know, however, was that there was a young girl outside the door, wide-eyed and frozen in place. Meng Xiaochan was carrying a bowl of ginger soup that she was originally going to give to Meng Chuanxiu, but at the moment she didn't dare to push the door in. Instead she tried to calm her emotions and quietly left. Obviously, she heard something she shouldn't have. If she is not wrong, the one that her father and emperor are talking about is the birth mother of herself and her royal brother, consort Zhou. But didn't mother die of childbirth? Why did father just now sound as if mother's death had something to do with him? Even father wants to get his brother killed? Meng Xiaochan's heart trembled and was filled with fear. Was this appearance of Meng Chuanxiu really her and her royal brother's real father? Before, she only thought that her father was busy with political affairs, so he wasn't close to her, and her royal brother had never been liked by her father, let alone her. Now it seems as if there is something hidden in the shadows that you don't know about. If, if mother's death is related to father's, Meng Xiaochan didn't even dare to imagine this outcome. But Meng Chuanxiu's angry voice in the study just now had been surrounding her ears, making it impossible for her to meditate. Regardless of whether or not mother's death had anything to do with father, she had heard it loud and clear that father wanted to kill her royal brother. The news that Meng Fan had defended the imperial city and retreated the enemy army had already reached the clear moon villa, and Meng Xiaochan had heard about it, but she found them too unbelievable to believe. Although the imperial brother had shown force of the innate realm before, what use was this force? So when she learned that her father had murderous intentions towards her brother, Meng Xiaochan instinctively worried for her brother. There's no way. The concepts that have been developed over so many years simply can't be changed overnight. In Meng Xiaochan's mind, she subconsciously felt that Meng Fan was still the same decadent, lazy, unambitious royal brother. Meng Chuanxiu, on the other hand, was much scarier in her mind, so father versus royal brother. Of course she was worried about royal brother. I have to sneak back and report to my royal brother and tell him that father wants to harm him. Chapter 26, Will You Take Revenge? Three days later, Meng Fan looked at Meng Xiaochan, who appeared in front of him, dusty and covered in dust, and he couldn't help but frown. Why did you come back alone? Where is Meng Chuanxiu? Meng Xiaochan, should be with Meng Chuanxiu and the others. How dangerous is it to come back alone? What should I do if I meet an accident on the road? Did Meng Chuanxiu and the others meet with an accident? It was natural for Meng Fan to think that way, otherwise it was impossible to explain why Meng Xiaochan was alone. However, if Meng Chuanxiu and the others did have an accident but Meng Xiaochan escaped, this result was still quite fortunate for Meng Fan. Imperial brother, I snuck back. Meng Xiaochan said carefully, what are you doing sneaking back here? Do you know how dangerous it is for you to come back alone? Meng Fan's face showed dissatisfaction and some anger. Meng Xiaochan didn't cultivate. She was a little girl with no hands. Such a little girl going out alone was really a dangerous thing in this world. That was why Meng Fan was angry when he heard Meng Xiaochan's words, because it was indeed too presumptuous. Meng Xiaochan stole a glance at the surrounding guards and whispered to Meng Fan, Imperial brother, I have something to say to you. Meng Fan let out a bitter laugh, slightly doting, thinking that this girl still has a little secret? Stand down, all of you. Meng Fan discarded his left and right then looked helplessly at Meng Xiaochan. What's the secret? Now you can tell it. Meng Xiaochan nervously looked around to make sure there was no one around before she carefully said, Imperial brother, father wants to harm you. Meng Fan's brows stared and his gaze sank as he looked at Meng Xiaochan and said, What does that mean? Meng Xiaochan hesitated for a moment, but in her mind, her royal brother's position was much heavier than her father's, and compared to her father, she was definitely closer to her royal brother. So she told the truth. A few days ago, 
I went to deliver soup to Father Emperor, but I ended up hearing some words I shouldn't have heard outside the door. I heard Father Emperor growling angrily, saying why don't you go to your death, and finally said that I should have known that I would have gotten you killed along with me in the first place. Hearing Meng Xiaochan's words, Meng Fan didn't have much of a reaction. With things having happened to this point, it was normal for Meng Chuanxiu to resent and hate himself. From Meng Chuanxiu's perspective, he would definitely resent Meng Fan for not telling him if he had a bottom card? He clearly had the ability to fight against an army of 100, 000, yet he had been made to lose face so much, it wasn't even impossible for Meng Chuanxiu to want to kill this son of his in anger to vent his anger. Meng Fan was able to imagine and anticipate all of these things, but the words that Xiao Chan said were a bit puzzling to him. What do you mean by getting me killed along with you? That seems to mean that Meng Chuanxiu has gotten someone killed before, and that this person who was killed should have something to do with me as well? Meng Fan asked with a bit of doubt. I'm not too sure, but listening to Father Emperor's tone, it seems like it's related to mother. Meng Xiaochan said with some hesitation. Meng Fan's brows furrowed as he said, repeat his original words, roughly, to me, and I'll analyze them. Meng Xiaochan thought for a moment, then repeated basically word for word what she had heard outside the door at the time. After hearing these words, Meng Fan's face was calm and collected, without any particular reaction. There was one thing to be said for the fact that he had just as little affection for his birth mother in this body, but after all, it was the other person who had given birth to her, and if she hadn't given birth to her, she might not have even had this chance to live again, that's why Meng Fan felt the need to figure out the cause of death of his own biological mother, also known as Consort Ro. When Meng Xiaochan saw Meng Fan in deep thought, she asked in a low voice, Imperial brother, if it was really father who killed mother, do you want to take revenge for mother? This was a question that Meng Fan really couldn't answer, because he doesn't have the answer himself. Although he had no feelings for Meng Chuanxiu, this guy was after all his own biological father in this body, and for him to kill Meng Chuanxiu by patricide, he felt it was a bit inappropriate. If it really was Meng Chuanxiu who killed mother, would you take revenge? Meng Fan asked a rhetorical question. I don't know. Meng Xiaochan shook her head. This whole thing was so crazy she didn't even have an answer. I don't know either. Meng Fan followed and gave an identical answer. Even if Consort Zoe was really killed by Meng Chuanxiu, Meng Fan didn't know if he would kill Meng Chuanxiu, and would definitely hesitate, or even most likely not kill. In the end, it was still that he had no feelings for Princess Zoe. If Meng Chuanxiu had killed Meng Xiaochan, Meng Fan would definitely kill Meng Chun to vent his anger. Whether it was concubine Rou or Meng Chuanxiu, Meng Fan didn't treat them as his mother and father, but Meng Xiaochan was a real sister in his heart. This matter, I will investigate clearly, if it is really Meng Chuanxiu who killed the mother, how to finally dispose of Meng Chuanxiu is left to you, if you want revenge, I will kill Meng Chuanxiu, if you want to spare him, then I will spare him, Meng Fan said to Meng Xiaochan with a serious face, this was tantamount to pushing this difficult problem, onto Meng Xiaochan, which was honestly a bit cruel, but it was really the most sincere thought in Meng Fan's heart, I, don't know, Meng Xiaochan was a little disoriented and confused, Meng Fan smiled and patted Meng Xiaochan's shoulder, saying, there's no rush, just talk about it, not to mention that this matter hasn't been investigated yet, so maybe it's just our ramblings, alright, don't think nonsense, look at you, you're covered in filth, hurry back and take a bath, Meng Xiaochan nodded, her body was indeed dirty and smelly, she had long wanted to take a bath, then, imperial brother, if you find out the results, you must tell me, don't lie to me, Meng Xiaochan's mindset was completely different from Meng Fan's, whether it was for Meng Chuanxiu or for her mother, Consort Ro, she had the most sincere feelings, of course, it also included Meng Fan, don't worry, I won't lie to you, Meng Fan said with a smile, after Meng Xiaochan left, Meng Fan recruited Wei Changfeng, Wei Changfeng was now Meng Fan's most loyal lapdog, at his beck and call, not even daring to sleep, in his mind, Meng Fan was already a god, your highness, you asked for me? Meng Fan looked at Wei Changfeng and asked directly, Wei Changfeng, do you know how Consort Ro died, Princess Zoe? Wei Changfeng's face showed a hint of surprise, this was his highness's birth mother, who had died almost 20 years ago, back then, not long after the 8th prince and 9th princess had just descended into the world, Consort Zhou died due to illness, Wei Changfeng's brows condensed and he said with some surprise, Empress Ro Fei died of an illness, this is something that many people know ah, could it be that there is another hidden reason for the death of Lady Ro concubine? When Meng Fan saw Wei Chongfeng's reaction, he knew that Wei Chongfeng didn't know about this. At this time, it was impossible for Wei Chongfeng to deceive himself above such things. 
If Wei Changfeng knew about it, then even if the murderer was Meng Chuanxiu, Wei Changfeng would certainly not hesitate to give up Meng Chuanxiu, which eunuch was the one who treated Princess Ro back then. Meng Fan continued to ask, that, the old slave will have to check. Meng Fan nodded, then spat out three words in a calm tone, check to the end. Wei Changfeng's face showed gravity before nodding his head fiercely. Old slave understands, old slave will definitely find out the result and give your highness an explanation. Although Meng Fan didn't explicitly say it, Wei Changfeng had already heard it. His highness is suspecting that his birth mother was killed and now wants to investigate the matter. And he, himself, is responsible for getting to the bottom of this. If you can't even do such a small thing well, how can you make his highness value you and reuse you? Then, on the third day after Meng Xiaochan's return, Meng Chuanxiu's large family, too, rushed back to the imperial city. Chapter 27, The Emperor Returns to the Palace. In fact, during these three days, Meng Xiaochan had come to Meng Fan more than once, wanting Meng Fan to escape the palace. Her thoughts were simple. Her father wanted to harm her royal brother, so it was just a matter of escaping while her father was away. In case there's trouble when father returns, she had never thought about one thing, and that was that Meng Fan wasn't afraid of Meng Chuanxiu at all. Meng Fan had actually explained this several times, but Meng Xiaochan just didn't believe it. It couldn't be helped that she hadn't witnessed Meng Fan hanging Wei Changfeng, nor had she witnessed Meng Fan decapitating Yaren too, nor had she seen Meng Fan waving his hand and roiling war swords blasting tens of thousands of troops from the Great Win Imperial Dynasty. In her eyes, this imperial brother of hers was just a mediocre martial artist of the innate realm. However, it was rumored that Meng Fan had a supreme expert behind him, and it was because of the existence of that supreme expert that he had forced back the Great Wind Dynasty's army. For that one rumor, she believed it. It was only that she had asked her royal brother several times, but he hadn't told her. In fact, Meng Fan had already told Meng Xiaochan that the supreme expert was himself, but it was a pity that Meng Xiaochan didn't believe him. Outside the imperial city, Meng Chuanxiu led the crowd and arrived in front of the city gates. At this moment, the general guarding the city saw Meng Chuanxiu and was instantly filled with complexity. Your Majesty, welcome back to the palace. Welcome back to the palace. Your Majesty, Meng Chuanxiu, who was standing in front of the city gates, was slightly relieved. He was really afraid that that good son of his had taken control of the entire imperial city, then he would be in big trouble as the emperor. Today it seems that things are not that serious. If Meng Fan had taken control of the imperial city, then these generals guarding the city would definitely be replaced with Meng Fan's inner circle. Now that these generals still recognized him as his majesty and welcomed him back to the palace, it proved that he was still the emperor of the Great Moon Dynasty. Proof that Meng Fan didn't codify the bit. The Great Moon, after all, was his Meng Chuanxiu's Great Moon, could it not be codified by a brat at will? In fact, what Meng Chuanxiu didn't know was that if Meng Fan really wanted to be an emperor, he could have easily and rightfully ascended the throne a long time ago, because nowadays, everyone in the entire imperial city had been conquered by him. It was certainly difficult to conquer everyone, but it was possible to do so by conquering those with the highest status, and then having them conquer those below them. If Meng Fan were to raise his arm, the current imperial forest army would definitely point their war cry at Meng Chuanxiu. It was just that Meng Fan was too lazy to do so. What's the point of being an emperor? It's a busy day, a tiring day. Even if you don't become the emperor, you can still have power over the world. When Meng Fan learned the news that Meng Chuanxiu had entered the city gates and was preparing to enter the palace, he was sitting on the dragon chair in the imperial study. In theory, Meng Fan really wanted to experience the taste of the dragon chair. He should have gone to sit on the dragon chair in the golden palace. But Meng Fan was not deliberately pursuing this. So so far he had not gone to the golden palace. After all, he didn't really want to be emperor. During this period of time, Meng Fan's cultivation had broken through to the mid-foundation establishment stage, and the power of the six Tao divine body and the nine heavens emperor god skill was evident. The flying fairy out of heaven, holy spirit sword technique, and ten thousand swords returning to the palace. Meng Fan was also getting more and more refined. The supreme talent of sword Dao Tongshan not only allowed him to be able to learn for sword techniques at the drop of a hat, but even more terrifyingly, it was also able to enhance the power of sword techniques. At the same realm, with the same proficiency in swordsmanship, someone else would use a swordsmanship with an attack power of 100, while Meng Fan would use it with an attack power of at least 150. Just outrageous. Name, Meng Fan. Life expectancy, 20-361. Race, human. Cultivation, middle foundation stage. Technique, 9 heavenly empery and spirit technique, divine grade. Physique, 6 paths divine body, divine grade. 
Supreme talent, Sword Dao Tongshan, top qualification in Sword Dao. Any sword technique can be learned at once, and the power of the sword technique is enhanced. Supreme talent, hegemonic stance, any female in your presence will be weakened. Supreme talent, human emperor's bloodline, activate the human emperor's bloodline in your body, and you will be able to take in the world's luck and enhance your cultivation. Sword techniques, heavenly flying fairy, Shen level. Holy spirit sword technique, heaven level. 10,000 swords, earth level. Weapon, Xian Ice Sword, Xian Grade. After cultivating to the Foundation Establishment Realm, Mang Fan's lifespan, from the earliest 90 odd, had reached over 300 today. Being able to live for more than 300 years is no longer a matter of longevity, even the longest lived person cannot live for 300 years. That's the beauty of cultivation. As for sword techniques, Mang Fan possessed the highest ranked sword technique, which was undoubtedly the Holy Spirit sword technique. However, at this stage, when it comes to the power of the sword, it is actually still the 10,000 swords returning to the soul that is stronger. This was because the reason why the Holy Spirit sword technique's rank was able to surpass the 10,000 swords returning to heaven and was able to reach the heavenly grade was mainly because of the move, sword 23. However, Meng Fan's cultivation level was not enough to perform this move of sword 23. Only by executing sword 23 would one be worthy of the heavenly grade. As for the weapon, it was the sword that Meng Fan had casually picked out from the palace treasury. Yes, it was indeed a bit low that there wasn't even a single earth grade sword weapon inside the entire Great Moon Imperial Palace. Your Highness, Meng Chuanxiu has already entered the palace gates. What are we going to do? Wei Chongfeng came to the Imperial study and saluted Meng Fan. Nowadays, Wei Chongfeng was firmly on Meng Fan's side, without the slightest second thoughts. Even if he was asked to draw his sword and cut down Meng Chuanxiu, he would definitely not hesitate to do whatever Meng Fan said. There's no need to do anything. Just come back if he's happy to. Meng Fan said with a bashful face. Wei Chongfeng said with a tangled face. But he is the emperor after all. After he comes back. Meng Fan laughed. Are you afraid he'll come after me? Wei Chongfeng hurriedly said. How can that be? He deserves it? It's more like his highness looking for trouble from him. Meng Fan said. If he doesn't come after me. I'm too lazy to find him. If he comes to trouble me. Then we'll see if he has the ability. Wei Chongfeng thought you were sitting on the dragon chair. Meng Chuanxiu, the emperor came back. How embarrassing it must be. By the way, how is the investigation into the cause of Princess Rose's death going? Meng Fan suddenly asked. Wei Chongfeng said a bit helplessly, the eunuch who gave consort Ro a medical treatment that year has long since passed away. But the old slave carefully inventoried the imperial hospital and did find some clues. It is said that the medicines that consort Zoe took back then were all delivered by consort Li herself. But at that time, consort Li was not yet a consort. Just a palace maid. Hearing Wei Chongfeng's words, Meng Fan's eyes narrowed. Princess Li? Back then it was just a palace maid who was responsible for delivering medicine to Princess Zoe. As a result, she became a consort after the death of Princess Zhou. Here, it sounds problematic. Check again. Meng Fan said to Wei Chongfeng. Yes, your highness. In the palace. After Meng Chuanxiu led the crowd back to the palace, he let the concubines return to their respective palaces while he came to the Moonlight Palace. Moonlight Palace, his chambers, but now it was Meng Fan who was in residence, and when he came to the Moonlight Palace and discovered this matter, he was instantly enraged. This rebellious son, actually even dares to occupy my chambers. Simply lawless. Chapter 28, Rebellious Son, Do You Want to Rebel? Learning that Meng Fan was occupying his chambers, Meng Chuanxiu's face was twisted with anger and extremely hideous. Occupying the Emperor's chambers, how is this different from treason? Meng Chuanxiu was already dissatisfied with Meng Fan, and now this rebellious son was occupying his chambers, causing him to burst into a rage. Your Majesty, calm your anger. On Meng Chuanxiu's side stood a white-haired middle-aged man. Yes, white-haired middle-aged man. Although this person had a full head of white hair, his face was that of a middle-aged man. This is the state master of the Great Moon Dynasty, Monk Li Ching. Meng Chuanxiu went out of the palace, and in addition to the guards accompanying him, he only brought such an expert as Li Qingxin, because this Li Qingxin is indeed high enough. With Monk Li Qing, Meng Chuanxiu didn't have to worry about his own safety. An existence that could become a state master was naturally not a weakling. Even Wei Chongfeng would only be able to stand still and take a beating in front of Monk Li Qing. This rebellious son is lawless. How can I not be angry? Meng Chuanxiu grimaced. Monk Li Qing said with a smile, There is no tiger in the mountain, and the monkey is the king. His majesty was not in the palace, so the eighth prince dared to be so wild and rampant. Now that his majesty is back in the palace, he naturally wouldn't dare to be so lawless again. Meng Chuanxiu grunted angrily, 
I'm afraid it's this rebellious son who doesn't even have me, his father, in his sights, his majesty is the king, he is the subject, his majesty is the father, he is the son, in reason, he wouldn't dare to be rude to his majesty, it better be, however, your majesty, this eighth prince is bound to have an expert by his side, and it's a supreme expert who can force back 10,000 troops, I may not be a match for such an expert, so I still hope that your majesty will not make relations with the eighth prince too frosty and give him some face, I give him face, but he doesn't necessarily give me face, after saying that, he beckoned to the guards guarding the moonlight palace to the side, that rebellious son, where is he now, the guards glanced at Meng Chuanxiu and then at the state master, thinking to himself that his royal highness the eighth prince had not rebelled and claimed the throne after all, and now the emperor of the great moon dynasty was still Meng Chuanxiu, so he hesitated for a moment, but still honestly said, your highness, the eighth prince, is in the imperial study, the royal study? When Meng Chuanxiu heard those three words, the anger on his face increased. This rebellious son, not only hijacking his own bedchamber, but even the royal study? He has slept on the dragon couch. He has certainly sat on the dragon chair. What else does this rebellious son not dare to sit on? If he had returned a few days late, would this rebellious son have ascended to the throne as emperor? Thinking of this, Meng Chuanxiu was so furious that his blood was churning and he almost spat out a mouthful of reverse blood. To keep up appearances, he swallowed back the blood without moving. Pass on the decree to have Meng Fan, this rebellious son, come and see me. Meng Chuanxiu walked into the moonlight palace, then said to the guards outside the door. The guards outside the door hesitated for a moment, but in the end, they didn't dare to stop Meng Chuanxiu from entering the moonlight palace. Not only did he not dare to block it, but in the end, he honestly went to the imperial study room to report to Meng Fan. Meng Chuanxiu, let me meet him? When Meng Fan heard this guard's words, a smile appeared on his face before he chuckled and shook his head. It looks like this old Meng, hasn't set himself straight yet. Also, it was estimated that in Meng Chuanxiu's mind, he might still be a waste of a prince, only that someone was secretly supporting and protecting him. A lot of people think so. Even the generals who defended the city in the first place thought that someone was secretly protecting the 8th prince, beheading Yaren Tu and forcing back the 100, 000 strong army, counting up, inside the entire palace. Wei Changfeng was the only one who was clear that everything was done by Meng Fan's hands. That was why Meng Chuanxiu was still posing to Meng Fan at the moment, because he was only afraid of the people behind Meng Fan. Unfortunately, there was no one behind Meng Fan at all, only Meng Fan himself. Meng Fan spoke in a flat tone to the guard, if you want to see me, tell him to come here himself. Hearing Meng Fan's words, the guard did not hesitate at all and immediately turned around to report. When Meng Chuanxiu gave the order, he had hesitation. And while Meng Fan ordered it, he carried it out without the slightest hesitation. Just from this alone, it was already evident that Meng Fan had a heavier position in his heart than Meng Chuanxiu. Meng Chuanxiu, faced with a crisis, left the palace to take refuge, regardless of the deaths and lives of those of them, treating them as outcasts. Meng Fan, however, saved the imperial city by saving the day. With such a comparison, it was naturally Meng Fan who had a higher status in their minds. Moonlight Palace. Bang. The sound of a vase of porcelain being smashed came out. Arrogant. Simply arrogant. Arrogant to the extreme. This rebellious son. Is he trying to rebel? Rebellion? Meng Chuanxiu let out a roar. Furiously smashing things. Your majesty rest your anger. Monk Li Ching persuaded from the side. Restrain your anger? How can I rest my anger? I will cut off his head. Your majesty. We can't kill the eighth prince until we figure out who's behind him. Who cares who's behind him? Chop him up first. I don't believe that I. An emperor, is not as important as a tiny prince like him? Monk Li Ching, follow me to the imperial study room and behead this rebellious son. Your majesty, please think twice before acting impulsively. It's an imperial decree. After an incense stick of time, Meng Chuanxiu and Li Qingxin arrived at the imperial study room. Monk Li Ching had a helpless look on his face, but due to Meng Chuanxiu's face, he could only follow over. As for whether or not to cut off Meng Fan's head, that would depend on the specific situation. Although it is said that the holy decree is the order of heaven, and the order of heaven cannot be disobeyed, but that has to be based on self-preservation. Rebellious son, are you going to rebel? Meng Chuanxiu slammed open the door of the imperial study with one foot as he shouted with a face full of shock and anger, his eyes wide open. Seeing Meng Fan leisurely sitting on the dragon chair, his anger increased, and he couldn't wait to swallow Meng Fan in one bite. Then Meng Chuanxiu saw that Wei Changfeng was also in the imperial study, and he immediately shouted, it's just as well that Minister Wei is here, 
Quickly behead this rebellious son for me. Wei Changfeng's eyes jawed in anger as he looked straight at Meng Chuanxiu and scolded. How dare you disrespect his highness. Upon hearing Wei Changfeng's words, Meng Chuanxiu froze on the spot, unable to even maintain the expression of shock and anger on his face, replacing it with stagnation, confusion, and dumbfoundedness. He appeared confused for a moment, feeling that Wei Changfeng's words should have been addressed to Meng Fan, but why was he facing himself? Wei Qing, that rebellious son is behind you, you should speak to him. Wei Changfeng looked at Meng Chuanxiu coldly and said in a chilling voice, it's you we're talking about. Meng Chuanxiu, his highness is magnanimous and doesn't bother with you, how dare you take the initiative to mess with his highness, you simply don't know how to die. Meng Chuanxiu was stunned and looked at Wei Changfeng incredulously, feeling like he was looking at a ghost. Wei Changfeng, you're crazy, do you know who you're talking to? Wei Changfeng had a solemn look on his face as he said indifferently, whoever dares to disrespect his highness is looking for death. Crazy, it's all crazy. Meng Chuanxiu looked at Wei Changfeng and Meng Fan, feeling that this palace was really strange and had a sense of turning the world upside down. He looked back at Monk Li Qing. The good thing is, Li Qingxin hasn't changed, and his own national teacher hasn't changed. Monk Li Qing, behead this rebellious son and this thief for me. Chapter 29, I don't mind a new emperor. Meng Chuanxiu ordered with anger, but Li Qingxin frowned and did not act. If it was before, if Meng Chuanxiu had asked him to kill a prince, he wouldn't even frown, because he had never put a prince in his eyes. Not to mention such a waste of a prince as Meng Fan, even if it was the great prince Meng Tianyan who had worshipped the Wuji Sword sect, he dared to kill him directly without saying a word. But not anymore. Behind the eighth prince, there was a supreme expert who was suspected to be able to kill Nyaren too. Monk Li Qing was very clear about the gap between himself and Nyaren too. The other party was even able to kill Nyaren too, so it was even easier to kill himself. If he made a move against Meng Fan, even if he succeeded in killing Meng Fan, he would offend that expert and put himself in a desperate situation. Your Majesty, calm your anger. A tiger's venom does not yet eat its children. Your Majesty, please spare the eighth prince's life. A small punishment will suffice. Monk Li Qing said to Meng Chuanxiu, although he said it politely, he was still afraid to do it. Meng Chuanxiu was furious, but now Li Qingxin was indeed the last card he could hold. If he offended all the Li Qing monks, then his own situation would be even more difficult. Then first kill Wei Changfeng. This thief, this thief, how dare he openly disrespect me. This is disorganization. Death penalty. Meng Chuanxiu coldly looked at Wei Changfeng. Monk Li Qing also glanced at Wei Changfeng, his gaze carrying some coldness. Wei Changfeng is nothing more than a wallflower. A typical lapdog. Killing this guy is not a problem. The masters behind the eighth prince were not yet angry over such a dogged eunuch. I'll get rid of this disruptive traitor for your majesty. Monk Li Qing drew the long sword behind his back and pointed at Wei Changfeng. Wei Changfeng's face was grave. And to be honest, he was really a bit nervous. This was because he knew very well that he was not a match for Monk Li Qing. Monk Li Qing was a national teacher. And his cultivation was at the late stage of foundation establishment. Which could be considered the strongest existence in the Great Moon Dynasty. Originally. The strongest existence in the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty was the Peak Foundation Establishment Divine Marshal Marquis Wang Yishan. Unfortunately, three years ago, Wang Yishan encountered Nyaren II at the front line and died. Nowadays, in the entire Great Moon Dynasty, there wasn't even a Peak Foundation Establishment existence, and the late Foundation Establishment Li Qingxin could indeed be considered the strongest. In fact, if Meng Fan hadn't come out of nowhere, it would have been a matter of time before the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty was overrun by the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty. The Great Wind Imperial Dynasty had a Jin Dan Realm Martial King, Nya Ren Tu, present, and the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty was no match at all. Wei Chong Feng, who was only in existence at the early stage of foundation establishment, couldn't be compared to this late stage of foundation establishment. Monk Li Qing, but he didn't wimp out at the moment. Instead he coldly looked at Monk Li Qing and said, Monk Li Qing, your highness is in front of you, there's no room for you to be reckless. Monk Li Qing looked at Wei Changfeng in the same cold manner and said sternly, Wei Changfeng, it's now his majesty's face, there's no room for you to be reckless. Right at this moment, Meng Fan stood up from the dragon chair, Wei Changfeng was now his man, his loyal fan, and he naturally couldn't let Monk Li Qing lay his hands on Wei Changfeng. Meng Fan said to Monk Li Qing, State Master Monk Li Qing, this imperial prince has long heard of your great name, however, Wei Changfeng was right just now. In front of this imperial prince, there is indeed no room for you to be reckless. Your Highness, the Emperor of the Great Moon is still His Majesty. As an imperial son and a subject, you should abide by your duties. Abide by the way of a subject. 
and even more so, abide by the way of filial piety. Monk Li Ching said in a somewhat grave tone as he looked at Meng Fan, what if this imperial prince just isn't willing? Meng Fan sneered, then Mr. Li will have to teach your highness a lesson on behalf of his majesty. I know that your highness has a former senior beside him, but that senior obviously also has the great moon's society at heart. So Mr. Li advises your highness not to act too much. What about this emperor's preference to go overboard? Meng Fan looked at Monk Li Ching with an expressionless face. Then Mr. Li will first behead this Wei Changfeng and tell your highness a truth. Monk Li Ching pointed his sword at Wei Changfeng. On the side, Wei Changfeng was puzzled, and his heart was still a little aggrieved. I thought to myself, why do you want to cut me at the drop of a hat when you're arguing with his highness? What kind of sense is that? Meng Fan didn't pay any more attention to Monk Li Ching, but instead looked at Meng Chuanxiao and said, Meng Chuanxiao, you only have Monk Li Ching left by your side as a capable fighter now, don't you? I advise you that you'd better honestly take him and get the hell out of here. Otherwise if Monk Li Ching were to die, you'd really be alone. Meng Chuanxiao was so angry that he blew his beard and glared, angrily rebuking Meng Fan, rebellious son. Is my name something you can call? Meng Chuanxiao, I've been disappointed in you ever since you were ready to marry Xiao Chan off to Biling and then tried to get me killed here. In my case, you're no longer worth half the love. You are still the emperor of the great moon only because I don't want to be the emperor and am too lazy to be the emperor of this small country. Otherwise, you wouldn't even be able to keep your throne now. So although you're still the emperor, you'd better straighten up your attitude in front of me. Although I'm too lazy to be an emperor, I don't mind making great moon change emperors. Hearing Meng Fan's words, Meng Chuanxiao's anger attacked his heart, and another mouthful of blood rushed to his throat, which he forced down. He couldn't afford to lose this by really spitting out a mouthful of blood at this time. Unbridled, unbridled, against the heavens, rebellious son, you rebellious son, Monk Li Ching, kill this rebellious son for me, kill him. Meng Chuanxiao roared angrily, his eyes were red, and his killing intent overflowed crazily, unable to stop it. Even so, Monk Li Ching did not dare to kill Meng Fan, but Meng Chuanxiao was so angry, he still had to give some face, so he struck out, and the target of his strike was, without a doubt, Wei Chongfeng. Wei Chongfeng was furious, he felt that this Li Qingxin was deliberately targeting himself, in fact, it cannot be said that against, this is simply bullying, people's nature, Monk Li Ching, you bully people too much, Wei Chongfeng let out a furious cry, facing the long sword stabbed by Monk Li Ching, he decisively drew his sword and slashed, under normal circumstances, he actually didn't dare to make a move against Monk Li Ching because the difference was too great, but because Meng Fan was at his side, he had that backbone, he believed that his royal highness the 8th prince would not let him die under the sword of Monk Li Ching, clang the swords met, in the next second, the long knife flew out of his hand and landed on the ground, as for Monk Li Ching's sword, as always, it stabbed at Wei Chongfeng, this sword, stabbed the heart, in order for Meng Chuanxiao to vent his anger, Li Qingxin had no mercy with this sword and was directly trying to take Wei Chongfeng's life, at the same time, it was also meant to give Meng Fan a hard time, and he still had the heart to try and test that former senior behind Meng Fan, he wanted to know whether that former senior, was simply standing behind Meng Fan, or was standing behind the entire great moon, this question, in fact, is important, if that senior high ranking person simply supported Meng Fan, then there was nothing to say, Meng Chuanxiao cooled off, and he himself went wherever he was cooled off, if that former senior supported the entire great moon, then things would be fine, and they could completely find a way to gain that senior's support, Wei Changfeng is a rock, throwing stones, and it has to be a dead rock, Wei Changfeng was aggrieved when he looked at the sword that was stabbing at him, he gave Meng Fan a resigned look, when Meng Fan saw Wei Changfeng's expression, he couldn't help but smile before extending a finger, chapter 30, the adversary, the rebel son, this finger of Meng Fan's was not simple, the sword that was originally stabbed at Wei Changfeng's heart ended up being deflected, straight from a fatal wound, to a minor one, then Wei Changfeng's figure retreated violently, avoiding Monk Li Qing from afar, Monk Li Qing looked at his sword in surprise, then at Meng Fan, the 8th prince is so skillful that he was able to shake even Mr. Li's sword, the world thought that his highness the 8th prince was a waste of space, but I didn't think that even I was mistaken, you are actually a cultivator of the foundation establishment realm, Monk Li Qing's tone was filled with unimaginable, complete surprise, the power that erupted from Meng Fan's finger just now shocked him, to be able to shake one's own sword, the power of this finger was simply comparable to the late stage of foundation establishment, although Meng Fan was only in the middle stage of foundation establishment, he cultivated the divine grade technique 9 heavens emperor god skill, 
and with the addition of the divine great physique six Tao divine body, these two overlapped, making his cultivation completely no weaker than the late foundation establishment stage. For an open player like Meng Fan, overlevel challenges were straight out of the ordinary. Behind Monk Li Qing, when Meng Chuanxiu heard Monk Li Qing's words, the shock on his face completely turned into shock. This rebellious son of his is actually in existence of the foundation establishment realm? How is that possible? He is only a teenager. It had to be said that Meng Chuanxiu, who was a father, had truly never paid attention to Meng Fan. He had even forgotten Meng Fan's age. Meng Fan is 20 years old. Monk Li Qing glanced back at Meng Chuanxiu and said, Your Majesty, I request to return to my hometown in old age and resign from my position as state master. Meng Chuanxiu was filled with horror and incredulity. What did you say? Your Majesty, there's no chance. The previous senior behind His Highness the Eighth Prince is definitely cultivating His Highness the Eighth Prince as an heir apparent. It's impossible for us to gain his support, and he's bound to stand firmly behind the Eighth Prince. In this instant, Monk Li Qing brainstormed a lot of content. That senior high-ranking person who was able to kill Nye Ren Tu had been silently cultivating Meng Fan all these years, which was why Meng Fan was able to reach the foundation establishment realm at a young age. That senior high-ranking person was willing to help the Great Lunar Dynasty, not because he had feelings for the Great Lunar Dynasty, but because he had feelings for Meng Fan as his disciple, so it was no longer possible for them to gain that senior's support. Meng Fan's position was completely untouchable. Even if Meng Chuanxiu was the emperor, he was still a mole in front of Meng Fan and was useless, so Li Qingjing gave up the treatment, ready to stay away from the palace, no longer take care of this strife, so as not to get themselves trapped in it. Meng Chuanxiu shouted, State Master, you can't leave, what will I do if you leave? Monk Li Qing shook his head and smiled bitterly, even if I don't leave, there's nothing I can do, you can't leave. Meng Chuanxiu was still shouting, you really can't leave. Meng Fan suddenly spoke up as well. Monk Li Qing didn't pay any more attention to Meng Chuanxiu, but instead said to Meng Fan, What else does your highness command? This imperial prince's place is not something you can come and go whenever you want. What's more, you've even injured this imperial prince's people. Monk Li Qing sighed and said, What does your highness want? Meng Fan indifferently said, This imperial prince won't make things difficult for you. Since you stabbed Wei Chongfeng, then let Wei Chongfeng stab you and this matter can be put to rest. At that time, if you want to leave the palace and leave the Great Moon Dynasty, this Imperial Prince won't even stop you. That's a bit of a strong request. No one will be willing to be stabbed. Li Qingzheng is used to being lonely and proud, and he doesn't want to be humiliated. However, he stared at Meng Fan for a long time before finally nodding helplessly and saying, Your Highness, these words are fair and just, and Mr. Li accepts them. It wasn't that Monk Li Qing was afraid of Meng Fan, but he was afraid of the existence behind Meng Fan. Unfortunately, he couldn't have dreamed that there was no presence behind Meng Fan at all. It was Meng Fan himself from the beginning to the end, so he should be happy with his choice. Wei Chongfeng, come on, I'll pay you back for that sword just now. Monk Li Qing faced Wei Chongfeng and stood straight. Wei Chongfeng was a bit hesitant. If there was no Meng Fan, even if Monk Li Qing took the initiative to let him stab a knife, he wouldn't dare to do so. But Meng Fan was by his side, giving him a bottom line. Even this bottom line is a bit overcharged. Wei Changfeng stabbed a knife at Li Qingxin. Under normal circumstances, he should have avoided Li Qingxin's vitals with this knife. After all, Li Qingxin had not stabbed his vitals just now either. However, the sword that Monk Li Qing had just used was initially aimed at his heart, and it was only because Meng Fan had stepped in that he had dodged a bullet. Wei Changfeng was also a ruthless man, so with this knife, he stabbed directly at Li Qingxin's heart. If Monk Li Qing was careless, he would most likely be stabbed to death by Wei Changfeng. Meng Fan looked at Wei Chongfeng slash and a hint of satisfaction appeared on his face. Although this old eunuch was a bit of a wimp at times, he was still able to be tough when it was time to be tough. However, Wei Chongfeng's knife did not stab into Li Qingxin's heart. In the nick of time, Monk Li Qing twisted his body, and the stab only reached his ribs. The result was that he had a broken rib, not a serious injury, but not a minor one either. Anyway, the injury was heavier than Wei Chongfeng. Monk Li Qing was ultimately careless. He didn't expect Wei Changfeng to be so ruthless as to directly stab himself in the heart. He was initially prepared to take the cut hard and not resist, so he had no defense, which is why he was hurt a bit badly. Otherwise, with Wei Changfeng's strength, he wouldn't have been able to hit him hard at all. Although this stab was a bit vicious and Monk Li Qing was a bit miserable, he still honestly took the stab without saying anything more. Your Highness, the slash has been returned. May I go? Meng Fan flung his hand at Monk Li Qing and didn't bother to bother with him anymore. Li Qingxin hurriedly left the imperial study.
completely leaving this place of wrongdoing, he was ready to stay away from the palace, no longer dipping into the muddy waters of the great moon. Come to think of it, even a lord like Nye Reng Tu died, he was really a bit scared. Meng Fan didn't have the idea of recruiting Qing Feng Li. In fact even Wei Changfeng and those few commanders of the Imperial Forest Army, it wasn't Meng Fan who recruited them, but rather, they took the initiative to pitch in. If Monk Li Qing took the initiative to submit to Meng Fan, Meng Fan would probably take him in as well, and if he wanted to leave, Meng Fan wouldn't force him to stay. Wei Changfeng had taken the initiative to strike at Meng Fan in the first place, and Meng Fan had spared Wei Changfeng. This Li Qingfeng has not offended Meng Fan too much from the beginning to the end. It is only Meng Chuanxiu's lapdog, and Meng Fan will not be able to cut down the number of people. Meng Chuanxiu, now that even your state master has given up on you, you're truly alone now. Meng Fan said to Meng Chuanxiu with a smile, Rebel son, adverse son, kill me if you have the ability, you I'd like to see if you dare to kill your father. Meng Fan shook his head, you are, after all, the father of this body of mine, as well as Xiao Chan's father. Although you wanted to marry Xiao Chan out to Biling, and you also wanted to leave me in the palace to die, but these things in my eyes, you are not guilty of death yet. Meng Chuanxiu looked at Meng Fan coldly, then what do you want? Want me to voluntarily abdicate and pass the throne to you, and then you will rightfully become the emperor of the great moon? Chapter 31, Toad wants to eat swan meat. Meng Fan looked at Meng Chuanxiu, his face expressionless. I've said long ago that I'm not interested in the position of emperor of the small country of the great moon. Meng Chuanxiu sneered with disbelief, if you really aren't interested in the throne, why did you gather people's hearts and bring everyone in the palace under you, and just now forced away the state master? Monk Li Qing? Meng Fan calmly said, it's not that I've recruited them, but they've taken the initiative to submit to me, do you know why? Why? Because the strongest is strong, and I am strong and you are weak, then why did you force Monk Li Qing away? You talk too much nonsense, Meng Chuanxiu. From now on although you are still the emperor of great moon, you, the emperor, will have to look at my face. If you still can't set your position right, I don't mind changing the emperor. Adverse son, you want me to be your puppet? You dream. Seeing that Meng Chuanxiu still didn't know any better, Meng Fan sighed and shook his head. Then he looked at Wei Changfeng and said, slap your mouth. This was naturally not for Wei Changfeng to slap his own mouth, but for him to slap Meng Chuanxiu's mouth. Wei Changfeng sniffed without hesitation rushed to Meng Chuanxiu in front of, snap his too big mouth. Then, the sight of Meng Chuanxiu's face swelled up at a speed visible to the naked eye. This time, Meng Chuanxiu couldn't hold back, and a mouthful of blood spurted out of his mouth. It's really deceptive. He, Meng Chuanxiu, the emperor of the great moon dynasty, the supreme son of heaven, was actually beaten by a eunuch. This humiliation made him so angry that he couldn't help himself. Adverse son, you. Slap your mouth. Meng Fan spoke again, interrupting Meng Chuanxiu's words. Pop. Wei Changfeng slapped Meng Chuanxiu's face again without mercy. This time, Meng Chuanxiu actually had a tooth knocked out, which was really a bit tragic. You. Slap. Pop. This time, Meng Chuanxiu didn't say anything and just stared angrily at Meng Fan. Still not leaving? Meng Fan looked at Meng Chuanxiu. Meng Chuanxiu gritted his teeth, his fists clenched tightly, then turned back violently, ready to leave. Staying here would be a waste of humiliation, so it would be better to leave the place. Now he suddenly felt like he had really become a loner, and even felt a little sorry for himself. Meng Fan instructed from behind, Right, you don't go back to Moonlight Palace, I'm staying at Moonlight Palace now. Wei Chong Fong, go arrange a place for him to stay at random. Yes, your highness, Wei Chong Fong hurriedly answered. Meng Chuanxiu's footsteps lurched, but he didn't turn around, let alone say anything. Because he had realized that saying anything at this moment would be self-defeating. Although he extremely hated Meng Fan right now, Meng Fan had just had an idiom used accurately. It was the law of survival in this world, the strongest is honored. Now that Meng Fan was stronger than him, there was nothing he could do with Meng Fan. That was the reality. From today onwards, although he was still the emperor of Great Moon, he was the most incompetent one in the history of Great Moon. Wait, there's something I forgot to ask. Meng Fan suddenly called out to Meng Chuanxiu, who had already turned around and was ready to leave. Wei Changfeng immediately stopped in front of Meng Chuanxiu, preventing him from leaving. Meng Chuanxiu turned back and looked at Meng Fan expressionlessly. How exactly did Consort Zoe die? Meng Fan opened his mouth and asked, Princess Zoe? When he heard these two words, Meng Chuanxiu first froze for a moment, as he hadn't heard this name in years. After a few seconds, he reacted that this was Meng Fan and Meng Xiaochan's birth mother, died of illness. Meng Chuanxiu said succinctly, 
Meng Fan looked coldly at Meng Chuanxiu and asked in a chilling voice, You didn't kill him? Meng Chuanxiu glared angrily at Meng Fan and said without a trace of anger, Of course not, I hope you're telling the truth, or not only will you not be able to keep this crown on your head, you won't be able to keep this head of yours either. Hearing Meng Fan's words, Meng Fan couldn't help but want to angrily denounce the words rebellious son once again, but in the end, he still held back. There are a lot of things that you can't help but put up with once or twice, and then you get used to it a few more times. Meng Fan didn't give Meng Chuanxiu any more trouble and let him leave. As for what kind of place Wei Changfeng would find for him to live, this was something Meng Fan didn't care about. At night, Meng Fan was cultivating in the Moonlight Palace. Meng Xiaochan found him and asked a bit nervously, Imperial brother, I heard that father has returned. He didn't do anything to you, did he? Until this moment, Meng Xiaochan hadn't realized how high Meng Fan's status in the palace was now. Meng Fan smiled and said, If he could do anything to me, would I still be living here now? It occurred to Meng Xiaochan that this was the Moonlight Palace, her father's chambers. Yeah, this is father's chambers. Why are you still here? Meng Xiaochan asked with a frown. That's where you're wrong. This is my chambers, not Meng Chuanxiu's. But, Meng Fan rubbed Meng Xiaochan's head and laughed. Can't you see that the entire palace? Now, listens to me, not to him, Meng Chuanxiu. Meng Xiaochan was dumbfounded. But, but father is the emperor. You are just the prince. She couldn't figure it out. In her imagination, it should be her father coming back to trouble her royal brother. But now it seemed as if father had come back and couldn't do anything about imperial brother. Because of four words, the strongest is the best. And right now I'm the strongest and Meng Chuanxiu is the weakest. It's as simple as that. Meng Xiaochan nodded and said, I see, father is afraid of that overwhelmingly powerful person behind you. Now everyone was rumoring that Meng Fan had a supreme powerhouse behind him. And that supreme powerhouse could even kill a Jin Dan like Nyaren too. This news was also known to Meng Xiaochan, imperial brother. Who exactly is that expert behind you? You're hiding so deeply that you actually don't even know me in the slightest. Meng Fan sighed and said, I told you that I don't have any experts behind me, but you just don't believe me, so just assume that I have a supreme expert behind me. In that case, now that even Father Emperor has to look at your face, is it true that I don't have to marry in Biling? Meng Xiaochan asked with a bit of excitement. Of course not. Two days later, Meng Fan was practicing in his chambers when Wei Changfeng found Meng Fan. Your Highness, the old slave has something to report. Meng Fan stood up and opened the door. What is it? The emissaries from Biling begged to see Meng Chuanxiu, wanting to inquire about the marriage alliance. Meng Chuanxiu didn't dare to meet these emissaries and pass this matter on to the old slave. I have to say, Meng Chuanxiu is much better behaved now. This old man knew very well that Meng Fan was dissatisfied with his decision to marry Meng Xiaochan off to the Northern Mausoleum, so where would he dare to see the Northern Mausoleum emissary again now? Avoid it. When Meng Fan heard Wei Changfeng's words, his gaze turned somewhat cold. Are these biling emissaries kicked in the head by a donkey? Where's the pot calling the kettle black? How dare you bring up the marriage at this time? Didn't know that the ninth princess, who was previously ready to be married off to the Northern Mausoleum, was his Meng Fan's own sister? Now that the Great Wind Dynasty had retreated, they still wanted toads to eat swan meat? Wouldn't dream of doing that. Take down all of these Beiling emissaries and beat them into the heavenly prison. Chapter 32 Meng Fan goes out of the palace. Sword points at the northern tomb. Wei Changfeng led the order to go down and arrest all these Beiling emissaries into the heavenly prison. For the current Wei Changfeng, he didn't need to think about anything. Meng Fan told him to do whatever he was told to do. And as for whether or not these things would offend Beiling, he didn't care in the slightest. If you follow your highness, you're not even afraid of the Great Wind Dynasty. What's there to be afraid of in Biling? In the bedroom, Meng Fan had no more sleep. It suddenly occurred to him that there was something that needed to be done, and it was time to do it. There was still one more task that the system had given him that he hadn't completed yet, and the reward for this quest is one of the richest. Reward, Regulus. Regardless of the version or legend of Regulus, it is absolutely no surprise that it is a divine weapon. So this Xian Yuan sword, Meng Fan is bound to get. He also remembered that the content of the mission was to fight with the sword and suppress the northern mausoleum. It wasn't just as simple as stopping Meng Xiaochan from marrying Biling, but to personally descend on Biling himself and suppress it. But what level is considered suppressing the northern tomb? This Meng Fan didn't know, but believed that he could try it out. Against Biling, he was not prepared to use the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty's large army, because against a small Biling, one person and one sword was enough for him. A month later, Meng Fan had successfully broken through to the late foundation establishment stage by virtue of the power of the six Tao Divine Body and the Nine Heavens Emperor God skill. 
What others couldn't do in a year or even a decade, he did in a month. It was not in vain that he had raffled for 20 years. It may seem like he's wasted 20 years of his life, but the truth is that he hasn't lost any money at all, and he's made a bloody fortune. It's time to take a trip to the northern tomb. With his cultivation breaking through to the late foundation establishment stage, Meng Fan was already an extremely strong existence in this secular world. The Jin Dan was not out, and he was not a wimp when he encountered the peak of foundation establishment. Even if he faced a Jin Dan, he believed that even if he couldn't defeat it, he should still be able to escape with certainty. What's more, it had long been more than a month since the last time he activated the human emperor bloodline. If he really encountered a Jin Dan, the big deal would be to activate the human emperor bloodline again. And at that time, not to mention Jin Dan, even if he encountered a Yuan Ing, Meng Fan would have the ability to fight. And it was impossible for a small country in the district of Biling to have Jin Dan, let alone anything else. This time when he went to the northern mausoleum, Meng Fan didn't even intend to activate the human emperor's bloodline. There was no need to bully people like this. Your highness, you're going to the northern tomb? The next day, Wei Chongfeng was shocked when he heard Meng Fan's words. That's good. I'll make a trip to Biling myself. Your highness, the small country of Biling, if you have a problem with it, you can just send someone else to knock it down a notch. Where is the need for you to go there in person? Meng Fan frowned and glanced at Wei Chongfeng. Somewhat dissatisfied, are you questioning my decision, or are you trying to teach me things? Wei Changfeng hurriedly knelt down and said in fear, old slave dare not, old slave knows the mistake. In the future, if this prince's words are heard, you can just listen to them as they are, and there is no need for you to give your opinion. The old slave understands. A moment later, Wei Changfeng couldn't help but ask again, your highness, this time when you travel to Biling, do you need the old slave to accompany you? Meng Fan shook his head and said, You stay in the palace and are mainly responsible for taking care of the ninth princess, but if anyone dares to disrespect the ninth princess, you will see to it yourself, and you can even kill them on the spot. The old slave will definitely protect the ninth princess and not allow her to be wronged in the slightest. Okay, you go down. Before Meng Fan left for Biling, he went to find Meng Xiaochan and told her that he was going to be away for a few days so that she wouldn't worry. What? Imperial brother you're going to the northern tomb? When Meng Xiaochan heard Meng Fan's words, she was filled with shock. Don't worry, it's just a trip, nothing serious. Is it because of my marriage? Biling doesn't give up yet? Meng Xiaochan was a bit worried, feeling that she had dragged her royal brother down, and felt a bit guilty and uncomfortable. Don't think too much, your marriage was called off a long time ago. This time when brother goes to Biling, you can just take it as brother going to take it out on you. It's me who's going to trouble them, not them who's going to trouble me. So you don't need to worry about anything, but royal brother, I'm fine, I'm not angry, I don't need to take it out, don't be impulsive, okay? Meng Fan patted Meng Xiaochan's head and laughed, you're not angry, but I am, besides, if they don't knock on Biling this time, they might not be at peace, this is related to national affairs, you don't understand, so stay out of it, is there really no danger? Of course not, your brother I've even beheaded Jin Dan, what's a tiny Biling? Meng Xiaochan suddenly realized, I see, that supreme expert behind you, royal brother, will also go with you, right? This issue of the supreme master is really hard to explain, and Meng Xiaochan doesn't believe in it anyway, so Meng Fan could only nod helplessly and say, yes, he is the one who is the supreme master, but shall he not go along with him? You can't cut yourself in half and only go halfway, can you? That morning, Meng Fan left the Great Moon Imperial City and headed to the Northern Mausoleum. Meng Fan rushed with all his might, and even with his speed, he arrived at the northern mausoleum a full ten days later, and not long after Meng Fan left the Great Moon Palace, there was a twist inside the palace, a eunuch found Wei Changfeng and reported a message, Chief Wei, Meng Chuanqiu is gone, when Wei Changfeng received this news, surprise appeared on his face and he hurriedly asked after him, what's going on, the little eunuch said with a frightened heart, this morning, when I went to change his majesty's clothes, I realized that his majesty had disappeared. He should have disappeared last night. Wei Chongfeng frowned. Did any assassin or any stranger pass by Yuqing Palace yesterday? Meng Fan occupied the Luqing Palace. And then Wei Chongfeng arranged for Meng Chuanxiu to be placed in the Yuqing Palace. This moon clearance palace was once a cold palace. Chief Wei, we didn't find any unusual people. And after an inventory, it seems that someone saw his majesty sneaking out of the palace by himself. The little eunuch said with a trembling voice. Meng Chuanqiu snuck out of the palace by himself? This Meng Chuanqiu, what is he up to again? Although it is said that he is now only a puppet emperor, 
But the puppet emperor is also an emperor. At least the status of the brocade clothes and food is honored. Meng Fan did not make it too difficult for him. Sneaking out of the palace. What kind of life can Meng Chuanxiu have outside the palace? Isn't that asking for trouble? Unless, of course, this guy is up to something? Wei Chengfeng frowned. This Meng Chuanxiu deliberately took advantage of this moment when his highness was not in the palace and escaped. There must be some kind of conspiracy. Could it be that Meng Chuanxiu still wanted to find some kind of helpers to deal with his highness and regain his power and position? I can't. Even the Great Wind Dynasty's Nyerin too had folded in the hands of his highness. Could Meng Chuanxiu know any other person or force stronger than Nyerin too? Admittedly, it is true that your highness is not invincible, and there are many people and forces in the world that are stronger than your highness. But what face did Meng Chuanxiu have to ask these people for help? Impossible thing. However, although Wei Changfeng felt that this was impossible, but since Meng Chuanxiu had gone out of the palace, it was impossible to do nothing, and he had to plan for the worst. Someone must be sent fast and furious to the northern tomb to find his highness and inform him of this news. Chapter 33, Northern Mausoleum Palace, Only Hands Cover the Sky. Unfortunately, even if Wei Changfeng were to go faster, it would be impossible for him to catch up with Meng Fan, because Meng Fan's speed was simply too fast. They might as well wait honestly for Meng Fan to return. The Northern Tomb State. Meng Fan looked at the city that stood in front of him, and a cold smile appeared on his face. The capital city of the Northern Ling Kingdom is called Jinbei City. Meng Fan had arrived outside of the Northern Mausoleum Palace in Jinbei City at that very moment. Just as he was about to enter the palace, he was stopped by soldiers. Looking at Meng Fan's dress, it was obvious that he wasn't from Biling, and it was naturally impossible for this kind of person to want to enter the palace without a levy. Meng Fan wasn't surprised. He knew in his heart that he would definitely be stopped. He didn't come here to engage in this politeness thing in the first place. Meng Fan slightly waved his hand, and the soldiers who stopped in front of him were instantly blown away. He was still merciful and only blasted these people away without taking their lives. To Meng Fan, there was no difference between these human soldiers and ordinary civilians, so he didn't decimate them. After blasting these soldiers who stopped him away, Meng Fan directly headed deeper into the palace. No matter who blocked the way, or how many people blocked the way, they were all blown away by his casual hands. Even an innate realm martial artist was like a mole cricket in front of Meng Fan, and was easily blown away without the slightest ability to resist. Just like that, Meng Fan pushed his way across to the depths of the palace. Soon enough, it alarmed Biling Kingdom Lord Sha Ho Ju. Sha Ho Ju sent the first warrior of the Northern Tomb, the Grand Commander of the Forbidden Army, to suppress Meng Fan. What kind of madman dares to trespass the Northern Tomb Palace? Why don't you quickly capture him and wait to be sentenced? The Grand Commander of the Forbidden Army of the Northern Tomb Kingdom, aggressively stopped in front of Meng Fan and sternly rebuked. Then, he was slapped away by Meng Fan. This Forbidden Army Commander, the first warrior of the Northern Tomb, was indeed not weak. Being in existence in the early stage of Foundation Establishment Realm, stronger than Wei Changfeng, in such a small country as Biling, to be able to have an early stage Foundation Establishment Cultivator was indeed an extremely strong existence. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough in front of Meng Fan. Meng Fan walked up to this forbidden army commander, then stomped on his face. Where is Xia Ho Ju? Take me to him. Is the state lord not something you can see just because you want to see him? What kind of thing are you? Snap. Meng Fan raised his foot, then dropped it. This foot ruthlessly stepped on the face of this forbidden army commander, directly breaking his nose and facial bones, truly a bloody mess. I'll say it again. Take me to Xia Ho Ju, or the next kick. Stomp your head off. Meng Fan was truly a ruthless person this time, and was too lazy to talk nonsense with these people. This forbidden army commander, who was just full of backbone, now after his facial bones were stepped on and broken, the backbone on his face was gone. He honestly got up and took Meng Fan to see Xia Ho Ju. Meng Fan arrived in front of a palace whose entrance was full of guards. That forbidden army commander stopped here and stopped advancing. Xia Ho Ju, is it in there? Meng Fan asked. The commander of the forbidden army nodded. The guards in front of the palace all knew this commander. Although the commander's face was covered in blood at the moment, the armor on his body plainly told the crowd that he was the commander of the Forbidden Army. These guards, one by one, were suddenly filled with tension. It was a bit unimaginable that their commander, the number one warrior of Biling, was actually beaten up like this. Who was that young man who had apparently taken the commander hostage? Xia Ho Ju, come out and meet me, Meng Fan said to the palace. His voice was enriched with true essence inside, and the words were as loud as thunder, exploding in the palace. A few moments later, the palace door opened and a man in a gorgeous red suit walked out of the palace. 
the small country of Biling, is not a royal dynasty, and the lord of the country does not wear a dragon robe, although Meng Fan didn't recognize Xiao Ju, but looking at this row, and seeing the people around him saluting him, he understood that this person was the lord of Biling kingdom, Xiao Ju, who are you and why are you trespassing on my Biling palace? Xiao Ju looked at Meng Fan coldly, however, when he saw the commander of the forbidden army on Meng Fan's side, his countenance immediately froze and he became incomparably scandalized. Great Moon's eighth prince Meng Fan, has the state lord heard of him? Meng Fan coldly looked at Xiao Ju, hearing those seven words, Meng Fan, the eighth prince of the Great Moon, Xiao Ju's frown deepened. Of course he'd heard the name. During this period of time, the mighty name of Meng Fan, the eighth prince of the Great Lunar Imperial Dynasty, had spread throughout the entire world. Even Marshal King Yaren II of the Great Wind Dynasty was said to have fallen into this person's hands. I heard that the Emperor of the Great Moon, Meng Chuenqiu, who was Meng Fan's father, was also placed under house arrest by Meng Fan, the Emperor's son. This Imperial Highness can be described as a lawless one. Such a perverted guy, suddenly ran to Biling and even fought all the way into the palace. The visitor is not good ah, your highness the eighth prince has descended on Biling. I wonder what your business is, Biling Kingdom Lord Xiao Ju. The tone of his speech had unconsciously changed from questioning to nervousness. I heard that you, Biling, want to marry one of my great moon's princesses? Meng Fan asked in a flat tone. Indeed, if I can seek to marry a great moon princess, it would indeed be a blessing for my Biling. Xiao Ju hurriedly said. Then do you know that the princess that Meng Chuanqiu wants to marry in Biling is the ninth princess? This one is already getting the message. Ninth princess Meng Xiaochan, is the sibling of this imperial prince? Do you know about this matter? The matter, it seems, has been slightly heard of. Meng Fan looked coldly at Xiao Ju and said in a chilling voice, Do you think that this emperor's own sister can marry into your Biling? Is your Biling worthy? It's outright humiliating. Xiao Ju said with a somewhat ugly face, your highness the eighth prince, is this looking down on my biling? Meng Fan said indifferently, indeed look down. Xiao Ju froze, a feeling of choking on his meal too quickly. Chatting is not the way to chat. So the eighth prince is here to raise an offense? Xiao Ju said without good humor. Sort of. Meng Fan was expressionless. He he, then what exactly does the eighth prince intend to do this time? Xiao Ju asked, suppressing his heart's displeasure. After all, the Great Moon Dynasty had just crushed the Great Wind Dynasty's army, and now it could be said to be in the middle of the day, so it would be better for him not to offend the Great Moon Dynasty. Put up with a little bit if you can. The marriage between Dai Yue and Biling is hereby cancelled. Meng Fan looked at Xiao Ju and said, Xiao Ju's face changed several times, thinking that even Nya Reng too was defeated in Dai Yue, he admonished himself to hold his tongue. Yes, Xiao Ju said through gritted teeth, as a result, what he hadn't expected was that just as he chose to give in, Meng Fan was gaining ground. He had just finished saying that he could. When he heard Meng Fan continue, not only is the marriage off, but you, the crown prince of the Biling Kingdom, will travel with me to the Great Moon. Xiao Ju's face suddenly changed drastically, and he immediately said, The crown prince accompanied you to Great Moon. What does this mean? Meng Fan calmly said, Crown Prince Biling, go to my Great Moon Palace as a hostage as a way to make amends for his previous transgressions. This is impossible. Xiao Ju stared angrily at Meng Fan. No way? Meng Fan similarly looked straight at Xiao Ju with coldness. If you dare to say one more word of no, this emperor's son will bloodwash your Beiling palace today, and you will be the first one to be killed. If you don't believe me, you can try. Chapter 34 Meng Fan Don't bully people too much. A bloodbath in the palace? What a big mouth. When Xiao Ju heard these four words, he was instantly enraged, his blood churning, even his face couldn't help but look a bit grim and twisted. This great moon imperial dynasty's eighth prince, was really violent and reckless, lawless, and dared to say such words as blood washing the palace. No wonder even Nyaren too had suffered. This eighth prince's level of ruthlessness and perversity was completely no weaker than Nyaren too's. Meng Fan, don't bully people too much, Xiao Ju roared out. Meng Fan smiled, only a cold smile, full of coldness. He drew his saber, and with a flash of sword light, the blade was already on Xiao Ju's shoulder, next to his neck. From start to finish, Xiao Ju didn't notice how Meng Fan's sword was on his neck. He only saw the movement of Meng Fan placing his hand on the hilt, and then the sword was on his neck. It's too fast. Xiao Ju himself was also an expert at the sixth level of qi cultivation, a genuine martial artist. However, when he faced Meng Fan, he had the feeling of facing a high mountain. Lord of the land, Lord of the land. When the surrounding soldiers saw the scene, 
they all cried out in shock, wanting to rush over to save Xiao Ju, but they didn't dare to, fearing that Meng Fan would impulsively chop Xiao Ju directly with his sword. Even the commander had been beaten up by this thief, what could they do? On the side, the unnamed commander of the Forbidden Army stayed standing there and didn't make any movements. What can he do? He can't do anything about it. He can't fight. And if he wants to bully others, he doesn't have enough power. Now that even the state lord had a sword on his neck, no one could care less about this eighth prince of the Great Moon Dynasty. Most importantly, this son was too strong. Even if he couldn't bloodwash the palace, he was probably able to bloodwash the royal family. This kind of expert comes and goes without a trace. No matter how many soldiers there are, it's useless. They can't even touch the hair. Meng Fan looked at Xia Ju and said in a flat tone, I'd like to see if you're afraid of death or not. I'll ask you one last time. Either send the crown prince of Biling to Great Moon to become a hostage, or I'll behead you immediately. The sword in his hand pressed towards Xia Ju's neck, already cutting through the skin of his neck and spilling blood. Xia Ju face ugly, heart beating wildly. If it is a normal situation to face the outlaws, he will certainly say you dare not kill me at this moment, and then some negotiation tug of war. But at this time, he didn't dare to open his mouth and say such words because he felt that Meng Fan was a madman. Although it was the first time he had come into contact with Meng Fan, he had already deeply felt Meng Fan's insanity, or rather cold-bloodedness, and his attitude of not taking human life seriously at all. At the moment, in Xia Ju's mind, Meng Fan and Nye Rin Tu were already equated. These two guys were the same kind of person, but in fact, he was wrong, because Meng Fan wouldn't take action against innocent people. However, if Xia Ju didn't know how to behave, Meng Fan would indeed take action against Xia Ju, because it was this guy's words that made his sister, Meng Xiaochan, aggrieved and upset for a long time, almost marrying and biling. So for Xia Ju, Meng Fan had a reason to kill him, seeing that Xia Ju was still silent and didn't answer. A hint of coldness appeared in Meng Fan's eyes. His sword weapon turned, leaving Xia Ju's neck but chopping down through his shoulder in the process. Instantly, the entire arm of this Biling Kingdom Lord was chopped off by Meng Fan's sword. This imperial prince asked you something, and you took it as a whisper? Meng Fan's voice was incomparably cold, without the slightest bit of emotion. Xia Ju let out a mournful scream. The arm was chopped off. When had a country lord like him ever suffered like this? The surrounding soldiers immediately drew their swords and knives and raised their halberds. But to put it bluntly, it was just for show. No one really rushed towards Meng Fan, they didn't dare. 1. He was afraid of Meng Fan, but he was afraid of the state lord, and completely threw himself at him. As for the unnamed commander of the Forbidden Army, he remained there pretending to be dead. Anyway, he was now covered in blood and flesh, and there was absolutely no contradiction in pretending to be dead. I know you're in pain, but please don't scream. If you scream again and annoy this emperor, I'll chop your head off right now for peace and quiet. Meng Fan slapped Xia Ju's mouth with the face of his sword. He looked down on this Biling Kingdom Lord from the bottom of his bones. Of course, he wasn't targeting Xia Ju, because in his eyes, everyone here was trash. None of them could be worth looking at differently. Xia Ju forced himself to endure the pain, and really didn't dare to shout out anymore, no matter how much it hurt. He had actually compromised just now and didn't intend to reject Meng Fan, but he only hesitated and was slow to answer and he was cut off with an arm. Do you think it's a loss? Meng Fan, this lunatic, was driving Xia Ju crazy. I'm obviously going to give in, so can't you give me a little hesitation to make a show of it and ease up on the face? This eighth prince of the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty was simply more vicious and perverted than those demons of the devil sect in the desert. Although his heart cursed Meng Fan to death by a thousand cuts, Xia Ju's mouth said honestly, it is also good for the prince of Biling to go with the palace to Great Moon to feel the weather of a great nation. I have no opinion on this matter, and completely agree. Meng Fan sneered, wouldn't he have saved an arm by being so good earlier? It wasn't long before Prince Xiao Qing of the Northern Mausoleum appeared in front of Meng Fan. The boy saw that his father was missing an arm and was scared to death. He had heard some of the situation before he came, but seeing this image still filled him with fear. Let him follow such a crazy and violent man to the Big Moon? He doesn't want to go, and don't dare go. Father, I don't want to go to Big Moon. Father. I don't want to go to Great Moon with this demon. Crown Prince Xia Ho Ching of Biling shouted with a terrified face. Xia Ho Ju took the opportunity to leave Meng Fan and rushed to Xia Ho Ching, raising his hand and slapping him to the ground. How can you be tough when you're missing an arm? This scene is really fatherly. Asshole, how are you talking to His Highness the Eighth Prince? His Highness is willing to take you to Great Moon to see the weather of a great nation. This is your good fortune. Don't bow down and thank the Eighth Prince yet. 
Although Xia Hoju only had one left arm left, he was still extremely domineering as he mentioned Xia Ho Ching in front of Meng Fan. Father, I, Pa, Xia Hoju slapped Xia Ho Ching in the face again, showing absolutely no mercy. These two slaps to Xia Ho Chung hit his snot in tears. He did not understand always favored his father. This time how to be so cruel to himself? Not only do you have to give yourself over to such a demon, but you also beat yourself so viciously and violently. For a while, Xia Ho Cheng was a bit lifeless. Then Xia Ho Ju held down Xia Ho Cheng's shoulders, making the son kneel honestly in front of Meng Fan. Your Highness, the ungrateful son is in your care. Meng Fan was expressionless and looked at the crying Xia Ho Cheng with a bit of disdain. I'm not prepared to take care of him, but I can keep him alive. Chapter 35 Regulus Sword When Xia Ho Ju heard Meng Fan's words, not only was there no dissatisfaction, but instead a smile appeared on his face. To be able to ensure that this son of his was alive was, in his opinion, the greatest care possible. Many thanks, your highness, Xia Ho Ju said, full of emotion. When I first came out I had a heart of gold, but now I'm as humble as ever. It has to be said that no matter what kind of status people have, they are all essentially bullies. Meng Fan's trip to the northern tomb was a lot easier than he had imagined. He had actually prepared for the worst, and the worst plan was to activate the human emperor bloodline. Then, and then there's no more. Once the human emperor bloodline was activated, then there would no longer be any problems, and any problems could be solved. Unfortunately, this biling was even weaker than Meng Fan had imagined. Not to mention activating the human emperor bloodline. Not even 50% of his own strength had been forced out, and he had already crushed the entire field. His mind had already prompted him to complete the mission and the Regulus rewards arrived and could be withdrawn at any time. But at this moment, there were many people in ears. So Meng Fan naturally wouldn't extract the Regulus sword immediately, waiting until no one was around. Your Highness, since we've already turned our differences into peace, why don't I set up a banquet for your Highness? Xia Ho Ju asked somewhat cautiously. No need. Your Biling's meals. This Emperor is not accustomed to eating them. This Emperor is departing to return to the Great Moon. Meng Fan refused without hesitation. Xia Ho Ju hurriedly asked, Then is Inuyasha following your highness back? Do you want me to dispatch an accompanying caravan? Meng Fan shook his head and said, This emperor is going back alone. As for you, the prince of Biling, after this emperor leaves, you will immediately send someone to send him to Great Moon. When we arrive at Great Moon, there will be someone to hand him over. For Meng Fan, he was too lazy to bring Xia Ho Ching, a drag queen, along with him to return to the Great Moon and delay his speed. Just have Xia Ho Ju send someone to send Xia Ho Cheng to Daiyue. He believed that Xia Ho Ju wouldn't dare to be masculine to himself. If Xia Ho Ju still dared to fool around, he wouldn't mind making Biling Palace change its last name, bloodwashing the Northern Tomb Imperial Palace. Just now Meng Fan was just casually talking about it and wasn't really prepared to do so, but that doesn't mean he wouldn't dare. Meng Fan was like a wild wind, coming and going in a hurry. After leaving the Northern Tomb Palace, Meng Fan extracted the quest reward. The Regulus Sword. A long sword with a sheath and an ancient style appeared in Meng Fan's hand. The scabbard hilt was ordinary. Did not emit any terrifying aura? At first glance it was an ordinary sword, not a divine weapon. But Meng Fan knew very well that this ordinary looking sword was definitely not ordinary. Once the sword was drawn, it was bound to be sharp and invincible as a divine weapon. Meng Fan's palm gripped the hilt of the sword, wanting to pull it out and take a look at this Xin Yuan sword that had moved through the ages. Whom, as a result, when Meng Fan exerted his force, the sword hilt and scabbard were still fitted together and did not move at all. Meng Fan, couldn't pull out this regular sword. What's the big deal? Meng Fan raised an eyebrow. He was a late stage foundation establishment cultivator, possessing the power to pull mountains. But he couldn't even pull out a sword? Shame on you. Meng Fan held his breath, then violently exerted himself and drew his sword again. The scabbard remained motionless, still unable to pull out this regular sword. At the same time, Meng Fan's mind rang with an introduction about the Regulus Sword. Regulus, the Emperor's Sword. Only when activating the Human Emperor's Bloodline could one use the Regulus Sword. Without the Human Emperor's Bloodline Enhancement, cultivating to the Transformation God Realm, one could draw the Regulus Sword. But even if you are a Transformation God, without the Human Emperor Bloodline, you still can't inspire the true divine power of the Regulus Sword, and you can only use it as an indestructible weapon. If I want to use the Regulus Sword, I can only activate the human emperor bloodline, which means I can only use the regular sword once a month. Meng Fan shook his head with a bitter smile. Once he activated the human emperor's bloodline, he would already be invincible. So why would he still need the regular sword? 
As for the fact that one could forcefully pull out the regular sword when they reached the transformation god realm, it was even more meaningless. All in all, the regular sword is a bit of a chicken rib for me in this situation. Meng Fan sighed. However, there was one thing to be said for really activating the human emperor's bloodline coupled with the regular sword. Meng Fan felt like he had the courage to arm wrestle with a transformation god. Swell. Meng Fan left the northern mausoleum and returned to the Great Moon Dynasty. When Meng Fan returned to the Great Moon Dynasty, the person Wei Changfeng had sent out had only stumbled to the northern mausoleum. Your Highness, you're finally back. As soon as Wei Changfeng got the news that Meng Fan had returned to the palace, he rushed over in a hurry. At Moonlight Palace, Meng Fan looked at Wei Changfeng, whose face was full of eagerness, and asked, What's wrong? What's the panic? Your Highness, Meng Chuanqiu has left the palace. Wei Changfeng hurriedly reported, Out of the palace? Hijacked out of the palace? Or did you run out of the palace on your own? Meng Fan calmly asked. As for Meng Chuanqiu, Meng Fan didn't take it too seriously. In the end, it was still the worldly throne that counted for nothing in his eyes, because his vision was so much higher than the next person's. After all, he was the man who had once been to the top of the mountain. A land god is, indeed, peaked, at least for the secular world. Your Highness, based on what we know from the investigation, Meng Chuanqiu seems to have sneaked out of the palace alone. The old slave feels that since Meng Chuanqiu chose to leave the palace, then he must have something to fall back on. Perhaps Meng Chuanqiu is trying to find some sort of rescuer to help him deal with your highness. Meng Fan laughed and said, Against me? What other help can Meng Chuanqiu find? Wei Changfeng also looked puzzled and said, Old slave is also puzzling over this. Meng Chuanqiu shouldn't be able to know anyone who threatens your highness, even if there really is such a person. There's no reason to help Meng Chuanqiu. Meng Fan shook his head and said with a bashful expression, Perhaps he just feels stifled and unfree in the palace, and simply just wants to go out for some air. Wei Changfeng hurriedly said, Your Highness, with the old slave's understanding of Meng Chuanqiu, Meng Chuanqiu's trip out of the palace this time shouldn't be for nothing. Perhaps he really does have some special helpers. I also ask that Your Highness be able to pay attention to this matter. Meng Fan waved his hand, not taking it to heart. Soldiers come and go, water comes and goes. Even if Meng Chuanqiu could really bring any help back, Meng Fan didn't need any generals to block an earth to cover. With a sword in his hand it would be enough. Since you're not at ease, then you'll lead the men to track down Meng Chuanqiu's trail, alive and dead. Meng Fan said casually, seeing that Meng Fan didn't take this matter to heart, Wei Changfeng could only respond helplessly, but it's good to have him track it down himself. Earlier, after listening to Meng Fan's orders, he had to stay in the palace to take care of Meng Xiaochan. Now that Meng Fan had returned, he could finally withdraw. After Wei Changfeng left the Moonlight Palace, he immediately arranged for someone to follow him out of the palace. These days he had been sending people to track down Meng Chuanqiu's traces, and there was still some news. This time he personally went out to catch Meng Chuanqiu back. For Wei Chongfeng, he naturally didn't want Meng Chuanqiu to rise again. Otherwise, as the dog's leg with the most complete defection, he would definitely end up as one of the worst. Three days later, the crying prince of Biling finally arrived at Great Moon as well. Meng Xiaochan was quite interested in this northern tomb prince. So Meng Fan brought Meng Xiaochan along and looked at this northern tomb prince. Then Meng Xiaochan saw Xiao Chang and was filled with disdain. How can someone so old be a crybaby when I almost married such a loser? Chapter 36 Chen Yuan Holy Land If Meng Xiaochan were to marry in Biling, she would definitely have to marry the crown prince of Biling. That's why she was a bit curious about this prince Xiao Ching of Biling and wanted to come and see this person. After all, this is the man who almost became his husband. As a result, after seeing Xiao Chang, she was instantly disappointed. It's a waste, no doubt about it. A man in his twenties is still crying. He's not going to kill him. Why are you crying? Shame on you. After just a glance at Xiao Chang, Meng Xiaochan lost interest and turned to leave. Meng Fan casually arranged for someone to find a place for Xiao Chang to stay, without giving him any great restrictions. As long as this kid didn't leave the imperial city, the freedom that should be there was still there. Imperial brother, thank you. On the way back, Meng Xiaochan suddenly said to Meng Fan. Meng Fan smiled and said, Thanks for what? If it wasn't for you, I might have had to live with this loser for the rest of my life. Meng Xiaochan said with some trepidation, Every young girl has fantasized that her future husband is a hero. Meng Xiaochan naturally fantasized about it. So close that not only was his husband not a guy Jin, but he was also a straw bear. Silly girl, what's the point of saying thank you to your brother? For the next few days, Meng Fan fixed his mind to cultivate in the palace, preparing to cultivate to the peak foundation establishment realm at an early date. Of course, 
The greater goal was mainly the Jindan realm. Four days later, Wei Changfeng sent someone back with news that he had found out Meng Chuenxiu's whereabouts. Meng Chuenxiu, the old man, went to the Golden Era Temple. Golden Origin Temple? A hint of surprise appeared on Meng Fan's face when he heard the name. What is Meng Chuenxiu doing at the temple? You've seen the world and want to become a monk? This is clearly impossible. If he really wants to become a monk, he can just tell himself. He won't stop him. Could it be that Wei Changfeng had guessed correctly? And Meng Chuenxiu had really gone to bring help? Getting help from a monk. This old guy is pretty creative. Meng Fan didn't take it to heart. Even if Meng Chuenxiu really did move in some sort of rescuer, he couldn't possibly shake himself. He didn't believe that Meng Chuenxiu would still be able to move a Yuaning over. And even if it is a Yuaning, Meng Fan now has the Xian Yuan sword. And after activating the human emperor bloodline, he will still be able to beat it. And there will be no pressure at all. Meng Fan continued to cultivate with a fixed mind, not taking this matter seriously. As a result, he hadn't waited for Meng Chuenxiu to move in for help, but instead encountered an assassin first. Female assassins, the night is quiet and silent. Meng Fan sat cross-legged on the bed and practiced, and there was only a dim candle flame in the entire room. A sword light violently lit up from the dimness and stabbed at Meng Fan. Ha! Meng Fan opened his eyes and let out a cold laugh. His body swayed slightly as he leapt up and avoided the sword light. Then he swung out his right arm, his arm like a green dragon probing its claws. In the next second, he clasped the neck of a black-clothed man with five fingers and lifted him straight up before flinging him hard onto the ground. Click sip. The sound of bones breaking came. Meng Fan looked coldly at the female assassin lying on the ground, his face full of ice and expressionless. Interesting, to have someone come to assassinate me. In Meng Fan's opinion, this was indeed a very interesting thing. This assassin was masked, but he was keenly aware that the assassin was a woman. There is a fundamental difference between a woman's body and a man's. And if it were a man, such a lean figure could not have such large packs. However, men and women were not important. What was important was that this assassin was only at the innate realm. And although he had reached the peak innate realm, he really wasn't enough to look at in Meng Fan's place. Even at the foundation establishment realm, or even at the peak of foundation establishment, it was impossible to successfully assassinate Meng Fan. If it was the Jin Dan realm sneaking up on Meng Fan, it would be possible to successfully assassinate him with a single blow to him before he activated his human emperor bloodline. After all, activating the human emperor's bloodline also required time. And there was a short process. Did Meng Chuanqiu send you? No. Meng Chuanqiu knows that even Monk Li Qin can't kill me. So how could he send such a loser like you here? Meng Fan's brows furrowed in some confusion. Unable to figure out who sent this assassin, he walked up to the female assassin and stomped on her wrist, breaking the bone then kicked the sword weapon away. Then Meng Fan crouched down and ripped off the female assassin's mask. Very young woman, should not be 20 years old. Good looks, a beauty. For a woman in her teens to be able to cultivate to the peak innate realm, this was not simple. Definitely a presence with a background. Who are you? Why are you trying to assassinate me? Meng Fan looked coldly at the female assassin. At this time, the guards outside the door heard the commotion and greeted Meng Fan. Meng Fan dismissed the guards. Bunch of losers. Didn't even notice that an assassin had infiltrated the room. But he didn't blame the guards. A Pekinate martial artist, an existence close to foundation establishment, wanted to avoid these guards too simply. The female assassin raised her head, stared at Meng Fan with a face of hatred, and chillingly said, Meng Fan, you thing, the first object of suspicion when you encounter an assassin is actually your father. Oh, people like you don't deserve to live in the world. Meng Fan was expressionless as he stomped on the female assassin's other wrist breaking and crushing its bones. I'm asking you who you are. This is to give you a chance. Otherwise, you've worked hard to assassinate me, but I don't even know who you are and who you want to avenge. Are you not pathetic? The female assassin looked at Meng Fan with a face full of malice. Her throat moved, and she finally said in a hateful voice, I am Nya Ruying, the daughter of Nya Rin Tu, and I killed you to avenge my father's death, and to let you know that my Nya family won't let you go. Meng Fan nodded and calmly said, Okay. I know. After saying that, he once again raised his foot and stomped on Nya Ruying's chest. In the next second, Nya Ruying's eyes widened and she died of gas. Dead. Meng Fan looked at Nya Ruying's face, shook his head, and sighed. It's a shame that it's so good looking. He'd been merciful and hadn't moved his foot against the face. In the end, he still has a love of beauty and compassion. Incoming. Meng Fan shouted at the door. Your Highness a guard outside the door pushed his way in, and when he saw the body on the ground, he immediately knelt on the ground in fear and trepidation. 
The slave is guilty of not realizing there was an assassin. Please punish his highness. Meng Fan impatiently waved his hand and said, Stop talking nonsense and dispose of the assassin's body. Yes, your highness. The guards hurriedly removed the body and saw that the assassin's body was an extremely beautiful young woman. Then he couldn't help but have a thought similar to Meng Fan's in his mind. This female assassin is quite pretty. But it's a pity. The guards moved quickly. And in just two minutes, they had disposed of the female assassin's body and stripped the blood from the floor with a mop, and finished it off with a sprinkling of spice. Meng Fan continued to return to his bed to cultivate, sitting cross-legged. Even though a man had just died in the house, it didn't affect him in the slightest. From start to finish, Meng Fan hadn't taken this Nya Ren Tu's daughter to heart. He didn't even take Nya Ren Tu seriously, let alone Nya Ren Tu's daughter. As a result, something that surprised Meng Fan happened. Ding! You killed Nya Ruying, a disciple of the Qian Yuan Holy Land who was the only personal disciple of Li Feihua, an elder of the Qian Yuan Holy Land. If Nye Ruying dies, Li Feihua will be furious and seek revenge on you. You can make the following choices. Option 1, leave the Great Moon Dynasty and go into hiding to avoid Li Feihua's revenge. Reward, quenching Yuan Dan. Option 2, a great man who does not change his name and sits without a change of name will sit in the Daiyue Palace and wait for Li Feihua to come to his door to avenge his death. Reward, breathlessness. Meng Fan did not hesitate to choose two. Without bringing a wimp. Elder of the Qian Yuan Holy Land? Sounds awesome. Ha, huh? can you beat a land god? Even if this Li Feihua was also a land goddess, a great man of the Yuaning realm, Meng Fan, sitting on the Xian Yuan sword and the human emperor's bloodline, wasn't afraid in the slightest, trying to run away as a lost dog. Are you kidding me? I can't afford to lose this. Qian Yuan Holy Land? Meng Fan hadn't heard of this power. But the word Holy Land, he had heard of it. In the Xian Ling Great World, the strongest force was known as the Immortal Sect. The Immortal Sect was high up in the sky, and when you dabbled with an Immortal, you knew with your toes that it was terrifying. Even for Jin Dan Realm cultivators, wanting to join the Immortal Sect was not an easy task. One needed to go through a rushing test, and only those with outstanding talent would have a chance. The Holy Land, on the other hand, was an existence one level lower than the Immortal Sect. However, compared to the secular world, the Holy Land could also be said to be a legendary existence. A Holy Land, usually created by an expert out of the Immortal Sect. To put it bluntly, those Lords of the Holy Land were those who couldn't mix at the top in the Immortal Sect, but weren't willing to be subservient, so they came out to make their own way. Inside the Holy Land, there was no shortage of Jin Dan realm existences. There were some Yuaning, but there were only a handful of transformation gods. Generally speaking, the Lord of the Holy Land was probably in the realm of transformation spirit. This Nya Ruying's master, what's his name, Li Feihua, was introduced as an elder of the Holy Land, so the probability is that it's the Yuaning realm, and it shouldn't be possible for it to be a transformation spirit. If one reached the realm of the transformation god, they wouldn't be resigned to living inside the Holy Land, and the transformation god had a broader heaven and earth. Yuaning, where is the qualification for me to flee with my tail between my legs? Meng Fan shook his head with a bitter smile. Even Meng Fan was more inflated now. He felt that once he activated the human emperor bloodline, coupled with the divine might of the Xian Yuan sword, even if he encountered a transformation god he was not without the ability to fight off one or two of them. However, although his heart was inflated, Meng Fan's behavior was not. Before Li Feihua came to seek revenge, he was fully focused on his cultivation, not wasting any time at all. It's okay to mentally defy the enemy. But it's still responsible to show some respect in your actions. Meng Fan hadn't deliberately blocked the news of Nye Ruying's death, it would be pointless for him to lock up or even behead all the guards who knew about it. Since the system prompted it, then Li Fei Hua would definitely know about this news. Nye Ruying came to seek revenge in Daiyue, so someone must have known about it. Then Nye Ruying didn't return to the Qin Yuan Holy Land. After a long time, Li Fei Hua would definitely come to look for herself. This was something that could not be avoided. What's more, Meng Fan wasn't afraid of this elder of the Qian Yuan Holy Land. As a result, Meng Fan hadn't waited for Li Fei Hua, but instead waited for Wei Changfeng first. Appearing in front of Meng Fan, Wei Changfeng only had one arm left, becoming a one-armed man. Chapter 37 The Eighth Prince arrives in person, writes before troops. What happened? How did you get mixed up so badly? Meng Fan frowned and asked Wei Changfeng. Wei Changfeng, the dog's leg, was the best one he could use under his hand. Now that Wei Changfeng had obviously been bullied, and even had one of his arms chopped off, it made Meng Fan naturally a bit angry. Your Highness, the old slave is incompetent. Wei Changfeng knelt in front of Meng Fan, 
Meng Fan said somewhat helplessly, cut the crap and get to the point. Didn't you go to track down Meng Chuanxiu? How did you get yourself into such a mess? Your Highness, the old slave tracked Meng Chuanxiu all the way to the Golden Element Temple. This Meng Chuanxiu hiding in the Golden Temple. The old slave is ready to enter the temple while Meng Chuanxiu captured back to let his highness sentenced. As it turns out, there are many experts in this Golden Element Temple, and the old slave is no match for them. If not for the mercy of the monks in the Golden Element Temple, perhaps the old slave would not have been able to return. Wei Changfeng was aggrieved and helpless, he was already lucky to be able to come back alive. Breaking an arm was nothing in comparison. Meng Fan's gaze was cold, and he said in a chilling voice, showing mercy and still breaking an arm, this golden element temple is so overbearing, you have to look at the master to beat the dog. This golden origin temple, was not putting him, Meng Fan, in his eyes. Admittedly, it was true that Meng Fan didn't have much of a reputation, and had only recently risen to fame, before that, he didn't have much of a presence at all, and had even been called a waste. It was normal for someone to not put Meng Fan in their eyes, but since Meng Chuanxiu had found the Golden Origin Temple, it proved that the Golden Origin Temple knew about him. This also chopped off an arm of Wei Changfeng, which in a sense was tantamount to slapping Meng Fan in the face. Meng Fan had been in the ascendancy for a while, so it was inevitable that he would be a bit bloated. So for this Golden Element Temple, Meng Fan was very dissatisfied. However, Wei Changfeng's position in Meng Fan's mind really wasn't considered to be that high. So Meng Fan wasn't so proactive as to rush to the Golden Element Temple to look for trouble. If it was Meng Xiaochan who had her arm chopped off, he would have rushed to the Golden Element Temple and smashed the temple. Since Meng Chuanxiu has found the Golden Origin Temple, then he must have invited the experts of the Golden Origin Temple to return to the palace to find this Imperial Prince in trouble. You should go down and recuperate first, and when the experts from the Golden Origin Temple arrive, this Imperial Prince will take it out for you, Meng Fan said to Wei Changfeng. Wei Changfeng, however, did not immediately retreat, but continued to bow and said, Your Highness, the old slave still has news to report. What news? Your Highness, the old slave has inquired about some information at the Golden Element Temple, and it seems that the death of Empress Rou Fei back then really had something to do with Meng Chuanxiu. And not only is it related to Meng Chuanxiu, it also seems to be related to the Golden Origin Temple. Hearing Wei Changfeng's words, Meng Fan's eyes narrowed. Carefully, Wei Changfeng said, the old slave wasn't sure, but when the old slave entered the Golden Element Temple, he happened to overhear Meng Chuanxiu chatting with the abbot of the Golden Element Temple, Grandmaster Yuan Hung, and they seemed to have mentioned the death of Lady Rou Fei. Meng Fan nodded and said, I know, whether it's true or not, just wait for Meng Chuanxiu to come back and ask again, there's no rush. Wei Chongfeng continued, Your Highness, there seems to be a Jin Dan realm expert present at the Golden Origin Temple, so please be careful. Your Highness, Meng Fan waved his hand. Go down. Yes, your highness. Wei Changfeng was the only person who knew that Nye Ren Tu was killed by Meng Fan's own hands, so he was well aware of how powerful this eighth prince highness was. However, the Jin Dan realm was ultimately extraordinary, so he still made it a point to remind Meng Fan. As a result, when he saw Meng Fan's couldn't care less expression, he knew that he had been overly concerned. He wasn't sure how strong his highness was, but anyway, his highness had decimated Jin Dan. That's why he firmly believes that it's definitely right to follow his highness. After Wei Changfeng left, Meng Fan remained fixated on his cultivation, not putting any golden element temple in his mind. Whether it was Li Feihua or Jin Yuan temple, no amount of trouble could affect his cultivation. Just wait for trouble to come. He had a sword to answer it anyway. At the same time, Meng Fan was also a bit curious as to whether the golden element temple would come first or Li Feihua would come first. It's better to come together and solve all these troubles at once. Otherwise, the human emperor bloodline could only be activated once in a month, and in case these two troubles came staggered, one would not be able to solve them. Meng Fan's brows furrowed at the thought. Like, there's really no room for carelessness. Whether it was Li Fei Hua or Jin Yuan Temple, once they came to attack, they might need to activate the human emperor's bloodline in order to resolve it. If the first day of the year Li Fei Hua came, then the second day of the year Jin Yuan Temple came again. Then if one activated the human emperor bloodline against Li Feihua on the first day of the year, then there was no way to activate the human emperor bloodline again on the second day of the year. The logic was so simple that Meng Fan had to pay attention to it. Activating the human emperor's bloodline is still very restrictive after all, so I have to work hard to raise my own cultivation. Meng Fan took a deep breath, feeling that his cultivation was still insufficient. If one's own cultivation level was already that of a Yuaning, truly becoming a land god, 
then what was there to worry about? But now that the cultivation is not enough and the problem is in front of us, then it has to be solved. Jin Yuan Temple and Li Fei Hua, most likely, came to trouble themselves on different days of the same month. What to do? Meng Fan chose to take the initiative to take control of time. Let's go and solve the problem of the Golden Element Temple first, and then consider the problem of Li Fei Hua. Nia Ruying had just died, and it was unlikely that Li Fei Hua of the Chen Yuan Holy Land would come looking for herself so soon. Only when Nia Ruying had been missing for a certain amount of time might he suspect that Nia Ruying had had an accident and come looking for himself. Early the next morning, Meng Fan brought along Wei Changfeng and rushed in the direction of the Golden Origin Temple. The reason why I brought Wei Changfeng was to recognize the way, and secondly, to get out of anger. Chopping off an arm of one of his own men was not something that could be casually uncovered. Three days later, Meng Fan and Wei Changfeng arrived at the Golden Origin Temple, the Jin Yuan Temple. Not a grand temple of gold and splendor, looks plain and small, incense, not exactly exuberant. What kind of high priest can be raised in a small temple like this? However, Wei Changfeng even folded his arm here, and this golden origin temple, which looks unimpressive, still has real skills. His Royal Highness the 8th Prince of the Great Moon has arrived in person. Go shout out your abbot. One armed Wei Changfeng shouted to the disciples at the entrance of the monastery. The young monk at the entrance of the temple did not dare to be careless and hurriedly entered the temple to report. These monks who guarded the gate were naturally of no higher status. For them, the great moon's eighth prince, was definitely an extremely honorable existence now, so they didn't dare to be careless in the slightest. Meng Fan and Wei Changfeng didn't directly enter the Golden Origin Temple the hard way. Although theoretically, the Golden Origin Temple might make a move against Meng Fan, but this was after all only theoretically, at least right now. The Golden Origin Temple hadn't drawn swords with Meng Fan yet. However, the Golden Origin Temple chopped off Wei Changfeng's arm, and this justice must be done. Meng Fan had always been a reasonable person. So, first things first, Chapter 38, Your Mother, I Killed Her, Rites of Passage. Meng Fan felt that he was still more conscientious about what he did. After the young monk at the entrance of the monastery went in to report, an old monk soon came out with him. Your Highness, this person is the abbot of the Golden Origin Temple. Master Yuan Hung, Wei Changfeng asked Meng Fan, he's the one who chopped off your arm? Wei Changfeng shook his head and said, back to your highness, it's not this person, the one who chopped off my arm was a young monk, but I don't know what his name is, since it wasn't this old monk who had beheaded him, then Meng Fan's attitude towards this abbot Yuan Hung wasn't too bad, Amit Bab Buddha, his royal highness the 8th prince has come to the golden element temple in person, I wonder what his business is. Abbot Yuan Hong walked out of the temple and came before Meng Fan, his hands folded in front of him. Meng Fan smiled and said to Abbot Yuan Hong, Why should the abbot knowingly ask? This imperial prince is here today for two things. Abbot Yuan Hong asked, Which two things? One, your golden origin temple chopped off an arm of this emperor's men. This account has to be settled. Two, I've heard that Meng Chuanxiao is under house arrest at your golden origin temple? Meng Chuanxiao was the emperor of the great moon. It is inappropriate to stay at your golden origin temple. Quickly release him from there. Abbot Yuan Han looked at Meng Fan and said in a somewhat helpless tone, Your Highness is imposing. Meng Fan said with a calm face, Where is the difficulty? The golden origin temple is filled with monks, not bone setters, and we have no way to help your man receive his arm back after it was chopped off. As for Meng Chuanxiao, it is true that he is in the golden origin temple, but it is not my golden origin temple that has placed him under house arrest. Rather he has taken the initiative to stay in the Golden Origin Temple, regardless of whether Meng Chuanxiao is under house arrest, or if he took the initiative to stay at the Golden Origin Temple, he has to return to the Great Moon today. Meng Fan's tone gradually turned cold, leaving no room for error. Master Yuan Hong smiled and said to Meng Fan, It's fine for Meng Chuanxiao to go back to the Great Moon, but that would be an offense to your highness. How aggrieved, if Meng Chuanxiao wants to return to the Great Moon, then your highness will be obliged to stay at the Golden Element Temple. Hearing Grandmaster Yuan Hang's words, a smile appeared on Meng Fan's face. Only an instant later, the smile turned into a sneer. Want this emperor to stay at the Golden Origin Temple? I'm afraid your Golden Origin Temple doesn't have the ability to do so. The cold smile on Meng Fan's face gradually disappeared and was replaced by indifference. However, this emperor is somewhat curious. You, Golden Origin Temple, why do you want to help Meng Chuanxiao? Although Meng Fan's attitude had been tough, he hadn't underestimated the Golden Origin Temple. It was because from the first moment he saw this master Yuan Hang, he realized that he could not see through this Yuan Hang's realm. Meng Fan's cultivation had reached the peak foundation establishment realm after this period of time. 
Anyone he couldn't see through had to be at least in the Jean Dan realm. A temple in the secular world actually had the presence of a Jean Dan realm cultivator. Using one's toes to think about it, one could also know that this Jin Yuan temple was definitely not simple. Why would such a special Jin Yuan temple help Meng Chuanxiu? If Meng Chuanxiu really had such a deep friendship with the Golden Origin Temple, then how could he have been forced to flee the palace by the Great Wind Dynasty before? Other than that, this Abbot Yuan Han would be able to deal with Nieren too. When the Great Wind Dynasty came to attack, why didn't Meng Chuanxiu ask the Golden Origin Temple to help? This query did not leave Meng Fan puzzled for too long, as Abbot Yuan Hang's next words directly gave Meng Fan the answer. I, Golden Origin Temple, do not want to help Meng Chuanxiu, but simply want to deal with you. Meng Fan, hearing Abbot Yuan Hang's words, Meng Fan's brows furrowed, somewhat puzzled and even more disgruntled as he said, this imperial prince has no grudges against the Golden Elemental Temple, so why are you, the Golden Elemental Temple, dealing with me? If the Golden Origin Temple was trying to help Meng Chuanxiu, Meng Fan would still be able to understand, at least it was an acceptable reason, but Jin Yuan Temple wasn't trying to help Meng Chuanxiu, it was trying to deal with itself. This Meng Fan couldn't understand. He could be sure that he had no grievances with the Golden Origin Temple. So why would the Golden Origin Temple want to deal with him? It's true that your highness has no grievances with my Golden Origin Temple. But Bai Susu has a grudge against the Golden Origin Temple. Abbot Yuan Hong said in a somewhat complicated tone. Upon hearing the name Bai Susu, Meng Fan frowned and subconsciously glanced at Wei Changfeng beside him. Bai Susu was the name of Meng Fan's mother, Princess Zhua. And before that, Wei Changfeng had reported to Meng Fan, suspecting that he had heard that Consort Rose's death had something to do with the Golden Element Temple and Meng Chuanxiu. Now it seems that it's not suspicious anymore. What grudge does the Golden Origin Temple have against my mother? Out of respect for the deceased, Meng Fan addressed Bai Su Su as mother even though he didn't have any feelings for her either. After all, without Bai Su, he probably wouldn't have been born and wouldn't have been able to travel through this world. The poor monk has a senior brother and three senior brothers who all died at the hands of your mother. This is the grudge, Abbot Yuan Hong said in a tone that gradually turned cold. Hearing this, Meng Fan's eyes reveal shock, was really shocked. Wei Changfeng on the side was also filled with shock and disbelief. This Yuan Hong Abbot's senior brothers, if not Jin Dan, must at least be foundation establishment. If Bai Susu could really kill so many of Yuan Hang's masters and brothers, then her cultivation would definitely not be weaker than Jin Dan. Meng Fan's brows furrowed. He had always thought that his mother was an ordinary person, and an ordinary person with a relatively poor physique. Otherwise it wouldn't have been so weak after giving birth that it would have died of illness straight away. However, Yuan Hang's words completely overturned Meng Fan's imagination of his own mother. Other than that, if her own mother had this kind of ability, how could she have married this punk Meng Chuanxiu? It was true that Meng Chuanxiu was the emperor of the Great Moon, but in the eyes of a Jin Dan realm cultivator, even the emperor was still a waste. However, Meng Fan was not very curious about this point, much less unable to understand it. After all, he is a traveler and has seen too much of the world. Sometimes men and women develop feelings for each other that don't make sense. So maybe Meng Chuanxiu is a scumbag who is good at playing with his feelings? It's not uncommon. It is rare that one's mother has such a hidden identity and strength. Although what you said is unimaginable. This emperor chooses to believe it because there is no need for you to make up such a lie to deceive me. But there should be more to the grudge you mentioned, right? Meng Fan said to Abbot Yuan Hung, what makes you say that? It seems that my mother, Bai Su Su, also died at the hands of your Golden Origin Temple? Abbot Yuan Hong nodded and said, Bai Su Su, indeed, is considered to have died at the hands of my Golden Origin Temple. However, she was pregnant at the time, and as the heavens have the virtue of kindness, my Golden Origin Temple did not exterminate her, but left her with a breath of air letting her hold out until after she gave birth to her child before dying. Meng Fan's face went completely cold, and even the entire space around him, the temperature went cold. The children Yuan Han was talking about were naturally himself and Xiao Chan. Meng Fan was able to imagine that at that time. Bai Su Su was seriously injured and on the verge of death, but she held on to her breath and gave birth to herself and Xiao Chan. This persistence moved him, almost, myself and Cindy died. It was her mother, Pak Su Su's who clenched her teeth and held on, trying to survive until the time when she and Cindy were born. Why? Meng Fan's tone was incomparably cold. Because your mother, by Su Su, is not human. Chapter 39, The Sword Drawing Technique of Chopping the Sky Originally, in Meng Fan's mind, he had no feelings for his mother, by Su Su, because by Su Su died after giving birth to him and Meng Xiaochan, and he was a traveler, born and bred, 
with over 20 years of life experience and memories. So for Bai Susu, he didn't have that lack in fantasy of motherly love like Meng Xiaochan had. But at this moment, Meng Fan had already treated Bai Susu as his true mother. Although Bai Susu had not taken care of him or raised him, she had done her duty as a mother. At this moment, from a woman he had never met in 20 years, Meng Fan felt a mother's love. By Su Su's love for herself and Meng Xiaochan, Meng Fan had never treated Meng Chuanxiu as his father, but now he treated by Su Su, whom he had never met, as his real mother, a weight that was no weaker than that of his own mother on earth in his previous life, and his own mother, who died at the hands of these vultures at the Golden Temple. This is, vengeance for the killing of his mother. Meng Fan raised his head and looked coldly at Yuan Hong, his killing intent having been unable to hold back the overflow. Before, when he was preparing to come to the Golden Origin Temple, he was not prepared to go on a killing spree. But now, it's not the same. The deceased has passed away, and you're still uttering insults. Is this the demeanor of a high monk? Meng Fan said to Yuan Hong with an expressionless face. Abbot Yuan Hong smiled bitterly. When I said that your mother is not human, I wasn't scolding her, but because she really isn't human. She's a demon race. Demons? A bunch of nonsense. Meng Fan shouted angrily in a cold voice. Your mother, Bai Su Su, is originally a fox demon in disguise, and she is the daughter of Bai Shao Tian, one of the eight demon kings of the 10,000 demon kingdom. In fact, you also have the bloodline of the demon race flowing in your body, only that you're a human demon hybrid and haven't opened the bloodline of the demon race, the land of 10,000 demons? The Zhuang concubine that Meng Fan had first activated the human emperor's bloodline in the imperial palace and decapitated was of demonic bloodline and was similarly of mixed human demon blood. Himself and her are one of a kind? No way. Meng Fan didn't believe it. He thought about his attribute panel in his head. Name, Meng Fan. Life expectancy, 20-361. Race, human. Cultivation, peak foundation. Technique, 9 heavenly empery and spirit technique, divine grade. Physique, 6 paths divine body, divine grade. Supreme talent, sword Dao Tongshan, top qualification in sword Dao. Any sword technique can be learned at once, and the power of the sword technique is enhanced. Supreme talent, hegemonic stance, any female in your presence will be weakened. Supreme talent, human emperor's bloodline, activating the human emperor's bloodline in the body will enhance your cultivation by accepting the world's fortune. Sword techniques, heavenly flying fairy, shen level. Holy spirit sword technique, heaven level. 10,000 swords, earth level. Weapons, shen bing sword, shen grade. Shen yuan sword, heaven grade. The race on the attribute panel clearly stated human. How could one be related to the demon race? If one's mother, by Susu, was a demon, one should have a demon bloodline. Could it be that his own demon bloodline hadn't been opened and activated? Just like Yuan Hong had said? Meng Fan didn't want to believe this. It wasn't actually unacceptable. It was just that it always felt a bit awkward and bad to change from a human to a human or a demon. Abbot Yuan Hong continued, If you are willing to honestly be an ordinary person, the poor monk is not prepared to make things difficult for you. After all, you also possess half of the human bloodline, so the poor monk will just treat you as a human being. But you have cultivated to the peak foundation establishment realm in the midst of silence, and you want to take over the nest and plague the great moon. If a demon like you takes control of the great moon, then in the future there will surely be trouble and the people will suffer. What's more, you've always been unassuming, yet you've suddenly transformed into a peak foundation establishment. The poor monk suspects that there may already be a demon race behind you to support you. Meng Fan laughed. That's a pretty grand statement. Ha, huh? when he was mediocre, he didn't take himself seriously. And now that he had risen to prominence, he wanted to find trouble with himself. In the end, it's not because you're afraid you'll avenge by Susu's death, now trying to strangle himself while he's still weak. So, this is about killing me and ridding the people of evil? Meng Fan sneered. Abbot Yuan Hong said, if you are willing to live in the Golden Origin Temple for a long time, dive into the mental Buddha, and return the Great Moon to Meng Chuanshou. My golden origin temple will naturally not kill in vain. What if I'm unwilling? Meng Fan's face was expressionless. Then the poor monk can only remove the harm for the living beings and return a clear sky to the great lunar imperial dynasty. Abbot Yuan Hong had a solemn face. Moralistic. Meng Fan sneered in his heart. Since the abbot said so. Ha, huh, it's not impossible to want me to reside in the golden element temple often. But I have one condition. On what terms? Those who were involved in the death of my mother at the time all came forward and cut their own throats in front of me. I then let go of my hatred and lived long enough to worship the Buddha at the Jin Yuan Temple. Abbot Yuan Hong folded his hands and softly exclaimed, Amit Ba Buddha, Monastery Master Meng, let's be forgiving. 
Meng Fan calmly looked at Yuan Hong and said in a cold tone, When the Golden Element Temple, why didn't you spare my mother and had to kill everyone? Abbot Yuan Hong said, We spared her life in the first place and left her breath to give birth to the child, which is already my Buddha's compassion and benevolence. Meng Fan couldn't help the anger in his heart from rushing upward. Was this compassion? So, this prince still has to thank you for your kindness and not killing me back then? After all, if it wasn't for your kindness, my sister and I would have already died in the womb back then. Amit Bab Buddha. It would naturally be excellent if scholar Meng really thinks that way. He Tui Meng Fan was infuriated. He had never seen such a brazen person before. It seems that monastery master Meng is still unwilling to let go of his hatred? Abbot Yuan Hong said helplessly. Will you believe me when I say I can be assured of hatred? And be assured of it? If scholar Meng says so, the poor monk will believe it. Ha! Huh? Meng Fan laughed coldly. Unfortunately, this emperor can't let go. And this emperor is too lazy to even lie to you. Since that's the case, Mr. Meng won't be able to leave today. Coincidentally, I wasn't planning on leaving. Buddha has a kind eyebrow and an angry eye. Monk Meng, please don't force the poor monk to make a move. Moralistic and grandiose. Since you're already prepared to strike, why talk such nonsense? It's quite hypocritical. Since that's the case, the poor monk will help scholar Meng subdue his heart demons today. In the end, Abbot Yuan Han was the head of a temple. And he did speak beautifully. It's true that anyone who can be a leader can't be bad at eloquence. Ding. You have completely offended the Golden Element Temple. The abbot of the Golden Element Temple, Yuan Hong, is extremely scornful of you and is unwilling for you to continue to grow. You can make the following choice. Option 1. No longer ask about the Emperor of the Great Moon. And put aside his mother's hatred. Convert to the Golden Temple and become a Buddhist. Reward. A copy of the Buddhist scriptures. Choice 2. Avenge your mother's murder. Tread down the Golden Element Temple and kill Abbot Yuan Hung. Reward, the art of chopping heavenly sword drawing. Chapter 40, My Buddha's Compassion. Listening to the choices given by the system in his mind, Meng Fan naturally chose two without hesitation. Avenge your mother's murder. What kind of a man is he if he can put up with this? Abbot Yuan Hung, there is one thing that you may not believe when this imperial prince says it. What is it? After today, there will be no more Jin Yuan Temple in the world. Monastery Master Meng. What a big mouth. For Meng Fan's outspokenness, Yuan Hong was naturally a bit angry. A small foundation establishment, actually wanting to overthrow the Golden Element Temple, was simply a daydream. In the next second, Meng Fan's entire aura skyrocketed. Early Jin Dan stage. Middle Jin Dan. Late Jin Dan. Peak Jin Dan. Metamorphosis. What Yuan Hong couldn't see was that in the sky above the Golden Origin Temple, a lotus flower condensed from Qi Luck and surged into Meng Fan's body. Human Emperor Bloodline. Activated. Meng Fan re-entered the Land Goddess and stepped into the Yuanning Realm. Only, this time, the cultivation level was only raised to the early Yuanning stage. And then it stopped. The activation of the Human Emperor Bloodline was to absorb Qi to enhance one's cultivation. This Golden Origin Temple's fortune, naturally, was not able to be compared to the Great Lunar Palace. It was quite a bit worse. So this time, although Meng Fan's own cultivation was stronger, after activating the Human Emperor Bloodline, his realm was instead only raised to the early Yuanning stage. The last time he was on the walls of the Great Moon Imperial City, beheading Yarin too. Although Meng Fan's own cultivation was much weaker, he had risen to the mid-Yuanning stage. Thinking of this, Meng Fan realized that only in a place with rich qi, activating the Human Emperor's Bloodline would be able to maximize his cultivation. If he ran to a poor, backwater, less place, Activating the human emperor's bloodline might not even reach the Yuanning realm. This is something I didn't know before, but this time I have a point of knowledge. This, Abbot Yuan Han was dumbfounded as he froze and watched Meng Fan's cultivation climb. From being inferior to himself, to surpassing himself, and in the end, even he could not see through Meng Fan's cultivation. This is too unbelievable. Just now, he had sworn to mock Meng Fan for speaking out of turn, but now he was already trembling with fear, and was even a bit alarmed. A foundation establishment realm turned into Jin Dan in the blink of an eye, and then his cultivation level was still rising, and in the end, he completely exceeded his own perceptions, suspected of becoming a Yuaning and stepping into the realm of the land immortals. This is also ridiculous, but something so absurd happened right in front of his eyes that he had to believe it. Is it an illusion? Such a thought popped into Abbot Yuan Hang's mind. It was the only excuse he could find and the only hope he had, although he himself felt that this was unlikely. At this point in time, he could only take such a gamble, betting that Meng Fan had just confused himself with an illusion. Don't even think about messing with my mind. Yuan Hong let out a furious cry. 
then took the initiative and blasted Mengfan with a palm, Buddhist Vajra palm. The palm comes out like a diamond, opening mountains and cracking rocks with ease. Mengfan coldly looked at Yuan Hong, before he couldn't see through the depth of this abbot's cultivation, but now he could clearly see that this abbot of the Golden Origin Temple was a mid Dun cultivator. It's strong, in terms of cultivation, breath, and combat power. This guy was stronger than that Nyarin too. Unfortunately, it still wasn't enough in front of Meng Fan, although this time around, when he activated the Human Emperor bloodline, Meng Fan's cultivation had only risen to the early Yuaning stage. However, the early stage of Yuaning was still Yuaning, a genuine land deity. Mid Jin Dun, what the hell? In the face of this palm from Abbot Yuan Hong, Meng Fan merely twitched his eyelids before extending a finger. Use your finger as a sword. Holy Spirit Swordsmanship. Sword 1. In the next instant, Abbot Yuan Hang's Vajra palm was sliced to the ground, blood spraying out from the wrist position. At that moment, Yuan Hang's face turned pale. The color of the face is pale, firstly because of blood loss and secondly because of panic. As his palm was cut off, he was well aware that the surge in Meng Fan's cultivation just now was not an illusion. All of this, it's true, Jin Yuanji, it's over. Abbot Yuan Hong stayed where he was, no longer attacking, and looked at Meng Fan with a complicated expression. He used his only remaining hand to put one hand together and said, Amit Ba Buddha, how dare you, monk Meng, have such a cultivation level, the poor monk is ashamed to be inferior. Meng Fan laughed coldly, the old monk just said in a furious manner that this imperial prince won't be able to leave today, but now that you're begging this imperial prince to leave, this imperial prince isn't going to leave either. Amit Ba Buddha, scholar Meng, let the people be spared, heaven has the virtue of good life, the heavens are kind but this imperial prince is not. If I don't trample down your golden origin temple today, this imperial prince will not leave. Abbot Yuan Hang's face stiffened. Hard to see. The inheritance of the golden element temple for thousands of years. Is it going to be broken in your own hands? At the same time, his heart was filled with incredulity and incomprehension. How could Bai Susu's son be so demonic? He had just suspected that Meng Fan had the support of the demon race behind him, but even Bai Susu's father, Bai Shao Tian, one of the eight demon kings of the 10,000 demon kingdom, probably didn't have such a terrifying cultivation as Meng Fan. This Meng Fan, how on earth did he do it? If he were to know that Meng Fan had been cultivating for less than half a year, he was afraid that his eyes would fall out in shock. Abbot Yuan Hong sighed and said with a grim expression, there is a head for every grievance. If you want to avenge your mother's death, then just kill the poor monk, and I hope that you won't make things difficult for those innocent disciples of the Golden Origin Temple. This imperial prince is not a person who was addicted to killing and can fulfill this request of yours. Innocent people this emperor can spare, but those who are not innocent, this emperor will definitely not spare. Dare I ask monastery master, what is not innocent? Anyone who laid a hand on my mother in the first place has to die. Abbot Yuan Hong immediately said with a face full of difficulty, Master Meng. Meng Fan intended Yuan Hang's words with an icy face and said in a chilling voice, This emperor is impatient and does not want to listen to your nonsense. Within an incense stick of time, all those within the Golden Origin Temple who have struck out at my mother must all stand here. If Abbot Yuan Hong wants to harbor anyone, then let the entire temple be buried with him. I hope that the abbot can think it over. Although it's been a long time since the events of that year, this prince has the means to find out. I believe the abbot has also heard of the soul-searching technique, right? Meng Fan naturally didn't know the soul-search technique, but that didn't stop him from blackmailing this abbot Yuan Hong. After saying that, Meng Fan mobilized the power of heaven and earth and used the power of heaven and earth to condense a huge heaven and earth blade in the sky above the Golden Origin Temple. It's deterrent. At the same time, he was also completely revealing his cultivation. As expected, seeing this scene, Abbot Yuan Hong was filled with despair, mobilizing the power of the heavens. This was a means that could only be possessed by the Yuaning realm, the legendary land immortals. This eighth prince of the great lunar imperial dynasty, a demon at such a young age, was really a land god, stepping into the Yuaning realm. It was indeed an easy task for a land god to descend and try to step on the Golden Origin Temple. Master Yuan Hong had absolutely no thoughts of resisting, even if he gathered the strength of the entire temple. It was impossible to fight against the land gods, and it was bound to end in total annihilation. Abbot Yuan Hong, this emperor's promise is worth a thousand words. If you want to save the lives of innocent people, hand over those who are not innocent. Otherwise, today, the Golden Origin Temple will truly bleed to death. It is said that our Buddha is compassionate. Today let's see if you, the abbot, are truly compassionate or falsely compassionate. 
Chapter 41, Burial, Feed the Wolves, Compassion. Many people who are moralistic often advise others to be compassionate. But when it comes time for him to be compassionate himself, he is not always able to be compassionate. Yuan Hong abides frozen on the spot. Meng Fan had given him a choice, but this choice, it was an extremely cruel choice, and he would rather he didn't have the right to choose. Handing over the people who were involved in the strike against by Su Su back then was tantamount to getting them killed with their own hands. Granted, this would save those innocent disciples. But to Yuan Hong, those who were involved in taking a shot at by Su Su were the ones closest to him. Here were his senior brothers, his senior brothers, and even his senior uncles. As for those innocent disciples, Yuan Hong was actually not familiar with them instead. The choice given by Meng Fan was a great justice for Yuan Hong. Great justice. These four words are often heard, but how many people are able to live up to them? Meng Fan couldn't help but have a cold smile on his face as he looked at Abbot Yuan Hung. By the looks of it, Abbot Yuan Hung, isn't he really compassionate either? Yuan Hong remained frozen there, with a visibly struggling look on his face. For him to give up the person who had harmed Meng Fan's mother, by Su Su, back then for the sake of those ordinary, innocent disciples, he really found it a bit difficult. It's an ordeal. Scholar Meng, let's be forgiving. Yuan Hong was full of struggles and wanted to say something, but was ruthlessly interrupted by Meng Fan. Meng Fan said in a chilling voice, Yuan Hong, this emperor has been merciful enough by giving you the opportunity to choose. Don't you understand? Either all of you from the Golden Origin Temple will be buried with my mother, or the innocent people of your Golden Origin Temple will be spared. Do you think you really have a choice? An abbot of a temple, to be so stupid that he can't even see the obvious. From start to finish, you didn't have a choice. Meng Fan's cold and unfeeling voice exploded in Abbot Yuan Hang's mind like a thunderbolt, sending shivers down his spine. Yeah, one simply doesn't have a choice, regardless of the choice. The person who had hurt Meng Fan's mother, by Su Su, in the first place had to die today. The son of that vixen at the time has already achieved the land goddess, Yuan Ing realm, and has come back to take revenge. The cycle of karma and retribution. All of them, including himself. Deadline. Arrived. Meng Fan continued. Abbot Yuan Hong, this emperor has given you only one incense stick of time, and if that one incense stick of time is all you use to think about it, then the golden elemental temple will be wiped out today because of a single thought on your part, and blood will flow. At this moment, at Meng Fan's side, Wei Chengfeng looked at Meng Fan with a face of reverence. However, unconsciously, he felt that this His Highness, the Eighth Prince, had a very strong villainous demeanor. It was clearly His Royal Highness the Eighth Prince who wanted to exterminate the entirety of the Golden Origin Temple. But instead, he put the blame on Abbot Yuan Hang as if it was all Abbot Yuan Hang's fault. Even though it felt villainous, looking at Yuan Hang's face full of tangled and tortured looks just felt great what to do. Does he or she have villain potential too? Wei Changfeng bitterly laughed and shook his head, before he felt that he was very decent. He quietly glanced at Meng Fan. Anyway, this Eighth Prince His Highness, was really quite villainous. But why does it feel better to follow a villain than to follow a good one? There seems to be a bit of a problem myself. Neither Meng Fan nor Yuan Hong could have imagined that Wei Changfeng actually had such a rare and strange idea in his mind at this moment. Especially Yuan Hong, who had been completely taken by Meng Fan at this moment. He even felt guilty. Whether he was righteous or determined to harbor it, it was torture for him. After struggling for a long time, only the six words that Meng Fan had just said remained in his mind. Wandering back and forth. You simply don't have a choice. You simply don't have a choice. You simply don't have a choice. Amit Ba Buddha. After a long time, Yuan Hong shouted out a Buddha's name. Then he turned around without looking back and returned within the Golden Origin Temple. In less than half an incense burner's time, four people stood in front of the gate of the Golden Origin Temple, including Yuan Hong himself. There were a total of five people. Senior brother, what exactly is the reason for calling the few of us out? Just ask you and you still won't say. Senior nephew, my old lineage is in seclusion. What exactly do you mean by calling my old lineage out? Senior brother, who is this young man? In the face of these four monks' questions, Yuan Hong did not answer, but sat cross-legged on the ground with a solemn expression. After sitting down, he glanced at Meng Fan and then closed his eyes. Meditation, disc beads, Yuan Hong, who had his eyes closed, said in a calm tone, please, several senior brothers and sisters, follow me to my death. The four monks frowned at Yuan Hong, all feeling puzzled. What's this guy's problem? Meng Fan was somewhat surprised to look at Yuan Hong. This monk was cowering and struggling before, but now that he had made a decision, he instead still had some of the high monk's demeanor. In that case, 
he himself would help him out. Saving the monk from being questioned by his senior brothers and sisters, he mobilized the power of heaven and earth, and a sort of heaven and earth formed in the sky in front of the gate of the Golden Origin Temple, the power of heaven and earth. This is the means of a land god, that Yuan Hang's senior uncle, who was about to question Yuan Hang about what kind of nerves he was having, ended up looking at Meng Fan with a face full of shock after sensing the heaven and earth blade condensed by the power of heaven and earth. Jin Yuan Temple, how dare a land god descend today? This such a young youth on the opposite side was actually a land god immortal. At the Yuaning realm, when he thought of Yuan Hang's earlier sentence, please, several senior brothers and sisters, follow me to my death. Yuan Hang's senior uncle's heart was flooded with an ominous feeling of foreboding. Is this land god a friend or a foe? Senior, you, even though Meng Fan looked extremely young, this senior of Yuan Hang's, still addressed Meng Fan as senior. However, before he could finish his words, the sword of heaven and earth in the sky above the golden origin temple fell down. Two Jin Dan, three foundation, all landed on their heads at the same time. Two Jin Dan and three foundation establishment. The force formed by these five people was definitely an unrivaled existence in the secular world. Even a single country couldn't resist these five. However, these five people were like ants in front of Meng Fan, and were easily trampled to death. Meng Fan struck directly and viciously without the slightest hesitation, and didn't give these four people the slightest chance to explain themselves, killing and decisive. Behind Meng Fan, Wei Chongfeng's heart couldn't help but be flooded with a chill. Although he couldn't see through the cultivation of these people, he knew with his toes that there must be Jin Dan in here, and there should be more than one Jin Dan. This even so, his highness was easily decimated with a single pass of the knife. It's astounding, Wei Chongfeng knew that his highness the eighth prince was very strong, and he also felt that the 8th prince was definitely not afraid of the Golden Origin Temple on this trip, but the image, nonetheless, startled him, it's more than unafraid, it's crushing, destroying, collect the corpse, Meng Fan said to Wei Chongfeng in a flat tone, do you need a thick burial? Wei Chongfeng asked, he felt that these people were all masters and high monks and should be honored after death, thick burial? Oh, Meng Fan's tone was icy cold, throw them in the back of the mountains and feed them to the wolves, Chapter 42, Sorry to Disappoint You, Wei Chongfeng's question was nothing but nonsense, how is it possible to have a generous burial, these monks could be considered Meng Fan's mother killing enemies, so how could Meng Fan give these people a generous burial, Meng Fan didn't like to engage in those vain and moralistic operations, since they're enemies, they'll screw them to death, and they won't let them feel good afterward, revenge is to be thorough, throw it to the back of the mountain and feed it to the wolves, so that the enemy's corpse will have no bones left, generosity, compassion, it doesn't exist, hearing Meng Fan's words, Wei Chongfeng's heart trembled a little, and it was only at this moment that he realized that although this 8th prince his highness rarely got angry and had a desireless demeanor, but the truth is, his highness has a hard heart, Wei Chongfeng didn't dare to hesitate and hurriedly sent a few guards to drag these corpses away, it's a good story about a generation of monks who feed wolves with their bodies, that's right, follow me into the temple and take a look around, and by the way, Find out the monk who chopped off your arm, too, Meng Fan said to Wei Chongfeng. And of course, there's Meng Chuanxiu to be uncovered. Meng Fan's divine sense moved, instantly covering the entire golden element temple. In the next second, he identified Meng Chuanxiu's location. Then he locked on to the remaining four foundations of the golden origin temple. Yes, until this moment, there were still four foundation establishment realm cultivators present in the golden element temple and it had to be said that this tiny temple did have a relatively deeper foundation, and the one who was able to chop off Wei Chongfeng's arm was definitely a foundation builder without a doubt. Meng Fan brought Wei Chongfeng with him, and one by one, he met those four foundation establishment. Finally, Wei Chongfeng pointed at a young monk and said, this is the monk who chopped off my arm. Hearing Wei Chongfeng's words and identifying the target, Meng Fan, without saying a word, directly chopped out a sword chi and chopped off an arm of this young monk. From start to finish, Meng Fan didn't say a word to this young monk. He's here to take the heat for Wei Chongfeng. There's nothing to say. The young monk didn't say a single word either. Even after having an arm chopped off, he gritted his teeth and didn't cry out. Only coldly looking at Meng Fan and Wei Chongfeng, he recognized Wei Chongfeng and remembered the incident where he chopped off one of the other's arms. He chopped off one of the other's arms, and the other shouted for revenge. No problem. What's more, there's no point in saying anything when you're not as skilled as you are. The three of them, after all, vaguely had some tacit understanding. After Meng Fan chopped off an arm of this young monk, he left with Wei Chongfeng. Why did your highness leave him alive? Wei Chongfeng couldn't help but open his mouth to inquire. In his opinion, 
His Royal Highness the Eighth Prince was a ruthless person who would not do such a thing as cutting the grass without removing the roots, Meng Fan said with a calm face, there's a head for every grievance, you did something for this emperor and went and got your arm chopped off, so this emperor is obligated to help you avenge this and get out of this situation, but as far as this prince is concerned, his crime is not worthy of death, if you want to kill him, go and kill him yourself with your own abilities, Wei Changfeng thought to himself that he did not mean this, he meant to cut the grass without removing the roots, the spring breeze blows again and again, it is always a hidden danger, your highness, you chopped off an arm of the other party, and the other party will definitely hold a grudge against you, and may try to find ways to take revenge on you in the future, but as soon as the thought came to him, he suppressed it himself, he knew very well that this highness, did not place this young monk in his eyes at all, and was not afraid that the other party would take revenge later, putting himself in his shoes, if he were a land god, he wouldn't have taken this tiny monk to heart, the fact that one would give importance to this young monk was, to put it bluntly, that one was a waste of space and could not beat the other party at all, so he had the good sense not to say any more nonsense, where to now, your highness, go see Meng Chuanxiu, a moment later, Meng Fan appeared in a meditation room, with his divine sense, he had long since locked onto Meng Chuanxiu being in this meditation room, after pushing open the door of the room, Meng Chuanxiu was sitting on a futon, frowning at Meng Fan who opened the door, adverse son, I haven't even gone to look for you yet, how dare you take the initiative to come here, Meng Fan closed his eyes somewhat tediously, then opened them again, he looked at Meng Chuanxiu and sighed slightly, slap, these two words were naturally said to Wei Changfeng, it was his father in this body, after all, and he didn't want to do it himself, Wei Changfeng rushed to Meng Chuanxiu's face and snapped two big mouths on Meng Chuanxiu's face, I say, your majesty, why do you have so little memory, even Wei Changfeng felt that this majesty was really stupid, his highness is a land god, a heavenly god, and you, a father, have repeatedly provoked him, simply because your head has been kicked by a donkey, but then again, if it wasn't for this descent into the golden element temple, Wei Changfeng wouldn't have thought that his highness was actually the existence of a land god, Meng Fan had once demonstrated the realm of a land goddess in front of Wei Changfeng, but where could Wei Changfeng see that with this amount of eyesight, this time, it was only after hearing it from the monk of the golden element temple that he realized that his highness was actually a legendary land god, although Meng Chuanxiu was slapped twice by Wei Changfeng, this time he was extremely backbone, and his tone was very hard to say to Meng Fan, rebellious son, do you know about this golden origin temple? Then, before he could finish his words, he was interrupted by Meng Fan again, slap, snap, the adversary, slap, snap, Meng Chuanxiu learned his lesson and stopped talking. A good man is not forced to do anything, Meng Fan said to Meng Chuanxiu, is it that you're not convinced, is it thinking of letting me be arrogant for a while first, wait for the golden origin temples people to come and then show me some color, Meng Chuanxiu didn't say anything, he was afraid of being slapped again, but he did feel this way in his heart, there was a saying that the first time he was slapped by Wei Changfeng, he felt that he had been subjected to the greatest insult and humiliation under the heavens, and he was so angry that he almost vomited blood and died. Now that he was being slapped again, he actually took it so easily. It's pathetic, lol. Unfortunately, you're going to be disappointed. Meng Fan coldly looked at Meng Chuanxiu. What do you mean? Meng Chuanxiu noticed Meng Fan's expression, and he suddenly had an ominous feeling in his heart. Yuan Hong and those few monks who once struck out against my mother are already dead. You want to find someone to strike against me? That's a good idea. But unfortunately you found the wrong people. They're too weak. Hearing Meng Fan's words, Meng Chuanxiu's eyes widened and he stood up with some excitement, then just for an instant, he sat down again, trying to calm himself, no way, he didn't believe Meng Fan's words and felt that Meng Fan was lying to himself, Grandmaster Yuan Hung, an existence of the Jindan realm, and a long famous old Jindan with extremely strong cultivation, what's more, there was more than just Yuan Hung, a Jindan, in this golden origin temple, Meng Fan, this kid, must be swindling himself, he can't be fooled, steady, it's got to be steady, you don't believe me, Meng Fan quietly looked at Meng Chuanxiu, of course I don't believe you, you must be talking nonsense, Wei Chongfeng, the old slave is here, take Meng Chuanxiu to find the bodies of those monks, just in time to feed them to the wolves together, chapter 43, burying the emperor alive, the corpses of Yuan Hang's monks had been thrown to the back of the mountain, so Wei Chongfeng took Meng Chuanxiu to the back of the mountain so that Meng Chuanxiu could see the bodies of the monks with his own eyes, as for Meng Fan's comment about letting Chun Xiu follow along and feed the wolves, Wei Changfeng was half convinced. After all, Meng Chuanxiu is his highness's father, 
and it is very likely that His Highness will not tolerate patricide, which is half believed. But His Highness's performance during this period of time, and sometimes ruthless and terrible, and it was half a doubt that he felt that His Highness was able to do such a thing as a great justice, whether His Highness released Meng Chuanxiao or killed him, Wei Chunfeng felt that it was normal, and that, that's the scary part, in the back of the mountain, the corpses of Yuan Hong and the few monks were casually thrown on the ground, waiting for the wild wolves to gnaw on them, after Meng Chuanxiao was brought over by Wei Chunfeng, he froze and looked at the corpse on the ground, he went limp, as if his essence had been drained from him in an instant, plop, he fell to his knees uncontrollably, his hands on the ground, his body trembling. These corpses on the ground were his last cards, but now they had become corpses. He was completely out of ideas. Despair, deep despair filled his heart. Who killed them? After a long time, Meng Chuanxiao asked in a soft and feeble tone. He was already dead. Even his voice had no strength left. Of course your highness killed him, Wei Changfeng said with a calm face. At this time, Meng Fan also walked here and he indifferently looked at Meng Chuanxiao. I killed it, with my own hands. Meng Chuanxiao, the boost you've been searching for by all means is nothing more than an ant in front of me. From the beginning to the end, you don't understand just how big the gap between you and me is. Meng Chuanxiao stood up trembling. He didn't want to kneel at this time. You already know about your mother's death? Meng Chuanxiao stood up and looked at Meng Fan and said, The several corpses on the ground were all people who had once struck out at Bai Susu. Something Meng Chuanxiao remembered very clearly. Meng Fan took a few steps forward and walked in front of Meng Chuanxiao, his gaze cold as he stared straight into Meng Chuanxiao's eyes. I'll ask you one last time, did you have anything to do with my mother's death back then? In fact, this is a question that no longer needs to be asked. If there was no connection, how could Meng Chuanxiao have appeared at the Golden Origin Temple? But Meng Fan was still willing to give Meng Chuanxiao a chance. After all, this is Cindy's father. Relevant. This time, Meng Chuanxiao didn't hide it anymore and admitted it directly. Why? Meng Fan asked. Because your mother is a demon. She hid her identity and never told me. When I found out she was a demon, of course I was uneasy. So you've joined forces with the people of the Golden Temple to kill her? She's a demon. I'm a human. The moment I knew she was a demon, I did panic a little, fearing that she would harm me. So I killed her. Meng Fan looked at Meng Chuanxiao coldly. The coldness in his gaze was as if it had coalesced into a substantial ice bar pointing directly at Meng Chuanxiao, but she was pregnant when you tried to kill her, if she didn't really love you, how could she have been willing to get pregnant and give birth to a child for you, but she's a demon, hearing Meng Chuanxiao's words, Meng Fan sighed, is it really that important that people and demons are different, Meng Fan could imagine his mother's helplessness at the time, being a demon race and falling in love with a human race despite everything, because she was afraid that this human race could not accept herself, she hid her identity as a demon and married him without hesitation, to have children for him, but after becoming pregnant, her identity is revealed and she attracts the murderous heart of the man she loves, poor, lamentable, sad, pathetic, this is like a plot in the middle of a novel, and this man, Meng Chuanxiao, is far worse than even Su Xian, for a moment, Meng Fan had many words that he wanted to question Meng Chuanxiao, but when the words reached his mouth, he didn't bother to ask further, the man is gone, there's no point. In the end, however, Meng Fan couldn't help but ask a question to Meng Chuanxiao. Meng Chuanxiao, have you ever had an ounce of regret over the years? Hearing Meng Fan's question, Meng Chuanxiao's face was filled with complexity, and his gaze was filled with sighs. After a long time, he muttered two words. Had it. Regrets. Naturally, have been had. At a certain time of the day on a certain year, a certain month, a certain day, when he thought of Bai Su Su, he had also lost his mind a little glumly. Upon hearing the word had, Meng Fan did not have any further inquiries. He took one last look at Meng Chuanxiao, then turned around, ready to leave. Before leaving, he turned his back to Meng Chuanxiao and said, since there has been regret, then go apologize to her in person. When Meng Chuanxiao heard this, he raised his head violently, his face full of fierce and twisted rage as he stared at Meng Fan and cursed, rebellious son, you're crazy, do you want to kill your father? Bai Su Su has been dead for so many years, how can you apologize in person? Unless, of course, one sends oneself to death. This rebellious son, how dare he try to kill himself? He had thought that if he was wrong again, at most he would be confined for eternity. No matter what, he was Meng Fan's father, so how could he kill himself? Patricide, that's unconscionable. How dare he? How dare he? Meng Fan didn't turn around as he coldly ordered Wei Changfeng, who was on the side, buried alive. At least he is the father of his own body. 
he should die in a decent way and leave a whole body. Wei Changfeng heard a heartbeat. He had thought that his highness would change his mind and wouldn't really let Meng Chuanxiu feed the wolves. What he didn't expect as a result was that despite the change in attention, Meng Chuanxiu still had to die. Only it went from feeding the wolves, to being buried alive. It's all dead. Your highness, indeed, was even more ruthless than he had imagined. Even though Wei Changfeng had guessed that Meng Fan would possibly kill Meng Chuanxiu, he still had some heart tremors when Meng Fan actually ordered it. After all, this is his highness's biological father. Wei Changfeng asked with a somewhat trembling voice, Your highness, is it really necessary? Buried alive. Meng Fan remained brief and concise, unwilling to say a single word more. But inside his voice, it had become three times colder. Wei Changfeng understood that this was his highness not liking to say it a second time. One should not hesitate, much less question, his highness's orders, no matter if it was the most unthinkable order. Since his highness had ordered it, one should honestly carry it out. Wei Changfeng no longer hesitated as he ordered a few guards to dig a pit. Those few guards, at this moment, were honestly scared less. Digging a pit and burying the emperor alive, they never dreamed they would one day be able to do something so crazy. It's crazy, however, under the orders of Meng Fan and Wei Changfeng, they still dug the pit honestly. Even if this pit is dug for their emperor majesty, Meng Chuanxiu was furious. The fear of death made him break into a rage. He couldn't believe that this rebellious son dared to kill himself. But when he saw these assholes really start digging, he panicked. Fanner, I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong. I'll make it up to you in Shaochan. I was blinded by lard in the beginning. It's all my fault. Meng Fan still had his back to Meng Chuanxiu and was unmoved. A few moments later, the pit was dug. Barry. Meng Fan spat out an expressionless word. Chapter 44, Sky Splitting Sword Drawing Technique, Sword Opening the Vault of Heaven. The word buried filled Meng Chuanxiu's heart with despair. This rebellious son, actually really dares to kill his father. Meng Fan kept his back turned to Meng Chuanxiu and didn't even look at him again, and didn't bother to look at him for the last time. Wei Changfeng kicked Meng Chuanxiu into the pit, then took the initiative to start filling in the soil. The surrounding guards were still dumbfounded when he let out a stern cry. What are you all staring at? Can't you hear the orders his highness wants? Hearing Wei Chongfeng's words, several guards hurriedly began to follow and fill in the soil. Bury the emperor alive. Being involved in such a big event is enough for them to brag for the rest of their lives. Indescribably, a peculiar thrill and pleasure bubbled up in them. It was extremely pleasurable and immensely exciting. Meng Chuanxiu had been cursing and swearing that Meng Fan should not die. However, Meng Fan kept his back to the crowd, standing as straight as a pine without the slightest tremor in his body. In the face of Meng Chuanxiu's insults, his heart was like water, without the slightest fluctuation. A man who was about to die, should one bother with him? A moment later, Meng Chuanxiu's voice became smaller and smaller. His entire person, who had been completely buried alive, had no way to scream and curse anymore. Even breathing, it was no longer possible. A few moments later, in Meng Fan's senses, Meng Chuanxiu was no longer breathing under the ground completely losing his vitality. Dead. This is probably the most suffocating death of an emperor in the history of the great moon. Return to the palace. Meng Fan spat out two words in a calm tone. From start to finish, he didn't even look back. The group of people left the back of the mountain and once again passed by the golden element temple on their way down. Your highness, how will the remaining disciples of this golden origin temple be dealt with? Wei Changfeng asked Meng Fan. Meng Fan glanced at the golden element temple especially the plaque above the temple's door, before withdrawing his gaze. In the next second, he mobilized the power of heaven and earth and pressed it towards the golden origin temple. All of a sudden, this ancient temple that had existed for thousands of years became a ruin. He wasn't just talking to Yuan Hong when he told him to step on Jin Yuan Temple. What's more, the requirements of the mission were not only to kill Abbot Yuan Hong, but among them was also to step on the golden origin temple. However, Meng Fan still had the virtue of kindness and he destroyed the Golden Origin Temple, but did not harm these ordinary disciples of the Golden Origin Temple any further. At this moment, many of the Golden Origin Temple disciples in the ruins were unharmed, and each one of them was staring daggers at the Golden Origin Temple that had collapsed into a piece of rubble. Why did the Golden Temple collapse in good time? Is this a punishment from the Buddha? When the Jin Yuan Temple collapsed, these disciples were not going to have the money to rebuild a new temple, and they had to be forced to leave the temple to live again. There will be no more Golden Origin Temple in the world, and there will be no more Golden Origin Temple disciples, so what else is there to deal with? Meng Fan calmly said to Wei Changfeng, destroying a temple with the snap of a finger. Only your highness has this kind of skill, right? Wei Changfeng looked at Meng Fan with reverence. 
Other people didn't know that the collapse of the Golden Element Temple was Meng Fan's handiwork, and thought that it was a natural collapse because the Golden Element Temple hadn't been repaired for a long time. But Wei Chongfeng knew very well that it must have been His Highness who had just made a move. This kind of means was simply like that of an immortal. No wonder the Yuaning realm was called a land god. It is indeed comparable to the gods. At the same time, the system in Meng Fan's mind prompted the completion of the mission, and the reward, sky splitting sword drawing technique, arrived. Chopping heavenly sword drawing technique. This is the supreme swordsmanship of the seven night sacred monarch in the magically altered world of sinister souls. With one sword, even the sky can be cut down. It is a sword art that is truly unrivaled in the world. And the world of sinister spirit is not a martial arts world, but an immortal martial arts world. Even if this heaven slashing sword drawing technique was taken to the Xin Ling Great World, it would definitely be a terrifying sword technique through and through. There was no doubt that this heaven grade sword technique, and it belonged to an extremely strong category among heaven grade Jedi. The only thing Meng Fan had learned in his entire body was that the Holy Spirit sword technique had reached the heavenly grade. However, among the Holy Spirit sword techniques, only sword 23 belonged to the heavenly grade, and the remaining 22 styles did not qualify as heavenly grade. As for Sword 23, Meng Fan was not yet capable of utilizing it, even at the Yuaning realm. But the Heaven Cutting Sword Drawing Technique was different. It was a pure Heaven Grade Sword Technique, and there was only one style, without so many twists and turns of the Holy Spirit Sword Technique. Just as Meng Fan was comprehending this sky splitting sword drawing technique, the supreme talent, Sword Dao Tongshan, flared up. Sword Dao Tongshan, top qualification in Sword Dao. Any sword skill can be learned at once and the power of the sword skill is enhanced. Even if it was the heaven grade sword technique Shintian sword drawing technique, with the help of the supreme talent of the sword Dao Tongshan, Meng Fan still knew it as soon as he learned it. The supreme talent attached to a divine grade physique was truly terrifying. Meng Fan closed his eyes as he rehearsed the sky splitting sword drawing technique in his mind. A few breaths later, his eyes snapped open. In a thick and domineering sword chant came out. Regulus sword. Sheath. A sword light that rose up to the sky tearing a crack right through the firmament, the sword chi went up to the sky, chopping heavenly sword drawing technique, Meng Fan put his sword back into its sheath, at this moment, the human emperor bloodline in his body had not disappeared, and he could use the regular sword freely, Meng Fan's gaze was stoic as he looked at the dome of the sky, and the crack in the dome of the sky flew closed, returning to its original state in an instant, without a doubt, this sword was frighteningly strong, even a cultivator at the peak Yuaning realm would surely die under this sword. This was the terrifying heavenly might brought about by using the regular sword after activating the human emperor's bloodline, coupled with the sky splitting sword drawing technique. A sword chopped out a spatial rift, and the power of Meng Fan's sword just now had vaguely touched the threshold of shattering the void. The legendary immortal sect, in a sense, was not in the secular realm, but was hidden in the true spirit realm. Only when one's battle prowess reached the realm of shattering the void would they be able to force their way into the true spirit realm and straight into the immortal gate. The true spirit realm, dependent on the Xian Ling Great World, was nevertheless an independent world. The true spirit realm and the Xian Ling Great World were connected, but the passages were in the hands of the various immortal sects of the true spirit realm. The people of the immortal sect inside the true spirit world could enter the Xian Ling Great World at will. However, the only way for people from the Xian Ling Great World to enter the true spirit realm was to reach the realm of shattering the void and forcibly break through space. Your Highness Heavenly Might is invincible. When Wei Chongfeng and the others saw this shocking sword, they all knelt down in unison and threw themselves on the ground. For them, this is heavenly power. This is a miracle. A sword that cuts through the sky. What is this if not a miracle? Meng Fan, however, was too lazy to pay attention to them. He had merely had an itchy hand just now and couldn't help but want to try out his sword. The activation time for the human emperor bloodline was coming up soon. If he didn't test his sword at this moment, he would have to wait for a month next time. Return to the palace, Meng Fan said expressionlessly. Although he had solved the Golden Origin Temple, there was still one more piece of trouble waiting for him. The elder of the Qian Yuan Holy Land, Li Fei Hua. I hope this guy comes to trouble himself later, preferably not within a month. Chapter 45, Brother, How Can You Kill Your Father? Just as Meng Fan was about to return to the Great Moon Palace, he suddenly thought of something. He instructed Wei Chongfeng, send a few guards to empty the Golden Origin Temple's hidden scripture pavilion of all the high-level techniques inside. The Golden Element Temple was able to cultivate Jin Dan. Its depth was still there, and some of the feats within it were worth paying attention to. Although Meng Fan had system-rewarded techniques, the techniques rewarded by the system were all relatively advanced, 
and it was impossible for him to take them out and give them to others to cultivate. Meng Xiaochan could consider it, but the others should not even think about it. So it would be a good choice to take the collection of books and feats inside the Golden Origin Temple and move them back to train the people in the Great Moon Palace. Forget it, let's go together. So we don't have to meet some uneducated monks. Meng Fan shook his head and said, with him personally, none of those remaining disciples of the Golden Origin Temple could protect those Buddhist scriptures and techniques. Soon, the group returned to the Golden Element Temple, and then the guards carried two large boxes of gongfu and set off on the road back to the Great Moon Palace. Because there were guards carrying two large boxes, the speed of the procession was not fast. Meng Fan wasn't in a hurry and leisurely followed the crowd. As a result, on his way back, he stumbled upon a fox being chased and bitten by a coyote. If it was before, Meng Fan was too lazy to take a second look, and wouldn't have been sympathetic at all, much less come to his rescue. But now, he had a change of heart. If Abbot Yuan Hong of the Golden Origin Temple and Meng Chuanxiu were telling the truth, then his mother was of the demon fox clan lineage. In all likelihood, the blood of the fox runs in his own veins. So for the fox, Meng Fan now had a different feeling vaguely. In the end, Meng Fan snapped his fingers and killed the coyote, and stepped in to save the fox. This fox was saved, actually did not escape, seems to be humane, even rely on Meng Fan, have to follow Meng Fan. Meng Fan's brow furrowed, he had saved this fox purely out of hand, and had no idea of getting a fox as a pet. So when this fox got the better of him and tried to jump into Meng Fan's arms, he was directly shaken off by Meng Fan's slap and rolled to the ground. The fox rolled on the ground like a leather ball for a few times, then unwillingly continued to rush towards Meng Fan, wanting to jump into Meng Fan's arms. Meng Fan raised his foot and kicked at the pouncing fox, sending this fox flying like a leather ball. The little fox rolled dirty on the ground and looked at Meng Fan with wide, pitiful eyes, a eye that actually has a watery look to it. Meng Fan was unmoved, and as he watched the little fox charge at him for the third time, he raised his foot once again. The little fox snapped to a sharp stop, a small face filled with an aggrieved expression. This little guy was smart enough to know that if he pounced again, he would definitely be kicked away again. So he braked sharply and didn't charge at Meng Fan again. The beautiful little fox with snow white fur had become a dirty gray fox after being kicked by Meng Fan and rolling on the ground twice. Meng Fan looked at the little fox with an expressionless face and spoke. I don't know if you can understand me. Anyway, I have no thoughts of raising you. So don't follow me. After saying that, Meng Fan continued on, ignoring the little fox. As a result, after walking for an incense stick of time, he realized that this little fox was actually still following him. Meng Fan shook his head helplessly. If it was a different kind of animal, he might have just chopped it off. He didn't like pets in his previous life. He never kept any cats or dogs. Not only do you not like it, you kind of hate it. If he didn't have a special emotion for foxes right now, this little fox would have become food material sooner or later after following himself. In the end, Meng Fan still didn't forcefully drive this little fox away. Although I don't like this kind of small animal, but Xiao Chan might like it, so I'll bring it back to the palace later and give it to Xiao Chan. This little fox seems to be quite humane and should please Xiao Chan. Returning to the palace, Meng Fan ordered Wei Changfeng to throw all of the Golden Origin Temple's Kung Fu Buddhist scriptures into the book depository. Then he came alone to the meditation hall. Can't say alone either, since he's got a little fox on his ass. Previously, Meng Xiaochan was able to live in such a luxurious palace as the meditation hall only because she was dipped in the light of marrying far away from Biling. But now in the entire palace, she could live wherever she wanted, and no one dared to stop her. Even the empress had to lower her voice in front of Meng Xiaochan now. Imperial brother, you're back? Meng Xiaochan shouted out in excitement when she saw Meng Fan. I'm back. Meng Fan said to Meng Xiaochan with a smile, but his smile didn't last long before he became all serious. He wasn't going to hide Meng Chuanxiu's death from Meng Xiaochan. It was cruel, but he felt that Cindy deserved to know about it and suffer through it, because he knew that Cindy wasn't so fragile, that some truths shouldn't be hidden, that she had a right to know. Imperial brother, what's wrong? Seeing Meng Fan change his face, Meng Xiaochan immediately asked with some nervousness, thinking that she had done something to upset her imperial brother. Meng Chuanxiu, dead. Meng Fan opened the door and said directly. Meng Xiaochan's face instantly turned white as she retreated several steps to the edge of the bed and sat paralyzed on the bed. She knew that her brother had left the palace this time, just to go out to find his father, but she didn't expect to bring back the news that his father had already died. How? How did it die? She asked in a slightly shaky tone. I killed it. Meng Fan sighed slightly. He knew it was cruel, but this kind of thing shouldn't be hidden from Xiaoshan. If he hid it, it would be even worse in the future. 
and it would be easy to create misunderstandings, so he might as well just say it clearly. Meng Xiaochan's heart trembled as an indescribable pain began to spread from her heart, his own royal brother, who killed his own father. This is not true, but looking at Meng Fan's serious expression, she knew that her royal brother wasn't joking and wasn't lying to himself. What he said is true. Why? Meng Xiaochan asked in a weak tone. She no longer had the strength to speak aloud. She didn't want to believe it was true. She'd rather she was dreaming. She'd rather her royal brother hadn't come back yet. Because mother was killed by him, I promised you that I would tell you after investigating the truth, and I won't hide it from you, Meng Fan said to Meng Xiaochan. Meng Xiaochan's body, in an instant, was once again paralyzed for three minutes, her face was bloodless, and there was no more gleam in her eyes. Mother, it was really father who killed her. In fact before that, she had already had a guess, but when she actually heard the news, she found she still couldn't accept it. Father killed mother, and royal brother killed father. Why did God have to be so cruel to the family? Tears couldn't help but come out of her eyes. Meng Xiaochan didn't want to cry, but she really couldn't help it. After a long time, Meng Xiaochan looked up at Meng Fan, her eyes filled with complexity. But royal brother, you also promised me that if it was really father who killed mother, then in the end, whether father kills or lives, you said that you would let me choose. Meng Fan sighed. I'm sorry, Cindy, brother didn't hold back and just killed him. What's more? It's too cruel to let you choose this kind of thing, but royal brother, that's father, our real father, how can you kill your father? Chapter 46 If I don't kill him, I won't be satisfied, but the queen mother is also our real mother, so it's only natural to avenge her. Meng Fan's tone was firm, then we don't have to kill father, and you did it with your own hands, we can imprison him, imprison him for the rest of his life, and let him atone for his sins. Meng Fan was a bit helpless, he knew that even if Meng Chuanxiu killed the mother, Xiao Chan definitely wouldn't have the heart to kill Meng Chuanxiu. This girl, soft-hearted, but I already killed him. Meng Fan walked over to Meng Xiao Chan and said in a somewhat complicated tone, Xiao Chan, are you going to turn against me because of Meng Chuanxiu? Hearing Meng Fan's words, Meng Xiao Chan immediately buried her head in her knees and cried bitterly. She felt aggrieved, seeing Meng Xiao Chan cry in pain and agony. Meng Fan was also a bit helpless and didn't know how to comfort him. Shouldn't he have told Cindy about this? Or a well-intentioned lie? Just as soon as this thought popped up, it was vetoed by Meng Fan. Until this moment, he didn't think he had done anything wrong. This is the kind of thing that shouldn't be kept from Cindy, and there's no problem with telling the truth yourself. It's a fact that Meng Chuanxiu killed his mother's queen. It's also true that he killed Meng Chuanxiu himself. Meng Fan knew that it was hard to make Xiao Chan accept it, but Xiao Chan, as their daughter and as her own sister, would always have to accept it. Imperial brother. How could I possibly turn against you because of Father Emperor? Ever since we were young, Father Emperor's concern for us was almost nil, and it was us who grew up depending on each other. In my heart, you are much more important than Father Emperor, Meng Xiaochan said with a disheveled tone inside her voice. But no matter how wrong Father is and how angry you are, you shouldn't kill him. After all, he is our father. We can punish him in other ways. I understand what you mean, and I've thought about imprisoning Meng Chuanxiu and locking him up until he dies. Meng Fan sighed, if I don't kill him, it will be hard to get over it. When mother mother was pregnant, when she was carrying his Meng Chuanxiu's child, but was killed by Meng Chuanxiu, can you imagine the pain and helplessness that mother mother felt at that time? And it was so close that we were all killed by Meng Chuanxiu. Just like mother, I can't do it without killing Meng Chuanxiu. In the last sentence, Meng Fan's tone was incomparably frank and firm. Meng Xiaochan said with some sadness, but imperial brother, you will bear the name of patricide. In fact, for Meng Xiaochan, she was certainly saddened by Meng Chuanxiu's death, but she was even more saddened by the fact that her royal brother was going to bear the name of patricide, killed his own father with his own hands. This sounds like a great tragedy. Meng Fan rubbed Meng Xiaochan's head and was about to comfort. As it turned out, it looked like the girl hadn't washed her hair in a few days. A handful of oil. Silly girl, you can be sad for Meng Chuanxiu. It's only right, but being sad for brother is completely unnecessary. Brother doesn't care about that at all. After saying that, he didn't move and put his hand on Meng Xiaochan's shoulder, taking the opportunity to wipe the oil on his hand. It wasn't long before Meng Fan left the meditation hall, letting Meng Xiaochan digest all this on her own for the rest of the day. Meng Fan believed that Meng Xiaochan would be able to accept this. There was one thing to be said for growing up. This girl, Cindy, was stronger than she was. Despite being a younger sister, she likes to do sisterly things. It couldn't be helped. Who made Meng Fan act like a loser since he was a kid? 
After leaving the meditation hall, Meng Fan arrived at the book collection pavilion. Inside the Great Lunar Imperial Palace, there were some cultivation techniques, but they were all really not up to par. Now that there was a merit law plundered from the Golden Origin Temple, it was considered to have increased some of the bottom line. Meng Fan began to flip through the secret books brought back from the Golden Origin Temple. An hour later, he shook his head with a bitter smile and stood up. The Gongfu inside the Golden Element Temple was indeed a bit more advanced than the one inside the Great Moon Palace, but it didn't enter Meng Fan's eyes. Of all the feats in here, the highest ranked one was only an earth ranked feat, and only one earth ranked one at that. Meng Fan's eyesight was quite okay now, and this technique could only be considered inferior and not worth mentioning amongst the earth grade. Of course, Meng Fan couldn't look at it, but to others, it was a treasure, like Wei Chong Feng, nowadays. He was considered one of the strongest henchmen in his palace, but what he cultivated was only a Xian level technique. In the secret books of the Golden Origin Temple, apart from the cultivation techniques, there were also some martial arts techniques of swords, spears, swords and halberds. It was also basically all yellow and Xian level, and there was only one stick technique at the earth level, called the voodoo stick technique. Meng Fan glanced at it and threw it back, completely uninterested. Instead, there was a Xian level sword technique among them that made Meng Fan come to his senses. The Sword of Zen. This sword technique relied on meditation, exercising one's own consciousness and using it as a sword to cut down other people's consciousness. To put it in layman's terms, it is that this sword specializes in chopping other people's souls. Normally, everyone who fights is only able to hit someone's body. It's hard to say that they hit someone's soul. Only when one cultivates to the Jin Dan realm and condenses divine sense, then wait until the divine sense was strong enough to be able to do the job of attacking others with it in order to harm their souls. However, this Zen underworld sword move of the Golden Element Temple could injure the soul without cultivating divine knowledge. It sounds fancy and doesn't make much sense. However, cultivating this Zen meditation sword could quench one's consciousness and lay an excellent foundation for condensing divine sense. For Meng Fan, by practicing this Zen meditation sword, he would be able to cultivate from the peak of foundation establishment to the Jin Dan realm faster, and condense the legendary divine sense faster. Meng Fan had already experienced the wonders of divine sense before when he had activated the human emperor bloodline and reached the Yuanying realm, so he actually quite desperately wanted to cultivate Jin Dan and condense divine sense as soon as possible. The supreme talent, Sword Dao Tongshan, came into play. Sword Dao Tongshan, top qualification in Sword Dao. Any sword skill can be learned at once and the power of the sword skill is enhanced. This Zen meditation sword, although it was only a Xian level sword technique, since it was so subtle, it proved that it was extremely difficult to cultivate. Without this, sword Dao Tongshan, talent, Meng Fan probably wouldn't have been able to learn it at all without spending several months. But now, it's a learning curve. A moment later, Meng Fan felt that he had a more skillful way of utilizing this aspect of his consciousness. Meng Fan, who had originally closed his eyes, suddenly opened them. There was a bright flash in his eyes, and the scroll in front of him seemed to move without wind for a moment. Not noticeably, he had already managed to cultivate the Zen meditation sword and had just tested it out. However, this sword was one that chopped people's consciousness and souls, so casting it out of thin air didn't seem to have much power. However, if it was used on a person, then it would certainly display divine power. Meng Fan walked out of the book depository, and he didn't look for anyone to test this sword. Now that no one had offended him, Chopping off other people's souls for no reason. Meng Fan hadn't yet reached the point of being so evil. What's more, Meng Fan didn't learn this Zen meditation sword for the sake of fighting. It's still mostly about practicing. Originally, if he wanted to break through from the peak of foundation establishment to the Jin Dan realm, he would need about another month or so. But now with this Zen underworld sword exercising consciousness, and with his own god level physique and god level gong methods, he estimated that he would be able to break through to the Jin Dan realm and cultivate divine consciousness in half a month's time. Chapter 47, Half a Month in Seclusion, Jin Dan Becomes a Success. The next day, Meng Fan carried a small cage to Meng Xiaochan's meditation hall. Inside the cage, was the little fox. The little fox insisted on following Meng Fan, who was too lazy to take care of it and was ready to throw it to Meng Xiaochan. This little fox had to follow him, perhaps because he really did have a fox clan bloodline flowing in his body. But if he really had a fox bloodline, then Xiao Chan must have it as well. So this little fox should be close to Xiao Chan as well. Meng Fan arrived at the meditation hall and found Meng Xiao Chan still lying on the bed, somewhat depressed. It looked like the matter of getting Meng Chuanxiu killed by herself had indeed dealt her a great blow. Imperial brother, Meng Xiao Chan saw Meng Fan and tried to get up from the bed. Meng Fan shook his head and said, Just rest, rest well, don't get up. 
Although Meng Fan told her not to get up, she did. This is? Meng Xiaochan saw the cage and the little fox in Meng Fan's hand. Meng Fan said, A gift for you. I met it on my way back to the palace earlier and it had to follow me. I'm not in the mood to raise this thing. I'll leave it to you. When Meng Xiaochan saw the little fox, she took a liking to it at once, and some essence was restored inside her eyes. What a pretty little fox. She walked over to Meng Fan and took the cage, saying with some dissatisfaction, Such a beautiful little fox, why are you keeping it in a cage? Meng Fan said helplessly, It's annoying to keep following me without putting it in a cage. Meng Xiaochan opened the cage and the little fox ran out. As Meng Fan had guessed, this little fox was also very close to Meng Xiaochan and jumped directly into her arms. It was lying in Meng Xiaochan's arms, a pair of fox eyes glaring at Meng Fan in exasperation. It could remember that it had tried to jump into Meng Fan's arms several times, but was kicked away by Meng Fan. This look seemed to be telling Meng Fan, You don't hug me someone else hugs me. Xiaochan, do you want to cultivate? Meng Fan suddenly asked to Meng Xiaochan. He himself had only just begun cultivating not long ago, so he hadn't considered this before. So many things had happened in this period of time. He felt that Xiao Chan should also cultivate and have some self-protection ability before he was good. One could not always watch over Xiao Chan. There were always times of absence and negligence. For example, when he went to the Golden Element Temple by himself a few days ago, what if someone made a move on Xiao Chan? Of course I want to cultivate and become stronger so that I can help my imperial brother and not drag my feet. But women in the harem are not allowed to cultivate, whether it's the empress or the princess. Meng Xiaochan's face was somewhat helpless. Hearing this foolish sister's words, Meng Fan laughed bitterly. Usually I see you as quite smart, but why are you always being foolish now? The rules of the great lunar dynasty are bull asterisk 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 asterisk. From now on, what I say will be the rules. Imperial brother, you mean I can also cultivate? Meng Xiaochan asked with some excitement as she hugged the little fox. Sure. Meng Fan was a man of action, and immediately began to teach Meng Xiaochan the Nine Heavens Emperor God skill, Divine Grade Feats. This was Meng Fan's biggest card. In this world, only Meng Xiaochan was qualified to let him pass on his power. As a result, he discovered that Meng Xiaochan was actually unable to cultivate the Nine Heavens Emperor God skill. After studying it for half a day, Meng Fan finally came to a conclusion. The Nine Heavenly Empyrean Divine skill was a customized technique for men, and women were not allowed to cultivate it. That's not going to work. Can't we just have Cindy get a sex change operation? And it doesn't always work if you really do it. And those transsexuals on earth can't be said to be completely male to female or female to male. Unable to do anything else. Meng Fan could only take out his only earth grade technique for Meng Xiaochan to cultivate. The entire imperial palace was previously devoid of earth level feats. And now there was one that was still shunned from the golden element temple. This gongfu was called the Tianin secret code. And there was no gender restriction and Meng Xiaochan's managed to start cultivating it. After taking some qi gathering pills from inside the palace treasury and giving them to Meng Xiaochan, Meng Fan left her alone and let her cultivate on her own. When Meng Xiaochan cultivated above the third level of qi cultivation, he would then consider teaching Meng Xiaochan the sword technique. The next time, Meng Fan himself was in closed door cultivation, because there was still a watser named Chen Yuan Holy Land's elderly Fei Hua who would come to his door at any time. Meng Fan had to work hard to improve his cultivation. Time is like water, and the years go by like a shuttle. The days of not pretending always fly by, and before you know it half a month has passed. Meng Fan had been practicing all day long these days, and especially with the help of the Zen Underworld Sword, he had managed to cultivate his divine sense and condense his Jin Dan half a month later. From the Peak Foundation Establishment Realm, he had successfully stepped into the Jin Dan Realm. Jin Dan. Ever since the death of Great General Huo Wuyun a few years ago, there have been no Jin Dan in the entire Great Moon. Meng Fan was now the only Jin Dan in the Great Moon Dynasty, the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty, the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty, and the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty were said to be a triad, but the weakest was the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty. The entire Imperial Dynasty didn't even have a single Jin Dan. It was terribly weak. If it wasn't for Meng Fan's sudden appearance, the Great Lunar Dynasty would have definitely been annexed within 10 years. Now that the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's Jin Dan Martial King, Nia Ren Tu, had been decapitated. It was reduced to the point where the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty was beginning to shiver in storm. Name, Meng Fan. Life Expectancy, 20-361. Race, Human. Cultivation, Early Jin Dan Stage. Technique, 9 Heavenly Empery and Spirit Technique, Divine Grade. Physique, 6 Paths Divine Body, Divine Grade. Supreme Talent, Sword Dao Tongshan, Top Qualification in Sword Dao. Any sword technique can be learned at once, 
and the power of the sword technique is enhanced. Supreme talent, hegemonic stance, any female in your presence will be weakened. Supreme talent, human emperor's bloodline, activate the human emperor's bloodline in your body, and you will be able to take in the world's luck and enhance your cultivation. Sword techniques, heavenly flying fairy, shen level. Holy spirit sword technique, heaven level. 10,000 swords returning to the father, earth level. And Jintian sword drawing technique, heaven level. Weapons, Xin Bing Sword, Xin Grade, Xin Yuan Sword, Heaven Grade. After achieving Jin Dan, Meng Fan let out a slight sigh of relief. Nowadays, even if he didn't activate the Human Emperor's bloodline, just by virtue of his own cultivation, he was definitely a resounding figure in the Xin Ling world. Even if Li Fei Hua came to seek revenge right now, Meng Fan would not be afraid anymore. Although one month had not yet arrived, he was not yet able to activate the Human Emperor bloodline again. But with Meng Fan's current cultivation, an elder of the Holy Land wouldn't be able to easily behead him. After cultivating into a Jin Dan, Meng Fan was still in seclusion, and he didn't want to care about other things anyway. But while Meng Fan didn't want to care about things, things would come to him of their own accord. Five days later, Wei Chongfeng sought an audience outside the door, disturbing Meng Fan's seclusion. During this period of time, Wei Chongfeng could be considered really powerful. In the entire Great Moon, he was now the existence of 10,000 people under one day, and could be described as only covering the sky with his hands. Meng Fan had no desire to ask about national affairs, and many things were handed over to Wei Chongfeng to deal with directly. With great power, Wei Chongfeng is naturally inflated and does not put others in his eyes. Of course, others were others, and in front of Meng Fan he was still a conscientious dog's leg. What is it? Meng Fan asked to Wei Chongfeng. Your Highness, Grand Imperial Prince Meng Tianyang has returned. Wei Chongfeng said as he knelt on the ground. Chapter 48, Superfluous and Superfluous. Meng Tianyang? Hearing this name, Meng Fan was surprised for a moment. It was because this Grand Prince of the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty had not returned to the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty for nearly a decade. Ten years ago, Meng Tianyang joined the Wuji Sword Sect. During these ten years, Meng Tianyang had been practicing hard in the Wuji Sword Sect and had never returned to the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty once. Therefore, the people of the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty had basically forgotten about Meng Tianyang because the sense of existence was just too low. However, there were rumors that this prince had long been a martial artist of the innate realm, and with this rumor, Meng Tianyang barely had some popularity in Great Moon. In Meng Fan's impression, Meng Tianyang was similarly non-existent. Ten years ago, Meng Fan was only ten years old, and his relationship with Meng Tianyang was not good, and there would be even less brotherly love after not seeing him for ten years. When it came to Meng Tianyang, Meng Fan's only memory was that this guy looked down on himself when he was a kid and was always bullying him. Later on, probably feeling that bullying himself as a waste didn't have any sense of accomplishment, Meng Tianyang didn't even bother to bully himself, and instead started bullying the sixth prince Meng Tianji. Later, when Meng Tianji became the crown prince, Meng Tianyang was not so good at bullying him. This Meng Tianyang, from a young age, loved to fight and cause trouble. That's why Meng Chuanxiu sent him to the Wuji Sword Sect to save him from fooling around in the palace. Your Highness, Meng Tianyang returned to the palace, surely to investigate Meng Chuanxiu's death. Do we need the old slave to execute those guards who went to the Golden Element Temple so that he won't be able to investigate Meng Chuanxiu's death well? Hearing Wei Chongfeng's words, Meng Fan coldly looked at Wei Chongfeng with an incomparably icy gaze. Wei Chongfeng was so creeped out by Meng Fan's look that he directly knelt on the ground in fear. He could sense His Highness's displeasure but couldn't understand what he had done to annoy him. Meng Fan looked at Wei Chongfeng and asked in a calm tone, Are you afraid of Meng Tianyang? Wei Chongfeng quickly crouched to the ground and said, Your Highness, the old slave is not afraid of Meng Tianyang, but Meng Tianyang stands behind the Wuji Sword Sect, the old slave is worried about. It, Meng Fan said, You're afraid of the Wuji Sword Sect? Wei Chongfeng buried his head on the ground, not daring to raise it, and said with some trepidation, Your Highness, the Wuji Sword Sect is as strong as the clouds, and the old slave is indeed a bit fearful. Meng Fan said expressionlessly, You're afraid of the Wuji Sword Sect, but this imperial prince is not. A Meng Tianyang, a Wuji Sword Sect, are worthy of letting this imperial prince kill his own people? Your Highness, the old slave knows his mistake. You should be glad that you didn't take matters into your own hands. If you kill those guards and then come back to report to this prince, then this prince will not spare you. Old slave knows his mistake. Please punish your highness, although you thought wrong, you didn't do anything wrong, and this prince won't punish you, thank you, your highness, for your magnanimity. Hearing Meng Fan's words, Wei Chongfeng let out a sigh of relief, 
It was said that accompanying a king was like accompanying a tiger, and now that he was accompanying Meng Fan, he was even more frightened than when he had accompanied Meng Chuanxiao. Meng Chuanxiao this person, Wei Changfeng can see through, can understand what this emperor is thinking, so it is very good to mix around Meng Chuanxiao. But for Meng Fan, Wei Changfeng simply couldn't keep up with Meng Fan's thoughts. In the end, it was still that Meng Fan was too strong and he was too weak, so it was hard to speculate on Meng Fan's thoughts. Meng Tianyang suddenly returned to the palace. Someone sent him a message, right? Meng Fan asked. This old slave has already checked. It was the empress who passed on the letter. Meng Tianyang's mother was consort Jing, not the empress. The sixth prince, Meng Tianji, is the empress' own son. Meng Fan smiled at this and said, The empress is trying to ask Meng Tianyang to come out and help her son ascend to the throne as emperor. It was well known that Meng Tianyang was intoxicated with martial arts and had lived in the Wuji Sword sect for a long time and had no desire for the throne. The empress asking for Meng Tianyang's help wasn't something that was hard to understand. This move by the empress is not wise. Wei Chongfeng followed. Not unwise, but superfluous. Meng Fan shook his head. The old slave is stupid. What does your highness mean by this? The empress is too impatient. This prince is just like Meng Tianyang, a person who doesn't care about the throne. Her son, being the crown prince, would have logically ascended to the throne as the emperor. If she makes such a blind fuss, she might be digging her own grave and cutting off her great future. The big moon was too small to accommodate Meng Fan, the submerged dragon, who would sooner or later leave the big moon to venture into a wider world. The position of emperor of the great moon was not something Meng Fan could see from the beginning. So Meng Fan originally had no intention of stopping the crown prince from ascending to the throne, provided, of course, that the mother and son did not offend themselves. Now there seems to be a tendency to get offended. What good can come of offending yourself? Meng Fan even dared to kill Meng Chuanxiao. What's a fart to an unrelated queen? Meng Tianji and Meng Tianyang, who had a throwback blood relationship, didn't have much of a position here in Meng Fan's place either. Without offending himself, Meng Fan was happy to watch them get better and better. But if one had to cross Meng Fan, it would be looking for death. In this life, Meng Fan was much more ruthless than in his last life. Where is Meng Tianyang now? Meng Fan asked to Wei Chongfeng. Back to your highness. It has entered the palace gates and headed for the empress chambers. Ha! Meng Fan laughed. As soon as he returned to the palace, he rushed towards the empress's chambers. He was really quite filial, more filial than to his own mother. Your highness, what do we need to do? Wei Chongfeng asked still kneeling on the ground. Nothing needs to be done. People don't offend me. I'd like to see what they're planning to do. The old slave understands. All right, you go down. Meng Fan waved his hand at Wei Changfeng. Wei Changfeng then dared to stand up. His legs were numb from kneeling, but he didn't dare to show the slightest disrespect. After leaving Meng Fan's room, he didn't dare to leave, but instead stood guard outside the door. At this moment, the entire palace, for him only Meng Fan here was the safest. Meng Tianyang came back from the Wuji Sword sect. Surely he didn't just rush back in a headlong rush. He definitely had an expert by his side to protect him. As the number one dog's leg beside his highness the eighth prince himself, he was also personally involved in burying and killing Meng Chuanxiao. If Meng Tianyang wanted to clean up his house, then the first person he would kill would be himself. Only when he was closer to his highness the eighth prince would he feel safe. So he decided to guard the door for Meng Fan himself. The few guards outside the door were a little frightened and trembling when they saw Grand Master Wei guarding the door with them. It feels as if the company president is sitting next to you, working overtime with you. It's really torture. Fengyi Palace. The Empress was sitting on the Phoenix chair, and in front of her stood Grand Imperial Prince Meng Tianyang. On Meng Tianyang's side, there were also two old men standing. The status of these two old men was not ordinary. Even the Empress's chambers were not able to block them out. Tianyang has met the Empress? Meng Tianyang said to the empress after entering the bedchamber, there was no curtsy, just this casual remark. In theory, this was naturally rude, but the empress was in no mood to countenance it at this time, much less qualified to do so, because she feels like she can't even defend herself. So what's the point of putting up a front? I haven't seen you in a few years. Tianyang has grown up, the empress said with a smile piled on her face. Empress mother, where is old six? Meng Tianyang opened his mouth and asked. The oldest six, naturally, is sixth prince Meng Tianji, the current crown prince of the great moon, Tianji, he left the palace, the empress said with a somewhat complicated face, Meng Tianyang frowned and said, the crown prince resides in the eastern palace, how can he leave the palace at will, it was the palace that let him out, why, because the palace fears that if he stays in the palace, 
he won't live to see you this day. Chapter 49, The Sky Has Changed in the Big Moon. Meng Tianyang's face instantly became incredibly ugly as he looked at the Empress with a somewhat cold gaze and said in dissatisfaction, Empress Dowager, what do you mean by that? The sky of the great moon has changed. This palace is afraid that Tianji will be killed if he stays in the palace. The Empress sat on the phoenix chair, and although she did not get up, her tone was somewhat grave. Old Six is the crown prince. Who would have the guts to harm him? Meng Tianyang's eyes narrowed. Hearing the Empress' words, he felt a bit incredulous. Meng Fan. The Empress stood up and spat out a name with a grave expression. Meng Fan? Hearing this name, Meng Tianyang's brows furrowed. Meng? Also from the royal family? But how come I hadn't heard that name before? Who is Meng Fan? Meng Tianyang asked with some confusion. The Empress froze for a moment before remembering that when Meng Tianyang left the palace for the Wuji Sword sect, Meng Fan had not yet changed his name. Meng Fan's original name was called Meng Tianshu. Several of the Great Moon's princes have names like Meng Tian something or other. But after Meng Fan became an adult, he changed his name to Meng Fan. Because of this matter, it even angered Meng Chuanxiu in the first place and chastised Meng Fan severely. So Meng Tianyang only knew Meng Tianshu, and he didn't know Meng Fan. Meng Fan is old 8 Meng Tianshu. He had to change his name. The Empress explained to Meng Tianyang, hearing the three words Meng Tianshu, surprise appeared on Meng Tianyang's face. The only impression he had of Meng Tianshu was two words, waste. A total loser who didn't fight back when he was a kid. This waste of a man, old 8, is actually able to threaten old 6 now? And was able to force you, Empress Mother, to send old 6 out of the palace? Meng Tianyang's tone was filled with incredulity. That's pretty much the way to go, the Empress said with a serious face. Old 8 has been holding back all these years. And even I was fooled into not seeing through his wolfish ambitions. Now the entire palace has fallen under old 8's control. Meng Tianyang was far away from the Wuji Sword sect, concentrating on cultivation and not hearing about external affairs. He didn't care about what happened in the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty. If the Empress hadn't sent a message to him, he wouldn't have known that such a big change had happened in the Great Moon. What about Father? You sent someone to tell me that something might have happened to Father Emperor. What does that mean? Could it also be related to Old Eight? Even if Old Eight is no better, it's impossible for him to kill his father, right? Meng Tianyang asked to the Empress. At the mention of Meng Chuanxiu, the Empress brows subconsciously furrowed. Where your father's father is in, I don't know. Some time ago your father was imprisoned by Old Eight, that rebellious son. Then your father secretly escaped from the palace, and I have not heard from him since. However, some time ago, that rebellious son of Old Eight made a trip out of the palace, seemingly to search for your father. But your father didn't follow him back to the palace, so I suspect that something may have happened to your father. Hearing the Empress' words, Meng Tianyang's face revealed anger. Old Eight, this bastard, as the son of a human being, actually dared to imprison even his father. Hearing this news he was completely enraged. Meng Tianyan forced down his anger and said to the Empress, Empress Mother, you can let Old Six return to the palace. Since I have returned, I must set things right this time. With me here, even if Father disappears, I can still ensure that Old Six ascends to the throne as Emperor. After saying that, he turned around angrily and headed out of the Empress chambers. Tian Yang, where are you going now? The Empress asked somewhat nervously. Of course it's to find that bastard Old Eight. I'd like to see. After not seeing him for 10 years, what makes him, this punk, turn his hand to the clouds and his hand to the rain? Tian Yang, don't be impulsive for now. That rebellious son of old eight has long since changed. As far as this palace knows, he has experts behind him. And even the great wind dynasty's martial king Nyeren too was beheaded. All the more reason for me to see it. Meng Tian Yang sneered and left without looking back. The queen's reminder was not on his mind. People are prone to inertial thinking. In Meng Tian Yang's thinking, Meng Tianshu was a waste. Even if he changed his name, he was still a waste. As for the palace being under his control, it proves that the people in the palace are even more wasted. They say that the eldest brother is the father. And if father didn't teach this asshole a lesson, then it's up to me to do so. Meng Tianyang angrily inquired about Meng Fan's location. And when he learned that Meng Fan had actually occupied his father's chambers, he became even more enraged. Two master uncles. Just now the empress said that this bastard Meng Fan has an expert behind him. Tian Yang will have to rely on the two master uncles this time. Meng Tian Yang said to the two old men behind him. Although he was furious, he was not overwhelmed by anger. He had also heard of Nye Ren Tu's formidable reputation as a hallowed Jin Dan cultivator. The fact that someone behind Meng Fan was able to behead Nye Ren Tu really needed to be taken seriously. And if he had come back alone, 
he really wouldn't have dared to meddle. After all, he himself was only at the Foundation Establishment realm. It was widely rumored in the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty that this Grand Prince was an innate, but that was already old news. Meng Tianyang had already cultivated Foundation Establishment, a Foundation Establishment at less than 30 years of age. This was also an astonishing genius when looking at the entire Wuji Sword sect. That was why Meng Tianyang's return to the Great Moon was guarded by the two master uncles. Because of this kind of genius, the Wuji Sword sect couldn't afford to lose it and had to guard it carefully. These two senior uncles of Meng Tianyang's were both Jin Dan realm existences, no weaker than Nya Ren too. That was why Meng Tianyang had ignored the Empress reminder and still dared to go after Meng Fan. Don't worry Tianyang, with me and your uncle Su here, no one will be able to hurt you. The one who opened his mouth, named Lu Ji Yuan, was an elder of the Wuji Sword sect. As for the uncle Su he mentioned, his name was Su Beiyu, and he was likewise an elder of the Wuji Sword sect. The Wuji Sword sect, whose strength was a notch lower than the Holy Land, had not reached the level of the Holy Land, and was even more distant from the immortal sect. Inside this kind of sect, the strongest existence was only a Yuaning. At the Jin Dan realm, one was generally at the elder level, like the Holy Land, that generally had to be at the Yuaning realm to be able to mix with the position of an elder. A few moments later, Meng Tianyang brought the two master uncles to the Moonlight Palace. Looking at the Moonlight Palace, a trace of reminiscence appeared on his face. When he was young, he was more mischievous and often came to Moonlight Palace to make trouble, and was not rarely chastised by his father. In the blink of an eye, it's been ten years since he left the palace, Ugi sighed and headed for the door of the Moonlight Palace. Wei Chong Feng, who was guarding the door for Meng Fan, saw Meng Tianyang at a glance. Although he hadn't seen this Grand Imperial Highness in ten years, Wei Chong Feng still recognized Meng Tianyang at a glance, because Meng Tianyang was not young when he left the palace. His five senses had already grown at that time, and they had not changed much over the years. Your Highness, please stay, Wei Chongfeng shouted at Meng Tianyang. Meng Tianyang stood in front of the door, slightly inclined his head to look at Wei Chongfeng, and said in a chilling voice, Who are you? And since you know of this emperor, how dare you stop this emperor? Ten years ago when Meng Tianyang left the palace, Wei Chongfeng hadn't yet taken the throne, so Meng Tianyang didn't recognize Wei Chongfeng. Your Highness, this is the chambers of His Highness the Eighth Prince. If you wish to see His Highness the Eighth Prince, please allow me to go and report. Ha! Huh? Meng Tianyan let out a cold laugh. What a Meng Tianshu. Now even I, the elder brother, have to ask for his permission if I want to go see him? Chapter 50 Wuji Sword Sect. Elder Sword Out. Hearing Meng Tianyang's questioning, Wei Chongfeng was unmoved. Grand Prince, the Eighth Prince is resting. Please allow me to go and report. A cold aura appeared in Meng Tianyang's eyes. Wei Chongfeng's words had angered him. A dog lackey. How dare you act recklessly in front of this imperial prince. After saying that, Meng Tianyang directly struck out and blasted a fist at Wei Chongfeng. A dog lackey is just a dog. Just say beat it, kill it and forget about it. But in the next second, surprise appeared in Meng Tianyang's eyes. It was because his fist was actually received by Wei Chongfeng. Surprisingly, you can take a punch from this emperor. This strength is quite acceptable. You should not be of low status within the palace. Why are you aiding and abetting the enemy? Meng Tianyang's face as he looked at Wei Chongfeng had changed a bit. He had thought that Wei Chongfeng was just an ordinary guard. But to be able to receive a punch from himself unharmed, this had to be a strong person in the Foundation Establishment realm. There were only a handful of Foundation builders in the Great Moon Dynasty. And this guy's status was definitely not low. Unfortunately, it was on the side of the old eight. Wei Chongfeng blocked in front of Meng Tianyang. He was in existence at the mid-foundation establishment realm, while Meng Tianyan was only at the early foundation establishment stage, so he couldn't threaten him yet. What he was more afraid of were the two old men behind Meng Tianyang. Those two old men, Wei Chongfeng couldn't see through their cultivation at all. Moreover, following Meng Tianyang back to the palace, the probability was that it was a Jindan from the Wuji Sword sect. Two Jindans, to be honest Wei Chongfeng was a bit flustered. Grand Prince. The four words of aiding and abetting the enemy seemed to be used a bit inappropriately. Although he was a bit flustered in his heart, Wei Chongfeng's face remained motionless. After all, he knew that His Highness the Eighth Prince was in the chambers behind him, and with the Eighth Prince around, he would not be in danger. Even if it was two Jindans, it was nothing. When he was outside the Golden Origin Temple, the image of Meng Fan's sword cutting through the dome of the sky was imprinted in the depths of his soul. With His Highness the Eighth Prince of the Land God Immortal Realm present, even if the patriarch of the Wuji Sword sect were to arrive in person, 
he wouldn't necessarily be his highness's opponent. This emperor is not going to bother with you. Get out of the way. Meng Tianyang said to Wei Changfeng. Wei Changfeng stood there like a statue, not moving at all. Unbridled, Meng Tianyang's brows and eyes contained anger, and had even vaguely overflowed with killing intent. A dog lackey, blocking himself three times. This provocation was tantamount to an insult. He, a royal son, is not subject to this insult. Clang. Meng Tianyang sheathed his long sword behind his back and pointed it straight at Wei Chanfeng. Within ten breaths, if you don't get out of the way, this emperor will chop you up. He's not threatening, he's really prepared to do this. Although it was indeed a bit of a shame to let Big Moon lose a foundation establishment. His heart was in the Wuji Sword sect, and he wasn't that accommodating towards Big Moon. Ten breaths have come and gone. Meng Tianyang was ready to use his sword. Although he was one realm lower than Wei Chongfeng, he was certain that he could decimate Wei Chongfeng. After all, Wei Chongfeng was missing an arm and was a one-armed man, somewhat vulnerable. Meng Tianyang has been practicing in the Wuji Sword sect for years, and whether it's in terms of sword play or combat, he's a lot stronger than Wei Chongfeng, a native. Therefore, once they fought to the death, Meng Tianyang was certain that he would be able to chop Wei Chongfeng. Just as Meng Tianyang was about to strike with his long sword, a voice came out from within the Moonlight Palace. Wei Chongfeng, let him in. Meng Fan's voice. How could Meng Fan not notice the movement outside the door? He did have the idea of hanging Meng Tianyang out to dry. But if he continued to do so, Wei Chongfeng probably wouldn't really be able to carry it off. Upon hearing Meng Fan's words, Wei Chongfeng immediately stepped aside and did not stop in front of the door again. Meng Tianyang coldly looked at Wei Chongfeng and didn't bother to take another shot at Wei Chongfeng as he pushed the door and walked into the Moonlight Palace. Meng Fan was already waiting for Meng Tianyang behind the door. He glanced at Meng Tianyang and the two old men behind him. A small smile appeared on his face. One early foundation establishment, one early Jin Dan, and one mid Jin Dan. Originally, Meng Fan was worried about what kind of battle Meng Tianyang would bring back, but now that he saw it, he couldn't help but shake his head. Four words to describe it. Unbeatable. Although Meng Fan was only in the early Jin Dan stage, he didn't even put the middle Jin Dan stage in his eyes at all. It's not inflated. It's got the power. Meng Tianyang. As soon as you return to the palace, you rush towards me in a rage. What? Is this to raise an offense? Meng Fan said as he looked at Meng Tianyang. He he. Meng Tianxu. You're really lawless now. You don't even shout a big brother when you see me? Meng Tianyang stared at Meng Fan with an icy gaze. My name is Meng Fan. Meng Fan said in a flat tone. I don't care if your name is Meng Fan or Meng Tianshu. You bastard actually dared to imprison even Father Emperor. You're simply an unfilial son. Heartless. Meng Tianyang's tone was filled with dissatisfaction towards Meng Fan as well as suppressed anger within his tone. Oh, you're here to seek justice for Meng Chuanqiu out of anger? Meng Fan had a calm face. How dare you? How dare you call Father Emperor by his name? Meng Tianyang's anger erupted and a slap was directed at Meng Fan's face, outside the door. Wei Changfeng couldn't help but shake his head with disdain on his face when he saw that Meng Tianyang actually dared to take a shot at Meng Fan. Isn't this a death wish? When Meng Fan saw Meng Tianyang's move against him, a cold glint appeared in his eyes. Just as Meng Tianyang rushed to Meng Fan and his slap was about to fall, Meng Fan extended a hand. Meng Tianyang's palm was immediately strangled by Meng Fan. Next, Ka Ching. Meng Fan exerted a slight force and Meng Tianyang's hand bones directly broke. Immediately following Meng Fan's fling, Meng Tianyang's entire body was flung away, smashing against the gate and falling to the ground again. Meng Fan's movements were so fast that even the two Jindans behind Meng Tianyang didn't react. Meng Tianxu, Meng Tianyang endured the pain and climbed up, an angry growl escaping his mouth. As I said, my name is Meng Fan. Meng Fan said in a cold tone, the Wuji Sword sect elder called Su Beiyu took a step forward and stopped in front of Meng Fan. Saying with a cold face, Your Excellency has struck a little too hard. This is your hand and foot brother. Meng Fan glanced at Su Beiyu and sneered. You're from the Wuji Sword sect, aren't you? Su Beiyu snapped. I am an elder of the Wuji Sword sect. Su Beiyu. Meng Fan calmly said. This is my great moon's family matter. It's not your turn for the Wuji Sword sect to meddle. Su Beiyu glanced at Meng Tianyang, who had already broken a bone in his hand, and said in a cold tone. Your Excellency injured a disciple of my Wuji Sword sect. How can my Wuji Sword sect sit back and watch? Oh, this is to stand up for Meng Tianyang. Behind Su Beiyu, Meng Tianyang said angrily, Elder Su, help me break this bastard's limbs. Good. Su Beiyu nodded at Meng Tianyang. Clang dash the long sword behind Su Beiyu's back came out of its sheath, pointing at Meng Fan. 
Meng Fan looked at Su Beiyu's sword and asked expressionlessly, You want to break my limbs? Not bad, Su Beiyu said without hesitation. Meng Tianyang is related to me by blood after all, so I was merciful and only broke his arm. But if you strike at me, I will not be merciful and will directly take your life. Meng Fan said in a flat tone, as if he was talking about a trivial matter. Arrogant, Su Beiyu was furious, and the long sword in his hand suddenly transformed into a flying sword that chopped at Meng Fan. Meng Fan's face went cold as he unsheathed his sword. A sword light rushed up to the sky, chopping heavenly sword drawing technique. Chapter 51, How Dare He? The sword, it was the Xian Ai sword, a Xian grade sword that Meng Fan had casually taken from the palace treasury. It was impossible to sheath the regular sword, and Meng Fan had not activated the human emperor bloodline, so he could not use the regular sword at this moment. However, with Meng Fan's current cultivation level, it was true that he wouldn't be able to use the regular sword to deal with a Jin Dan. These two Wuji sword sect elders who had followed Meng Tianyang here, one was in the early Jin Dan stage and the other was in the middle Jin Dan stage. Su Beiyu, who was that middle Jin Dan stage existence, was considered the strongest one. Unfortunately, it was still not enough in front of Meng Fan. Meng Fan had already reminded Su Beiyu that if he dared to take a shot at himself, he had to be prepared to be beheaded. Unfortunately, this Su Beiyu didn't take Meng Fan's words seriously. Unbeknownst to him, Meng Fan has always been the most trustworthy person. If I say I'm going to chop you up, then I'm going to chop you up. Chopping heavenly sword drawing technique. The sharpness of the heaven grade sword technique was revealed at this moment. What a strong sword intent. On the side, another Wuji sword sect elder, Lu Ji Yuan, had a horrified look on his face as he let out a shocked cry under his breath. And Su Beiyu, who felt Meng Fan's sword head on, was even more pale. As soon as Meng Fan made his move, he felt boundless pressure surging towards him. This was the rhythm of crushing. One was no match at all. Although neither of their attacks had completely exploded, Su Beiyu understood that he had already lost. The momentum was lost on its own. Unfortunately, at this moment, Su Beiyu didn't understand that losing meant death. Su Beiyu's long sword that chopped at Meng Fan was directly chopped away by Meng Fan's sword. On the other hand, the sword light of the sky splitting sword drawing technique did not receive the slightest impact and still chopped at Subeyu. The sword light was extremely fast, so fast that no one could react. In the next second, the sword light shot into the center of Subeyu's brow before penetrating through the back of his head. Subeyu's eyes widened with disbelief. He had just sensed that he was no match for Meng Fan after he had struck his sword. But what he hadn't expected was that the other party would come down with an assassin and directly decapitate himself. This was provoking the Wuji sword sect, offending the Wuji sword sect to death. How dare he? Su Beiyu fell to the ground in death. Elder Su, Lu Ji Yuan, another elder of the Wuji sword sect, let out a shocked cry, his face filled with disbelief. Su Beiyu, unexpectedly dead, killed just like that? The change happened so fast that he didn't have time to react. Who would have thought that the strength of this eighth prince of the great moon dynasty would be so terrifying? Most importantly, he had dared to kill Su Beiyu at the drop of a hat. This is an elder of the Wuji sword sect. How dare he? As for Meng Tianyang, who was hiding at the back, he was already scared silly. Elder Su, dead? It was a situation he had never imagined, and for a moment he had the feeling that the sky was falling. Meng Fan, how dare you, killing my Wuji sword sect's elders? Do you know that this is a heavenly calamity? Lu Ji Yuan pointed at Meng Fan, a hallowed Jin Dan realm cultivator so angry that even his voice trembled a little. Wuji sword sect? Oh, he even dared to kill disciples of the Holy Land, so what was he afraid of the Wuji sword sect? When Li Fei Hua, the elder of the Qian Yuan Holy Land, came to his door, Meng Fan might even be able to behead an elder of the Holy Land to sacrifice his sword. Lu Ji Yuan, still shaking cold with anger, pointed at Meng Fan and shouted angrily, Great Moon Imperial Dynasty, is this a declaration of war with my Wuji sword sect? Meng Fan coldly looked at Lu Ji Yuan, his face expressionless, then spat out five words in a flat tone. Do you want to die too? Lu Ji Yuan was speechless and a little embarrassed. Even Elder Su, who was in the middle Jin Dan stage, had been killed in seconds, and he himself was definitely not a match for this great moon's eighth prince. I don't know how guys cultivate at such a young age. It's horrible. This Meng Fan had killed Elder Su when he said he would, so he certainly wouldn't hesitate to kill himself. So Lu Ji Yuan was a bit of a wimp all of a sudden, and just when he didn't know how to face Meng Fan, the sword in Meng Fan's hand moved once again, a sword light swept by, brush, Lu Ji Yuan's finger that was pointing at Meng Fan was chopped off and fell to the ground, his Lu Ji Yuan took the pain and sucked in a mouthful of cold air as he looked at Meng Fan in horror, 
The next time you dare to point your finger at this emperor, it won't be your finger that is chopped off, Meng Fan said expressionlessly. Lu Jiyuan's face changed from appalled to horrified. This young eighth prince, so ruthless and cold, Lu Jiyuan took a deep breath, then said to Meng Fan, Your Highness, the eighth prince, this time it is us who have been abrupt. We will leave now. Fighting is not enough. This time can only admit defeat. Want to avenge Su Beiyu is to send death. It's not a good deal to kill one and give away two. No, Meng Tianyang was this guy's handler, so he shouldn't have been killed. But killing one to give one away is still not cost effective. Lu Jiyuan can only honestly concede. There is no fear of being left without wood. It's not too late for a gentleman to take revenge. He tried hard to convince himself in his mind. He then glanced back at Meng Tianyang, only to find that this genius of the Wuji Sword sect had been scared silly. Oh, genius? Compared to the even younger Meng Fan on the opposite side, Lu Jiyuan felt that Meng Tianyang was simply stupid. Lu Jiyuan didn't know Meng Fan's grade, but Meng Tianyang was still under 30, and Meng Fan, his younger brother, was definitely even less than 30, a Jin Dan under the age of 30. Who the hell raised this? Thinking of this, Lu Jiyuan's heart unexpectedly flooded with fear. An existence that could cultivate such a genius. No matter who the power behind Meng Fan was, it was not something that the Wuji Sword sect could contend with. Thinking this way, Su Beiyu died in vain. The Wuji Sword sect simply didn't dare to retaliate. Lu Jiyuan coldly looked at Meng Tianyang. It was all because of this asshole who killed Su Beiyu and also caused himself to break a finger. But then again, who would have thought that this 8th prince of the Great Moon Dynasty would be as terrifying as he was? Lu Jiyuan's heart couldn't help but be filled with helplessness. Meng Fan coldly looked at Lu Jiyuan. This guy wanted to go. He naturally would not stay. After all, he is not a person who likes to cut off all people. The reason why he killed Su Beiyu was because Su Beiyu took the initiative to attack himself with the intention of chopping off his own limbs, which really deserved to die. Chopping off Lu Jiyuan's finger was because the guy dared to point his finger at himself, to kill the other party just because of being fingered. Meng Fan felt that he hadn't been cruel enough to do so. So after Lu Jiyuan conceded, Meng Fan didn't strike again. As for how the Wuji Sword sect would react when they learned of Su Beiyu's death, Meng Fan didn't care. Get lost, and take this guy's corpse with you, Meng Fan coldly said to Lu Jiyuan. After saying that, Meng Fan walked over to Meng Tianyang again inside. Meng Tianyang, what do you have to come back for? Isn't it good to stay in the Wuji Sword sect? Don't come back if you go to the Wuji Sword sect this time. Only after hearing Meng Fan's words did Meng Tianyang recover from his stunned state and he looked at Meng Fan with a complex face. There was shock, doubt, confusion, and even a vague hint of fear. After not seeing him for 10 years, this old aide has changed so much, completely changed. Meng Tianyang forced himself to calm down, then took a deep breath and said, Meng Fan, I will return to the Wuji Sword sect and will not return to the Great Moon in this life. However, I still have one more question, and I hope that you will give me an answer for the sake of brotherly love. What's the problem? Is father. Still alive? Dead. Chapter 52, Lawlessness. Hearing Meng Tianyang's question, Meng Fan sighed. In fact, in Meng Fan's mind, Meng Chuanxiu was not considered a father, especially after learning that his mother was also killed by Meng Chuanxiu. Meng Fan not only did not treat Meng Chuanxiu as his father, but also as an enemy. However, to Meng Tianyang, Meng Chuanxiu was an uncompromising father. Meng Tianyang's feelings for Meng Chuanxiu were purely that of a father and son. After all, Meng Tianyang's mother had not been killed by Meng Chuanxiu and was still alive and well. Meng Chuanxiu, dead, Meng Fan said expressionlessly. Upon hearing Meng Fan's reply, Meng Tianyang's body instantly hunched over some, his face full of disheveledness. Actually, he hadn't thought about the possibility before coming back. Even when the Empress had spoken to him about the speculation earlier, he had only thought that the Empress was being overly concerned. Father, how could you die? But when he heard the news of his father's death from Meng Fan's mouth, Meng Tianyang didn't have the slightest doubt. Father, how did it die? Meng Tianyang asked with some trembling. Until this moment, he didn't think that his father's death would have anything to do with Meng Fan. Although the Empress had suspicions before, Meng Tianyang would not think so because Meng Fan was also his father's son. How can a son kill his father? After Meng Tianyang asked this question, he looked straight at Meng Fan, and at this moment the trace of fear in his eyes was gone. In any case, this is his brother, the son of his father. He would kill Elder Su, but not himself, much less his father. Meng Tianyang firmly believed this. Meng Fan looked at Meng Tianyang and was silent for a few breaths of time before saying in a somewhat complicated tone, I ordered the kill. Puff, Meng Tianyang sat on his butt on the ground. 
his face full of disorientation, the look in Meng Fan's eyes, that trace of fear returned and was even more fearful than before, he opened his mouth to say something, but couldn't, the son kills his father, what else is there to say about being able to do such a treacherous thing, after not seeing him for 10 years, this 8th brother had changed too much, turning into a complete and terrifying demon, behind Meng Tianyang, that Wuji sword sex elder Lu Jiyuan's heart trembled, and chills went straight to his head, no wonder the son killed elder Su at the drop of a hat, a man who dared to kill even his own father, killing a stranger he didn't know was nothing at all, not to mention the fact that this stranger had offended him by desiring to cut him limb from limb, Lu Jiyuan was a bit fortunate, fortunate that he had only pointed his hand at Meng Fan, and that he had conceded on the spot, if he had been a little tougher just now, he might have become a corpse as well, after all, standing across from him was a murderous demon, a moment later, Meng Tianyang tremblingly climbed up and headed for the door, he didn't threaten to avenge Meng Chuanxiu's death because he was afraid that he would be beheaded by Wood Meng Fan as soon as he said such words, he had already seen Meng Fan's cold-bloodedness and cruelty and violence, Elder Lu, were returning to the Wuji sword sect, Meng Tianyang said to Lu Jiyuan, Lu Jiyuan let out a sigh of relief, he was really afraid that Meng Tianyang would let out any more harsh words on impulse, and that would really be a death sentence, luckily, the guy wasn't that stupid, Lu Jiyuan dragged Su Beiyu's corpse and walked towards the door with Meng Tianyang, Meng Fan watched Meng Tianyang leave expressionlessly, his gaze calm, after Meng Tianyang left, Wei Chongfeng walked in, he knelt down to clean up the blood on the floor, then hesitated for a moment, but still opened his mouth and asked, Your Highness, why didn't you tell the Grand Prince that it was Meng Chuanxiu who had killed Lady Rufiai, and that's why you ordered the killing of Meng Chuanxiu? There's no point. Meng Fan's face remained bland. To Meng Fan, Meng Tianyang wasn't Meng Xiaoyao, so it didn't matter what Meng Tianyang thought of himself, there's no need to explain, much less bother to explain. From the beginning to the end, Meng Fan's eyes were not on the Great Moon, and he didn't care at all about how these people in the Great Moon viewed him. As for whether Meng Tianyang would come to seek revenge on himself, Meng Fan cared even less. Revenge? Sending them to their deaths is more like it. Your Highness, if the Grand Prince spreads the news that Meng Chuanxiu was killed by you, the news spreading will be detrimental to you, Wei Changfeng said with some worry. Meng Fan smiled and looked at Wei Changfeng. How unfavorable. Wei Changfeng had already cleaned up the blood on the ground, but he was still kneeling on the ground, not getting up. Respectfully, if those ministers in the court knew that you killed Meng Chuanxiu, they would definitely have a problem with you, Meng Fan said with a disdainful expression. So what if they have a problem with me? Hearing Meng Fan's words, Wei Changfeng was immediately somewhat speechless. Yeah, so what if you have an opinion? Your Highness doesn't have any thoughts of ascending to the throne as emperor, so why should you consider the feelings of those ministers? As for impeaching His Highness? Impeachment against whom? In the entire Great Moon, is there anyone else who can restrain His Highness? No more. Wei Changfeng felt that he was really worrying over nothing. If His Highness didn't look for trouble from those ministers, they could burn high incense. Who could look for trouble from His Highness? What is His Highness? If you piss off His Highness, cut them all off. Wei Changfeng suddenly thought of an idiom that felt just right for His Highness at this moment. Lawlessness? Indeed it was true that for today's Meng Fan, he was just lawless in the Great Moon. Wei Changfeng retreated after cleaning up the blood on the ground. This time, he really retreated and didn't guard Meng Fan's door anymore. Meng Tianyang and the elders of the Wuji Sword sect had all rolled away, so he had nothing to worry about. Thinking of that image of His Highness beheading the elder of the Wuji Sword sect at the drop of a hat, Wei Changfeng felt more and more that His Highness had an air of lawlessness about him. Originally, he thought that His Highness would give the Wuji Sword sect some face and just injure and repel these few people. To come up and kill one as a result is truly appalling as well. To be honest, Wei Changfeng also had fear of Meng Fan right now, because the style of acting that Meng Fan had shown in front of him was indeed too cold and too cruel. Shortly after Meng Tianyan left, the news reached Fengyi Palace. It was said that when the Empress Mother heard the news of the death of the Wuji Sword Sex Elder, she was directly shocked and collapsed on her butt. Meng Chuanxiu's reign. It wasn't just Meng Chuanxiu anymore. Both the last emperor of the Great Moon and the previous emperor were all respectful of the Wuji Sword Sect. However, wherever the Wuji Sword Sect came, they were courteously offered. How could there be someone like Meng Fan who came up and hacked an elder to death? This is crazy. The Empress actually didn't have much contact with Meng Fan. And it wasn't until this moment that she felt how heavy Meng Fan's killing nature was. A few days later, news of Meng Fan's patricide reached the Empress ears. When she learned the news, instead of the slightest feeling of hatred rising, the Empress was filled with fear. 
It was at this moment that she realized that Meng Fan's killing nature was even heavier than she had imagined. This rebellious son even dares to kill his own father. What other people does he not dare to kill? So the empress always felt that Meng Fan was going to come and kill her in the next second, causing her whole body to be frightened and suspicious. Finally, escaped from the palace in the night. Chapter 53 giving you the empire. The fact that the empress had fled the palace and that she had fled overnight was beyond Meng Fan's expectations. Even when Meng Fan heard this news, he froze for a moment. Don't understand what this is running a thing for? Only later did he react to the fact that the empress might have learned of Meng Chuanxiu's death from Meng Tianyang's mouth. In the empress's opinion, Meng Fan, the rebellious son, even dared to kill Meng Chuanxiu. So what was she? The empress? What's more, the elders of the Wuji Sword sect, Meng Fan also killed them when he said so. Moreover, the elder of the Wuji Sword sect was also invited by her in a sense. So the empress was really scared less. As for the throne of the Great Moon Dynasty, she did not dare to let her son think about it. Not even dare to think about it. Now as long as they, mother and son, could live well, she was content. Your Highness, the empress left the palace without a word. Should we send someone to chase her back? Wei Changfeng asked to Meng Fan. He was also the one who informed Meng Fan that the empress had escaped from the palace. The truth was that Meng Fan didn't care about these things at all. But Wei Changfeng often came to report these things. Whether the empress died or not. Whether she left the palace or not. What did it have to do with him? Meng Fan? Forget it. Don't bother with her. Meng Fan said indifferently. Wei Changfeng was somewhat helpless. He had actually expected Meng Fan to do this. This kind of small matter. Meng Fan definitely wouldn't care and was too lazy to care. However, Meng Fan's next words were out of Wei Chongfeng's expectations. Although the Empress doesn't need to be in charge, the Crown Prince still needs to be in charge. As the Crown Prince, how long has he been out of the palace in private? Back to your highness. The Crown Prince has been out of the palace privately for nearly a month now. Wei Chongfeng thought that Meng Fan was going to lay his hands on Crown Prince Meng Tianji. What's the reason for this? Send someone to bring back Meng Tianji. Yes, your highness. Soon after. Meng Tianji was captured three days later. Along with her was the Empress, and although Meng Fan had not ordered the Empress to be captured, the Empress was with the Crown Prince Meng Tianji, so naturally she was captured back together. Moonlight Palace. Meng Tianji and the Empress stood in front of Meng Fan with ugly faces. As things stood, many of the things that Meng Fan had done had been exposed, and they were well aware of how powerful the current Meng Fan was, so they simply didn't have the heart to fight Meng Fan. As a result, they all wimped out admitted defeat, and directly left the palace, but Meng Fan still wanted to capture them back and decimate them. Meng Fan, we've already left the palace, why can't you give us a way out? The empress looked at Meng Fan with an angry face. Tian Yang is your brother in arms and legs. You were able to spare his life and let him return to the Wuji Sword sect, Tian Ji is likewise your brother in arms and legs, why can't you give him a way out? Why do you have to cut down everything? Do you still think that Tian Ji, the prince, can threaten you even now? Meng Fan looked at the Empress and Meng Tianji with a calm expression as he sighed. Do you think I sent someone to bring you back in order to kill you? The Empress looked at Meng Fan and said, Isn't it? No. Meng Fan laughed coldly. If I wanted to kill you guys, I would have just let you die directly outside of the palace. Why would I make you go back to the palace? Upon hearing Meng Fan's words, the Empress and Meng Tianji looked at Meng Fan at the same time with some surprise in their eyes. Because they felt that what Meng Fan said seemed quite reasonable. Then what do you want to do? This time, it was Meng Tianji who opened his mouth. Meng Tianji, as the crown prince, lived in the palace all year round just like Meng Fan. But the two of them had little contact, much less friendship. But while there was no friendship, there was no animosity either. From the beginning to the end, I never wanted to kill you all. Those who were killed by me either had a grudge against me or wanted to deal with me. Although I don't have any feelings for you guys, I basically have no grievances. As for the empress, you inviting Meng Tianyang back is not something excessive in my opinion. It's always not out of this realm of family matters. Hearing Meng Fan's words, the Empress and Meng Tianji became increasingly confused, not knowing what kind of medicine Meng Fan was selling in his gourd. So what do you mean by bringing us back? The Queen asked. You can't leave. Meng Fan said. Why? Because Meng Tianji is the crown prince. The country can't live without a ruler. Meng Chuanqiu is dead. The crown prince naturally has to succeed the throne. Meng Fan's words completely dumbfounded the Empress and Meng Tianji. The prince's succession? Let Meng Tianji succeed the throne? The Empress was a bit unable to keep up with Meng Fan's pace. In her opinion she and Meng Tianji were already lucky to be able to stay alive. As for succeeding the throne and ascending to the throne as emperor, 
With Meng Fan around they simply didn't dare to even think about it. Meng Fan understood their doubts and opened his mouth to explain, It's impossible for me to stay in the great moon all the time. You guys think that I'm messing around with so many things because I want to be the emperor of this great moon. But the truth is that this is not the case. I have killed a lot of people. But that was because they were looking for death. Not because I killed them for this throne. The big moon is too small. And I will eventually travel to a wider world. That is why I have not been able to see the throne of the great moon dynasty from the very beginning. But this empire cannot just let with others. Belong to my Meng family things? Then ultimately is the Meng family. Others are not qualified to interfere. Meng Tianxiao died in battle. Meng Tianyang was drunk on the way of the sword. So only you, Meng Tianji, were able to ascend to the throne as emperor. I have captured you back. Not to kill you, but to gift you with the imperial throne. The gift of the imperial throne to you. Hearing these last six words, the empress and Meng Tianji were directly dumbfounded. Shocked beyond words. What kind of gesture and vigor is it to give away the imperial throne just like that? At this moment, these two people opposite Meng Fan had the feeling that they were dreaming. This was too unreal. They thought they'd come back dead this time. Certain death. It turned out that the peak was not only not dead but also the emperor. How could this happen? They are instinctively skeptical and unwilling to believe. But again, Meng Fan didn't have to lie to them. Because in front of Meng Fan at this moment, they were really just like ants. What you said is true. Although Meng Fan had explained clearly, even the reasons and justifications, the Empress and Meng Tianji still felt dreamy and unimaginable. Meng Fan shook his head inside. Not everyone treats this throne as a treasure. Meng Tianyang doesn't even care about the throne, preferring to stay in the Wuji Sword sect. You guys think I'll look at this throne? The reasoning was so. But to the Empress and Meng Tianji, it was fantastic. Since you're willing to let me ascend to the throne as an emperor, what do I need to do after I ascend to the throne? Meng Tianji asked to Meng Fan. In his opinion, Meng Fan's willingness to allow himself to ascend the throne must have conditions, such as allowing himself to be a puppet emperor. As a result, Meng Fan was smiling and said, What do I need you to do? Just don't take the initiative to send yourself to death. Offered to die? A trace of doubt appeared on Meng Tianji's face, but he soon realized what it meant. Very well understood. Offending Meng Fan was tantamount to sending him to his death. Meng Fan's meaning is simple. As long as you don't offend him, then feel free to be the emperor however you want. He had no intention of making Meng Tianji a puppet emperor because he was simply too lazy to ask about the affairs of the court. Power? Oh, this is the world of fairy cultivation. In this world, power is far less important than force. After all, no matter how high the power is, it's just a matter of mobilizing a thousand armies. While the force is strong enough, it is one person with one sword can cut down a thousand armies, or even an army of ten thousand. Ten thousand million. Chapter 54 No Woman in the Heart Cultivation of Natural God The next day, Meng Tianji logically ascended to the throne as emperor without anyone getting in the way. Meng Fan didn't lie to him. Meng Tianji ascended to the throne and became the new emperor of the Great Moon, which was unexpected by many. Whether it was someone who was acquainted with Meng Fan, such as those commanders of the Imperial Forest Army, Still the ministers of the court, who were not acquainted with Meng Fan, felt that things should not develop at this pace. On the contrary, Wei Chong Feng, the great inner chief who had followed Meng Fan the most, had probably guessed this decision of Meng Fan's. It was because Wei Chong Feng knew very well how strong this highness was, and the regional Great Moon Imperial Dynasty simply could not accommodate the true dragon that was his highness. This eighth prince his highness, from the beginning to the end, had never put the Great Moon Dynasty in his eyes let alone the throne of the Great Moon Dynasty. Previously, Wei Changfeng had thought about Meng Fan ascending to the throne and gaining power himself. After all, he was the number one dog leg under Meng Fan. But then when I thought about it, if Meng Fan ascended to the throne, what the hell kind of power would I have? If Meng Fan was the emperor, he, Wei Changfeng, could only honestly be a dog, not daring to be the slightest bit reckless. On the contrary, if Meng Tianji was the emperor, he would be more powerful instead. After all, compared to Meng Fan, Meng Tianji was much better to hold. Anyway, this matter of Meng Tianji ascending to the throne, although it shocked many people's eyeballs, was completed logically, and everyone still felt that this result was quite good. If it was Meng Fan, the murderous demon king, who had ascended to the throne as emperor, then the pressure on the hundred officials would be too great, and people would be on edge. And Meng Tianji was originally the crown prince, and the crowd was much more familiar with him. As for Meng Fan, he was still in closed door cultivation. In his opinion, where were the farts of the great moon dynasty as important as his cultivation? Time flows like water. 
and the days when you can't pretend are always fleeting. In the blink of an eye, two months had passed, and Meng Fan had successfully cultivated to the mid Jin Don realm. Name, Meng Fan. Life expectancy, 20 619. Race, human. Cultivation, middle Jin Dan. Technique, 9 Heavenly Empyrean Spirit Technique, Divine Grade. Physique, 6 Paths Divine Body, Divine Grade. Supreme Talent, Sword Dao Tongshan, Top Qualification in Sword Dao. Any sword technique can be learned at once, and the power of the sword technique is enhanced. Supreme Talent, Hegemonic Stance, Any female in your presence will be weakened. Supreme Talent, Human Emperor's Bloodline, Activate the Human Emperor's Bloodline in your body, and you will be able to take in the world's luck and enhance your cultivation. Sword Techniques, Heavenly Flying Fairy, Shen Level. Holy Spirit Sword Technique, Heaven Level. 10,000 Swords Returning to the Father, Earth Level. And Jintian Sword Drawing Technique, Heaven Level. Weapons, Shen Bing Sword, Shen Grade. Shen Yuan Sword, Heaven Grade. After cultivating to the middle Jin Dan stage, Meng Fan went to see Meng Xiaochan. This girl has also been practicing very diligently lately. And like Meng Fan, she has been in seclusion the whole day. And the number of times she looks for Meng Fan has become less and less. Unfortunately, this girl's qualifications were neither good nor bad. In more than two months time, it was possible to cultivate to the realm of practicing qi at the second level. Wanting to cultivate to the innate realm was a long way to go, and it was simply impossible to do so without a period of two or three years. If some elixirs could be found, it would be possible to speed up the process. However, the Great Moon Imperial Palace was barren, and there were only some ordinary pills that were not obviously helpful for cultivation. Imperial Brother, why are you here? Meng Xiaochan was still relatively elated to see Meng Fan. Although she had been contacting Meng Fan less and less recently, it wasn't that her feelings had faded, but rather that she was addicted to cultivation. I came to see how your cultivation is going. I was thinking that if you cultivate to the third level of qi cultivation, I would start teaching you swordsmanship. As a result, looking at your progress, there is still a considerable distance from the third level of qi practicing. Meng Fan said with a smile, he had told Meng Xiaochan before that when she cultivated to the third level of qi cultivation, he would start teaching her sword techniques. This matter was also remembered by Meng Xiaochan, so she had been practicing very attentively. Unfortunately, she had only just broken through to the second level of qi cultivation not long ago, and it was estimated that it would take another month or two before she could reach the third level of qi cultivation. So when Meng Fan said that, it instantly hit her. Imperial brother, am I stupid and have no talent for cultivation? Meng Xiaochan asked with some sadness. Meng Fan rubbed Meng Xiaochan's head and comforted. It's not very stupid la. Although this talent of yours isn't considered to be a supreme genius, it's still better than ordinary people. Hearing that her talent was no worse than an ordinary person's, and even a bit better, Meng Xiaochan's face instantly revealed a smile. She didn't have that much ambition. She didn't want to be a supreme genius, being able to be a little better than ordinary people. She was already satisfied. In fact more than two months, to be able to cultivate from little white to the realm of the second level of qi practicing, this speed was already very fast. After all, Meng Xiaochan cultivated the earth level technique, the heavenly sound mysterious code, and earth level techniques were certainly trash compared to Meng Fan's god level techniques, but a foundation establishment like Wei Changfeng was only cultivating Xian level techniques. Meng Xiaochan was able to cultivate an earth level technique in the opening round, and this was already a very high start. Of course, it couldn't be compared to Meng Fan. Back then, when Meng Fan cultivated the divine grade technique, Nine Heavens Emperor God skill, with his mortal body, but he had cultivated to the third level of qi cultivation in a month. At that time, Meng Fan hadn't drawn his body, and if he had already drawn the sixth Tao divine body, it was estimated that he would have directly built his foundation in a month. Unfortunately, Meng Xiaochan was unable to cultivate such a powerful God level technique. Imperial Brother Lately Little White has been sneaking out and coming back very late, I'm afraid it might cause some kind of trouble outside. Little White, the little fox that Meng Fan had brought back to give to Meng Xiaochan, wouldn't it be better if you found a cage to lock it up? Meng Fan said casually, although Xiao Bai is not a human, this little guy can be pampered and has more expressions than a human, locking it up it will act pitiful, I can't bear to lock it up. Meng Xiaochan said somewhat helplessly, this little fox was actually quite humane, which Meng Fan also knew then let it be. Anyway, everyone in the palace knows that you've raised a little whiteford fox all along. No matter who sees little white, they won't dare to make a move against it. In the entire Great Moon Imperial Palace, the one with the highest status was naturally Meng Fan, and no one could rival him. The next one was Meng Xiaochan. Everyone knew that Meng Fan valued this sister and no one dared to offend Meng Xiaochan, 
Meng Tianji, the emperor, was only able to rank third, that's why no one dared to move Meng Xiaochan's fox, because moving it meant death, there was no other possibility. By the way, imperial brother, the sixth imperial brother came over a few days ago. Meng Xiaochan said to Meng Fan, this sixth imperial brother, that's Meng Tianji, is now the emperor of the great moon. It was only that Meng Xiaochan was used to calling her sixth imperial brother, so she didn't change her name, and in fact Meng Tianji took the initiative to tell her not to change her name. What is he doing here looking for you? Meng Fan frowned. Meng Xiaochan smiled and said, actually, he didn't come to find me, he came to find you. Looking for me? Looking for me? What's he doing looking for you if he doesn't just look for me? He didn't dare to come to you directly. He didn't even dare to talk to you, so he had to beg me to help relay the message. Meng Fan rolled his eyes and said in a bad mood, when the emperor is still so unresponsive, there are things that he still does not dare to say directly to me. What a waste. What did he say to you? The sixth imperial brother said that the great dragon imperial dynasty sent an envoy who wants to join forces with the great wind imperial dynasty and wants to marry a princess over. Now that the third imperial brother had died in battle, the eldest imperial brother was in the Wuji sword sect, and he himself had become emperor. None of them were suitable. Most importantly, that princess of the great dragon seems to be interested in you and specifically mentioned you. Meng Fan's face instantly turned cold as he said in a chilling voice. So he wants me to marry some princess of the great dragon dynasty? Has he lived long enough? Dare to tell me what to do. Imperial brother. Don't be angry for now. The sixth imperial brother. He's just afraid that you'll be angry. That's why he doesn't dare to ask you directly. He's not telling you what to do. He's just asking for your attitude. After all, he doesn't know if you'd be interested in this princess. In case you're interested in this princess and he hasn't even asked you for fear of upsetting you. If you're not interested, just balk. No need to get upset. Meng Fan was directly exasperated and laughed. He probably understood what Meng Tianji meant. This kid was worried if he was an old colorful lot, although he has shown himself to be uninterested in power. This does not mean that he is uninterested in women. The princess of an enemy country with a prominent status. Meng Tianji felt that Meng Fan might be interested. Would Meng Fan be interested in a woman? This one for now. But he certainly wouldn't be interested in a stranger he'd never met. What great dragon's princess? Whether she was beautiful or ugly was unknown. How could Meng Fan be interested? Meng Fan didn't have the heart to say. Meng Tianji, this asshole. If he comes looking for you again, you can just tell him to focus on the affairs of state. Lazi isn't interested in any great dragon's princesses. If he wants to be interested he can go marry one himself. Meng Xiaochan heatedly laughed. Imperial brother, this is supposed to be a state matter. And it's not a small matter. It's a state matter that concerns whether or not the two countries, Great Moon and Great Dragon, can live together amicably. And I have heard that that princess of the Great Dragon dynasty is a beauty like heaven. Why don't you go and meet up with your royal brother? And maybe you'll add a sister-in-law to me at first sight. Meng Fan rolled his eyes. This little girl egg, actually dared to make a joke on his head, really looking for a fight. Meng Fan bounced on Meng Xiaochan's forehead. And although he collected his strength, there was still some force. Imperial brother, what are you hitting me for? You're not so young anymore. What's wrong with finding me a sister-in-law? Meng Xiaochan ate the pain and immediately covered her forehead with her hand. Meng Fan glared at Meng Xiaochan. I'm not young anymore? You dead girl is the same age as me. I haven't been anxious for you yet. But you're picking up your heart for? In fact, you have also reached the age to be married. If I had known earlier, I would have let you marry in Biling. Meng Xiaochan hurriedly conceded. Imperial brother I was wrong. A moment later, Meng Fan left from Meng Xiaochan's residence. As for any princess of the great dragon dynasty, he didn't put it on his mind at all. Although Xiaochan had just mentioned that this princess was beautiful, as beautiful as heaven, Meng Fan didn't feel moved at all. After all, who knows if it's a real beauty or a fake one if you haven't met it. What's more, Meng Fan really wasn't interested in women. There is no woman in your heart and you practice natural god. Chapter 55, Reincarnation of a Human Immortal. Meng Fan's goal was to try to cultivate into an immortal. Coming to this world, coupled with the existence of the system, allowed Meng Fan to instinctively have a game life attitude. It just feels, like you're playing a virtual reality game. This was also the reason why Meng Fan was able to be decisive and ruthless. If it was on earth, Meng Fan definitely didn't have the mindset. As for women, Meng Fan really had no interest for the time being. Women would only affect the speed of his cultivation, especially beautiful women. As a result, five days later, when that princess of the great dragon dynasty appeared in front of Meng Fan, Meng Fan froze. When the news of the great dragon dynasty wanting to join forces came, 
A certain princess from the Great Dragon Dynasty had already departed for the Great Moon Dynasty. This princess was the seventh princess of the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty, Princess Qin Xiangming of Pingji. Qin Xiangming had also heard the news of Meng Fan's beheading of Nian Tu and is stepping down of the Golden Origin Temple from somewhere, and had become intensely interested in Meng Fan. So when the Great Dragon and the Great Moon had the idea of joining forces, she volunteered to travel to the Great Moon Dynasty herself. She wanted to find out if the beheading of Nian Tu and the stepping down of the Golden Origin Temple were done by Meng Fan himself or were they rumors. When a woman is interested in a man, it is most likely the beginning of falling in love with that man. Assuming, of course, that the man is good enough, really good, and Meng Fan, is just really good enough, as the princess of the Great Dragon, Qin Shangming easily found and met Meng Fan after arriving at the Great Moon's palace, so when Meng Fan saw a strange woman standing in front of him, he couldn't help but be a little confused, you are, Meng Fan asked to the woman, the seventh princess of the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty, Qin Shangming, Qin Shangming spoke directly, hearing Qin Shangming's words, Meng Fan was truly frozen, I just heard a few days ago that the great dragon had the idea of marrying a princess over for a marriage. At that time, Meng Xiaochan even poked fun at Meng Fan and asked him to find her a sister-in-law, which was strictly rejected by Meng Fan. As a result, only a few days had passed, and the great dragon had a princess running to her? Is the princess of the great dragon so sad to be married? So eager to marry yourself off? Meng Fan quickly regained his composure after experiencing a brief moment of surprise. He looked at this great dragon seventh princess Qin Shangming, his gaze bland as he asked, Is the princess in the wrong place? This emperor doesn't see guests here. Qin Shangming shook her head and said, I just came to find you. This princess highness was wearing a veil and could not see her face. But even if the appearance was truly as beautiful as heaven, Meng Fan would not put it to heart. Still, for women he wasn't interested. When that Nya Rintu's daughter, Nya Ruying, was also a beautiful woman. But Meng Fan was mercilessly and directly struck out to behead her without the slightest hesitation. Looking for me for what? Meng Fan asked with a calm expression. I heard that you killed Nian too. You also stepped on the Golden Origin Temple? I'm curious as to whether this is true or not. And it just so happens that I came to Great Moon this time. So I wanted to know the answer from your mouth. Hearing Qin Xiangming's words, Meng Fan couldn't help but smile. A sneer. Of course. You want to know. So I have to tell you? He felt that this woman was sick. Somehow, as a result, Qin Shangming actually nodded her head and said smoothly, If I want to know, then you should tell me. Meng Fan was directly angered and said, On what grounds, on what grounds, Qin Shangming didn't say anything, reaching behind her own ears and undoing her veil. Instantly, a face appeared in Meng Fan's line of sight. What kind of face is this? It was exactly the same as a word Meng Xiaochan had mentioned earlier. Beautiful as heaven. The seventh princess of the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty. Qin Xiangming, was indeed stunningly beautiful, her face value a bit heaven-defying, unpowdered, purely vegan, with just her hair tied back and then two strands of hair accenting her forehead, but it's such a plain face that crushes those top stream actresses on earth in their previous life who put on makeup and turned on their beauty face, described that way, it doesn't seem like an exaggeration at first glance, but you have to realize how horrible makeup and beauty techniques were on earth in a previous life, there was a saying that Meng Fan had never seen such a beautiful woman, including the ones inside the television on earth in his previous life. I did kill Nyarin too, and I leveled the Golden Origin Temple. Looking at this face, Meng Fan couldn't help but say the answer. After speaking, Meng Fan's face changed abruptly. What's going on here? Seduction? I can't believe I let myself unconsciously say the answer the other person wanted to know. Meng Fan stared at this face of Qin Shangming's, and at the moment, he didn't feel how beautiful this face was, but instead felt very horrible. Is this natural seduction? Or is she practicing it? In Meng Fan's perception, this Qin Shangming seemed to be an ordinary person without cultivation. But just now, this woman was able to charm herself into involuntarily telling the truth, which was not like an ordinary person. Born to charm, it shouldn't be possible to have such a strong ability. Then the probability was that this woman was strong, so strong that she couldn't even see through her cultivation. In this situation, if one were to make a rash attempt to test the waters, one might instead get oneself into trouble. Of course, as long as the human emperor bloodline was activated, then there would be no problem. But to activate the human emperor's bloodline for such a trivial matter, Meng Fan felt that it wasn't worth it. Anyway, the woman hadn't shown any hostility for the time being, and for the time being all she had for herself was curiosity. This curiosity was within Meng Fan's acceptable range. So after weighing the situation, Meng Fan didn't take a shot at this Qin Shangming and ignored the matter. 
However, if this woman dared to continue to be reckless, Meng Fan would activate the human emperor bloodline and teach her to be human. All right, the questions have been asked. You can leave. Meng Fan coldly looked at Qin Xiangming. Qin Xiangming smilingly said to Meng Fan, It's actually true that you did it. Interesting, a secular realm's royal son is so strong. I wonder who cultivated you to be so outstanding. Meng Fan looked at Qin Xiangming expressionlessly and said in a chilling voice, If you want to know, you can use that charming technique you just used on me again. Qin Xiangming heard this, but she hesitantly glanced at Meng Fan and did not once again use the kind of skill similar to charm that she had just used, because she had a vague feeling that offending Meng Fan again seemed like something bad would happen. She had always trusted her instincts. Since His Royal Highness the Eighth Prince is unwilling to inform, then naturally I'm not in a position to force the issue. Qin Shangming said with a smiling face. Meng Fan impatiently waved his hand at Qin Shangming and said, You can go now. Qin Shangming didn't say any more nonsense and directly left Meng Fan's moonlight palace. Meng Fan looked at Qin Shangming's back and frowned. This woman, there's something wrong. He himself had only cultivated to the Jindan realm thanks to his god level techniques and god level physique. And this woman looked younger than herself. How could her cultivation exceed her own? Just as Meng Fan was puzzled, a voice appeared in his mind and solved his confusion. Ding! Human immortal reincarnation found, do you want to check the information? Chapter 56, The Benefits of Dual Cultivation A reincarnation of a human immortal? Hearing the inexplicable prompt from the system, Meng Fan was a bit confused. How did this thing come out of nowhere? Is it really just yourself who is the protagonist template? What kind of strange and bizarre things come crashing down on you? Meng Fan was a bit helpless, but he still chose to view the information. Qin Xiangming, a reincarnated human immortal in the Mahayana realm who was reincarnated after the dismantling of his soldiers, at only 19 years of age, has already reached the peak of the Jindan realm, and is only one step away from being a Yuaning. His original magic treasure, the Flying Fish Sword, is hidden in the depths of the Soul Sea, and once the Flying Fish Sword is utilized, it is able to kill a Yuaning with the power of a Jindan. Note, dual cultivation with such a character will enhance Qi and strengthen the human emperor's bloodline. Seeing this information, although Meng Fan was surprised, he couldn't talk about envy. Admittedly, the reincarnation of a Mahayana stage human immortal was indeed blessed with the ability to cultivate to the peak of Jindan's realm at only 19 years of age. It's horrible, but that's for ordinary people. To Meng Fan, this speed was nothing, because Meng Fan had officially started his cultivation. Less than a year ago, he had already reached the mid Jindan realm. A Mahayana cultivator reincarnating and recultivating certainly had amazing advantages, rich experience, and profound techniques. But in the path of cultivation, the most important thing was the physique. After all, you can obtain feats, but your physique cannot be changed. Even if this Qin Shangming were to reincarnate and remodel, it would be impossible for her to obtain a divine body like Meng Fan's. In terms of cultivation speed, Meng Fan crushed her. As for combat power, this girl used her innate magic treasure the flying fish sword, to be able to cut down Yuaning, and with Meng Fan activating the human emperor's bloodline, he could likewise behead Yuaning. The only thing that surprised Meng Fan was that dual cultivation with this girl could actually enhance Qi and strengthen the human emperor bloodline. At this moment, even though Meng Fan thought that he wasn't an old sex maniac, he also had the idea of sleeping with this woman. Of course, it's just something to think about and not put into action, because if you really sleep, you'll definitely have a lot of trouble later on. And it's not worth it. After Qin Shangming left, Meng Fan couldn't calm down for a long time. Inexplicably having the reincarnation of a Mahayana realm human immortal appear in front of him was a bit too coincidental to be reasonable. In the path of cultivation, after the transition realm was the Mahayana realm. It is often said that you have to cross the threshold to become an immortal. After you have crossed the threshold, you are considered an immortal. Cultivators in the Mahayana realm are known as human immortals. If one is strong enough to open the heavenly gate and ascend to the upper realm, then one is in the true immortal realm. If you do not have the ability to open the gate of heaven, you cannot ascend and can only stay on earth. So you are called a human immortal. Meng Fan called Wei Changfeng and inquired about the great dragon dynasty and the seventh princess Qin Shangming. Although Meng Fan didn't ask about world affairs, Wei Changfeng was still quite concerned about national affairs. From Wei Changfeng's mouth, Meng Fan understood a few things. Ever since the death of Nyering II of the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty, the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty had fallen. The Great Dragon Dynasty wanted to join forces with the Great Moon Dynasty to annex the Great Wind Dynasty. The general trend of the world is that division is inevitable, and unity is inevitable. It was only natural for the Great Dragon to want to unite with the Great Moon to overthrow the Great Wind. 
That's why it's normal for the great dragon to think of a marriage with the great moon and marry a princess to the great moon, which is a basic operation. But the abnormal thing lies in the seventh princess Qin Shangming. Your Highness, the princess that the great wind dynasty wants to marry into the great moon is not the seventh princess Qin Shangming, but the third princess Qin Shanglan. Upon hearing Wei Chongfeng's words, Meng Fan's face was first a bit stunned, and then it dawned on him. With Qin Xiangming's ability, how could the Great Dragon Dynasty force her to marry? It was only because this girl had come to the Great Moon that Meng Fan subconsciously assumed that the princess who married into the Great Moon was her. The truth was that Qin Xiangming didn't even have the idea of marrying in Daiyue. She came to Daiyue purely because she was interested in herself. An ordinary prince of a secular realm's royal dynasty suddenly rose to prominence and even decimated a powerful person of the Jindan's realm. Put yourself in the shoes of someone who would be curious. It's just that ordinary people are curious, not qualified to explore the answers. And Qin Shangming, the reincarnation of a human immortal, was naturally qualified. Maybe the girl would even see the hunt and have that idea of taking herself under her wing. But what she doesn't know is that, she doesn't deserve it. Meng Fan let out a bitter smile and expelled these chaotic thoughts from his mind. Hearing that it was the third princess Qin Shanglan who was going to be married off to the great moon, and not the seventh princess Qin Xiangming, Meng Fan instantly lost the slightest bit of interest. This woman, Qin Xiangming, came and went in a hurry, and within two days, she left the great moon dynasty and returned to the great dragon dynasty. There wasn't too much interaction with Meng Fan. Meng Fan didn't take it to heart either. This incident was indeed a rather shocking episode, but that was all. To Meng Fan, this Qin Xiangming was certainly strong and demonic, but it wouldn't be long before Meng Fan would be able to completely crush her. So there wasn't a need to be nervous or scrupulous. However, this world is still a world of crouching tigers and hidden dragons. Casually being able to encounter a human immortal reincarnated. I still can't underestimate the heroes of the world. Meng Fan muttered. In fact, if it wasn't for the system's reminder, he wouldn't have even known that this Qin Xiangming would actually have this kind of amazing heritage and background. I have to say, the system is pretty comprehensive. As for the marriage between De Lung and De Yu, in the end, it was Meng Tianji who was prepared to marry De Lung's third princess Qin Xianglan. Only that Meng Tianji was not prepared to give the position of empress to Qin Xianglan. Before marrying Qin Xianglan, he was prepared to find an empress and make Qin Xianglan his consort. As for these things, Meng Fan was naturally too lazy to ask more. He was still cultivating intensely, not hearing anything outside the window. At this rate of progress, it would probably only be half a year or so before he could truly step into the Yuaning realm and become a land god in the secular world. There was no need to resort to the human emperor's bloodline anymore. Another month and a half passed, and Meng Fan was getting closer and closer to the late Jin Dan stage, just missing the door. On this day, Meng Xiaochan found Meng Fan. As soon as she entered, she shouted with excitement on her face, Imperial brother, I've cultivated to the third level of qi cultivation. You promised me that when I reached the third level of qi cultivation, you'd start teaching me swordsmanship. In the past few months, Meng Xiaochan had been in closed door cultivation, hardly even going out much. She had summoned up a surge of energy and was waiting to cultivate to the third level of qi cultivation and then look for Meng Fan to teach her swordsmanship. Now that the small short-term goal was accomplished, she was naturally very happy. A smile also appeared on Meng Fan's face. The third level of qi cultivation was a threshold. Before the third level of qi cultivation, true qi had no power at all. And even if one cultivated sword techniques, they could not exert much power. It was only when they reached the third level of qi practicing that they were able to inspire some combat power. Good. Naturally, I won't lie to you. Since you've cultivated to the third level of qi practicing, I'll teach you sword technique right here. Meng Fan said with a smile, teaching his sister swordsmanship. He naturally wouldn't teach those ordinary swordsmanships inside the Imperial Palace and the Golden Origin Temple. If you want to teach, you have to teach the best. However, it was also impossible to teach a heavenly grade sword technique like the Jintian sword drawing technique. Meng Xiaochan's cultivation level was too low, so she wouldn't be able to learn even if she was taught. But instead, it would give her a huge shock and blow that would lead to damage to her sword heart. Meng Fan thought about his four sword techniques, and the only one that was suitable for Meng Xiaochan right now was the Heavenly Flying Fairy. However, the sword heavens beyond Flying Immortal was too one-dimensional and not easily adaptable. So Meng Fan thought about it and passed on the first six styles of the Holy Spirit Sword Technique to Meng Xiaochan as well. Sword 1 to Sword 6. When she was able to learn these six styles, then she would consider teaching her the subsequent ones. However, Meng Fan felt that by the time Meng Xiaochan completely mastered Sword 1 through Sword 6, it was estimated that she had already cultivated to the innate realm. Anyway, 
Skyward Flying Fairy, plus, Sword 1, 2, Sword 6, would be enough for Meng Xiaochan of the Qi Practicing Realm to use. For the next seven days in a row, Meng Fan was teaching Meng Xiaochan sword practice. It took a full seven days for this girl to barely learn the stance and routine of these sword strokes. Meng Fan can only teach to this point. Want to be proficient until completely mastered. It is up to her own hard work. After learning the sword technique, Meng Xiaochan continued to go back to her cultivation without disturbing Meng Fan anymore. If she wanted to be proficient in these sword techniques, she couldn't do it without hard work. After all, she didn't have the talent of Sword Dao Tongshin. We have to find a way to get Xiao Chan some elixirs to boost her cultivation speed. For Meng Fan, he himself didn't need any elixirs to assist him. Because his cultivation speed was already extremely terrifying, due to his cultivation base being too fast, even if he took elixirs, he couldn't increase his speed much. But Meng Xiaochan is different. She is in need of these, but the Great Moon Palace was too poor. And although there were some low-grade elixirs that boosted the speed of cultivation, the side effects were too obvious, and it was impossible for Meng Fan to allow Meng Xiaochan to take these elixirs, but letting Meng Fan go out of the palace to look for the elixir, he had no goal and was indeed a bit too lazy to go out. In the end, the geeks have been geeks for so long that they are too lazy to go out without anything necessary. Three days later, the elder of the Qian Yuan Holy Land, Li Fei Hua, finally approached the Great Moon Dynasty. To be honest, this day came a little late. When Meng Fan went to the Golden Origin Temple three months ago, he was worried that this Li Fei Hua would come to his door at any time. As a result, today, three months later, this Li Fei Hua only came, and Meng Fan was a bit impatient to wait, but he remembered the system's mission. Ding, you killed Nya Ruying, a disciple of the Qian Yuan Holy Land, who was the only personal disciple of Li Fei Hua, an elder of the Qian Yuan Holy Land. If Nya Ruying dies, Li Fei Hua will be furious and seek revenge on you. You can make the following choices. Option 1, leave the Great Moon Dynasty and go into hiding to avoid Li Fei Hua's revenge. Reward, quenching Yuan Dan. Option 2, a great man who does not change his name and sits without a change of name will sit in the Daiyue Palace and wait for Li Fei Hua to come to his door to avenge his death. Reward, breathlessness. Now that Li Fei Hua had finally come to his door, Meng Fan's mission reward had arrived after dragging on for three months. Astringency. Although this thing didn't have much of a role in terms of actual combat, there were many times and many things that this convergence technique was able to bring about miraculous effects, and Meng Fan still valued it quite highly. Meng Fan had originally thought that this Qian Yuan Holy Land's elder, Li Fei Hua, was a man, only to realize that he was actually a middle-aged woman when he arrived in front of him. Chapter 57, You're Incompetent If You're Not As Skilled As Others This Li Fei Hua, although his looks to be a middle-aged woman, but the skin is white and tender, and the features are also very standard is a very flavorful beauty. However, cultivators of her realm were no longer able to judge age by appearance. Maybe she looked like a middle-aged woman in her thirties, but she was in fact a 300-year-old monster. In the cultivation world, this kind of thing was not rare at all. Extremely unusual. That's why when cultivators look for a Taoist couple, they don't look at their age, but at their cultivation and appearance. Because for cultivators, they had so much life and time that age didn't matter at all. Are you the eighth prince of the great moon? Meng Fan? Li Fei Hua had forced her way in, and she looked at Meng Fan coldly as she asked. Outside the door, the guards fell to the ground struggling one by one. Although their lives were not in danger, their injuries were not light, and it was impossible to stand up in a short time. For this elder of the Qian Yuan Holy Land, the Great Moon Imperial Palace was like his own backyard, coming and going as he wished, and no one could stop him. I am Meng Fan. Meng Fan nodded in response without denying it. Since the other party had come to the door, they must have determined that they were Meng Fan, my disciple, the daughter of Nya Rin Tu, Nya Ruying, she came to you, where is she now? Li Fei Hua asked with a cold face, this woman, asking people things and being so rude, not polite at all, there's one thing to be said for people like that, and it's certainly not pleasant, so even though Meng Fan had killed this Li Fei Hua disciple, he still felt that this Li Fei Hua had a repulsive personality, Nya Ruying, it's not just as simple as having come to find me. She's here to avenge Nya Rin Tu's death. She's here to kill me, Meng Fan said with a somewhat cold voice. Li Fei Hua's face was expressionless as she said indifferently. You killed her father. It is only natural for her to come to you for revenge. Meng Fan laughed coldly. In that case, it's only natural for her to try to kill me, and to be killed back by me when her skills are inferior. Hearing Meng Fan's words, Li Fei Hua's eyebrows raised. Her face turned completely cold and her gaze was filled with chilling intent. You killed her? Good. She tried to kill me and I killed her back. 
which in your words is only natural, Li Feiwa's breath caught slightly, before this, she had already had a guess and a premonition, but she still had a glimmer of hope that Nia Ruying had only been imprisoned and not killed. Only now after hearing about Nia Ruying's death from Meng Fan's mouth did she recognize the reality and completely die. Li Feihua took a deep breath and looked coldly at Meng Fan, her tone extremely icy as she said, You killed my disciple, and it's only right that I, as a master, should avenge her. Meng Fan laughed and said, It is indeed heavenly, of course it was only natural. From the moment Nia Ruying died, Meng Fan had waited for Li Feihua to take revenge. Meng Fan didn't have the slightest opinion about Li Feihua's arrival and the fact that the other party wanted to kill himself for revenge. It was true that it was only natural for Li Feihua to avenge his disciple's death, but it would be equally heavenly for Meng Fan to kill Li Feihua back in self-defense, so there is no reasoning at this moment. Any more reasoning is meaningless, it's all nonsense. At the moment, it just depends on whose fist is harder. Whoever is able to kill the other first has the right to be justified, because the bigger fist is the biggest truth, and has been since the beginning of time. Boom. Without waiting for Li Feihua to make a move, Meng Fan didn't hesitate to activate the Human Emperor bloodline. Although it didn't take too long to activate the Human Emperor bloodline, if one waited for the other party to strike before activating it, then it would most likely be too late. Late, which means dead. The chi around the Great Moon Imperial City began to surge into Meng Fan's body. In particular, the golden dragon of Qi in the sky above the palace once again rushed toward Meng Fan with its teeth and claws, drilling into Meng Fan's body. Li Feiwa's brows furrowed. She couldn't sense the presence of Qi, but she did detect something bizarre in the shadows. It was as if there was some kind of power that surged into the body of this young man across the street. One moment, in Li Feiwa's line of sight, the cultivation of this eighth prince of the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty had undergone a drastic change. Before, he was clearly in the middle stage of Jin Dan, but he ended up soaring into the sky and couldn't stop. Late Jin Dan, peak Jin Dan, early Yuaning, mid Yuaning. In less than two short breaths of time, this young man's breath had actually surpassed his own. Li Feihua was a mid Yuaning existence, not considered much stronger amongst the group of elders of the Qian Yuan Holy Land, but definitely not weak either. A small royal dynasty in the secular world actually had someone whose cultivation was able to surpass his own? She was filled with consternation. The scene was truly unbelievable. Although she didn't know what method this eighth prince used to be able to make his cultivation skyrocket, but whatever the approach, at least the cultivation at the moment was genuine. Just outrageous. Li Feihua stared wide-eyed, feeling that her spirit had received a strong shock. Meng Fan's cultivation stopped at the realm of the late Yuanying stage. In a deep sword chant came out. The Xian Yuan sword in Meng Fan's hand was sheathed. The blade of the sword exuded a regal sharpness, engraving the sun, moon and stars on one side, and mountains, rivers, grass and trees on the other. Just the overflowing aura already made people's hearts tremble and tremble with fear. Even Li Fei Hua, a mid-Yuaning land goddess, was no exception. What a dominating sword. Li Fei Hua let out a gasp in his heart. This must be at least an earth-grade divine armament, right? Meng Fan pointed his sword at Li Fei Hua and said in an indifferent tone, In fact, this prince doesn't want to make an enemy of the Qian Yuan Holy Land for no reason. And after killing one of the elders of the Qian Yuan Holy Land, I'm sure that the Qian Yuan Holy Land will surely continue to send people to seek revenge on me. The key is annoying as hell. Li Fei Hua, I'll give you a chance. You retreat here, and we'll settle our grudges. Otherwise you are doomed to fall here today, and you should also be able to sense that you are not my opponent. Is it really worth it to put your life on the line for a disciple? Still, Nya Ruying sought revenge on me, his skills were inferior, and he was killed by me in return. It's only natural. I'll give you ten breaths of time to think about it, and if you still want to continue avenging Nya Ruying, then I have nothing to say but to send you on your way. The ten breaths of time were quick and fleeting. Meng Fan stared straight at Li Fei Hua, his aura compelling from start to finish. He wanted to see what this Li Fei Hua would actually choose. It was true that Meng Fan didn't want to make an enemy of the Qin Yuan Holy Land, but not wanting to and not daring to were two different things. He had given Li Fei Hua a chance, as well as himself. However, if Li Fei Hua didn't know any better and wanted to continue to fight to the death with himself, then he wouldn't hesitate to behead this Li Fei Hua. Now that Meng Fan's cultivation was straight up to the late Yuanying stage, one realm higher than Li Fei Hua, coupled with the existence of the Xian Yuan sword, killing Li Fei Hua was a breeze, and there was no need for a second sword at all. As for killing Li Fei Hua after offending the Qian Yuan Holy Land, Meng Fan's big deal was leaving the Great Moon Dynasty. The sky was so big that Meng Fan hid in the sea of people, and the Qian Yuan Holy Land couldn't find him at all. As long as he lurked for two or three years, 
it would be the Qian Yuan Holy Land that should tremble at that time. So no matter how Li Fei Hua chose, Meng Fan was unafraid and frankly ruthless. In the end, under Meng Fan's leering, coldly compelling gaze, Li Fei Hua's hand, which was gripping the hilt of her sword, finally loosened. She wimped out, give it up. In the end, he still didn't dare to take a shot at Meng Fan, because she knew very well that what Meng Fan had just said wasn't wrong, and that if she really made a move, the one who would die in the end would definitely be herself. It is indeed natural to be killed back when you are not as skilled as you are. Not only was her own disciple not as skilled as others, but it turned out that even she herself was not as skilled as others. Alas, Li Fei Hua sighed, full of disillusionment and helplessness. Where is Nya Ruying's corpse? I want to take her back. Hearing this, Meng Fan also let out a sigh of relief. He retrieved the regulus sword, then took Li Fei Hua and left the Moonlight Palace. Nya Ruying's body was buried a long time ago. Meng Fan found someone to lead the way and dug Nya Ruying's coffin out of the ground. This is Nya Ruying's coffin. You can open it and examine the corpse, Meng Fan said to Li Fei Hua. Li Fei Hua shook her head and indifferently said, No need. The autopsy was completely unnecessary. And with a sweep of her divine sense she knew that inside the coffin was Nya Ruying's corpse. In that case, good riddance, Meng Fan said to Li Fei Hua. Li Fei Hua glanced at Meng Fan and finally said with some reluctance, it is indeed my incompetence that I am not as skilled as my disciple today, and that I am unable to avenge his death, but if we meet again one day, when it is you who are not as skilled as me, I will still kill you to avenge my disciple's death. Hearing this, Meng Fan smiled, we'll meet again someday? The gap between you and me will only widen by then. But where Li Fei Hua knew something about Meng Fan's cultivation speed, she wouldn't have said something so heavenly, other than that, in a year's time at the most, by that time, Meng Fan would be able to throw Li Fei Hua off and not be able to find her shadow even if he didn't rely on his human emperor bloodline. Li Fei Hua finished her vicious words and waved her hand at the coffin, which disappeared into thin air. Meng Fan's gaze was fixed, and he looked at a ring on Li Fei Hua's finger with some heat in his eyes. Just now, his divine sense caught a slight fluctuation in this ring. Storage ring, without a doubt. This was the legendary storage ring. The great moon imperial dynasty was poor to the bone so it was naturally impossible for them to have such a high-end treasure as a storage ring. Moreover, normally, only land immortals at the Yuaning realm were able to access the storage ring. Although Meng Fan's cultivation had skyrocketed during this period of time, he hadn't had the opportunity to touch the storage ring. Looking at the storage ring on Li Fei Hua's finger, Meng Fan couldn't help but be flooded with greed. Should we kill this Li Fei Hua and hijack the storage ring? Of course, thinking about it, Meng Fan definitely wouldn't do it. Because of not killing Li Fei Hua and giving her the option to live, Meng Fan had his own considerations. He had killed Mia Ruying before, and now he had attracted Li Fei Hua. If we kill Li Fei Hua now, who will we attract later? Without killing Li Fei Hua, even if Li Fei Hua still wanted to take revenge, it would only be her who would come looking for trouble. For this Li Fei Hua itself, Meng Fan didn't have much to fear. However, after killing Li Fei Hua, it might alert the higher ups of the Qian Yuan Holy Land. In case a transformation god was lured out, it would be more trouble than it was worth. Chapter 58, Having Nothing to Do, Destroying a Sect by Hand, Weighing the Pros and Cons, Meng Fan still felt that it would be more economical not to kill Li Fei Hua. Of course, the premise is that this woman is sensible, knows how to advance and retreat, and does not seek death. After all, there was one thing to say, and Meng Fan's temper wasn't considered good. If this woman, Li Fei Hua, didn't know how to behave, Meng Fan would definitely still kill her directly. Fortunately, Li Fei Hua was also a woman who knew what was good for her. After collecting Nia Ruying's coffin, she directly turned around and left without any further nonsense. Meng Fan looked at Li Fei Hua's back and shook his head slightly. At this moment, Meng Fan's human emperor bloodline had already been activated, and it was considered a wasted loss that this fight hadn't been fought. Obviously, for Meng Fan, after activating the human emperor bloodline, it was a loss to his grandmother's house to just have Li Fei Hua scared out of her ass and roll away. Got to do a big job. Nowadays, Meng Fan, activating the human emperor bloodline, was able to keep it up for about an hour, which was much stronger than half an hour at the beginning. One hour is enough for Meng Fan to do something big. A few days ago, he was still thinking about going out of the palace to help Meng Xiaochan get some pills for cultivation, but at that time, he found it troublesome, and coupled with his own laziness, he put it aside. Now that he had activated the human emperor's bloodline and his cultivation had reached the late Yuanying stage, Meng Fan, who was among the strongest among the land immortals, it was time for him to go out of the palace and make a wave. After all, 
the human emperor bloodline had already been activated and could not be wasted. In just a moment, Meng Fan thought of where to go, although in the eyes of others, Meng Fan was a complete devil, murderous and ruthless, but in Meng Fan's own eyes, he was a solid good guy, as a good guy, it is natural to fight bad guys, to be chivalrous, to rob the rich and give to the poor, there's nothing wrong with robbing someone else's wealth to help your own poverty, 200 kilometers to the east of the great moon dynasty, there was a devilish sect called the six destruction devil sect, the six destruction demon sect, is a downright evil demonic sect, the disciples practicing under the sect, all feed on human blood, even the six destruction demon sect had a ground level technique that used an infant under a full moon as a cauldron to build the foundation of this technique, it can be unconscionable, under normal circumstances, this is the kind of evil that everyone calls out, but this six extinction demon sect was situated in the great moon dynasty, and the previous great moon dynasty was so wasted that it was simply incapable of dealing with the six extinction demon sect, that's why this evil to the core sect has survived to this day. Meng Fan had actually had the idea of dealing with the six extinction demon sect for a long time, but there hadn't been a suitable opportunity. Now after activating the human emperor bloodline and scaring off Li Fei Hua, there was nowhere to use his power, so it was just the right time to go and find trouble with the six extinction demon sect. At the late stage of Yuaning cultivation, the speed was extremely astonishing. With a distance of 200 kilometers, Meng Fan stepped on his sword and it was almost as if it only took 10 minutes to get there, counting the time, there was still a small half an hour before the human emperor's bloodline was extinguished and the big moon, that's enough, with a sweep of his divine sense, Meng Fan directly covered the entire six extinction demon sect, two Jin Dan, seven foundation establishment, innate uncountable, in terms of strength, it's inferior to even the golden element temple, Meng Fan laughed coldly in his heart, just from this point alone, one could tell that those vultures of the Golden Origin Temple were moralistic people. Killing your own mother is said to be a demon subduing crown. But her own mother was just a silly white girl who fell in love. What has she ever harmed? And this six destruction demon sect is so evil that it doesn't even spare newborn babies. But the Golden Origin Temple doesn't care. With the ability of the Golden Origin Temple, there was hope of eradicating this evil six extinction demon sect. As a result, they don't do anything, and things don't matter. Surrender the demons and get rid of the devils. Demons that have not committed murder are surrendered. So why don't we care about demons that have done nothing wrong? Is this our Buddhist compassion? So with regards to the matter of stepping on the Golden Origin Temple, Meng Fan didn't have the slightest bit of regret so far, since Buddha did not subdue the devil. Then Meng Fan, a deviant devil in the eyes of others, personally came to put down the devil. The devil crosses all beings, in front of the six destruction demon sect's main gate. Meng Fan was stopped by the disciple guarding the gate. Who are you? And what is your business here in my six destruction demon sect? This was a routine cross-examination. Not directed at Meng Fan. Meng Fan stood at the doorway and coldly looked at the disciple guarding the door. There was less than half an hour left for the human emperor bloodline to activate its state. So time was precious and there was no need to waste it. However, even if the human emperor bloodline activation state ended and returned to its normal state, Meng Fan was not afraid of this six extinction demon sect. With Meng Fan's normal state, it was also enough to walk horizontally in the Six Destruction Demon Sect, but it was unlikely that he would want to step on the Six Destruction Demon Sect. Meng Fan's descent into the Six Extinction Demon Sect at this moment wasn't to act as a bully. He had come to kill, kill the pain. Asking you? That disciple guarding the gate saw that Meng Fan was not speaking, and immediately rebuked in a somewhat stern voice. The Six Destroyed Devil Sect, not who want to enter can enter, do not self-report home can only be blocked out. Meng Fan didn't denounce himself, he just casually glared at this disciple guarding the gate. Next, boom, this disciple's body exploded, his blood mist drifting away, completely dead, doesn't want to let himself in, so he's in, outside, kill as usual. Meng Fan's face was expressionless as he indifferently looked at this plaque in front of the six destruction demon sex mountain gate. Who dares to come to my six destruction demon sect to cause trouble? A cultivator at the foundation establishment realm rushed out. Someone actually dared to openly kill their six extinction demon sex gatekeeper disciple. This was a naked provocation. This foundation establishment cultivator coldly looked at Meng Fan. Obviously this was the murderer. Who are you and why have you come to my six destruction demon sect to cause trouble? Don't you know that this is seeking death? Hearing the words of this foundation establishment cultivator, Meng Fan laughed and said in a teasing tone, I'm not here to seek death. I'm here to send you to your deaths. Unbridled this foundation establishment cultivator was furious and drew his sword to slash at Meng Fan. In the next second, 
his body exploded and his sword fell to the ground, dead. Around them, many disciples of the six extinction demon sect were dumbfounded and scared to the point of successive regrets. This foundation establishment cultivator was a deacon of the six destruction demon sect, and many of the disciples recognized him, knowing that he was a strong person of the foundation establishment realm, but such a strong person actually died without a word. The disciples who saw the scene were naturally all scared less. Six destruction demon sect sect master, come out and meet me. Meng Fan let out a stern cry, his voice like thunder, domineering and harsh. Upon hearing this stern cry, the six destruction demon sect's patriarch, Nya Wuzhu, was instantly startled, because an existence that could make such a sound was, after all, a supreme expert. He did not dare to be negligent. Although Meng Fan had come to kill, the killing had to be done in an honorable manner. At least give notice of being killed so they can be prepared. It's called openness. That's what Meng Fan thought anyway. Otherwise killing all of them without a word has a sneaky, not painful enough feel to it. Soon, the six destruction demon sex patriarch, Nya Wuzhu, appeared in front of Meng Fan. This was a late Jin Dan stage existence, whose cultivation could already be considered extremely strong in the secular world. If the experts of the Holy Land did not come out, he could definitely walk horizontally, which was also the reason why the Six Destruction Demon sect had been a scourge for many years but still stood. It's still true that a strong fist is a good thing. Nia Wuzhu glanced at the two corpses on the ground and had some ominous premonitions in his heart before turning to Meng Fan and asking, Who is your excellency? I don't know what enmity you have with the Six Extinction Demon sect that you put people to death the moment you come up. Meng Fan glanced at Nia Wuzhu and said with a smile, Eighth Prince of the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty, Meng Fan. Hearing Meng Fan declare his home, Nia Wuzhu was instantly startled. The Great Moon's Eighth Prince, nowadays, could be said to be as famous as Thunder. Your Highness the Eighth Prince has descended upon the Six Extinction Demon Sect. I wonder what the purpose is, Nia Wuzhu asked with a bit of doubt. The smile on Meng Fan's face tightened, and he said in as calm a tone as possible, Notify your Six Destruction Demon Sect of one thing. What is it? Nia Wuzhu asked a bit seriously. The rumors in the Janghu were that the Golden Element Temple had all been destroyed by Meng Fan, the eighth prince of the Great Moon, with his men. Within the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty, the Golden Origin Temple could be considered one of the strongest sect forces. The factions had never taken the court seriously before, but with the destruction of the Golden Element Temple, no one dared to underestimate the Great Moon Court. After today, there will be no more six extinction demons sect in the world. Meng Fan said in a somewhat cold tone, What does your highness mean by this? Nia Wuzhu's brows furrowed while his heart sank to the bottom. Listening to the eighth prince's tone, was he going to make a move against the six extinction demon sect? Isn't the meaning clear? This emperor, I will destroy your six extinction demon sect. Meng Fan had a cold face. My six destruction demon sect has no grievances or enmity with your highness. Why is your highness targeting my six destruction demon sect? Nia Wuzhu's face also went cold no longer being polite to Meng Fan. How can he still be polite when others have threatened to destroy your sect? Meng Fan shook his head and said, Naturally, I can't say that there's no injustice or enmity, but you, Six Destruction Demon Sect, have harmed the people of my great moon, and for that alone, you should be put to death. Nye Wuzhu naturally didn't believe in these crowning words, and he looked at Meng Fan somewhat helplessly. Your Highness the Eighth Prince, since you are willing to say so much to me, it proves that you don't have to fight to the death with me. The Six Extinction Demon Sect, to the death of the fish. Since that's the case, make an offer. Do you want anything at all? In Nye Wuzhu's opinion, Meng Fan was saying so much nonsense just because he wanted to gain some benefits from the Six Destruction Demon Sect here. He's seen a lot of people like that. On the surface, they appear to be honorable. But behind the scenes, they are all devils and monsters. Now that this Great Moon's Eighth Prince is in full swing, Nye Wuzhu really can't afford to mess with him a bit so he wants to break the bank to avoid disaster. As long as Meng Fan didn't ask for a lion's share of the money, he would accept it. Meng Fan froze slightly when he heard Nia Wuzhu's words. I didn't realize that my words had caused the other party to mistakenly think that he was here to extort money. I warn you to die with the best of intentions, and you treat me like a bandit? Meng Fan felt hurt that there was less and less truth and beauty in this world. Why are there so many misunderstandings between people? Meng Fan looked at Nia Wuzhu and said, You just asked me what I want? Not bad. What does your highness want? I want your six extinction demon sect, within ten breaths, to be overthrown. Chapter 59, within three breaths, this sect will be destroyed. Nia Wuzhu's face was cold, and he said in a chilling voice, Your highness the eighth prince, don't really think that I, the six destruction demon sect, am easy to bully. I've already taken a step back, 
so I hope you won't go too far. Meng Fan laughed, you've misunderstood. This emperor's son didn't come over here this time to rob, he came simply to kill. The reason why I've said so much to you is purely out of humanitarianism. I don't want you all to die for no reason. In that case, Nya Wuzhu had a hideous face, revealing killing intent. Then, then before he could finish his words, his entire body abruptly exploded into a mist of blood, even if it was a late Jin Dan stage. In front of Meng Fan at this moment, it would still be a pinch and explode without the slightest ability to resist. In that case, within three breaths, this clan will be destroyed. Meng Fan took over Nye Wuzhu's words with an expressionless face. At this moment, Meng Fan's divine sense had already covered the entire Six Extinction Demon Sect, capturing countless disciples of the Six Extinction Demon Sect. Following that, he snapped his fingers. Next, within the Six Destruction Demon Sect, there were slight dull blasting sounds coming from everywhere. A bloody mist exploded within the Six Destruction Demon Sect. In just a second, nearly 80% of the Six Destruction Demon Sect's disciples exploded in place, turning into pieces of blood mist. As for the remaining 20%, it wasn't that Meng Fan didn't have the ability to kill them, but he spared their lives and didn't kill them all. The reason why these 20% of the Six Destruction Demon Sect's disciples were let go was because they didn't have any baneful aura on their bodies. Fury, not blood. It's not that killing someone is tainted by the fury. A person who is tainted with the fury proves to have killed a lot of people who died in vain and unjustly. Within this Six Destruction Demon Sect, around 80% of the people had a fury on them, proving that they all deserved to die. Therefore, Meng Fan killed these people without mercy, and it could be described as cold-blooded. But the remaining 20%, which were not tainted with the fury, there might be good people or bad people in it. Meng Fan had no way to tell who was clean and who was unclean within these people, so he didn't kill any more of them, because Meng Fan, as a traveler, knew that neither the righteous nor the devilish path could be cut across. There are evil people within the righteous path, and there will be good people within the devil's path. So for those 20% of the six extinction demons sect disciples who didn't have any fury chi on their bodies, Meng Fan didn't kill them and spared their lives. The six destruction demon sect, which has done so much evil and has lost its conscience, has been destroyed by this imperial prince. Those of you who survived still have some conscience and have not lost your humanity. So this emperor did not kill you. You are permitted to leave the six extinction demon sect freely. But you need to remember that from now on, you are not allowed to do evil again. If anyone causes trouble for the party, this emperor will kill you all. So I hope you'll behave yourselves. Meng Fan's voice was like a flood of thunder that spread throughout the six extinction sword sect. The disciples who still survived all heard Meng Fan's words. These disciples who survived were all trembling, scared out of their wits and hearts. They had seen with their own eyes the tragic deaths of one of their fellow disciples around them, inexplicably bursting into pieces of blood mist, and were truly scared out of their wits. Now that they heard Meng Fan's voice, they each made birds and beasts and fled frantically, none of them having any thoughts of revenge. This kind of heavenly means, instantly destroying a sect, was simply the handiwork of an immortal god. Who would dare to have thoughts of revenge? Meng Fan watched expressionlessly as these disciples of the Six Extinction Demon Sect fled. In that instant, he had just killed nearly a thousand people. The tactics can be brutal. However, Meng Fan had no discomfort or softness in his heart and felt that these were the people who deserved to be killed. Now calmed, he frowned slightly. He thought it was a little strange how he could have such a cold side. Why this mentality of treating human life like dirt? In his previous life on Earth, he was nothing more than an ordinary man who had never killed a chicken or at most a few fish, coming into this world, the first 20 years of his own mediocrity had been a lottery, and again, he hadn't shown this cold and harsh side, why is it that when you turn on your cultivation, you can just be cold and murderous, Meng Fan frowned, after thinking about it, it was either the nine heavens emperor god technique that had affected him, or the six paths god body that had affected him, the greater probability was that it was the sixth Tao divine body, especially since the threefold supreme talent attached to the sixth Tao divine body was obviously extremely special. Moreover, every time after activating the human emperor bloodline, Meng Fan had even more of that mentality that all living beings were like ants, and would not have any negative emotions at all because of killing too many people. Alas, Meng Fan sighed. The sigh wasn't one of dissatisfaction with the state of affairs, though, just a slightly more complicated state of mind, descending into such a crisis-ridden immortal cultivation world. This kind of killing and decisive mindset is indeed more suitable for me, which is a good thing, Meng Fan muttered. If one is still as indecisive and even timid as on earth, one may die in this world without even knowing how. 
Meng Fan didn't feel that there was anything wrong with this kind of coldness and cold-bloodedness, not to mention that he still had the softness that belonged to his innermost being when he was facing the people he cared about. When it's time to kill, 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 and when it's time to be tender, you can be tender. Meng Fan shook his head, expelling these rotten thoughts from his mind. It looked like killing so many people at once still had an effect on him. Otherwise, these jumbled thoughts wouldn't have popped up just now. The time for the activation of the human emperor's bloodline was almost up. So Meng Fan seized the last moment and carefully scanned through the six extinction demons set with his divine sense. Finally, before the human emperor's bloodline was extinguished, he managed to find the six extinction demons sect's hidden treasure vault. When he was at the golden element temple, Meng Fan hadn't found the hidden treasure vault and had only brought back some gongfu and buddhist scriptures. Thinking about it, until now Meng Fan felt that something was wrong. Especially when compared to the six destruction demon sect, the golden origin temple was actually a bit stronger than the six destruction demon sect. Even the six destruction demon sect had a treasure trove. Why didn't the golden origin temple have one? When Meng Fan's divine sense had swept through the entire golden element temple, it was true that he hadn't found a place like the treasure vault. The only explanation for this is that the hidden treasures of the golden element temple are not actually in the golden element temple, but are hidden elsewhere. Meng Fan walked into the six destruction demon sect's hidden treasure vault. The most conspicuous thing to the eye was some gold and silver treasures, piled up in a few boxes in the corner. These things, gold and silver, are the pursuits of ordinary people who have struggled all their lives. But to the sovereign, they really only deserve to eat dust in the corner. What the clan cares more about is heavenly treasures, pills, weapons, and techniques. Meng Fan found the location where the feats were is and a dozen feats were placed on a row of bookshelves. Any technique that could be collected into the hidden treasure vault was naturally not a low-grade technique. Meng Fan glanced at one earth-grade technique, one earth-grade gun technique, and one earth-grade blade technique. The rest were all Xian-grade techniques and Xian-grade martial arts. Earth-level technique, magic infant Xian Yuan technique. This was the technique that the Six Destruction Demon sect was known for, and Meng Fan had heard about it before. That this technique required a baby to be used as a cauldron to cultivate it, which could be described as heartless. Meng Fan didn't hesitate to use his true essence to shatter this technique and completely destroy it. This kind of extremely vicious technique, Meng Fan himself would not cultivate it, nor would he want others to have the opportunity to cultivate it. That said, the reason why Meng Fan had chosen the six destruction demon sect to start with was because of this technique. With the earth grade techniques destroyed, Meng Fan was naturally not interested in the remaining earth grade gun techniques and blade techniques. As for the Xian level technique, Meng Fan didn't even bother to look at it and directly threw it on the ground. After looking at the feats, Meng Fan went to the area where the weapons were placed. Although he had already exited the state of the human emperor bloodline at this moment, Meng Fan was still able to distinguish between Xian grade weapons and earth grade weapons. As for heaven grade weapons, it was simply impossible for the six destruction demon sect to have them. In fact, not to mention heaven level weapons, even earth level weapons the six destruction demon sect didn't have. The weapon with the strongest aura, which was the top grade of the Xian class, was a precious sword. On top of that, there were a dozen or so Xian grade middle and lower grade weapons, swords, guns, and halberds. It's not easy to mix up an earth grade sword, Meng Fan muttered. It was mainly because the six extinction demon sect was too weak. If the six destruction demon sect was a sect with a Yuan Ing, then this harvest was absolutely astonishing. And there should be earth grade weapons. Meng Fan drew out a Xian grade mid grade sword weapon. Rin Swin's sword. After casually juggling it and feeling that it was quite handy, he threw away the Xian ice sword that he had used before. The Xian ice sword, which Meng Fan had casually taken out of the imperial palace, was only a Xian rank lower grade sword. Much worse than this Xian rank middle grade spirit wind sword. The rest of the Xian level weapons, Meng Fan packed in one breath. After looking at the techniques and weapons, the most important thing left was the pills. This was also the focus of Meng Fan's trip here, in addition to doing the right thing for heaven. At the same time, he also wanted to get some cultivation pills for Meng Xiaoshan. This treasure trove inside the six extinction demon sect, the pills inside were all described. The elixir in each box was clearly written what kind of elixir it was and what medicinal effects it had. After all, this thing called a potion looks basically exactly the same, other than the alchemist. It was difficult for others to tell the difference between the pills, so it was normal for there to be notes next to the pills. Meng Fan flipped through the pages and found that there were two types of pills that were suitable for Meng Xiaochan to use, both of which were pills that could be used at the Qi practicing realm. Qi gathering pill, condensed Yuan Dan, the effects were all similar. Anyway, 
They all enhanced the speed of cultivation in the qi practicing realm and accelerated the quenching of true qi. As for the other pills, Meng Fan didn't care much about them. After all, for himself, he didn't need pills. With his god-level techniques and god-level physique, it was enough for him to cultivate. Then inside this six destruction demon sex treasure trove, in addition to these things that Meng Fan had predicted, there was one last item that Meng Fan hadn't expected. Storage bag. The storage bag. This thing is not as precious as the storage ring. This was because storage rings needed to be recognized by their owners. While storage bags were public goods that could be used by anyone, a hint of surprise appeared on Meng Fan's come energy. He had eyed Li Fei Hua's storage ring before, but in the end, he didn't lay a hand on Li Fei Hua. As a result, he didn't expect that he would actually be able to obtain a storage bag inside this tiny six destruction demon sect. Although it was said that the storage bag was not as precious as the storage ring, it was still an absolute treasure that ordinary people simply couldn't touch. Meng Fan tried and opened the storage bag with his divine sense. He realized that the storage bag was empty and contained nothing. As for the size of the interior space, it is about the capacity of a small room. It's not big, but it's enough. Meng Fan sent all of the precious things inside this treasure trove of the six destruction demons sect into his storage bag, then walked out of the treasure trove. He left the six destruction demons sect with a refreshed look on his face and returned to the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty. Chapter 60, The Emperor's Wedding, Assassins. Returning to the Great Moon Dynasty, Meng Fan did not fill the palace treasury with these things either. These things, were Meng Fan's private items? Throwing them into the palace treasury would be too selfless. Not Meng Fan's style. The pills that were suitable for Meng Xiaochan's use were all given to Meng Xiaochan, and Meng Xiaochan was instructed to earnestly cultivate, and then Meng Fan returned to Moonlight Palace to continue his seclusion. After Meng Tianji ascended the throne, the Great Lunar Dynasty was handled in a well-organized manner without any problems. After all, he had been the crown prince before and had assisted Meng Chuanxiu in handling the affairs of state, so he was quite comfortable when he became emperor. Then during this period of time, Wei Changfeng was also mixing it up. Everyone knew that he was the 8th Prince Meng Fan's man, so his status rose, and even Meng Tianji was unwilling to offend Wei Changfeng. This chief of the great inner circle is really mixed up to the point of one person under 10,000 people, which can be called the 9,000 years old. For all of this, Meng Fan didn't care and didn't put it on his mind. The only thing he cared about was his cultivation, striving to break through to the Yuaning realm as soon as possible and become a genuine land god. In the blink of an eye, another month had passed, and Meng Fan was only one step away from the late Jin Dan stage, a foot away from the door. On this day, Meng Tianji was married and invited Meng Fan, as his elder brother was getting married. This face Meng Fan still had to give, so he came out of seclusion. The person Meng Tianji married was Lu Shuriwe, the daughter of the current chancellor Lu Bin. This Lu Shuriyu is going to be the queen. The Great Dragon Dynasty was prepared to marry the third princess Qin Shanglan to Meng Tianji. But Meng Tianji didn't want the great dragon's princess to be the empress, and he has not yet married. So before the third princess of the great dragon marries over, he marries the daughter of the chancellor of the dynasty and then makes her his queen. When the third princess of the great dragon marries, she will only be able to be a consort. Today's palace is decorated with lights and red makeup. The emperor's wedding, naturally, is a joyful event. The palace one eunuchs and palace maids face are all smiles. And it's not really about laughing. It's about not daring to not laugh. Anyone who dares to make a face today is afraid of being killed alive. Meng Xiaochan found Meng Fan early in the morning and went to the wedding site with him. For Meng Xiaochan, although she and Meng Tianji weren't considered to be much closer, there was still some sibling love. Meng Tianji wasn't exactly close to Meng Xiaochan since they were young, but he wasn't deliberately estranged either, and had occasionally taken care of Meng Xiaochan. This was also the reason why Meng Fan was willing to let Meng Tianji ascend to the throne as the emperor. If Meng Tianji had bullied Meng Xiaochan, it would be a dream to become the emperor. I have to say, Meng Tianji has been kind and gentle with people since he was a child, and he still has some returns. Imperial brother. The third imperial brother is all married, and is marrying two imperial sisters-in-law in a row within a month. Meng Xiaochan looked at Meng Fan and said smilingly, When are you going to find me a sister-in-law as well? Today, Meng Tianji is getting married to Lu Shuriwe, the daughter of the current chancellor. In about half a month's time, the third princess of the great dragon will also marry, marrying two people in a row within a month. Meng Tianji is also considered to be enjoying the blessings of all people. Meng Fan, however, was not envious at all. A woman would only affect the speed of his cultivation. So what was the point of having a woman? However, while thinking so, he couldn't help but see the figure of Qin Shangming, the seventh princess of the great dragon, popping up in his mind. 
This human immortal reincarnation, with her overwhelming appearance and outstanding demeanor, had indeed left a deep impression in Meng Fan's mind. Imperial brother, what are you colorfully thinking about? Meng Xiaochan's eyes widened as she looked at Meng Fan with a shocked expression. Royal brother, you don't have a favorite, do you? Meng Fan glared at Meng Xiaochan and reprimanded. Nonsense about something? What do you mean by colorful? Simply no big deal. Then he gave Meng Xiaochan a pop at her forehead, which hurt so much that Meng Xiaochan had tears in her eyes. Royal brother, be gentle. Meng Fan laughed. You're at least a fourth level chi practicing martial artist now. You can't even endure this much pain? Outside the palace, in the middle of the large sedan chair, Lu Shuriwei and her maid were sitting upright, preparing to enter the palace. Miss, after today, you will be the empress mother. The slave girl is here to congratulate Miss First. Lu Shuriyu's maid, Xiao Wan, said smilingly to Lu Shuriyu. Lu Shuriyu's face, however, didn't have much of an elated look on it. In fact this daughter of the chancellor had been in love with Meng Tian Xiao, the third prince of the great moon since she was a child. Unfortunately, this Meng Tian Xiao always in the military campaign, the falling flowers have no love, especially after Meng Tian Xiao died in battle, Lu Shuri wet all day in tears. As a result, she was now allowed to marry Meng Tian Xiao's younger brother, Meng Tian Ji, which was also really destructive. For the sake of the Lu family and for her father, she had to marry again. Miss, are you unhappy? The maid Xiao Huan looked at Lu Shuri Yu's face and asked with some worry. Lu Shuriwei shook her head and said, marriage is a big deal, parents orders, to be able to marry the emperor and become the empress, what else can I be unhappy about, entering the palace and becoming the queen is naturally something that every woman has fantasized about, unfortunately, the beauty of it was that that emperor's name wasn't Meng Tian Xiao, the maid Xiao Huan said, miss, I heard that although this his majesty is the noble emperor, the most honorable person in the great moon is not his majesty, but the legendary eighth prince, no, it should become the 8th prince now, if the young lady can marry the 8th prince and become a royal consort, it might instead be more scenic than becoming a queen, this girl's words sounded simply absurd, how could the status of the crown princess be higher than that of the empress, in other imperial dynasties, this was indeed absurd, but in the great moon, it was a fact, Lu Shuyue's face changed, coldly said to the maid, deliberate, don't talk nonsense, the palace is not the Lu house, talk must be over the brain, Nonsense by the time you this dead girl, death don't know how to die. The maid hurriedly lowered her head and looked around a bit nervously, but at the moment she was in the sedan chair and couldn't see anything. Soon the palanquin entered the palace, the emperor's wedding, the scene is naturally extremely grand. At this moment the entire palace is full of joy, everyone is busy with the emperor's wedding. Meng Fan and Meng Xiaochan had come to the wedding site and were quietly waiting for the bride to enter the palace. Imperial brother. It's estimated that no one will dare to make a mess in the bridal chamber for this big wedding. Do you want to go and make a mess? Meng Xiaochan said smilingly, who dares to mess with the emperor's bridal chamber? In the entire great moon, it was probably only Meng Fan who dared, and only he had this qualification. Meng Fan pointed at Meng Xiaochan's forehead and said with a smile, it doesn't hurt again does it? Meng Xiaochan rolled her eyes and muttered, bullying the small with the big, bullying the weak. It didn't take long for Lu Shuyue's sedan chair to enter the palace, and then still worship heaven and earth and all the fixed procedures, even if it is the emperor, the son of heaven, the marriage should worship heaven and earth or to worship heaven and earth, one bow to heaven and earth, second worship, husband and wife worship each other, just as Meng Tianji and Lu Shuyue were bowing their heads in obeisance, one of the guards beside Lu Shuyue violently drew his sword, the blade was like silver, and blood appeared, Lu Shuyue, who was in the middle of the couple's worship, had just lowered her head when her entire head fell directly to the ground, blood was pouring out of his body and he was dead, the scene of change stunned everyone, an assassin on such an important occasion, and the assassin was the emperor's personal guard in the palace, fortunately, the guard had assassinated Lu Shuriwe, if the assassin had been Meng Tianji, then at this moment, his majesty, the emperor of the great moon, might have simply collapsed, there's an assassin, a cry of alarm rang out, while Meng Fan was farther away from Meng Tianji and Lu Shuriwe, the assassin was close to the bride and groom, coupled with the fact that Lu Shuriwe hadn't practiced martial arts at all, she didn't have the slightest ability to resist, and was decapitated in an instant, so just now with that slash, even Meng Fan couldn't react, a true change of heart, Meng Fan's brows furrowed, someone actually dared to cause trouble at the great moon emperor's wedding, this was no longer a disturbance, the empress was openly decapitated in full view of the emperor and empress while they were paying their respects. This is simply, looking for death, indeed, 
He was looking for death, and the guard who made a move to decapitate the empress was taken down in an instant, without the ability to resist. Meng Fan's divine sense swept over the guard who had struck out, and this assassin's face was currently filled with confusion and dullness. Why? What are you doing? What are you arresting me for? This guard seemed to have no idea what he had done, and was shouting there. Everyone thought that this assassin was playing dumb, having just decapitated the empress in full view of the public. This was something that could not be denied. Meng Fan's frown, however, grew deeper and deeper as his divine sense clearly detected a bizarre mass of consciousness in the guard's mind that was gradually dissipating. It seemed that it was this mass of consciousness that had just been manipulating this guard. This guard had just, most likely, had no idea what was going on, and he had been completely manipulated by someone else to become a puppet. Meng Fan wanted to capture this mass of consciousness, but it was already too late. Consciousness dissipates, and you can't even find out who's behind it if you want to. However, there was no need to look into this matter to be able to know that it was definitely the Great Dragon Dynasty that was behind it. This caused Meng Fan's face to grow cold. Although he didn't take the Great Moon Palace seriously, as long as he was still in the Great Moon, then the Great Moon was his turf, and he couldn't allow anyone else to be wild. Is this person crazy to assassinate the Empress in public? Isn't this looking for death? Meng Xiaochan said with some anger on her face. In her opinion this guard dared to disrupt the wedding and assassinate the Empress. He really deserved to die. He is indeed crazy. Meng Fan said casually, not explaining more later. If there was no way to uncover the person behind the curtain, then there was no point in speaking out about your findings. Meng Xiaochan sighed and said, for something like this to happen on the wedding day, sixth imperial brother must be very sad and upset. Meng Fan shook his head and said, sadness and grief is not so bad. After all, he hasn't even met the daughter of the Zaifu and doesn't have the slightest affection. But this matter did hit him in the face. The anger and suffocation is definitely there. Imperial brother, why do you think this guard assassinated the empress? Could it be that he has a grudge against the chancellor? Or have a grudge against the empress? Meng Xiaochan asked with some confusion. Meng Fan sighed. He has no grudge against anyone. In fact he's worse than the queen. Chapter 61, A Letter of Repudiation, Humiliating the Great Dragon. The queen was killed purely to get in the way of certain people. In some people's eyes, the queen had to die. This guard, however, was truly unlucky. He was just a randomly chosen pawn. The man behind the curtain could have chosen him or someone else. So he could have stayed alive. But it was bad luck that it was his turn to die. Admittedly, at the moment he was only imprisoned. Not dead. But beheading the queen with his own hands. Whether he was wronged or not. In the end he was bound to die and could not escape. Even Meng Fan. Even though he knew that this guard had grievances, he wouldn't save him. Soon after, the wedding was cancelled. Lu Shuriwei is dead. This wedding is a joke. Naturally it should be terminated. The groom, Meng Tianji's face was ugly, and like Meng Fan, he instantly thought of who was behind it. It must be the Great Dragon Dynasty. When the Great Dragon Dynasty wanted to marry a princess over, they naturally hoped that their princess would become the empress. Now that Meng Tianji had intentionally married early to find himself a queen, this was something that the Great Dragon Dynasty was unwilling to see. As long as Lu Shuriwe was killed and then the third princess was sent over as soon as possible, then the Queen of the Great Moon would be Qin Shanglan, the third princess of their Great Dragon. With regards to this, Meng Tianji knew it all too well. But for the other party to blatantly assassinate Lu Shuriwe while worshipping heaven and earth was simply slapping his face, slapping the face of the Great Moon, and reducing the entire Great Moon Dynasty to a laughingstock. That was something he couldn't accept. That night, Meng Tianji found Meng Fan. This time, instead of politely approaching Meng Xiaochan to inquire, he took the initiative to find Meng Fan. Why did your majesty personally come to me today? Meng Fan asked smilingly to Meng Tianji. Meng Fan, however, remembered very clearly that before. This guy didn't even dare to see himself, and whatever he had to do was to find Meng Xiaochan to pass it on from there. Obviously, Meng Tianji, the older brother, was afraid of Meng Fan, the younger brother. Eh? Just don't call me your majesty. I know I'm not worthy. Meng Tianji said somewhat helplessly. Meng Fan spoke. There's no such thing as worthy or unworthy. In terms of the position of great moon emperor, you are indeed the most suitable. Meng Tianji shook his head with a despondent expression. But if you were the emperor, they would definitely not dare to be so rampant today. Going so far as to blatantly behead Lu Shuriwe while worshipping heaven and earth, which is an insult to the entire great moon. In fact, it wasn't a matter of dare or not. If Meng Fan was the emperor, they would definitely dare as well. However, if Meng Fan stood by Lu Shiryu's side, the assassin wouldn't be able to kill Lu Shiryu at all. 
But there was no way Meng Fan could argue about this with Meng Tianji at this time. It was completely pointless. You took the initiative to come to me. Surely you didn't come from a place of mourning and self-hatred. What exactly do you have in mind? Meng Fan asked directly. If there wasn't something going on, Meng Tianji wouldn't have been able to take the initiative to find himself at all. This guy was actually quite afraid of spending time with himself. Meng Tianji looked at Meng Fan and said with some hesitation. I want to refuse the marriage with the great dragon and refuse to marry that great dragon's princess. The reason for some hesitation is the lack of bottom line. The reason why he had found Meng Fan was also because the bottom line was not enough. For one, it was his Meng Tianji's bottom line that was lacking, but rather the bottom line of the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty. But Meng Fan was the bottom line of the Great Moon Dynasty, and also the bottom line of him, Meng Tianji, so he came to find Meng Fan. Why? Meng Fan asked. Meng Tianji was full of seriousness. This great dragon dynasty, claiming that it wants to marry a princess over in a marriage with the great moon dynasty, but to humiliate the great moon dynasty so much just to make their princess the great moon empress, this did not put the great moon dynasty in their eyes at all. Big moon isn't as good as big dragon, but that was before. Now that you're around, I don't think Atsuki has the right to be so unbridled and rampant. I came to you to ask you if you would stand up for big moon. Would you stand up for me? The Great Moon with Meng Fan and the Great Moon without Meng Fan were completely on two levels. If there was no Meng Fan to back him up, then Meng Tianji would only be able to resign himself to this humiliation from the Great Dragon. Then honestly, let Qin Shanglan, the third princess of the Great Dragon, be the empress. But if he had Meng Fan's backing, he would dare to stand up, and he would dare to fight to the death with Big Dragon. Meng Fan smiled and said, As long as I'm still in Great Moon for one day, I will naturally stand up for Great Moon. As for you, even though we haven't had much of a brotherly bond since we were kids, you're my older brother anyway, it's okay if I bully you, but it's definitely not okay for others to bully you, so, naturally, I'll stick up for you too, you feel that the great dragon dynasty has gone too far, that they have humiliated you and humiliated the great moon dynasty, then you should do it back, I'll take care of them, hearing Mang Fan's words, Mang Tianji's face immediately flushed, it's not a spring in your step, it's a heartbeat, excited, from the moment he ascended the throne as emperor, he had felt like a puppet, even though Meng Fan had never interfered in the affairs of state and had given him enough freedom, but he still feels that he is a paper tiger, and there is no bottom to this emperor, it always feels like you're the one who's soft, the one who's a loser, therefore, after being so humiliated by the great dragon dynasty today, he could only break his teeth and swallow it in his stomach, not daring to really retaliate against the great dragon dynasty, but he really wasn't willing, so he drank two tails of wine to build up his courage and came to find Meng Fan. On a normal day he was a one blast pourer. Two tails was quite a lot for him. Now that he heard Meng Fan's words, he suddenly had the feeling that he could get a heart on. So what if it's the great dragon dynasty? Him to death. Not with a wimp. This time he's going to be tough to the end. It wasn't until Meng Tianji, who had a mouth full of alcohol, left the moonlight palace that Meng Fan shook his head with a bitter smile. There is certainly a very cool side to being an emperor killing and destroying the people on the sidelines, and only having a hand in the world, but when the emperor also has a helpless side, other people are aggrieved there are people can be confided in, but the emperor is not, can only be hard to resist, Meng Tianji was undoubtedly lucky that he had someone to talk to and even someone to give him help, five days later, Tai Lung's family delivery team arrived, Qin Shanglun, the third princess of the great dragon, had arrived at the palace, this time, she was running for the position of queen, once Lu Shuriwei died, these five short days were too short for Meng Tianji to refinance a wedding, and naturally, he was unable to crown an empress. Qin Shanglan came to consummate her marriage with Meng Tianji, who was destined to become the empress of the Great Moon Dynasty. However, what everyone did not anticipate was that not only did Qin Shanglan not become the empress of the Great Moon, she was instead sent back to the Great Dragon Dynasty. Meanwhile, Qin Shanglan, who returned to the Great Dragon Dynasty, was carrying a paper. Letter of Repudiation, Meng Tianji and Qin Shanglan, both of whom had not consummated their marriages and were not married, could not be considered husband and wife. This letter of repudiation was simply a naked humiliation, a humiliation of the great dragon dynasty. When he threw this letter of repudiation in Qin Shanglan's face, Meng Tianji didn't know how refreshed he was at the time, and he stood up completely, stood up like a man, really cool. As for how the great dragon dynasty would respond after having a good time, he no longer cared, the big deal is that it's a dry run, and no one is going to wimp out on anyone, however, the next day above the court, Meng Tianji was accused by many ministers, said he was too impulsive, 
not conducive to the two countries' friendly relations and so on clouds. For all of these remarks, Meng Fan had directly waved his hand and strongly suppressed them. Painful. Many days later, when Qin Shanglan returned to the Great Dragon Dynasty, it immediately caused the entire Great Dragon to be outraged. Letter of repudiation. Not even a marriage. Not even half a name. And you bring back a letter of repudiation? This is naked provocation. Many people petitioned the Great Dragon Emperor to send troops to attack the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty. We're not going to take it. But the Emperor of the Great Dragon hesitated. When the Emperor considers more things, he cannot act on his own accord. Just like Meng Tianji before him, he had a lot to think about and couldn't act on his own accord. But Meng Fan had said that he would give him a backing, so he was qualified to be righteous. However, behind Emperor Qin Feihong of the Great Dragon, there was no one like Meng Fan to back him up. So, in the end, Qin Feihong, the Emperor of the Great Dragon Dynasty, still didn't use his troops against the Great Moon. Of course, he didn't swallow it. Previously, he was preparing to join forces with Great Moon and Annex Great Wind. This time, he turned to join forces with Great Wind to annex Great Moon. Wallflowers, both sides of the fence. Meng Fan naturally didn't care about these things. He didn't care half as much about the affairs of state. He promised to back up Meng Tianji, and at most, he would come down to the field to fight when it was time to do so. A crucial moment to give Dalin a painful kill. As it turned out, Big Dragon wimped out and he was even less of a concern. Seven or eight days had passed since Qin Shangming had returned to the Great Dragon Dynasty with a letter of repudiation. Meng Fan had also successfully cultivated to the late Jin Dan realm after this period of hard cultivation. Name, Meng Fan. Life expectancy, 20-713. Race, human. Cultivation, late Jin Dan. Technique, 9 heavenly empery and spirit technique, divine grade. Physique, 6 paths divine body, divine grade. Supreme talent, sword Dao Tongshan, top qualification in sword Dao. Any sword technique can be learned at once, and the power of the sword technique is enhanced. Supreme talent, hegemonic stance, any female in your presence will be weakened. Supreme talent, human emperor's bloodline, activating the human emperor's bloodline in the body will enhance your cultivation by accepting the world's fortune. Sword techniques, heavenly flying fairy, Shen level. Holy spirit sword technique, heaven level. 10,000 swords returning to the father, earth level. And Jintian sword drawing technique, heaven level. Weapons, spirit wine sword, Shen grade. Regulus sword, heaven grade. It was getting closer and closer to the Yuaning realm, separated only by a peak Jin Dan. Meng Fan was highly motivated and was looking forward to secluding himself to the peak Jin Dan realm with a bang. As a result, a piece of news interrupted his rhythm and forced him to come out. A messenger from the 10,000 Demon Kingdom, claiming to be the messenger that Demon King by Xiaotian sat down with. Demon Race. Under normal circumstances, the Demon Race was the object of everyone's ire in the world of the human race. Of course, this refers to the frail demon race. Demons with great strength could likewise run rampant amongst the human race. Whether it was the world of the human race or the world of the demon race, it was actually the same thing. The truth of having a big fist. Stronger is better. Everywhere. This demon clan emissary possessed a cultivation of the early Jin Dan realm. So if he wanted to see Meng Fan, there was simply no one who could stop him. Chapter 62 Dozens of Beautiful Concubines Nearly 100 Children In the secular world, the human race had many imperial dynasties and countries, as well as sects and clans. The presence of so many forces in the forest creates a fragmentation of power. The power of each imperial dynasty and each clan was not too strong. However, the demon race didn't have any sects or denominations, and there was only one kingdom, which was the 10,000 Demon Kingdom. Most of the demon race was in the eastern wasteland, and the 10,000 Demon Kingdom encompassed almost the entire demon race. So the power of this 10,000 demon kingdom was beyond doubt. Even if it was a certain holy land of the human race, it would be unbeatable in front of the huge 10,000 demon kingdom. Of course, if the several great sacred lands were to unite, they would naturally be able to resist the 10,000 demon kingdom. As for the immortal sect, there's nothing to say about this. It's not a dimension. And it's a bit of a bully to strike down a dimension. The immortal sect was a power in the true spirit realm, completely surpassing the secular realm and incomparable. And the demon race also had a not so weak power in the true spirit realm. So a transcendent power like the immortal sect could only be compared to the demon race in the true spirit realm. The demon race of the secular realm, buttressed by the human race of the secular realm. All in all, in terms of separate forces, there was no force in the secular world that could be stronger than the 10,000 demon kingdom. So the human race both hates and fears the demon race. Meng Fan's emotions towards the demon race were even more complicated. After all, 
The vultures of the Golden Element Temple had said that his mother, by Susu, was a demon race. He, himself, had the bloodline of the demon race flowing in him. In this regard, Meng Fan was half believing, not fully believing but also not completely disbelieving, because the abbot of the Golden Element Temple had said that his mother was by Susu was of the fox bloodline, also known as Vixen. When it comes to vixens, the first thing that comes to mind is that they are woefully long and absolutely beautiful. If what the abbot of the Golden Origin Temple said was true, then Meng Fan was considered half a vixen. The reason why Meng Fan would believe it was because his face value was so high that he did have a tendency to be a vixen. But if Meng Fan was a little bit uglier, he wouldn't believe the words of that bald donkey from the Golden Origin Temple. Boom Meng Fan's door was blasted open, and a group of guards lay outside the door. A young man dressed in white appeared in front of Meng Fan. The man was handsome, with a good instrument and a rather dusty temperament. He was the messenger under the demon king by Xiaotian's seat. Your Highness the Eighth Prince, it's really not easy to see you. This messenger said with a smile on his face. Meng Fan said expressionlessly, Your Excellency's rampage straight into this king's moonlight palace doesn't look like it's not going to be easy. It's simply a breeze. As for this demon race envoy, Meng Fan couldn't figure out the other party's intentions, and couldn't tell if he was a foe or a friend. Therefore, Meng Fan's attitude wasn't too overbearing and was much gentler than usual. If it was determined that it was an enemy breaking into the house, Meng Fan would have already just drawn his sword and slashed. At the early stage of Jin Dan, one was certainly strong in the eyes of others, and could run rushot over many places. But in front of Meng Fan, this kind of thing was one sword at a time, and he was able to cut down ten of them in one breath. Your Highness don't misunderstand. The reason why I trespassed into your highness's chambers is entirely because those people outside were not cooperative. In fact, I came this time with no malicious intent. The messenger opened his mouth to explain. If you had any malicious intent, you'd already be a corpse by now. Meng Fan said coldly and mercilessly. Tell me, who are you and what are you doing here? Hearing Meng Fan's lofty tone, the messenger then took a serious look at Meng Fan. This measurement can't. Surprisingly, he couldn't see through Meng Fan's cultivation. His Royal Highness, the renowned Eighth Prince, had a long list of battle records and had killed many experts in a row, so it was naturally impossible for him to be an ordinary person with no cultivation. This meant that Meng Fan's cultivation level was even stronger than his. He himself was already in the early Jin Dan realm. Could it be that this His Highness, the Eighth Prince, was in the middle Jin Dan stage? Or even, a late Jin Dan stage? Upon realizing this, the messenger immediately put away his playful attitude and turned to a face full of seriousness and earnestness, showing his respect for Meng Fan. He knew very well that what Meng Fan had just said wasn't wrong. If he had come with malice, he would probably be a corpse by now. I am a young demon under the seat of the fire throat demon king of the 10,000 demon kingdom, Shang Fei Yu. This fellow introduced himself and explained his identity. The fire throat demon king is Bai Xiaotian, the rumored father of Bai Susu. Of course, true or false. You can't jump to conclusions. What is it that you are looking for me for? Meng Fan asked, still with a cold face. In fact, he already had some hidden guesses in his mind that this guy was not sent by anyone else in the demon race, but was sent by Bai Xiaotian. Then there is a high probability that it has something to do with his own mother, Bai Su Su. This time I came to ask to see your highness. It's actually the intention of the fire throat demon king. He wants to meet you. This little demon named Sheng Fei Yu said, sure enough. It was just as Meng Fan had guessed. Fire throat demon king, why does he want to see me? Meng Fan asked. Sheng Fei Yu glanced at Meng Fan, then said somewhat cautiously, There are rumors that you, your highness, are the grandson of the demon king, so the demon king sent me to invite you. Rumors? Meng Fan coldly looked at Sheng Fei Yu. Does he, Bai Xiaotian, not know if my mother, Bai Su Su, is his Bai Xiaotian's daughter, a father who doesn't even know where his daughter is? If there are rumors, why doesn't he go see his daughter for himself? Why haven't you thought about avenging your own daughter after all these years? Meng Fan questioned Shang Fei Yu in a stern voice. The expression on his face was a bit cold, and his tone carried a bit of harshness. In Meng Fan's view, Meng Chuanxiu was certainly not a thing, but this by Xiao Tian, as a father, was also absolutely unqualified. When Shang Fei Yu heard Meng Fan's questioning, he said with some embarrassment, Back then, Miss Susu insisted on leaving the 10,000 Demon Kingdom and her relationship with the Demon King was so deadlocked that she even ended up severing her relationship, which completely angered the Demon King. In fact all these years, the Demon King didn't know where Miss Susu was, or even if she was dead or alive. It was also during this period of time when you, your highness, 
rose out of nowhere that the news reached the 10,000 Demon Kingdom and reached the ears of the Demon King, hearing Shang Fei Yu's words, Meng Fan couldn't help but sigh in his heart. Back then, her own mother, by Su Su, had gone so far as to fall out with her family for such a scum as Meng Chuan Shou. It's really a case of one wrong step and all is lost. On the path of life, especially at that most critical point, that step must not be taken wrong. White Su, 4-1, is dead wrong. It looks like this fire-throat demon king, his heart is also ruthless enough, his own biological daughter, saying that he severed his relationship, has been unheard of for so many years? Meng Fan asked as he looked at Shang Fei Yu with some dissatisfaction. The awkward expression on Shang Fei Yu's face worsened, and he said somewhat helplessly, Lord Demon King has dozens of beautiful concubines and nearly a hundred children at his knee, so it's true that he can't be all things to every one of his children. Meng Fan instantly became taut, and that cold and indifferent expression on his face instantly collapsed. Dozens of beautiful concubines? Nearly one hundred children? This, the scum of the earth. No, you can't say it's scum, they are in a position of power, and you can't say it's scum if you love them. This Lord Demon King just wants to give a home to all the women who adore him. Meng Fan shook his head inside in his heart. If that was the case, reasonably speaking, this fire-throat demon king by Xiaotian couldn't really be blamed. People's children nearly a hundred. This mother of his own favor love brain, brainwashed for a human race to cut off relations with Bai Xiaotian. In this situation, after Bai Su Su left, Bai Xiaotian would still care about her to hell. Although Meng Fan didn't support Bai Xiaotian's behavior of having concubines and countless grandchildren, it was someone's freedom and there was nothing for him to meddle in. As for his own mother, Bai Su Su, Meng Fan sighed and could only say that his mother was blind and met a bad person, or even to put it bluntly, it was deserved. You swallow the bitter fruit of your own choosing. Meng Fan was a sensible person and did not resent Bai Xiaotian's head because of his mother. Of course, it was impossible for him to have any good feelings towards Bai Xiaotian. In any case, this guy is kind of a scumbag. Bai Xiaotian sent you to invite me to the 10,000 Demon Kingdom? Meng Fan asked to Shang Fei Yu. That's right. Shang Fei Yu nodded. He doesn't even care about his own daughter. So why would he care about me and specially come to invite me? Meng Fan asked. Your Highness, you've been famous for a while now and have attracted the attention of the Demon King. Although the Demon King has many children and grandchildren, there are not many accomplished ones. Most of them are wastes. So he pays more attention to you. Shang Fei Yu said. I grew up in the Great Moon Dynasty since I was young and am a proper human. What makes him think I'll go to the 10,000 Demon Kingdom? Meng Fan asked as he looked at this little demon called Shang Fei Yu. Shang Fei Yu was hairy from Meng Fan's look, and said with some trepidation, Lord Demon King, he, too, is just letting me try it out. Maybe you'll be interested in the 10,000 Demon Kingdom? Try? Meng Fan sneered. He wants you to tie me up, right? Shang Fei Yu hurriedly shook his head and denied. There's absolutely no such meaning. Hell if it doesn't mean that. Bai Xiaotian must have directly ordered this Sheng Fei Yu to forcefully take himself to the 10,000 demon country, meaning there is no difference between it and tying it back. Bai Xiaotian sending out a Jin Dan was already placing extreme importance on Meng Fan. The 10,000 demon kingdom was in the eastern wasteland, far away from the great Moon dynasty, so although Bai Xiaotian had gotten some news, it couldn't be talked about in much detail. Bai Xiaotian thought that a Jin Dan stepped in and took away a kid who was only 20 years old, and that it wasn't an easy thing to do? As a result, what Bai Xiaotian hadn't expected was that Meng Fan was outstanding to such an extent. A small early stage Jin Dan was really not enough to look at in front of Meng Fan. It was too far off. So, do you still think you can take me back to the 10,000 Demon Kingdom now? Meng Fan coldly looked at Shang Fei Yu. Shang Fei Yu's forehead was sweating. To be honest before entering this temple door, he didn't even think that this would happen. This 8th Prince's Highness, whom he had never met before, was actually stronger than himself? which was simply outrageous. Didn't you say that this 8th prince is only 20 years old? 20-year-old Jean Dan, did you practice in your mother's womb? This, villain is just a messenger. Your highness wants to go to the 10,000 demon country or not. Naturally it has to be decided by your highness yourself. How would villain dare to overstep his role? Chapter 63, The Wind God's Leg. Right at this moment, a voice came from Meng Fan's mind. Ding, you have been noticed by the fire-throat demon king of the 10,000 demon kingdom. By Xiao Tian, who wants to bring you to the 10,000 Demon Kingdom to identify you? Once it is established that you are Bai Xiao Tian's grandson, then Bai Xiao Tian will do his best to cultivate you, and now you have the following two choices. Option 1, go to the land of 10,000 demons and let Bai Xiao Tian identify himself. Make sure that he is his grandson, and get his full cultivation. Reward, Shattered Jade Sword. 
Option 2, refuse to go to the land of 10,000 demons, ignore Bai Shao Tian, and believe that you can be no weaker than Bai Shao Tian. Reward, the wind god's leg, the shattered jade knife, which was a Xian grade extreme grade treasure knife, was considered a rare treasure. So far, Meng Fan hadn't seen a Xian grade extreme weapon. As for the wind god's leg, an earth grade martial art, it belonged to this level of intermediate earth grade. Meng Fan didn't care too much about the rewards because no matter what the rewards were, it was impossible for him to travel to the 10,000 demon kingdom. Why did you go to the demon race to be aggravated when you were fine in the human race? Someone like Meng Fan, even if he really was Bai Xiaotian's grandson, he would certainly be ostracized when he arrived in the 10,000 demon kingdom, and his days were bound to be hard. Meng Fan had a pit in his brain before he would even think of going to the 10,000 demon kingdom to be aggravated. Besides, did Meng Fan need someone else to cultivate him? With the divine grade technique and divine grade physique in hand, given two or three years of Meng Fan's time, surpassing by Xiao Tian would be a breeze. And cultivate? It's just ridiculous. Meng Fan didn't know what realm by Xiao Tian existed in, but at the very top it would be a transformation god, right? It was impossible to exceed the transformation spirit, otherwise it was 100% going to the true spirit realm to pursue a stronger path. There was even the possibility that it was just the Yuaning realm. Regardless of whether it was Yuaning or Transformation God, Meng Fan felt that the other party was not qualified to cultivate him. Therefore, Meng Fan did not hesitate to choose two and refused to go to the 10,000 Demon Kingdom. The reward arrives the moment the choice is made. The Wind God's Legs, along with the Holy Spirit Sword Technique and the 10,000 Swords returning to the palace, all came from the same series. It's from the middle of the story, Wind and Cloud, or the World of Wind and Cloud, on the Earth in the previous life. Wind God Legs, as the name suggests, it's a set of kicks, with both light body techniques and leg attacks. It was an extremely practical leg technique. Meng Fan was still quite satisfied with this method, and it was considered an unexpected blessing. Before the main hall of the Moonlight Palace, Meng Fan quietly looked at Shang Fei Yu. Then a cold smile appeared on his face and he said in a chilling voice, In that case, do you think I will go to the 10,000 Demon Kingdom? Shang Fei Yu hurriedly lowered his head and said somewhat cautiously, Your Highness shouldn't go, right? At this time, he didn't dare to say that Meng Fan would go. First of all, this is someone else's territory. And secondly, even if this isn't someone else's territory, someone else is still stronger than you. If he dared to say that Meng Fan would go and offend him, then it was very likely that he wouldn't even know how he died. Seeing Shang Fei Yu's careful appearance, Meng Fan's face revealed satisfaction. The more nervous and scared and cautious others were, the more he would instead feel a special sense of accomplishment. Meng Fan reflected for a moment always feeling that he had the potential to be a villain. Unfortunately, he was a good man. Of course I won't go, Meng Fan said to Shang Fei Yu, and not only am I not going, you don't have to go back. Hearing Meng Fan's words, Shang Fei Yu was startled. Is this about house arrest and imprisonment? Why is that? You're nothing but a little demon yourself, Shang Fei Yu hurriedly said. Your Highness why make things difficult for the villain? The villain is only a messenger. I still hope that your highness your highness will be able to be lenient, and go around me this time, so that I can go back to 10,000 demon country. Meng Fan shook his head and said, if I let you 10,000 demon kingdom, when the time comes for fire throw demon king by Xiaotian to send someone to find me in trouble again and try to capture me back, won't that just add to my troubles? You'll stay in big moon and let by Xiaotian think you're not active. If I go on like this, I will be able to keep him waiting a little longer, and I will be cleaner. Shang Fei Yu hurriedly said to Meng Fan, your majesty, if I don't return to the 10,000 demon kingdom for a long period of time, the demon king will definitely become suspicious and will still send someone over at that time, so for you to hold me back makes no sense at all. No point? Meng Fan shook his head. Who says there's no point? A day's delay is a day's delay, and he shouldn't send for me for at least two or three months. Shang Fei Yu said helplessly, but after two or three months, the demon king will definitely still send someone over to look for you. Meng Fan said blandly. Then let's wait for two or three months. But, your majesty, Sheng Fei Yu wanted to say something else, but was interrupted by Meng Fan's indifference. No buts, if you want to die, this king can fulfill you. If you want to live, then honestly listen to this king's commands. Meng Fan's words were a bit too overbearing. Sheng Fei Yu knew that his realm was inferior to Meng Fan's. After all, he couldn't even see through Meng Fan's cultivation, but he was obviously a bit reluctant to let him tie his hands so honestly. But if he struck out at Meng Fan, he was afraid that he would be killed. It's just depressing and irritating and it feels like it's not appropriate in any way. Your Highness, to make me submit with just a single word from you, this is a bit too strong. 
Sheng Fei Yu still spoke symbolically. Meng Fan understood this guy's mindset in seconds. It was unconvincing. It's easy to disobey. Just fight to obey. In Meng Fan's opinion, this Sheng Fei Yu was like jumping around while saying, Come and hit me. Come and hit me. Meng Fan was naturally and reasonably satisfied with this kind of unpunished behavior. In the next second, Meng Fan's body flashed and instantly arrived in front of Sheng Fei Yu. Pa! He lightly tapped on Sheng Fei Yu's shoulder. Instantly, this Sheng Fei Yu's arm was wasted and broken. If it was an ordinary person, this arm would be completely wasted. But Sheng Fei Yu was a demon, with an amazing physique. Take your time and still be able to fix that arm. But even if it was a demon physique, without two or three months of recuperation, it would not be able to completely recover. Now, don't feel forced, do you? It's just as well to stay in Great Moon and recuperate at ease. Meng Fan coldly said to Sheng Fei Yu. Sheng Fei Yu froze, he knew that Meng Fan might be stronger than himself, but he hadn't expected to be this strong, he had just reacted to nothing, much less had time to block, and his own arm had already been messed with by Meng Fan, there was not the slightest ability to resist, let alone fight back, if Meng Fan had just tried to kill him instead of trying to break his arm, then he would have been a corpse by now, there wasn't the slightest room for resistance, it was pure crushing, it was hard to believe that someone who could possess such terrifying strength was only 20 years old? Sheng Fei Yu honestly said, Your Highness is right. Since the little man accidentally broke his arm, then I can only intrude. It looks like I have to stay in the Great Moon Palace for more days to recuperate from my injuries. I hope that Your Highness won't dislike it. It had to be said that both the human race and the demon race had a side that knew what to do. Bullying is not only human nature. It can be considered the nature of all living things. Not bad. Get well. Meng Fan said expressionlessly, just like that, this demon race envoy was directly detained by Meng Fan, Kotetsu, Xiao Mu, Meng Fan shouted to the guards outside the door, Xiao Tai Xiao Mu, these two guards had followed Meng Fan for many years, and Meng Fan had used them most smoothly, so they were still following Meng Fan now, and Meng Fan bestowed them with some techniques and pills to enhance their strength, just now, Shang Fei Yu barged in, and although he knocked these guards away, he didn't use any force, and even less of a killer, and all of these guards were only lightly injured. So when they heard Meng Fan shout, the guards outside the door, Xiao Tai and Xiao Mu, rushed in and saluted Meng Fan. Take this guy down and arrange a room to stay in. Meng Fan said to Xiao Tai Xiao Mu, Yes, your majesty. Now everyone knew it was time to address Meng Fan as his royal highness, and no one called him his imperial highness anymore. Meng Tianji had ascended the throne, so who dared to call Meng Fan his royal highness again? Wasn't this looking for death? By the way, a word of warning, if you try to escape, you will die. Meng Fan looked at Shang Fei Yu's back and indifferently admonished, the king will not give you a second chance. Meng Fan, as a person, was sometimes too cold and cold-blooded, it's human nature to do a lot of things and give people a second chance, but in Meng Fan's case, there were no second chances, and once would be a death sentence. If Shang Fei Yu wanted to escape, Meng Fan would directly behead him, not saying a single word more, much less giving him a second chance. In the following days, Meng Fan continued to cultivate. In the Great Moon Palace, Meng Fan wouldn't meddle at all, and he basically spent the entire day in boring cultivation, a thousand times over. Seven days later, Meng Xiaochan brought Little White to visit Meng Fan in his chambers. Chapter 64, The Problem of the Demon Bloodline. Little White, the little fox that Meng Fan had picked up, with snow white fur all over his body and not a single stray hair. He was definitely considered to be in existence with a higher face value amongst the fox race. Imperial brother, Little White has been very cranky and anxious lately, and I don't know what's wrong. It feels as if he's been frightened by something. Hearing Meng Xiaochan's words, Meng Fan didn't react at first, but he soon realized that it should be because of that Shang Fei Yu's existence. Shang Fei Yu was a demon of the fox clan and was a Jin Dan stage demon that could already take shape. It was no longer a rare thing for a demon race to be able to transform into human form when they reached the Jin Dan realm. Although Jin Dan sounded simple, it was even easier for a hungover person like Meng Fan, and could be reached in just a few months' time. But for ordinary people, it was a height that they could never reach in their lifetime. Like the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty, if Meng Fan hadn't risen to power, but there wasn't even a single Jin Dan. This was because the only previous Jin Dan had also passed away many years ago. So just like humans, it was difficult for the demon race to reach the Jin Dan realm. This Sheng Fei Yu, as a fox clan Jin Dan, innately has a somewhat suppressive effect on other fox clans. Sheng Fei Yu had been living in the palace during this period of time, and perhaps the unintentional leakage of his aura had made the little fox feel it, which was why the little fox was restless. Don't worry, it's fine, 
There's someone who came to the palace recently who might have scared Xiao Bai. I'll go warn that guy later, Meng Fan said to Meng Xiaochan. Meng Xiaochan was a bit strange, but while strange, she was also a bit disgruntled. What kind of person is this, scaring even small animals? She thought that it was because Xiao Bai was scared by someone when she went out to play. After all, Xiao Bai would go out every day to make waves, while she was usually in cultivation and wouldn't follow Xiao Bai out. This guy isn't human. Meng Fan laughed. Meng Xiaochan thought Meng Fan was cursing, so she didn't think much of it. After chatting with Meng Fan for a while, she ate lunch together before leading Little White back to her place. After Meng Xiaochan left, a bitter smile appeared on Meng Fan's face. There was a saying that Meng Xiaochan, like herself, was probably by Xiaotian's grandchildren, but by Xiaotian sent Shang Feiyu to find himself, but he didn't even mention a word about Meng Xiaochan. In fact, Shang Feiyu had made it very clear before that Bai Xiaotian was interested in himself purely because he was good enough and had amazing talent. As for Meng Xiaochan, she was mediocre, so naturally she wouldn't attract Bai Xiaotian's attention. So Bai Xiaotian, a being that could possibly be a grandfather, didn't have the slightest bit of affection for them, all he had was a heart of interest. Meng Fan shook his head, his senses for this Bai Xiaotian getting worse and worse. Speaking of which, this identity that he had crossed over to was a bit of a misery. Grandma not kissing grandpa, TSK TSK. Luckily, Meng Fan didn't care about that at all. If there really was that much more of a kinship line, Meng Fan would instead find it troublesome, after all. He was an adult who was born knowing and had memories of his past life at birth. It was just a pity for Meng Xiaochan. This girl was a bit more bitter. That afternoon, Meng Fan found Shang Feiyu. Shang Feiyu was startled to see Meng Fan and thought that he had offended him in some way again. To be honest, it was frightening for him to live in this palace. Not only was he a parasite, but he always felt that his life would be in danger at any time. Your Highness, what brings you here? Shang Feiyu asked somewhat cautiously. When Meng Fan saw Shang Feiyu's expression, he couldn't help but smile and say, No need to be nervous, there's nothing I'm looking for you for. Hearing this, although Shang Feiyu still didn't know why Meng Fan was looking for him, he was slightly relieved, because Meng Fan said that, it at least showed that Meng Fan wasn't here to find trouble for himself. As for what exactly is going on, just deal with it yourself. Your Highness was born with a domineering posture. I can't help but be nervous when I see you. I hope you'll forgive me. Sheng Fei Yu said with a flattering smile. Meng Fan shook his head helplessly. This Sheng Fei Yu's face was really quite in line with the image of the demon race, especially the fox race. After all, the fox thing gives the impression of being treacherous, lazy and greedy. During this period of time, you should pay attention to astering in your aura. The little fox that my sister raised was probably scared by your overflowing aura and has been restless during this period of time. Meng Fan said to Shang Fei Yu. Hearing Meng Fan's words, Shang Fei Yu's heart settled down. It turned out to be this kind of small matter, and he thought Meng Fan was looking for him for some big trouble. Don't worry, your majesty, I will definitely pay attention to this in the future. He hurriedly said seriously. After he finished speaking, it occurred to him that Meng Fan also had a sibling. If Meng Fan was the grandson of the Demon King, then wouldn't this sibling be the Demon King's granddaughter? However, the Demon King had many children and grandchildren, and if the sibling of Meng Fan's wasn't good enough, the Demon King was simply too lazy to care. Before Shang Fei Yu came to Daiyue, he also inquired a little about Meng Xiaochan. But in the end, the news that was obtained was almost zero, because there were only various rumors about Meng Fan in the Big Moon, and there was nothing about Meng Xiaochan at all. The only information was that Meng Chuanxiao had almost married Meng Xiaochan to Biling before, and it was this very thing that made Meng Chuanxiao angry with Meng Fan, and only then did he come to that end. Of course, these were all folklore, how exactly Meng Chuanxiao had angered Meng Fan, this others did not know. Anyway, according to what Shang Fei Yu knew, Meng Xiaochan was so mediocre that the Demon King wouldn't care at all, the only person the Demon King cared about was Meng Fan. Even Meng Fan was even better and more terrifying than the Demon King had imagined, otherwise he wouldn't have been under house arrest here himself. Shang Fei Yu was actually very curious as to what kind of person was able to cultivate a genius like Meng Fan, what kind of power was behind Meng Fan, even he was a bit skeptical that the Demon King, his old man, was really as strong as the force behind Meng Fan, everyone thought that there was a force behind Meng Fan, and that there was a supreme being nurturing him. Otherwise, how could he have such a terrifying cultivation level as an ordinary royal prince of an ordinary imperial dynasty? What's more, he's only 20. Shang Fei Yu shook his head, banishing these chaotic thoughts from his mind. None of these things had anything to do with him anymore, and even in the future, the Demon King would only send more powerful demons to contact Meng Fan. 
and it had nothing to do with him. He just had to stay honest until Meng Fan let him go, and had no other thoughts. When Meng Fan came, it was only because of Little White that Meng Xiaochan had mentioned earlier, but when he was ready to leave, he looked at Shang Feiyu with other thoughts in his head. Shang Feiyu, this king has a question, can you solve it for this king? Meng Fan, who was ready to leave and had already reached the door, turned back sharply to Shang Feiyu and asked, Your Highness, feel free to ask, I will definitely know everything and say everything. Shang Feiyu quickly said, This king was once at the Golden Origin Temple and heard that this king's mother, Bai Su Su, is the daughter of the demon king of the 10,000 demon kingdom, Bai Shao Tian. In fact, you have also come here for this reason, so this king would like to know if this king's mother, is Bai Shao Tian's daughter or not? Meng Fan looked at Shang Feiyu and asked in a stern tone, this question immediately put Shang Feiyu in a difficult position, because he didn't know ah, even Bai Shao Tian didn't know, precisely because he didn't know, so he came over, Shang Feiyu honestly replied, your highness, this question, I really don't know, in fact, Lord Demon King doesn't know either, that's why the order that Lord Demon King gave to the villain is to bring you back, and then Lord Demon King will identify whether you are related to him by blood or not in person, Meng Fan shook his head and said, you don't understand what this king means, this king doesn't care if there's a blood relationship with Bai Shao Tian, what this king cares about is whether or not he has a demon bloodline, after a moment's pause, Meng Fan stared solemnly at Shang Feiyu and said in a chilling voice, do you know if there is any way to determine whether or not I have a demon bloodline in my body, or is there any way that will allow me to awaken my demon bloodline, if he went to the 10,000 demon kingdom, he would naturally be able to determine whether he had a demon bloodline or not and there would definitely be a way for him to awaken his demon bloodline. But Meng Fan didn't want to go to the 10,000 demon kingdom. Meng Fan didn't really want to awaken the demon bloodline when he asked about this method. He just wanted to understand these things. After all, it's about your body. Having said that, Meng Fan felt that his human identity was quite good, and hadn't thought about becoming some kind of human demon, or demon. But if the bloodline thing really exists, then it's already inside your body. You can't hide from it you can only accept it. In other words, whether you have awakened the demon bloodline or not, you have the demon bloodline in your body. It wasn't something you could deny if you wanted to, so Meng Fan was also trying to accept this. Of course, the prerequisite was to make sure that you really had a demon bloodline in your body. Otherwise, it would be embarrassing to make a big mess. After all, when the abbot of the Golden Element Temple said that Bai Susu was a demon, saying that she had a demon bloodline, Meng Fan had always had a half-hearted attitude towards this matter, and didn't completely believe it. Sheng Feiyu's brows furrowed slightly when he heard Meng Fan's words. Meng Fan had this doubt, and he could completely understand it. After all, it's not just about birth anymore, it's also about identity and even race. And Meng Fan's doubts, he was indeed able to solve them, but he was hesitating, hesitating to help Meng Fan, or hesitating to tell Meng Fan the truth, in case you help Meng Fan recognize this matter after. In case you determine that Meng Fan is really a demon race, what if Meng Fan then took his anger out on himself and beheaded himself in a fit of rage? Shang Fei Yu had to think for himself, because he hadn't inquired about Meng Fan during this time, and knew that Meng Fan was extremely murderous, cold and cruel. So with regards to Meng Fan, he was extremely scornful of his mindset, but Meng Fan, on the opposite side, had already seen his hesitation. Meng Fan looked coldly at Shang Fei Yu and said in a chilling voice, this king has told you before that there is never a second chance with this king. If you dare to deceive this king, this king will not give you a chance to explain, and will directly beat you to death and send you to hell. Chapter 65 Brother, I want to activate my demon bloodline. Hearing Mang Fan's words, beads of sweat had already started to secrete on Shang Fei Yu's forehead. He didn't expect Mang Fan's eyes to be so poisonous that he was even able to see his own hesitation. Is this really just a 20-year-old? How it feels like an old monster. Shang Fei Yu helplessly shook his head and said, Your Highness, I do have a way to probe the demon bloodline in your body, but this method is afraid of offending your Highness, so that's why I hesitated just now. Meng Fan looked coldly at Shang Fei Yu and said indifferently, Cut the crap, what's the solution? Shang Fei Yu said, I need a drop of the king's blood. A drop of blood? It was normal to have this need, and it was completely expected by Meng Fan. Blood vein blood vein, if you want to probe the blood vein, naturally, you need to use blood, without any doubt. Meng Fan cut his fingertip and squeezed out a drop of blood. Then with a flick of his hand, he flicked the drop of blood towards Shang Fei Yu. Shang Fei Yu raised his hand and received this drop of Meng Fan's blood, then wiped it on his own brow. Immediately following, he sat cross-legged and began to operate a gong method. 
Meng Fan just watched quietly from the sidelines, his hands wrapped around his body, his face expressionless. The truth was that he actually believed that he had a demon bloodline because neither Meng Chuanxiu nor the abbot of the Golden Origin Temple and the rest of them had any need to lie to themselves, especially Meng Chuanxiu. Although Meng Fan couldn't look at him, this guy was after all his father in this body and his mother's husband. His words are still very credible. Now, the answer is even more imminent. Meng Fan looked at Shang Fei Yu who was meditating, his face full of calm and his gaze not fluctuating. He's not outwardly calm. He's truly calm. Because with or without the demon bloodline, it was a result for him, and it was a result that had already been accepted, and there would be no overreaction. A red light flashed across Shang Fei Yu's body, even as his face occasionally twitched hideously for a moment before regaining its composure. After about an incense stick of time, Shang Fei Yu opened his eyes and then stood up from his meditative state. There's a result? Meng Fan asked calmly, back to his majesty. It's a result. Say, your highness does indeed have my fox clan bloodline but the bloodline is very deeply hidden, and it was only because I just poured my all into it that I vaguely detected some of the fox clan bloodline. When he said this, Shang Fei Yu stared at Meng Fan a bit cautiously, fearing that Meng Fan would become furious after hearing this news and then strike out at himself in anger, because many human races are very much abhorrent to the demon race. If they knew that they were a human-demon hybrid, they would really be so angry that they would break down and go crazy. However, this was him underestimating Meng Fan. As a traveler, Meng Fan's sense of belonging to this world was not high in the first place, and the so-called human and demon races did not make much of a difference in his eyes. Of course, instinctively one might be close to some of the human race, but not so much as to hate the demon race. So after learning that he had a demon bloodline, Meng Fan just calmly nodded at Sheng Fei Yu, then spat out three words in a still cold manner. Got it. After saying that, Meng Fan turned around and left, this time for real. Only after seeing Meng Fan completely leave did Sheng Fei Yu let out a fierce sigh of relief. God knows how nervous he just was. The good thing is, there are scares. A bitter smile appeared on Meng Fan's face after he left Sheng Fei Yu's residence. Sure enough, his own mother was indeed a demon, and the odds were that she was the daughter of that by Xiao Tian. After all, Sheng Fei Yu had said that there was the aura of the Fox Clan's bloodline in his drop of blood. So, this went against the words of Meng Chuanxiu and the abbot of the Golden Origin Temple. After figuring out this matter, Meng Fan didn't have many special emotions and remained flat. Only, he didn't ask Shang Fei Yu again about the method to activate the demon bloodline, because even if Shang Fei Yu had told him the way, he wouldn't have chosen to activate the demon bloodline. A good body. If it ended up being half human, half fox, this was not something Meng Fan liked. Moreover, even if one activated the demon bloodline, it wouldn't bring a direct and obvious increase in one's strength. So what was the point of activating it? Anyway, Meng Fan wouldn't take the initiative to activate this whatsoever demon fox clan bloodline, but if it was automatically activated and awakened someday, then Meng Fan wouldn't be able to do anything about it. As for Meng Xiaochan, Meng Fan didn't even bother to tell her about it, saving her the trouble of pulling her heart out. Meng Fan's attitude towards Meng Xiaochan had always been based on the attitude of telling the truth when it was time to tell the truth, not going to hide it so as to avoid any drawbacks in the future. For example, if he had accomplished something in his cultivation, Meng Fan chose to share it with Meng Xiaochan, telling her a part of his strength, so that she wouldn't have to make any trouble because she was worried about herself. For example, if Meng Fan killed Meng Chuanxiu, he likewise chose to tell Meng Xiaochan and make it clear that the cause of his mother's death was related to Meng Chuanxiu. He was able to choose to hide it from Meng Xiaochan under the pretext that he was doing it for her own good and was afraid of her heartbreak. But he didn't do it because he believed that Meng Xiaochan could accept this and had to. However, Meng Fan did not tell Meng Xiaochan about the matter of the demon bloodline and decided to conceal it from her, because it's not something that she has to accept, there's no point in vexing her in vain. Of course, if the demon bloodline in her body automatically activated one day and couldn't be hidden anymore, Meng Fan would also choose to tell her the truth. Thinking of this, Meng Fan's brows furrowed again. After returning to the Moonlight Palace, Meng Fan sat on his bed and meditated, combing through the matter. Suddenly he felt that he was actually wrong to do so, at fault, just as he hadn't hidden killing Meng Chuanxiu before, this matter probably shouldn't be hidden from Meng Xiaochan either, admittedly, his original intention was good, he didn't want Meng Xiaochan to be troubled by the demon bloodline, but the demon bloodline, which already existed within Meng Xiaochan's body, was something that could not be avoided, and maybe someday, inexplicably, the demon bloodline awakens, in this situation, if Meng Xiaochan knew nothing about it, she would most likely break down. In that case, it's better to take the precaution in advance. 
Meng Fan sat cross-legged on the bed for a long time before finally changing his mind and deciding to tell Meng Xiaochan the truth about this matter. Because he had read novels and watched TV in his previous life, he had seen too many lies and concealment because of good intentions, which finally brought very troublesome results. These are things that can be avoided, and Cindy has always been strong enough to take it all in. Meng Fan walked out of bed and headed towards Meng Xiaochan's meditation hall. Imperial brother, it's so late, why did you come over? When Meng Xiaochan saw Meng Fan, a hint of surprise appeared on her face. After the surprise came the gravity. Imperial brother came to find himself so late. Could it be that something big had happened? Now looking at the entire great moon, the things that could still be considered as big events here in the Imperial brother's place were definitely things that were truly horrifying. There's something that I didn't want to tell you, but now I think that it's better to tell you. Meng Fan said to Meng Xiaochan with a serious face. Immediately afterward, Meng Fan told Meng Xiaochan about his mother being of the demon race including the fact that Meng Xiaochan also had a hidden demon race bloodline in her body. There was also the demon king of the 10,000 demon kingdom, Bai Xiao Tian, who was probably their grandfather, and Meng Fan didn't hide this matter. When Meng Xiaochan heard the news, she stood frozen for a long time, her face complex. It was only after a long time that Meng Xiaochan's face recovered a bit, and she said quietly, so the reason why father wanted to kill mother back then was because she was a demon? Meng Fan hadn't told Meng Xiaochan about this before. So Meng Xiaochan had always been puzzled as to why father wanted to kill mother. Now that she was connecting these, she instantly figured it out. Meng Fan nodded and said, Not bad, indeed. Meng Xiaochan sighed and wanted to say something else. But in the end, she was silent, unable to say anything. She actually had a hard time accepting the news. After all, she wasn't the same as Meng Fan. She didn't have this mentality of Meng Fan's travelers. She was an authentic ordinary human race. I'm sorry, Xiaochan. I know it's hard for you to accept, and I thought about hiding this from you, but in the end, I decided to tell you. Meng Fan sighed. Why? Meng Xiaochan asked breathlessly. Because I'm worried that you'll unintentionally awaken the Fox Clan bloodline someday, and if you become a demon clan at that time without knowing anything about it, it'll definitely be harder to accept. Meng Xiaochan lowered her head and didn't say anything else. She didn't know what to say and didn't want to say anything. For an ordinary person, this kind of thing is really hard to accept. A moment later, Meng Xiaochan raised her head and said to Meng Fan, Imperial brother, you go back first, I want to be alone, you don't have to worry about me, I'm fine, I just need some time to come to terms with everything. Meng Fan walked over, hugged Meng Xiaochan, and said softly, don't be too upset, no matter what, you're my sister and I'm your brother, at least we're the closest of kin. He could actually imagine Meng Xiaochan's helplessness and sadness at this moment even to the extent that she would have the feeling of being abandoned by the world, because what had been the world in her eyes, the loved ones in her eyes, had changed, and she was not like the others, but at least Meng Fan and her were the same. After Meng Fan left, Meng Xiaochan didn't sleep all night. To be honest, Meng Fan was actually worried about her because this kind of thing really wasn't something an ordinary person could accept. Although Meng Fan knew that Meng Xiaochan was strong and had been strong since she was a child, he was still a little worried about this girl. He was going to continue to visit Meng Xiaochan the next day and enlighten the girl properly. One has to spend more time with her during this time, because at this moment, only he and Meng Xiaochan were the same person, and only he could enter her heart and not be rejected. But Meng Fan still underestimated this sister of his. The next day he hadn't gone to find Meng Xiaochan yet. Meng Xiaochan actually found him first. To Meng Fan's surprise, Meng Xiaochan, the girl, had been resurrected with full blood and did not grieve any further. She was really strong, much stronger than Meng Fan had imagined. And after Meng Xiaochan found Meng Fan, the first words she spoke made Meng Fan freeze. Imperial brother, I want to activate the demon bloodline in my body. Do you have any methods? Chapter 66 Half Demon Xiaochan Hearing Meng Xiaochan's words, Meng Fan was truly shocked. He hadn't expected that after a night's time had passed, Meng Fan Xiaochan would actually have such an amazing change. Not only did she accept this fact that she possessed a demon bloodline, but she also had to take the initiative to activate it. Other than that, on this point alone, even Meng Fan was ashamed of himself. Why? Meng Fan looked at Meng Xiaochan and frowned. According to reason, Meng Xiaochan should be extremely excluded from the demon bloodline. After all, she had been a human since she was a child, and her thoughts were all human in every aspect. With regards to the demon race, Meng Xiaochan definitely had a distaste and even an abhorrence. Therefore, in Meng Fan's opinion, Meng Xiaochan taking the initiative to request the activation of the demon bloodline was absolutely abnormal and unreasonable. Thinking of this, 
Meng Fan was immediately a bit nervous, fearing that Meng Xiaochan was mentally stimulated and her head was not normal. In the face of Meng Fan's question, Meng Xiaochan, however, said with a calm face, since it is certain that I have a demon bloodline in my body, then this is a fact, and I can't change it. No one can change their birth, they can only accept it. I've figured out that I am who I am. No matter what bloodline runs through me, bloodlines can't change my mind, they can't change my soul, so I'm fine with whatever bloodline is in me. And since I already have this bloodline, there is no need for me to hide from it, so I might as well take the initiative to accept it. What's more, my qualifications are mediocre. So perhaps after activating the demon bloodline, I'll be able to take my qualifications to the next level instead. Meng Xiaochan said a lot in one breath, impressing Meng Fan. At least Meng Fan himself was unwilling to take the initiative to activate the demon bloodline, not wanting to change himself and get by. In just one night, Meng Xiaochan was able to think so much and turn this helplessness into motivation, choosing to improve herself. It's really awesome. Mind you, she's still only a 20-year-old. Uh... 20 can't be considered a kid anymore. It's time to mature. But it was also true that those who could be as mature as Meng Xiaochan were extremely rare. I can only say that it's worthy of being my Meng fan sister. Much better than the little girls at other people's houses who just cry and whine. Good. Since you have such thoughts and choices, brother won't stop you and will try to find a way to fulfill you. Meng fan said to Meng Xiaochan with a smile. For Meng Xiaochan, Meng fan hadn't interfered too much since he was a child. Even though Meng Fan is now so strong that no one in the Great Moon Palace dares to mess with him, he still doesn't overly spoil Meng Xiaochan, but remains free range. This also nurtured Meng Xiaochan's character of self-reliance, and now it seems that there is really nothing wrong with doing so. Now this girl, she was even better than Meng Fan had imagined. There's actually one thing that I didn't tell you, and now it seems that it's necessary for you to know it as well. Meng Fan said to Meng Xiaochan, What is it? Meng Xiaochan questioned. That 10,000 demon countries demon king, by Xiao Tian, the guy who is most likely our grandfather, actually sent someone who wanted to come and capture me to the 10,000 demon country. Only that fellow was no match for me and was placed under house arrest by me. Then, Meng Fan told Meng Xiaochan about the matter concerning by Xiao Tian and Shang Feiyu. Of course, it was also emphasized that this by Xiao Tian was a ruthless person. This must be made clear. Or else Meng Xiaochan will have any fantasies and hopes about this grandfather, and in the end it will be futilely sad. Meng Xiaochan sighed. His father had killed his mother and his grandfather had abandoned her. Although it was said that the mother had severed her relationship with her grandfather because of her father, the mother would not have been so miserable if her grandfather had paid more appreciative attention to her. But it's normal for grandpa to not pay attention to his mother when he has so many children. Now that I think about it, my own mother seems even more pathetic than I am. Imperial brother. If you say that, then won't by Xiaotian he still send people to capture you in the future? Meng Xiaochan asked a little nervously. Meng Fan shook his head and said, There's no need to be nervous. I'm not afraid of your royal brother. Not to mention that he's not trying to harm me by arresting me. But rather he sees that I'm excellent and wants to cultivate me. So don't worry about these things. Meng Xiaochan said helplessly. It's a pity that I'm not good enough for by Xiaotian to even look at me. Otherwise I'd be able to share some of your troubles. Meng Fan rubbed Meng Xiaochan's head and said helplessly, Silly girl, does brother need you to share this kind of thing for me? After saying that, Meng Fan brought Meng Xiaochan along and arrived at Shang Feiyu's residence. When Shang Feiyu saw Meng Fan come again, his heart couldn't help but jump, feeling rather helpless and nervous. I was just here yesterday. Why are you here today? To be honest, Shang Feiyu didn't want to face Meng Fan at all. This was simply a bogeyman. Unfortunately, it wasn't something he could just not face if he wanted to. Here, he doesn't count. Your Highness, you're here again. This is. Sheng Feiyu looked at Meng Xiaochan with some doubt on his face. He could probably guess who this one was. After all, Meng Xiaochan had some resemblance between her eyebrows and Meng Fan. So it wasn't hard to guess that this was Meng Fan's sibling. This is this king's sister. Meng Xiaochan. Meng Fan said to Sheng Feiyu. Greetings, Your Highness. Sheng Feiyu immediately saluted Meng Xiaochan. You are the little demon under the seat of the fire throat demon king? Back to the princess. The villain is exactly that. Meng Xiaochan took a serious look at Shang Feiyu and asked, In my case, how can I awaken the demon bloodline in my body? Hearing Meng Xiaochan's question, Shang Feiyu froze. He subconsciously glanced at Meng Fan. These two siblings, how come one is more abnormal than the other? Previously, he was worried that Meng Fan, knowing that he had a demon bloodline, would be agitated and strike with anger? implicating him. As a result, Meng Fan was calm and directly left calmly. Then today, this Meng Xiaochan, 
actually took the initiative to come over and ask about the method to activate the demon bloodline. With the air of being prepared to activate the demon bloodline. These two, are they really human? Didn't the human race abhor the demon race? How could they accept it so easily? And, it was gladly accepted. Sheng Fei Yu felt that he could not understand the human race a little bit. Could it be that the human race were all so advanced now? So friendly to the demon race? If that was the case, it seemed like it wouldn't be difficult for the demon race's wish to unify the Xinling Great World to be realized. Of course, Sheng Fei Yu was just imagining things for a while, because he felt that both of these siblings were abnormal and could not represent others, much less the entire human race. When Meng Fan saw Sheng Fei Yu looking at him, he couldn't help but say in a cold voice, Say whatever my sister asks you. When Sheng Fei saw that Meng Fan didn't object, he had no more worries. He was afraid that Meng Fan would not agree with him telling Meng Shashan, in which case he would be angering Meng Fan if he said it. But come to think of it, if Meng Fan didn't agree, he wouldn't have brought Meng Shaochan here to find himself. Your Highness, if you want to activate the fox bloodline in your body, it's not impossible. I do have a way. But have you really considered it clearly? Shang Fei Yu asked a bit gruffly. The truth was that it would be good for Meng Fan and Meng Shaochan if they activated the fox clan bloodline instead. After all, in this situation, he was a demon, and Meng Fan was a human. So there was an inherent sense of antagonism. If Meng Fan activated the fox bloodline, he would be of the same kind as himself. In that case, he wouldn't be under so much pressure to get along with Meng Fan. After all, kindred spirits would always be a bit more cordial. Hearing Sheng Fei Yu's rhetorical question. In fact, Meng Xiaochan still had some hesitation in her heart. For such things are, indeed, amazingly big enough to affect one's life. So even if she had decided, she would still be a little hesitant at this moment. But this hesitation is only hesitation and dilly-dallying, and surely the choice will be firm in the end. It's like when many people bungee jump, they hesitate, they get nervous and scared and want to back out. But since they are already standing there, they always end up taking the leap. Because there are four words involved here. Four words with terrifying energy. I'm here. Yeah, well, come what may. There's no point in giving up. Still, Meng Xiaochan couldn't help but open her mouth and ask, after activating the demon bloodline, what changes will I have? Will it turn into a demon? Sheng Fei Yu shook his head and said with a smile, Your Highness you are just being overly concerned. After activating the demon bloodline, it will not turn you into a demon. There are many children born from the union of human and demon in the land of 10,000 demons, and we call such children half-demons. You and the king would be half-demons. And then there are two kinds of half-demons. A half-demon born to a male demon and a woman is born activating the demon bloodline and hiding the human bloodline. A half-demon born to a man and a female demon is born to activate the human bloodline and hide the demon bloodline. Take the fox clan, the first type of half-demon, born with a human body and fox face, half-human and half-demon. This kind of half-demon, when cultivated to the Jin Dan realm, could switch between human form and demon form freely. The second type of half-demon, like you and the king, is born in human form. In your case, there is no half-human, half-demon state. And even if you activate the demon bloodline in your body, you are still in the same human form. Only when you have cultivated to the Jin Dan realm will you be able to switch fox forms for the first time. Of course, even when you reach the Jin Dan realm, you can still live on in your human form forever without switching your fox form. After hearing Shang Feiyu's words, Meng Fan and Meng Xiaochan both let out a sigh of relief, and at the same time, both had a feeling of being very fortunate. Luckily, his father was human and his mother was a demon. If the father is a demon and the mother is a human, they are born as half-human, half-demon monsters, fox face in person. It's disgusting to think about. And in this case, they couldn't even live in Atsuki. They were probably strangled at birth. It would seem that God is still good to them and takes care of them quite well. Meng Xiaochan continued to ask, If I activate the demon bloodline in my body, will there be any benefits? For example, can it change my qualifications? Shang Fei Yu nodded his head and said, If you were an ordinary descendant of the demon race, after activating the demon race bloodline, perhaps there wouldn't be any significant enhancement. But you are a descendant of Lord Demon King, with an amazing bloodline. It will indeed make your qualifications stronger. Being a descendant of the fire throat Demon King by Xiaotian, this was perhaps the only benefit. Chapter 67 The Emperor and His Brother After listening to Shang Fei Yu's words, Meng Xiaochan had already roughly understood the impact after activating the demon bloodline. She quickly analyzed the pros and cons and finally told herself that it was worth activating. There's no such thing as wanting to, only being worth it. How can I activate the demon bloodline in my body? Meng Xiaochan asked with a determined face. 
Your Highness has decided to activate the Fox Clan bloodline? Shang Fei Yu opened his mouth and asked. Decided. Meng Xiaochan said in a serious tone. Shang Fei Yu once again glanced at Meng Fan. He didn't have the courage to be the master of this kind of thing. Meng Fan calmly said, Tell the truth and fulfill all her demands. Upon hearing Meng Fan's words, Shang Fei Yu then dared to continue. Your Highness, if you want to activate the fox bloodline in your body, you must have a fox elder to protect you before he spends his demonic power to completely activate the fox bloodline in your body. Without waiting for Meng Xiaochan to open her mouth, Meng Fan took the initiative and said, You said before that you have a way. Meaning that you can then act as the senior and activate the fox clan bloodline in my sister's body? Shang Fei Yu was a bit hesitant, but when he thought of Meng Fan's reputation, he still didn't dare to tell a lie and opened his mouth honestly. Your highness's cultivation is not high, and as a fox clan Jin Dan, the villain can indeed do something to help your highness activate her bloodline. However, this requires a great price to pay. The villain, Meng Fan waved his hand, interrupting the fellow's words, no matter how great the price you pay. As long as it's not the payment of your life, give the king the honesty to do as he says. For if you push back, the price you pay will be your life. At this time, Meng Fan was unreasonable. It's a bit brash and overbearing. His meaning was clear. If you don't listen, I'll get you killed. The Qi Sheng Fei Yu also ate this set. The reason is also very simple. Because he is afraid of death. Meng Fan was good at killing people. And this guy was afraid of death. So wasn't this a perfect hold? Don't worry, your majesty. I will definitely help Her Highness the Princess activate the Fox Clan bloodline. This is a contribution to my Fox Clan. I, Shang Fei Yu, am obliged to do so. Meng Fan was naturally too lazy to listen to this kind of bull asterisk 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 asterisk. Both Meng Fan and Meng Xiaochan were actually thunderous personalities. So on the spot, he asked Shang Fei Yu to activate Meng Xiaochan's Fox bloodline. Your Highness, this activation of the bloodline requires some preparation and I need some pills to restore the demonic energy, Shang Fei Yu said with some caution. He actually didn't quite dare to make demands with Meng Fan for fear of being cut to death, but pills to restore demonic energy in this situation were indeed a necessity, otherwise it would simply be impossible to smoothly help Meng Xiaochan activate her fox bloodline. Meng Fan casually flung a bottle of elixir to Shang Fei Yu. Back then, from the six destruction demon sex treasure trove, he had obtained quite a few pills. These pills could restore both the true essence of the human race and the demonic essence of the demon race, because whether it was true Yuan or demon Yuan, it was essentially a kind of energy, both of which were energy that was melted from absorbing the aura of the heavens and the earth. Dan pills, on the other hand, replenish the aura of heaven and earth. Shang Fei Yu got the elixir and without any more dilly-dallying, began to work on helping Meng Xiaochan activate her demon bloodline. In the room, there were two futons and Shang Fei Yu and Meng Xiaochan were sitting facing each other. Shang Fei Yu then began to apply his energy, feeding the demonic energy in his body into Meng Xiaochan's body. Meng Fan didn't leave and watched from the side, patiently protecting Meng Xiaochan. Under normal circumstances, Shang Fei Yu's palm would have to rest on Meng Xiaochan's shoulder in order to effectively cast the spell, but Meng Fan was watching from the sidelines, and he didn't dare to touch Meng Xiaochan at all. His palm and Meng Xiaochan's shoulder stayed a few centimeters apart. This added to the difficulty and made it extremely difficult for him, but even if it was more strenuous, he had to insist, because he didn't want to be killed by Meng Fan. One hour, two hours, three hours. During this period, Shang Fei Yu took pills seven or eight times, and each time, he took the pills only when his demonic energy was almost exhausted, and so it went until early the next morning. It was only then that Shang Fei Yu retrieved the demonic energy in Meng Xiaochan's body before he directly sat down on the ground, so tired. However, the demon bloodline in Meng Xiaochan's body was successfully activated. Contrary to Shang Fei Yu's exhaustion, Meng Xiaochan was full of relaxed writing, energetic and in excellent condition. How does it feel? Meng Fan asked to Meng Xiaochan. Meng Xiaochan's face was slightly puzzled as she stood up and spun around twice, then said in a somewhat perplexed manner, There's no feeling. It seems like there's no difference from before. It's just that her mental state is much better. Shang Fei Yu, who was sitting paralyzed on the ground, smiled bitterly and said, suddenly awakening the fox bloodline, naturally you won't be able to feel any abnormalities, and when the time is long in the future, you'll slowly find out the specialness that comes with the fox bloodline, other than that, your highness you care about the qualification issue, in the future the speed of cultivation will definitely be much faster than before, Meng Xiaochan didn't actually understand Sheng Feiyu's words, but Meng Fan was able to understand the gap, it was as if for the first 20 years, he had been raffling off various physiques. There were yellow level physiques, 
metaphysical level physiques, and earth level physiques and even heaven level physiques. Before Meng Xiaochan, she could only be considered a yellow level physique, mediocre and ordinary. Now after awakening the firethroat demon king's fox clan bloodline, her physique was tantamount to being elevated, perhaps to the Xian level, or possibly to the earth level. Of course, the probability was that it was Xian level, and the possibility of earth level was not high. This was because even the firethroat demon king himself was not necessarily an earth grade physique. Meng Fan had been drawing for a full 20 years, and still had his own unique insights into the various grades of physique. The matter had been completed, and Meng Fan was ready to take Meng Xiaochan away. Shang Feiyu, who was sitting paralyzed on the ground, couldn't help but open his mouth and ask after him, Your Highness, aren't you considering awakening the demon bloodline in your body? In fact, for Shang Feiyu, he would prefer Meng Fan to awaken his demon bloodline to become a half-demon, because after Meng Fan became a half-demon, it was not only good news for him, but even for the entire demon race. After all, there was something scary and downright sick about this guy's potential. Meng Fan shook his head and said, My sister's qualifications are not good, so awakening this fox bloodline will be able to enhance some of his qualifications. But for me, this little bit of qualification brought about by the demon bloodline, I really don't see it. It's simply chicken ribs, tasteless, on the side. Meng Xiaochan couldn't help but glare at Meng Fan. Can you not be so contrasting in front of yourself? It's too much of a blow. Behind him, Sheng Feiyu was also filled with helplessness, because what Meng Fan said was really true. Even for the demon race, there were not many geniuses who could reach the Jin Dan realm at the age of 20. If he knew that Meng Fan had opened his cultivation so far, and was still less than a year old, he was afraid that even his eyes would stare down and explode in shock. In the time that followed, Meng Xiaochan continued to cultivate diligently and frantically without showing any abnormalities. But the more this happened, the more Meng Fan became somewhat helpless. He knew that this incident still had a great impact on Meng Xiaochan, but there was no way around it. Meng Xiaochan would always have to accept this. Meng Fan was similarly cultivating, and he also wanted to strive to cultivate to the peak Jindan realm as early as possible. The days of dedicated cultivation always flew by, and in the blink of an eye another month had passed. During this period of time, Meng Xiaochan's cultivation speed was indeed much faster than before, and she also worked much harder than before. Meng Fan was only one step away from the peak of Jindan. However, during this period of time, the situation of the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty was not really good. In particular, Meng Tianji, the Emperor of the Great Moon, was sad and anxious all day long. Ever since the last time a letter of repudiation allowed Qin Shanglan to be brought back to the Great Dragon Dynasty, the original ally, the Great Dragon Dynasty, turned to unite with the Great Wind Dynasty and began to lay hands on the Great Moon Dynasty. The borders of the Great Moon have been repeatedly violated. Under the attack of the allied forces of the Great Dragon and the Great Wind, this month, the Great Moon had already lost 13 cities, so it could be said that the situation was extremely grim. It was believed that it wouldn't be long before the allied forces of the Great Dragon and Great Wind would be able to hit the Great Moon Imperial City. How similar was this scene to the Great Wind Dynasty's Marshal King Nyaren II's direct approach to the Great Moon Imperial City a few months ago? It was only that back then it was only one army of the Marshal King, but now it was the allied army of the Great Wind and the Great Dragon. Will Atsuki be able to resist this time? In fact, Atsuki certainly couldn't resist. The last time he was able to win in the end, it wasn't by Big Moon resisting either, but by Meng Fan. This time around, it was likewise still up to Meng Fan. Then the same question appeared in Meng Tianji's mind. That is, could Meng Fan withstand this crisis? At this moment, Meng Tianji somewhat understood his father's behavior in the beginning. There was one thing to be said for knowing that when the allied forces of the Great Wind and the Great Dragon were preparing to attack and come over, Meng Tianji also had the idea of escaping from the palace to take refuge. Only the thing that made him stronger than Meng Chuanxiu now was that he knew how powerful Meng Fan was, while Meng Chuanxiu didn't know in the first place. But this younger brother of his, could he really be brave enough to suppress the allied forces of the Great Dragon and the Great Wind, taking on two great dynasties with the power of one man? It wasn't that Meng Tianji doubted Meng Fan, but this matter was indeed a bit too shocking for him to be calm. So on this day, Meng Tianji once again found Meng Fan. Yo, your majesty, you're a guy who never has anything to do. What's the matter this time? Seeing Meng Tianji appear before him, Meng Fan couldn't help but smile and ask. This Meng Tianji, although he was Meng Fan's older brother in age, was in fact like a younger brother in every way. Meng Tianji said with a somewhat grave expression, the Great Dragon Dynasty and the Great Wind Dynasty have joined together to form a coalition army, and have already knocked down quite a few cities along the borders of my Great Moon. 
you should already know about this matter, right? What? Meng Fan's face showed some surprise. This I really don't know. He was so engrossed in closed door cultivation that he couldn't pull himself out of it, that he didn't pay any attention to these messy things. One mind is devoted to cultivation and does not ask about the world. Meng Tianji froze, such a shocking event that almost all the people in the entire Great Moon Dynasty knew about it. And it turns out that this top dog of the Big Moon doesn't even know about this? Meng Tianji's face was full of complexity, and was truly a bit envious of this imperial brother. Being an emperor is really not as cool as being a royal brother. Don't think about anything, don't worry about anything. He, the emperor, was on edge all day and felt that even his hair had turned gray. As a result, this imperial brother, however, is undistracted, sitting and watching the clouds roll in and the flowers blossom and fall. Chapter 68 Leave the fighting to me. So, you came to me because of this matter? Meng Fan looked at Meng Tianji and asked. The great wind and the great dragon joining forces to attack the great moon was something Meng Fan hadn't expected. It wasn't that he couldn't think of it, but he was simply too lazy to think about it because Meng Fan wasn't concerned about these things at all. Most importantly, these are not things at all. It looks like this great wind imperial dynasty doesn't know what it means to eat a pad and grow wiser, and it actually dares to come and provoke great moon? Meng Fan smiled, thinking that the great wind imperial dynasty was really not seeing the coffin. Meng Fan could understand when the great dragon dynasty came looking for trouble. After all, Meng Tianji's operation of that paper repudiation had indeed humiliated to the great dragon dynasty. This kind of humiliating, the great dragon dynasty would definitely not let it go and would definitely retaliate. This was something Meng Fan had expected. And the last time Meng Tianji had come to him, he had already given his word that he would stand up for the great lunar dynasty, as well as for Meng Tianji. As for the fact that there was now an additional dispensable great wind dynasty, Meng Fan felt that there was no impact or difference. Get together just right, and hang them all up and beat them, Meng Tianji said somewhat helplessly to Meng Fan. The allied armies of the great wind and great dragon dynasties have taken down my great moon's border cities one after the other, and already have a tendency to attack towards the imperial city. To be honest, I've been having trouble sleeping and eating for a while now, so I couldn't resist coming to you. I just want to get some confidence from you. Are you really able to withstand the allied forces of the two imperial dynasties, Great Dragon and Great Moon? Hearing Meng Tianji's words, Meng Fan couldn't help but have a smile on his face. Of course, the smirk was tinged with some disdain and derision. Meng Fan said to Meng Tianji, No matter how many people are in the allied forces of the Great Wind and the Great Dragon, and no matter how many experts they come with, don't even think about stepping halfway into the imperial city. That's a powerful and confident statement. Now Meng Fan was only half a step away from the peak of Jin Dan, and it wouldn't take more than a few days for him to break through. By the time the allied armies of the Great Dragon and the Great Wind approached the Great Moon Imperial City, Meng Fan would inevitably have broken through to the peak Jin Dan realm. At that time, even if Meng Fan didn't utilize the human emperor bloodline in his body, he would still be an absolutely invincible existence. One man, one sword, a snap of the fingers can destroy a thousand armies. Even if it was an army of 100, 000 or a million, Meng Fan could kill them in pieces. It's no joke that one sword can be used as a million divisions. Ordinary soldiers were too fragile in front of immortal cultivators. Even Meng Fan didn't need to move his sword. He only needed to sweep his divine sense. And the ordinary soldiers would die in pieces, without the slightest ability to resist. A single Jin Dan was enough to turn around the fortunes of a nation. This was also the reason why Great Wind was so strong before because they had Marshal King Nyaren too. After the death of King Wu, the great wind shriveled and wilted instantly, and the influence of a Yuaning on a country is even more needless to say. It is not nonsense that Yuaning is known in the secular world as a land god, because if a firstborn strikes, it can even overthrow an entire country. Meng Fan, right now, would be no different than a Yuaning. So Meng Tianji's worries were simply a joke in Meng Fan's eyes. A moment later, Meng Tianji left from Meng Fan's chambers. Although Meng Fan hadn't said much, just the mere words had given him enough confidence. He had come to Meng Fan on this trip to gain confidence, and now he had succeeded. This is the gap between the eyes of immortal cultivators and mortals. Meng Fan looked at Meng Tianji's back and sighed slightly. I have to say, he's too strong. The current Meng Fan couldn't feel any pressure at all in the Great Moon, let alone a sense of crisis. Meng Fan had the idea of wanting to leave the Great Moon and go out to make a name for himself. That thought, though, was quickly snuffed out. With his strength today, if he really wanted to break in, he would have to go to a level like the Holy Land. There was no lack of Yuaning in the Holy Land, and there were even transformation spirits, so the danger factor was too high. 
it would be better for himself to steadily cultivate in the great moon, and when he reached the realm of transformation of God, then he would consider formally going out on the mountain wave. What's more, with his own techniques and physique, even if he wanted to cultivate to the transformation God realm, it wouldn't take too long, perhaps, within five years it should be enough, when you think about it, that would be simply outrageous, after waiting for the God transformation realm, Meng Fan would be able to walk completely sideways in the secular world, and even if it was the holy lord of the holy land in his face, Meng Fan wouldn't wimp out on him, by then, the only thing to watch out for might be the immortal sect coming, however, there was one thing to be said, at the transformation spirit realm, one couldn't be considered too weak in the immortal sect and could have a place. Thinking this way, Meng Fan was instantly energized about cultivation and began to continue his closed door cultivation. Meng Fan's seclusion was simply cultivation, not a death seclusion. If someone was looking for him, he would stop practicing and could come out at any time. Of course, not many people are usually in a position to approach him. Those who were qualified to approach him did not dare to do so easily. So Meng Fan's time had always been plentiful and leisurely. In the blink of an eye, another seven days had passed, and Meng Fan had successfully cultivated to the peak Jindan realm. It was only one step away from the Yuaning realm. The land goddess. Name, Meng Fan. Life expectancy, 21-809. Race, human. Cultivation, peak Jindan. Technique, nine heavenly empery and spirit technique, divine grade. Physique, six paths divine body, divine grade. Supreme Talent, Sword Dao Tongshan, Top Qualification in Sword Dao. Any sword technique can be learned at once, and the power of the sword technique is enhanced. Supreme Talent, Hegemonic Stance, Any female in your presence will be weakened. Supreme Talent, Human Emperor's Bloodline, Activating the Human Emperor's Bloodline in the body will enhance your cultivation by accepting the world's fortune. Sword Techniques, Heavenly Flying Fairy, Shen Level. Holy Spirit Sword Technique, Heaven Level. 10,000 Swords Returning to the Father, Earth Level and Jintian Sword Drawing Technique, Heaven Level, Leg Technique, Wind God's Leg, Shen Level, Secret Technique, Concealment Technique, Ground Level, Weapons, Spirit Wine Sword, Shen Grade, Regulus Sword, Heaven Grade, The age on the panel has changed from 20 to 21, Meng Fan had unconsciously grown a year older, and it was only then that he remembered that it seemed to be his birthday a few days ago, only he forgot about it himself, let alone anyone else, since they were young, Meng Fan and Meng Shachan, who had no one to love or care for them, hadn't had any birthdays, both of them were tantamount to being fatherless children, and inside the high walls of such a deep palace, naturally they would not be pretentious enough to think about having any birthday, after breaking through to the peak Jindan realm, Meng Fan had a vague realization, wanting to break through from the peak of Jindan to the Yuaning realm was not an easy task, shattering of the Dan into an infant, it is one of the few most difficult hurdles for immortal cultivators. Although Meng Fan possessed a divine grade physique, the six Dao divine body, in addition to the divine grade technique, the nine heavens emperor divine skill, there was still some pressure on him to make a foolproof breakthrough to the Yuan Ying realm. The perfect situation would be to get an infant transformation pill, so that one could smoothly break through to the Yuan Ying realm, and it would save a lot of time. But this thing, infant transformation Dan, as soon as I heard it, I knew that it was extremely precious and rare in the world. In the secular world, the foundation building pill was already a very precious elixir. The foundation establishment pill, on the other hand, was nothing more than an elixir used by the peak innate to break through the foundation establishment realm. An elixir like the infant transformation dan, which was used at the peak of the gene dan to break through to the yuan ing, was undoubtedly a thousand times more precious than the foundation establishment dan. In the Xian Ling great world, it was definitely impossible for the secular world to have an infant transformation pill. Even the major holy places may not have them, even if they do, they are regarded as treasures and rare. Only the immortal sect inside the true spirit realm dared to say that they must possess the infant transformation pill. It feels like the possibility of wanting to obtain the infant transformation dan is very slim, so I guess I'll only be able to rely on my divine skills and divine body to force a breakthrough. Meng Fan muttered, if an ordinary cultivator wanted to break through from the peak of Jin Dan to the Yuaning realm, without the infant transformation pill, it would definitely be a thousand times more difficult and nine times more deadly. But for Meng Fan, with the six Dao divine body and the nine heavens emperor divine skill in hand, at most, it would be a bit stressful, just something that would take a bit more time. The small Yuaning realm would be a joke if it could block the breakthrough of a divine level technique and divine level physique. So Meng Fan wasn't overly worried. Just ten days after Meng Fan broke through to the peak of Jin Dan, Wei Changfeng found Meng Fan. Wei Changfeng Hardin has rarely come to find Meng Fan. 
Because he knows that Meng Fan's subconscious cultivation does not want to be disturbed, coupled with the fact that he was actually intoxicated with power. He had been acting as a bully in the courtroom during this period of time. However, Meng Tianji was appointed by Meng Fan to ascend the throne. Wei Changfeng did not dare to make things too difficult for Meng Tianji, only to face some courtiers who were more rampant. As Meng Fan's number one lapdog, he did have rampant capital. Your Highness, the old slave has come to greet you. Wei Changfeng arrived in front of Meng Fan and immediately was kneeling with a big salute. Meng Fan frowned at the old eunuch and asked in a calm tone, Why are you here? This guy, despite having a broken arm, is having a more prosperous little life than ever before. Because there were palace maids to serve food and drink, they all no longer used their own hands. Meng Fan had heard about all of this, but he was too lazy to bother with such trivialities. Although Meng Fan himself wasn't a greedy person, he wouldn't stop others from enjoying themselves either. There is a saying that Wei Changfeng is indeed qualified to enjoy. We can't let people suffer every day, right? Your Highness, my slave has received news that the 200, 000 troops of the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty, as well as the 200, 000 troops of the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty, have all arrived 30 miles away from the Great Moon Imperial City. In two or three days at most, they would be able to get close to the Imperial City. This time, the Great Dragon and the Great Wind are coming in force, and they are coming straight to destroy my Great Moon. In the whole of the Great Moon, only you can turn your hand to the clouds and your hand to the rain, saving the people of the Great Moon from the fire. That's why the old slave has the audacity to want to ask your highness to take action to raise the Great Moon's national prestige and give the Great Dragon and Great Wind some color. Meng Fan looked at Wei Changfeng and smiled. Meng Tianji sent you, right? It had to be said that Meng Tianji's time as emperor was simply a bit stifling. He had said that he would back up to Zuki, and he was still squirming, acting like a forced big girl every time he came to himself. This time, it even dared not come, and directly let Wei Changfeng come over. Your Highness, your divine might is overwhelming. Even if Meng Tianji is the emperor, he wouldn't dare to look directly at you. Meng Fan waved his hand and said in a bland tone, Don't say any more nonsense. Go back and tell Meng Tianji that this king knows. There's no need for him to worry about what happens next. Leave the handling of the affairs of state to you. Leave the fighting to me. Wei Changfeng left Meng Fan's chambers, his heart quite pleased with Meng Fan. He himself was obviously notified of such a shocking event, but as a result, when he arrived at the king's side, it was as if he was shouting for him to go to dinner, and he lightly returned a sentence. Got it. This proof that in the king's eyes, dealing with the 400, 000 allied troops of the Great Dragon and Great Wind dynasties was really as simple as eating and drinking. Wei Changfeng couldn't help but think of the images on the Great Moon's walls a few months ago. His Highness, who was still only the eighth prince at the time, raised his hand to decapitate Nyaren too and backhandedly forced back 100, 000 troops. It's like divine assistance. Chapter 69 On this day, Meng Fan climbed the city walls again. After Wei Changfeng left, the next day, Meng Xiaochan also came. At this time, Meng Xiaochan was already a martial artist at the sixth level of the Qi practicing realm. During this period of time, after using the pills that assisted in cultivation, coupled with activating the demon bloodline, her cultivation speed had obviously increased on a lot, compared to the cultivation speed of ordinary people. This was already considered a minor genius, but compared to Meng Fan, there was a world of difference. Meng Fan had cultivated to the peak Jin Dan realm within a year, and like Meng Xiaochan, it was estimated that he wouldn't be able to do it for a hundred years. However, this was only under normal circumstances, as Meng Fan's cultivation level grew higher and higher. With Meng Fan's help, Meng Xiaochan would certainly not die out. Imperial brother, have you heard that the 400, 000 allied troops from the Great Dragon and Great Wind dynasties have approached the Great Moon Imperial City? When Meng Xiaochan saw Meng Fan, she said with some worry, 400,000 troops, that sounds very scary. The last time the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's 100, 000 strong army pressed in, it had already forced Emperor Meng Chuanxiu to lead his people out of the palace for refuge. Today's 400, 000 strong army is a juggernaut. Moreover, the last time Meng Xiaochan had been taken out of the palace for refuge by Meng Chuanxiu, she had never seen that kind of thrilling picture at all. So this time, Meng Xiaochan was extremely nervous, much more so than Wei Changfeng and the others, because Wei Changfeng had complete confidence in Meng Fan. When he first traveled to the Golden Element Temple, he knew that Meng Fan was an existence of the land god realm. In the secular world, what does a land god represent? It represents absolute invincibility and the meaning of God. Even if an entire nation stood across from a land god, it could not threaten the land god. So at this moment, 
in the entire Great Moon, the one who was least panicked was Wei Changfeng instead. The rest of them, those who wanted Empress Meng Tianji Meng Xiaochan, were actually nervous and worried. Meng Fan looked at Meng Xiaochan and smiled. Don't be afraid. It's fine. How could Meng Xiaochan not be afraid? She said somewhat nervously, Imperial brother, why don't we escape as well? We don't have any feelings or attachment to the Great Moon Palace anyway. For Meng Xiaochan, there was nothing worth staying in the palace, and since she was a child, this deep palace with its high walls hadn't given her much happiness, so she was willing to get out of here if there was real danger coming her way. Run away. A gentleman does not stand under a dangerous wall. Meng Fan, however, shook his head and said, didn't I tell you, it's fine, Meng Xiaochan said a little anxiously, but, Meng Fan directly interrupted Meng Xiaochan's words and said with a serious face, no buts, if there was really danger, brother would have taken you to escape long ago, since brother didn't escape here, it proves that there is no danger, but that's an army of 400, 000, we've heard that in our imperial city, we only have less than 20, 000 imperial guards, what can we do to resist the 400? 000 allied forces of great wind and great dragon? Meng Xiaochan's brows furrowed as she wondered why her royal brother was dying to stay here. Because in her impression, her royal brother was not someone who had much affection for this great moon palace. In my eyes, there's no difference between an army of 400, 000 men and an army of 100, 000 men. I could defend myself against an army of 100, 000 in the beginning, and now it's the same with an army of 400, 000. When one's cultivation reaches a certain realm, the number of people is meaningless, just sending them to their deaths, Meng Fan patiently explained to Meng Xiaochan, however, Meng Xiaochan obviously couldn't understand Meng Fan because she was only a martial artist in the qi practicing realm and simply couldn't comprehend the horror of the Jin Dan Yuaning level, but although she didn't understand, she chose to believe Meng Fan, she believed this royal brother of hers would not joke with his life, what's more, even if imperial brother saw death, he wouldn't bring himself, his sister, along with him, imperial brother, what exactly is your current realm, after hesitating for a long time, Meng Xiaochan still asked the question in her heart, in her opinion, the reason why her royal brother had such strong self-confidence was entirely due to his confidence in his own strength, then what kind of strength is it that can be useful for this kind of confidence, Meng Xiaochan couldn't imagine it, which was why she couldn't help but ask, hearing Meng Xiaochan's question, Meng Fan sighed and finally decided to tell the truth to save this girl from being uneasy. Ever heard of a land immortal? Meng Fan asked to Meng Xiaochan. Of course I've heard of it. It's a legendary god. Meng Xiaochan said almost offhandedly. In her opinion, the four words, land immortals, were myths, legends, and did not exist in reality. But Meng Fan's next words made her widen her own eyes. Meng Fan allowed his tone to be as unusual and bland as possible and said, Your royal brother, I, can be a land god. Can you be a land god? Hearing Meng Fan's words, Meng Xiaochan was instantly confused, because in her impression, the land immortal was a myth, a legendary existence, and there would never be such in reality. But his own royal brother said he could be a land god, which, she no longer knew how to react. Only after a long time did she ask in confusion, Imperial brother, what exactly is a land god? This question, for a moment, really made Meng Fan freeze a bit. Those who were close to the realm of the land immortals knew very well what a land immortal was. However, if they were people who were far away from the realm of land immortals, it really wasn't too good to describe the realm of land immortals to them. Meng Fan was silent for a moment, thinking, then said with a bit of complexity, land gods, one person can destroy a country, one man destroys a nation, not one man against a nation. There was actually a huge gap in this, but Meng Xiaochan obviously couldn't understand it. But this reply from Meng Fan still shook her. Meng Fan didn't care if Meng Xiaochan believed it or not, and continued, In fact, if I were ruthless, I might be able to decimate this 400, 000 strong army and kill them all. With my power alone, I will decimate them all. Meng Xiaochan looked up at Meng Fan with a complicated expression on her face, and she didn't know what kind of feeling she had in her heart. She instinctively doubted what Meng Fan had said, because those words are just outrageous. But then again, she knew that Meng Fan couldn't possibly lie to himself at this time. This royal brother of his own was most likely telling the truth. But how could it be so outrageous? Growing up, she had grown up with her royal brother, and she had never realized that there was anything special about him. But now, what was happening did somewhat turn her perceptions upside down. Imperial brother, how on earth did you do all this? Meng Xiaochan was truly puzzled. Meng Fan sighed. This was really hard to explain. 
because Meng Xiaochan was indeed the one who knew him the best, from childhood to adulthood. In the end, Meng Fan could only choose to say in a half-truth, half-falsehood, Xiao Chan, just think of me as a one-in-a-million genius, a year of my cultivation is worth ten years, or even a hundred years, of someone else's cultivation. This was indeed a half-truth, for he was indeed a genius among ten thousand, or even one among a hundred million. In the entire Xianling Great World, it would not necessarily be possible to find a second god-level physique. Meng Xiaochan accepted the setting of Meng Fans because it was the only explanation, but she still had one more question. So she continued, Imperial brother, others say that you have a very strong force behind you, a very powerful backstage. Is this true? This question. In fact, she had asked Meng Fan before. Meng Fan had also answered her seriously, but she didn't believe it and thought Meng Fan was joking. They think I have some kind of power behind me because they don't know how strong I really am. From the beginning to the end, I had no power behind me, no backstage, I've actually told you this before, only you, like those people, don't want to believe it, so next time don't ask that kind of question because I've never lied to you before and the answer will be the same again, Meng Xiaochan's face immediately showed a hint of embarrassment, and she hurriedly explained, imperial brother, it's not that I don't believe you, it's just that this matter is indeed too unbelievable, so I didn't accept it for a while, Meng Fan rubbed Meng Xiaochan's head and laughed, there's no need to explain to me, don't I understand you? Anyway, just rest assured that the allied forces of Great Dragon and Great Wind will not threaten the Imperial City this time. Just cultivate at ease. Don't worry about anything, brother won't let them disturb you at all. Meng Xiaochan quickly shook her head and said, that won't do. When it really comes to that time, I must watch my royal brother go on a rampage and kill the four directions with my own eyes. I missed it last time, and I kind of regret it to this day, so I can't afford to miss it this time. Meng Fan couldn't help but laugh out loud, good, then you'll just wait to see your brother and I go on a rampage, it had to be said that Meng Fan was actually a bit bloated, but he does have inflated capital, two days later, the allied forces of the great wind and great dragon dynasties had arrived outside the walls of the great moon imperial city, there was a saying that the people of the great moon dynasty, after experiencing the images of the last siege of the city by 100, 000 troops, this time, facing a 400, 000 strong army besieging the city, they had been relatively calm, after all, 100, 000 and 400, 000 doesn't sound like much of a difference to the people, they felt that if they could hold it last time, they could certainly do so this time, even if they couldn't defend it, there was nothing they could do but take it as it came, as a matter of fact, those who are most nervous and scared and fearful at this moment are those court ministers, they thought they had seen a lot, unlike the people who hadn't seen the world, so they realized how terrifying 400, 000 troops were. Instinctively, they felt that the trip was a bad one. Even if the 8th prince was able to force back 100, 000 troops before, could he really force back 400, 000 troops this time? What's more, this time, it was a joint effort between Great Wind and Great Dragon, and there was no shortage of experts in the army. Any existence at the level of Marshal King Nyaran II was definitely more than one. Just as many courtiers of the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty were on edge, Meng Fan had already left his chambers and made a flying leap to the walls of the Great Moon Imperial City. With Meng Fan's appearance, all parties clouded up. When Emperor Meng Tianji heard Meng Fan appear on the city wall, he also ran his ass to the city wall. He knew very well that at this time, what imperial army or army or generals could not be relied on at all, and the only one who could be relied on was Meng Fan. Therefore, he only needed to stand at Meng Fan's side to be able to know whether Big Moon would win or lose this battle, or, it survive or perish. Chapter 70 Anyone who crosses this line will be killed without pardon. Meng Fan ascended the city wall again, and this scene uplifted many people, especially the Imperial Forest Army warriors who had participated in defending the city last time. Each of them had their hearts pounding, wanting to see the image of Meng Fan snapping his fingers and retreating from the enemy once again. The several commanders of the Imperial Forest Army had only 10, 000 or so soldiers under them combined, but they were outrageous when they faced an army of 400, 000 without much fear. As for Wei Chongfeng, he was truly resting on his laurels. In the entire Great Moon Dynasty, there was no one who understood Meng Fan's strength better than him. When he was outside the Golden Origin Temple, the image of Meng Fan's sword cutting through the sky left an indelible impression on his soul. With just that one sword, in Wei Chongfeng's mind, Meng Fan had become a god, so this time, Wei Chongfeng's mind didn't even fluctuate much and was extremely calm, those in the Imperial Guard would at least still be excited and energized, but he was indeed incredibly blasé, on the city wall, 
Meng Fan's face was calm as he coldly looked at the 400, 000 strong army in front of him. The 400, 000 strong army, which could be described as covering the sky and being densely packed, was indeed very appalling in its aura. Unfortunately, these were all just paper tigers in Meng Fan's eyes. There's no point in having more people. It's just giving away heads. Unconsciously, the walls of the 400, 000 strong imperial city were getting closer and closer. At this moment, Meng Xiaochan also sniffed and came to the walled mountain. Standing at Meng Tianji's side, Xiaochan, you're here too. Meng Tianji greeted Meng Xiaochan. Meng Xiaochan nodded at Meng Tianji and responded, Sixth Imperial Brother. In fact, Meng Xiaochan didn't have a bad impression of Meng Tianji. Since she was a child Meng Tianji hadn't bullied her and Meng Fan. This was already a good impression for her. Unlike Grand Prince Meng Tianyang, who had enjoyed bullying them since childhood. Of course, Meng Xiaochan, however, didn't have any hatred for Meng Tianyang, and she didn't harbor a grudge for the bullying and beating she had received as a child. But in comparison, she certainly didn't have much goodwill towards Meng Tianyang. What's more, Meng Tianyang had left the palace for more than 10 years, almost about the same as a stranger. Meng Xiaochan looked at Meng Fan standing on the city wall and wanted to go over to greet him. Meng Tianji, however, stopped her and spoke. Xiaochan, your royal brother. He's in a rather special and important situation right now. It's better if we don't go and disturb him at close range. Just watch from afar here. At this moment, Meng Tianji and Meng Xiaochan were about 30 meters away from Meng Fan. Not too far, not too close. Hearing Meng Tianji's words, Meng Xiaochan stopped in her tracks, and she felt that what Meng Tianji said made sense. Nowadays, the entire Great Moon Imperial Dynasty was counting on their imperial brother. With an army of 400, 000 on the other side, it would almost take imperial brother alone to power through. In this situation, the pressure on the imperial brother must be very great. It was better for himself not to bother. Standing in this position to cheer up the imperial brother was just right. As a result, just as she thought that, she heard Meng Fan's voice. Xiao Chan, come here. Meng Fan said to Meng Xiao Chan. Meng Xiao Chan's arrival was naturally felt by Meng Fan. He also heard exactly what Meng Tianji and Meng Xiao Chan said. It had to be said that Meng Tianji had simply been overly concerned. He thought Meng Fan was grave, serious, and even nervous at the moment. But in fact, Meng Fan was extremely calm and breezy. From the beginning to the end, he didn't put the Great Wind Dynasty and the Great Dragon Dynasty in his eyes. Even if these two countries invaded with all their strength, Meng Fan would not be afraid in the slightest, let alone just 400, 000 troops. So whether Meng Xiaochan came or not to his side would not affect him. When Meng Xiaochan heard Meng Fan's shout, she glanced at Meng Tianji before walking over to Meng Fan's side. As for Meng Tianji, Meng Fan didn't call out to him. He didn't dare to go over and honestly stood in place. Imperial brother. Meng Xiaochan came to Meng Fan's side, but he hadn't climbed to the top of the city wall. He was just standing in it, so her head was at the same height as Meng Fan's bare feet. Come up, Meng Fan said to Meng Xiaochan. When Meng Xiaochan heard this, she leaped up and jumped to the top of the city wall as well, looking down into the distance. 400,000 troops, a vast swathe of crows, simply a mountainous aura that shook one's heart. This is an image that ordinary people never see in their lifetime. Scared? Meng Fan asked to Meng Xiaochan. Not afraid, just a little shocked, Meng Xiaochan said with a smile. The image is, indeed, more easily shocking. Meng Fan smiled and said, I can't believe that you decided to cultivate and even took the initiative to awaken the demon bloodline. Brother knew that you were a person who wanted to be strong. If you want to be strong, brother will let you become strong and won't let you hide in the deep palace as a base. This time, brother will show you what a real strong man is like. It also lets you know what you're going to try to become in the future. From now on, you stand here without fear or hiding. As long as brother is here, no one will be able to hurt a hair on your head. Not far away. Meng Tianji looked at Meng Xiaochan with some worry. In regards to Meng Fan, he naturally wasn't worried because he could probably understand how strong Meng Fan was. Meng Xiaochan, however, was still too weak for him not to worry. Since he wasn't close, he didn't hear Meng Fan and Meng Xiaochan's conversation and didn't know what the two siblings were talking about. He didn't understand why Meng Fan wanted Meng Xiaochan to ascend to the top of the city wall. Isn't this becoming a living target? The allied forces of the Great Wind and Great Dragon dynasties would definitely attack Meng Xiaochan with all their might. Admittedly, Meng Fan's cultivation was amazing and he wasn't afraid of these attacks. But could Meng Xiaochan carry them off? This guy, Meng Fan, was really so confident that he could protect his sister in this situation? Such a serious scene, such a horrible war. 
and this guy can't take it seriously? It's too inflated, isn't it? Meng Tianji had a bit of a headache and even felt that Meng Fan had gone a bit too far, but he didn't dare to say anything and could only sigh helplessly, there's no way around it but to accept it all. On the city wall, Meng Fan drew the spirit wind sword at his waist, Xiao Chan, watch this, this sword is called the true sword one, Meng Fan said to Meng Xiao Chan, at the same time, the long sword in his hand made a stroke towards the front, and a heavenly sword she burst out across the sky and earth, the first stance of the holy spirit sword technique. Sword 1, Meng Fan had previously taught Meng Xiaochan the heavens beyond flying immortal sword technique, as well as the first six styles of the Holy Spirit sword technique, Sword 1, 2, Sword 6, however, at that time, Meng Fan had only casually passed on the passes, mere flourishes and routines, after the sword technique was passed on to Meng Xiaochan, she still needed to study and comprehend it on her own before she could finally become proficient, after such a long time had passed, although Meng Xiaochan was able to perform these sword techniques, to put it bluntly, they were still flowery, and she simply couldn't comprehend the true meaning of the sword techniques therein. It couldn't be helped. Meng Xiaochan had never had the chance to fight, nor had she ever seen anyone else fight. It would be strange to be able to practice the essence of the sword technique. This time, Meng Fan went all out to let Meng Xiaochan see the power of these swordsmanships with her own eyes, believing that it would definitely be able to bring Meng Xiaochan's swordsmanship to the next level. Meng Fan's move was well-intentioned. Who could have imagined that facing the oppression of the allied armies of two countries in 400, 000 warriors, Meng Fan would still be in the mood to teach his sister swordsmanship. What kind of big heart is that? In fact, it has nothing to do with the heart and relies on absolute strength. Absolute confidence in their own strength. After Meng Fan slashed down with the sword, a huge gully appeared in front of the imperial city, and in the middle of the 40 armies, it's a clear line of demarcation. See clearly? Meng Fans looked back at Meng Xiaochan, the sword one, just now, he had struck out with all his might, without the slightest bit of retention, this kind of all-out attack was rarely seen for Meng Fan, for Meng Xiaochan, it was even rarer, this sort of Meng Fans was specially taught to show Meng Xiaochan, and it would definitely be able to make Meng Xiaochan realize something, in the face of Meng Fan's question, Meng Xiaochan didn't answer, she had closed her eyes, her entire being desireless and selfless, seriously modeling that sort of Meng Fan's in her mind. Meng Fan couldn't help but smile when he saw Meng Xiaochan's appearance. When Meng Xiaochan opened her eyes, she would surely have a transformed, earth-shattering understanding of the sword one move. Not bad, didn't waste the sword he just struck with full force. Meng Fan stood on the city wall, a full kilometer away from the 400, 000 strong army in front of him. But the next words he opened his mouth were like thunder that exploded in the 400, 000 strong army and every soldier heard Meng Fan's voice clearly. The line drawn by this king is the line that will keep your great dragon and great wind alive. Anyone who crosses this line will be killed without pardon. Whether it was the great dragon, the great wind, or even the great moon, they all heard Meng Fan's voice. The people of the great moon imperial dynasty were naturally energized and excited. Such a dominating statement, but it was uttered by the invading side, and it was simply great. Most importantly, they felt that their king wasn't making a big deal out of it they felt that he could really do it. Anyone who crosses the line will be killed. It's painful to listen to. It literally stretches the pores of your body. It's so refreshing. Completely different from how the people of the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty felt. The generals of the Great Wind and Great Dragon were incomparably shaken. A district imperial city with less than 20, 000 guards, facing their 400, 000 troops and still daring to be so rampant. This was simply a naked humiliation and insult to them. How can you be so insulted? Absolutely unbearable. All of a sudden, they were all highly motivated to battle. Wanting to step on the Great Moon Imperial City. Meng Fan hadn't expected that. Not only did his words not deter Great Wind and Great Dragon, but instead, they enraged them, causing their battle intent to become even more high and surging. But, it's a death wish. Meng Fan stood on the city wall, his face full of coldness and a stern killing intent. Today, he was afraid that he would go on a killing spree and kill more than he did on the city walls last time. In the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's military camp, the leading great general who see Yuan's forehead wrinkled viciously. The fact is that they, unlike Dalin, are somewhat rushed, because they actually didn't quite dare to make an enemy of the Great Moon. The image of Nyerin II's fall last time had given them a great deterrent from the Great Wind. If it wasn't for De Lung's insistence on joining forces and coercion, they wouldn't have dared to send out their troops at all. So in the face of Meng Fan's rampage, unlike Big Dragon's shocked anger, Big Wind was actually more emboldened. Eat a pad and learn from it. Hussein will certainly not be the first to cross the line. 
Chapter 71 Passing Through the Heavens, 10,000 Swords Returned to the Clan The one who dared to take the lead in crossing the line was definitely someone from the Great Dragon Dynasty without a doubt. In fact, the Great Dragon Dynasty was well aware of this, because after seeing Meng Fan draw a path, the Great Wind Dynasty's army immediately stopped in its tracks. The Great Dragon Dynasty couldn't help but feel a bit helpless, secretly cursing these Great Wind Dynasty people as goon ratios and trash. It's a disgrace to wimp out like this after just one defeat. Since this was the case, only they, the Great Dragon Dynasty, could be the vanguard of this. The commander-in-chief of the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty this time, his name was He Yun Tian, a renowned great general of the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty. This person not only has amazing battle achievements and is extremely prestigious in the army, but is also the number one expert of the Great Dragon Dynasty, which is at the mid Jin Don realm, and when he strikes, he is invincible. So over the years, but any battle he's fought, he's never lost. The truth was that he hadn't been on the warpath for years, and would almost never fight, let alone lead an army into battle. This time, the Great Dragon Dynasty was able to bring him back to the mountain, and it was considered a blood sacrifice. Unfortunately, they had no idea how powerful the enemy they were facing was. They knew too little about such a transgressive person as Meng Fan, and this was where they had blundered. But if things were predictable, they wouldn't have started this war. On the city wall, Meng Fan coldly looked ahead. He clearly saw that among the 400, 000 troops, there was a clear division, with one part of them continuing to advance, while the other part stayed honestly in place, waiting for the other side to explore the road. The army that continued to advance, Meng Fan was able to see, was the army of the Great Dragon Dynasty? This is the same as what he expected. It looks like the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty ate a pad or grew wise, and did not dare to be reckless and hard with himself easily again. But this big dragon, has not suffered. So do not know fear, Meng Fan's gaze was calm, and his eyes were filled with coldness. Soon, the Great Dragon Dynasty's army, the front-end troops had broken through the demarcation line drawn by Meng Fan. These soldiers of the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty didn't give a damn. They wanted to see how the king who was so rampant on the Great Moon Imperial City would let them die, and death to those who crossed the line. My ass, I'm crossing the line right now, how come I'm not dead? Meng Fan shook his head. In a war of this level, someone was bound to die. With his current status and position, as well as his Jianghu prestige, he was not yet able to do so without a fight. Only with a thunderous force, suppressed by blood and human lives, could these people feel fear, feel broken, and thus retreat. Those who crossed the line died. These were Meng Fan's words, and he had to do the same. The wind spirit sword sliced through a shocking sword light in his hand, and the sword light was like moonlight pouring down, covering pieces. At once, the soldiers who crossed the demarcation line were all bloodied and turned into corpses. With this sword, Meng Fan had decapitated thousands of people, and it was this sword that made the Great Dragon's army feel fear, and they subconsciously stopped in their tracks. Especially those soldiers behind the demarcation line instinctively did not dare to advance any further, because in front of them were rows and rows of pieces of corpses. It's literally piled up into a mountain. More than a thousand corpses didn't sound like much, but when piled up together, it was still extremely shocking and incomparably horrifying. Just like that, Meng Fan's sword fell, successfully stopping the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty from moving on. Continue marching, He Yun Tian, the commander of the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty, let out a furious shout. He was a mid Jin Don existence, and was well aware of how strong that sword Meng Fan had just used was, not to mention a thousand people, even two thousand people were able to be decimated. However, the Great Dragon and Great Wind Dynasties had a combined army of 400, 000 this time, so they were able to pile it up. Even if this renowned prince of the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty was able to break armor by thousands with one sword, then how many swords would he be able to make? Anyway, there were many others, so they could pile up and kill this Great Moon 8th prince. In this regard, He Yun Tian was very confident. Under his orders, the army of the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty continued to march forward. On the city wall, Meng Fan's face was incredibly cold, and his eyes vaguely revealed killing intent. No tears until you see the coffin. This great dragon emperor dynasty is truly uneducated. The reason why Meng Fan had drawn the dividing line, the reason why he had spoken out to intimidate, was still because he didn't want to create too many killings. In comparison, he preferred that the great dragon and great wind dynasties would retreat on their own initiative. If he really decimated this 400, 000 strong army, even Meng Fan's game life attitude would feel a lot of pressure. There was one thing to be said. Even if one were to step on 400, 000 ants, that image would be able to cast a shadow over people. 
let alone 400, 000 living human beings. But if Meng Fan's Great Dragon Dynasty continues to be so insensitive, Meng Fan doesn't mind really going on a killing spree. He Yuntian doubted how many swords Meng Fan could produce, not realizing that a single sword from Meng Fan could be equivalent to 10,000 swords. Sword, come on, Meng Fan, who was standing on the city wall, let out a cold shout. The army of the Great Dragon Dynasty had once again crossed the demarcation line drawn by Meng Fan. This time, Meng Fan would use even more thunderous means to make these soldiers of the Great Dragon feel fear and despair. With this cold cry from Meng Fan, the battle swords of countless soldiers in the 400, 000 strong army rose up into the sky, dense and dazzling. Ha! Look! Sword! My sword! Why is my sword flying away? Countless battle swords rose up into the sky. The image was familiar. The Imperial Guards and the people in the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty were very familiar with this scene. 10,000 swords coming. They had seen it with their own eyes that day. Then there were people among the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's army who were also familiar with the fact that they had once had someone's battle sword rise up into the sky. As a result, today, the scene happened again. Even among the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's army, there were many people who had their battle swords taken away for the second time this time. The battle sword rose up into the air. They couldn't even stop it and were extremely helpless. And while this scene was happening, they also thought of the fear that they had once been ruled by the 10,000 swords over the sky a few months ago. In just an instant, the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's military heart had already somewhat dispersed. Of course, among the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's army, those who had experienced that previous battle were, after all, a minority, so they were barely able to hold on. Last time, in the Great Wind Dynasty, there were only 100, 000 troops in total, and so many died. This time it was a full 200, 000, so the previous soldiers were destined to be only a minority. Above the city wall, Meng Fan stretched out a finger. Countless battle swords followed the direction of his finger and converged over the imperial city. There really were countless battle swords. It was impossible to count them in detail, but there had to be at least 20, 000 to 30, 000 of them. If this wave of battle swords smashed down, then the losses of the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty's army would be in the tens of thousands. Seeing this scene, even He Yuntian couldn't sit down anymore. This Great Moon's eighth prince, his methods were indeed somewhat astonishing and his strength terrifying. He couldn't just let this wave of his battle sword smash down. This number one powerhouse of the Great Dragon Dynasty rushed out of the army and flew up into the sky. After an instant, he appeared on top of the city wall of the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty, coldly confronting Meng Fan, eighth prince of the Great Moon. This marshal admits that you have amazing strength and terrifying cultivation, but this kind of cultivation striking out at ordinary soldiers is a bit too victorious and bullying. He Yuntian stared at Meng Fan with a solemn face, mouthing grandiose words. Meng Fan laughed coldly. If your 400, 000 strong army comes to attack the Great Lunar Imperial City, which has less than 20, 000 guards, then you're not bullying people? The 8th prince is wrong. This is the strongest of the weak. He Yuntian said with a serious face. He he, when this king strikes, he is also a weakling. Meng Fan had a disdainful look on his face. He Yuntian let out a long sigh and said, now, your opponent is me, not those weak soldiers. Meng Fan scoffed with a scornful look on his face. He he, it's a pity that you're no match for me either. Arrogant. He Yuntian let out a long whistle and pulled out the sword at his waist, then chopped toward Meng Fan. Meng Fan did not move his sword, he had enough swords already. He Yuntian was only at the mid Jin Dan realm, while Meng Fan was indeed at the peak of the Jin Dan. Even Meng Fan had always had the ability to challenge people at a higher level. So this He Yuntian really wasn't enough to look at in front of Meng Fan. It was only that Meng Xiaochan was behind Meng Fan. So Meng Fan decided to beat this He Yuntian down first for Meng Xiaochan's safety, so as not to affect Meng Xiaochan. With Meng Fan around, it was naturally impossible for He Yuntian to harm Meng Xiaochan. However, Meng Xiaochan had watched Meng Fan's sword one earlier. And at the moment, she had a state of near epiphany. Meng Fan didn't want He Yuntian to disturb Meng Xiaochan. So Meng Fan still struck out with a thunderous force, and although he didn't move his sword, he moved his legs. The wind god's kick, thunderclap, the berserk and overbearing leg directly blasted onto He Yuntian's chest, sending his entire body flying a full kilometer into the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty's army. As for the swordsmen he slashed at Meng Fan, they also landed on the city walls. A little weak, the renowned number one expert of the Great Dragon Dynasty? It was simply not enough to kill in seconds in front of Meng Fan. Meng Fan's leg had undoubtedly shattered He Tianyun's heart vein, 
and theoretically he should be dead at this moment. However, this guy was after all a Jindan realm cultivator, so if he was rescued in time, it was still possible to save his life. Unfortunately, it was impossible for anyone to save him under these circumstances. Amid Jindan, the strongest existence of a royal dynasty, was just kicked to death by Meng Fan. Sad, but not unfortunate, because Meng Fan was simply too strong. It could only be said that this guy had a bad fate and deserved his bad luck. It was bad to mess with anyone but Meng Fan's head, looking for death, as he Yun Tian was blasted into the crowd, his life and death unknown. The Great Dragon Dynasty's army was suddenly panicked. If the main general just straight up died in battle, then this would be awkward ah. And so it was that the army that was originally rushing towards the Imperial City once again stopped, ready to listen to the next order. But if he Yun Tian was really dead, there wouldn't necessarily be an order next. There were orders, and they certainly weren't issued by He Yuntian. On the city wall, Meng Fan was indifferent. The king has said that those who cross the line, die. His voice, once again, exploded in the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty's army. At this moment, although the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty's army had stopped, there were still tens of thousands of people who had crossed that demarcation line. What they don't realize is that this dividing line that divides is life and death. Crossing this line symbolizes death. Meng Fan's finger pointed ahead, jing, 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 countless sword chants went through the sky, in the sky above the imperial city, densely packed, sky shadowing battle swords surged ahead of that demarcation line, 10,000 swords returned to the clan, chapter 72, the soldier who gives up without a fight, although the great dragon imperial dynasty's army had stopped and didn't dare to move on anymore, however, there were still tens of thousands of people who had crossed that demarcation line drawn by Meng Fan, Meng Fan, as a person, had always been true to his word, since it is said that those who cross the line will die, then even if the army stops, those who cross the line will still have to die, otherwise, wouldn't it prove that Meng Fan was a man of his word, when one lives, one must keep one's word, Meng Fan considered himself to be a man of one word and one promise said, for example, if, says kill your whole family, you have to kill your whole family, so those tens of thousands of people who had crossed the demarcation line had already been sentenced to death by Meng Fan, Countless battle swords descended from the sky like a rain of swords raining down from the sky. This scene was extremely horrifying. 10,000 swords returning to the father. This sword technique could not play any role at all in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and could be called chicken ribs. However, in this kind of big scene, the 10,000 swords returning to the clan did have a terrifying divine might that penetrated the heavens and the earth, causing the heart and mind to tremble as if facing a god or a demon. As Meng Fan pointed this finger, Countless battle swords fell down to cover the sky, and moments later, those soldiers of the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty who had crossed the demarcation line were all killed by the battle swords piercing through their bodies. One by one, the deaths were extremely tragic. Meng Fan's face was expressionless, snapping his fingers and slaughtering tens of thousands of people. This kind of thing was extremely appalling. Not everyone was capable of such cruelty, like Meng Fan in his previous life, for which he couldn't even think of imagining. But the current Meng Fan, although still somewhat intolerant, was able to suppress this intolerance in a way that could be described as cruel. While forcibly suppressing his heart's intolerance, Meng Fan opened his mouth again, his voice like a flood of thunder, exploding in the crowd. This king will say it one last time, anyone who crosses this line, dies, whether it be one man, or ten thousand, or a hundred thousand, or even four hundred thousand. As long as you cross this line, this king will be able to kill you all, chopped up. If Meng Fan really killed 400, 000 troops directly this time, he would become a well-deserved god of killing in the Xianling Great World, with his fame reaching earth-shattering levels. Perhaps in the Xianling Great World, there were some great generals who had campaigned all their lives, experienced countless battles, and overthrown more than 400, 000 great armies, but that could not be considered a kill by his own hand, merely a battle between two armies under his command. Meng Fan, on the other hand, would be the one to personally kill these armies, with the power of one man himself. Most importantly, it was a one-time decimation in one day. This battle record was absolutely unique in the Xianling Great World, a well-deserved killing god. Of course, it should also be unlikely that this will actually happen, because there was no way that the Great Dragon and Great Wind dynasties would be so stupid as to have their entire armies wiped out, and it was looking for death to cross the demarcation line when they knew that they were unbeatable. No one would seek death, at most. They would choose to fight in a situation where life and death were unknown, and not many people would be foolish enough to die if they were sure they would. In fact, it was true that the army of the Great Dragon Dynasty completely stopped. 
with the deaths of another 10, 000 or so line crossers, those remaining who had not crossed the line simply did not dare to cross it again. It was because they had clearly believed in Meng Fan's words at this moment, those who crossed the line died, certain death, no other possibility, even if they had an army of 400, 000, at this moment, they had no backbone, to kill more than 10, 000 people with a single strike. This image was simply too terrifying and shocking. Even an army of 400, 000 isn't enough to kill a few times. This terrifying eighth prince of the great lunar imperial dynasty, his highness, might really have the ability to slaughter a 400, 000 strong army with the power of a single person. At the thought of this, both the great dragon imperial dynasty and the great wind imperial dynasty were a bit abashed. I can't even say it's a little wimpy. It's extra wimpy. At this moment, He Tian Yun, who had been pushed into the army by Meng Fan's foot, had already been determined to be dead. As this news spread, the crowd was even more on edge. The Lord Commander was killed in battle. This is a great misfortune. What's more, their commander-in-chief was also the first and deserved expert of the Great Dragon Dynasty, and no one had been able to defeat him. But it was such a powerful commander-in-chief that was stomped to death. How can we fight this battle? There's no fight. In the Great Dragon Dynasty, He Yuntian's vice general, Yi Feng, received the tiger symbol and temporarily led the army, but he has no pleasure in being in power at the moment. This is not a crisis. This is putting him on the fire, not to mention the awkwardness of the situation, the helplessness, the real dilemma. Moving forward now could cost more. However, if he retreated and returned to the Great Dragon Dynasty, he would be greeted by the Great Dragon Emperor's dragon's wrath as well as the verbal abuse of his ministers, so he did not dare to choose to retreat, because the responsibility of retreating, he could not afford, but if he ordered to move on, he felt that his order was a fart, and not many people would even listen to him, it's sending people to their deaths, who wants to die, no one is willing to die, if it was E. Tian Yun who was still alive, under his accumulated power, perhaps there would still be people who would harden their hearts and charge another wave, Yi Feng, however, didn't have this prestige at all. He told people to get killed, and no one would even listen to him. Still, he attempted to hold the tiger aloft and yelled, attack, regardless of whether or not anyone listened to him. At least he had to make a stand so that if he returned to the great dragon dynasty at that time, he would at least be able to prove that he wasn't voluntarily retreating. Rather, the commander-in-chief, He Yuntian, was killed in battle, and there was nothing he could do when the generals did not follow his orders. In this way, even if he returned to the Great Dragon Dynasty with a defeated army at that time, he wouldn't have to take the main responsibility and would be able to be punished less. It couldn't be helped. That was all he could do to comfort himself. With this roar from Yi Feng, there was no doubt that none of the generals of the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty listened to him at all. The army of over a hundred thousand stood still. Not a single person took Yi Feng's words seriously at all. Once he Yun Tian died, Yi Feng really didn't have this prestige of being the head of the family yet. Thus, Hundreds of thousands of troops stood behind the demarcation line drawn by Meng Fan, not daring to cross the line in the slightest. One by one, it can be really honest. Meng Fan looked at the scene with an expressionless face. After today, regardless of whether this 400, 000 strong army was dead or alive, Meng Fan's prestige would reach a terrifying point. Whether it was one person slaughtering a 400, 000 strong army or one person forcing back a 400, 000 strong army. This was already comparable to a myth. There is no difference. In the entire secular world, no one dared to underestimate Meng Fan in the slightest anymore. And no matter which imperial dynasty it was, they didn't dare to provoke Meng Fan anymore. Even the Holy Lands would look at Meng Fan differently and pay some attention. Of course, for the Holy Land, it was just the point of looking at it differently. And it wasn't up to the point of making the Holy Land jealous. After all, the Holy Land had, in a sense, transcended this realm of the secular world. Any more terrifying stormtroopers in the secular world were nothing to the Holy Land, as the two sides were not on the same level. Other than that, the Holy Land has the existence of the transformation god realms, but the secular world is able to produce a Yuanning is already a genius that captures the heavens and is a genius that is rare to come across in a hundred years. In the secular world's imperial dynasties and various sects, although there was no lack of Jindan realm existences, Yuanning was indeed a phoenix feather. Most of the Jindan realm cultivators in the secular world were only expected to break through to the Yuanning realm after joining the Holy Land. And after entering the Holy Land, in a sense, one was no longer considered a person of the secular world. As for those who had been blessed by heaven and directly entered the immortal sect, 
Then it was even more needless to say that they had long since detached themselves from the secular world and had even entered the true spirit realm. At this moment, in the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty's army, Commander Hu Siyuan had a tangled and hesitant look on his face. This eighth prince of the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty was even more terrifying than he had imagined. Originally, it was thought that the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty being the vanguard might be able to thwart this Great Lunar Eighth Prince. As a result, it was in fact the Great Dragon Dynasty that was unilaterally slaughtered. Even He Yun Tian, the commander-in-chief of the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty, who was known as the number one expert of the Great Dragon, died at the hands of this Eighth Prince. The most terrifying thing is that this Eighth Prince, killing He Yun Tian only used one move, lightly and casually crushed. With such a terrifying presence guarding the imperial city of the great moon, not to mention the 400, 000 troops, even if it was a million troops, it would be impossible for them to touch the city walls, not to mention, attacking the city, this is a war that is doomed before it even starts, there is no fight, had he known that this eighth prince of the great moon was terrifying to such an extent, the great wind would not have sent troops at all, this eighth prince of the great moon is beyond earthly combat, with such a demon in place, no one would be able to move the great moon imperial city, unless, the holy land steps in, the holy land, however, would not intervene in the battle of the imperial dynasties at all, if the holy land was compared to an ordinary person, then the imperial dynasty was two ants, would one intervene in a fight between two ants, in fact it's not a matter of intervention or not anymore, one doesn't even notice if two ants are fighting, after a moment, Hussein no longer hesitated, he raised the tiger talisman high and spat out two words with all his strength. Withdrawal. Great Wind Dynasty. Withdraw your troops. Meng Fan coldly watched the scene from the city walls. And in fact, he had already anticipated this scene. From the moment the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty had not dared to cross the demarcation line in the first place, Meng Fan had known that the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty would definitely withdraw its troops. Especially since the Great Dragon Dynasty had suffered such severe losses and had been completely crushed. It had crushed Great Wind's only hope. From the beginning to the end, Great Wind was in fear of Great Moon. Or rather, fear of Meng Fan, the eighth prince of Great Moon. They went out and were completely set up by the Grand Dragon. Now that the facts are in front of us, if we don't withdraw our troops, we will be looking for death. And there is no way that Great Wind will accompany Great Dragon in his search for death. Even at this moment even the Great Wind thought that the Great Dragon would withdraw its troops because it really had no chance. What they were facing was not a person it was simply a god, even if there were more of them, how could they fight god, isn't this a death wish, no, it's a death sentence, Gale withdrew his troops straight away, a little panicked but barely in order, after all, it was a withdrawal not a march, which was in line with the hearts and minds of the warriors, who didn't want to send them to their deaths, when these armies came, Meng Fan's prestige hadn't yet reached the point where he could, give up without a fight, and at this moment, when they retreated of their own accord, Meng Fan had already reached it, this is a feat that, the only one in the world, chapter 73, I don't mind being a human butcher, Meng Fan didn't make any moves to stop the great wind from withdrawing their troops, if he wanted to, he could indeed give the great wind a sufficiently painful lesson, and it wouldn't even be difficult for them to leave a hundred thousand zombies buried here, however, Meng Fan still chose to let them go, and since the great wind had retreated of its own accord, he hadn't decimated them, in the end, Meng Fan didn't want to create too much killing, Slaughtering tens of thousands, or even hundreds of thousands of people at every turn is indeed detrimental to the peace of heaven, and there is no need for such bloody violence. God has a good life. The Great Wind's 200, 000 strong army retreated, and soon only the Great Dragon Dynasty's army was left on the spot. The army of close to 200, 000, although it still had a grandeur that covered the sky, but compared to the previous 400, 000 vast army, it was already significantly less imposing, especially when they saw the great wind retreating, the army of the great dragon was even more terrified, completely lacking the courage to march, at this moment, even if that newly promoted commander Yi Feng shouted his throat out, not a single soldier would rush forward to cross the demarcation line, oh, actually there is one, and that's himself, but when he thought about it, he couldn't possibly go to his death himself, and he didn't dare cross the dividing line, putting himself in his shoes like this, Yi Fom understood that this time, De Long's army had come to the end, it was impossible to go one step forward, only possible to go backward, but he was still hesitant to call out the word retreat, still, once he cried out for a retreat, then back at the Grand Dragon, he was bound to take the blame, at this moment, Yi Fong actually resented He Yun Tian somewhat, this guy, 
dying so early and dropping the trouble on his head, is really sad, he yuntian ah he yuntian, you are at least the number one expert of the great dragon dynasty, can't you carry one more kick, being kicked to death is really embarrassing, it's just crap, yi feng, who was incomparably entangled and annoyed inwardly, was cursing at he yuntian in his mind at the moment, if it was an unusual time to be able to succeed he yuntian on the throne, he would be able to smile and even collapse his teeth, unfortunately, Getting to the top at this point in time is really worse than being demoted. Anyway, after returning to the Great Dragon Dynasty, he would definitely be demoted as well. But only if we get back alive first. Unlike the worried state of mind of the generals of the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty, the people on the side of the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty were thrilled to death. Too excited. 400,000 troops. Ah, their Great Moon Imperial Dynasty did not move a single soldier. Merely His Highness the Eighth Prince made two swords. The first sword breaking armor by thousands, the second sword, wiping out tens of thousands of enemies, how is this, different from God, in the eyes of the people of the great moon, Meng Fan was truly a god, because the scene before them was really something that only God could do, not to mention the people, even the emperor of the great moon, Meng Tianji, had a feeling that his blood was boiling at this moment, he had to admit that he was a little jealous of Meng Fan, and even more so, he was a little envious of Meng Fan, but deep down, it was even more undeniable that he still somewhat admired Meng Fan, exactly the same worship as the people. As an emperor, it was reasonable that he shouldn't have a kind of worship, because he was the son of heaven, he should be the king of a country, the most powerful and noble existence of a country, but he really couldn't help it, he really and truly kind of worshipped Meng Fan at the moment, from the bottom of his heart. Even so, he suddenly felt that an emperor of a royal dynasty was nothing. Yes, if one person with Meng Fan's kind of combat power was stronger than an entire country, then what was an emperor of a country? Under normal circumstances, if a country had such a meritorious person, the emperor would definitely try to get rid of that person. But Meng Tianji didn't have this idea at all. First of all, it was impossible for him to get rid of Meng Fan. He didn't have this ability. He didn't have this hope. Secondly, he was also unwilling to get rid of Meng Fan. And subjectively then he didn't want to get rid of Meng Fan at all. He thought, isn't it quite a cool thing to have such an overwhelming figure covering him? Why are you so upset with yourself? At this moment, the people in the Imperial Guards in the Imperial City were unable to resist chanting Meng Fan's honorable name, expressing their excitement and surging hearts. Eighth Prince, Wan Shang, Eighth Prince, Wan Shang, Eighth Prince, Wan Shang, even Meng Tianji, the Emperor, couldn't help but follow the chants without feeling awkward at all. This was Meng Fan's prestige, a person shouting that might not feel much, and it might even be a bit ridiculous, but a city of people in general shouting at the same time, this kind of mountainous and heavenly sound, it is really a bit appalling. The mere sound of these cheering voices that reached the ears of the warriors of the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty caused their hearts to palpitate even more. This was intimidation, and it had to be said that they, the generals, already had fear in their hearts at this moment. Fear of the Great Moon, or Fear of the Great Moon's Eighth Prince, Meng Fan. From now on, whenever they heard of the Eight Princes of the Great Moon and the name Meng Fan, they would all get chills. For this name, this being, will become taboo. On the city wall, Meng Fan coldly looked at the direction of the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty's army. Gael has retreated, but Dayron is still in place. Although they hadn't crossed the demarcation line, this way of pressing on with their troops still caused Meng Fan to be a bit dissatisfied. It would really be an ill-advised act not to retreat after what has happened, because Meng Fan really had the ability to be able to leave behind and bury this remaining army of nearly 200, 000 people through and through. After all, Meng Fan hadn't even activated his human emperor bloodline up to this point, and he still had a lot of power left. Even if he didn't activate the human emperor bloodline, Meng Fan was confident that he would be able to decimate this 200, 000 strong army. In front of a cultivator at the peak Jin Dan realm, there was not the slightest significance to having a large number of people, they were all just giving away their heads. Moreover, Meng Fan, a peak Jin Dan, was too much stronger than a normal peak Jin Dan. If one really decimated 200, 000 troops outside of the imperial city, it would not only be a cruelty to Meng Fan, but the more cruel it would be to Meng Fan's Great Moon Imperial City. 200,000 unjust souls were enough to turn the Great Moon Imperial City into an extremely gloomy city. And this was not something Meng Fan was willing to see. So up until this moment, Meng Fan was still thinking of forcing back the Great Dragon Dynasty's army rather than decimating it. But ideas are ideas. And many times there is a difference between ideas and reality. Take Meng Fan for example. 
he wasn't a very good-tempered person, and if the Great Dragon Dynasty was any more ungrateful and angered Meng Fan, he would kill him in a fit of rage, especially if Meng Fan activated the human emperor bloodline in his body. When that mood of towering, disdainful indifference appeared, Meng Fan would completely kill without blinking an eye, but anyone who disrespects him can be killed. Luckily, Meng Fan hadn't activated the human emperor bloodline. Meng Fan, who was on the city wall, opened his mouth once again, his voice like thunder exploding in the great dragon's army. If you don't withdraw your troops within an incense stick, you will stay here forever and sleep here. The great wind imperial dynasty has an Yaren too, and this king wouldn't mind being a great moon's Mangren too. Slaughtering the 200, 000 strong army of the great dragon is a great deed. Meng Fan's words fell, and immediately caused a huge commotion amongst the troops of the great dragon imperial dynasty. Even before Yi Fong had ordered the withdrawal and retreat, there were already soldiers fleeing to the rear. Deserters, what does it mean when an army deserts in the middle of an engagement? It represents a complete rout, with no room for redemption. When he saw that there were deserters amongst the great dragon dynasty's army, Meng Fan couldn't help but shake his head as well. It couldn't be said that these armies of the great dragon dynasty were weak. Even if they were the first-rate strong armies in the whole world, they were useless here. Completely useless because their opponents are not human. Meng Fan's gaze was indifferent. Things had developed to this point, so it was like it was already over. There would be no more surprises. The great dragon was destined to retreat. And even if the commander-in-chief did not wish to do so, these soldiers themselves would have retreated. No one wants to die. Even the most valiant soldiers, fearless of life and death, are willing to die in battle. But there's still a fundamental difference between dying in battle and being sent to your death. Charging towards the Great Moon Imperial City at this time. Crossing the demarcation line. This wasn't even considered a battle death. This was purely sending death. This isn't even a war. It's a bizarre massacre. And it's not fair. Not only did Meng Fan think the situation was in order, but Meng Tianji, as well as the courtiers and so on, all thought that the battle had been won. Without moving a single soldier, the eighth prince alone had resisted an army of 400, 000 men. I can't even say I'm resisting. I should say I'm crushing. The eighth prince, alone, crushed an army of 400, 000 men. Just outrageous. With the existence of such an eighth prince, what else does the great moon have to fear? Even these great moon courtiers felt that they, the great moon, could unify the world, and that no one could stop the great moon at all. That's just pure bloat. If you want to unify the world, you must first ask Meng Fan if he agrees. Without Meng Fan's help, great moon took his ass to unify the world? As for whether Meng Fan would help? Of course not. Meng Fan might as well cultivate for a few more days if he had this free time. With Meng Fan sitting at the helm, no one would be able to violate the great moon. But it's unlikely that Atsuki would want to go and violate someone else, because others violated the great moon. Meng Fan would strike. Meng Fan wouldn't be able to come to the aid of Big Moon when he wanted to violate someone else. Just as everyone inside the imperial city of Daiyue was cheering for victory and shouting for the 8th prince, Wan Shang, Meng Fan on the city wall, however, frowned. It was because a silhouette rose up into the sky from the army of the great dragon imperial dynasty. Just by virtue of this aura that rose up to the sky, it already proved that it was not a mortal, or at least stronger than He Yuntian. He Yuntian was known as the number one expert of the great dragon. But it turned out that there was actually an even stronger existence than He Yuntian hidden in this army? This couldn't help but make Meng Fan a bit puzzled. However, when Meng Fan took a good look at the silhouette, the doubt on his face disappeared and was replaced by a daze. Because this figure that rose up into the sky was one that Meng Fan recognized, having once seen it inside the Great Moon Palace, it was even thought at the time that this person would marry into the Great Moon. A few moments later, this figure rushed to the walls of the Great Moon Imperial City and stood opposite Meng Fan from a distance. The seventh princess of the Great Dragon Dynasty, Xin Xiangming, the reincarnation of that system suggested human immortal, a true daughter of heaven. Chapter 74, A Sword Comes West at Sunset. It's you, Meng Fan's brows furrowed. Seeing the woman Xin Xiangming, Meng Fan couldn't help but think of that hint from the system. Dual cultivation with this kind of character will enhance the qi and strengthen the human emperor's bloodline. Well, when meeting with this woman again, Meng Fan realized that he was actually obsessed with these words. Meng Fan wouldn't admit that he was an old colorful batch, and could only say that the point of enhancing the human emperor's bloodline was still quite appealing to him. As for Qin Shangming the woman, her appearance is indeed exquisite. In this life and the previous life, including the stars on TV, Meng Fan has never seen a person who was more beautiful than her. This is a true stunner, rare in the world. 
Perhaps it was precisely because he was a reincarnation of a human immortal that he was able to be born with such a heavenly beauty. Unfortunately, Meng Fan was not good with women, so no matter how beautiful this Qin Shangming looked, it wouldn't have any effect on Meng Fan. This Qin Shangming, like Meng Fan, was in existence at the peak of the Jin Dan realm. Meng Fan had foreseen this. When the system gave Qin Shangming's information, it had mentioned that Qin Shangming was at the peak of the Jin Dan realm, and at that time, Meng Fan was only in the middle Jin Dan stage. Today, Meng Fan was already at the peak of Jin Dan, while Qin Shangming was still at the peak of Jin Dan. Not everyone was able to be as perverse as Meng Fan, able to ascend two realms in a row in just a few months. So when Qin Shangming appeared on the city wall and looked at Meng Fan, shock couldn't help but appear on her face. Extremely shocked. In just a few months, this fellow had actually elevated from mid Jin Dan to peak Jin Dan? How is this practiced? Qin Shangming was truly shocked and dumbfounded. A reincarnation of a human immortal, who could once be said to have stood at the top of the world. So Qin Shangming was undoubtedly well informed. But even so, seeing Meng Fan in this kind of degradation, she felt a bit unable to accept it. It was really unbelievable. How could this guy's cultivation speed be able to achieve so much more outrageous than the reincarnation of a human immortal? 8th Prince Meng Fan. What a good tactic. Qin Shangming looked at Meng Fan, a strange color in her eyes. She had been curious about Meng Fan before, but now was even more curious. 7th Princess of the Great Dragon. I know that you are extraordinary. A daughter of heaven. Unrivaled. But if you want to stand up for the great dragon today and take a shot at me, then this is definitely a wrong decision. Meng Fan looked coldly at Qin Shangming, and although this was a peerless beauty, he was unmoved, at least superficially unmoved. Qin Shangming laughed, I'm curious, the last time I saw you, you were still only at the mid Jin Dan realm, how did you manage to break through to the peak of the Jin Dan in such a short period of time? Meng Fan similarly laughed, Seventh Princess, do you think I would tell you such a thing? Hearing Meng Fan's words, Qin Shangming froze for a moment, nodded her head and smiled. That's right, indeed. Of course she knew that Meng Fan couldn't honestly tell himself, but the fact that this guy was so honest made her laugh and cry. Qin Shangming looked at the Xianfeng sword in Meng Fan's hand, and a hint of disdain appeared on her face. Xian grade sword weapon. For a peak Jin Dan to use in Xian grade weapon, it was indeed a bit of a drop. Qin Shangming was a human immortal in her previous life, a cultivator of the Mahayana stage and her vision could be described as high to the extreme. So when she saw the Xian grade sword in Meng Fan's hand, a hint of contempt instinctively showed in her eyes. And how perceptive was Meng Fan? He caught the look of disdain in Qin Shangming's eyes in an instant, which couldn't help but make him a little helpless. I can't believe I'm being looked down upon because of my weapon. It's kinda embarrassing, to be honest. Meng Fan even had the urge to take out the Xian Yuan sword inside his storage ring. However, Taking out the regular sword had no practical significance as he could not pull out the regular sword at all without activating the human emperor bloodline. It could only be looked down upon in vain. Meng Fan was extremely helpless. Xin Shangming stood in front of Meng Fan with a cold smile on her face and said, The eighth prince just said that it would be a mistake if I were to make a move against you. It looks like the eighth prince has a lot of confidence in himself, deciding that I'm not a match for you? Meng Fan nodded. Indeed. Qin Shangming instantly laughed in anger and said in a chilling voice, What an ignorant, big talker, do you think you can really fight against me just because you used a secret method to raise to the peak of Jin Dan in such a short period of time? In Qin Shangming's opinion, Meng Fan was able to break through two realms one after another in such a short period of time, reaching the peak of Jin Dan from the middle Jin Dan stage. This is bound to use some shortcuts, quick success way of cultivation, and this way of cultivation, it is easy to unstable foundation. The strength is even weaker than the same realm of cultivators who are stable and steady. So being at the same peak Jin Dan realm, Xin Shangming actually didn't put Meng Fan in her eyes and didn't look down on him. What's more, she was a reincarnation of a human immortal and had much more means than Meng Fan. Even if it was a heaven's pride level character in the same realm, she had the confidence to step under her feet, let alone Meng Fan. How do you know that I used a secret method to raise my cultivation, whether you believe it or not? If you make a move, you will be the only one to suffer. Meng Fan looked at Qin Shangming and said expressionlessly. Qin Shangming laughed coldly. The entire Great Lunar Dynasty is only relying on you to hold it together. If I behead you, the Great Lunar Dynasty will disintegrate in an instant and be doomed to go up in smoke. Meng Fan looked at Qin Shangming with a calm, bland face. You can't decapitate me. And what's more, I don't think you'll make a move for the Great Dragon Dynasty because you won't put the Great Dragon Dynasty in your heart at all. Hearing Meng Fan's words, Xin Shangming couldn't help but laugh, with a hint of ridicule. 
The corner of her mouth tugged up into an arc as she said to Meng Fan, You likewise don't have the Great Lunar Dynasty in your heart, but you likewise made a move for the Great Lunar Dynasty. Since that's the case, then why are you certain that I won't fight for the Great Dragon Dynasty? Meng Fan's eyebrows moved slightly, and he had to say that he felt at this moment that Qin Xiangming had a point. He felt that Qin Xiangming, being a reincarnation of a human immortal, couldn't possibly attach any importance to the Great Dragon Dynasty, and wouldn't put the Great Dragon Dynasty in his heart at all. Therefore, he thought that Qin Xiangming didn't have to make a move for DeLong, but pushing himself, putting himself in his own shoes, he really didn't think of Ozuki in the same way, but he, himself, still went out on a limb for Atsuki. Qin Xiangming was right, since it was more or less the same situation, then since she herself was able to make a move for Big Moon, what was wrong with her? Qin Xiangming, making a move for Big Dragon? Meng Fan shook his head, since this was the case, then perhaps there really was going to be a battle with this human immortal reincarnation today. Thinking of this, Meng Fan's blood suddenly heated up, gradually agitated. He wouldn't underestimate Qin Shangming just because she was a woman. On the contrary, if he fought Qin Shangming, he would instead be filled with wariness and passion. One was a reincarnated human immortal, reincarnated and recultivated, with a perfect understanding of the various realms, simply a perfect cultivator in the conventional sense. One was a supreme genius, a hungover, demonic person with a god-level physique and god-level feats, who had already broken the norm in a sense. This kind of battle, Meng Fan was actually looking forward to it. Turning back to look at Meng Xiaoshan, this girl is still in enlightenment. With a wave of his hand, he used his soft energy to send Meng Xiaoshan to Meng Tianji's side. In the next battle, he was afraid that it would spread to Meng Xiaoshan, so it was better to send this girl far away. Since that's the case, then you make your move. Meng Fan looked at Qin Shangming from afar, and there was a battle intent erupting in his eyes. This was the first time he had this feeling of being filled with wariness, and it was rare. Every time he fought before, when he encountered a strong person, he would activate his human emperor bloodline, directly crush them and hang them up to fight, so there was no real fun in fighting. Now that he had encountered this Qin Shangming, a human immortal reincarnated and a perfect cultivator of the same realm, he felt that this was the true meaning of battle. By the way, Check to see how good you are at fighting. After all, he had always prided himself on being able to fight across levels. Of course in this situation, Meng Fan would definitely not activate the human emperor bloodline, or else it would be too bullying. If he activated the human emperor's bloodline, he would inevitably reach the Yuanying realm. Then even if Qin Xiangming was a reincarnation of a human immortal, he would only be hanged. In that case, Meng Fan still didn't have that thrill of wrestling and fighting in the same realm. Qin Shengming smiled and said to Meng Fan, Let me make a move? If I make the first move, then you might not have a chance to make a move. Meng Fan similarly laughed. Coincidentally, this king also thinks so. When Qin Shengming heard Meng Fan's words, she didn't take the initiative and just looked at Meng Fan with a smile on her face. Of course the smile was actually filled with disdain, feeling that Meng Fan was ridiculous and somewhat looking down on him. Soon, though, she couldn't stop laughing one because Meng Fan saw that she wasn't going to make a move. He stopped dawdling and chose to take the initiative. In fact, in a battle of the same realm, this kind of open and honest strike, it could not be said that whoever struck first had the advantage. Instead, people who want to play hard to get often choose to strike later. Originally, Meng Fan wanted to pretend to be a bully, but it turned out that this Qin Shangming seemed to have an even greater desire to pretend to be a bully than Meng Fan. So Meng Fan left this post-strike opportunity to pretend to be a man to Qin Shangming. As for whether or not this Qin Shangming would be able to strike back first and strike back with a Jedi, this was not something that Meng Fan could predict. The Xin Feng sword in Meng Fan's hand was sheathed, and a flash of sword light lit up the entire city wall. Qin Shangming shook her head. A Xin level weapon like the Xin Wind sword was something she looked down on. As for whether Meng Fan, as a person, would be able to make her look the other way, it would depend on this next sword. The sun was already setting at this moment, but this smear of sword light from Meng Fan was even more dazzling than the setting sun. Xiao Chan wake up and watch brother show you another sword. Meng Fan let out a stern cry, and Meng Xiao Chan instantly woke up, staring at her royal brother with wide eyes. In her line of sight, Meng Fan's entire body leapt up, like a hand long long sword straight across, white clothes fluttering, like an exiled immortal descending to the world. This scene was so stunning that Meng Xiao Chan couldn't calm her heart for a long time. There was one thing to say, if one was not the royal brother's own sister. On this image alone, one would surely have already fallen righteously in love with the royal brother. Meng Fan's entire body rose up in the air, his sword chi bursting out, 
and he struck his sword from a high place, his stance floating, but as fast as a thunderbolt. Xin Shangming raised her head and looked at Meng Fan, who had struck with a sword from high above, with a strange color in her eyes. There was no doubt that Meng Fan's sword was very handsome, so handsome that even Xin Shangming was a bit moved. The sun is setting and a sword is coming west. Flying Fairy, Chapter 75, The Flying Fairy. Fancy, a sword comes from the west and flies out of the sky. This beautiful sword stunned everyone. Anyone who saw this sword was destined to have it imprinted in their souls, and could not even forget it. This was the eighth prince of their great moon dynasty, just like an exiled immortal. And the one who was most deeply touched at this moment was Meng Xiaochan. It was because Meng Fan had taught her the sword technique, heavens beyond flying immortal, before, only that she had not been able to practice any essence, and had only learned a little bit of the skin, in vain. Just now, Meng Fan's display of sword one had already benefited her greatly, giving her a deeper understanding of the holy spirit sword technique, especially the sword one sword. Now that she had seen Meng Fan perform the heavenly flying fairy, she couldn't help but widen her eyes and watch carefully, not missing a single detail. On the city wall, Xin Shangming watched Meng Fan come west with a sword, and the smile and amazement on her face was gone. This sword was so beautiful that it was truly stunning and shocking at first glance, but after the wow factor, it's just boring. For the realm of peak Jin Dan, this sword had little other meaning than beauty, especially for an existence like Qin Shangming. This sword, the heavens beyond flying fairy, was purely a parlor trick. So when Meng Fan was getting closer and closer to Qin Shangming, Xin Xiangming's face had begun to turn cold, and four words were spat out coldly from her mouth. Fancy, then with a cold brow, a sharp sword appeared out of thin air in her hand. There was no doubt that this woman also had storage magic treasures on her body, otherwise it would be impossible for her to touch a sword out of thin air. Xin Xiangming raised her sword and pointed it out. Having a tiny sword she burst out from the tip of the sword. Although small and inconspicuous, it is full of sharpness and extremely powerful. With such a light-hearted sword, it directly broke through Meng Fan's heavenly flying immortal. Meng Fan's sword was indeed a bit thunderous. In Qin Shangming and Meng Fan's realm, this evaluation of Qin Shangming's fancy was not really a problem. In the distance, a hint of disappointment appeared in Meng Xiaochan's eyes. She was still thinking of watching her imperial brother strike out with both swords and directly hang that bad woman. For Meng Xiaochan, her royal brother's enemies were naturally bad women. Unfortunately, Imperial brother actually lost the sword and it was directly broken open. If one were to say who was the most shocked in the entire Great Moon Dynasty at this moment, then it would belong to Wei Changfeng under the walls of the Imperial City. He was someone who knew very well how powerful Meng Fan, the Eighth Prince, was, and this was the first time he had ever seen someone able to resist the Eighth Prince's attack. Previously, no matter what kind of situation, once the Eighth Prince struck out, he would kill anyone in seconds, whether it was Nyarin too the abbot of the Golden Origin Temple, and the elders of the Wuji Sword Sect. Anyway, to Wei Changfeng's knowledge, this was the first time that the Eighth Prince had encountered someone whose blow had failed. And it's a woman. Wei Changfeng was in existence of the Foundation Establishment Realm, having stepped into the realm of a cultivator. So his eyesight was extremely amazing. He recognized Qin Shangming who had come to the city wall, the seventh princess of the Great Dragon Dynasty, Her Highness, previously. When Qin Shangming came to Daiyue, he had even personally received her, so he had a deep impression of Qin Shangming. Although he was a eunuch, the seventh princess of the great dragon was just too beautiful, so beautiful that he, an old eunuch, shivered a little. There was even a moment when he regretted why he was a eunuch. As a result, he never dreamed that this stunningly beautiful Her Highness the seventh princess of the great dragon actually had such terrifying strength. He himself was simply a mole cricket in front of her able to be crushed to death with his hands. The thought that he had even had touchy-feely fantasies before filled him with shame. Whether it was the Great Moon or the Great Dragon, both of them had produced unimaginable celestial pride. This point was still quite shocking to Wei Changfeng. Getting back to the point, Qin Shangming sneered with disdain on her face after breaking Meng Fan's heavenly flying fairy with her sword. Meng Fan, is that all you have? If the skill stops here, then it's too disappointing to me. Originally I thought that you were a supreme heavenly pride a demonic level character that is rare to see in a thousand years, but it seems that I was overthinking it. To be honest, Xin Shangming was indeed a bit disappointed. The reason why she had struck out at Meng Fan wasn't really for the Great Dragon Dynasty, which was just a seedling. In fact, she was curious about Meng Fan and couldn't help but want to make a move to test Meng Fan, because Meng Fan was simply too demonic, a 20-year-old Jin Dan. Moreover, it was clear that not long ago he was in the middle stage of Jin Dan, and in the blink of an eye he had reached the peak of Jin Dan. 
This was just too mysterious, making Qin Xiangming unable to resist wanting to find out what was going on. There was a saying that she was a reincarnation of a human immortal and had fully awakened the memories of her previous life. In terms of memories of reading, she was a complete human immortal. But even with her knowledge, she felt shocked when she encountered Meng Fan. Such a demonic existence had never been seen even by a human immortal. That was why she couldn't help but want to make a move to test Meng Fan. As a result, Meng Fan's performance was somewhat disappointing to her. Hearing Qin Xiangming's words and looking at the expression on Qin Xiangming's face, Meng Fan smiled slightly. In fact, Heavenly Flying Fairy is not that bad, nor is it really fancy. It has a sharpness that belongs to it. Unfortunately, in the eyes of a human immortal reincarnated like Qin Xiangming, this sword would be somewhat ordinary, especially at the level of peak Jin Dan. It was somewhat inadequate. If it was in the foundation establishment realm, perhaps with Qin Xiangming's eyesight as a reincarnated human immortal, she would also find the heavenly flying immortal nice. One could only say that Qin Xiangming was simply too strong, and her eyes were too high. After all, a human immortal reincarnated and once stood at the pinnacle of this world. She was also qualified to have this arrogance. The sky is out of the sky, and it really doesn't catch her eye. However, the heavenly flying fairy was only the weakest of Meng Fan's several sets of sword techniques. It was Meng Fan's only set of Xian level sword techniques. Originally, Meng Fan wouldn't have used the heavenly flying fairy to strike at Qin Shangming because he knew very well that this sword wouldn't threaten Qin Shangming in the slightest and would only be looked down upon by Qin Shangming. It is a self-defeating situation. But Meng Fan didn't care. The reason he used this sword was to show Meng Xiaochan. It's teaching Meng Xiaochan swordsmanship, so he didn't care about Qin Shangming's feelings at all. In front of a human immortal reincarnation, striking out while still being in the mood to teach his sister swordplay, one could only say that Meng Fan truly had a big heart. Meng Fan looked at Qin Shangming smilingly and said with a teasing face, Seventh Princess, since you look down on my swordsmanship so much, why don't you let me see your swordsmanship? Although the heavenly flying immortal was despised, Meng Fan wasn't in a hurry to prove himself, but was prepared to see the strength of Qin Shangming's strike. Let's see what kind of strength this human immortal reincarnated. Theoretically and routinely perfect Jin Dan peak should really be. Coincidentally, the seventh princess of the great dragon, Qin Xiangming, also used a sword. Meng Fan just happened to want to see her swordsmanship. Qin Xiangming raised her pretty eyebrows. Although she was a little disappointed in Meng Fan at the moment, she instinctively felt that Meng Fan had not used his full strength. So although she was a little disappointed, this disappointment wasn't too deep. And he still had expectations for Meng Fan, just as well. Let's let this guy see his sword skills first. Let this frog in the bottom of the well know what kind of sword technique. What kind of sword intent and power belong to the level of peak Jin Dan? The long sword in Qin Shangming's hand rose upwards. Then with a frosty face, the long sword slid down in a single stroke from the top. A dazzling sword light burst out from the blade. The sword's light was snowy white and instantly turned into a crimson red again. There was a sizzling aura that spilled out from the sword light, causing the temperature of the surrounding space to rise directly. This sword was actually vaguely affecting the flavor of heaven and earth. Earth grade upper grade, the fire sun sword technique. At this realm of peak Jin Dan, what Qin Xiangming had learned, this earth grade upper grade fire sun sword technique, was the most suitable one for her at this moment. Most of the heaven grade sword techniques required extremely strong feats to be able to execute them. Like Qin Xiangming, although she also had a few heavenly grade sword techniques in her memories. At this realm of peak Jin Dan, she was not even capable of activating those heavenly grade sword techniques. Heaven level sword techniques that could be used at will regardless of realm were extremely rare. And even if Qin Xiangming was a human immortal, she hadn't collected such sword techniques. Like Mang Fan's Holy Spirit sword technique, Sword 23 belonged to the heavenly grade sword technique level. This Sword 23 would require an extremely high realm to be able to perform it. And even at the Yuaning realm, Mang Fan would not be able to perform it. This situation was exactly like Qin Xiangming. However, Meng Fan had another heaven grade sword technique, the extremely rare heaven grade sword technique that could be used without regard to realm. Not to mention the Jin Dan realm, even if it was the foundation establishment realm, one could still activate this heaven grade sword technique. Of course, there was no doubt that the sword technique that was catalyzed by the foundation establishment realm was definitely much weaker than the Jin Dan realm. This kind of disregard for realms and the ability to execute heaven level sword techniques without the need for deep reserves could be considered a rare find. The human immortal realm was not even easy to obtain, but it was Meng Fan who had a door. That's how overpowered the system is. It's downright bullying. And then this sword technique. It was called the Jintian sword drawing technique. Of course, 
In the face of Qin Xiangming's Earth Grade Fire Sun Sword technique, Meng Fan was not yet ready to utilize the sky splitting sword drawing technique. Meng Fan Xin Feng Sword was raised and sword light poured out. Holy Spirit Swordsmanship. Sword 22. Other than Sword 23, the strongest sword of the Holy Spirit Sword technique, the sword light broke through the red light in a single motion, shattering it. Qin Xiangming's Fire Sun Sword technique was likewise easily broken by Meng Fan and dissipated without a sound. Even after Meng Fan's Sword 22 had broken through Qin Xiangming's Fire Sun Sword technique, there was still 30% of its remaining power, carrying an astonishing sharpness as it lunged straight at Qin Xiangming's face. If this sword Qi materialized, then Qin Xiangming's stunning face, which was so beautiful that it was a scourge to the nation, might be ruined. This was undoubtedly a waste, and Meng Fan actually had some hidden reluctance in his heart. Of course, it was impossible for him to retrieve this sword Qi. He knew very well that it was impossible for this sword to actually injure Qin Shangming. The reincarnation of a human immortal could not be so watery, and it was impossible for this girl to fall down before he had even exerted any force. Otherwise, it would be too much of a disgrace for a human immortal, even if it was only a human immortal reincarnated. As a result, to Meng Fan's surprise, facing the aftermath of Sword 22, Qin Shangming didn't resolve it that easily and was a bit frazzled. Although in the end she safely dispelled Meng Fan's Sword Qi, it was indeed a bit of a mess. Qin Shangming's brows furrowed fiercely, her face full of astonishment. It wasn't her normal level, and she didn't feel like she was playing as well as she should. Her attacks, her strength, seemed to have been somehow weakened a lot. Creepy, extremely weird, Qin Shangming didn't know, and even Meng Fan himself ignored. One of the three supreme talents of the Six Path Divine Body silently flared up. Dominant Stance Chapter 76 Supreme Talent Hegemonic Stance Talent, Hegemonic Stance, any female in your presence will be weakened. When the three supreme talents that came with the Six Tao Divine Body were first introduced, Meng Fan felt that the most ribald was the Hegemonic Stance, which sounded outrageous and always felt like it still had a bit of comic relief in it. For such a long time, Meng Fan hadn't used this talent either, so gradually they had all forgotten about it. Instead, the two talents of Sword Dao Tongshan and Human Emperor Bloodline, which Meng Fan was able to use every other day, could be considered pure fire. During the period of time after opening his cultivation, Meng Fan had hardly ever struck out at a woman. A full house, barely two. Why do you say barely? Because one was Nya Ruying, with a pitifully low cultivation level, who had come to die, and had been casually slapped to death by Meng Fan, and was not worth mentioning. The other one, was Nya Ruying's master, Li Fei Hua, an elder of the Qian Yuan Holy Land. At that time, he was so scared by Meng Fan that he didn't even dare to make a move and directly wimped out. So this was even more reluctant and shouldn't even be counted in. But other than those two, there just really isn't any. So from start to finish, Meng Fan had never utilized the divine might of the talent, overbearing stance, at all. Now in the body of Qin Shangming, the seventh princess of the great dragon dynasty, the talent of the hegemonic body stance was instead playing its proper role. In fact, from the beginning to the end, Meng Fan had overlooked the terror of this talent. After all, it's people who are divided into men and women, and there are almost as many of them. This meant that half of the people in this world would have their strength weakened and suppressed when they encountered Meng Fan. Half. What's the concept? It was a terrifying concept. Only that Meng Fan hadn't had the opportunity to use the hegemonic stance, so it had caused him to overlook the terrifying aspects of this talent. What kind of evil means have you used? Why has my strength, all of a sudden, been suppressed? Qin Shangming coldly looked at Meng Fan and asked with a frosty face, Strength suppressed? Upon hearing Qin Shangming's words, a hint of surprise appeared on Meng Fan's face. He hadn't laid out any means. There was no such thing as suppressing strength ah. And so there really was something weird just now that he should have been able to detect it himself. How could it be possible that only Qin Shangming's strength had been suppressed, but she herself had no reaction? Until this moment, Meng Fan hadn't even thought that he had a supreme talent, hegemonic stance and it was this stance that had just come into play. But Qin Xiangming's gesture across the room did not seem fake or pretentious. What's more, Meng Fan himself felt that something was wrong, because according to his prediction, Qin Xiangming shouldn't have been in such a sorry state just now. Sword 22 was not so powerful that it would make Qin Xiangming suffer. Just now, Qin Xiangming's reaction did cause Meng Fan to be a bit perplexed. Still, a moment later, Meng Fan thought of the crux of the matter. Since Qin Xiangming's strength had been suppressed, then this was a fact, and where there was a fact, there must be a reason. So what's the reason? Soon, Meng Fan thought of why. He finally thought of the supreme talent in the corner, overbearing stance. It couldn't be helped. 
he really had all but forgotten about this talent, and he hadn't used it at all so far in his cultivation, and had instinctively ignored it. It was only just now, in combination with Qin Xiangming's reaction, that it suddenly occurred to him that it might be the talent of hegemony stance that had come into play. Any female is weakened in her own presence. When Meng Fan first saw this talent at first glance, he felt it was a bit spoofed and rare, and didn't take it to heart. As time passed, he hadn't been able to use this talent, so he had unconsciously forgotten about it. Now that it suddenly worked, it honestly kinda confused him, but at the same time it was a bit of a surprise. This hegemonic stance, it seemed to be different from what he had imagined. It was a bit bullish. In fact, according to Meng Fan's observation, this Qin Xiangming's performance just now hadn't even reached this level of peak Jin Dan. Even through Qin Xiangming's strike, Meng Fan vaguely felt that this S attack just now only had the power of a late Jin Dan stage at this level. Could it be that the overlord stance as suppressive power is so vicious? To directly suppress a woman a realm down if she was in front of herself? At this rate, facing a woman is 100% invincible in the same realm. All kinds of hanging. Meng Fan laughed. Seventh princess, I've already said just now that if you strike out at me, the one who will suffer in the end will definitely be yourself. Qin Shangming said in a cold voice, you really did use some nefarious means to suppress my cultivation, could it be that you set up an array here in advance? Just as she finished speaking, Qin Shangming shook her head, if this thing called a formation really had suppression, then it did not discriminate between enemy and self, it could not possibly suppress only her and not Meng Fan, unless, it so happened that there was a formation where he was and it was suppressed, however, this possibility was not high, as it was impossible for Meng Fan to even calculate where he had come to land on the city walls, so it's unlikely to be a problem in your own position. Although she thought so, Qin Xiangming still changed her position, and then she felt that there was still an inexplicable suppression within her body, and she was not able to reach her peak state. That would be weird. It's not a formation. Is it poisoned? Meng Fan, this villain, unknowingly poisoned himself? Impossible. One wouldn't be without a gap if one was poisoned. What's more, she had never heard of such a bizarre toxin. With her memory and experience, she hadn't heard of this kind of poison. So the probability was that there really wasn't one. So this Meng Fan, how did he manage to suppress his cultivation? Qin Xiangming was puzzled. Meng Fan laughed. This king really hasn't used any nefarious tactics. As for why your strength is suppressed, it could be that this king just grams you? Or rather, it is that you have seen the majesty of the king and instinctively submitted unable to exert yourself at full strength. It's not impossible. After all, kneeling under this king's majesty is not something to be ashamed of, but rather something to be proud of. Hearing Meng Fan's words, Qin Shangming became completely enraged and said with a murderous look on her face, Meng Fan, you seek death. No one has ever, ever dared to provoke her like this. As a reincarnation of a human immortal, since she was a child, she had always displayed an absolutely stunning and absolutely strong side and no one had ever been able to take liberties in front of her. Even the emperor of the great dragon dynasty was obedient to her and unwilling to offend her in the slightest after she showed her demonic natural talent and strength. But now, the imperial prince of the empire, dared to insult her like this. This was looking for death. How can a human immortal reincarnated be insulted like this? Xin Xiangming's face was filled with frost, and she had murderous intent towards Meng Fan. A human immortal cannot be insulted. The insults will be killed. Qin Shangming took a deep breath and tried to calm herself down, but at this moment she could no longer calm down, her killing intent stirred. Originally, she was looking for Meng Fan because she valued him, so she came to test 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 Meng Fan. If Meng Fan was good enough, she wanted to take Meng Fan in. No matter how good an ordinary person was, they didn't have the depth of a human immortal reincarnation, and she was confident that she could cultivate Meng Fan better. Unfortunately, this guy was ungrateful and went a bit overboard, inspiring her killing intent. That being the case, her love of talent turned into a desire to kill. However, she was also very clear that at this moment, her own strength was suppressed and it was very difficult to kill Meng Fan, and she might not even be Meng Fan's opponent anymore. It was because she had actually been feeling just now that Meng Fan hadn't exerted his full strength. The first sword stance is extremely obvious, and fancy is of no great use. The second sword stance although it was not bad and somewhat amazing, was clearly not this person's bottom stance. Therefore, Qin Shangming determined that Meng Fan should still have stronger stances. In this situation, and with himself being suppressed, it was indeed difficult as hell to kill Meng Fan, but this was under normal deduction. Qin Shangming, as a reincarnation of a human immortal, naturally had cards that belonged to her. Once her crushing bottom card was out, 
she was able to cut down even weaker Yuan Ning, let alone peak Jin Dan. However, was it really worth it to consume so much energy and spend so much effort on a single Jin Dan? And it was one thing to be worthy or not. She felt some shame, competing in the same realm. She was not an opponent and instead had to use her special undercard, which made her extremely unhappy. It's a bit of a shame, to be honest, but if she didn't kill Meng Fan, she couldn't be angry. Although Qin Shangming was a bit hesitant, should she use her bottom card to strike and forcefully kill Meng Fan? But doing so would cost her a small fortune, and it was hard to say whether it was worth it or not. Meng Fan looked at Qin Shangming and felt the killing intent emanating from the other party as he said smilingly, What? You can't stand this? Feeling humiliated? With that, Meng Fan shook his head inside. I thought you were such a formidable figure, but now it seems to be nothing more than that. Just a few words of truth from me, and you're so angry that you're ready to kill to vent your anger. Oh, so you're a little and can't afford to lose. A loss is a loss. What's not to take? Hearing Meng Fan's words, Qin Shangming not only didn't think about it, but instead became even more shaken. Lost? How could she lose? What the hell? She had just fought and she hadn't really put up a fight yet, she hadn't gone all out yet, Qin Shangming roared in her mind, furiously disliking Meng Fan, but this kind of words, she could only angrily dislike them in her heart, and was too embarrassed to even say them out loud, because she knew herself that it didn't make sense, what's more, even if she wanted to put out her full strength now, she couldn't, suffering an inexplicable suppression, it had to be said, and had to be admitted, that in the realm of peak Jin Dan, the same realm competing with each other, it seemed like she was really losing. The only thing that was a bit disconcerting was that this guy Meng Fan didn't know what means he used to suppress his strength. But whatever the tactic was, it was still an ability, or an attack, of the person, and she was hit. A cold smile appeared on Meng Fan's face as he said, You feel that your strength has been suppressed, and definitely this battle is unfair. So you're not convinced? Qin Shangming shook her head, saying it was unfair at this time was also self-defeating. Even if Qin Shangming felt that it was unfair, there was nothing Meng Fan could do, because of the talent, hegemonic stance. It wasn't like the human emperor bloodline, which could be activated on its own choice. This thing is like a property that's always there always on. It can't be turned off at all. Chapter 77, That Old Monster Takes Over? To make an analogy, Meng Fan had a handsome face, and many people had a good feeling when they saw it. It's a kind of charm, not something you can do without if you want to leave someone without a good feeling. Therefore, Qin Shangming would always be suppressed in front of Meng Fan, and this could not be changed. Even if she had broken through to the Yuanning realm, even if she had broken through to the transformation god realm, the suppression that should be there would be there just the same. It's just the difference between a big press and a small press. It was possible that by the time one reached the realm of the transfigured god, this suppression would be almost non-existent. It couldn't be said that way. Suppression was actually always there. It could only be said that it wasn't much of an effect for a transformation spirit, and it was just as capable of killing you in seconds. Meng Fan spoke, If I were you, I would simply leave now and stop making meaningless strikes. Qin Shangming looked coldly at Meng Fan and said in a chilling voice, But I have a hard time reconciling myself. What if I insist on beheading you? Meng Fan couldn't help but shake his head as he calmly said, Will you be able to even out your intentions if you really behead me? How will you be able to behead me? What's more? Do you really think you'll be able to behead me? Qin Shangming simply didn't know that Meng Fan knew her like the back of his hand, even down to her bottom card. Meng Fan knew very well that even if Qin Shangming had used the bottom of her most overwhelming card, she wouldn't have been able to decapitate herself. However, Qin Shangming thought that Meng Fan was being arrogant and had no idea how terrifying she was. After all, when her bottom card was out, she had hopes of beheading even a Yuan Ing. Qin Shangming shook her head. Meng Fan, you are certainly a heavenly pride, a supreme heavenly pride, and even I am incomparably surprised by this bizarre existence of yours, but if I were to behead you, you would literally fall. To be honest, a supreme talent like you that is rare to see in a thousand years, if you were really killed by me, I would really have some regrets. If you don't die, you will definitely blossom into an extremely dazzling light in the Xianling great world in the future. Even the true spirit realm, or even the immortal sect, there may be legends of you. But all of this has to wait until you've grown up. Halfway decent genius. My ass. To be honest, I do have a sense of appreciation for talent. But what you just said really angered me. It was an insult and provoked me to kill. I'll give you a chance to live if you sincerely apologize to me. Honestly, I also hope to see the moment when you become famous in the immortal sect. Qin Xiangming, this girl, said so many words in one breath, 
proving that she was also indeed more entangled and hesitant, or else she would have made a direct and decisive move. In fact, in her opinion she had already been extremely lenient to Meng Fan, only asking him to apologize. She didn't even say anything like kneeling down and apologizing, but simply asked Meng Fan to apologize. After all, Meng Fan had said earlier that he would let her kneel under his majesty and feel proud of it, which was indeed an insult to her. A great insult. She felt that it was not excessive at all for her to ask Meng Fan to apologize, even as she was completely giving Meng Fan a leg up. Unfortunately, Meng Fan didn't think so. Apologize? Meng Fan looked at Qin Xiang Ming smilingly. Sorry, this king is not in the habit of apologizing to others. For Meng Fan, apologizing didn't exist. Even more so, when he felt he had done nothing wrong. Most importantly, although this Qin Shang Ming felt good about herself, she really didn't have the qualifications to make Meng Fan apologize. For Meng Fan, perhaps a cultivator in the realm of God transformation was qualified to make him bow his head. After all, as long as he activated the human emperor bloodline, coupled with the existence of the regular sword, even if it was the peak of Yuaning, he wouldn't be afraid in the slightest. Although Qin Shang Ming was a reincarnation of a human immortal, so what if she was a reincarnation of a human immortal? Having already reincarnated, it has nothing to do with a human immortal, and at most, it can only be considered a genius with relatively excessive natural talent. As for comparing natural talent, there might not be a second person in this world who could compare to Meng Fan anymore. Qin Shang Ming, not qualified. So from start to finish, Meng Fan had only expectations for Qin Shang Ming, without any scruples. Since you're deathly unwilling to repent, then I'll fulfill you. Qin Shang Ming's face once again regained its icy coldness, her eyes overflowing with killing intent. She had already given Meng Fan a chance, and as a result, this guy didn't know better, so she couldn't be blamed. Qin Shang Ming felt that she had already done her best to be benevolent, and it was this Meng Fan who was looking for death. She took a deep breath and was about to strike when she heard Meng Fan's words, which instantly caused her movements to lurch, her face full of shock. You think you'll be able to decapitate me just because you took out the flying fish sword? The original magic treasure deep within the soul sea? Meng Fan's light sentence directly caused Qin Shang Ming to stand still as if she had been struck by heavenly thunder. The depths of the sea of souls, the essence, and the flying fish sword. Each of those three words felt like a million boulders hitting her chest. How is that possible? How could this guy possibly know that? Essence magic treasure. This was something that could only be melted after reaching the Yuaning realm. This great lunar eighth prince who was only at the Jin Dan realm. How could he come into contact with something at the level of an intrinsic magic treasure? Most importantly, how did he know that there was an innate magic treasure deep within his soul sea? All of the above had already caused Qin Shang Ming to be extremely shocked. However, Meng Fan's last three words, flying fish sword, caused her to completely collapse, and her mind went blank. If it was acceptable to see that there was an original treasure deep within her soul sea, this was still acceptable. The flying fish sword was something she really couldn't accept, incredibly, because it was certainly shocking to be able to see through the fact that there was an innate magic treasure deep within one's soul sea, but it was still conceivable. She could imagine that Meng Fan was actually an old monster pretending to be a pig and eating a tiger, so she was able to see through the fact that her soul sea had an innate magic treasure. It's outrageous, but it's something that can be forcibly explained. But Meng Fan was able to say the three words flying fish sword, which was something that could not be explained. Even if Meng Fan was a transformation god old monster, or even a cave void big brother, it was normal for him to be able to tell that he was hiding an essential magic treasure. But how could he know that his essential magic treasure was called the flying fish sword? Qin Xiangming was once again puzzled. Could it be that this Meng Fan knew his former self? This was impossible. She had investigated Meng Fan and determined that Meng Fan was the 8th prince of the great moon imperial dynasty. The 8th prince. Could it be that they are also reincarnated bigots? Nope reincarnated and recultivated bigots. Reaching the Jin Dan realm at 20 years old is already an excellent thing. Even if Meng Fan had hidden his cultivation, he would still be a Yuaning at the end of the day. Yuaning realm? Not so much as to see through one's soul see. Qin Xiang Ming was really a bit flustered. Could it be that this Meng Fan was taken over by that old monster? In that case, it all makes sense. Why was this eighth prince of the great moon imperial dynasty able to rise from mediocrity and obscurity before soaring in just a few short months? Soaring into the sky and reaching a height that even the reincarnation of a human immortal couldn't reach. The only explanation was that Meng Fan had been taken over by some old monster. Since the other party was able to call out the words flying fish sword, it proved that this old monster knew his past life self, and was even very familiar with his past life self. I just don't know, friend or foe, 
and whether it was a foe or a friend, it wasn't good news for Qin Shangming, because her deepest hidden secret was exposed, which was likely to invite unnecessary trouble for her. Most importantly, if Meng Fan was really taken over, then he was definitely no match for himself. Even if she pulled out the flying fish sword and paid the price of having her own vitality greatly injured, it was impossible for her to behead Meng Fan. No, it should be said that it was difficult to even hurt even Meng Fan. Almost impossible. This is outrageous. It's how in the world can there be such a coincidence? One's own human immortal reincarnation would have been one in a million. I can't believe I'm looking for someone else's trouble, but I can also find someone who has been taken over by an old monster. This, for God's sake, is not a joke? Although it hadn't been determined, Qin Shangming had already decided that Meng Fan had been taken over by some old monster, because that's the only scenario that explains it, there's no other possibility. Even the most unlikely answer will turn out to be the right one after eliminating all the wrong answers. Who the hell are you? Qin Shangming looked at Meng Fan with incomparable gravity, fear already in her eyes. To be honest, she had been so high and mighty before that she hadn't looked up to Meng Fan, but at this moment, after brainstorming excessively, her attitude towards Meng Fan changed completely, and she was actually a bit afraid. One thing being said, Meng Fan was also a bit confused when he saw this change in Qin Shangming. It was unimaginable that the reincarnation of a human immortal would actually look at himself with fear in his gaze. Obviously, he had just treated himself with disdain and threatened to kill himself. How did you change so quickly? Just because you called out her bottom card, the flying fish sword? As for that, who am I? Meng Fan, the eighth prince of the great moon, don't you recognize this? Meng Fan said with a smile. Qin Shangming looked at Meng Fan scornfully and said in a condensed voice, Of course I know that this identity of yours is Meng Fan, the eighth prince of the great lunar dynasty. What I'm asking is who are you? Meng Fan felt that there was something wrong with this woman. Was she insane? How to talk in a forward and backward manner is inexplicable. You know I'm Meng Fan, the eighth prince of the great moon, and you're asking me who I am? Are you sick? Meng Fan rolled his eyes and said, Qin Xiangming continued, Since you were able to name my flying fish sword, it proves that you must be a former acquaintance of mine. So, who exactly are you? To have taken over such an unknown young man, taking over? Meng Fan then realized that Qin Xiangming had actually mistakenly thought that she had been taken over by some old monster. This did not make him cry, but from Qin Shangming's point of view, this was indeed the most appropriate explanation and speculation. Otherwise, how would one know that her innate magic treasure was called the Flying Fish Sword? From Qin Shangming's words, Meng Fan figured out Qin Shangming's brainchild in an instant. I have to say, this girl is quite creative when it comes to brainstorming. Meng Fan wondered if he should continue to go along with her and impersonate an old monster. It's kind of funny when you think about it that way. After a moment's pause, Meng Fan said to Qin Shangming, Who am I? Haven't you guessed yet? Other than me, who else would be able to be so polite to you after finding you? Anyone else would probably just kill you straight away, right? Chapter 78, Being the King's Concubine Meng Fan was purely talking nonsense when he said that, casually teasing Qin Shangming. However, Qin Shangming was full of serious thoughts as a character appeared in her mind. Who would have acted and reacted the way Meng Fan did? Who talks to themselves in that tone of voice? In the end, Qin Shangming looked at Meng Fan coldly, and there was still a character really locked in her mind. Old Ancestor Tian Xue, it's been so many years, I can't believe you're still able to find me. Are you that ghoulish? When she said this, Qin Shangming clearly gritted her teeth a bit. Obviously, she thought Meng Fan was some kind of heavenly snow ancestor. Thinking that Meng Fan had been taken over by the heavenly snow ancestor, who this heavenly snow ancestor was, Meng Fan naturally didn't know. But it was obvious that this Qin Shangming had no favorites for old man Tian Xue. However, from a certain aspect there was the ability to see that Qin Shangming and the heavenly snow old ancestor shouldn't have any deep grudges either. After all, what Meng Fan had done to Qin Shangming wasn't too much, and he hadn't killed anyone since the beginning. So since Qin Shangming thought that Meng Fan was some kind of heavenly snow old ancestor, it proved that this heavenly snow old ancestor and Qin Shangming shouldn't have much animosity. How exactly did you find me? Qin Shangming coldly looked at Meng Fan and said with a tone filled with coldness, although Qin Shangming and this Tian Xue old ancestor should not have a deep hatred, they were definitely not good friends either. Meng Fan thought about it and said with a smiling expression, it really wasn't me who found you, it was clearly you who took the initiative to bump into me. Before, in the Great Moon Palace, it was you who took the initiative to appear in front of me. That time, I already recognized you, but I didn't deliberately seek you out. And it turned out that this time again you came to me of your own accord. If that's the case, 
Doesn't that mean ours is really meant to be? Meng Fan spoke casually and painlessly, completely with the attitude of teasing Qin Xiangming. However, Qin Xiangming was a bit more depressed, as she was already convinced at this moment that Meng Fan was the one who had been taken over by the Heavenly Snow Ancestor. Standing in front of him was the Heavenly Snow Ancestor, but when it came down to it, it was actually his own initiative to bump into old man Tian Shui's face, which was speechless and felt very angry. So what exactly do you want? Qin Shengming frowned at Meng Fan and said without good humor. Hearing this, Meng Fan instantly laughed. What do you mean what do I want? Obviously you're the one who came after me. I didn't do anything to you from the beginning, even just now. It was you who took the initiative to strike at me. Hearing Meng Fan's words, Qin Shengming sneered. You think I'll believe you? You must have predicted that I would come over. That's why you deliberately waited for me to fall into your trap. You're as sinister as ever. When this was said, Meng Fan was not happy. Even if he had just physically attacked himself, how could he now talk about it and still physically attack him? So Meng Fan said in a cold voice, If you have to feel that way, then there's nothing I can do to refute anything. Xin Xiangming said with the same cold face, So, what exactly do you want to do? This was the second time she had asked the same question. Just now Meng Fan had seriously run through it and was telling the truth. But this girl just didn't believe it. Since that was the case, this was instead forcing Meng Fan to tell a lie off. Meng Fan was really bad at telling lies as a person, so he could only talk nonsense. He looked at Qin Xiangming and said with a playful expression, What do I want to do? Isn't it obvious? This king wants you to be this king's royal consort. In fact, this was pure nonsense. Anyway, it was a joke, or banter. So Meng Fan flirted with the seventh princess of the great dragon dynasty, and that was without any inflection at all. Qin Xiangming was naturally furious and scolded, You old monster, you're simply dreaming. Meng Fan casually laughed, I'm not an old monster now, but an extremely handsome and excellent young man, wouldn't it be beautiful if you married me? Qin Xiangming was so angry that she directly sacrificed her flying fish sword, although she didn't think that her current self would be a match for this monster, she still fought to the death when she was humiliated like this. When Meng Fan saw that this girl had even sacrificed her own magic treasure, he didn't bother to flirt anymore, and his face returned to normal with a serious expression, since you don't want to be this king's consort then hurry up and be a jerk. And don't blame me for destroying the flowers with my hot hands if you dare to come to the Great Moon Dynasty again in the future. Hearing Mang Fan's words, Xin Xiangming's face revealed surprise. She didn't this old guy was actually so nice now? If she let her go she wouldn't go back to the big moon again and let this old man hold her. You're willing to let me go? Xin Xiangming frowned as she looked at Mang Fan, not knowing what kind of medicine this guy was selling in his gourd, regardless of the medicine. He felt that it was a bit abnormal for Meng Fan to directly let her go. From what she knew, this old monster wasn't such a good talker. In Qin Xiangming's mind, she had already completely determined that Meng Fan had been taken over by old man Tian Shui, and there was no other possibility. I'm not willing to let you go, so you're willing to stay and be this king's princess? Meng Fan had a teasing smile on his face. Seeing this smile on Meng Fan's face, Qin Xiangming was really upset, but there was nothing she could do about it who let herself be reincarnated. If she still had the cultivation of her previous life, she must hang this old man and beat him. Skinned and beaten, she must beat his skin. Old ancestor Tian Xue, I'll take note of what happened today. You, Qin Shangming wanted to say something else, but was directly interrupted by Meng Fan. Meng Fan said in a cold voice, get lost if you want to leave, and don't leave if you don't want to. Qin Shangming was a bit snappy, with an extremely awkward expression on her face. It was really exasperating for her, a reincarnation of a human immortal, to have such a suffocating day, but there was no way around it, she was really just going to have to wimp out, without letting out any more harsh words, she honestly retreated with a single leap off the wall, as for the nearly 200, 000 troops of the great dragon dynasty, she was too lazy to care, nor did she have to, as Qin Xiangming retreated, although not many people in the great dragon dynasty's army recognized her, Everyone was able to imagine that this must be the last card of the Great Dragon Dynasty. Now that the Great Dragon Dynasty had lost its last card, it could not hurt that 8th Prince of the Great Moon in the slightest. This battle, there was no battle at all. They were thoroughly cooked and defeated. So soon after, the Great Dragon Dynasty also withdrew their troops and retreated directly. It was meant to be, because there was no one, who was able to fight against the existence on the city wall that was like a demon god. The Great Moon Imperial City only needed this one person to be able to make the entire Imperial City as solid as gold, so that no one could violate it. Seeing that the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty's army had also retreated, all the people, hundred officials, 
defenders, and so on inside the entire Great Moon Imperial City let out shocking cheers. 8th Prince, Wan Shang, 8th Prince, Wan Shang, 8th Prince, Wan Shang, the cheers were like thunder, resounding throughout the entire Great Moon Imperial City, the entire Great Moon Imperial Dynasty. But Meng Tianji, the emperor of the Great Lunar Imperial Dynasty, heard this kind of cheering and surprisingly didn't feel the slightest bit of jealousy. This emperor is considered to be extremely thorough. Meng Fan stood on the city wall, contentedly accepting the cheers and pilgrimages of countless people. He's worth it. Facing an army of 400, 000, facing a Jin Dan powerhouse, facing a human immortal reincarnated. The entire Great Moon Dynasty had not sent a single soldier, and Meng Fan alone had suppressed all of these. One man, suppressing an army of 400, 000 men, suppressing a Jin Dan expert, or even suppressing a human immortal reincarnation. The crowd of the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty, although they knew that Meng Fan had one, they simply couldn't imagine what was represented behind this victory. What a horrible strength it represents. Meng Fan descended from the city wall and came to Meng Xiaochan's side, asking in a soft tone, How's it going? How did you learn the two swords I just performed? From start to finish, Meng Fan had forced back the 400, 000 strong army in the human immortal reincarnation, all in passing. His main purpose was actually to teach his sister sword techniques. This pussy is a refreshingly easy way to pretend. Just now, Meng Fan had performed Sword One and Heavenly Flying Fairy, both of which were sword techniques that Meng Xiaoshan had learned. Moreover, when Meng Fan had just cast it, he had specifically carried some didactic flavor. So Meng Xiaoshan should be able to learn a lot from this. Imperial brother, after watching your move Sword One, I have indeed gained a lot of insights, allowing me to improve enough on my sword skills together. But, Meng Xiaochan hesitated and didn't have the good sense to continue. Meng Fan smiled and asked, But what? Meng Xiaochan said with some embarrassment, But that move of yours, flying fairy out of the sky, has just been described as flowery and fancy. It's just a vain attempt to look beautiful, but it doesn't have much power. Hearing Meng Xiaochan's words, Meng Fan rolled his eyes and thought to himself that this woman, Qin Xiangming, really knows how to pretend to fool around. Meng Fan didn't have the heart to say, that woman is just farting. Don't listen to her. Meng Xiaochan said in a small, forced voice. But, I think what she said makes sense. This move just has a flowery feel to it. Which makes me dislike it. His grandmother, Meng Fan was a bit confused. To be honest, he had previously taught Meng Xiaochan the heavenly flying fairy. For one thing, the comparative low of this sword technique was indeed suitable for Meng Xiaochan to cultivate. Secondly, it was because this sword technique was more beautiful and very few sword techniques could reach such a splendid and beautiful level as the heavenly flying fairy. Girls, for sure, love beauty, and it would be nice to have beautiful sword play. Therefore, Meng Fan was certain that Meng Xiaochan would definitely like this sword technique, so he was excited to teach it to Meng Xiaochan. As a result, in the end, this sword technique was actually disliked. Meng Fan cursed. I blame Qin Xiangming, but this girl, Meng Xiaochan, actually didn't even care about this beautiful sword technique only pursuing the maximum power of the sword. This, it's kind of moving towards a femme fatale. Meng Fan let out a bitter smile and shook his head slightly. This was not a good thing. It would not be good to find an in-law in the future. However, there was really no way for him to change Meng Xiaochan about this kind of thing. After all, a like is a like and a dislike is a dislike. If it was Meng Xiaochan's favorite man who had a problem, Meng Fan would still be able to intervene and meddle a bit. But it was just a matter of liking or disliking swordsmanship which wasn't enough for Meng Fan to intervene. Chapter 79, Too Much Brainstorming, Innocent Laying Shots. However, the fact that Meng Xiaochan had quite a comprehension of Sword One and was somewhat disdainful of heavens beyond flying immortals was also a good thing in Meng Fan's opinion. After all, the heavenly flying fairy was only a Xian level sword technique, while the holy spirit sword technique was a heaven level sword technique. Moreover, the holy spirit sword technique had a total of 23 stances, which could be described as encompassing all. If Meng Xiaochan could really start with Sword 1 and cultivate a good achievement in the Holy Spirit Sword technique, then she would truly be unafraid of walking around the world. This one sword would allow her to deal with all of them. Therefore, Meng Fan didn't deliberately persuade Meng Xiaochan, since she wasn't willing to pay any more attention to the Heavenly Flying Fairy, then just let her continue to pay attention to the Holy Spirit Sword technique. Essentially, it was also true that the Holy Spirit Sword technique was much stronger than the Heavens Beyond Flying Fairy. The army of the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty retreated almost immediately after the army of the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty, one after the other, and it was quite organized. Before long, the army of the Great Dragon Dynasty, 
like the army of the Great Wind Dynasty, completely disappeared from the sight of the people of the dynasty, so great a catastrophe, which could be called the end of the country, was so easily solved. And all of this was due to Meng Fan alone. It had to be said that Meng Fan was already truly too powerful for everyone. This was still without using the human emperor's bloodline. Otherwise, Meng Fan would have been truly through and through, infinitely terrifying. Next, Meng Tianji wanted to organize a celebration banquet for Meng Fan, which was rejected by Meng Fan without hesitation. Where was he to care what other people thought? Celebration. He's not interested in that. What's the point of wasting his time? So after such an intense battle ended, Meng Fan directly returned to his chambers and continued his seclusion. Then Meng Xiaochan also followed suit and went back to start practicing, especially focusing on sword techniques. Meng Fan's move, Sword 1, had indeed allowed her to realize a lot. As a matter of fact, at this moment, within the Great Moon Palace, there was another incomparable shock. Oh, this one can't be said to be human. It was that little demon Sheng Feiyu, the fox demon king by Xiao Tian, who was sent to catch Meng Fan but ended up being put under house arrest by Meng Fan. He had known before that Meng Fan was strong and that he was no match at all. But after seeing Meng Fan strike just now, Shang Fei Yu was completely stunned. That's too strong, isn't it? Just now, everyone in the Great Moon Imperial Palace was shocked by the incoming 400, 000 strong army. So no one cared about Shang Fei Yu at all. So he also ran out and secretly watched the battle. As a result, this look really made his entire, entire demon numb. This kind of combat power, it's practically comparable to that of a Yuaning, isn't it? A hint of helplessness appeared on Shang Fei Yu's face. With this kind of strength shown by the Eighth Prince, he felt that the possibility of Lord Demon King wanting to recruit Meng Fan was already very low, because in a sense, the Demon King wasn't able to give Meng Fan anything. Even Meng Fan was able to quickly cultivate to the Demon King kind of realm just by himself. It's absolute genius. It's scary. What the Demon King wanted to find was a genius. But this kind of overwhelming and unparalleled genius was simply not something the demon king could manage. Even if it was a descendant with the bloodline of a demon king. Even Shang Fei Yu vaguely felt that perhaps in the future, His Highness the demon king would have to rely on this grandson of the 8th prince. Anyway, no matter what, one must not be able to offend this 8th prince. One must be a wimp to the end. On the other hand, that 7th princess of the great dragon, Qin Shangming, was really getting angrier and angrier the more she thought about it and she simply couldn't bear the humiliation. Although she thought that Meng Fan had been taken over by old man Tianxue, she was still a bit angry. This revenge has to be avenged. Good old Tianxue ancestor. In his previous life, he was only robbed of a disciple by me and kept looking for trouble from me. I didn't expect that he would still be able to chase after me in this life. Xin Xiangming had already returned to the Great Dragon Empress Imperial Dynasty, but she really felt a sense of exasperation after thinking of the Heavenly Snow Old Ancestor. It was the first time she had suffered such a big loss after being reincarnated and reconditioned. There was no physical harm done, but the humiliation simply pissed her off more than the injury. Ancestor Tian Xue, this old fellow was a reclaimed body, and he is definitely a bit stronger than me reincarnating and recreating, but taking over the body also has great disadvantages. I'm not completely helpless against him. Xin Xiangming's brows furrowed and she began to think of a way. She had to get this back. He must make old man Tianxue kneel down and sing his conquests. From the beginning to the end, it had never occurred to her that Meng Fan was not the heavenly snow ancestor at all. Let's just say that this brainchild is too powerful. In a sense, Meng Fan was also innocently lying down. If Qin Xiangming really thought that he was the heavenly snow elder ancestor and found some extreme methods to get back at Meng Fan, then Meng Fan would really be helpless. However, the matter of molesting Qin Xiangming was something that Meng Fan did anyway so he couldn't claim innocence when Qin Xiangming sought revenge on him. Nearly two months had passed since the 400, 000 strong army of the Great Dragon and Great Wind dynasties had retreated in a sorry state. In two months' time, Meng Fan's cultivation had risen to the peak of the peak Jindan realm. It wouldn't be long before he was able to break through to the Yuaning realm. Shattering the Dan to become an infant was a matter of nine deaths for ordinary people. But for Meng Fan, there was no danger. With the six Tao Divine Body paired with the Nine Heavens Empyrean Divine Skill, breaking through the Yuaning Realm was simply a matter of sprinkling water. If this was able to put Meng Fan in danger, then the God Body was simply nonsense and a mess. Then during these two months, Meng Tianji was also extremely energetic and strong, taking back basically all of those lost cities in the Great Moon, one by one, with the famous scene of Meng Fan forcing back 400, 000 troops with a single sword. The Great Dragon and Great Wind Dynasties now simply didn't have the courage to confront the Great Moon anymore. Basically, 
Everywhere the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty's army went, the Great Dragons and Great Winds immediately surrendered their weapons. Even in the end, the Great Lunar Cities that the Great Dragon and Great Wind Dynasties had previously plundered, they took the initiative to just give up their defenders. It was also extremely ridiculous for them to retreat early before the Great Moon's Royal Division arrived. But this was the might of the Great Moon, or simply the might of the Great Moon's 8th Prince Meng Fan. Unrivaled and intimidating, the Great Moon Dynasty might not be the strongest imperial kingdom, but the Great Moon's 8th Prince was definitely the strongest existence of all the imperial dynasties. This has spread throughout the world in two months' time, and has almost become a recognized thing. Aside from the Holy Land making a move, there was simply no one in the world who dared to offend the Great Moon Dynasty anymore. It was because there was an 8th Prince in the Great Moon Dynasty. On this day, Meng Fan walked out of his state of seclusion, because Sheng Feiyu found him and took the initiative to look for him. What is it? Meng Fan asked as he looked at Sheng Feiyu. Meng Fan knew very well that this guy Sheng Feiyu was very honest and never took the initiative to look for himself after being imprisoned, and this time he must be doing nothing. Sheng Feiyu came before Meng Fan, his posture lowered, even vaguely respectful, and said, Your Highness, the Eighth Prince. I sensed an extremely strong and intense fox race aura descending upon the Great Moon Imperial City. If someone from the Fox Clan came to the Great Moon Imperial City at this time, then the probability was that the Firethroat Demon King had sent them to find the king. I came over to remind your majesty of this very thing. Chapter 80, Vixen. No stupidity. Hearing Shang Fei Yu's words, Meng Fan smiled. This guy took the initiative to remind himself because he was afraid that he didn't know what was going on and would directly move to kill the people sent by by Xiao Tian in a fit of rage. If that is the case, then there is a lot of fuss. When Shang Fei Yu reminded himself of this, he was mindful of the fact that he wouldn't go on a killing spree at the drop of a hat. But with this kind of thing, the problem didn't lie with Meng Fan, but with the demon race that was about to arrive. If this second fellow sent by by Xiao Tian had a good attitude, Meng Fan would naturally not kill it. But if this guy has a bad attitude and angers Meng Fan, then even if Meng Fan knows the other side's intentions and knows the other side's identity, when it was time to kill, Meng Fan would still kill. After all, Meng Fan, as a person, really wasn't considered good-tempered. However, Shang Fei Yu coming over to remind him of such a sentence wasn't useless, at least letting Meng Fan know the other party's intentions in advance. Otherwise it would indeed be easy to be taken for an assassin if someone appeared out of nowhere. After being treated as an assassin, Meng Fan might just slap him to death. This wasn't an exaggeration, because Meng Fan was simply too powerful today, completely exceeding the imagination of Firethroat Demon King by Xiao Tian. So even if this guy sent someone over for the second time, he wouldn't be too much stronger than Shang Fei Yu, and might even be about the same. It was because the Firethroat Demon King could not possibly have thought that Shang Fei Yu had been imprisoned by Meng Fan in the Great Moon Imperial Palace. In the Firethroat Demon King's thoughts, Shang Fei Yu hadn't come back until now so he might have encountered some kind of trouble outside. The biggest possibility was that Shang Fei Yu had an accident before he even arrived at the Great Moon Palace. Of course, these were imagined from the perspective of the Firethroat Demon King. After all, the 10,000 Demon Kingdom was too far away from the Great Moon, so perhaps the Firethroat Demon King had now learned of Meng Fan's sword beheading of Yi Tian Yun and forcing back the 400. 000 strong army. But he certainly didn't know about this news when he sent this second man to visit the Big Moon. So if Bai Shatian would still send a third person to the Great Moon, only then would he truly value Meng Fan. Now the second one is destined to be a hit as well. And indeed, it does. However, Meng Fan had overlooked one thing, and that was that although Bai Shatian was slow to learn the news, but the second fox demon that had been sent out, since it had all arrived at the Great Moon Imperial Palace, had naturally heard of Meng Fan's mighty name. This second fox demon, named Lin Qianblade, was likewise only a small demon at the early Jin Dan realm. Before he came to the Great Moon Palace, he had already heard about Meng Fan's various deeds, and he couldn't help but marvel at the fact that this demon king's descendant was truly heavenly, and was able to make such a name for himself even in the human race. Lin Xianblade knew very well that he was not a match for this Great Moon Eighth Prince at all. Far from it. So he didn't even think about offending Meng Fan, but carefully came to the palace to inform him, his posture extremely low, because he knows very well. At this time directly break into the palace, that is the old man eating arsenic, properly looking for death, vixen, speaking of the foxes, that's why the foxes are all smart and none of this stupidity, in fact, Lin Xianblade didn't even know that Shang Feiyu had already arrived at the palace, and had also told Meng Fan about the news in the mission, Lin Xianblade actually thought that something had happened to Shang Feiyu outside, thinking that Shang Feiyu hadn't seen Meng Fan at all, 
That was why he chose to come to see Meng Fan even though he knew that he was so terrifying, because he had to tell Meng Fan the news that Meng Fan might be the grandson of the Demon King, and then it would be up to Meng Fan to decide if he wanted to meet the Demon King, although he was also well aware that with over 90% probability, Meng Fan would not be able to go to the 10,000 Demon Kingdom at all, but it was the Demon King's order, and he had to get the message to the bit, if he knew that Shang Fei Yu had already spread the news to the bit and was imprisoned, then Lin Shenblade would definitely not enter the palace now, and would just turn his head and go back to resume his orders, unfortunately, he doesn't know, if you don't know, you're going to be miserable, that was why he was completely dumbfounded when he was brought before Meng Fan after being briefed at various levels, it was because he saw that beside Meng Fan, there stood a fox race, Shang Fei Yu, Shang Fei Yu, how, did you get here, Lin Shenblade was stunned, he had always thought that Shang Fei Yu had had an accident outside and had not come to the Great Moon Dynasty at all, much less seen Meng Fan, as a matter of fact, Bai Shaotian thought so and said so to Lin Shenblade, so when Lin Shenblade saw that Shang Fei Yu was actually beside Meng Fan, he was truly stunned, Shang Fei Yu blankly glanced at Lin Shenblade and said without any good humor, why can't I be here, Lin Shenblade was a bit puzzled, but, but didn't the Demon King send you here a long time ago, why are you still, saying that, then looking at Shang Fei Yu's helpless expression, Lin Xian Blade seemed to understand something. This Shang Fei Yu must have been left behind by this prestigious eighth prince. In other words, House Arrest. Sky, I can't believe he didn't think of this before. This eighth prince of the Great Lunar Imperial Dynasty was not a person of goodwill, and he definitely would not have a good attitude towards people like them who inexplicably seemed to be looking for trouble. So Shang Fei Yu coming to the Great Moon Palace and being imprisoned didn't seem to be something hard to understand. Even in Lin Qianblade's view, even if Shang Fei Yu was directly slapped to death by Meng Fan, it didn't seem to be something to be surprised about. After all, there were comments about Meng Fan that he had poked around along the way, and there was no shortage of negative ones among them, especially in terms of being murderous, ruthless, etc. The Demon King sent me here, so how come I stayed in Great Moon? Shang Fei Yu glanced at Lin Chen Blade and laughed coldly. So what if I stayed in Big Moon? You're going to stay in Big Moon too later. This guy, he was already able to predict Meng Fan's choice, there was simply no way Meng Fan would let him go, and likewise there was no way he would let this Lin Shenblade go, it was almost certain that Lin Shenblade would face the exact same fate as him, imprisonment, the most helpless thing was that this Lin Shenblade was only a small demon at the early Jin Dan stage, not much better than him at all, so Shang Fei you couldn't count on Lin Shenblade at all, then, Shang Fei you guessed correctly, Meng Fan did have the idea of keeping Lin Shenblade as a guest, he looked at Lin Shenblade with a calm face and said, Your intention of coming should be the same as Shang Feiyu's, right? Lin Shenblade replied somewhat cautiously, By and large, there shouldn't be any difference. Meng Fan nodded and said, Since that's the case, then you too, along with Shang Feiyu, will stay in Great Moon as a guest, and this king will give you a reply later. As for which day it will be, that's something that's really impossible to say. Lin Shenblade still wants to say something more. After all, he just arrived here. Nothing has been said, so sentenced to imprisonment, always feel a little, awkward, but Sheng Fei Yu blared at him fiercely with a clear look, don't be twisted, and you have to put up with it, otherwise, it will die, chapter 81 North Xin Holy Land, uninvited, in the end, with the help of Sheng Fei Yu, Lin Xianya also stayed in Daiyue, it's a nice way of saying it's a guest, but in reality it's house arrest all the same, in fact, this Lin Xian blade was actually much more sensible than Sheng Fei Yu, at first, Shang Fei Yu knew that he wasn't Meng Fan's opponent, yet he had to take a shot at Meng Fan, with a sense of defiance, wanting to test Meng Fan. The result, naturally, was a tragic end. But the current Lin Shenblade didn't feel the slightest bit unconvinced. He would never dare to let him take a shot at Meng Fan. In the final analysis, it was still the current Meng Fan, whose reputation was too much greater than before. Prestige and prestige, not even on the same level. Sheng Fei Yu and Lin Qian Blade were both left behind in the Great Moon Palace by Meng Fan, and it was impossible for them to return to the 10,000 Demon Kingdom to report back to Fire Throat Demon King Bai Shaotian. The next time, that is, if Bai Shaotian would send someone over for a third time, then it definitely wouldn't be as watery as Sheng Fei Yu and Lin Qianya. Probability, it was late Jin Dan late Jin Dan peak, even, it could be a Yuan Ing. This would depend on how much importance Bai Shaotian placed on Meng Fan. Unfortunately, even if it was a Yuan Ing, Meng Fan was not afraid. Even if he didn't activate the human emperor bloodline, Meng Fan had the confidence to touch base with Yuan Ing. Moreover, 
Meng Fan was now at the pinnacle of the Jin Dan pinnacle among the pinnacle of the Jin Dan pinnacle, only half a step away from stepping into the Yuaning realm. Even for today's him, it was possible for him to step into the Yuaning realm at any time. So even if it was an enemy of the Yuaning realm, an existence of the land goddess realm, Meng Fan wasn't too scrupulous now. For that matter, it was still based on not activating the human emperor bloodline. Once the human emperor bloodline was activated, then it almost represented invincibility. The most frightening thing was that if Meng Fan stepped into the Yuaning realm, how terrifying would it be to activate the human emperor bloodline at that time? Can you reach the realm of the transfigured god? Less likely, but not completely out of the question. In case one reached the transformation god, that would be truly heaven-defying. It could be said that there were only a handful of transformation spirits in the Xianling Great World. The immortal sect does not come out, and the Lord of the Holy Land is at most at the realm of the transformation spirit. Therefore, if Meng Fan was truly able to possess the combat power of the transformation god realm, that situation could truly be said to be invincible. Of course, when it really came to that time, Meng Fan's goal would have to be placed in the immortal sect, in the true spirit realm. One could only say that Meng Fan, this person, was indeed too demonic, and it had taken him almost a year to accomplish something that no one else had been able to accomplish in a lifetime. God body, scary as hell. Meng Fan had been drawing silently for 20 years, enduring loneliness and being willing to be silent, and it was all worth it. Half a month had passed in the blink of an eye, and Meng Fan had been only half a step away from the Yuanying realm, but that half step had never been stepped out. The step of shattering the Dan into an infant was indeed extremely difficult. Even a demonic existence like Meng Fan had been embarrassed for a month. On this day, someone came to the Great Moon Imperial City and went straight to the Great Moon Imperial Palace. It was a middle-aged man in a white tunic, well-mannered and with a kind face. He threatened to meet Meng Fan, the eighth prince of the Great Moon. But what was Meng Fan's status? Could he not be met just because someone else wanted to meet him? So he was directly blocked. And then, no one could stop him. With the power of one man, he directly broke into the Moonlight Palace. When Meng Fan saw him, he couldn't help but show a hint of surprise on his face. Because this person who had inexplicably descended was a firstborn. In his entire life, Meng Fan had only met one Yuaning, that Qian Yuan Holy Land elder Li Fei Hua. And even Li Fei Hua was scared away by Meng Fan after activating the Human Emperor bloodline, and didn't even dare to make a move. Meng Fan looked at the white-clothed cultivator who suddenly appeared in front of him and asked with a frown, Who are you? Meng Fan wasn't surprised when cultivators like this Yuaning realm suddenly appeared in front of him, because for a Yuaning cultivator, there was simply no one in the Great Moon Imperial Palace who could stop them. If this kind of person wanted to see himself, then appearing in his own chambers out of nowhere was normal, and those losers in the palace didn't even have a chance to report it. As for Meng Fan, he was only at the peak of Jin Dan today and had not stepped into the Yuaning realm, so it was difficult to sense the Yuaning aura. Only when the firstborn appeared in front of him would he be able to perceive something. In Meng Fan's perception, this white-robed middle-aged cultivator should be in the early Yuaning stage. Because for Meng Fan, it was only at the early stage of Yuaning that he was able to barely perceive some cultivation. If it was a mid-Yuaning or even a late Yuaning existence that stood in front of Meng Fan, he would only feel that the other party was an ordinary person, and a little bit of cultivation could not be detected. I am Lu Qingfeng from the Northern Xin Holy Land and I came here just because I heard about the mighty name of the 8th prince and came to meet him. Now that I've seen it, it's really extraordinary and amazing. This white-clothed cultivator who claimed to be Lu Qingfeng from the northern Xin Holy Land was not humble in his words and talked in an extraordinary manner. However, Meng Fan looked at the other party coldly and said in an indifferent tone, Your Excellency's insight can be considered uninvited and somewhat of a bad arrival. Lu Qingfeng shook his head and said, The 8th prince has misunderstood. I did not come on this trip to look for trouble. It's just that within this palace, there are many rules and it's extremely difficult to see you, so I can only come uninvited. Meng Fan asked with a calm expression, since you're not here to look for trouble, what is it for? Lu Qingfeng laughed, I've heard that the 8th prince has outstanding talent and is a pride of the generation, and when I see you today, you are truly as astonishing as the rumors say, that's why I've come this time. I'm actually inviting the 8th prince to join the Northern Xin Holy Land. Inviting himself to join the North Xin Holy Land? This coming, although it surprised Meng Fan for a moment, made sense. There is no shortage of geniuses of all kinds in the world. Not that anyone who sees his genius thinks of stifling it and not letting them grow. More forces, in fact, were more interested in taking geniuses under their wings and cultivating them with care. Who has nothing to do with persecuting a good genius? Of course, if this genius had declined the invitation, then the outcome might have been different. 
it's not impossible to be persecuted and killed. After all, some clans do act more sinisterly, and since a genius like you is unwilling to join us, we would rather destroy it, lest you join a hostile force. Of course, although there were such sects, they weren't everywhere and were still extremely rare. Most clans, after all, are still relatively open, unless the one who invites you is a devilish sect. This Northern Xi'an Holy Land, naturally, was not a devilish force. Meng Fan has heard of the North Xi'an Holy Land, this holy land to raise the righteousness of the spirit, under the door of a lot of readers, talking about the right way to sit straight, do not care to do flies and dogs. Therefore, Meng Fan didn't hesitate and directly said to Lu Qingfeng, I'm sorry, I don't have any thoughts of leaving the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty, so I won't be joining the Northern Xi'an Holy Land. Lu Qingfeng was surprised for a moment when he heard Meng Fan's reply, because in his expectations, Meng Fan should have chosen to join the Northern Xi'an Holy Land. It was hard for anyone in the ordinary secular world to be able to withstand the temptation of a holy land. After all, people go to the top and water goes to the bottom. But after a short period of surprise, Lu Qingfeng understood a little more. Because Meng Fan was too young, he hadn't given up these worldly powers yet. However, with Meng Fan's terrifying cultivation and talent, it wouldn't be long before he got tired of these imperial dynasties in the secular world. A true dragon cannot stay in a pool of water forever, it is destined to travel to a wider heaven and earth. Lu Qingfeng thought that Meng Fan was still young and his mentality had not matured yet, he felt that this was normal. It would not take more than a few years for Meng Fan's mentality to change for sure, so he smiled and said, the eighth prince shouldn't be in a hurry to refuse, you're not interested in the northern Xi'an sacred land right now, and you're still attached to the great moon dynasty, but that won't necessarily be the case for a while longer. After saying that, he took out a token, and a map, and gave it to Meng Fan. This is the North Xi'an Holy Land's Reserve Disciple token. So as long as you, the 8th Prince, are willing to join the North Xi'an Holy Land any day, you can enter the North Xi'an Holy Land with this token. As for this map, it was a map of the Northern Xi'an Holy Land. The Northern Xi'an Holy Land is hidden extremely deep. It's hard to find without a map. Hearing Lu Qingfeng's words, Meng Fan smiled and casually took the token. There was no need for him to reject this kind of goodwill. And anyway, even if he received the token and the map, it was unlikely that he would join some northern Xi'an holy land. Lu Qingfeng didn't force Meng Fan either. And when he saw that Meng Fan had accepted the token, he left satisfied. This was because he believed that when Meng Fan was tired of life in the Great Moon Dynasty and tired of life in the secular world, he would inevitably choose to join the northern Xi'an holy land. He'd seen too many similar characters to be extremely sure of that. Meng Fan looked at Lu Qingfeng's back and a smile appeared on his face. Truly when he was sick of the secular world and was ready to go to the northern Xi'an holy land, then it's not being a disciple of the north Xi'an holy land. Presumably, the northern Xi'an sacred lord would have to give up his position as sacred lord. Chapter 82 Today, entering the realm of the land of the immortals. Of course, Meng Fan couldn't possibly be interested in the position of the holy lord of the north Xi'an holy land. Meng Fan's thoughts had always been clear, and he understood that power was far less important than his own strength. Being strong on your own is the way to go, powerful as it is, it's just a side issue, perhaps for some people, after a strong power, it might instead be more helpful to his cultivation, and it would be easier to rely on a huge power and raise his cultivation level, but for Meng Fan, he didn't need any of this at all, with the existence of the 6 Tao divine body, coupled with the existence of the divine grade technique, Meng Fan would be able to surpass everyone just by burying his head in the sand and practicing hard, so he didn't need to waste time wasting energy running any forces. What Meng Fan did was simple, he punched these forces through and through. When the day came that even the immortal gate could be broken, Meng Fan would be truly invincible. For ordinary people, this is something that is simply unimaginable to even think about. But for Meng Fan, it was destined to be true. Sooner or later, after Lu Qingfeng left, Meng Fan did not take this matter of joining the Northern Xin Holy Land to heart at all. But the system's voice sounded in his head. And Meng Fan hadn't thought that such a small thing could actually startle the system into releasing a mission. Ding! The North Xi'an Holy Land invites you to join it. As one of the six holy lands of the Xin Ling world, the North Xi'an Holy Land has a deep heritage and countless celestial pride. You can make the following choices. Option 1, go to the North Xi'an Holy Land. Choose to join the North Xi'an Holy Land. And become a disciple of the North Xi'an Holy Land. Reward, the flying sword technique. Option 2, refuse to join the North Xi'an Holy Land. Firmly believing that with his own abilities, he will not reside below the North Xi'an Holy Land. Reward, Erlang Jinju and Guanxin thoughts. Hearing the system beep in his head, Meng Fan had a smile on his face, and was even a bit surprised. 
because this is simply a welfare bureau that is completely giving away its own feats, without a doubt. Meng Fan chose too, he didn't bother to join the Northern Xi'an Holy Land, and the rewards of choice 2 are also significantly more valuable than choice 1. After harvesting the Erlang True Lord's conceptual thoughts, Meng Fan couldn't help but be a little excited, because this was a god refining art, and it was actually a heaven grade god refining art, which could be considered extremely precious. Meng Fan could be certain that even a holy land would not necessarily be able to find this kind of heavenly viewpoint. In a sense, a god refining technique such as the conceptualization technique was even more precious than an ordinary gongfu. Ordinary heaven grade feats were already extremely precious. Absolute phoenixes, the heaven level viewpoints, on the other hand, were even more one in a million. As for this Erlang Jinjuan conceptualization, not only was it a heaven grade technique, the four words Erlang Jinjuan in it also caused Meng Fan to be somewhat shocked and surprised. Erlang Jinjuan is the legendary Erlang god Yang Jian. The fleshly body becomes a saint. The eight nine Xian Gong, the law of heaven and earth, and the divine power is boundless. There was no doubt that by practicing this great god's contemplation technique, Meng Fan's future was absolutely limitless. Other than that, Meng Fan could have a smoother breakthrough to the Yuaning realm to the god transformation realm with this conceptual sect. For the rest of the day, Meng Fan remained in closed door cultivation. The most important thing during this period of time was to break through to the Yuaning realm. Since it's so close, it's good to break out of it by the way. And this breakthrough didn't take Meng Fan much time. Only a week later, a terrifying aura steeply rose to the sky from the Moonlight Palace where Meng Fan resided. It directly dispersed all the clouds over the palace, truly breaking through the clouds. This formation was a bit shocking, and almost everyone was able to imagine that this formation was definitely made by their 8th prince, because in the entire Great Moon Palace, there was no one else besides the 8th prince who could make such a big commotion. At the same time, Meng Fan, who was cultivating with his eyes closed in the Moonlight Palace, violently opened his eyes. In his eyes, there were flashes of essence like substance. This gaze of his eyes opening even caused the void to tremble. Extremely astonishing. The Erlang True Lord's viewing thoughts really didn't disappoint Meng Fan and played a huge role, shattering the Dan into an infant. Originally, it should have been a big scene with nine deaths, but in Meng Fan's case, it was easily accomplished. Yuaning Realm, a smooth breakthrough. Name, Meng Fan. Life expectancy, 21 slash 1139. Race, human. Cultivation, early Yuaning. Technique, 9 Heavenly Empyrean and Spirit Technique, Divine Level, Erlang Jinju and Guanfa, Heavenly Level, Physique, 6 Paths Divine Body, Divine Grade, Supreme Talent, Sword Dao Tongshan, Top Qualification in Sword Dao, Any Sword Technique can be learned at once, and the power of the Sword Technique is enhanced, Supreme Talent, Hegemonic Stance, Any Female in Your Presence Will Be Weakened, Supreme Talent, Human Emperor's Bloodline, Activating the Human Emperor's Bloodline in the Body Will Enhance Your Cultivation by Accepting the World's Fortune. Sword Techniques, Heavenly Flying Fairy, Shen Level, Holy Spirit Sword Technique, Heaven Level, 10,000 Swords Returning to the Father, Earth Level, and Jintian Sword Drawing Technique, Heaven Level, Leg Technique, Wind God's Leg, Shen Level, Secret Technique, Concealment Technique, Ground Level, Weapons, Spirit Wine Sword, Shen Grade, Regulus Sword, Heaven Grade. Finally, Meng Fan smoothly broke through to the Yuaning Realm and became a true land god, and from the time Meng Fan opened his cultivation so far, it was only to see how much time had passed in the past year. In one year's time, from an ordinary martial artist in the Qi practicing realm, he crossed over into the Yuan Ing realm. This is the kind of thing that no one would even believe if they said it. Meng Fan, however, had really done it. There's a word for it, and it's worthy of the word anticlimactic. After his cultivation reached the Yuan Ying realm, Meng Fan felt that his entire being had undergone a radical change. Although he had activated the human emperor bloodline several times before, he had possessed the strength of the Yuan Ing realm. However, there was still a considerable difference between having the strength of the Yuan Ing realm and literally stepping into the Yuan Ing realm. At this moment, Meng Fan deeply realized the difference. Previously, Meng Fan, with the help of the human emperor bloodline, was able to possess the combat power of the Yuan Ing realm, but it was like a driver piloting a robot with explosive combat power, with strong limitations. But now Meng Fan, he himself was the robot, not the pilot. He was able to play his strength perfectly and truly wield it like an arm. This feeling was so much more refreshing than the strength brought about by activating the human emperor bloodline before. Land Immortal. This is a true land immortal. Meng Fan's eyes were incomparably bright, and a murmuring sound came out of his mouth. From today onwards, Meng Fan had truly crossed over into the ranks of the powerful. Even if he didn't rely on the human emperor bloodline, 
He was still a deservedly strong person who could walk horizontally in the secular world. In this situation now, even if he couldn't activate the cooling stage of the human emperor's bloodline, if he encountered the likes of Li Feihua and Qin Shengming again, Meng Fan would be able to hang them up and beat them. Chapter 83 Fox Clan Infant Land Gods Meng Fan had finally become a true land immortal at this moment, stepping into the Yuanning realm. Such a powerful Meng Fan would be truly invincible if he activated the human emperor bloodline again. It was even possible to step into the realm of transformation. Of course, this is unlikely. However, if he stepped into the realm of the transformation god, then Meng Fan really wasn't even afraid of the holy land. At the transformation spirit realm, one could walk sideways even in a holy land. However, Meng Fan rationally analyzed that activating the human emperor's bloodline shouldn't be able to step into the god transformation realm. But there's no point in analyzing this stuff, because practice is the only test of truth. At this moment, Meng Fan had the feeling of directly activating the human emperor bloodline and experiencing what realm he could actually reach. But after some hesitation, Meng Fan gave up. After all, activating the human emperor's bloodline was also a difficult opportunity. And once activated, there would be a one month, cooling, period. In case you get into trouble within the month, then it's just not worth it. A hint of helplessness appeared on Meng Fan's face, and he eventually gave up on such an extravagant behavior. It's better to save this kind of undercurrent when you can, because you yourself don't know what day you'll be in trouble. In case one really encountered an insurmountable trouble during the cooling period of the human emperor's bloodline, it would be too late to repent at that time. Meng Fan was still a relatively cautious person, so he wouldn't let this kind of accident happen. Good steel should be used for good. Meng Fan pushed open the door of the Moonlight Palace. Not having stepped out of the temple door for many days, Meng Fan opened the door and felt that the air was fresh. Of course, this one could be psychological. After all, for Meng Fan, breaking through to the Yuanning realm and becoming a land deity was indeed something to rejoice over. Particularly pleased, a smile appeared on Meng Fan's face, and the guards in front of the palace door, the two men, Xiao Tai and Xiao Mu, looked at the smile on Meng Fan's face, and also knelt down excitedly and began to pat their asses. Congratulations to your highness on your cultivation breakthrough. Unrivaled in the world and invincible, Meng Fan was in a good mood. And even though it was low grade horse asterisk 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 that was so bad that it couldn't get any worse, Meng Fan still took it. He took out two bottles of pills from his storage bag and threw them to Little Tai Xiao Mu. This was an elixir that could be used in the Qi practicing realm, and was not considered precious, especially since Meng Fan could not even look at this kind of low grade elixir, and it was just right to use it to reward others. Many thanks for the reward. Your Majesty, Kotetsa Koki kneeled down in excitement. Meng Fan waved his hand then ignored them and walked towards Meng Xiaochan's residence, for little iron and little wood. Although Meng Fan had the intention of cultivating them, he was just cultivating them as he went along, not putting them in his mind, much less reporting any expectations. He is not in need of a heartbeat. What's more, Xiaomu Xiaotai's realm was low and his talent wasn't really good, so even if he cultivated it, he wouldn't be able to cultivate anything. Moreover, Meng Fan was destined to leave the Great Lunar Dynasty so the heartthrob was simply useless and meaningless. As for cultivating a few believers to protect Meng Xiaochan, it was even more pointless. It would be better to train them than to train Meng Xiaochan directly. In fact, Meng Fan was indeed directly cultivating Meng Xiaochan. He came to Meng Xiaochan's residence to check and examine Meng Xiaochan's cultivation results. During this period of time, after Meng Xiaochan activated the demon bloodline in her body, her talent had indeed been slightly enhanced and her speed of cultivation had increased by a considerable amount. Moreover, without knowing whether it was because of the demon bloodline or Meng Fan's demonstration of the sword technique, Meng Xiaochan had recently made considerable progress on the sword technique path, especially sword one of the holy spirit sword technique. Meng Xiaochan had already almost grasped the wonders of this sword. It's nice, Meng Fan, who had left from Meng Xiaochan's residence, had a trace of satisfaction on his face. Having said that, Meng Xiaochan's progress during this period of time was indeed great, worthy of being his Meng Fan sister. After breaking through Yuanning to achieve land god immortality, Meng Fan realized that he didn't have to go out of the gate at all after he left the gate. In a sense, he was the spiritual leader of the Great Moon Dynasty, and even Emperor Meng Tianji was far inferior to Meng Fan. But when Meng Fan was idle and observed the Great Moon Dynasty for a while, he realized that the Great Moon Dynasty didn't need him for anything at all. The entire Great Moon which was running in an orderly and well-organized manner, didn't need Meng Fan to worry about it at all. It had to be said, Meng Fan's choice to allow Meng Tianji to ascend to the throne as emperor was indeed a good choice. At least, 
This kid really knows how to run a country. There is a saying that although Meng Chuanxu is a scumbag, the prince he educated is not bad. So Meng Fan, who had just come out of the gate, chose to continue his closed door cultivation again. It was because he realized that there didn't seem to be anything he could do besides continuing to cultivate. On the fourth day after Meng Fan chose to continue his cultivation, an uninvited guest came to the palace. This person entered the Great Moon Palace like no one's business. It wasn't that the palace guards couldn't stop him. It was that the palace guards didn't even notice him. The gap is too big to see. This uninvited guest, who didn't come to Meng Fan, appeared in front of Shang Fei Yu and Lin Shen Blade. Obviously, this uninvited guest was someone from the Fox Clan within the Demon Clan. Otherwise, he wouldn't have found Shang Fei Yu and Lin Shen Blade directly. Shang Fei Yu and Lin Shen Blade lived together. And when they saw this person, both of their faces changed. Then they immediately knelt down and saluted. Greetings, Lord He, Lord He, formerly known as He Beifong, a great man of the Fox Clan in the Yuaning realm, an existence in the Land God realm. Although He Beifong was only an early stage Yuaning existence, he was also an extremely high status existence in the Fox Clan. Being one of the eight Fox generals under the command of the Fire Throat Demon King by Xiao Tian, just the early stage of Yuaning. These six words were now Meng Fan's perspective. For ordinary people, and even for ordinary cultivators, the Yuaning realm was a godlike existence, which was also the reason why the Yuaning realm was honored as a land god. To be honest, Shang Fei Yu and Lin Shen Blade had thought that Lord Demon King would next send over a great demon of the Yuaning realm, but it's only possible and unlikely. So when they saw He Bei Feng, the Fox Clan's Yuaning, descending on the Great Moon Imperial Palace, they couldn't help but still be shocked a little. You too, were imprisoned here by Meng Fan? He Beifeng said as he coldly looked at Shang Fei Yu and Lin Shen Blade. Shang Fei Yu and Lin Shen Blade, both of them, nodded their heads in a hurry. At this time, it was necessary to make a stand, or else it would simply be impossible to explain to the Fire Throat Demon King when they returned. What's more, they were originally imprisoned by Meng Fan. The words of Lord Demon King, you have already reached the years of Meng Fan, the eighth prince of the Great Moon? He Beifeng continued to ask. Shang Fei Yu hurriedly said, Lord He, I have already told Meng Fan clearly about my intentions and expressed Lord Demon King's meaning very clearly. He Beifeng sneered, so this His Highness, the eighth prince of the Great Moon, obviously didn't take Lord Demon King's words seriously since he has already imprisoned you. Chapter 84 Meng Fan, come out and meet me. Not taking the Demon King's words seriously? Lin Xian Blade had no say in this issue. He had little contact with Meng Fan and was directly placed under house arrest. Rather, it was Shang Fei Yu who was considered to know Meng Fan better. He knew very well that Meng Fan really didn't take Lord Demon King's words seriously. Even this eighth prince of the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty did not take the Demon King himself seriously at all. Even if Lord Demon King is his grandfather. What's more, Lord Demon King wasn't necessarily 100% his grandfather. However, at this time, Shang Fei Yu obviously wouldn't take the initiative to say this, saying it would only anger He Bei Feng, and then there wouldn't be any benefits. As for Meng Fan's attitude, there was no need to say that He Beifeng had already felt it. Shang Fei Yu felt that the only thing he needed to be reminded of was Meng Fan's combat prowess, although he believed that He Beifeng must have also found out a lot of news about Meng Fan, and had some understanding of Meng Fan's strength. But what He Beifeng had heard was ultimately hearsay, and was definitely biased. Shang Fei Yu, on the other hand, had seen Meng Fan force back 400, 000 troops with a single sword especially the woman who had emerged at the end of the Great Dragon Dynasty, who was also extremely terrifying, but had been easily forced back by Meng Fan without a fight. Most importantly, Meng Fan had made a breakthrough some time ago. The movement of the breakthrough was so loud that both Shang Fei Yu and Lin Xian Blade sensed it. And in the entire Great Lunar Dynasty, there couldn't possibly be a second person other than Meng Fan who could make such a big commotion. So the person who broke through was definitely Meng Fan. This meant that Meng Fan was even stronger than when he was on the city walls that day. No matter what, Shang Fei Yu was on the Fox Clan side, so he honestly told He Beifeng this information. However, He Beifeng didn't take it to heart because according to the information he had gathered, Meng Fan was only at the Jin Dan realm even if he was strong. Even if there was a slight breakthrough, it was certainly impossible to reach the Yuaning realm. He, a genuine Yuaning, was still able to fear Meng Fan, wasn't he? In He Beifeng's opinion, he could easily take Meng Fan down, but the truth was that he didn't understand Meng Fan's frightfulness at all. In fact, although Sheng Fei Yu felt that Meng Fan was terrifying, he likewise felt that He Beifeng should not be afraid of Meng Fan. After all, although he felt that Meng Fan was terrifying, he rationally thought that He Beifeng was even more terrifying. 
After all, He Beifong was a genuine Yuaning big brother, a hallowed land deity. As for Meng Fan, he felt that the odds were that he wasn't a land god, so although he had submitted to Meng Fan's lustful authority during this period of time, with He Beifeng's descent, he had finally regained some self-confidence. Although it was still impossible for him to dare to strike at Meng Fan, he at least had the courage to straighten his back in front of Meng Fan. That's all. Shang Feiyu shook his head, banishing these chaotic thoughts from his mind. He didn't expect that he would be able to retaliate against Meng Fan to be able to take out his anger. As long as He Beifong was able to smoothly take him away from the Great Moon Dynasty and back to the Ten Thousand Demon Kingdom, he would be satisfied. But He Beifong didn't think so. He felt that Meng Fan was defying the Fire Throat Demon King and was unforgivable. Especially since Meng Fan was most likely the grandson of Fire Throat Demon King by Xiaotian, which was tantamount to being unfilial. He could not see past it even more. Meng Fan must be taught a lesson. Where is this sinner? Meng Fan, now, He Beifong asked to Shang Feiyu and Lin Qianblade. Shang Feiyu and Lin Qianblade exchanged glances, then led He Beifong to the Moonlight Palace, Meng Fan's bedchamber. The truth was that if He Beifong wanted to find Meng Fan, it would actually be a breeze, but the fact that he rushed over the first time he sensed Shang Feiyu and Lin Qianblade's location proved that he actually valued these two little demons. As for the two little demons, Shang Feiyu and Lin Qianblade, they were still a bit jittery at the moment. But out of their trust in He Beifong, it allowed them to suppress their fear of Meng Fan. After all, Lord He was an existence of the Yuaning realm, so how could he not be Meng Fan's opponent? What are you rambling on about? Moonlight Palace, outside the gate of the main hall. He Beifong coldly looked at the temple door with a cold face and said, Is this where that sinner Meng Fan lives? Back to Lord He, the Great Moon's eighth prince. Meng Fan, does live here. Shang Fei Yu said carefully, The eighth prince? There's no need to address him with such honorifics in front of me. He Beifong sneered, his face full of disdain. Then he shouted inside the moonlight palace, Little Meng Fan, get your ass out here and meet me. In front of the palace gate, Xiao Tai Xiao Mu, these guards, had long felt that He Beifong was somewhat strange and inexplicably came to the king's chambers. Instinctively, they had been somewhat hostile. Now that he heard that the other party actually dared to call the king by his name and even insulted him with his words, it's a death wish. In the entire great moon, there was not a single person who dared to call the king a little child. This, simply, is tired of living. Xiao Tai Xiao Mu, as well as the team of guards on the side, immediately rushed towards He Beifong, wanting to take down He Beifong, this maniac, and listen to the punishment. The result was obvious. How could these minions be a match for a land god? Nonsense wouldn't dare say that. He Beifong waved his hand disdainfully, and in the next second, all these guards were blown away and fell to the ground. However, He Beifong still had pride. Although he struck out at these guards, he looked down on them, so he just shooed them away like flies and didn't kill them. Speaking of which, these guards were pitiful, often being blown away by inexplicable experts. After all, the people who came to Meng Fan were not ordinary goods, and they were often reduced to targets with no ability to resist at all. But they were also lucky. These people who had come to trouble Meng Fan were all experts who held their own status and didn't care to lay a hand on these minions. So they, the guards, although they had been crushed over and over again, each one of them still lived on, which was also considered odd. And today, they dodged another bullet. Meng Fan, who was cultivating within the Moonlight Palace, clearly heard the call from outside. These days, there were actually people who dared to call themselves Meng Fan's little children? Is it that you can no longer lift your sword? I can't believe someone else dared to be so arrogant. Is there really someone who isn't afraid to die? With a curious heart, Meng Fan stood up, pushed open the temple door of the Moonlight Palace, and walked out. He wanted to see who was in a hurry to die. Is it so unhappy to be alive? Just pushing open the door. Meng Fan's eyes caught sight of a group of guards lying on the ground. Meng Fan was helpless in sight slightly. It was also difficult for these guards who were guarding his door. This kind of formalism is really hurting these guards. Meng Fan thought that in the future, he wouldn't need anyone else to guard the entrance to his own bedchamber. There was no point in guarding it anyway. It was a wonder that these people could protect themselves. It was almost as if they were protecting them. It would only distract them. Taking his eyes off the guards lying on the ground, Meng Fan saw Shang Feiyu and Lin Shenblade. Of course, there was also Shang Feiyu and He Beifong beside Lin Shenblade. Chapter 85, Kneel and Apologize. Shang Feiyu and Lin Shenblade. Meng Fan was familiar with them, but this white-robed man beside them, Meng Fan did not recognize. However, although Meng Fan didn't recognize it, he had already guessed who the other party was. This was obviously the third demon race sent by Firethroat Demon King by Xiaotian. Previously, 
Meng Fan had thought that if the Fire Throat Demon King sent another demon race over, then it definitely wouldn't be a weak one, and the odds were that it would be in existence at the peak of the Jindan or Yuaning Realm, and as one's reputation grew louder, the probability of sending a Yuaning Realm expert over um was even greater, indeed it did, as Bai Shatian had indeed sent over a Yuaning, unfortunately, it was only an early stage Yuaning, not much of a challenge, if Meng Fan, who was still at the peak of Jindan, might be interested in this guy. It was possible that Meng Fan had now successfully cultivated to the Yuaning realm, and the existence of the same early Yuaning stage, Meng Fan could no longer look at it and could choose to ignore it. Competing at the same realm, he wouldn't put his opponents in his eyes at all, otherwise it would be disrespectful to the divine body. Perhaps a red eye would say that a divine body only means that you are gifted and have a relatively fast cultivation speed. It doesn't mean that you are strong, it doesn't mean that you are invincible in the same realm. To this, Meng Fan only needed to reply with two words, Oh, I'm sorry, but a god body means awesome, it means invincible, ordinary people, will never experience the joy of hanging out. Meng Fan looked coldly at He Bei Feng, no different from the way he looked at Sheng Fei Yu Lin Shen Blade. As a matter of fact, in Meng Fan's opinion, there really wasn't any difference between these three people. Of course, it was only Meng Fan that could be qualified to see it that way. On the other hand, He Bei Feng's mindset was incomparable to Meng Fan's. Being at the same early Yuaning realm, He Beifeng sensed Meng Fan's cultivation in an instant. This suspected grandson of Lord Demon King, Meng Fan, the eighth prince of the Great Moon, was actually a Yuaning, a genuine land god. Earlier, I knew that even the children's generation of the Demon King did not have a single person, a demon to reach the Yuaning realm. If this Meng Fan was really the grandson of Lord Demon King, then his true age was probably only around 20 years old. A 20-year-old Genesis? A 20-year-old land god? Are you kidding me? Talking about books? He Beifeng didn't believe it at all because it was simply impossible for a 20-year-old Yuaning cultivator to exist in this world. Unless it was an immortal sect of the true spirit realm, but it was possible to cultivate this kind of existence. But it was also absolutely rare and few. However, whenever this kind of existence appeared, it was an absolute heavenly pride. An existence on the level of a holy son or daughter. Secular world. The appearance of a saint son and saint daughter level existence? Is that possible? No way. He Beifeng took a deep breath. At this time, he was almost certain that Meng Fan was definitely not the grandson of the fire throat demon king. Saying this might have somewhat denigrated demon king Bai Xiaotian, but it was indeed what He Beifeng had in his heart. Although He Beifeng was loyal to Bai Xiaotian, he still thought that Bai Xiaotian didn't have the background to give birth to such an outstanding offspring. So this great moon eighth prince must have nothing to do with the demon king. This person, must be a peerless heavenly pride cultivated by some amazing power. It's better not to offend this kind of character. Even he Beifeng felt that it would be better for the demon king, his old man, not to offend this kind of character. There was one thing to say, even if Meng Fan really was the grandson of the demon king his old man, he Beifeng felt that the demon king would have to give up, because this kind of character was simply not something that a demon king could manage. The demon king wanted to cultivate the other party. But the other party didn't need the demon king to cultivate them at all. Moreover, He Beifeng felt that it wouldn't be difficult for this great moon's eighth prince Meng Fan to surpass the demon king. In this case, what qualifications does the demon king have to train people? He Beifeng laughed bitterly in his heart. And at the same time, he also had some regrets. He might have kicked the iron plate today. Simply because of a glance at Meng Fan's cultivation realm, he had already wimped out. Unfortunately, he had already offended Meng Fan. That sentence, Meng Fan Jr., come out and meet me, was not something that could be easily dismissed. As we all know, this eighth prince of the great moon is not exactly good-tempered. Who has such a big mouth and dares to tell this king to get out? Meng Fan coldly looked at He Bei Feng. Although his mouth was questionable, it was clear that he already knew it was this person who had mouthed off and disrespected himself. A hint of indifference appeared on Meng Fan's face, and his eyes even vaguely contained killing intent. Of course, he didn't really want to kill He Bei Feng. He's not so far gone that he's going to beat and kill people over such a remark. But it was also necessary to give this person a downward spiral, so that he would know that he, the eighth prince of the great moon, was not someone who could be insulted. Your highness, the eighth prince, it was me who was abrupt and bumped into your highness. He Beifeng courteously bowed to Meng Fan. Meng Fan was expressionless, but Shang Fei Yu and Lin Xianblade, who were on the side, were somewhat stunned and confused. Just now. This lord he had come to Meng Fan's trouble in an aggressive manner, and just now, he had even made provocative remarks and directly opened his mouth to insult him. As a result, as soon as Meng Fan appeared, 
This lord he actually abashed and saluted in seconds, a scene that simply baffled them. But the people of the Fox Clan have always been relatively intelligent, and there are very few stupid people. From the change in He Beifeng's attitude, these two sensed Meng Fan's power. The two of them, although they had always known that Meng Fan was strong, they didn't actually know what realm Meng Fan was in. Through He Beifeng's transformation, they had realized that He Beifeng, a Yuaning, didn't dare offend Meng Fan either. From this, it could be seen that this His Highness, the eighth prince of the Great Moon, was most likely also a Yuaning a land deity. At that moment, Shang Feiyu and Lin Shenblade were both a little shaken. They originally thought that if there was an adult there, they wouldn't have to be afraid of Meng Fan anymore. And even if they couldn't do anything to Meng Fan, at least they would be able to retreat in one piece. But now it seems as if it's not so simple. Meng Fan looked coldly at He Beifeng, his gaze icy cold, and said in a chilling voice, since you know that you have rushed this king, then shouldn't you apologize? He Beifeng said, mister he has made a mistake. So naturally I should apologize to his majesty. At this time, He Beifeng didn't dare to underestimate Meng Fan, and he even felt that Meng Fan was even higher than himself. Although he was at the early Yuaning stage like Meng Fan, Meng Fan was young, this natural talent was terrifying, and sooner or later, he would surpass him. So in front of Meng Fan, he was self-consciously short. This is considered an apology? Meng Fan coldly looked at He Beifeng. How does the king think an apology can be considered? How can I relieve my anger? He Beifeng asked somewhat awkwardly. To be honest, he really regretted the impulse he just had. Nothing to blindly shout something? It's really kind of riding the fence right now. Meng Fan turned to He Beifeng with an expressionless face and said, Apologizing, is not such an easy thing to do? It's not hard to get this king to reveal this matter. With that, Meng Fan took a step forward and looked condescendingly at He Beifeng in a chilling voice. In this king's case, Kneeling and slapping is the only way to apologize. Chapter 86, Both Victory and Defeat, Life and Death. Kneeling and slapping is the only way to apologize. These words, coming out of Meng Fan's mouth, instantly caused He Beifeng's face to change. It's nakedly humiliating itself. Of course, he had just waited and humiliated Meng Fan as well, but by counting, Meng Fan had humiliated him more severely than he had. After all, he had only told Meng Fan to get out. While Meng Fan had told him to kneel down and apologize, although He Beifeng thought highly of Meng Fan, and was even vaguely jealous of Meng Fan in his heart, he felt that Meng Fan had unlimited potential and an unlimited future, and that he would definitely not be an opponent in the future. But later is later and now is now. In fact, what he was afraid of was the future Meng Fan, not the current Meng Fan. The current Meng Fan was at the same early Yuaning realm as him, so what was he afraid of? But also early Yuaning stage. He did not have the certainty to kill Meng Fan. Naturally, he was afraid that Meng Fan would grow up to retaliate against him in the future. That was why He Beifeng had just taken the initiative to apologize to Meng Fan, with a very low attitude, hoping to receive Meng Fan's forgiveness. But with Meng Fan being so forced, it was clear that it was impossible for him to do so. If Meng Fan was a transformation god, he might have wimped out to the point of kneeling down and apologizing. No, it wasn't possible. If it was a transformation god, he had just been so offended that he had already taken the initiative to kneel down and kowtow to beg for forgiveness. Although with this natural talent of Meng Fan, he would definitely be able to become a transformation god in the future. He was not a transformation god now after all. Making He Beifeng kneel down and apologize. The current Meng Fan was not worthy. He Beifeng's face changed as he looked coldly at Meng Fan, his tone gradually becoming cold as he said, Your Highness, don't be too deceitful. Although I'm jealous of you. I'm not to the point where I'm afraid of you. You and I are at the early Yuaning realm at the same time. Yet because of a little misunderstanding, you open your mouth and ask me to kneel down and apologize. It's a little too much, isn't it? Hearing He Beifeng's words, Sheng Feiyu and Lin Xianblade were both shocked. Their guesses had come true. This eighth prince of the Great Lunar Imperial Dynasty was indeed already at the Yuaning realm. A land god. No wonder Lord he is so cautious. But even if it's a Yuaning, so what? Can a human Yuaning look down on a fox Yuaning like that? Shang Feiyu and Lin Xianblade were indignant in their hearts, but they didn't dare to show it on their faces in the slightest for fear of offending Meng Fan. As a matter of fact, they were even more unhelpful than He Beifeng. He Beifeng looked at Meng Fan coldly, his eyes filled with anger. A man kneels to heaven and earth and to his parents. How can he kneel like others because of such a small matter? No way. Meng Fan looked at He Beifeng with the same coldness and laughed coldly. So, this is your refusal to apologize to this king? He Beifeng said helplessly. I can apologize to the king, but kneeling down and apologizing is indeed a bit excessive. 
so please ask the king to do it in a different way. Although he had a helpless face, he bathing's tone revealed sincerity within his voice, he was indeed willing to apologize and did feel that he was wrong. He didn't feel that he was wrong to tell Meng Fan to get out. It was because he felt that he hadn't was to figure out Meng Fan's cultivation and strength, and to be so arrogant was indeed reckless. Meng Fan looked condescendingly at Hebei Fong and said in a chilling voice, Since your excellency is not willing to kneel and apologize, then, then how? Hebei Fong asked with a grave expression. Meng Fan's face was full of indifference as he spat out a sentence in a calm tone. Then, die for your sins, to die in thanksgiving. Hearing those four words, he Beifeng's eyes widened. This eighth prince Meng Fan, really stomping on his nose, getting more and more excessive, actually able to say such outrageous words, what right does he have? Does he deserve it? He Beifeng was instantly furious. This Meng Fan was completely not putting him in his eyes, nor the Fox Clan, to despise him so much, to humiliate him so much, with a tone so indifferent that it seemed as if he was talking to a mole. It pisses me off. He is a hallowed Yuaning, a land deity and is a highly respected great demon in the 10,000 demon kingdom in the Fox Clan. As a result, when he arrived at the Great Moon Dynasty, he was actually so humiliated by such a small child as Meng Fan. What a rage! Meng Fan Jr., don't you dare bully people too much! He Beifong roared. At the moment, there was killing intent in his eyes. He was afraid of offending Meng Fan because he was afraid that Meng Fan would grow up in the future and find him in trouble and seek revenge. But now that Meng Fan was in the same realm as him, it was like he hadn't grown up, so as long as he killed him desperately in this realm, why should he be afraid of his retaliation? He Beifong had vaguely resolved in his heart that since Meng Fan had looked down on him and insulted him so much, then he would fight to the death to kill Meng Fan. The land gods are not to be insulted. The insults will be killed. Even if the other party is the same as a land god, it will be killed accordingly. Unless, unless the other person is better than they are. But He Beifong didn't think that Meng Fan was stronger than himself. He felt that if he put his best foot forward and played all his cards, or even consumed some of his reserves, he could hope to kill Meng Fan. As for whether Lord Demon King would blame him after killing Meng Fan, this was actually good. All that was needed was to add more fuel to the fire and exaggerate Meng Fan's deeds a bit, describing the insult to himself as an insult to the Demon King, and I believe that Lord Demon King would approve of his killing Meng Fan. After all, Lord Demon King had many children and grandchildren and didn't care about one at all as could be seen from Bai Susu. What's more, Meng Fan wasn't sure if he was the Demon King's descendant. He Beifeng's eyes blazed with killing intent, not hiding it in the slightest. Meng Fan laughed as he sneered and said to He Beifeng, He he, you want to kill this king? He Beifeng said in a cold voice, You insulted me like this, if I don't kill you, how can I live up to my status as a land god immortal? Land god immortal cannot be insulted. I believe you are also clear about this point. Insults must be killed. Meng Fan nodded and said, since you said that, then you just insulted this king, so it looks like it's not fair for this king not to kill you. He Beifong had a cold face, no longer having the slightest bit of humility or retreat, and said in a chilling voice, since this is the case, let's see the real thing underhand and see who is actually able to kill who. On the side, Shang Fei Yu and Lin Chen Blade had a kind of weak, pitiful and helpless gratitude, shivering in the corner. It wasn't supposed to be this way with the plot, they're here to hire someone. And even if they can't hire someone, they shouldn't be fighting to the death like this. As a result, right now, the most miserable ones were not He Beifong or Meng Fan, but the two of them. As the gods fight, so do mortals. In front of the two land immortals, the two of them at the early Jin Dance stage were really as humble as mortals. If Meng Fan and He Beifong had fought and confiscated it, and it had rippled out to them, they might have been able to be shaken to death by the mere aftermath. After all, they were only at the early Jin Dan stage, not the late Jin Dan stage Jin Dan peak. The realm of early Jin Dan, in front of Yuaning, was indeed a bit inadequate, too far off. If one reached the late Jin Dan realm, in a battle at the Yuaning realm, one might still have some ability to defend oneself from being shaken to death by the aftershocks. Shang Fei Yu and Lin Xinblade glanced at each other, both seeing the worry in each other's eyes. Confirmation of people who think the same way at the same time. A gentleman does not stand under a dangerous wall. Gotta run. Then the two of them quietly moved back, moving very slowly, not daring to make too much movement for fear of being noticed by Meng Fan and He Beifong. In fact, Meng Fan and He Beifong noticed as soon as they moved. In front of the Yuaning realm land deities, there was no escaping any small movements, but Meng Fan and He Beifong both ignored them, because they're the real mole crickets, not worth caring about at all. He Beifong looked at Meng Fan coldly, killing intent filling him without the slightest concealment. 
The man is quick to goad when he says goad, but when it comes to just, there is just very fierce. Once there is a killing heart, then it is really to kill, without any hesitation at all. As the eight great Vajra under the fire throat demon king, killing from amongst thousands of troops, how could he Beifong be a good person? So after he had gotten up a killing intent against Meng Fan, he was truly trying to kill. Today, both victory and death will be decided. Human Yuaning, Demon Yuaning, who is stronger or weaker, will soon see the difference. Eighth Prince, I've heard that your sword skills are superb and nearly invincible. Come out with your sword. Let me see if you are vain. He Beifong had a cold face. Meng Fan smiled. Cold smile. Ridicule. Sneer. Whether or not this king is vain. It's not your turn to nod and comment and point fingers. The one who should make a sword is you. If this king makes a sword, you will not have the chance to make a sword, and will be directly reduced to a corpse. Hearing Mang Fan's words, He Beifong also laughed, the same sneer. Before he came, he had heard that this great moon's eighth prince was extremely overbearing and rampant, cold and ruthless, as if he had even killed his own biological father. Now it seems that, other things aside, this pride is indeed arrogant to the core. I just don't know if the strength is worthy of the pride. A long blade appeared in He Beifong's hand, out of thin air. Meng Fan's eyes lit up. It looked like this guy also had storage equipment. Today, there's going to be a profit to be made. I'm sorry, but Old Me uses a blade, not a sword. Only you sissies of the human race would use a soft and feeble weapon like a sword. The one who uses a sword is a real man. Meng Fan told him to make a sword, but he took out a large sword and despised Meng Fan in the process. Sissies with swords? Hearing these words, Meng Fan was somewhat enraged. He wouldn't have actually cared too much about the comment. But he was inexplicably angry, because he possessed the supreme talent, Sword Dao Tongshan. He Beifong looked down on using the sword ground, directly provoking an instinct in Meng Fan, the instinctive fury that belonged to the supreme talent, Sword Dao Tongshan. Humiliating people can be, insulting the sword won't work. Therefore, Meng Fan's eyes as he looked at He Beifong also had killing intent in them, and this strand of killing intent was one that he himself could not control at all, inexplicably. This was the pride that belonged to the supreme talent, Sword Dao Tongshin, ground. This was the killing intent that belonged to, Sword Dao Tongshin. Seeing the killing intent in Mang Fan's eyes, the killing intent in He Beifeng's eyes became even more rampant and agitated. In this battle, there would be no rest until Mang Fan was beheaded. Because if Mang Fan didn't die, with Mang Fan's natural talent he would definitely crush him in the future. And he couldn't bear the retaliation from Mang Fan. So this time, even if he put his best foot forward and fought to the death, he would still kill Meng Fan. Thinking of this, he wasn't polite about who would make the first sword and who would make the first blade. He directly drew his sword, and the light of the blade was like silver, covering the entire moonlight palace. Aurora 1 slash. He Beifong closed his eyes, although his eyes are closed, but his vision is more open, directly into the subtle. With one slash, heaven and earth lost their colors. The land god's immortal slashes through the heavens and through the earth. Those four words are not an exaggeration. Chapter 87, Sword 1. Admittedly, He Beifeng's slash was strong. The land god slash is naturally strong. Unfortunately, he was facing Meng Fan. Being at the same early Yuaning stage and at the same land deity realm, He Beifeng really wasn't enough to look at in front of Meng Fan. In particular, Meng Fan had yet to activate the human emperor bloodline. Of course, if one had to activate the human emperor's bloodline when fighting in the same realm, then Meng Fan would be truly discrediting the Six Paths Divine Body and the Nine Heavens Emperor God skill. Even if he didn't activate the Human Emperor Bloodline, Meng Fan now had the confidence to decapitate the mid Yuaning stage. He Beifong at the early stage of Yuaning really wasn't enough to look at. In the face of He Beifong's slash, Meng Fan's face was calm as he took out the Spirit Wind Sword from his storage bag. The Spirit Wind Sword wasn't considered a good sword. It was only a middle grade Xian grade weapon. The blade in He Beifeng's hand was also of the middle Xian grade. There was no difference between the two when it came to weapons, and neither was stronger than the other. But when it comes to people, the gap is not even close. He Beifeng's blade light was like silver, which could be described as covering the sky and covering the earth. The entire sky above the palace was filled with incomparable sword intent everywhere, which was frightening. In the Great Moon Imperial Palace, countless people raised their heads as they felt this unrivaled blade intent, felt this terrifying aura. The smell of death. This kind of aura, this kind of sharpness, is undoubtedly a provocation. A fight. Someone was in the palace and such a terrifying commotion had erupted. So for a moment, people were on edge, especially in front of the moonlight palace. Those guards lying on the ground were shivering at the moment, 
as they clearly felt the threat of death brought about by this saber intent. Inside the imperial palace, Wei Changfeng felt this aura and looked up in incomparable shock, because this aura was just too strong and intimidating. But when he looked up and saw the direction where the blade intent was, he regained his composure and his face was as normal. This was because he saw that the location where the saber intent had erupted was in the direction of the moonlight palace. This means that there are unenlightened cuties, coming to find trouble with the eighth prince. In Wei Chongfeng's opinion, this is not looking for trouble. It's a death wish, daring to be reckless in front of the eighth prince. What's the difference between that and seeking death? There is no difference. In Wei Chongfeng's eyes, his highness the eighth prince was an invincible existence, and anyone who came was looking for death so he just glanced at it and calmly looked down to do what he needed to do, completely unconcerned. In the entire palace, he could be considered the most calm one. Besides Wei Changfeng, there was another person who had a more obvious reaction. Emperor of the Great Moon, Meng Tianji. Unlike Wei Changfeng's calmness, Meng Tianji was extremely nervous. As he was the Emperor of the Great Moon, he naturally couldn't help but be worried when there was such a big commotion in the Imperial Palace. However, when he saw that the location of the eruption of Saber Intent was the Moonlight Palace, he also slightly let go of some of his worries, but he was not as big-hearted as Wei Changfeng, so this Emperor of the Great Moon couldn't help but rush in the direction of the Moonlight Palace. It had to be said that this Meng Tianji was still stronger than Meng Chuanxiu. Like Meng Chuanxiu encountered this situation, he hated to hide as far away as possible, practicing the principle that a gentleman does not stand under a dangerous wall and Meng Tianji actually dared to run towards the place where the incident occurred. Just this courage and boldness alone had already surpassed Meng Chuanxiu. There was another person who, like Meng Tianji, was also rushing towards Moonlight Palace when he felt this terrifying blade intent. Meng Fan's sister, Meng Xiaochan. So the only one of these people who would be in a worried mood would be Meng Xiaochan. After all, it was her brother, her own brother with the same father and mother, who lived inside the Moonlight Palace. Although this brother of his was very powerful, the strongest existence in the Great Moon Dynasty, deservedly the number one in the world. But even so, when she noticed that someone had gone to Moonlight Palace to cause trouble, she was still worried, worrying about Meng Fan's safety. Her realm was too low, so she couldn't feel Meng Fan's realm at all, and she couldn't feel how powerful this blade intent was is. To her, it was just plain powerful, so she didn't know whether her royal brother, when faced with this blade, was strong or weak. Worry because you don't know. Unfortunately, she was too slow. From the time she saw the blade light, by the time she ran to the Moonlight Palace, the battle was 100% over. In fact it was true that for experts of Meng Fan's realm, once they put their best foot forward, victory or defeat was often just a matter of one move. Unless it was a case of equal and equal, there was a possibility that they would tangle and fight for dozens of moves. This he Beifone was not worthy of being on par with him. Not even close. Clank came a sword chant. The Xianfeng sword was sheet. Meng Fan's sword came out and a sword light similarly covered the sky. Even if Yi Beifeng took the lead in launching his sword, he couldn't stop this sword light from rising up to the sky. And even more so, he couldn't stop this sword light from exploding with endless sharpness and divine might. Meng Fan's sword light came first afterward. That's strong. Sword 1. Facing an ordinary player like Yi Beifeng, Meng Fan didn't even bother to use the heaven slashing sword drawing technique in. How can you use a knife to kill a chicken? Even if it was the Holy Spirit Sword technique, Meng Fan would only be able to spare the Sword 1, not to mention Sword 22. Even if it was Sword 2, Meng Fan was too lazy to greet He Beifeng. A move of Sword 1, through the heavens and through the earth, directly chopped away this heaven obscuring blade light of He Beifeng. Lift the clouds and see the sky, a sword that gently breaks everything. For Meng Fan, this sword was just a casual chop, far from being considered the strongest. But for He Beifeng, this sword would be too strong. A sword light that broke through the clouds. A sword light that tore the wind and discharged the clouds. Blossomed in a silent place and rushed to his eyes in the blink of an eye. It was clear that his blade light had struck first. But it was broken and smoldered in the twinkling of an eye. The other party's sword light. On the other hand. Did not reduce its momentum and was still heading straight for him. So strong. So fast. He Beifong didn't dare to be careless and hurriedly made another sharp chop. Blade light poured out and a huge blade aura flashed against the wind, once again meeting Meng Fan's sword light. It was only that this slash was extremely hasty, and coupled with the fact that Meng Fan's sword light was already extremely close to him, he no longer had the chance to explode into a peak slash. With this slash, in his haste, he could only explode 70% of its power. Even a blade in its peak state would not be enough in front of Meng Fan, much less at only 70% of its power. Without a doubt, 
This blade was once again broken by Meng Fan's sword one, a sword that broke two swords in a row. The highs and lows are obvious. Shang Fei Yu and Lin Qin Blade, who had already retreated hundreds of meters away, were both looking at this scene with fear. They had fantasies before, fantasizing that He Beifeng could be stronger than Meng Fan, or at least not weaker than Meng Fan, and that the fight would be comparable. But the truth was cruel. With just one sword, He Beifeng had already clearly fallen into a disadvantage. It was obvious that this Lord He of theirs was simply no match for Meng Fan. Their idea of returning to the 10,000 Demon Kingdom was going to become a fool's errand again. Chapter 88, Sword Chopping Yuaning, Unrivaled in the World. Then again, even Lord He was no match for Meng Fan and was directly crushed, so could they even go back? Under the Demon King's seat, was there anyone else who was Meng Fan's opponent? Do we need Lord Demon King to come to the Great Moon Palace in person? It can only be thought about because they know it's impossible. Because for the Demon King of the 10,000 Demon Kingdom, it was easily not possible to leave the 10,000 Demon Kingdom, especially not being able to step into the human territory. Otherwise, it would cause a siege from the Holy Land. Ordinary small demons mixed into the human race even if it was just for the human race to sharpen. Once a demon king stepped into the human race, he would definitely alert the Holy Land to step in. This was the rule. Therefore, the demon king would not leave the 10,000 Demon Kingdom until it was absolutely necessary. Much less would he come to the Great Moon Dynasty. In that case, won't they be trapped until they die? Shang Fei Yu and Lin Chen Blade looked at each other, both seeing the helplessness and pain in each other's eyes. But when they thought that even this Lord He, the titular Yuaning, a land deity, had to be trapped in the Great Moon Palace just like them, their hearts were instantly balanced. Unfortunately, they got it wrong. Meng Fan imprisoned them because they were good enough and didn't offend Meng Fan. And this He Bei Feng had completely offended Meng Fan. How could Meng Fan just imprison him? As I said before, it's a matter of both victory and death. This time, He Beifong would not be imprisoned like them, because this He Beifong was dead. He Beifong, who was facing Meng Fan's sword directly, was already scared to death at this moment, and a thick fear surged through his heart. A Jin Dan like Sheng Fei Yu and Lin Shen Blade were able to see that he wasn't Meng Fan's opponent, and how could he not see it when he himself bore the brunt of it? He knew that Meng Fan was strong. How could he not be strong at such a young age at the Yuaning realm? A land god? but he had already overestimated Meng Fan. But the truth was that Meng Fan was even stronger than he thought. The second blade he chopped out was undoubtedly broken open by Meng Fan's sword light once again, and the blade energy in blade light was completely shattered and fragmented. Luckily, Meng Fan's move, sword won. After the sniping of He Beifeng's two slashes, the sword Qi sword intent had been eliminated by nearly 80%, only 20% of the power remains. But even so, He Beifeng, who had made two slashes in a row in a hurry, was still somewhat unable to fight. To be precise, it's too late to wield. He still had energy left. He could chop out a third blade. And the third blade was 100% capable of crushing this sword chi of Meng Fans and completely destroying this sword intent. Unfortunately, although he had the strength to spare, he no longer had that time. Or rather, not as fast as this. And without that time, without that speed, the end result is, dead. He Beifeng's eyes widened as he tried to dodge even though he couldn't land another third blade in time. As long as he avoided the sword, he still had hope of surviving. This hope, of course, was only a hope in his own imagination. Because even if he avoided the sword, Meng Fan would still have a second sword. And even Meng Fan's second sword could be stronger. After all, Meng Fan hadn't gone all out with this sword just now. Not by a long shot. He Bei Feng, dead. In fact, even Meng Fan felt that he should have to make a second sword strike in order to be able to kill He Bei Feng. This was the most basic respect for a land deity. And Meng Fan did not underestimate He Bei Feng. He wasn't arrogant enough to think that he could decapitate a land deity of the same realm with a casual sword strike. If it was a full strength sword, he was confident. Therefore, the Xian Feng sword in Meng Fan's hand was already being prepared, ready to cut out the second sword. He hadn't thought about giving He Bei Feng a way to live. Since the other party had chosen this path of death on his own initiative, he naturally had to fulfill the other party. Meng Fan, not so kind. When it's time to kill, he never goes soft. However, what Meng Fan did not expect was that He Beifeng actually did not even receive his first sword. Although He Beifeng dashed with all his might, trying to avoid Meng Fan's sword, he still didn't dodge it and was cut into his chest by the sword. The heart breaks open and stops beating. The body is dead. A demon Yuaning, a great demon of the land god immortal realm, died just like that. Dying under Meng Fan's sword so lightly, dying with such a lack of dignity. To be honest, even Meng Fan himself was a bit surprised to see this scene. It was a real accident, not a pretense. 
It's too easy, as simple as, there is no thrill of victory over your opponent. Meng Fan had that feeling of bullying the realm of Jindan with the realm of Yuaning. It made him shake his head and let out a small sigh. He's too strong and his opponents are too weak. It's the same realm, but in a sense it's not the same realm. It was complete and utter crushing, pure bombardment. In fact, Meng Fan had still underestimated the Holy Spirit Sword Technique. The Holy Spirit Sword Technique was, after all, a heaven level sword technique, although only the Sword 23 could be worthy of a true heaven grade sword technique. This set of sword techniques was still terrifying and overwhelming. Even if it was, Sword 1, it was not something an ordinary person could resist. Ordinary people here, even ordinary Yuaning, a move of, Sword 1, destroying and killing an early stage Yuaning, and sword chopping a land god immortal, was something Meng Fan was a bit surprised by, but accidental as it is, it makes sense. After this sword, Meng Fan had also determined how powerful he was. This was the first time he had ever beheaded a land deity at the Yuaning realm, and it could even be said that this was the first time he had ever fought a land deity at the Yuaning realm. It had to be said that at this moment, Meng Fan was slightly inflated, but he has inflated capital. He Beifeng's body, from standing gradually collapsed, he stared at his eyes wide open and didn't close them until he died. Death is not an option. His face was thick with fear and resignation, as well as unbelief. Undeniably, he had thought about whether or not he would not be Meng Fan's opponent, but he had never dreamed that the gap between himself and Meng Fan would be so large. A sword, just a single sword had decapitated himself. Was this really an early stage Yuaning? Was this an existence in the same realm as his own? Even if he was in the middle stage of Yuaning, he wouldn't be able to behead himself with a single sword so easily, right? He Beifong would be skeptical if he were still alive. Unfortunately, he no longer had a chance to doubt life. He's dead. The death is suffocating. The death is helpless. The death is unwilling. But others won't see it that way. A few years later, when Meng Fan was famous and absolutely unrivaled, when others thought that the first Yuaning that Meng Fan had killed was him, He Beifong, they would instead feel that He Beifong was honored. It's an honor to die. Of course, even years later, He Beifong would not feel honored. After all, no one wants to die. As He Beifong's body fell to the ground, it completely became a corpse, a hundred meters away. Shang Feiyu and Lin Shenblade had been stunned, their eyes and minds filled with fear. They thought Meng Fan would imprison He Beifong just like he imprisoned them. However, the truth was that Meng Fan had killed He Beifong with a single sword, killing this demon Yuaning, demon land god. Even Yuaning can be killed just by saying so. Then these two little Jin Dan, what the hell are they? At that moment, Shang Feiyu and Lin Shenblade trembled. Chapter 89, what if he comes in person? The two of them were worried about being caught in the aftermath of the battle before, but now it really seemed extremely ridiculous. Meng Fan, the eighth prince, had killed He Beifong with a single sword, completely and utterly crushing him, and there was no battle aftermath spilling out at all. Truly devastating. Involuntarily, a thought popped into their heads. This eighth prince of the great Moon dynasty, after killing He Beifong, shouldn't have killed them as well in passing, right? The possibilities are high. After all, He Beifong was also brought here by them, and it was normal for Meng Fan to be angry with them. What to do? They don't want to die. There was a saying that even if they were imprisoned in the Great Moon and could not return to the 10,000 Demon Kingdom, they would still prefer to live and be imprisoned. As the saying goes, it's better to die than to live. The two looked at each other simultaneously reading the meaning in the other's eyes. At this time, trying to escape was obviously impossible. In front of Meng Fan escaping was tantamount to death. There was no escaping. One can only concede. One can only beg for mercy. They hurriedly knelt down and moved toward Meng Fan's place by kneeling. They didn't dare to walk over and kneel again for fear of angering Meng Fan and being hacked to death with a sword. Kneeling over was the only way to not provoke Meng Fan. Your Highness, it was He Beifong who forced us to reveal your location. It wasn't us who deliberately lured him here. Your Highness, He Beifong is a white Shaotian great demon. We're just small demons. We don't dare to offend him at all. We can only bring him here. Your Highness, we didn't mean to rush you. It's He Beifong who doesn't know what's good for him. It has nothing to do with us. The King. These two guys, take the word Dune to the extreme. Meng Fan cried and laughed as he looked at these two guys who were afraid of death and shook his head helplessly. In fact, he had no intention of beheading these two guys. He killed He Beifong solely because He Beifong had rushed himself. If He Beifong had a better attitude, or even if He Beifong hadn't insisted on shouting to fight to the death with himself, he might have spared He Beifong's life. But this guy was looking for death, so Meng Fan could only fulfill him. As for Shang Feiyu and Lin Shenblade being so sensible, Meng Fan naturally wouldn't kill them. 
Meng Fan said with a cold face, What do you think? Should this king kill He Beifong? Sheng Fei Yu and Lin Shen Blade nodded their heads in a hurry. He Beifong, this bastard, doesn't know what's good or bad, doesn't know how to die, dares to charge the king, he's looking for death, it's only right for the king to kill him. I only hate that my cultivation is low, or else I wouldn't need your majesty to personally take action. I would have killed this bastard He Beifong for your majesty. Meng Fan rolled his eyes and said with a face full of indifference, since you don't want to die, kneel here for three days and three nights. After saying that, Meng Fan turned around, leaving them with a backdrop as he walked into the Moonlight Palace. Kneel for three days and three nights? Who are you looking down on? They can kneel here for three years as long as they're not killed. Sheng Fei Yu and Lin Xinblade glanced at each other, both seeing the excitement in each other's eyes. Survived. It's possible not to die. As for kneeling for three days and three nights, they didn't give it a second thought. A land god like He Beifong is dead. What's wrong with them kneeling? They can kneel until the end of time. Soon, Meng Tianji and Meng Xiaochan both arrived in front of the Moonlight Palace, looking at Shang Fei Yu and Lin Shenblade who were kneeling on the ground. Meng Tianji was confused. Meng Xiaochan was acquainted with Shang Fei Yu. She frowned and probably guessed something. It looked like it was the demon race's people who were looking for trouble again. Is it that fox grandfather of his again? Then she glanced at He Beifeng's corpse on the ground and her frown deepened when she saw it, because she had awakened the fox bloodline, she could tell at a glance that this Ibefon was also a fox, moreover, she felt a suppressive force from her bloodline that made her extremely alarmed, already dead, all turned into corpses, and still able to give himself such a great suppressive force, proving that this fellow must be an extremely strong existence, the guy who just erupted that terrifying blade intent should be him, but now that he's dead, it's a relief, this means that it must be the royal brother who wins, Although she felt that her royal brother was very strong and others definitely couldn't hurt him, she still couldn't help but worry. Now that she was sure, she was finally relieved. However, even though the other party was dead and Imperial brother had definitely won, it didn't mean that Imperial brother wasn't injured. Your brother isn't hurt, is he? Thinking of this, Meng Xiaochan was incredibly nervous and no longer cared about the corpse on the ground, turning to rush towards the Moonlight Palace. Meng Fan's Moonlight Palace, even Meng Tianji, the emperor, didn't dare to go in directly and had to report before he dared to go in. However, Meng Xiaochan didn't have these concerns and directly rushed into the Moonlight Palace. Imperial brother, are you alright? Meng Xiaochan asked worriedly as soon as she entered the Moonlight Palace. Meng Fan stood up from his chair and laughed, just a jumped up clown, what can I do? Meng Xiaochan ran in front of Meng Fan, looked him up and down carefully, and asked worriedly, no injuries, right? Meng Fan laughed, just kidding. It's just a loser. How could he possibly injure me? In the entire Great Moon Dynasty, or even the entire secular world, aside from some bigwigs inside the Holy Land, only Meng Fan dared to say that a land immortal at the Yuaning realm was a waste. Although Meng Xiaochan couldn't see through the cultivation level of the corpse just outside, she instinctively felt that the guy was powerful. So when he heard such arrogant words from Meng Fan, he couldn't help but roll his eyes as well. But her imperial brother's attitude also showed that he was not injured which made her sigh in relief. That what's his name Demon King by Xiaotian is really something too. Sending people to look for trouble three times. I really hope that she's not our maternal grandfather. If it's really our grandpa, it's annoying to think about it. Meng Xiaochan couldn't help but complain. Meng Fan laughed and said, whether he is our grandfather or not, as long as we feel that he is not, then he is not. Meng Xiaochan nodded. It was so true. Anyway, she didn't have a good feeling towards this by Xiaotian and could even be said to be somewhat disgusted. If he had cared a little more about his mother, she might not have died. What right did such a heartless man have to be her grandfather? And just because he suspected that the royal brother was his grandson, and because the royal brother was a genius and extremely good, he wanted to take the royal brother over. It's really unbearable to send people here three times. Imperial brother, that corpse outside just now, was it sent by by Xiaotian again? Meng Xiaochan asked with a frown. This by Xiaotian is really a ghost. Meng Fan said, yes, but you don't have to worry, he's already not going to send anyone over next, why? Meng Xiaochan was a bit surprised, she felt that this by Xiaotian's shadowy soul was still lingering, always sending people over to find fault. Meng Fan glanced outside at He Beifeng's corpse and said in a somewhat mocking tone, you won't be sending anyone over again, because he knows very well that sending anyone over again is just sending them to their deaths, unless he comes over himself. Meng Xiaochan asked with some hesitation. What if he really comes over in person? During this period of time, Meng Xiaochan had actually investigated by Xiaotian, the demon race, 
one of the eight demon kings of the ten thousand demon kingdom, with a great reputation and terrifying cultivation, it was known to have long exceeded the realm of the land immortals, a legendary existence. If this kind of existence really came to the great lunar dynasty, it was expected that imperial brother would not be an opponent, right? Chapter 90, I'm not a murderer, if he does come over? Hearing Meng Xiaochan's question, a smile appeared on Meng Fan's face, looking at Meng Xiaochan, who was filled with worry, Meng Fan smiled and said, if he really dares to come over here, then let him roll back from whence he came, Meng Xiaochan's brows furrowed, although what her royal brother said was very domineering, her intuition told her that her royal brother should not be a match for that demon king by Xiaotian, if by Xiaotian really came over in person, then there would definitely be no small amount of trouble, but it wasn't like she could help with this kind of thing, he was too weak to help much himself, thinking of this, Meng Xiaochan couldn't help but sigh, feeling so incompetent, she'd obviously tried her hardest, but it still didn't help, Meng Fan rubbed Meng Xiaochan's head and said with a smile, don't worry, even if it's by Xiaotian himself, there's nothing to be afraid of, in front of brother, he's nothing, when he comes, chuck him out, if he won't go, then don't go, hearing her imperial brother's words, Meng Xiaochan's face showed a hint of surprise as she queried, what do you mean by don't leave, leave him here as a guest, he definitely doesn't want to stay here and is hellbent on taking you away, Meng Fan couldn't help but laugh out loud, this sister of his was really silly and cute sometimes, when I say don't go away, I mean let him sleep here for a long time, just so he can go down and be with our mother, our mother has been down there so long, she probably misses her father too, it's natural for a son or daughter to think of their mother and fulfill her wishes, Meng Xiaochan rolled her eyes, looked at Meng Fan somewhat helplessly, and smiled bitterly, mother definitely doesn't have this wish, Meng Fan shook his head and said, that's not necessarily true, if mother knew that this Bai Xiaotian wanted to persecute us, she might really want to pull Bai Xiaotian down to catch up and talk about father-daughter love, Meng Xiaochan sighed and said, brother, you shouldn't be so extreme, although Bai Xiaotian wants to capture you, he only wants to cultivate you, he's not trying to harm you, while I don't think you can kill him, if that day does come, can you show some mercy and not just take his life outright? Hearing Meng Xiaochan's words, Meng Fan followed suit inside. He actually understood the meaning of Meng Xiaochan's words. This silly girl, or I kind of value affection, especially with both parents dead. Meng Tianji, these relatives from the palace, could no longer be considered real relatives. After all, she was different from them. But Bai Xiaotian, if he really was Bai Susu's father, would be her grandfather. Although this grandfather was a bit cold and heartless, he was still her grandfather by blood, and she still had expectations. In particular, although Bai Xiaotian wanted to capture Meng Fan, it was for the purpose of cultivating Meng Fan, not simply to harm him. This matter, she already knew from Sheng Fei Yu. So Meng Xiaochan, still had some fantasies about Bai Xiaotian. It is not strange to have such fantasies, the more people lack affection, the more they will. On the contrary, long for it and long for it. Most importantly, after she knew that Meng Fan had killed Meng Chuanxiu with his own hands and killed their father, she really couldn't bear to let Meng Fan's hands be stained with the blood of his loved ones again. It wasn't that she was favoring Meng Chuanxiu, much less by Xiao Tian. She simply felt that no matter what Meng Chuanxiu did, he was their father. Meng Fan, who killed his father with his own hands, must have felt bad in his heart as well. She didn't want Meng Fan to go through this sadness again. After killing my own father with my own hands, if I kill my own grandfather with my own hands, what kind of pain would that be? Meng Xiaochan was actually worried about Meng Fan. After all, compared to Bai Xiaotian whom she had never met, Meng Xiaochan was naturally more concerned about Meng Fan. Meng Fan was actually very clear about this mentality of Meng Xiaochan, so he shook his head and nodded helplessly. In fact, Meng Xiaochan had underestimated him. For Meng Fan, doing this kind of thing wasn't as painful as Meng Xiaochan had imagined. After all, Meng Fan was originally a traveler, and even though he had traveled from his mother's womb, he still didn't have any feelings for Meng Chuanxiu. Born to know, he was nothing like Meng Xiaochan, but Meng Xiaochan didn't understand this, she thought Meng Fan was just like her, that's why she had subbed in Meng Fan's perspective countless times, and she wondered how much pain she would have to feel if she had killed Meng Chuanxiu with her own hands, although it's true that Meng Chuanxiu deserved to die, he's still a father after all, even if she was able to be ruthless, she was bound to suffer immensely in the future, that was why she had just said such things to Meng Fan, not wanting Meng Fan to kill by Xiaotian, her grandfather, Again, Meng Fan said to Meng Xiaochan, Don't worry, brother knows what's in his heart. Actually, I don't have that much of a grudge against Bai Xiaotian, nor do I have that much of a grudge against the demon fox clan. 
That's why Shang Feiyu has been in the Great Moon Palace for so long, and I didn't kill him. Then after this Lin Qin blade came to the Great Moon Palace, I didn't kill him either. I just imprisoned them. The reason why he killed the Si Beifong was purely because he was looking for his own death. If he had been courteous to me and talked to me nicely, I would not have killed him. But he took the initiative to kill me, so I can't keep him. Hearing Meng Fan say this, Meng Xiaochan let out a sigh of relief in her heart. She knew very well that her royal brother would not deceive her in this regard and was telling her the truth. Since imperial brother had said that, then he was truly not that resentful towards the demon fox clan, and he likewise did not have any hatred towards Bai Xiaotian. As for that he Beifong just now, she didn't know why this guy died. She came too late and he Beifong was already dead when she arrived. But from the tone of his royal brother, it was clear that this guy was looking for death. Since it's a death wish, it's a death wish. After figuring out Meng Fan's attitude, Meng Xiaochan felt much better in her heart. In fact sometimes even she, herself, couldn't help but feel that her royal brother was a murderous man, and although he had always been good to himself, he was a bit cold and heartless to others. Now it seemed that he had actually misunderstood his royal brother. Imperial brother is not a murderous person at all. The royal brother killed people purely because they deserved to die. Even he himself had a hint of misunderstanding of his royal brother. So how deep must others' misunderstanding of his royal brother be? Meng Fan didn't even know that his casual words actually made this girl, Meng Xiaochan, think so much. He continued before his words were finished. If Bai Xiaotian really comes to the Great Moon Imperial Palace, I certainly have no killing intent towards him, but we'll have to see what he'll do when he arrives. I promise you, if he just wants to take me to the 10,000 Demon Kingdom to cultivate, then I can be polite to him and not make a move against him, but if he takes the initiative to strike out at me, or even wants to take revenge on Hebei Fong or something, then I definitely won't show any more mercy. How I treat Bai Xiaotian depends on how he treats me. Chapter 91 How did you mess with the 10,000 Demon Kingdom? Meng Fan's words were considered justified, not particularly heartless, and falls into the category of sensible responses. This kind of answer was already making Meng Xiaochan feel much more comfortable and relaxed in her heart. There was one thing to say, if Bai Xiaotian really saw death, then there was nothing to say, and she wouldn't stop Meng Fan from killing Bai Xiaotian. But, Meng Xiaochan smiled helplessly, clearly discussing whether Bai Xiaotian would come looking for trouble. How did she make it seem as if her royal brother was going to find trouble with Bai Xiaotian? Although Meng Fan had blown his bullskin out of proportion, Meng Xiaochan still didn't think that Meng Fan would be a match for Bai Xiaotian. It was because she had already inquired about this Bai Xiaotian and knew deep down how powerful this demon king was. As for her royal brother, although he was also very powerful, compared to an existence like Bai Xiaotian, who had transcended the realm of the land immortals, he certainly couldn't be compared. In fact, what Meng Xiaochan thought wasn't wrong, but how could she have thought that Meng Fan still had a handful of human emperor bloodline? Under normal circumstances, it was indeed impossible for Meng Fan to be Bai Xiaotian's opponent. However, once the human emperor bloodline was activated, then it really wasn't certain which was stronger or weaker. After pacifying Meng Xiaochan and sending her away, Meng Fan met Meng Tianji outside the door again. Meng Fan smiled helplessly at Meng Tianji and said, Don't worry, it's fine. The incoming enemy has already been awarded his head. Meng Tianji glanced at He Beifeng's corpse not far away, his face relieved. Although he also felt that this imperial brother of his was a bit invincible and shouldn't be in an accident. After all, that blade aura just now was too shocking and scared him. Now he was relieved to see that the dust had settled and the enemy was dead. Hard work, Meng Tianji said to Meng Fan. Meng Fan shook his head and said, He was originally looking for me. It has nothing to do with you. Meng Tianji frowned and asked, Who is this person and why did he come to trouble you? Hearing Meng Tianji's words, Meng Fan looked at Meng Tianji in surprise. On weekdays, when this guy saw himself, he was like a mouse seeing a cat, and hated to run away when he saw himself, hiding as far away as possible. Now that he actually took the initiative to ask this with himself, was this caring? Meng Fan said calmly, he's not human, ha? Huh? Meng Tianji was a bit confused, he thought Meng Fan was cursing, but quickly reacted that Meng Fan shouldn't be so bored as to kill someone and curse them. The key? and cursing without pain. This is the demon race of the 10,000 demon kingdom. Under the banner of the fox race's fire throat demon king, Bai Xiaotian, Meng Fan said casually, the land of 10,000 demons, fire throat demon king, Bai Xiaotian, hearing those three words, Meng Tianji was startled. This imperial brother of his, when did he provoke such a terrifying existence again? The 10,000 demon country, although it was also a country, was not at all on the same level of existence as the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty. 
Even if there were a hundred great moon imperial dynasties, they wouldn't dare to go and compete with the 10,000 demon kingdom. This was an essential gap, because the human race has many kingdoms and a number of holy places. As for the demon race of the 10,000 demon kingdom, there was only one power like the 10,000 demon kingdom, not to mention the great lunar dynasty, even if a holy land was singled out, it would not be enough for the 10,000 demon kingdom to look at, unless several holy lands were united to face the 10,000 demon kingdom head on. So a small country emperor like Meng Tianji immediately panicked when he heard the words 10,000 demon country. The great moon imperial dynasty did not have the qualifications to offend the 10,000 demon kingdom. Even with the addition of his own demonic and perverted royal brother, he was still not qualified. Meng Tianji knew that this younger brother of his was strong, but there was a limit to how strong he could be. And compared to the demon king of the 10,000 demon kingdom, it was clearly not enough. As a result, Meng Tianji, who had just breathed a sigh of relief, was suddenly incomparably nervous again. Imperial brother, how did you mess with the 10,000 demon kingdom, and messed with a demon king? Meng Tianji asked in a panic. For the 10,000 demon kingdom, he was incomparably afraid. Even when he was facing the joint efforts of the great wind and great dragon dynasties, he was only worried, not fearful, because the great wind and the great dragon were, in the end, existences on the same level as the great moon. With a demon like Meng Fan around, he really didn't need to fear the great dragon and the great wind. At most, he was worried. This worry was still because of Meng Fan's power that he didn't know enough about before. After that previous battle, where Meng Fan had forced back 400, 000 troops of Great Dragon and Great Wind all by himself, he had already deeply understood how powerful this imperial brother of his was. So when such a terrifying blade aura erupted from the imperial palace just now, he also believed that Meng Fan would be able to deal with it, and just couldn't help but want to come and take a look. This was his confidence in Meng Fan's strength, but at this moment, when he heard about the Demon King of the 10,000 Demon Kingdom, his confidence in Meng Fan was suddenly low. It was true that Meng Fan was very strong and could withstand a country on his own, and could be called invincible. However, this country, which was limited to the country of the human race in the secular world, was definitely not included in the 10,000 demon country. If Meng Fan were to take on tens of thousands of demonic nations, he would not have the slightest confidence in Meng Fan, even if it wasn't facing the entire 10,000 demon kingdom, but just a single demon king, he had no confidence in Meng Fan. After all, Meng Tianji was much more knowledgeable than Meng Xiaochan, and he knew very well how terrifying the strength of a demon king of the 10,000 demon kingdom was. This kind of existence could walk horizontally when pulled into the secular world, even in a holy land. Seeing Meng Tianji's worried and nervous appearance, Meng Fan couldn't help but laugh. I didn't mess with this white-throated demon king of the 10,000 demon kingdom. It was he who took the initiative to come looking for trouble from me. After Meng Tianji heard this, although he didn't dare to explicitly refute Meng Fan, he still couldn't help but curse Meng Fan out in his heart. You haven't messed with him, and someone else's demon king, who is far away in the 10,000 demon kingdom, would come running to mess with you? Moreover, even if you hadn't provoked them before, now that you've killed their men, this beam is completely formed. Meng Tianji didn't know about the relationship between Meng Fan and Meng Xiaochan's mother, by Su Su, and the fire throat demon king, by Xiao Tian. So he simply couldn't imagine that Meng Fan and Bai Xiaoqian's relationship was actually that of grandfather and grandson. Of course, the relationship doesn't matter, in name only. Alas, this demon race of the 10,000 demon kingdom, since you just had the ability to suppress him, just put him in the dungeon, why did you have to kill him, and make the relationship so stiff and difficult to get off the stage? Meng Tianji said somewhat helplessly. Meng Fan looked at Meng Tianji and said in a bland tone, You're teaching me things? Amount. Meng Tianji was instantly speechless, he was extremely embarrassed, and then left in a grey cloud. He had just been so nervous and overly worried that he dared to talk to Meng Fan like that. On weekdays, he was actually afraid of Meng Fan to death. As for the matter of the Demon King of the 10,000 Demon Kingdom, he was too lazy to think about it. The sky is falling, there is a tall man on top, it is not his turn to be on top, there is no need to worry about the sky. After Meng Tianji left, Meng Fan glanced at Sheng Feiyu and Lin Qianblade who were kneeling on the ground, shook his head, and returned to the main hall. These two guys, let them kneel for a few more days. Chapter 92 Deficiency of Mind Transfiguration of Mortality For Sheng Feiyu and Lin Qianblade, the two fox clan little demons, Meng Fan actually had no killing intent. What he said to Meng Xiaochan was not a lie. For the demon fox clan, Meng Fan didn't have that much malice, so naturally he wouldn't kill them afterward. 
He killed He Beifong purely because He Beifong was looking for death. As for Shang Fei Yu and Lin Qin Blade, these two fellows were still respectful to him. He wouldn't be able to behead these two people for no reason. Like Meng Xiaochan mentioned, if Bai Xiaotian came to the Great Moon Dynasty in person, Meng Fan was actually not afraid. There was a saying that Bai Xiaotian actually had no killing intent towards him, even if it was because of He Beifeng's death that he angered Bai Xiaotian and made Bai Xiaotian come to seek revenge on Meng Fan. Meng Fan was still happily unafraid. Not only was he not afraid, but Meng Fan had some hidden expectations in his heart. Nowadays, Meng Fan had already stepped into the Yuaning realm, becoming a true land god. An ordinary Yuaning realm was not the least bit threatening to Meng Fan. An opponent of this level simply couldn't arouse Meng Fan's interest. Instead, a demon king like Bai Xiaotian could stir up Meng Fan's potential fighting spirit. To be honest, Meng Fan was now curious as to how terrifying he, who had already stepped into the realm of the land immortals and had achieved Yuaning, would have to be if he activated the human emperor's bloodline again? He didn't know if he would be a match for Bai Xiaotian with the activation of the human emperor bloodline, but deep down, he was looking forward to it, cultivating to the Yuaniang realm in such a short period of time. Meng Fan was actually somewhat inflated. It couldn't be helped. The realm was ascending too quickly, and the state of mind was actually not easy to keep up with. What's more, Meng Fan did have inflated capital. However, when he thought about the state of mind, Meng Fan's brows still furrowed. One's own mind cultivation was indeed a bit unable to keep up with one's realm of strength, which was actually a hidden danger. Perhaps it's time for me to sharpen my mind. Meng Fan muttered alone in the Great Hall of the Moonlight Palace, when the state of mind could not keep up with the cultivation, it was like virtue not being worthy of the position, and there would be trouble in the end. For example, if one was clearly at the Yuaning realm, but one had the thought of wanting to compete with the transformation god realm, this was an obvious problem with one's state of mind, and it wasn't just as simple as being inflated. The word inflation, of course, is essentially a problem with the state of mind. Elevation of the mind is imminent, but how to improve the state of mind? Meng Fan's brows furrowed, unsure of what he should do. Perhaps, one should settle down. What kind of situation can be called an elevated state of mind? Do not be happy with what you see, do not be sad with what you feel. You can be calm in any situation, so that the mind is considered to be sufficiently improved. Of course, it's not realistic to say that you can be calm in every situation. Let's just say it's okay to be calm when it's time to be calm. This sounds simple enough. But for people in the midst of this kind of problem, it's a pain in the ass. Meng Fan's eyes narrowed as he began to think. A sleepless night. Then it wasn't until the next day that Meng Fan came up with a solution. What state of mind is most valuable? Back to the basics. And if you want to go back to the basics, you can't continue to be in such a deep palace, high up in the sky. He should blend in with the people, experience their plight, and think of himself as an ordinary person. If he experienced a period of days living as an ordinary citizen, he was sure that his state of mind could be improved. Thinking of this, Meng Fan's eyes lit up. He thought he had a great idea for this. Then, think of it and do it. After Meng Fan gave an explanation, he left the palace. Although after leaving the palace, he did not leave the imperial city. He was prepared to be an ordinary man, an ordinary citizen, in the middle of the imperial city. As for what was going on in the palace, Meng Fan wasn't worried, because in the palace today, no one dares to be a demon at all. In the palace, Meng Fan's only concern was Meng Xiaochan, but even if they lent those people in the palace ten guts, no one would dare to think ill of Meng Xiaochan. As for outsiders invading the palace, this was an issue that Meng Fan likewise did not need to worry about, because he didn't leave the imperial city. If a strong enemy descended on the Great Moon Imperial Palace, he would be able to sense it in the first instance. Meng Fan wore a cloth coat and blended into the imperial city, to sharpen his mind. He would have to be an ordinary man and live his life in an ordinary way. In this situation, it is natural not to reveal one's identity or use one's own force to solve the problem. It's like transforming into a mortal, turning yourself completely into a mortal. Meng Fan found a courtyard in the imperial city, rented a room, and stayed there. In this courtyard, there are four families. One of the families was orphaned and widowed. The mother lived with her daughter, and her husband had contracted a disease and died. My mother had a small tofu store outside and sold tofu for a living. The daughter is young, only five or six years old, but sometimes she already helps her mother grind tofu. The second family, a butcher, had no wife, no children and no daughters, and made his living by killing pigs. This guy is full of flesh, a murderous look. People in the yard are afraid of him, especially the little girls see him all hide, go around. The third family, a scholar, spends his days in the house reading and taking care of his elderly mother. 
The old mother is in poor health and is bedridden for treatment. It is said that there is no filial son before a long illness, but this scholar was extremely filial and took excellent care of his old mother. He even missed the imperial examinations to take care of his seriously ill mother, but continued to take care of his old mother without complaint and with great dedication. Meng Fan had heard that this old mother had once secretly taken poisonous pills in order not to drag her son down, wanting to die in one go, but was stopped by her son's timely discovery, mother's kindness and son's filial piety. The three families in Menfan are all struggling and working hard to make ends meet and don't feel unfortunate. This was the norm for the common people in the imperial city, although life could not be considered much better. One by one they were working hard for a better life. Just by staying in this courtyard for two or three days, Meng Fan was infected by these people. That's life. Meng Fan also found himself a camp. His strength was good. In the east of the city Lee Blacksmith's Blacksmith Store, as an apprentice, in the entire Great Moon Imperial Dynasty, I'm afraid that no one could imagine that their honorable dragon like 8th prince was actually working as an apprentice in a small blacksmith store. Apprentice blacksmith. Not exactly a great profession. Even the old blacksmiths with their craft were not respected. But it is indeed a profession that can support people and is far from humble. In this way, Meng Fan settled down to be an apprentice blacksmith. Working hard and learning forging techniques diligently. It had to be said that this kind of life had indeed calmed Meng Fan's mind a lot, regardless of what he thought in his heart. He was indeed high and mighty in the palace before, and this mentality and habit could not be changed. But after integrating into the people of the imperial city, Meng Fan's mindset did change. In terms of the state of mind, there was also a vaguely noticeable improvement. Chapter 93 We don't allow women to take the imperial exams in Taiyu. Time flowed like water, and in the blink of an eye, a month had passed. During this time, Meng Fan spent his days being an ordinary person. Working as an apprentice blacksmith when he was working and spending time with his neighbors when he was back, only when he was alone at night would Meng Fan cultivate. With so much less time to cultivate, Meng Fan's cultivation speed would naturally not be as fast as it was when he was in seclusion. But after sacrificing all this cultivation time, Meng Fan clearly felt that his state of mind was elevated. Excessive cultivation. Although the cultivation realm has improved, but the state of mind falls is a hidden danger. This feeling of great concealment and a gradually sharpened and elevated state of mind made Meng Fan feel extremely good. Even if the speed of cultivation slowed down a bit, it was still completely acceptable. What's more, even if Meng Fan slowed down his cultivation speed, it was still ten times a hundred times, or even a thousand times, that of others. This month's time had passed, and Meng Fan had completely fought with his surroundings. Deciding to blend in with life, Meng Fan didn't put up any airs. What's more, in his previous life, Meng Fan was originally an ordinary person, worrying about firewood, rice, oil, salt, garage and bride price, and was originally a city dweller. As for this life, even though he was born into a royal family, Meng Fan hadn't properly enjoyed any glory or wealth. As for the prestige that came with the status and position of royalty and princes, Meng Fan basically didn't enjoy anything either. All he enjoyed was what cultivation and strength brought to him. Now after adjusting his mindset, he felt extremely well integrated into the city. On this day, after completing his apprenticeship, Meng Fan bought two pounds of brine pork head meat from the brine meat stall, and went to the wine stall to get two tails of soju, ready to go home and enjoy it slowly. He was truly and completely integrated into the city, and completely considered himself an ordinary person. The only thing that isn't ordinary is that nighttime is all about practicing, but that's something that no one knows. All the people around them knew was that Meng Fan was an orphan who had come to the imperial city to join his relatives, but his relatives left the imperial city for who knows where, so he fended for himself, apprenticed at a blacksmith store, and landed in the imperial city. These people around them were actually very favorable towards Meng Fan. As for the reason, there's not much else, just one reason, handsome. This face of Meng Fan's was extremely handsome. When he came here, Meng Fan did not disguise himself because none of the people in the city had ever seen Meng Fan's real face. At most, they had seen Meng Fan on the city wall from afar, as Meng Fan had twice stood on top of the city wall and repelled a thousand armies. But at this distance, no one could see Meng Fan's face. Therefore, Meng Fan could mingle in the imperial city without fear of others recognizing him, not even to mention the people, even the ministers of the court, those who had seen Meng Fan's true face were in the minority. Before Meng Fan made his fortune, Everyone knew that Meng Fan was a waste of a prince, so there were no ministers close to him at all, and most had never seen him. As for after Meng Fan's rise to power, even if these ministers wanted to see Meng Fan, they wouldn't have the qualifications to do so. Meng Fan carried the pork and wine and returned to the courtyard.
before he even entered the house. He saw Irma in the yard pounding the tofu guy. Irma is the daughter of a tofu shitsu, who often helps her mother grind tofu, and although she is very young, she is extremely knowledgeable and well behaved. It can't be helped. The children of poor families are early adopters. Irma is only 6 years old and already knows more than many 16 year old young ladies. Brother Fan, you're back so early today. Irma warmly greeted Meng Fan. Meng Fan smiled and said, Today's work is small, so I'll be back after I'm done. Is your mother still not back? Irma said good naturedly, It's almost the cold food festival, so business is especially good, and mother hasn't finished her work yet. During the cold food festival, only cold food is usually eaten, and tofu can be made cold. So sales surge. Meng Fan lifted the pig's head meat in his hand and said with a smile, Brother has bought pig's head meat, do you want to come and try it? Irma looked at the marinated pork in Meng Fan's hand, swallowed her saliva, and said with a little embarrassment, You don't get what you don't deserve, and my mom always tells me that I can't take advantage of others, so I won't eat it. Yo ho, at a young age, you can still bite the bullet, and you know that you can't get paid for what you don't deserve. Is Irma going to be the female scholar in the future? Meng Fan smiled and teased, We don't allow women to take the imperial exams in the great moon or else I'll make sure to get to the top of the exam so that my mother can live a good life. Air Ya, who was only 6 years old, said forcefully, It has been a rule since ancient times in Oyuki that women are not allowed to take the science exams. Irma is incredibly envious of the Great Dragon Dynasty next door. I heard that the Great Dragon Dynasty issued a new order a few years ago, allowing women to participate in the imperial examinations, and even allowing women to join the dynasty as officials. This matter, at that time, could be said to have shaken the whole world. Not only was the Great Dragon Dynasty shaken, but other countries were also incomparably shocked. No one expected that the Great Dragon Dynasty, which had always been extremely conservative, would set this precedent. This was a few years ago, and Meng Fan was still a waste prince at the time, so he didn't pay any attention to it at all. But now Meng Fan had understood that the Great Dragon Dynasty had this new order, and it must have been tossed out by that Qin Xiangming, only Qin Xiangming, who was a woman would be so helpful in elevating a woman's status. Of course, only Qin Xiangming had this ability, not to mention that she was the reincarnation of a human immortal. The realm of Peak Jindan alone could shake the Great Dragon Dynasty. Even the emperor of the Great Dragon Dynasty had to listen to Qin Xiangming. This is not an exaggeration at all. Look at the emperor of the Great Moon, Meng Tianji. If Meng Fan had an order, would he dare to disobey it? I wouldn't dare. Qin Xiangming was the same. Because Qin Xiangming's position in the Great Dragon Dynasty was no different from Meng Fan's position in the Great Moon Dynasty. However, she couldn't beat Meng Fan, couldn't beat it a few months ago, but even more so now. Irma wants to take the imperial examinations so badly? Meng Fan asked with a smile, and there was doting in his eyes. During this time, he was familiar with this little girl. Irma was different from Meng Xiaochan, who was a younger sister, but Meng Fan looked at Irma with a feeling of looking at his daughter. Although Meng Fan was theoretically only 21 years old, with the addition of his age in his previous life, his mental age was over 40. It's not an exaggeration to think of a 6-year-old girl as a daughter. Of course I want to take the imperial examination. If I can take the imperial examination, I will definitely study hard and try to win the examination, so that my mother can live a good life, Irma said in a serious manner. However, just after she finished speaking, her little face collapsed as she helplessly said, Unfortunately, the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty does not allow taking the Imperial examinations. It would have been better if I had been born in the Great Dragon Imperial Dynasty. Meng Fan shook his head and said, There's no need to envy the Great Dragon Dynasty. It won't be long before the Imperial examinations of the Great Moon Dynasty will also be open to women. How is that possible? Irma said with a look of disbelief, Even though I'm a little kid, you can't lie to me with such a fake lie. Meng Fan said smilingly, Who said it's fake? This is internal news. Today I heard a big official say, surely not lie to you, really? Irma instantly cheered and shouted excitedly. Chapter 94, Something's Happened to Mrs. Lin. Although Irma said that she was not good at fooling even if she was a child, but in the end, she was a child, so she was still good at fooling. If it was an adult, it wouldn't believe Meng Fan's bull asterisk 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 at all, but a six-year-old is still in a state of easy trust. What's more, it wasn't Meng Fan who said this. He heard it from a big official. Irma, being the little brain that she was, felt that the possibility of such a connection was high. Of course it's true. How about it? Do you want to come and have some pig's head meat to celebrate? Meng Fan said to Arya with a smile. But, mother said you can't take advantage of others. 
Irma said in an incredibly tangled voice. Her eyes were glistening vaguely, and she couldn't help but purse her lips, her tongue licking her lips more than once in a gluttonous fashion. Pig's head pork, it was delicious, and she only got to eat it once or twice on New Year's Day. Meng Fan looked at this cute little girl. The more he looked at her, the more he liked her. If he had a daughter, he would definitely be even cuter than Irma. Unfortunately, one doesn't even have a girlfriend. What's the point of being strong? What's the use of the Yuaning realm? So what if it's a land god? It's still a single dog. Meng Fan said to Arya, Who said you took advantage of me? You go back and get a piece of tofu. Pick the best piece, and then get small onions to mix it. Bring it over and we'll eat it together. I'll eat your mixed tofu. You eat my pork. We're sharing with each other. No one is taking advantage of anyone. Hearing Meng Fan's words, little Irma's eyes immediately lit up and she said loudly, Okay, wait for me. I'll go mix the tofu. This way, even if my mother asks about it, I'll have an excuse. But it's not that I want to eat Brother Van's pork. It's Brother Van who wants to eat their family's tofu. Irma and their family is selling tofu. So this girl from childhood eat the most dishes is tofu. Cannot sell the tofu are their own solution. They were even able to come up with a dozen ways to make tofu. Small onions with tofu. This is the easiest. Irma can make it herself. Although Irma was only six years old, she was much more powerful than those ten-fingered young ladies. Although small onions mixed with tofu was extremely simple, it was extremely proud that a six-year-old girl could do it. In Meng Fan's house, Arya walked in with a large bowl. Small onions with tofu. Brother Fan, don't look at me as small. I made this with my own hands, and it tastes so good. My mother often praises me. Irma said with a haughty face. Meng Fan smiled and took Irma's bowl, placing it on the table. If it's so delicious, brother will have to try it. After saying that, he pushed the plate with the pork head meat in front of Irma, and then brought the small onions with tofu in front of himself. Then I'll be polite. Irma hemmed and hawed and began to eat the pork. It smells so good. The little girl ate with her mouth full. Meng Fan tasted the small onion mixed with tofu. The flavor was really good. This girl did not boast. And, of course, the dish is really simple and not difficult. With any other approach, this little girl probably wouldn't be able to get it right. But this girl, despite her young age, is quite good at what she does. Meng Fan let her mix a piece of tofu. This girl mixed at least three pieces of tofu, out of the extremely generous. Apparently, she also knew that tofu was cheap and couldn't hold a candle to the pork, so she tossed in two extra cubes of tofu. Brother Fan, can I have a sip of that wine of yours? I haven't had a drink yet since I grew up. Irma suddenly pointed at the soju in Meng Fan's hand and said. Meng Fan was startled. This girl is really something. Not only does she slander meat, but she also slanders wine? Meng Fan wouldn't dare to give her a drink. If her mom knew she gave her a drink, wouldn't she cover herself with tofu in the middle of the night? A child's family. What are you drinking? Unlike words, Meng Fan said with a stern face. Seeing Meng Fan's stern face, Irma didn't dare to mention drinking anymore. But the pig's head meat continued to be eaten without any embarrassment. She was a small child and knew that Meng Fan wasn't really angry. If Meng Fan really got angry, of course she would be too embarrassed to continue eating the meat and would have to dust herself off. Just as the two of them continued to eat the meat, Xiao Kai from the other side of the house hurriedly rushed to set up and shouted at Meng Fan, Brother Fan, something has happened to Mrs. Lin, let's quickly go over and help. Nyonya Lin, Irma's mother, what happened to my mother? Irma asked with a worried face, not caring about the meat. Shokai tried to make himself calm and said to Arya, Nothing is, there's a disturbance at the tofu store. Stay at home and don't add to it. Meng Fan frowned and glanced at Shokai, putting down his wine glass and immediately standing up. Irma, you stay at home and carry on honestly. Brother and brother Wang will go help your mother. He barked at Irma and then walked out of the house with Shotsai. Before he left, he turned back and admonished, Irma listen, don't run around at home. If you run around we'll have to be distracted from taking care of you, and there'll be one less person to help your mother. Do you understand? He was worried that this girl would run over there as well, which would be more trouble instead. Irma was a bit nervous, her eyes were already teary, but she obediently nodded her head and said, Don't worry, two brothers, Irma won't run around and add to the chaos, you must help my mother. Don't worry, it'll be fine. Meng Fan touched Irma's head, then walked out with Wang Xiuzai. At the entrance of the courtyard, the other occupant of the courtyard, Butcher Zhang, was already waiting. Meng Fan's brows furrowed. Actually even this fellow was alarmed. Normally this pig killer is not one to meddle in other people's business. What exactly happened? Meng Fan opened his mouth and asked. Xiao Kai Wang said with a helpless face, Zhou Feng, 
The youngest prince of the Zhou Gong family usually plays in the inner city and can't look at the slums of the outer city. Today, I don't know what happened, but he ran to the outer city to play, and then saw the tofu seller, Mrs. Lin. He hesitated, and his next words did not come out as degrading. Butcher Zhang wasn't as preachy as Xiao Kai Wang, seeing that Xiao Kai Wang only spoke half of his words, he rolled his eyes and continued, that bastard thing Zhou Feng, after seeing Nyonya Lin, coveted Nyonya Lin's beauty, and actually wanted to forcefully snatch the people's daughter on the street and take her back to his house, Lady Lin swore to die, and someone from around the area came back to report that we should go and help, hearing this, Meng Fan understood and figured out the beginning and end, to put it bluntly, it's all about color, this Zhou Feng, indeed, was a bit bold, daring to forcefully rob a woman on the street, but that's not uncommon, it happens anywhere where such powerful people run amok, where there is class, this happens, there was no way for Meng Fan to put an end to this kind of thing, however, he really doesn't care if he doesn't see it, but now that he had come across it, he had to manage, what's more, the one who suffered was his neighbor, who took much care of him on a regular basis, chapter 95, you too, why aren't you afraid, this Zhou Feng, but he's the young lord of the Duke of Zhou's residence. Aren't you guys afraid of offending him if you rush over like this? On the way to rush to Lin Yangzi's tofu store, Meng Fan asked somewhat curiously to butcher Zhang and Wang Xiaotsai. Ordinary people, when they heard the four words Zhou Gua Gongfu, they were afraid that they would immediately fall to their knees in fear and beg for forgiveness. Who dares to resist? Butcher Zhang gave Meng Fan a cold look and said in a chilling voice, If you're afraid, it's not too late for you to go back now. We didn't force you to help Lady Lin. Wang Xiaotsai also said, Brother Meng, you don't have to follow me if you have scruples in your heart, after all, it's only human. Meng Fan laughed, thinking to himself, you two aren't afraid, what am I afraid of? However, he was curious as to how these two guys, being common folk, could not be afraid, this Zhang butcher even if, not to mention, at least look ruthless, with the style of a good man of the green forest, holding a pig knife stormed up to kill, Meng Fan also feel understandable nor can it be said to be understandable, but rather conceivable. But this Wang Xiaokai, where did he get the guts? A small student with no hands. They say that a hundred useless is a scholar, which is not entirely without reason. Although the great lunar imperial dynasty had greatly promoted the imperial examinations and there were many civil officials, Meng Fan still vaguely looked down on the readers. After all, this wasn't earth. This was a world of immortal cultivation, with countless powerful people and dangers everywhere. It's not like the readers can go into battle and kill the enemy, and they can't protect others when they are in danger. Only a martial artist, a cultivator, is fundamental to settling down in this world. Of course, Meng Fan wasn't targeting Wang Xiaokai when he thought this. He didn't mean to look down on Wang Xiaokai. He and Wang Xiaokai also got along for so long, still very clear about Wang Xiaokai's person. This scholar, whether it is character character, are superior, worthy of admiration. Meng Fan was just curious as to how this scholar had the guts to get involved in something like this. After all, as a scholar, he should know more about the horrors of the Zhou Gua Gongfu. Meng Fan smiled and said, The two of you have actually misunderstood me. I'm not afraid, nor do I have any concerns. With regard to this matter of Lin Yangzi's, naturally, I will help out as a matter of course. I'm just curious, why aren't you too scared? Butcher Zhang sneered, Since you're not even afraid, why should we be? Meng Fan could only casually lie and said, In fact, there is one thing that Mr. Meng has never told you all, and that is that Mr. Meng has been learning martial arts since he was a child, and his force is quite good. Even if I injure the young lord of Zhou's house, the big deal is that I'll leave the imperial city, and those punk officials and soldiers definitely won't be able to catch me. Put it this way, it just works. It's normal for a warrior to have such rampant thoughts when he violates the prohibition with his martial arts. At this time, Neither Butcher Zhang nor Xiao Kai Wang doubted Meng Fan's words because Meng Fan had no need to tell such lies to deceive them. So although Meng Fan's words were surprising, this wasn't hard to accept. Brother Meng is actually good at martial arts? This is really out of our expectation. However, since Brother Meng is good at martial arts, he could have made a better job. Why did he go to the blacksmith store as an apprentice? Wang Xiaotsai asked with a bit of surprise. Butcher Zhang glared at Xiao Kai Wang and said in a muffled voice, Why do you need to ask? He must have committed a crime and didn't dare to show his martial arts for fear of getting into trouble. This butcher Zhang, although he looked full of crossface and extremely scary, he was in fact really a very warm-hearted being with an extremely gentle heart. The more rugged such people are on the outside, the softer and more sensitive they may be on the inside. So what Wang Xiaotsai couldn't think of, he thought of at once. 
he felt that Meng Fan must have committed something, which was why he didn't dare to reveal his martial arts skills for fear of being found in trouble. But with brother Meng, a martial artist, Nyang Lin should be saved. At least she won't let that bastard Zhou Feng have his way. Butcher Zhang said with some excitement. Although he was a butcher and looked extremely burly, he did not in fact know martial arts, and was only able to rely on this appearance to scare people. But the young lord of the Zhou State Duke's house was not so easily intimidated. So even if the two of them, he and Wang Xiaotsai, rushed over there, they wouldn't necessarily be of any substantial help. Now that they heard that Meng Fan knew martial arts, Butcher Zhang and Xiu Kai Wan were naturally overjoyed. Meng Fan continued to ask at the two while rushing alone. I'm not afraid of Zhou Feng because I know martial arts and can defend myself. The big thing is to leave the imperial city. But you two don't know martial arts. Why aren't you afraid of Zhou Feng? That's what he wanted to ask in the first place. Only for the two guys to misinterpret it and think he was scared. Actually, we're afraid. But does being afraid mean we don't care about Lin Yangzi? Butcher Zhang said in a complicated tone. Scared. Sure. But even if they were scared, they still had to stand up for the Lin Yangzi. Having lived inside a courtyard for so long, Zhang Tufu and Wang Xiaokai naturally had extremely deep feelings for Lin Yangzi and the girls. Wang Xiaokai said, When a man is born in heaven and earth, there are things he can do and things he can't do. Mrs. Lin has treated me extremely well, and if I leave her alone because I'm afraid when I'm in trouble, then I'll live in guilt and uneasiness for the rest of my life. Meng Fan looked at Butcher Zhang and Xiaokai Wang. The three of them continued their journey. Suddenly, Meng Fan inclined his head toward Butcher Zhang and said, Butcher Zhang, you like Lady Lin, yes or no? Butcher Zhang's old face turned red and he hurriedly said, I didn't, you're talking nonsense, it's impossible, deny the trifecta, typical of a weak mind. It is indeed not easy for Zhang Butcher to get a daughter-in-law in his shape, and it is not unusual for him to fall in love with the widowed Lin Yangzi. Then, Meng Fan turned his head to Wang Xiu Kai again and smiled, Wang Xiu Kai, you also like Lin Yangzi. Yes or no? Wang Xiaotai was shocked and immediately waved his hand and shook his head. Brother Meng don't talk nonsense. You're defiling people's innocence and degrading them. Meng Fan smiled and stopped pursuing the matter. It's pretty funny that both of these guys actually like Lin Yangzi, but it was normal to think about it. We all spent time together and then didn't have much contact with other people. So it wasn't unusual for both Wang Xiaokai and Zhang Tufu to fall for Lin Yangzi. But with Wang Xiaokai's status, it's impossible to have a fruitful relationship with Lin Yangzi. Zhang Tufu has hope, because after all, Wang Xiaokai was a Xiaokai, and as he himself said, it would be a degrading thing to be looked down upon if he stayed with Lin Yangzi. The status of Xiaokai was a good thing for him, an honor, but also a constraint in comparison. As for Butcher Zhang, he had no worries. If he was able to be with Lin Yangzi, not only would others not find him degrading, they would even think that he had earned it. This world, that's how it is. There is a clear hierarchy and a wide disparity in status. Wang Xiaotai is now down and out, mainly to take care of his seriously ill mother. If his mother got well, the sky would be the limit, and he would soon be able to fully surpass Butcher Zhang in terms of status and level of life. It's a status gap. The saying that a hundred is a bookworm actually has more of an envious and jealous ring to it. Chapter 96, One for One, Too Bad. Meng Fan laughed out loud and said, Liking someone else isn't something to be ashamed of. You two big men, liking someone else and hiding it, that's what's embarrassing. He looked at the embarrassed two and continued to flirt. Do you want me to tell Lady Lin for you and see which one of you two Lady Lin has a crush on and who she will choose? Wang Xiaotai and Zhang Tuafu were instantly startled and nervously turned to Meng Fan. Brother Meng, you mustn't talk nonsense. Meng Fan rolled his eyes at the two men. Two goons. Soon, they arrived at the tofu store of Lin Yangzi. Although Lin Yangzi had Arya as her daughter, women in the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty generally married earlier. In fact, she was only 23 years old today. Lin Yangzi was only 17 when she gave birth to Irma. This would be outrageous on earth. But in this world, it's normal. And even earlier, on earth, there are tons of women who aren't married at 30, let alone 23. So it's not unusual for Nyonya Lin to be very young and inviting. When Meng Fan and the three of them rushed to the tofu store, they saw at a glance that Zhou Feng, the young lord of the Zhou State Duke's house, this guy was dressed extremely tie and out of place with his surroundings and surrounded by several doggy servants, it was very obvious, this guy had a high and mighty face, looking down on the attitude of the people around him, if not for the people around him stopping at the door of the tofu store, he would have already rushed in and forcefully robbed the people's women, after all, he didn't bring many attendants with him today, and with so many people blocking the way in front of the tofu store, he really didn't dare to commit public anger, 
The dude, in fact, is even more of a bully, when they bullied men and women. It was because they were strong enough around them and brought enough people with them to have the certainty of bullying men and women. Joe Fong didn't bring enough people with him today, so he didn't dare to show him too much. However, he has sent for troops to be mobilized. He had a cousin who was a minor commander in the city guards. When his cousin comes over with his troops, he will make sure that these pariahs who dare to stand in their way will be left in the lurch. My lord says it again, all of you get out of my way. Otherwise when my lord's men come in a while, I'll let you know what it means to have a broken family. Joe Fong coldly looked at the dozen or so people who stopped in front of the tofu store, his tone icy cold. He had only brought four guards with him today, and there were a dozen or so people stopping in front of the store, with quite a few more looking around. Although it was said that with four guards, they should be able to hang a dozen or so people, they didn't take any chances just to be on the safe side. After all, these people were pariahs, but they themselves were noble. So if there was an accident and they hurt themselves, it would not be worth it. Brother Meng, what are you going to do? Should I lend you this pig-killing knife first? Butcher Zhang asked Meng Fan a bit nervously. The three of them had already arrived outside the tofu store. And originally, Butcher Zhang was going to scare Zhou Feng with a pig-killing knife. Now that someone like Meng Fan existed who actually knew martial arts, there was no need for him to puff up his face. Meng Fan glanced at the pig-killing knife in Butcher Zhang's hand, and a bitter smile appeared on his face. There's a word for it. He's too dirty. No need. There's no need to use a knife to deal with such a dude waste. Meng Fan said with a smile. That guy also has a guard. I can see that he has some kung fu. Can you really handle it? Butcher Zhang became even more nervous. Although this guy was long and rough, with a face full of horizontal meat, and looked extremely fierce, this was only on the outside. Now it seems that this butcher isn't really bold and isn't as brave as he seems. No wonder they say you can't judge a book by its cover. From the time he didn't even dare to admit that he liked Lin Yangzi, Meng Fan already knew that this guy was a wimp. However, with myself, I don't need anyone else to be brave. It's good to be a goon, safe, and won't get you killed. Meng Fan already thought of these few people as friends, and didn't want them to actually be foolish enough to go to their deaths. Of course, with him around, these people couldn't even send them to their deaths if they wanted to. But what if you go off on your own? I'm sure I'll be gone myself and won't be able to stay long. He chose to blend in with the people, to hide in the city, in order to elevate his state of mind. During this time, his state of mind had improved significantly. When he felt that his state of mind was stable enough, he would leave this place and continue to pursue his immortal cultivation path. He was playing mortal now, but he wasn't mortal after all. You too, don't follow me. Just go to the door and join those who are blocking the way. Meng Fan said to Wang Shoutsai and Zhang Tuafu, What do you mean by that? You look down on us? Butcher Zhang was instantly anxious. Brother Meng, we came here together. Of course we have to carry the load together when something goes wrong. How can we let you go on alone while we hide behind? Wang Xiaotai also said with a dissatisfied face. Of course they understood that Meng Fan had asked them to block the door in order to detach them for their sake. But at this time, an impulse to be righteous welled up in their hearts. How could they let their friends suffer the consequences alone? Meng Fan said directly and mercilessly. You two follow me. I still have to be distracted to take care of you, I was sure I could handle them, what if you drag me down and screw it up, obviously, this statement is still an excuse, but the reason for this excuse was too good, and they really didn't dare to drag Meng Fan's feet, alas, brother Meng, be more careful, Wang Xiaotai could only say helplessly, butcher Zhang's face was full of complexity and he held his face red, but in the end, he still didn't refute Meng Fan, however, he forcibly shoved the pig killing knife to Meng Fan, not caring if Meng Fan wanted it or not. Meng Fan actually disliked it in his heart, but it was a friend's good intentions, and he couldn't show dislike on his face, so he could only result in a pig-killing knife. When Meng Fan carried a pig-killing knife and walked in front of the tofu store, many people were startled. In the Great Moon Imperial City, ordinary people are actually forbidden to use swords. Killing knives like these, you leave them on the butcher store. You leave them at home. No one cares. But if you're wandering the streets with a knife in your hand, the magistrate will take you straight in. Obviously, coming over with a knife at this time was clearly aimed at Joe Fong. There was no other possibility. The surrounding people were all surprised and looked at Meng Fan, not expecting that there would actually be someone who would be such a tiger and come directly to Joe Fong with a knife. Although everyone was upset with Joe Fong, the boldest ones were the ones who blocked the doorway of the tofu store to stop Joe Fong from robbing people. No one really dares to come here with a knife like this. After all, Joe Fang's identity was there. Joe Fong obviously knew that someone appearing at this time with a sword was obviously targeting him, 
so he was startled and hurriedly took a few steps back, hiding behind a few guards. When they, the noble dukes, were bullying men and women, what they feared the most was to encounter the horizontal ones who didn't want to die. After all, the lives of these pariahs were worthless, while his life could be precious, and it would be a loss, a bloody loss, if he were to be exchanged one for one. Chapter 97, Stop, the knife falls, the head falls to the ground, Zhou Feng, as the young lord of the Zhou State Duke's house, had an unusual status, but he didn't lead the army, so his guards were also not qualified to carry swords. At this time when he saw someone coming with a knife, he naturally panicked. He was accustomed to rampaging in the imperial city, and no one had ever dared to make a move against him, so he had always been very bold. Those who were bullied by him, fearing the prestige of the state duke's house, and no one dared to come to him to exchange one for the other. All of them tolerated their anger. But today, it seems different. Meeting a guy with a lot of guts, you guys, can you handle this guy? Zhou Feng asked a little nervously to the few guards. Little lord don't worry, we several are not a dry meal. A martial art is a hard study for many years practiced, all have real skills. Although this guy across the street has a sword in his hand, he's nothing more than an ordinary citizen, and even if he had a sword, he wouldn't be a match for us. Yes, little lord put a million hearts, with us here, this guy can't touch a hair on your head. Hearing the words of these guards, Zhou Feng nodded, his heart relieved, faith is contagious. Meng Fan was carrying his sword and without realizing it, he had already walked in front of Zhou Feng's several people. He looked at Zhou Feng, who was hiding at the back, and said coldly, Little eunuch, right? I'm giving you a chance now. Hurry up and get lost. Otherwise, you'll die here today. Unbridled, bold, arrogant. Before Zhou Feng could say anything, a few of his guards couldn't help but angrily rebuke Meng Fan, threatening the young lord in front of them. This was not putting them in their eyes at all. Indeed it was true. How could Meng Fan possibly put a few of them in his eyes? If this Zhou Feng didn't know how to behave, Meng Fan would kill him with a lift of his hand, and let alone Zhou Feng. Even if the Duke of Zhou himself came over, Meng Fan would still kill him as he said. In the entire Great Moon, there was no one Meng Fan dared not kill, even the Emperor. Ah, uh, he already killed an Emperor a long time ago. As for this current Emperor, if he borrowed a hundred guts, he wouldn't dare offend Meng Fan because he himself knew very well that once he offended Meng Fan, Meng Fan wouldn't have the slightest qualms about killing him. Zhou Feng looked at Meng Fan coldly and said in a chilling voice, Do you know who Little Master is? Little Master is the Little Master of the Duke of Zhou's mansion. Kill Little Master? Your entire family's heads aren't enough for you to chop off. So, this is your refusal? The corner of Meng Fan's mouth pulled up in an arc. I didn't realize that I would have to kill someone to experience the life of a commoner in the Imperial City. This is not something an ordinary citizen should do, but when a piker is angry, blood is spilled, and this is the state of mind to be in, then you go to hell. Meng Fan pointed his killing knife at Zhou Feng. He had already given Zhou Feng a chance, as well as himself, as he didn't actually want to kill anyone here. But since Zhou Feng didn't cherish this opportunity anymore, he was dead. Meng Fan never gave others a second chance. Even if Zhou Feng changed his mind now and wanted to turn around and leave, it was already too late. Because of him, he had already been sentenced to death by Meng Fan. That Zhou Feng, who was hiding behind the guards, was still chattering and opening his mouth. Even if Little Master I leave now, since Little Master has taken a liking to this tofu seller's wife, she can't escape. She got away with one thing today, and she won't get away with it tomorrow, and she'll get away with it even more the day after that. The woman I see, even if she's a princess, I'll still be able to get her. What's this, if not a death wish? Meng Fan sighed and his body flashed. In the next second, he appeared in front of Zhou Feng. The guards were startled and thought to themselves, what a speed. At this speed, have we met a master today? Meng Fan didn't use his true essence, much less his cultivation. Even just by virtue of the strength of his body, he exceeded martial artists by far too much. This was the physical body of a land god. Even though he didn't follow the extreme Tao flow or the fleshly body flow, the fleshly body of a land god was still 10,000 or 10 million times stronger than that of an ordinary martial artist. It was only the blink of an eye for the crowd. But the pig-killing knife in Meng Fan's hand was already on Zhou Feng's neck. You just gave you a chance and you didn't want it. Now you can't leave even if you want to. Meng Fan said calmly, his tone extremely cold and unfeeling. Zhou Feng's face changed drastically and his pants became wet with fear. He glared at the several guards. It was these guys who swore that there was no danger and he himself just now did not turn away, or stood here with a fixed mind. As a result, these few guards were as useless as paper mache, 
and directly let the other party put the knife on their necks. However, this pig killer looked like he had clear eyebrows and was extremely handsome, but he didn't expect his strength to be so strong. He hadn't even seen his opponent's movements just now, and the knife was on his neck. How dare you, release the young lord. The few guards were in a state of confusion when they saw Meng Fan's knife on the young lord's neck. Under the cast, they didn't dare to make a move, and could only colorfully scold Meng Fan. Strong man, go and don't be impulsive. Killing me won't do you any good. I'll roll now and promise not to harass this lady again. Zhou Feng said with a face of fear. It's late, Meng Fan said expressionlessly. Just as Zhou Feng's heart was in despair and he had already peed his pants, he saw that his cousin had finally arrived with the city guards. He breathed a sigh of relief. Strong man, the city guards are here. How about we each take a step back? If you kill me, the city guards will definitely not let you go, and it will involve your family. If you let me go, I promise the city guards won't pursue this. Also, I'll give you money, I'll give you as much as you want, if you'll just let me go, everything. At the entrance of the tofu store, Wang Xiao Kai and Zhang Tufu also looked nervous and worried. When he saw the city guards coming, Wang Xiao Kai immediately shouted at Meng Fan, Brother Meng, the city guards are here, stop it. Although Butcher Zhang was uneducated, he also knew the horror of the city guards and hurriedly advised Meng Fan as well, Brother Meng, hurry up and stop, don't be impulsive. This Zhou Feng cannot be killed. Butcher Zhang was just looking at the tiger. But if you really asked him to put his knife on Zhou Feng's neck, even if Zhou Feng took the initiative to stick his neck out, he wouldn't dare. But as he looked at Meng Fan's stance, it seemed like he really had the urge to kill. So he was really a bit flustered. The city guards came running wildly, a line of two dozen men, all wearing swords, with solemn, murderous faces. They naturally saw Meng Fan put the knife on Zhou Feng's neck. Meng Fan they didn't recognize. But Zhou Feng, the young lord of the state duke's mansion, they were familiar with him. If this little lord really had his head chopped off in front of their eyes, then they would have to be finished as well. Stop. Leave someone under the sword. Zhou Feng's cousin, Zhou Jie, the junior commander of the city guards, shouted at Meng Fan. As he shouted this, Meng Fan's hand rose and fell. Heads on the ground. Chapter 98. Meng Fan slash caused everyone's eyeballs to explode in shock. At once. A wave of panic spread through the hearts of the crowd. The young lord of the Zhou State Duke's house was killed in the street, his head cut off with a knife. This, it's a big mess. All of them, the people on the sidelines, are likely to be affected. Unable to help it, these people actually began to feel some resentment towards Meng Fan, feeling that Meng Fan shouldn't be so impulsive. Of course, it was just a thought in his heart. No one dared to jump out and accuse Meng Fan at this time. After all, Meng Fan had a knife in his hand and with the city guards close by, there was no need for them to do anything, and this knife-wielding fellow would be severely punished by the city guards. In fact, it is not a question of whether to punish severely or not, this is destined to lose his head, and it is likely that he will also be retaliated against by the duke of the statehouse, which will be linked to the nine clans. No, it's not a possibility of retaliation, it's 100% retaliation, the crowd couldn't help but sigh, this guy was too impulsive, obviously. He wanted to stand up for Lin Yangzi, but in the end, he ended up harming Lin Yangzi, the young lord of the Zhou State Duke's house. To put it bluntly, died because of this Lin Yangzi. Although it was said that the fault could not be blamed on Lady Lin, would the Zhou Guofu care about that? All they know is that the young lord died because of a woman. And in that case, how can Nyonya Lin still have a good life? Obviously a victim and ends up taking the blame. The hearts of the surrounding crowd sighed. This was the sadness and helplessness of being an ordinary citizen. Butcher Zhang looked at the pig killing knife in Meng Fan's hand, and he was incomparably regretful at the moment. He gave Meng Fan the pig killing knife, just wanting to let Meng Fan have a little more ability to defend himself, but he didn't expect that this guy would be so ruthless, directly in front of the city guards, chopping off Zhou Feng's head. It's too impulsive. Of course, he wasn't blaming Meng Fan for this. After all, Meng Fan was acting out of good intentions, but this is also a typical good intentions to do bad things. Not only Meng Fan himself cannot escape, will certainly die, Lin Yangzi will also follow the disaster. Butcher Zhang and Xiao Kai Wang's intention was for Meng Fan to scare Zhou Feng away, and they didn't even think about killing Zhou Feng. As a result, Meng Fan's thoughts were completely different from theirs. Truly bold, bold fanatic, that small commander of the Forbidden Guards, Zhou Jie, was enraged as he rushed in front of Meng Fan and drew his sword to slash at him. If it had been someone else whose head had been cut off, he might have gone through the motions of apprehending Meng Fan for trial, but the person who died was his cousin. 
the young lord of the Duke of Zhou's residence, how could he calmly apprehend the other man? He had to be cut down. Otherwise there was no way he could go home and explain himself. If I were you, I wouldn't move my sword directly. Meng Fan coldly looked at Zhou Jia. However, Zhou Jia was unmoved and ruthlessly slashed at Meng Fan. This blade, aimed straight for Meng Fan's head, wanting to cut off Meng Fan's head in one slash, just like his cousin Zhou Feng. Unfortunately, he was facing Meng Fan. The blade flashed, a head did fall, but the head was naturally not Meng Fan's. It was the head of this small commander of the Forbidden Guards, Zhou Feng. The people around had been stunned. This young man with a killing knife. Are you crazy? Kill crazy. However, the crowd was able to understand that killing one was a capital offense anyway, so it would be better to kill a few more pads. Thinking this way, the hearts of the crowd were immediately filled with fear. Such a murderous devil had already killed his eyes. They no longer dared to watch the show for fear of being affected. So many people dispersed as birds and beasts, hurrying back to their homes. The more people who ran, the more people who followed the crowd, and everyone ran almost as quickly. Even the crowds in the surrounding stores didn't dare to open their doors for business, and the doors were tightly closed. Only Butcher Zhang and Xiao Kai Wang, along with a few familiar faces, stood in front of Nyonya Lin's tofu store and did not flee. As they looked at Meng Fan, their faces were filled with all sorts of complicated emotions, but the only emotion that wasn't there was fear, because they knew Meng Fan and knew that Meng Fan wouldn't hurt them. However, they really didn't expect that this tiny blacksmith store apprentice actually had such a ruthless and hideous side. It really is a case of people not being able to look at each other. The few guards brought by Zhou Feng, as well as the city guards brought by Zhou Jie, were all looking at Meng Fan with frightened faces. In the imperial city, they hadn't encountered such a ruthless character in many years. So when Meng Fan beheaded Zhou Feng and Zhou Jie, their first reaction was actually not revenge, but some fear. Bunch of losers. Meng Fan looked at these people coldly, his tone extremely disdainful in anger. Why don't you get lost? They'd like to roll. But they don't dare. Zhou Feng and Zhou Jie were both hacked to death. And if they left like this, it would probably be hard for them to escape death when they went back. This murderer across the street must be caught and the credit must be given. These people looked at each other. And they all saw the perseverance and determination in each other's eyes. Kill. The crowd roared and rushed toward Meng Fan. There were 20 to 30 of them in total. And they didn't believe that they couldn't take Meng Fan alone. Although Meng Fan appeared to be very strong and chopped Zhou Jie with a single slash. But two fists can't beat four hands. That's the simplest truth. A hint of indifference and killing intent appeared in Meng Fan's eyes. It's been a while since he's killed anyone, but that doesn't mean he's gotten soft. There is no living for those who dare to turn on themselves. A person who even dared to kill his own father. Even if he played the role of an ordinary person for a longer time, he wouldn't really turn out to be merciful. Meng Fan's face was expressionless, full of coldness, and the killing intent that had been hidden for a long time was fully erupting at this moment. The light of the knife is like a thread, blood and light like water. A few moments later, the long street was filled with corpses and blood. Whether it was the guards brought by Zhou Feng or the city guards brought by Zhou Jie, all of them died without a single one left behind. The people in front of the tofu store, even Butcher Zhang and Xiao Kai Wang, were all looking at Meng Fan with some horror at the moment. There's still a big difference between killing one person and killing a group of people. Previously, when Meng Fan had killed Zhou Feng and Zhou Jie, they all had only a helpless emotion and mindset. However, Meng Fan in particular had killed 20 to 30 people in a row. And this image was extremely impactful, causing them to be fearful. Even after spending so much time together, they still get scared. Because, they are not from the same world. As for the people in the surrounding stores who hid inside the windows to see the scene, they were too scared to breathe. Although they were separated by a wall and hiding in the house, they were still scared to death. Is this still human? It's a murderous demon. Devil. The devil. Meng Fan looked at the fear-filled Wang Xiuzai and Zhang Tuofu and let out a slight sigh. He knew that after what had happened, it was no longer possible for him to mingle with these people, and it was time for him to leave. Even if he returned to that courtyard, people like Wang Xiaokai and Zhang Tufu would not be able to get along with him like before. They would be afraid of him, fearful of him. In the end, one is not of the same world as them. He was able to get along before because he took the initiative to pretend he was from this world. A little exposure of their true colors nowadays would be too much for them to bear. At this time, the door to the tofu store opened. Chapter 99, Brother Meng. Don't think about it. Lin Yangzi couldn't help but open the door and walk out when she heard the fighting and screams outside. She was afraid that because of herself, these surrounding people would get hurt. Big deal. Just follow that Joe phone and leave. If you are aggrieved yourself, 
you should not cause others to suffer. As a result, when she opened the gate and saw the street full of corpses, she couldn't help but freeze. This little lady who had never seen the world said, trembling with fear, Wang Xiaotsai and Zhang Tuafu, at least they were men, could still hold on to their composure. But Lin Yangzi really couldn't hold out any longer. Looking at these corpses she couldn't hide the fear on her face in the slightest. Even her body was trembling and spasming. It's horrible, especially when she saw those corpses on the ground, which were actually wearing the armor of the city guards. It couldn't help but make her pee in fear. Finally, when she saw Zhou Feng's corpse, she almost fainted straight away. Zhou Feng, the young lord of the Duke of Zhou's mansion is actually dead? Died in front of his tofu store? This, it's over. Although he himself was a victim, the other party was after all the young lord of the Zhou State Duke's house, with an honorable status. She certainly couldn't live with herself after what happened. Even Irma, will be affected. Tears, all of a sudden, flowed. Needless to say, she was vulnerable, but she was a soft woman by nature, not that strong. Soon, Lin Yangzi saw the pig killing knife in Meng Fan's hand and saw the blood still dripping from it. There was no doubt that it was human blood. Lin Yangzi's heart was beating frantically, and her mouth moved, extremely stiff. After a long time, she regained her speech, and she said with some trembling, Meng, Meng little brother, all these people, you killed them? Meng Fan looked at Lin Yangzi whose face was full of fear and whose voice and body were trembling, and he sighed, yes, Meng little brother, you, are confused, tears fell from Lin Yangzi's eyes as she panicked, genuine panic, an overwhelming sense of dread came over her and overwhelmed her entire being, a moment later, she wiped away her tears and said to Meng Fan, junior brother Meng, you should run away, before the news spreads, you should hurry and escape from the city, otherwise, once you're caught, you'll definitely die, Having killed so many people, there is absolutely no other possibility that being caught will surely lead to death. Meng Fan shook his head. If I leave, won't I involve you? The Duke of Zhou's office will definitely look for you. What will you do then? What about Irma? Lin Yangzi's tears flowed even faster. It was even if something happened to her. But what would Irma do when the time came? Irma was only six years old and had already lost her father. Did she have to lose her mother? And with the Zhou Guogongfu, it might even be Irma. The thought of it brought despair to her heart. But even so, she didn't resent Meng Fan because she knew very well that Meng Fan was trying to help her. To be a human being, you can't know what's good and bad, and you can't be envious of what's good and bad. Junior brother Meng, you're the one who killed. I'm fine, so hurry up and run. It'll be too late if you don't. Once word gets out, you won't be able to fly. Lin Yangzi urged Meng Fan while shedding tears. Meng Fan reached out and wiped Lin Yangzi's tears with his bloodstained palm as he smiled and said, Don't cry, don't worry, I'll be fine, and so will you and Arya. Although Lin Yangzi's heart was fearful and her face was full of tears, she blushed in shame when Meng Fan wiped her tears with his hand. Meng Fan's fingers, touching her face, caused her heart to tremble. No man had touched a finger on her since her husband's death. Although she knew that Meng Fan didn't mean to be abrupt, she still couldn't help but blush with shame. This shyness, on the contrary, washed away some of the panic in her heart. Meng Fan walked over to Butcher Zhang and returned the pig-killing knife to him. Brother Meng, Mrs. Lin is right. You should hurry up and run away. If you don't, it will really be too late. Butcher Zhang took the knife, thought about it, and shoved it back into Meng Fan's hand. Keep this knife, you'll still be able to defend yourself. Meng Fan smiled and threw the pig-killing knife to Butcher Zhang. Don't worry, I said I'll be fine. Wang Xiaotsai also interjected from the side. Brother Meng, a gentleman does not stand under a dangerous wall, so hurry up and leave, cut the crap. Meng Fan shook his head and said to them, why should I leave? Wang Xiaotsai said anxiously, because you killed the young lord of the Zhogwa Gongfu, ah, and killed so many city guards. Meng Fan said in a calm tone, shouldn't Zhou Feng be killed for forcibly robbing the people's women and disregarding the law? Shouldn't these city guards be killed for indiscriminately aiding and abetting the enemy? Wang Xiaotsai said, what are they, what are you? whether they should be killed or not. You don't get to say. Meng Fan laughed. Wang Xiaokai, you're wrong. I can say whether they should be killed or not. Wang Xiaokai let out a bitter laugh. He felt that Meng Fan was truly crazy. Killing crazy. Meng Fan smiled and said, rest assured, I'll be fine, and so will you all. The crowd was laughing bitterly inwardly, feeling that Meng Fan was already delirious. But this time, it wasn't the time to go crazy. If Meng Fan didn't leave, he would really die. So the crowd continued to advise Meng Fan, hoping that Meng Fan would hurry up and run for his life. As a result, Meng Fan was unmoved and stuck around. 
It's not like you're looking for death. The crowd was helpless and wanted to forcefully drag Meng Fan away, but they didn't dare. After all, Meng Fan had just wildly chopped up 20 to 30 people without a blush, still leaving a shadow on them. Brother Meng, just don't think about it. After all, there's only one life. Wang Xiaotsai struggled to continue persuading. Meng Fan remained unmoved as he said to the crowd, Those of you who have scruples in your hearts, those of you who are worried, hurry back, you can seek peace of mind. It's obviously painful and frightening to leave them all here to dry out. Fear of retaliation from the Zhou Guangfu. If you won't leave, what are we afraid of? Butcher Zhang said with a rigid face. Meng Fan smiled and didn't say anything else. However, the few enthusiasts who stopped in front of the tofu store before, at this moment, there are quietly left. They are afraid of being hated by the Zhou Guangfu. No one would blame them for leaving at this time. After all, they had tried to help. You can't ask others to accompany you to your death. Can you? There's no need for that. Lin Yangzi was still silently weeping, and the tears simply wouldn't stop. It wasn't that she wanted to cry, but this was uncontrollable. Couldn't really help it. She wasn't crying for herself either. All she thought about and worried about at this time was her daughter Irma. Worried that if something happens to her, she won't be able to take care of Irma anymore. Worried that the Zhogwa Gungfu would be unfavorable to Arya and hurt Arya. This is the helplessness of an ordinary ordinary person. And very often, they can only be forced to put up with this kind of misfortune. Meng Fan looked at Lin Yangzi who was still crying and walked over to comfort her. Lin Yangzi, don't be sad. It's really going to be alright. I'll tell you a secret. Lin Yangzi's tears had not yet dried and she asked, somewhat stifling her sobs, what secret? Chapter 100, there is only one king in the big moon. The secret is that I'm actually an official second generation. Meng Fan said with a smile, official second generation. A term that was actually unpopular in Oyuki. No one ever mentioned it. Or maybe no one coined the word at all. In fact there is not even a term for the second generation of the rich. Let alone the second generation of officials. But this kind of vocabulary. Again. Is really succinct and clear. And even if the crowd is hearing it for the first time. They can get the meaning of the word in a flash. The second generation of officials. As the name suggests. His father is an official. Like Zhou Feng just now. He was obviously the second generation of officials. Meng Fan said that he was also a second generation government official, which immediately caused a trace of surprise to appear on the faces of the crowd. Who felt that Meng Fan was talking nonsense? Is it true that you've killed so many people that you've gone crazy? The second generation of officials? If he was the son of an official, how could he be so miserable, even worse than an ordinary man, and run to the blacksmith store as an apprentice? However, other than that, this guy's martial arts skills were indeed rather surprising. But this was even more proof that Meng Fan couldn't be a second generation government official. That government official Yaman would go and practice martial arts and be so murderous? Obviously an outlaw. Little brother Meng, just stop talking nonsense. Hurry up and run. If you don't run, you really won't be able to run away. You'll lose your head. Lin Yangzi said with some anxiety, there was already a crying tone within her tone. Those of them, Although they would definitely be retaliated against by the Zhou Guangfu, but it was still uncertain what exactly would happen to them. At least, not necessarily dead. And Meng Fan would 100% die if he didn't run. There was no other possibility at this point. Meng Fan shook his head helplessly. No one believed him even after he had spoken to so many people. In fact he understood what these people were thinking. After all, pushing himself, if he were them, he certainly wouldn't believe it either. But it doesn't really matter if they believe it or not. After all, there was no one among them who had the power to push themselves away if they didn't leave. In the distance, the ground began to shake. It's obvious there's a big army coming. Wang Xiaotsai's face was pale and he said in despair, It's over. It's too late. Because it's late. So it's over. At this time, Meng Fan couldn't run away even if he wanted to. The city guard's army pressed over. And even if Meng Fan's martial arts skills were high, he wouldn't be able to escape and wing his way out. Dead. Brother Meng. You're confused. Wang Xiaotsai shouted with a pained face. It wasn't that he was afraid of something happening to him, after all. He hadn't committed anything. What he was afraid of was something happening to Meng Fan. And it wasn't a matter of being afraid or not anymore. The city guards had descended. Something had happened to Meng Fan. The vast city guards attacked. There were more than a hundred of them. And their momentum was magnificent and extremely horrifying. The people among the surrounding stores all retreated back into their houses, not daring to take another look at the window openings. The city guards are so prestigious and really scary that they can't wait to hide under their beds. In the latter days on earth, many ordinary people dared to tear into the police in person. 
even yelling at them, and the more outrageous ones even dared to get their hands dirty. But in this world, when the people see a soldier, they can piss their pants. Bold maniac, how dare you commit murder in the street? Not only assassinating the young lord of the Duke of Zhou's mansion, but also assassinating a hundred tenant of my guards, truly bold and unaware of death. Among the grand scale and horrifying aura of the city guards, a middle-aged man in armor stepped out and coldly rebuked at Butcher Zhang, because among all the people present, only Butcher Zhang held a knife in his hand, which still had blood on it. It's obvious that this guy is the killer. Butcher Zhang was dumbfounded and a bit scared. When he reacted to what was going on, he couldn't help but be filled with aggravation. I'm not the one who killed? But at this point, he was too embarrassed to explain anything. You can't point at Meng Fan and say he's a murderer and I'm not a murderer, can you? It makes you look like you're greedy and betraying your brother. And if the city guards really captured themselves, wouldn't Meng Fan have a chance to escape? He was not a murderer himself. And when he was mistakenly caught, he was sure to find out. I'm sure I'll let myself go when the time comes. And by that time brother Meng had already escaped. Thinking this way, Butcher Zhang suddenly felt that his capture as a murderer might be a good ending. But Meng Fan didn't give him the chance to implement this absurdly unreliable plan. Meng Fan looked coldly at the commander of the city guards and said in a chilling voice, The one who killed, was this king, not him. The moment the words this king came out, everyone subconsciously turned around to look at Meng Fan. At this time, Meng Fan had to reveal his identity. Otherwise, there is a good chance that these friends of his people will be subject to retaliation. Once Meng Fan exposed his identity, then even Meng Tianji would not dare to have the slightest thought of disrespecting these people, not to mention the Duke of Zhou's palace, Butcher Zhang, Xiao Kai Wang, and Yang Zilin all felt that Meng Fan had really gone crazy. After Meng Fan had killed someone earlier, he had started to go a little crazy, and now he was even crazier to the limit, completely insane. The king? Is he still imagining he's a king? Really? But the next words of that commander made them all stunned and dumbfounded, as if they were dumbfounded by lightning. This commander of the city guards, when he came here his gaze was placed on the knife-wielding Butcher Zhang. Plus, Meng Fan and Butcher Zhang weren't standing together either, so he didn't even see Meng Fan. Now that Meng Fan had opened his mouth, when he saw Meng Fan, his eyes widened and his mind went blank for a few seconds. A few seconds later, he dropped to his knees with a thud, then thumped his head on the ground again. This headbutt was a loud one for everyone around to hear. My subordinate should be damned. I didn't even realize that his majesty was in person. The city guard commander was kneeling with all his might. And when he spoke, he didn't even dare to raise his head. Even inside his voice and tone, he was trembling slightly. Panic. Fear. Wandering. He never dreamed that he would meet the eighth prince under these circumstances. Most importantly, one had just dared to question the eighth prince. Although he was questioning at Butcher Zhang. The content within his words was clearly directed at the 8th prince. This left him terrified. Zhou Feng, this asshole, had provoked the 8th prince. This playboy sins, killed his own not to mention. This time to harm the Zhou Guangfu also suffered. After today, there might not be a Zhou Guangfu in the great moon. Not maybe, but definitely. Even if the 8th prince didn't bother with the Zhou Guayong mansion, his majesty wouldn't let the Zhou Guayong mansion go, and the entire great moon wouldn't let the Zhou Guayong mansion go. These city guards, seeing that their commander actually knelt down, each and every one of them were also filled with uncertainty and shock. Relating this to the fact that this man on the opposite side had just called himself this king, could it be that this person was really the king of the great moon? How many princes are there in the great moon? The grand prince has not returned to the palace for many years, practicing in the Wuji sword sect and not asking questions about the world. The third prince was killed in battle long ago, not to mention, six, is his majesty today? In the entire great moon, nowadays, the only prince who is qualified to call himself this king is the eighth prince. Chapter 101 A Private Visit Experiencing Life Could it be that up ahead? It's the eighth prince in person? The eighth prince Meng Fan. This was the myth of the entire great moon, the idol of all. They've never had the chance to see the eighth prince. Could it be that they've actually seen him today? After these hundreds of soldiers analyzed this, they all followed one after another and knelt down, their faces full of devotion. The few people who couldn't react saw that everyone else had knelt, so they naturally followed subconsciously. What's your name? Meng Fan asked as he looked at the commander. Little man city guard thousand. Zhao Zihai. Kneeling on the ground, Zhao Zihai replied honestly. You've seen this king? Meng Fan then asked. I once had the honor of meeting your highness on the city wall. Your highness has a peerless demeanor that I would never dare to forget. In the great moon, although not many people had seen Meng Fan, 
There were actually quite a few. After all, Meng Fan never hid anything and never traveled with a mask. Meng Fan had climbed the city walls twice and killed strong enemies, and there were indeed quite a few people on the city walls who had seen Meng Fan. This Zhao Zihai was one of those on the city wall that day. You're lucky, Meng Fan said expressionlessly. Zhao Zihai knelt on the ground and lowered his head, not daring to speak. He knew what Meng Fan meant by those words, own luck, indeed. If he wasn't fortunate enough to have seen the king and know him, then today would definitely be the day of his death after having just rushed the king. Zhao Zihai sent a fierce breath in his heart, truly heartbroken and scared to death. It couldn't be helped. The eighth prince's reputation was just too loud. In the great moon dynasty, the eighth prince was a god. He's a small thousand dollar man who dares to offend god? There is no qualification to be offended at all. Your highness, I don't have the slightest friendship with this Joe Fong Joe Jia. I rushed over here because I heard a message being passed around that someone was killing people in the street here. I didn't expect to meet his majesty here. At this time, Zhao Zihai hurriedly set aside his relationship with the two guys Zhou Feng and Zhou Jia, because he didn't have any friendship with these two guys in the first place. In case the king misunderstood that he was in league with Zhou Jia and the others, then the trouble would be big. Meng Fan said with a calm face, whether or not you have a relationship with them has nothing to do with this king. Zhou Feng was killed by me because he robbed a woman on the street and disregarded the law, so naturally he deserved to be killed. And this Zhou Jia, who is in cahoots with Zhou Feng, and has rushed my king, deserves to be killed even more. As for you, if you haven't done anything wrong, you don't need to be scared in front of the king. After all, this king is not a man who is addicted to killing. Hearing Mang Fan's words, Zhao Zihai knelt on the ground, not daring to speak, tell a joke. The eighth prince is not a murderous man. As we all know, the number of people who have died at the hands of the eighth prince has been in the tens of thousands. It is even rumored that even the old emperor, Mang Chuenqiu, killed the 8th prince's biological father, who was also killed by the 8th prince, although he didn't know whether it was true or not. Since this rumor had come out, it had proved how terrifying the 8th prince's killing nature was. So in the great moon, although everyone respected the 8th prince, everyone also feared the 8th prince. Zhao Zihai was facing the 8th prince Meng Fan directly at this moment, and he had long since been overwhelmed with fear. Next, Meng Fan didn't speak. When Meng Fan didn't speak, Zhao Zihai was even more afraid to speak. After a long period of silence, Zhao Zihai had to take the initiative to speak up. He was going crazy in this silent and awkward atmosphere. Your Majesty, then what should be done with these next? Now in this situation, he naturally did not dare to make a decision, and could only consult the 8th Prince. Meng Fan's face was expressionless as he calmly said, take all of these corpses away and clean up the street in a hurry. As for the people on this street, you're not allowed to disturb them anymore either. Yes, I understand. Zhao Zihai immediately led the order and sent out the city guards behind him to remove the corpses that were all over the ground, and then got people to clean up the streets and hose them down. These city guards are efficient, as they should be. At this moment, under Meng Fan's pressure, they moved even faster. In just less than an incense stick of time, the streets were refreshed and cleaned up. As for the corpses, they were all dragged away as well. Your Highness, all cleanup is complete, Zhao Zihai carefully said to Meng Fan. Meng Fan nodded and said, Good, all of you go down. Hearing Mang Fan's words, Zhao Zihai was instantly relieved and hurriedly led the crowd away, walking as fast as he could. Although he met the rare eighth prince today, he didn't have the idea of hugging his thigh. He was only afraid that if he offended Mang Fan, next year's today would be the anniversary of his death. Now that Mang Fan had granted him permission to leave, he already felt a sense of gratitude for having escaped from death, waiting for these city guards to all leave. The crowd in front of the tofu store still dumbfounded, did not return to the child's soul. After a long time, Wang Xiaotsai seemed to return to his senses. His face was full of complexity. With emotions of respect and fear, he stammered, Meng, are you really the king? He almost blurted out the words brother Meng. The good thing is that even in reaction, cliffhanger, are those two words worthy of being shouted? Meng Fan patted Wang Xiaotsai's shoulder and laughed. If I wasn't a king, would these city guards kneel down to me and call me a king? This no longer needs to be explained, equating to the obvious fact that facts speak louder than words. Wang Xiaokai's mouth opened. The corners of his mouth trembled several times, wanting to say what it was, but not knowing what to say. And in the end, he said nothing, staring blankly at Meng Fan. This thing today was beyond his imagination, something he could never even dream of doing. It's too much. It's unbelievable. Butcher Zhang, holding his pig-killing knife, was dumbfounded from beginning to end and had not reacted until this moment. 
The image of that commander of the city guards kneeling down and shouting at Meng Fan to call out to his majesty was still lingering in his mind, rooted as it was, so did everyone else, especially Lin Yangzi, whose mind had gone blank for a long time. It was a long time before she regained a trace of her senses, plop, as soon as she did, she knelt in front of Meng Fan, thank you, your majesty, for saving my life, will this time, the matter of Meng Fan being a prince was no longer in doubt, no matter how unbelievable or bizarre and weird it may be, it's already certain to be true, that being the case, she needed more than to question and wonder about Meng Fan's status as a prince, what she needed to do was to thank Meng Fan for saving her life, Meng Fan helped Lin Yangzi up, he actually had the ability to stop Lin Yangzi from kneeling, but he knew very well that if he didn't allow Lin Yangzi to kneel so much, Lin Yangzi would instead feel uneasy inside. Meng Fan supported Lin Yangzi and said, I told you guys that you'd be fine, and it's just that you don't believe me. Lin Yangzi looked at Meng Fan somewhat nervously and spoke cautiously, but you, but how could you be the king? Meng Fan laughed, storybook story, the emperor also often goes out of the palace to make private visits and experience life. It's even less unusual for me, a tiny prince, to do so, right? Chapter 102 Fainted from Fear Lin Yangzi's mind is extremely complex, her emotions or even more various emotions converge, and she has a hundred feelings. As for the book story Meng Fan mentioned, oh, that's really what it says in the story of the talkies, but in reality, which emperor really went out of the palace for a private visit to experience the life of the common people? It was only at this time that Zhang Butcher stammered, Elder Brother Meng, are you, you really the king? At this point in time, the only one who still dared to open his mouth and call Meng Fan as his oldest brother was Zhang Tufu, the simpleton. But even Butcher Zhang knew to change his tone to address Meng Fan as you, not you. Meng Fan smiled and said, Elder Brother Zhang, of course I'm the king, otherwise those city guards would have knelt to me? If I were to impersonate the king, I would have been hacked to death by random swords, so how could they kneel to me? Butcher Zhang held the knife, his mind buzzing feeling like a dream, in fact, it's impossible to dream of anything so outrageously exaggerated, Meng Fan glanced at the crowd and laughed, so you don't have to worry that the Zhou State Palace will retaliate against you, they wouldn't dare, after a moment's pause, he continued, in fact, after today, it is possible that the Zhou State Duke's mansion won't exist either, Butcher Zhang was surprised, your highness, even if you are the king, you can't just say that you'll take out a Duke of Zhou's house, right, Meng Fan shook his head and said, this, on the contrary, doesn't require me to do it. Butcher Zhang asked, By the way, your majesty, which one of our great moon's princes are you? Hearing Butcher Zhang's words, the Wang Xiu Kai on the side couldn't help but roll his eyes and helplessly said, Old Zhang, the way you ask this question is rather level less. The princes that can appear in the imperial city nowadays, besides the eighth prince also. As he spoke, Wang Xiu Kai suddenly couldn't go on. He froze and looked at Meng Fan his face originally full of astonishment, adding a few more points of shock at this moment, he hadn't thought about this before, but now that he heard Butcher Zhang's query and thought along with it, it immediately stunned him, you, are the 8th prince, the great lunar war god, the 8th prince Meng Fan who truly exists like a god, they have, today, actually seen god, and with this god, living inside a courtyard for so long, this, really, is enough to blow their minds for the rest of their lives, especially the blacksmith store where Meng Fan worked. Once this news was exposed, the blacksmith store would not take off in the future. Wang Xiaotsai was a scholar in the end. His ability to withstand it was relatively poor, and the shock of the news that Meng Fan was the great moon war god's eighth prince was just too great, and it directly swept him off his feet. It really is happiness that comes out of nowhere. Living in the same courtyard with the eighth prince, this life was really worth it, and it would be worth it to die immediately now. You have to know that the people of the Great Moon know very well that all the emperors of the Great Moon are not even a fart in front of the eight princes. Butcher Zhang hurriedly helped the fainted Wang Xiu Kai up, but even after he helped Wang Xiu Kai up, the guy was still in an unconscious state. Today's various impacts are too great. This small body is really unable to carry. I guess I have to have a good sleep to be able to do so. Meng Fan smiled and said, Everyone, don't stand around. Go back to your homes and get some rest. Today's events have passed. No one will look for trouble, so everyone relax. The eighth prince gave the word, although we do not want to give up, but also should be dispersed, each go back to their own homes, each find their own mother to go. In the end, in front of the tofu store, only Meng Fan, Wang Xiu Kai, Zhang Butcher and Lin Yangzi were left. Meng Fan said, let's also go back, this tofu store, today looks like it will not be able to operate. Rest for two days. Hearing Meng Fan's words, 
Lin Yangzi naturally wouldn't refuse. Now even if Meng Fan asked her to smash the tofu store, she wouldn't have the slightest hesitation and would absolutely do whatever she was told. Back in the yard, the guy still couldn't calm down. Brother Meng, you're back. Mother, are you alright? Seeing everyone return, Irma rushed over, her face full of worry. It's been a long time, but it's made her anxious. I don't know what the hell is going on, but although she was worried and scared, she still kept Meng Fan's instructions in mind and didn't sneak out to see what was going on, because she knows enough to know that not only would she not be able to help if she went, but she would add to the chaos, so honestly stayed home and was really an extremely well-behaved child. At the moment, she couldn't help but shed tears of joy when she saw that everyone had returned safe and sound. It's not that she's a good crier, but she's really in a hurry these days. However, it can't be said that everyone came back safe and sound, and when she saw Wang Xiaokai, who was being held by Zhang Tufu, she was startled and asked nervously, what happened to Uncle Wang? Actually, Wang Xiaokai was not older than Meng Fan by two or three years, but she called Wang Xiaokai uncle and Meng Fan brother. No other reason, simply because Meng Fan was good looking. Even younger women are face party, unlike men, who don't even look people in the face when they're little and just play in the mud. Meng Fan laughed, don't worry, your uncle Wang is fine, he was just too tired and fell asleep. Just wake up, really? Irma asked, a little worried. Of course it's true, are you afraid he's dead? If you don't believe me, you can try his nostrils with your finger. If he's still breathing, he's not dead. Isn't that what they say in the theater books? Meng Fan had a bad smile on his face. The little girl really stretched out her fingers, wanting to try Wang Xiaokai's nostrils. Irma, don't be rude. Wang, your brother Meng is joking with you. Lin Yangzi slapped Irma's hand away. She had wanted to address Meng Fan as prince, but she didn't want Irma to have any unrealistic fantasies. Little children are very simple. If they let her know that this brother they keep calling out is the king, they might simply have some unrealistic ideas. Irma is just a normal kid from a normal family. There's no need to give her such fantasies. A woman is weak, but a mother is strong. And Lin Yangzi did think a lot about Irma, because she knew very well that although inside this courtyard, Irma had always called Meng Fan's brother, and Meng Fan had treated Irma very well. This was ultimately Meng Fan's way of experiencing life now. Once this eighth prince left the courtyard, he would no longer have any interactions with them, the commoners. She wouldn't have that fantasy, much less let Irma have it. Since they are commoners, they should keep their feet on the ground instead of daydreaming. It had to be said that although Nyonya Lin was an uninformed little woman, she had some truths of her own. Anyone else, after learning of Meng Fan's identity, based on the time they had spent together, would have been dead set on sticking it to Meng Fan. But Lin Yangzi didn't do that, and she knew very well that if she really did so, she would be looked down upon by Meng Fan instead. If Meng Fan was truly interested in her, he would have shown his abnormality long ago these days. She was able to see in Wang Xiao Kai and Zhang Tu Fu that she was interested in them for herself. But from Meng Fan's body, she couldn't see the slightest hint of Meng Fan's interest in herself. So she was very self-aware. Wouldn't do something as stupid as seducing Meng Fan. Of course, if Meng Fan had ever shown interest in her during this time like Butcher Zhang and Xiao Kai Wang, she might actually shamelessly stick it to her. It's human nature. After all, everyone wants to fly up the ladder and become a phoenix. Only some people don't have the self-awareness to do so, while others do. Meng Fan smiled and patted Irma's head, saying, Don't worry, your uncle Wang isn't dead. He's really just asleep. That's good. Irma hemmed and hawed. However, Brother Meng, I have something to tell you, she said with a bit of embarrassment, seeing Irma's expression. Meng Fan asked with a bit of surprise, What is it? That's, that's the one. That porker was finished by me, Irma said with her head down, Meng Fan rolled his eyes, he thought it was something, he couldn't help but stifle a laugh and said, finish it, finish it, what are you afraid of, then you want to eat brother and then go buy it, Lin Yangzi's face changed as she said to Irma, Irma, you ate brother Meng's pig head meat, didn't mother tell you not to take advantage of others, this little girl knew that her mother would say this, so she had already prepared an excuse, and it was the one that Meng Fan had told her. Irma pinched her waist and said with a straight face, I didn't take advantage of brother Meng, I traded the tofu for the pork, it's sharing, to each his own, not taking advantage, chapter 103, it's time to leave, Lin Yangzi froze for a moment, normally this little girl was not so eloquent, being reprimanded by herself she simply could not think of a way to retort, she glanced at Meng Fan who was happily at the side and probably guessed that this was Meng Fan teaching Irma what to say, couldn't help but laugh bitterly, Irma saw that her mother had admitted defeat, and could not help but squeeze her eyes at Meng Fan, her face full of smugness, 
Meng Fan also squeezed his eyes at Irma, and the two little people tacitly cooperated. A few moments later, Zhang Tufu sent Wang Xiaokai back to the house, and Lin Yangzi also took Arya back to the house. As for Meng Fan, he also returned to his house. This night, Meng Fan didn't meditate and cultivate. He laid down on the bed and rested like an ordinary person. A sleepless night. Meng Fan knew very well that the time had come for him to leave this courtyard. It was time to end his journey of refining the heart. Now that his identity was exposed, it was impossible for him to continue staying inside this courtyard. Even if they continued to stay in the yard, people wouldn't treat themselves as usual, only with respect and restraint. What's more, the blacksmith's store wasn't likely to let him work anymore. Today's events will surely spread through the streets. The blacksmith's store will surely get the news as well. And at that time, who would dare to let the titular eighth prince serve as an apprentice to make iron? They wouldn't dare to lend them a hundred guts, ten thousand guts. It was time to leave. Meng Fan sighed. This period of time of refining the heart journey, although the time was not long, but Meng Fan did have a great harvest. This kind of experience was something he could not experience at all in the high walls of the deep palace. Even the previous Meng Fan, who was called a waste and was not valued in the palace, was not the same as this feeling. Living in the middle of the marketplace gave Meng Fan that feeling of having returned to earth in his last life. Even more bitter and tiring than on earth, there is a saying that the people of China on earth are, indeed, very happy, much happier than the people of this world. Thinking of this, Meng Fan let out a slight sigh. He thought of Irma's earlier words about wanting to take the imperial examinations, and to be honest Meng Fan's mood was a bit complicated. It's not that he, as a traveler, can't think of these things, and he knows very well how to make things better for the people, but he's too lazy to do that. In the final analysis, he is a selfish person who does not have the kind of selflessness to fight and contribute for the sake of his family and the world. He only thought of making himself better, but not of making the whole world better. Alas, Meng Fan sighed. He was ultimately a selfish, self-interested layman. It couldn't be changed, and he didn't want to change it. However, since it was something he had promised Irma, he would still do it. He was too lazy to care about what he couldn't touch. Now that he had come across it, he made it up as he went along. After all, letting women take the imperial exams was just a matter of words to him, and no one dared to resist. Emperor Meng Tianji didn't dare to resist, and none of the ministers in the court dared to resist. As for this order, to what extent it could be carried out, Meng Fan couldn't care less. It's sometimes hard to upsell, but instead, it's easier to upsell negative impacts. Positive guidance is more likely to be masculine. That's the reality. Meng Fan didn't have the energy to care so much, nor was he too lazy to do so. The fact that he was able to set this precedent is already a matter of benefit to the people. Of course, when the time came, the one the people should thank was not Meng Fan, but Arya, because if Irma hadn't mentioned this matter, Meng Fan wouldn't have intervened in these matters at all. The next day, Meng Fan got up early. In fact, he didn't sleep all night. At his realm, sleeping or not sleeping would no longer affect his state, and the argument of insomnia was even more non-existent. Wang Xiaotai also woke up. In fact he woke up in the middle of the night and was so excited in the second half of the night that he couldn't sleep all night. In fact, it was the same for Butcher Zhang and Lin Yangzi. None of them could sleep when something like this happened. In the entire courtyard, only Irma and Wang Xiaotai's seriously ill mother slept soundly. Lin Yangzi didn't tell Irma about Meng Fan's identity, and Wang Xiaotai likewise didn't tell his mother. His mother was already seriously ill. So if he told her such exciting news, Wang Xiaokai was really afraid that his mother would be so excited and pass away. This wasn't an exaggeration, because Meng Fan was not only a prince, but also one of the strongest princes in history, even the emperor didn't dare to fart in front of him. You have to hold back even if you want to fart. Yesterday, when Wang Xiaotai knew Meng Fan's identity, he fainted with excitement, not to mention a seriously ill mother like Wang Xiaotai. So Wang Xiaotai didn't even dare to mention this to his mother and could only hide it. Wang Xiaotai, who was washing up, saw Meng Fan come out of the house, rinsed his mouth in a hurry, and said to Meng Fan, Your Majesty, yesterday it was the villain who was out of line, please atone for his sins. Yesterday, he had fainted after recognizing Meng Fan's identity in front of him, so he was indeed a bit out of sorts, he was kinda at a loss about it. Meng Fan shook his head and said, In this courtyard, there are no princes, so you might as well call me Brother Meng. Wang Xiaotai hurriedly said, I don't dare. Meng Fan laughed coldly, playing this with himself? I can't control you? Can you beat me? Meng Fan had a cold face and said in a chilling voice, This is an order, and those who disobey it will be beheaded. Wang Xiaotai was startled and his mind went blank for a moment. 
Orders? What orders? He has forgotten. It was only after a while that he reacted to what Meng Fan's order was, which was for him to call brother Meng. He said with fear and trembling heart, Meng. Meng brother, it is the villain. Forehead. Yesterday it is under me who is out of order. I hope that Meng brother will forgive me. Meng Fan laughed and said, what kind of lapse is this? You're being overly concerned. It had to be said that Meng Fan's way of ordering Wang Xiao Kai was a bit of bullying by force, but he could never really be a brother to Wang Xiao Kai in the first place. It was just that he liked Wang Xiao Kai to call him brother Meng. If you use your power to bully people, then use your power to bully people. It wasn't long before Butcher Zhang also walked out of the house. He didn't wash up either, and with his pig killing knife in hand, he was ready to go to his pig's head stand. Don't bother opening the stall today. Meng Fan said to Butcher Zhang. Butcher Zhang froze for a moment, then said, Yes, your majesty. He didn't ask why. Since it was the king's order, then just do it. He didn't dare to resist anyway. Don't call me your majesty. Meng Fan sighed. Then he ordered Butcher Zhang not to call him the king in exactly the same way. Zheng Tu Fu, like Wang Xiuzai, could only obediently listen to the instructions and did not dare to disobey. However, even though they no longer called the king in their mouths and addressed Meng Fan as brother Meng, this sense of distance and respect was impossible to hide. The same two words, brother Meng, and the tone of voice compared to before, that was also a world of difference. Meng Fan was helpless, but he also knew very well that this was something that could not be helped and could only be accepted silently. Being able to make them shout out the words brother Meng was already pretty good. We can't ask them to be like actors and movie stars, can we? It was also because of this that it strengthened Meng Fan's resolve that he should leave earlier, because if he stayed here, not only would he not help them in any way, but he would also make them extremely squirmy and uncomfortable, and would only have a negative impact on them. After all, he was the king and they were the people. It's impossible to really hit the ground running, and they wouldn't dare. Wang Xiaokai, go and call out Lin Yangzi as well. Meng Fan said to Wang Xiaokai, yes, Wang, Meng brother. Wang Xiaotai blurted out midway through his sentence, then changed his words in time. Soon after, Lin Yangzi came out of the house with Arya as well. Chapter 104, The First Time You Make a Move, It's Such a Big One, See That People Are Arriving. Meng Fan spoke, Everyone is here today, I have something to tell you. Butcher Zhang, Xiao Kai Wang and Yang Zi Lin didn't dare to speak, but it was Arya who asked recklessly, Brother Meng, what are you going to tell us about? Meng Fan sighed and said, I'm leaving. Upon hearing these four words, Zhang Tufu and the others actually did not look surprised. This was because they knew very well that after Meng Fan's identity was exposed, he would inevitably have to leave, and it would be impossible for him to live on with them. If it had been before, they might have felt a sense of sadness and surrender. But now that they knew Meng Fan's identity, they really couldn't possess such emotions. The gap was too great. Only Irma knew nothing about it, and she asked with a face full of anxiety, Brother Meng, where are you going? Meng Fan walked over, rubbed Arya's head, and smiled, brother is going home, going home? Irma stopped talking at once, her small mouth deflated and a sad look appeared on her face, she was young, but she knew the importance of home, although she couldn't bear to let brother Meng go home, there was no way she wouldn't let him go home, brother Meng, you have to remember to come back often to see Irma, Irma said with some sadness, will do, Meng Fan said with a smile, as a matter of fact, Irma had spent less time with Meng Fan though, far less than Zhang Tu Fu and Wang Xiaotai, but in fact, her feelings for Meng Fan were instead deeper than these two, because both Wang Xiaokai and Zhang Tu Fu are busy and boring, they treat her purely like a child and don't play with her at all, it was Meng Fan, on the contrary, who often played with Arya when he was bored, plus Meng Fan was relatively handsome, so naturally he was even more pleasing to Irma, after all, even the smallest girl is still a girl, and is naturally attracted to handsome men, even if it's just a small child. At noon, Meng Fan treated everyone to a meal at the best restaurant on the street. Irma, the little girl, ate with her mouth full of oil and was reckless, while several others were obviously unable to let go and were extremely formal. This made Meng Fan helpless as well. If he hadn't revealed his identity, they wouldn't necessarily have been happy to eat this meal. But if he hadn't revealed his identity, he wouldn't have chosen not to leave. And if he hadn't chosen to leave, he wouldn't have invited this parting meal. After finishing his meal, Meng Fan waved with the crowd and left the street where he had lived for a short time. There was one thing to be said for the street, and he had become vaguely attached to it. For Meng Fan, this street, the people, the ordinary people on this street, instead gave him a more familiar and comfortable feeling. Maybe at heart, he's just a regular guy. He didn't like being a royal prince at all. 
even if he had been one for more than 20 years, he couldn't like it. Meng Fan left the palace without alerting anyone, returned, again without alarming anyone. After returning to the palace, Meng Fan went to see Meng Xiaochan. This girl had been in seclusion and cultivation for more than a month, and from the time Meng Fan left to the time Meng Fan returned, she hadn't even felt a single thing. Closed door cultivation was just like that. Time was like running water, not to mention a month, even if a year passed, it didn't feel like anything. However, although Meng Xiaochan had practiced diligently, there was still a considerable gap between her and the innate realm. After all, compared to Meng Fan, her qualifications were far too poor, and on the same day that Meng Fan returned to the palace, the Duke of Zhou retired to his hometown, and everyone in the Duke of Zhou's mansion left, completely sealed off. The Duke Zhou's house, which once possessed amazing power in the imperial city, completely disappeared overnight. Above the courtroom, many people are a bit confused. Not tuning in to the Duke of Zhou in the end did what heaven's wrath of the people, actually so offended his majesty, received this kind of punishment? Some well-informed people, on the other hand, understood that Duke Zhou had not offended his majesty, but the even more unoffendable eighth prince, in the great Moon dynasty, if anything, Emperor Meng Tianji was the son of heaven, then that eighth prince is heaven. Meng Fan hadn't mentioned a single word about the Zhou Guagengfu from the beginning to the end, because he knew very well that there would be people who would make everything right without him mentioning it. Otherwise, if this couldn't be done, it proved that Meng Tianji was unqualified as an emperor. Then after Meng Fan returned to the palace, although Meng Tianji did not look for Meng Fan, Meng Fan took the initiative to find Meng Tianji. Moon Shadow Palace, this is the palace of Meng Chuanxiu the emperor of the current great moon, in the great lunar ancestral system, emperors lived in the moonlight palace, but now the moonlight palace was occupied by Meng Fan, not Meng Fan has any special ideas, he wants to rebel simply do not have to create, the reason why you have to live in the moon palace is purely to live in the habit, lazy to move nest, Meng Tianji wouldn't dare let him move it anyway, Meng Tianji couldn't help but be startled when he saw Meng Fan appear in front of him, what brings you here, he asked a little cautiously, since his ascension to the throne, Meng Fan had never once taken the initiative to find him, so he was naturally a bit nervous. Meng Fan looked at Meng Tianji and said in a calm tone, I came to find you to talk about one thing. Meng Tianji asked a bit nervously, What is it? Meng Fan said, From now on, the Great Moon will allow women to take the imperial examinations and create a women's academy, which all women will be allowed to attend. If a woman is successful in the examination, she can likewise join the dynasty as an official. Upon hearing Meng Fan's words, Meng Tianji's eyes widened in disbelief. He knew very well that this imperial brother had always disregarded affairs of state. What kind of madness was this today? You're making such a big deal out of a pipe? What? Have an opinion? Meng Fan looked at Meng Tianji's expression and asked expressionlessly. Meng Tianji's face changed and he smiled sarcastically. He does have an opinion. But he didn't dare to have an opinion. This decree that Meng Fan was talking about had been issued by the Great Dragon Dynasty a long time ago. It caused a huge sensation at the time, and was mocked and disdained by all the imperial dynasties together. I remember when Atsuki was mean when she mocked Iran, and she was beyond contemptuous of him for this move. As a result, now, if Atsuki follows suit, won't he be ridiculed for picking up the pieces? It's not only shaking the country's foundation, but it's also humiliating. But Meng Fan's words, again, he didn't dare to refute them at all, not even in his heart, let alone refute them out loud. This was the first time since he ascended the throne that Meng Fan had given his opinion on state affairs, though it's quite unthinkable and bound to cause great shock and horror. Still, he had to do as he was told. It couldn't be helped. He didn't dare to resist Meng Fan. Although Meng Fan had never interfered in the affairs of state during these times, it did not mean that he, Meng Tianji, was qualified to control the affairs of state. He was able to control the affairs of the country because Meng Fan didn't care. Once Meng Fan was in charge, he had to listen honestly. Otherwise, it's not a question of whether or not the empire will be able to sit on the throne. Rather, he's likely to die. For Meng Fan, the emperor, although he was his own brother, Meng Tianji was extremely fearful. Even before he ascended the throne, he thought for a moment that he was going to die. To die. As a result, Meng Fan had asked him to be the emperor. It was like a dream. Chapter 105, Butterfly Harmonization Academy. Meng Tianji didn't have the kind of idea that he was inflated after being emperor for a few days, thinking that he could deal with Meng Fan. That's a death wish. No problem. Since you yourself, imperial brother, have spoken, then this decree will be implemented beyond measure. However, I am worried that those ministers in the court will hold opposing views. 
Eh, I don't mean to push it off, but even though I'd become the emperor, I really don't have the ability to make the entire court listen to me yet. Meng Tianji said a bit cautiously, this was what was in his heart, but he was afraid that Meng Fan would misunderstand. Then when Meng Fan heard Meng Tianji's words, he looked at Meng Tianji with some disdain. Meng Tianji was then embarrassed, but there was no way around it. It was the truth. Meng Fan said expressionlessly, the order was given by me, and if someone in the court opposes it, let him come to me. After a pause, he continued, or, I'll go to him. After saying that, Meng Fan directly turned around and left without any more nonsense. And Meng Tianji couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief now when he heard Meng Fan say that, because he knew very well that with Meng Fan putting down such a sentence, throughout the entire courtroom, absolutely no one would dare to oppose. Not only would they not dare to object, but they would put their best foot forward and try to do their best. After all, although there were many people in the courtroom who did not obey him as the emperor, no one dared to disobey Meng Fan. Meng Fan is the god of the great moon. Soon the news that women could take the imperial examinations and that a school for women had been created spread throughout the world. With Meng Fan's words as the imperial sword, Meng Tianji's decree was implemented extremely quickly. This was Meng Fan's first time explaining the affairs of state, and he also wanted to do his best to flatter Meng Fan, an emperor, but he wants to flatter the king. Yet there was no one who would laugh at Meng Tianji, and even felt that he was extremely wise. This world of the big moon is just so weird. On this day, the courtyard where Meng Fan had previously lived. When Irma heard the news that women could go to school, she couldn't help but be filled with surprise and excitedly said to her Lin Yangzi, Mother, Brother Meng didn't lie to me. The women of our Daiyue can also go to school as well as take the imperial examinations. Lin Yangzi's face instantly showed surprise, looking at her daughter with some uncertainty. Irma, what do you mean when you say that Brother Meng didn't lie to you? Lin Yangzi asked somewhat nervously. It was about that mythical prince of the great moon so she naturally had to be nervous. Irma said happily, once before, when I was talking to Brother Meng, I said that I wanted to take the imperial examinations, but our Daiyue is not like Daeyong, which can allow women to take the imperial examinations. As a result, Brother Meng said that he knew a big official who said that soon the women of our Daiyue would also be able to take the imperial examinations. I didn't believe it at the time because Brother Meng was lying to me. I didn't realize it was true, that I could actually take the science exam. Hearing her daughter's words, Lin Yangzi was shocked. She knew very well that there was no big official behind Meng Fan, and that he himself was the biggest official in the big moon. Such an earth-shattering event as a woman's participation in a scientific examination was something completely contrary to the ancestral system. How could Meng Fan have done such a great thing that opened up the heavens and the earth for the first time because of Irma's casual remark? Is this the spirit of the god of the great moon? The eighth prince, Meng Fan, had long been mythologized in the great moon. One sword to retreat 400, 000 enemies. What is this if not a god? Previously, Meng Fan had spent time with them in the courtyard. And to be honest, they hadn't felt that there was anything special about Meng Fan. Later, knowing Meng Fan's identity brought about a gap that was only in status. From start to finish, they hadn't felt Meng Fan's terror as the eighth prince. But it was only at this moment when such a decree was implemented that Lin Yangzi felt Meng Fan's godlike exaltation. Just because Irma casually said something, she was able to do such a heavenly thing, which was too exaggerated. Lin Yangzi was dumbfounded and shocked for a long time, and only after a long time did she murmur to Irma, Irma, you really need to thank this brother Meng of yours. Irma had no idea that this incident was entirely due to her, and had no idea how much she had affected the world. Ordinary people are, indeed, pathetic, because he's all over the place and could very well be changed by someone else's words. If the change is for the better it's fine, if it's for the worse then it's literally ruined for life. The good thing was, Irma was changing for the better, and Lin Yang was beyond grateful. While meeting a valuable person can be life-changing, there are times when that change is unfortunate. Luckily, Irma wasn't. Just at this moment, a woman wearing a green-colored long shirt with long hair tied up, came into the courtyard. The women are dressed extremely neutrally, as these long shirts are, in fact, clothes worn by men. That's Lin Irma, right? The woman walked into the courtyard and said to Irma, I'm Irma. Irma was a bit cognizant, but answered the woman's question. The woman turned to Lin Yangzi and said, Hello, I'm the gentleman of the Butterfly Transformation Academy, Li Ching Xiang, Butterfly Academy? I've never heard of this academy. And, are women able to be teachers too? Li Ching Xiang saw Lin Yangzi's question at a glance and said with a smile, I'm sure you're aware of the recent new order of the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty, this Wa Butterfly Academy 
is the first women's academy in the imperial city. It dawned on Lin Yangzi that a teacher at a women's academy naturally had to be a woman. It's easy to mess up the program if it's a man. Greetings, Mr. Li, Lin Yangzi hurriedly said to Li Qingxiang. For this person to be able to teach at the newly opened Hua Butterfly Academy, he was bound to be a capable person. So Lin Yangzi treated him with the utmost respect. I don't know what is the reason for your visit, sir? Lin Yangzi asked somewhat strangely. Li Qingxiang said smilingly, I'm here. Naturally because of the matter of the academy, Irma has already passed the academy's examination and can go to the academy to study. Hearing Li Qingxiang's words, Lin Yangzi couldn't help but stare in disbelief. Butterfly Academy is the first women's academy in the imperial city, and the young ladies from various prominent families must have wanted to enter the academy to study. A woman who could enter the Wa Butterfly Academy to study must be either rich or noble. The number of places is limited, and I'm sure many daughters of officials are not qualified to enter the academy. As for those rich kids, they have even less chance, and they, the common people, even more so, dare not even think or dream about it. But this teacher of the Butterfly Academy actually took the initiative to come and invite Irma to study in the academy. How is this possible? Not at all. But the truth, it's just so real right in front of your eyes. Lin Yangzi had a lot of thoughts in her head, but Irma didn't have any more complicated thoughts. She jumped up excitedly, clapping her hands while saying excitedly, I can read, I can read. A smile appeared on Li Qingxiang's face as she looked at the bouncing area. But Lin Yangzi wasn't as innocent as Irma. She was convinced that pies don't fall from the sky. How could such a good thing happen? Suddenly, a figure appeared in her mind. Meng Fan, the eighth prince, the man who was like a myth. It was obvious that apart from Meng Fan, it was unlikely that anyone would let Irma go to the academy. And this kind of thing was definitely a handful for Meng Fan. Lin Yangzi asked in a somewhat complicated tone, Can I conveniently ask who told you to come here to look for Irma? Lin Qingxiang said, It's our dean. Nyonya Lin asked, and your dean is? Lin Qingxiang said, Our dean, is Zhao Wulan. Surprise appeared on Lin Yangzi's face. Although she was a rough person and hadn't read much, she had heard of the great name of the talented Zhao Wulan. I've heard that this talented woman once crushed the four great talents of the imperial city so much that they couldn't lift their heads. However, she didn't have the slightest intersection with this talented lady Zhao at all. Continuing to ask questions in this manner will certainly not lead to any answers. What's more, there's really no need to ask. The only person who could do this thing, among the people she knew, was the 8th Prince Meng Fan. She didn't expect Meng Fan to be able to think of them after he became the 8th Prince again, which really moved her a bit to the point of wanting to shed tears. However, after being moved, Lin Yangzi still had many concerns and worries in her heart. The women who were able to enter the Wa Butterfly Academy to study were all bound to be either rich or noble. Irma is just an ordinary girl from an ordinary family. She can't compare with those people at all. Will she really be able to get used to it when she arrives at the academy? What if she gets bullied? Irma was still very young and innocent, so there were a lot of things she couldn't think of, but she had to as a mother. Lin Yangzi said somewhat helplessly, Mr. Li, we're just commoners. The students in the academy are surely all distinguished ladies. Irma and them aren't even from the same world, so she kind of wanted to say no. Chapter 106, The Man Who Did This Is Not A Human Being. Admittedly, she was well aware of how rare and precious this opportunity was. Many of the young ladies from the big families might have to squeeze their heads for this opportunity, but she still couldn't help but worry. Worried about whether Irma will be wronged or bullied? Would it hurt to even think about it more seriously? Lady Lin, you actually don't need to worry about all this, although I don't know which great person has spoken up and wants to help you, but since even the dean has been alarmed, Irma will definitely not be wronged or bullied when she's in the Wa Butterfly Academy. This reasoning, of course, Lin Yangzi understood, and she was even more aware of who exactly gave the word for Irma to go to school. That's the sky of the great moon, the god of the great moon, the eighth prince of the great moon. No one dared to offend him, including the emperor of the great moon. But Irma was still so young, could she really study alone in the academy? Just as Lin Yangzi was hesitating, Irma suddenly opened her mouth and said to Lin Yangzi, Mother, I'm going to study. This little girl didn't say why she wanted to go to school, but her tone was filled with determination and a persistent face. Lin Yangzi sighed and finally agreed to area her own request. If Irma wasn't allowed to go to the Chemical Butterfly Academy, she might regret it for the rest of her life. Time flows like water. It was a month after Meng Fan had left Lin Yangzi and the others and returned to the palace. After this period of hard cultivation, Meng Fan's cultivation level had once again risen by a small realm. From the early stage of Yuaning, 
he had successfully cultivated to the middle stage of Yuaning. This period is only three or four months full. At the realm of Yuaning, to be able to raise a realm in a few months was absolutely appalling. No one would believe it if they said it. Of course, getting some kind of divine elixir in these special chances can't be counted. After all, Meng Fan was just ordinary and honestly cultivating. Name, Meng Fan. Life expectancy, 21 slash 1369. Race, human, cultivation, middle yuaning, technique, nine heavenly empery and spirit technique, divine level, erlang jinju and guanfa, heavenly level, physique, six paths divine body, divine grade, supreme talent, sword dao tongshan, top qualification in sword dao, any sword technique can be learned at once, and the power of the sword technique is enhanced, supreme talent, hegemonic stance, any female in your presence will be weakened. Supreme Talent, Human Emperor's Bloodline, activating the Human Emperor's Bloodline in the body will enhance your cultivation by accepting the world's fortune. Sword Techniques, Heavenly Flying Fairy, Shen Level, Holy Spirit Sword Technique, Heaven Level, 10,000 Swords Returning to the Father, Earth Level, and Jintian Sword Drawing Technique, Heaven Level, Leg Technique, Wind God's Leg, Shen Level, Secret Technique, Concealment Technique, Ground Level, Weapons, Spirit Wine Sword, Shen Grade, Regulus Sword, Heaven Grade. During this period of time, Meng Fan had been fixated on cultivation, and there was nothing that bothered him. For Meng Fan, the only thing that bothered him was probably that fire throw demon king by Xiao Tian of the 10,000 Demon Kingdom. This cheap grandfather of his had folded at his own three times, and was likely to come over in person. However, Meng Fan was now one step further and had cultivated into the Yuaning realm. So even if by Xiao Tian really was in the transformation god realm, he had no emotions of fear. After all, once Meng Fan activated the Human Emperor bloodline, his cultivation would have a qualitative increase. By then, relying on the divine might of the Xian Yuan sword, there really wasn't a need to be too scrupulous about the transformation spirit. After all, a tiny demon king couldn't possibly be an overwhelming existence amongst the transformation spirit realm and couldn't possibly reach the late transformation spirit stage. So even if Bai Xiaotian came in person, Meng Fan was still sure of his self-preservation. He didn't dare to say that he would be able to kill by Xiao Tian, but there was absolutely no problem with self-preservation. On this day, there was an uninvited guest in the Great Moon Palace, that seventh princess Qin Shangming of the Great Dragon, human immortal reincarnation. After this guy was teased by Meng Fan last time, he returned to the Great Dragon with an army of 200, 000 and hasn't moved much since. Today, he actually took the initiative to find Meng Fan again. Seventh princess, rare guest. Why did you come to this king today? Not afraid that this king will do something unfriendly to you? Meng Fan looked at Qin Xiangming, who had appeared out of thin air in the Moonlight Palace, and frowned slightly. With Qin Xiangming's ability, those guards naturally couldn't stop her, so it wasn't unusual for her to be able to appear here out of nowhere. What he was puzzled about was that after Qin Xiangming had been teased by himself, she should have been avoiding herself more than she could handle, so how could she have taken the initiative to come to find herself? Meng Fan, you're really good at this. You actually fooled even me. Qin Xiangming said to Meng Fan with a bitter smile. What did I lie to you about? Meng Fan looked at Qin Xiangming expressionlessly. To be honest, Meng Fan was a bit surprised because he could feel that this Qin Xiangming's attitude towards him seemed to have changed a bit. At least he could clearly feel that this girl was no longer as hostile to herself as she was before. So, this girl should not be coming over this time. So here's the question. What does she want again? I don't think I know her well. Do I? You're not the heavenly snow ancestor at all. Qin Xiangming suddenly said to Meng Fan. Then she had an I've seen through you look on her face. Old man Tian Xue? Hearing the name, he subconsciously froze, as he had forgotten about it. Thinking back carefully, he remembered that before. Qin Xiangming mistakenly thought that he had been taken over by someone. So he had misled Qin Xiangming by making a trick out of it. As a result, this girl thought of herself as some kind of heavenly snow ancestor. But to be honest, Meng Fan didn't even know who old man Tian Xue was. Meng Fan rolled his eyes. You still don't want to admit it? Qin Xiangming looked at Meng Fan and said angrily, The real old ancestor Tian Xue is still alive and well, so it's simply impossible for him to take over you. Meng Fan said helplessly, I didn't say that I'm the heavenly snow ancestor. The last time we met, you were the one who insisted that I had been taken over and balked at the idea that I was the heavenly snow ancestor. Qin Xiangming said, But you didn't deny it either. Meng Fan looked at Qin Xiangming indifferently and sneered. Why should I deny it? You. Qin Xiangming was suddenly speechless. Yeah, they were at loggerheads. Why would they tell you the truth? All right. Qin Xiangming said helplessly. Meng Fan glanced at Qin Xiangming with some impatience in his eyes. You can't have come to me just to talk such nonsense. 
What is it all about? If it's because you want to fight, then I'm sorry. You're even less of a match for me now. So don't make a fool of yourself. To be honest, I'm not too keen on hitting women. But if you continue to be insensitive, I don't mind letting you know what pain is. To be honest, this Qin Xiangming was indeed quite beautiful. At least amongst all the people Meng Fan had seen, no one's face value could surpass Qin Xiangming's. It was a bit hard for him to hit such a beauty. But once he laid his hands on them, then Meng Fan was no longer human. Chapter 107 So what if a human immortal is reincarnated? Qin Shengming turned to Meng Fan and asked, You're not old ancestor Tian Xue, so who exactly are you? Regarding this question, Qin Shengming was really curious. The first time she met Meng Fan, Meng Fan was only a late Jin Dan cultivator, while she was a peak Jin Dan. When they met for the second time, Meng Fan was already at the peak of Jin Dan, and she was the peak of Jin Dan. Now that they had met again, he could no longer see through Meng Fan's cultivation, which meant that Meng Fan had most likely reached the Yuaning realm. This, then, is outrageous. It's just sick and totally unbelievable. From beginning to end, she was at the peak of Jin Dan, not having advanced a single realm, and Meng Fan had already become a late Jin Dan stage stepping into the Yuaning realm. This was definitely not something a genius could do, knowing that she herself was a reincarnation of a human immortal. In a sense, she has come to represent the ceiling of genius. This Meng Fan, on the other hand, was able to go from being inferior to surpassing himself in a matter of months. Just from this aspect alone, one could see that Meng Fan was abnormal. Out of the realm of genius, there was definitely a problem. Meng Fan looked coldly at Qin Xiangming and said, Even if your guess is correct, then what makes you think I'll tell you? At this time, Meng Fan was too lazy to waste his breath by talking nonsense with Qin Xiangming about anything else. Because even if he told the truth, Qin Shengming wouldn't believe it. This girl, determined that she had been taken over by some big shot. Actually, there is no deep hatred between us. Everything before was a misunderstanding. And since you are not my enemy, then I have no thoughts of making an enemy of you. Qin Shengming said to Meng Fan, that's an apology of sorts. The fact that Meng Fan was able to see through the innate flying sword in her body proved that he knew that he was the reincarnation of a human immortal, and that he even definitely knew his past life self. Since he didn't want to talk about it, she could just as well not ask. It was because during this time, she had carefully analyzed her several meetings with Meng Fan, and Meng Fan's attitude towards herself. She could be certain that Meng Fan had no animosity towards herself. Since there is no hostility, then they are not enemies, and the other person was not intimate with himself, but very rusty. So Qin Shengming could probably guess that this Meng Fan and her former self should just know each other and not have a friendship. There is neither hatred nor fellowship pretty much the same as a stranger. This was the conclusion Qin Xiangming had analyzed. If that was the case, why was she hostile to Meng Fan? Wouldn't it be better to make an effort to befriend Meng Fan and become friends with him? She's not stupid. I'm also too lazy to make an enemy out of you. Otherwise I wouldn't have teased you last time. I would have just beaten you to death. You don't have to doubt that I have the ability to do that. Meng Fan said with a calm face. Qin Xiangming wasn't the least bit angry when she heard Meng Fan say something so nonchalant and smiled as she said, since you're not an enemy, you can be a friend, so I actually came here this time because I wanted to make a friend with you, after all, in the entire secular world, our kind of people are still extremely rare, since we are destined to meet, wouldn't it be a shame for God to give us this chance to meet if we don't make friends, Qin Xiangming's words caused a hint of surprise to appear on Meng Fan's face, he had speculated about Qin Xiangming's intentions, but he hadn't really thought that Qin Xiangming was simply trying to come to get acquainted with himself, wanting to make friends with himself. What is this? Dog licking? Although Meng Fan didn't really want to admit it, he was still quite happy to be licked by such a beauty. Most importantly, this was still a reincarnation of a human immortal, who had been so condescending in front of himself before. Meng Fan shook his head and said, We're not in the same category. In fact, there's still a huge gap between you and me. Qin Shengming took a deep breath, some slight embarrassment showing on her face. She was a reincarnation of a human immortal but she would actually be looked down upon one day. The bottom line was that she was still powerless to refute it. Just feel so angry. But she had to hold her anger. After all, she was the one who came to ask for a relationship. This guy on the other side, although he didn't know who he was, was indeed a bit stronger than himself. It's worth caging yourself in a low voice. After all, if he wanted to avenge his past life, he certainly couldn't do it by trying to rely on her alone. If you can have a team, then you will get twice the result with half the effort. If the team was full of demons like Meng Fan, why worry about getting revenge in the future? Qin Shengming thought beautifully in her heart. 
But Meng Fan responded unflinchingly, Sorry, I don't make friends with the weak. Xin Xiangming immediately said angrily, Weak? I am a weakling? You know full well that I am the reincarnation of a human immortal, and you know that my achievements in this life will be human immortal at the very least, and you're calling me weak? Meng Fan laughed, So what if a human immortal is reincarnated? So what if you are able to recultivate into the human immortal realm? By the time you achieve the human immortal realm, perhaps I will have become an immortal king. Xin Xiangming was furious. What a big mouth. Since when are human immortals looked down upon? However, when she thought about this cultivation speed of Meng Fan's, she was really a bit helpless. According to this speed of cultivation, it is estimated that by the time he cultivates into a cave of emptiness, this guy may be a human immortal. I really can't figure out how this guy cultivates. There's always no harm in having more than one friend. Why should the eighth prince be so unkind? Could it be that people have ugly parents? Qin Xiangming laughed bitterly. Hearing Qin Xiangming's words, Meng Fan shook his head helplessly. Although you are much inferior to me in terms of strength, you do speak for yourself in terms of face value, not too much inferior to me. Meng Fan, a person who always said one thing and did not tell lies. This Qin Xiangming, not to mention her strength, was indeed over the top in terms of her face value. Other than that, Meng Fan's past life and present life combined. This Qin Xiangming was indeed one of the most beautiful women he had ever seen. But Meng Fan wasn't a man who couldn't walk when he saw a beautiful woman. So he didn't have anything against Qin Xiangming. His current pursuit was still cultivation. When he's strong enough, any kind of woman will throw herself at him. As for now, women would only affect the speed of his cultivation. Meng Fan said, You're so proactive in wanting to befriend me. So there has to be some indication, right? The way this was said made Qin Xiangming just a little confused. Is this going to bait itself or not? Or do you have to color yourself? What does his majesty want? Qin Xiangming asked helplessly. Meng Fan said without changing his face. This king is short of a heavenly great divine armor. If you can gift this king one, this king will make you a friend. A heavenly artifact? When this thing was said to be precious, it wasn't considered much of a precious thing. After all, there were still quite a few heavenly great weapons in the true spirit realm. But in this secular world, it wasn't easy to get a heavenly great weapon. If it was the Qin Xiangming of her previous life, an existence in the human immortal realm, she would really be able to give away a heavenly great weapon. But right now, she certainly doesn't. Her innate magic treasure, the flying fish sword, could in a sense be considered a heavenly level weapon. But it was something only she could use. No one else could use it at all. The original life magic treasure, the original life magic treasure, to put it bluntly, is a person's exclusive magic treasure. In the hands of others, this thing is scrap metal, and it can't exert the slightest bit of power at all. Chapter 108, My Friendship, Worth a Heavenly Grade Weapon, A Heavenly Grade Divine Soldier? I don't have one on me right now. Qin Xiangming shook her head and said, Then there's no way out. My Meng Fan's friendship isn't that cheap. Meng Fan said with a cold face, For Meng Fan, it didn't matter if he made friends with Qin Xiangming or not, because for himself, Qin Xiangming was dispensable. After all, he was stronger than Qin Xiangming. This was just Qin Xiangming simply wanting to befriend him. So he didn't care if he had to offend Qin Xiangming or not. If I can take out a heavenly great weapon, I can gain your friendship? Qin Xiangming asked. There's really no point in asking that. Because friendship is something that is actually verbalized? Friendship, to put it bluntly, is also a feeling that can be said casually and, to put it bluntly, perfunctorily. However, Xin Shangming didn't think so. She felt that with Meng Fan's strength and status, there was no need to deceive herself. Even if friendship isn't the right word, it's still a favor. That's enough. After all, originally he had come with the attitude of making friends with Meng Fan. Meng Fan said to Qin Shangming, If you can take out a divine soldier, then I will barely recognize you as a friend. After all, although you are weak in front of me, you are truly considered a genius heavenly pride when looking at the entire secular world. This actually sounded very unpleasant to Qin Shangming, but coming from Meng Fan's mouth, it was indeed the truth, and there was nothing to refute that. Qin Shangming said, although I don't have any heavenly grade weapons on me right now, I know where to find them. Meng Fan looked at Qin Shangming as he frowned slightly. What do you mean, by that? Qin Shangming smiled and said, Eighth Prince, are you interested, in accompanying me to a place? To the one you said, the one with the heavenly grade weapons? Meng Fan asked, not bad. Qin Shangming nodded. After hearing Qin Shangming's words, Meng Fan glanced at Qin Shangming with interest. Why did he feel that this Qin Shangming had originally come for this idea? You came to me originally because you wanted to invite me to explore that place with you, right? 
Meng Fan's mind spun quickly, and he guessed Qin Xiangming's intentions in an instant. Qin Xiangming didn't deny it and said smilingly, Maybe your guess is right, but the place I'm talking about does have heavenly great weapons. Isn't the eighth prince interested? I do have some interest, but who am I to trust you? Because I don't have to lie to you. Not to mention I'm no match for you, and you should be able to sense that I've come with good intentions this time. Xin Xiangming's face was serious, her eyes full of sincerity. She believed that Meng Fan was able to see her goodwill, and a landy mortal would not be worthy of being a landy mortal if he couldn't even discern this. Meng Fan shook his head. I'm sure you've come here with good intentions, but a mere heaven-ranked weapon won't impress me. In fact, Meng Fan was already impressed. A heaven-grade weapon was enough for him to make a trip out of the palace, and it was completely worth it. After all, he only had one regular sword that was considered a heaven-grade weapon. As for this regular sword, it could only be used when activating the human emperor's bloodline, which made the disadvantages too great. Most of the time, having it is the same as not having it. Aside from Regulus, he didn't even have an earth-grade weapon, so the bargaining chip of a heaven-grade weapon was indeed enough. But in business, it's all about bargaining on the spot. There's got to be a price. The place I'm talking about has more than one heavenly grade weapon. Qin Xiangming said to Meng Fan with a smile on her face. A small smile appeared on Meng Fan's face. It looks like that's a really good place. Aren't you afraid that I'll unload on you then and kill you to have that place all to myself? Qin Xiangming shook her head. I trust your character. You're not that kind of person. Meng Fan couldn't help but roll his eyes. Believe. I don't even believe in myself. Can you believe in me? If that place was really like what Qin Xiangming said, he really did have the idea of monopolizing it. Of course, exclusive as it was, he wasn't going to kill Qin Xiangming. After all, Meng Fan, as a person, had always still had a bottom line in what he did. Fine, no matter what drug you have in your gourd, I can accompany you on this trip. Meng Fan said with a calm face, but to be ugly, if I find out that you're up to something and not being honest, I won't necessarily kill you. But from now on, there will be no more Qin Shangming, the seventh princess of the great dragon. There will only be Qin Shangming, the consort of the eighth prince of the great moon. If Qin Shangming was up to no good, Meng Fan would most likely just kill her. Depending on the extent of the haunting, if it's minor, she'll at least be imprisoned, if not killed. With Meng Fan's strength and cultivation, suppressing Qin Shangming as a maid was not a difficult task. Taming a human immortal reincarnated as a maid was still a fun thing to think about. Qin Shangming smiled faintly and said, If the eighth prince wants my concubine to be a maid, my concubine might be willing. Meng Fan looked coldly at Qin Shangming and grunted coldly. Oily mouth. I'll arrange a room for you tonight, and tomorrow I'll accompany you to see that treasure. After saying that, Meng Fan asked the guard outside the door, Xiao Tai, to arrange a room for Qin Shangming to spend the night. The next day, early in the morning, Qin Shangming arrived at Meng Fan's moonlight palace. This girl was obviously well-groomed, and although she was only slightly lightly made up, she was very bright. It had to be said that this woman, Qin Shangming, was indeed beautiful and had a stunning face value. If it wasn't for Meng Fan's superior mind, there was a real possibility that he would have been charmed by this girl. Go, Meng Fan said to Qin Shangming. Then he and Qin Shangming directly left the palace without alerting anyone from start to finish. Meng Fan was not the emperor. So the palace was something he could enter and leave whenever he wanted. After leaving the palace, Qin Shangming said to Meng Fan, To be honest, I'm a bit curious. With your current cultivation level, you shouldn't have been bound by the secular realm's imperial dynasty a long time ago. Meng Fan said with a calm face, Then where do you think I should go? Qin Shangming said, Sacred land. Ah, at your realm. Of course a sacred land is more suitable for your development. Meng Fan said, A holy land invited me. But I refused. Qin Xiangming looked surprised and said, Why? Because the lord of the sacred ground is only at the transformation spirit realm. Even if I don't go to the sacred ground, it won't take long for me to reach this realm. What do you think even the holy land can teach me? But there are more resources inside the holy land. You can cultivate to the transformation god realm faster. Meng Fan shook his head and said, Those resources, I can't look at them. Qin Xiangming was somewhat helpless, but she was able to understand Meng Fan's thoughts and meaning. How could this guy, who couldn't even look at the lord of the holy land, stoop to join the holy land? In his eyes, joining the holy land could be an aggravation. Chapter 109, I'm not in a hurry. It's you who's in a hurry. It sounds a bit outlandish, even pie in the sky. But for Meng Fan, he was truly qualified for this. After all, this guy, was an existence that had risen from the late Jin Dan stage, to the Yuaning realm in just a few months. 
It wouldn't take long at all for this kind of person to step into the transformation god realm. Moreover, once one reached the transformation spirit realm, neither their cultivation nor their status would be any weaker than the lord of the holy land. If that's the case, why did he go to the holy land to be subjugated? Aren't you comfortable being a knight prince in the imperial dynasty? Xin Shangming probably understood Meng Fan's thoughts and said along with him. So you want to wait until the god transformation realm and then directly enter the true spirit realm? Entering the true spirit realm? Meng Fan smiled, then shook his head. He hadn't thought that far ahead. When he would enter the true spirit realm, he hadn't really thought about it. He could only say that he would consider entering the true spirit realm when he wanted to enter the true spirit realm. In fact, with Meng Fan's strength today, once he activated the human emperor bloodline and relied on the divine might of the Xian Yuan sword, it was possible for him to cut through space and directly force his way into the true spirit realm. Between the secular world and the true spirit world, there was a passageway. But this passageway was controlled in the hands of those immortal sects in the true spirit world. Meng Fan was not familiar with the immortal sect, and it was unrealistic to want to enter the true spirit realm through the passageway. But for him, there was still a great hope of cutting through the spatial barrier between the true spirit realm and the secular world. Even if he couldn't now, raising another minor realm or two would be a breeze. And raising the realm really wasn't a difficult task for Meng Fan. Even if one cultivated to the transformation god realm in the secular world, it wouldn't take much time for Meng Fan. After all, he was open. Meng Fan shook his head and didn't pick up on this conversation, but instead asked Qin Shangming, Where is that treasure place you said hid heavenly grade weapons? Qin Shangming said, In the extreme northern cold plains of the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty, there is a human immortal cave mansion with many treasures inside. The Cave of the Immortals? A hint of surprise appeared on Meng Fan's face. He glanced at Qin Shangming and said coldly, Human Immortals Cave. Do you think that with our current cultivation and abilities, we are qualified to break into a human immortal's cave? Qin Shangming laughed. Don't worry, that human immortal has long since fallen. Meng Fan shook his head and said, even if he had fallen, he must have set up an organ formation type of existence in the cave before, not allowing outsiders to trespass. A human immortal's cave, a Yuaning and a Jin Dan wanting to go and break in. What was this if not a death sentence? For Meng Fan, his pursuit of chance was not as great as others, because he didn't actually need much chance to improve himself like others. His greatest chance was the divine grade physique and the divine grade technique. He only needed to cultivate step by step and it was already a chance that no one else would even dare to think about. So for Meng Fan, he didn't like taking risks. He can experience things, but only if there is nothing dangerous about that experience. Xin Shangming said, blame me for not making it clear, that although it was a human immortal cave, it had actually been broken open by me in my previous life. So in that cave, there was only my arrangement, not that human immortals. Meng Fan raised his head, coldly glanced at Qin Shangming, and said in a chilling voice, then wouldn't it be fair to say that this is your cave? Qin Shangming nodded. In a sense, it does qualify as my cave. Meng Fan frowned, you didn't say that before. Qin Shangming laughed bitterly, you didn't ask before. Didn't you just mention it? I didn't hide it from you. What exactly do you want to do when you try to trick me into your former cave? That's an obvious mistrust when you talk like that. Are you doubting me? I've already said that I came here with good intentions. And if I really wanted to hide it from you, I wouldn't have told you just now. You're really overthinking it. Xin Xiangming hurriedly explained. Meng Fan said, since it's your own cave, you know exactly what's set up. Why are you taking me with you? In fact, there was no reason for Meng Fan not to be suspicious, anyone else would suspect that Qin Shangming had ulterior motives. You need someone else's help to enter your own cave? Isn't it obvious that you want to victimize people? Qin Shangming said helplessly, I once set up two Yuaning level puppets within that cave. I'm only at the Jin Dan realm right now, so I'm no match for them. And since I've been reincarnated, I've lost control of those two puppets, and I can only enter the cave by destroying them. Hearing Qin Shangming's explanation, Meng Fan remained cold. His gaze icy cold as he looked at Qin Xiangming. For this Qin Xiangming, he lacked the most basic trust. Then you could have waited until you had cultivated yourself to the Yuaning realm, and then re-entered this cave. So why the rush? Meng Fan asked expressionlessly. Qin Xiangming said helplessly, Isn't this because you're in a hurry to get a heaven-ranked weapon? Meng Fan shook his head. I'm not in a hurry. It's you who's in a hurry. It was clearly Qin Xiangming who had taken the initiative to find herself and it was obvious that the purpose of finding herself was to enter this cave. If he said that Qin Shangming didn't have a plan, he simply didn't believe it. Qin Shangming had a bitter smile on her face as she glanced at Meng Fan. She could sense Meng Fan's suspicion of herself, 
and pushing herself and putting herself in his shoes, she would definitely be suspicious as well, but she really didn't have any malice towards Meng Fan, and if she did, she wouldn't have made things so clear, and she could have completely hidden it from Meng Fan, when Meng Fan enters the cave, she will victimize him, alright, I admit that I have selfishness, I was in a hurry to get my hands on some of the resources in the cave, Qin Xiangming said helplessly, you weren't in a hurry for so many years, so why did you get in a hurry when you met me? Meng Fan continued to press the issue, because for so many years, I simply haven't encountered an existence that can fight against a Yuaning puppet ah, there's only you, and before, I felt that my cultivation speed wasn't slow, so it's not too late to consider opening the cave when I've cultivated to the Yuaning realm. Now what? Now being stimulated by you chant, your cultivation speed is so fast, a few months ago it was clear that your realm was even lower than mine but now you have already surpassed me to reach the Yuaning realm. Meng Fan sneered, so you still have to thank me for inspiring you? A helpless expression appeared on Qin Shangming's face as she smiled bitterly. It's not impossible if you want to think hard like that. To be honest, Qin Shangming was indeed irritated by Meng Fan. She had been fixedly cultivating before. Her mind was calm and not in a hurry. But Meng Fan's appearance shattered her calm mindset and made her feel as if she was a waste. Obviously, he was the reincarnation of a human immortal and should be the existence of the most heavenly daughter in the secular world, but as a result, he was crushed by someone, change your mind to collapse or not, therefore, it was reasonable for Qin Shangming to want to gather resources early to raise her cultivation to enhance her realm, but Meng Fan didn't think so, he felt that Qin Shangming must be hiding something from him, chapter 110, no woman in the heart, cultivation of natural god, although Meng Fan didn't trust Qin Shangming, he wasn't afraid of her, Regardless of what plots and tricks this Qin Shangming had, he was not afraid. It was because he was confident that he could get Qin Shangming killed before she played her tricks. And this woman, Qin Shangming, was clearly unwilling to die with herself. She's afraid to die. If they weren't afraid of death, they wouldn't be reincarnated as a human immortal. If a human immortal wants to ascend to become a true immortal, he or she must put his or her life on the line and must break through the immortal realm barrier with a single stroke and ascend to become an immortal. Either you succeed or you completely fail and go up in smoke. The fact that Qin Xiangming was able to reincarnate proved that she lacked the conviction of certain death. Otherwise, she'd either be immortal or dead through and through. The fact that Meng Fan was able to see her at this moment proved that this woman was a person who was afraid of death. And people who were afraid of death were actually very good to deal with. So Meng Fan wasn't afraid of Qin Xiangming playing tricks. No matter what plots and calculations you have. In the end, you will realize that you can only harm yourself. Meng Fan said expressionlessly. Qin Xiangming said with an aggrieved face, there really isn't. She was also really helpless when she encountered such an unappreciative man as Meng Fan. In front of Meng Fan, the two things she was so proud of were both dealt a stark blow. Same with strength. Same with the looks. Her strength was not worth mentioning in front of Meng Fan. Her appearance. Meng Fan didn't seem to take it particularly seriously. Having said that, at this moment, Qin Shangming was kinda hoping that this guy Meng Fan was a womanizer. At least then he would have some backbone to pin him down. Unfortunately, this guy was just like a monk, actually indifferent in the face of such beauty as himself. Xin Shangming was obviously extremely confident in her own appearance. This was not a Pushin woman, because her looks were truly beatable, and it would not be an exaggeration to say that she was the first beauty of the Great Dragon Dynasty. In fact, amongst the Great Wind and Great Moon Dynasties, it wasn't impossible to find a second woman as stunning as Qin Shangming. Even among the holy places, it was probably not there, perhaps only among the immortal sects of the true spirit realm, with their outstanding people, could produce a woman comparable to Qin Shangming. But odds were those immortal sect fairies were not as good looking as Qin Shangming either. The two of them rushed along and soon arrived at the Great Wind Dynasty. Along the way, Qin Shangming teased Meng Fan if anything, but she found that this guy Meng Fan was really hard to tease and couldn't be teased. Meng Fan was calm all the way, and although he actually quite enjoyed this teasing from Qin Shangming, he did not give the slightest response. After all, Qin Shangming was a stunning woman, and no man could be indifferent. But Meng Fan had always believed in one thing, women will only affect the speed of my cultivation. So even if sometimes his heart was ruffled a bit by Qin Shangming, he quickly calmed down and his heart was like still water. There is no woman in your heart, and you practice natural god. Ten days later, the two arrived at the extreme northern cold plains of the Great Wind Imperial Dynasty. Your Highness, that cave, it's in the middle of this extreme north cold plain. Qin Shangming said to Meng Fan. I know, you said before, directly lead the way there. Meng Fan said expressionlessly. Qin Shangming was helpless, 
she was really a bit skeptical of her own charm now. Still, she didn't give up, and when the cold wind blew, she immediately shivered and said, Your Highness, I'm cold, whiny, on earth, this is proper green tea style. Meng Fan coldly looked at Qin Shangming and said expressionlessly, Cold? An existence at the peak Jindan realm can feel cold? Then what's the point of practicing? After saying that, Meng Fan took out a pot of hot water from his storage ring. Then he took out another cup, poured a cup of hot water and slowly drank it. This storage ring, he still got it from that Yuaning He Beifong of the demon race, and then he eliminated his storage bag. Qin Shangming looked blearily at the hot water in Meng Fan's hands. As a result, Meng Fan finished drinking the hot water and put the cup and kettle back into the storage ring, with no intention of giving Qin Shangming a cup of hot water. What is a real straight man? The man who tells you to drink more hot water isn't straight. He at least cares. Men who don't even give you hot water and drink it all by themselves are truly straight. Xin Xiangming looked at Meng Fan and said with an aggrieved face, You won't even give me a cup of that? Of course, the aggravation is feigned. Perhaps the more because of Meng Fan's indifference, the more she wanted to tease Meng Fan instead. Both men and women are the same. The more people don't care about you, the more you have a rebellious mentality, or a desire to conquer instead. Just like the current Meng Fan, who was always disdaining Qin Shangming and ignoring Qin Shangming's teasing. And Qin Shangming had an even greater urge to take down Meng Fan and conquer him. It's human and not embarrassing. A hint of helplessness appeared on Meng Fan's face as he said to Qin Shangming, Sorry, I only have one cup. Qin Shangming said with a blushing face, It's okay, I don't mind. Meng Fan said indifferently, I mind. These words caused Qin Shangming's heart to suddenly have a wave of accelerated beating. It's gas. Don't pretend. Your true essence protects your body. How can you be really cold? Where do you need to drink any hot water? Hurry up and hurry. Meng Fan poked Qin Shangming without mercy. Your realm is higher than mine. Your cultivation is stronger than mine. And you're even less afraid of the cold. So what hot water are you drinking? Qin Shangming was furious. I was thirsty then. Meng Fan said casually. Then I'm thirsty too. Qin Shangming said. Endure. Meng Fan remained expressionless. Qin Shangming gritted her teeth and didn't humiliate herself anymore. This guy, is he really a man? Or is the heart made of stone? How could he be so hard-hearted in front of a stunning woman like himself? Qin Shangming huffed and puffed as she led the way to that cave. After all, teasing Menfan was just a side job. She had business to do. Soon, the two arrived at the eastern location of the extreme north cold plains, where Qin Shangming found a small hill. At the middle position of the hillside, she blasted it open with her true essence and a cave door appeared. Qin Shangming said to Meng Fan, There is a prohibition on this door that I casually set up back then. After so many years have passed, the power on top of the prohibition has dissipated to the extent that I am certain that I can break through this prohibition. Meng Fan nodded and said, Then break it. Qin Shangming said, Because I have been reincarnated and am no longer the same person I was in my previous life. The two Yuaning puppets behind the door of this cave will definitely rush out and attack us after breaking the prohibition. I know. Meng Fan had a calm face. Knowing that you instead make preparations ah, what needs to be set up hurry up and set up. Xin Shangming rolled her eyes. There's no need to prepare anything. You can just crack the prohibition directly. Meng Fan said casually. Xin Shangming immediately said anxiously. What do you mean you don't need to prepare anything? These are two Yuaning level puppets. If you don't set up some means in advance. How can I dare to break the prohibition? Chapter 111 Extreme Spirit Stones Although Qin Shangming knew that Meng Fan was a Yuaning realm cultivator, there were after all two Yuaning realm puppets in here. If Meng Fan didn't pay enough attention, there was a good chance that something would go terribly wrong. This attitude of Meng Fan made her a bit nervous and worried, not daring to crack the prohibition on the gate of this cave. Dude, you gotta get serious. Meng Fan said calmly, two Yuaning realm puppets are just that. No need to take it to heart. You can just unlock the restrictions directly. But, Qin Xiangming looked nervous. But her words were interrupted by Meng Fan before she could say them. No buts, do you think I would joke with my life? You're afraid of dying, and I don't want to die either. Meng Fan said without good humor. Are you really sure you can deal with two Yuaning level puppets? Qin Xiangming was still a bit uneasy. Even if it's two Yuaning realm cultivators, I'm sure I can deal with them. Let alone just puppets. Meng Fan was certain. But no matter how sure Meng Fan said it, Qin Xiangming was a bit flustered. After all, she had seen with her own eyes a few months ago that Meng Fan was only at the late Jindan stage. For a cultivator to ascend from the late Jindan stage to the Yuaning realm in just a few months, this cultivation speed was already infinitely terrifying. With this extreme cultivation speed, could his strength really keep up? 
It was because she knew this cultivation speed of Meng Fan's that Qin Shangming subconsciously thought that this Meng Fan's strength might be a bit worse than the equivalent Yuaning realm. After all, this kind of perverted and exaggerated cultivation speed would definitely affect some strength. She felt that Meng Fan was a quickfire Yuaning realm cultivator and might have some problems with unstable roots. So, naturally the strength will have suffered a bit. Although it was said that Yuaning realm puppets were very stiff and rigid and were generally no match for Yuaning realm cultivators. However, Qin Shangming likewise believed that Meng Fan was no match for an ordinary Yuaning realm cultivator. Thus, Meng Fan's such a cocky attitude really made her a bit fretful. But it had come to this, and she was on the edge of her seat. This cave is definitely open. As for Meng Fan, never mind. One can only trust him. Even if this Yuaning of Meng Fan's was more watery, it shouldn't be more watery than a puppet, right? Therefore, Qin Shangming clenched her teeth and still decided to undo the restriction on the door of this cave. As she thought, this prohibition had never been maintained after so many years had passed, so the power had already dissipated. With a little effort, she managed to undo the ban. Then the moment the prohibition was lifted, the door to the cave suddenly opened. It seemed that there was some monster inside the cave that was stimulated and charged out with a roar. What rushed out was not a monster, but two humanoid puppets. These two puppets were so lifelike that if they didn't know in advance that they were puppets, they would even treat them as real people. It must be said that this technology is much better than the dolls created by technology on earth. The two puppets hissed and rushed out, one with a sword in his hand and the other with a knife in his hand, killing with a murderous spirit. Qin Shangming hurriedly rushed to Meng Fan's back in a flash, her face full of tension, one way or another. Today's her was no match for these two puppets. The reason why she dared to come and risk opening the cave was also purely because of Meng Fan's presence, out of her trust in Meng Fan. Although, this guy doesn't seem very trustworthy. But now there is no other way. After all, things have been done. There is no room for regret. Qin Shangming was behind Meng Fan and shouted at him. Eighth Prince. The weakness of these two puppets is the spirit stones at the back of their heads. The spirit stone at the back of his head, covered by his hair, could not be seen at all. Thinking about this, Qin Shangming became a bit complacent. It was because she had once seen some people making puppets. And they even put the spirit stone in the center of their eyebrows. Extremely conspicuous as if they were afraid that other people wouldn't know that the spirit stone was a living target. Purely, that's why she placed the spirit stone on the back of the puppet's head, plus it was covered by her hair, so the average person couldn't even see where the spirit stone was. She believed that with her reminder, Meng Fan should already be able to handle these two puppets. After all, a puppet's greatest weakness was spirit stones. Once the spirit stone is done, the puppet is dead. Meng Fan's face was calm, and he had naturally heard Qin Xiangming's words. Originally, he was prepared to decapitate these two puppets, but with Qin Xiangming's reminder, he had other ideas. Instead of destroying the two puppets, it would be better to take off the spirit stones intact and carry them home to watch the door. Having these two puppets as door gods was much better than those guards of the Great Moon Imperial Dynasty. As for the method of manipulating these two puppets, Qin Xiangming definitely had it. Just need to bully and seduce. Really can't do a little torture. He does not believe that Qin Xiangming does not honestly say it. Thinking of this, Meng Fan couldn't help but have a smile on his cheeks. Meng Fan, who was originally prepared to move his sword, gave up on striking out. He moved his legs. Wind God Leg First Style, Catch 22. He instantly came to the side of one of the puppets, and then followed it up with another kick. Wind God Leg Fourth Stance, Thunderclap, a kick on the puppet's head. The true essence shook and pointed straight at the back of the puppet's head. In the next second. A crystal stone shot out from the back of the puppet's head and was shaken out. Meng Fan received the spirit stone with a hint of satisfaction on his face. Extreme spirit stones, and more than 90% of the spiritual energy in it was still unused. Absolutely, not far away. Qin Shangming looked at Meng Fan dumbfounded, not thinking that Meng Fan had actually resolved the Yuaning puppet so gently. Although this puppet was stupid and was only at the early Yuaning realm, it wasn't so easily taken care of, was it? This Meng Fan was stronger than she had imagined, and by a lot. Then looking at the spirit stone in Meng Fan's hand, she couldn't help but shout, Your Majesty, this is my spirit stone. Meng Fan coldly looked at Qin Xiangming and said in a chilling voice, Now, it's my spirit stones, take it by force. Qin Xiangming was furious, but there was nothing she could do. This spirit stone, indeed, Meng Fan himself had fought off from the puppet's body. In a sense it was Meng Fan's trophy. If you are stronger than Meng Fan, you can find Meng Fan to reason and bring back the spirit stones. But now it was Meng Fan who was stronger than her. And she couldn't say anything even if she was justified. 
Hopeless. Then, Meng Fan did as he had done, easily taking care of the second puppet as well, and then getting his hands on the second extreme spirit stone as well. The harvest of these two spirit stones alone had already made Meng Fan somewhat satisfied. Meng Fan then took the sword in the puppet's hand again. Xin Shangming said, This is my. Meng Fan glanced coldly at Qin Shangming and said in a tone that brooked no argument. Mine. Chapter 112 Skeletons in the Cave This blade and sword, both of which were earth-grade weapons, were already extremely good. At least Meng Fan didn't have an earth-grade weapon today. Although he had the heaven-grade regular sword, below the regular sword was the Xian-grade spirit wind sword, and there were no earth-grade weapons. So this knife and sword, Meng Fan naturally couldn't possibly let it go to Qin Shangming, and definitely had to pocket it himself. With a thought, the sword entered his storage ring. Xin Shangming could only sigh helplessly. In this situation, it was naturally impossible for her to snatch Meng Fan. In fact, she was not strong enough to defeat Meng Fan under any circumstances. Qin Shangming thought for a moment and said somewhat helplessly, Eighth Prince, but before, you had agreed that you only needed one heavenly grade weapon. Why are you so greedy now? Meng Fan shook his head and said, I only said before that a heavenly grade weapon would gain my friendship. But I didn't say that accompanying you to this cave would only lead to a heavenly grade weapon. Xin Xiangming immediately said anxiously, But this is my cave. It seems a bit inappropriate for you to take away things here without my consent, right? As you said before, this used to be someone else's cave, which was later occupied by you. What's more, these two puppets struck out at me. I defeated them, and they are my trophies. You have no objection to that, right? Is there anything wrong with me collecting my own loot and taking it myself? Meng Fan said to Qin Shangming with a serious face, This is being reasonable. He's not being brutally unreasonable. Hearing Meng Fan's words, Qin Shangming could only sigh helplessly and take the loss. She said somewhat helplessly, Eighth Prince, in that case, these two puppets can be yours, but the things in the cave are all my stash, so I hope you won't be taking them by force. If Meng Fan had asked for a lion's share of the cave and was prepared to monopolize it, then she had no intention of continuing to undo the cave's restrictions. Although the prohibition on the gate of this cave was lifted, there was still a prohibition inside. Only by completely unlocking the prohibitions inside as well, would they be able to truly enter the cave and get the treasures inside. Breaking the first gate entrance's prohibition just allowed those two puppets to be able to come out. If it was just the loss of these two puppets, Xin Shangming wasn't too distressed. If Meng Fan was endlessly ambitious and wanted to overrun the entire cave, then Qin Shangming would be at a huge loss and would definitely be unable to accept it. So she had to make things clear with Meng Fan now. Meng Fan said expressionlessly, Since the things inside the cave are yours, I can refrain from robbing them and only take one of your heavenly grade weapons. However, if there is something similar to a puppet in the cave that strikes out at me, then it will still become my loot. Hearing Meng Fan's words, Qin Shangming let out a sigh of relief. Regarding this Meng Fan, she had inquired about a lot of information during this period of time. She believed that Meng Fan should not break his word if he said such words. What's more, although there were good things inside this cave, there weren't many good things. With Meng Fan's level of mystery, it really wasn't something that could be looked at. Good, I hope that your highness can do what you say. Qin Shangming said with a serious face. Meng Fan laughed. This king has always been a man of his word. The seventh princess can rest assured. Saying that, Meng Fan thought about it, and it seemed like he wasn't really much of a promise. If there really was any treasure in the cave that Meng Fan valued extremely highly, then even if Meng Fan didn't rob it by force, he would still bully his way into getting it. After all, this Qin Shangming was still extremely easy to pin down in Meng Fan's eyes. All right, can we enter the cave now? Meng Fan said to Qin Shangming. Wait a moment, there is still a prohibition in the cave that needs to be broken. Your Highness don't be in a hurry. Qin Shangming said with a grave expression. Then... Qin Shangming began to continue cracking the prohibitions of this cave. It was only after a full half hour that Qin Shangming wiped the beads of sweat from her forehead and said to Meng Fan, It's done. The ban has been completely broken, and now I'm able to enter the cave. Meng Fan nodded, and without much hesitation, directly took large steps toward the cave. After entering the cave, it was naturally dark. Meng Fan took out a night pearl from his storage ring. With the appearance of the night pearl, the entire cave was immediately illuminated as if it was daytime. Immediately afterward, Meng Fan saw a skeleton in the cave. The skeleton sat cross-legged on the ground, unmoving, a pure corpse. Meng Fan immediately turned back to Qin Shangming and said, Why is there a skeleton here? You didn't mention it before. Qin Shangming was also filled with disbelief and incomparable surprise. She said offhandedly, Impossible. There can't be skeletons here. Unless someone entered this cave after me. 
But if someone entered this cave after me, how come the restrictions of this cave haven't changed? The prohibitions in this cave were still the same ones laid down by Qin Shangming in her previous life. So if someone had entered the cave, why had the prohibitions not been destroyed? But if no one had entered this cave, how did this corpse appear? Qin Shangming was certain that there shouldn't be a corpse here. Meng Fan said, the only explanation is that someone entered this cave without touching your prohibitions. But by the looks of it, this person has also fallen. This is tantamount to nonsense. Our skeletons must have fallen completely dead. But the question now is not who the skeleton is or how he got in. The point now is are those treasures you hid before still there? The most important thing was that there were no more heaven-ranked weapons left in the end. Meng Fan had followed Qin Shangming over, but he had come here for a heaven-grade weapon, preferably a sword weapon. Now looking at this, the cave seems to have been cracked long ago and become someone else's cave. Qin Shangming glanced at the location in the corner of the cave, her face somewhat ugly. Originally, in this position, there was supposed to be a box, but now, it was empty, not to mention any treasure. Even the chest was completely gone. Obviously, the treasures that he had left here should have been searched by others, and the person who searched it was obviously this corpse. However, after this guy cracked his cave and commandeered his cave, he actually ended up dying inside it? That's a little strange, because even under normal circumstances, very few people would die inside the cave. Deaths, mostly out in the open, met enemies and were hacked to death. What kind of circumstances lead to death in a cave? The retreat went off the rails and died, or he escaped with serious injuries and near death, and died after returning to his cave. Both probabilities are extremely low. It's just that at this moment, in this cave, someone died in it, and they died sitting cross-legged, as if they had sat down. It looks like what you left here before is missing. Meng Fan asked Qin Shangming with a frown. Chapter 113, Two Choices. Seeing Qin Shangming's expression, it was obvious that she was able to discover this. The appearance of a corpse in the cave for no reason proved that the cave had long since become someone else's cave, occupied by someone else. So this current situation is not a surprise at all. It was possible to guess this situation, at least from the moment the corpse was found. Sorry, I might have to make you make a trip for nothing. Qin Shangming said somewhat helplessly. To be honest, she swore that she would get Meng Fan a heavenly grade weapon to gain his friendship. Now it's just a naked slap in the face. Meng Fan didn't put it on his mind, because for him, this time there was already a not so small gain, two extreme spirit stones, two puppets, and two earth grade weapons, the value of all of these things combined, even if it wasn't as good as a heavenly grade armament, it wasn't really that far off, so for Meng Fan, this trip was not a loss, the one who really lost money was Qin Xiangming, however, for Qin Xiang, it was a matter of time, sooner or later, she would find out that the cave had changed ownership sooner or later, and by that time, she would already be left with nothing. Of course, the two puppets watching the door might fall into her hands, but with Qin Xiangming's former height of the immortal realm, she probably couldn't look at these two puppets. Meng Fan laughed, then said to Qin Xiangming, don't rush to lose your head first. Although this guy died, he died in a cave, so it's very likely that his hidden treasures are still in this cave. Thinking about it another way, maybe this is a blessing not a curse. When this corpse was alive, he was able to make these two puppets still guard the door, proving that he rarely touched this cave. In fact it did move very little. He actually didn't even break the previous ban. Proof that this person is extremely lazy. So since he had fallen in this cave, it was likely that all of his hidden treasures were also in the cave. If that was the case, then within this cave, there were not only the treasures Qin Shangming had hidden before, but also the treasures hidden by this corpse. Under the accumulation of both sides, the harvest might be even richer than Qin Xiangming had previously imagined, and now all they need to do is look. Let's see if this corpse had left all its hidden treasures in the cave or not after it fell in the cave. And the thing with the greatest likelihood is the storage ring. So Meng Fan carefully observed this corpse, wanting to see if there were any storage rings on this corpse. But unfortunately, the corpse was so naked that it had nothing on it. The strangest thing was that on the surface of this corpse's body, there wasn't even a single piece of clothing a whole skeleton of bones without a single shade. It was as if he had nothing to wear when he fell, coming into the world clean and then leaving it clean. Perhaps there was a possibility that the guy practiced a fire attribute technique, then went off the deep end and fell, and his clothes were burned to the ground. Of course, no matter how this guy died, Meng Fan wasn't interested. What he was interested in was the treasure inside the cave. Unfortunately, a hint of helplessness appeared on Meng Fan's face. No storage ring had been found. So odds were that this guy's hidden treasure was not in the cave. Then, 
He scanned the entire cave with his divine sense, and still didn't find any storage equipment like storage rings and storage pendants. It shouldn't be, Meng Fan muttered, since he had fallen in the cave. There was no reason why he would have placed his lifetime's hidden treasures elsewhere ah, uh, the point is that there should be opportunities to put it elsewhere as well. Unless, coincidentally, he had put them somewhere else earlier. By all rights, the probability of this should be extremely low. A trace of doubt appeared on Meng Fan's face before he once again scanned the entire cave with his divine sense. As a result, the entire cave was empty. Nothing. This made Meng Fan somewhat incomprehensible. If this guy knew he was going to die, so he gave his hidden treasure to someone else or put it somewhere else. But why were the two puppets at the door still there? These two puppets are also extremely precious things. If this guy wants to clean up the wealth, then these two puppets should not be spared, rather than directly so still placed at the door. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. Meng Fan couldn't figure it out. Qin Xiangming looked at Meng Fan who kept frowning and asked somewhat strangely, Eighth Prince, what are you thinking about? Meng Fan spoke out his doubts, especially the two puppets, why they were still placed at the entrance of the cave. Hearing Meng Fan's words, Qin Xiangming's brows also furrowed, because Meng Fan had a point. This one was indeed a bit untenable and out of character. A moment later, Qin Xiangming said helplessly, regardless of whether this is reasonable or not, but things have already happened, and with the facts in front of us, we can only believe them. This time it's considered a mistake on my part, making the eighth prince make a trip for nothing, but I'll definitely get a heavenly grade weapon to gain your friendship. To Qin Xiangming, Meng Fan was something she valued extremely highly. In her eyes, Meng Fan's value definitely exceeded a heavenly great weapon by a long shot. Even she vaguely felt that Meng Fan was her hope for revenge, so she had to enlist Meng Fan and find ways to make him her friend. A mere heaven level weapon was not a matter of concern. For Qin Xiangming at this moment, she was only at the peak of the Jindan realm and hadn't even set foot in the Yuanying realm, so it was indeed extremely difficult for her to obtain a heavenly great weapon. But she wasn't an ordinary peak Jindan, she was a human immortal reincarnated. This identity was enough to make ordinary Yuaning or even ordinary transformation spirits inferior to her in some ways. Other than that, she knew of more than one cave like this one. However, at this time, after having just lost, she was naturally too embarrassed to ask Meng Fan to accompany her to the next cave again. She wants a face too. What's more, at this time Meng Fan wouldn't necessarily believe her. After all, he had just blundered once, so she wasn't going to startle Meng Fan any further. She could find a way to acquire a heavenly great weapon herself and then use that to trade for Meng Fan's friendship. Just as Meng Fan and Qin Shangming were about to leave this cave, Meng Fan suddenly sensed a hint of an extremely subtle and bizarre fluctuation. At his level, it was impossible to have had an illusion, so he wouldn't ignore even the slightest fluctuation, because he knew that the fluctuation was definitely real and wouldn't be a miscalculation. Since it's true, that means there's something wrong here. Seeing Meng Fan's suddenly grave expression, Qin Xiangming asked with some surprise, what's wrong? Meng Fan said with a serious face, this cave, there are still problems we haven't discovered, so be careful yourself. He warned Qin Xiangming to be careful. The fluctuations that were hard to detect even for himself were naturally more dangerous for Qin Xiangming, who had yet to step into the Yuanning realm after all. Meng Fan took a deep breath, then exerted his divine sense with full concentration and scanned the cave once again. But in this state of concentration, he instead didn't notice where the fluctuation came from anymore. But the fluctuation that had just occurred was definitely real. And Meng Fan did not doubt this. And this clearing down proved the weirdness in the cave. The abnormality that even Meng Fan hadn't discovered under his full power was hidden in the shadows. This is likely to be dangerous. There was a high probability that something weird was hidden in this cave. And just now, as he and Qin Shangming prepared to leave, that weird thing slacked off before it shed a hint of fluctuation to be detected by himself. Now that he was fully focused on his inventory, the other party was cautious again, and he would not be able to detect it. Meng Fan's brows furrowed. There were two choices before him now. One is to leave immediately and save yourself any trouble. The second was to continue exploring and find the weirdness in the cave. It was likely that this weirdness had the treasure he needed to find. If there really was a third existence in this cave, then the treasures in the cave were most likely in the hands of the other party. This is something you can think of even with your toes. With a clench of his teeth, Meng Fan chose the second option. Having come here, how could he return empty-handed when he was sure that there might be a treasure hidden? A hint of gravity and seriousness appeared on Meng Fan's face, and then he operated the Erlang True Lord's conceptual thoughts. This was a heaven-level technique used to cultivate this aspect of the divine sense Yuanshan soul. Of course, he was still only at the Yuanning realm and hadn't cultivated a Yuanshan. 
but that didn't stop him from enhancing his divine sense with the Erlang Jinju and Guanfa. After casting this conceptualization doctrine, Meng Fan's divine sense strength instantly skyrocketed by a large margin once again. Qin Xiangming, who was behind Meng Fan, had shock on her face. It was because although she was only at the peak of the Jindan realm and had not stepped into the Yuaning realm, she was, after all, a reincarnation of a human immortal, and her eyesight was still extremely superior. She was vaguely able to sense that the strength of Meng Fan's divine sense at this moment had almost reached the peak Yuaning realm, if it was even stronger. It would even be close to touching the threshold of God transformation. This was undoubtedly a jealous shock for Qin Xiangming. Shock, exaggeration, terror, obviously. A few months ago, Meng Fan's realm was still inferior to hers. And now, well, during this period of time, Qin Xiangming could not remember how many times she had made this exclamation. It was really just quite outrageous. And even more outrageous was the fact that Qin Xiangming had vaguely accepted this outrageously perverted setting. She was beginning to feel as if it was quite normal for such an impossible thing to happen to Meng Fan. That's a little scary. However, soon Qin Xiangming calmed down, because she had thought of something even more important, and that was why had Meng Fan suddenly erupted with such a terrifying strength of divine sense. Obviously, Meng Fan's previous divine sense strength was only normal, whereas now it was a divine sense strength that had been enhanced with a secret method. And the reason why he had to raise the strength of his divine sense was obviously because he had encountered some special situation. Then connecting it to Meng Fan's earlier reminder to be careful. Qin Shangming understood that there might really still be dangers hidden in this cave that she hadn't discovered. Chapter 114, I didn't tell you to leave. And, what Qin Shangming could think of was, this hidden danger was not only undetected by himself, even Meng Fan had not fully realized it. Otherwise, there would be no need for Meng Fan to use a secret method to enhance the strength of his divine sense. In fact, Qin Shangming had still misunderstood Meng Fan, because Erlang Jinjuan's idea is not the kind of secret method that she thought of. Secret techniques are the kind of special techniques that have side effects, killing the enemy a thousand times and damaging themselves 800 times. As for Meng Fan's Erlang Jinjuan conceptualization, it was a proper cultivation technique and didn't have that so-called side effect. This was a genuine heaven-ranked technique a hallowed heaven-ranked technique. However, there was one thing that she had guessed correctly, and that was that Meng Fan really hadn't completely discovered that hidden danger. But with the outbreak of Erlang True Lord's conceptual thoughts, after Meng Fan's divine sense intensity had skyrocketed, Meng Fan finally discovered where that hidden fluctuation was coming from. Meng Fan turned around and looked at the skeleton on the ground with a hint of scorn amidst his gaze. This skeleton sat cross-legged, a white skeleton, like a skeleton. Anyone who saw such a skeleton would think the thing was dead and could not possibly still be alive. Qin Shangming thought so, and so did Meng Fan. If it wasn't for that trace of fluctuation just now, if it wasn't for Erlang Jinjuan's divine sense after the enhancement of his Guan Yu Si detected that this trace of fluctuation came from being in the skeleton, Meng Fan never dreamed that this skeleton, actually, was still alive. Yes, the skeleton was all but a skeleton, completely and utterly skeletonized, but it was indeed undead. This was the answer that Erlang True Lord's divine sense, after being empowered by the goddess of contemplation, told Meng Fan, 8th Prince, what are you staring at this skeleton for? Qin Shangming asked with some curiosity. Of course, there was a hint of nervousness amidst the curiosity. Kudi, all knew that Meng Fan couldn't possibly stare at a corpse for no reason. Odds are, something is wrong with this corpse. The big question, sure enough, Meng Fan said with a grave expression, this corpse, there's something wrong with it. What's the problem? Qin Xiangming asked nervously. He's not dead. Meng Fan was full of seriousness. Qin Xiangming's heart jumped, subconsciously thinking that Meng Fan was joking. But looking at Meng Fan's expression, she understood that Meng Fan wasn't joking. This skeleton, it's not dead? Then there's a big problem. After all, Qin Xiangming was once a human immortal, one of the pinnacle existences in this world, and had seen a lot. The first thing she could ascertain was that the body was definitely dead too dead to die, it's all skeletonized, and the physical body naturally perishes, but then again, she knew very well that for cultivators, the death of the physical body did not mean true death, only when the divine soul is completely extinguished can it be considered dead, Meng Fan said that this skeleton wasn't dead, so that proved that there was still a divine soul hidden within this skeleton, it could even be, Genesis, cultivators at the Jindan realm who wanted to break through to the Yuanying realm needed to shatter their infants into Dan in order to achieve Yuanying, as for cultivators at the Yuaning realm, if they wanted to break through to the transformation god realm, they needed to cultivate the Yuaning in their bodies into Yuanchen. 
the Genjutsu can be considered an upgraded version of the Genjutsu, the thing called a Genesis, in the end, has a lifespan, and will grow old and die, the Genjutsu, on the other hand, is immortal, of course, it's not right to say that, it's a bit of an exaggeration, because the Yuan Shin just has an infinite lifespan, it can theoretically be immortal, however, if they encountered an expert, their Yuan Shin would also be easily destroyed, since he could be killed, he would not be destroyed even if he had to die, a true immortality should be one that can't even be beaten to death, that lives as long as the heavens for all eternity, well, those are just overthinking it, and now is not the time to think about it, it's important to do the right thing, Xin Shengming reminded Meng Fan, 8th Prince be careful, there may be a Yuan Shin hidden within this skeleton, the owner of this skeleton, since he had the ability to overrun his cave, and that was without destroying the forbidden system or the puppet, then it was very likely that he was an expert of the god transformation realm, a powerful existence in the Yuaning realm might have a way to break through their own prohibitions, but it was absolutely impossible to master this cave without destroying them, those who were able to do so were, in all probability, transformation spirits or even stronger existences, that was why Qin Shangming had immediately opened her mouth to remind Meng Fan after she had figured this out, because after spending time together, she realized that Meng Fan was an extremely arrogant person, and if she didn't point out the word Yuan Shen, she was afraid that Meng Fan would still not take it seriously, it could be seen from the way Meng Fan had just dealt with the two Yuaning realm puppets without giving a damn, although Meng Fan did easily deal with those two Yuaning realm puppets, this still couldn't hide Meng Fan's condescending and arrogant nature, the fact that he had deliberately mentioned the word Yuan Shen meant that this skeleton was at least in existence in the realm of transformation, so even if Meng Fan was arrogant, he would definitely take it seriously, moreover, after reminding Meng Fan, Qin Xiangming subconsciously retreated a few more steps, getting closer and closer to the door of the cave, she wasn't as arrogant as Meng Fan, she knew very well that she was facing this situation, and that the slightest mishap would be the end of her life, so it wasn't shameful to run away at this time, Meng Fan also said to Qin Xiangming, you leave the cave first, leave this place to me, at this time, even if Qin Xiangming stayed in the cave, she wouldn't be able to help Meng Fan much, and might even drag him down, although it was said that in the event of a dangerous situation, Meng Fan would most likely abandon Qin Xiangming and would not risk his life in order to save her, however, there were some things that could not be said to be said, so letting Qin Xiangming leave early instead left him without scruples, if Meng Fan was able to solve it, then it would be useless for Qin Xiangming to stay here, and if it was a trouble that Meng Fan couldn't solve, it was even more useless for Qin Xiangming to stay here, because in Meng Fan's opinion Qin Xiangming was just too weak to help him in the slightest, perhaps it was a bit much to say, but even though Qin Xiangming was at the peak of Jin Dan and was a reincarnation of a human immortal, she was still a waste in Meng Fan's eyes, at least compared to Meng Fan he was pretty wasted, when Qin Xiangming heard Meng Fan's words, she didn't hesitate to directly escape from the cave without the slightest hesitation, not dragging her feet at all, Meng Fan stared at the skeleton with a deadly stare, and there was both scorn and excitement in his eyes, the reason why he drove Qin Xiangming away was indeed for Qin Xiangming's safety on the one hand, but the larger aspect is to monopolize what is potentially next to be harvested, moreover, Meng Fan didn't want Qin Xiangming to know his own bottom card, the human emperor bloodline, an ability of the supreme gift, it was naturally better to hide it if he could, it was naturally better not to let Qin Xiangming know about this kind of undercard, come out, I know you're not dead, Meng Fan looked coldly at the skeleton, the skeleton didn't move, still sitting quietly on the ground, unmoving, since I'm saying such things, naturally I've already discovered your concealment, and you were still careless enough to reveal the cracks, if you reveal that hint of fluctuation when we're completely gone, we won't be able to detect it at all, unfortunately, you got excited too soon, as soon as Meng Fan's words fell, the skeleton moved, the skeleton frame, slowly, stood up from its state of sitting cross-legged on the ground, instantly, a legendary skeleton warrior appeared in front of Meng Fan, skeletons, in a sense, can be considered a living creature, right, after all, in his previous life on earth, Meng Fan had also read quite a few novels with skeletons, this thing, by definition, is somewhat similar to a being like a zombie, but again, it feels less forced than the zombies, by quite a bit, after the skeleton stood up, it stared at Meng Fan expressionlessly and coldly, of course, it just couldn't have an expression even if it wanted one, after all, it was only a skeleton, and it couldn't even move its facial bones well, on top of that, its eye sockets were black with no eyeballs, but the next moment, the skeleton's mouth bones and teeth moved and actually made a sound, 
And can you think of this fluctuation? Is it something I made on purpose? Meng Fan's brows furrowed. The voice was not a real voice. Although the skeleton's mouth bone teeth moved, the voice did not come from its mouth. It was a means similar to divine sense sound transmission. A skeleton. A pure skeleton. Not even a tongue or a throat. Trying to make sounds like a normal person was obviously impossible. However, it doesn't matter what way you make the sound. It's just important to be able to communicate. So, you're still deliberately making a commotion to try to leave me behind? Meng Fan said to the skeleton. Maybe. The guy continued to transmit his voice to Meng Fan. Ha! Huh? Meng Fan let out a cold laugh. Whatever you want to do, but I'm sure you can guess a thing or two about what I'm here for. This cave, originally belonged to the girl child who just came in with me, and we came over just to retrieve what originally belonged to her. I don't care how you found this cave and how you occupied it. Give us back the items that belonged to that girl in the previous cave and we'll turn around and leave without bothering you again. Hearing Meng Fan's words, the skeleton's tone became even colder, carrying a hint of moroseness. Give you your stuff back? Oh, are you guys dreaming? As for leaving, do you think I want you to leave? Ridiculous, did I say for you to leave? Hearing this, Meng Fan instantly laughed. By the looks of it, you want to take a shot at me? Do you think you can deal with me in your current state? As a matter of fact, Meng Fan saying this was also a test, though he had been acting condescending, towering over the skeleton in a crushing manner. But the truth was, he didn't know just how strong this skeleton was. Perhaps, the other party was really ridiculously strong, and was able to hang himself even with only a skeleton frame left? Judging from the other side's attitude, it's not impossible. Because before, Meng Fan felt that the other party had revealed that fluctuation because he and Qin Shangming were preparing to leave, and the other party had unintentionally revealed it under slackness. But now it seems as if that is not the case. Chapter 115 The Regulator Sword The meaning that flowed out of this skeleton's words just now seemed as if he was deliberately revealing this fluctuation to attract his attention. It meant that the other person didn't want to let themselves go, and then the meaning was clear. The other side was sure to take themselves down. According to Qin Shangming's reminder, this fellow was most likely an existence of the transformation god realm, with his Yuan Shun still alive. There may even be more than that. With just the Yuan Shun, losing one's physical body, one's combat power would indeed be greatly reduced, even to the point of being 10 to 1. But a cultivator of the Yuan Shun realm, even if it was a tenth of its combat power, it was still not something that an ordinary Yuan Ing could deal with. What's more, it wasn't possible to be sure that this guy was only a transformation spirit when he was alive. What if he was a cave void? Uh, caveman should be unlikely. Because an existence in the cave void realm must have traveled to the true spirit realm, the secular world was simply not suitable for the cultivation and development of cultivators at the cave void realm. And even at the goddess of transformation realm, there were only some lords of holy lands who were still willing to stay in the secular world. Of course, it was said that they stayed in the secular world. But who knew if they ran to the true spirit realm every now and then? After all, if the transformation spirit realm wanted to cultivate and make a breakthrough, it was still more suitable in the true spirit realm, although the holy land was a large family. But no matter how well the holy land operated and was able to harvest even more resources from the secular world, it was still no match for the true spirit realm. Therefore, the peak state of this skeleton was most likely Yuan Shun, and it shouldn't be as bad as Cave Void. You dare to take the initiative to reveal your fluctuations and entice me to stay. So it looks like you don't place me in your eyes and feel certain that you will be able to deal with me. I'm curious, where did you get the confidence when you've already lost your physical body? Meng Fan asked to the skeleton. A mere mid yuaning stage. Even if I don't have a physical body, why should I put it in my eyes? Dealing with you is a matter of hand-to-hand -hand combat. The skeleton's voice reached Meng Fan's ears. Sure enough, this guy doesn't put the mid yuaning stage in his eyes. With regards to this, Meng Fan had some guesses because he felt that if this guy dared to take the initiative to expose and leave himself behind, then he must have seen through his cultivation and didn't take himself seriously. Unfortunately, he was no ordinary cultivator of the mid yuaning realm. Meng Fan said to the skeleton, I'm curious, we have no grudges against you, and if we just leave, it won't bother you, then what the hell are you doing leaving me behind on purpose? What good would it do you to kill me? Listening to your tone. I'm a tiny mid yuaning stage, and some of the resources on my body are probably not something you can look at. This was indeed Meng Fan's question. For cultivators of this realm, they shouldn't be able to look at some of those trashy treasures on a mid yuaning. In that case, wouldn't it be better for him to just leave? Why make such a mess to leave himself behind? Could it be that there was something in himself, that the other party valued? Who said I'm going to kill you? This body of yours, I can't afford to destroy it. 
Hearing the skeleton's words, Meng Fan instantly understood and came to a sudden realization. Although the other party didn't say it explicitly, he had heard it. This skeleton frame, without a body of its own, was trying to take over its own body. What's most important to Meng Fan? This body, of course. For this body, he had raffled for 20 years before he drew a god-ranked physique and then started cultivating it. It was also because of this god-level physique that he was able to soar to the heavens. Now, someone wanting to take over this body of his was directly touching Meng Fan's reverse scale. It simply angered him more than killing him. Heaven knows, how much Meng Fan valued this body of his, how much he valued this god-level physique. This was a super physique that had been obtained after struggling hard and enduring for a full 20 years. No one could imagine how much Meng Fan had given for this body. Now that someone actually wanted to grab this body, it instantly made Meng Fan's anger skyward and his killing intent overflow. Kill kill kill. You seek death. Meng Fan was instantly enraged. Even his eyes were crimson. In fact, Skeleton himself hadn't even imagined how right this decision of his own had been. He was originally just in a hurry wanting to take over a physical body and resurrect it. But he wouldn't even dream of imagining that the one he chose to take over would actually be a god-level physique. If he was really able to succeed in taking over the body, then he would wake up laughing even in his dreams. Unfortunately, Meng Fan would not give him this opportunity. I seek death? Oh, I've already died a long time ago. But don't worry, I won't let you die. I will let you gain eternal life. Eternal life with me. The voice of the skeleton appeared in Meng Fan's mind once again. This time, Meng Fan didn't bother talking nonsense with him. Human Emperor's bloodline, directly activated without the slightest hesitation. In this situation, it could be considered a moment of life and death. If one did not give up activating the Human Emperor's bloodline again, then it would be a cutie pie. Actions. After activating the Human Emperor bloodline, Meng Fan's cultivation level suddenly soared wildly. In an instant, he reached the late stage of Yuanning from the middle stage of Yuanning. And then his cultivation continued to rise and didn't stop. In the end, Meng Fan's cultivation stopped at the peak Yuanning realm and did not rush to the transformation god realm. The god transformation realm was a hurdle that really wasn't easy to break through. However, it was also mainly because this place was relatively remote and didn't gather much chi. So after Meng Fan activated the human emperor bloodline, the cultivation level that was raised was also limited. If he was in the imperial city and activated the human emperor's bloodline, Meng Fan might be hopeful of being able to step into the god transformation realm. Of course, it was only hopeful. Meng Fan didn't dare to pack his bags. After all, the gap between the transformation spirit realm and the Yuanning realm was indeed large and required more than enough substance and accumulation. To want to rush directly from the Yuanning realm to the transformation spirit realm, this was indeed not an easy thing to do. Perhaps activating the human emperor's bloodline in the middle of the imperial city would still only elevate him to the peak Yuanning realm. Outside the cave, Qin Shangming didn't know what was happening inside the cave, but she was able to sense the wildly flaring aura in the cave. She was a reincarnation of a human immortal and had her own special insights and means. Although she wasn't able to burst out with overwhelming combat power, her senses and eyesight were indeed extremely overpowering. She was able to feel that at this moment, an aura not weaker than that of a peak Yuanning had erupted in the cave. This, it would be extremely scary. In front of this kind of aura, this kind of power, she would be instantly blown to pieces. Even if one was shocked by the aftershocks, one might fall. She was glad that she had escaped the cave early. Otherwise, there was a real possibility that this time it could end in 10 deaths. At this moment, she began to worry a bit about Meng Fan. She had brought Meng Fan here in order to befriend Meng Fan with a heavenly grade divine soldier. Wanting to gain Meng Fan's friendship, it wasn't to come and get Meng Fan killed. If Meng Fan's really died, it would also be a great failure for her. She was still thinking of enlisting Meng Fan and figuring out how to get in to avenge herself in the future. Meng Fan, you can't die. Worry appeared on Qin Shangming's face as she muttered to herself somewhat helplessly. She doubted that Meng Fan would be able to survive under this kind of peak Yuanning level power. But she never dreamed that this peak Yuanning level power was actually bursting out from Meng Fan. She subconsciously assumed that the power was erupted from that corpse. Although Meng Fan was at the Yuanning realm, she didn't think that Meng Fan could be that strong. It wasn't that she didn't believe in Meng Fan, but that it was simply impossible. In this world, it was impossible to have the strength to rise from the Jindan realm to the peak of Yuanning in just a few months. Even those holy sons and daughters of the immortal sect, who had poured out all of the immortal sect's power to cultivate them, were impossible. What's more, this was the secular world, and it was dozens, if not hundreds, of times worse than the immortal sect of the true spirit realm in every aspect. In the cave, 
The skeleton was also shocked by Meng Fan's surge in cultivation. Xin Xiangming found it impossible, and this skeleton found it equally unbelievable. He knew very well that this brat across the street must have used a secret method to stimulate his potential, allowing his cultivation to be boosted for a period of time. This secret method is bound to have great side effects, but in the face of a life and death crisis, ignoring such side effects, the skeleton was completely understandable. In his place, he would have done the same, fighting tooth and nail to save his life. But what kind of secret method could allow a mid yuaning to directly erupt with the power of a peak yuaning? Under normal circumstances, even in the case of a terrifying secret technique, being able to make a mid yuaning stage explode with the power of a late yuaning stage was already extremely terrifying. But shocked as he was, the skeleton quickly calmed down. If Meng Fan was able to ascend to the realm of the transfigured god, then he was going to panic. But a peak yuaning was still a yuaning after all, and he was able to handle it, and he believed that he could seize Meng Fan. Brat, you're dying, there's no use talking about it. The skeleton's voice traveled into Meng Fan's mind, but Meng Fan was unmoved. He took out the Regulus sword. Clang. Regulus is sheathed. In the state of activating the human emperor's bloodline, he easily pulled out the Regulus sword. The one who is dying is you. Meng Fan had a cold face, but his eyes were filled with grimness and anger. The Xian Yuan sword came out and chopped down. Berserk and sharp sword Qi shot out, and a crack was vaguely torn open in the void. Space in the secular world is extremely fragile. The god transformation realm could easily tear through space and cut out spatial rifts. Although Meng Fan hadn't stepped into the realm of transformation god, under the enchantment of the Xian Yuan sword, the sharpness and power of his sword had already reached the level of the realm of transformation god. At this moment, if Meng Fan were to go all out, then cutting through space and directly forcing his way into the true spirit realm would not be impossible. In other words, Meng Fan already possessed the ability to enter the true spirit realm at this moment. But Meng Fan didn't intend to enter the true spirit realm so early. He was still prepared to stay in the secular world for a few more years to settle down and cultivate. The true spirit realm is full of experts. It was not easy for him to mix to the level of an expert in the secular world. But when he arrived at the true spirit realm, he became a weak chicken again. Why should he go and suffer from that crime? Isn't it good to cultivate silently in the secular world and build up your cultivation? Die. Meng Fan roared. The sword light tore through the void and instantly chopped at the skeleton's body. Chapter 116, The God of the Universe Takes Over the Body. This was a sword that could cut through space. This was a sword that was comparable to a transformation god. So under this sword, anything would be annihilated, including this skeleton. Although this corpse on the ground, the probability was that it was the remains of a spirit transformation realm cultivator shedding. But even so, it couldn't withstand Meng Fan's sword. As Meng Fan's sword fell, the skeleton burst apart and turned into pieces, completely annihilating. As a matter of fact, the bones of a corpse from the transformation spirit realm could be considered an extremely precious material for refining weapons. Of course, it was clearly inhumane to use the bones of a corpse to refine a weapon. Only a devil would do that. But there was no doubt that it was definitely an extremely strong material. However, under Meng Fan's sword, this corpse bone was directly chopped up, with no crumbs left. However, this did not mean that Meng Fan had succeeded and was out of danger. In fact, his sword was useless, because the corpse, in the first place, was no threat to him. What was threatening was the Jinjutsu hidden within the corpse. It was obvious that the cultivator at the God Transformation Realm had his Yuan Shin hidden within the corpse. As the corpse of this skeleton burst open, his Yuan Shin could not hide and violently rush toward Meng Fan. This kind of thing, the Yuan Shin, losing the boundaries of the physical body, was simply ridiculously fast much faster than the speed of a normal harmonized god realm cultivator. So Meng Fan simply had no way, no ability to capture the traces of this Yuan Shen. He wanted to chop up this Yuan Shen with a single sword, so that it would be over once and for all. But in fact, before his sword was even raised, the other party's Yuan Shen had already rushed in front of him. Too fast. Amazingly fast. Fast and scary. Meng Fan's face changed drastically. The other party's speed exceeded his imagination making it too late for him to react in any way. This was something he hadn't anticipated. Crisis, all of a sudden, descended. As a matter of fact, with his ability, he could indeed decapitate the other party's Yuan Shun. Because of this thing called the Yuan Shun, it was extremely fragile, so it normally didn't dare to leave the physical body at all. After leaving the physical body, an ordinary Yuaning realm cultivator was capable of decapitating the Yuan deity of a harmonized god realm cultivator. Of course, it's one thing to have the ability, but it's another thing to have the opportunity. And not to mention, although the Yuan Shen was fragile, 
The terrifying power of divine sense in the Yuan Shen was also difficult for Yuan Ing realm cultivators to resist. So no matter what the situation was, it was not very realistic for the Yuan Ing realm to try to deal with the transformation spirit. It had to be said that Meng Fan was still a bit too big for his britches. Qin Shangming's analysis was not wrong. Meng Fan was indeed a rather arrogant person who somewhat looked down on others. After pretending to be a citizen in the imperial city before and experiencing the life of an ordinary person for a period of time, Meng Fan's state of mind had grown, but the condescension in his bones has inevitably inflated him a bit. In fact, Meng Fan didn't feel inflated. An already dead transformation spirit, a transformation spirit with only Yuan Shen left, why couldn't he deal with it himself? Activating the human emperor bloodline, he was already at the peak of Yuan Ing, and with all sorts of underhanded cards added, Meng Fan had reason to believe that he wouldn't be unable to deal with a Yuan Shen. A bereaved dog without even a physical body wants to take over my physical body. Get the hell out of here. Meng Fan let out a roar, his eyes wide with rage. And just as he roared, the other party's Yuan Shun had rushed into Meng Fan's mind, wanting to seize Meng Fan, being invaded by the other party's Yuan Shun into his mind. Meng Fan was angry, but at the same time, he was also a bit scandalized and forced himself to calm down. Meng Fan, who had calmed down, immediately began to operate the Erling True Lord's viewing thoughts. With this heaven grade technique that specialized in the divine sense divine soul aspect, the success rate of the other party wanting to take over Meng Fan would be extremely low. Moreover, Meng Fan was in a state of human emperor bloodline activation at the moment, possessing an even stronger enchantment. That was why it was necessary to resolve this Yuan Shen before the human emperor's bloodline ended. Otherwise, if it was delayed until the end of the human emperor's bloodline, then Meng Fan might really be in danger. Once he was seized, it would not be a matter of his flesh being robbed, his own consciousness would also go up in smoke, just as if his soul had been scattered, completely dead. Meng Fan would never allow this to happen. So the other party's Yuan Shen wanted to take over Meng Fan as soon as possible, and Meng Fan wanted to get rid of the other party's Yuan Shen as soon as possible. Both sides have a quickfire idea. At this moment, Meng Fan was able to clearly sense that a foreign object had appeared in his mind which was the Yuan Shen of that corpse. This is his life and death enemy. Meng Fan frantically urged the Erlang True Lord's conceptual thoughts. At this time, he had to fight hard against the other party, and was not able to have the slightest hesitation. Just to the death, any hesitation could result in one's soul being scattered and disappearing from this world altogether. The Erlang True Lord's conceptual thoughts had been pushed to the extreme by Meng Fan, to the point that Meng Fan felt his own divine soul, which seemed to have evolved into the likeness of Erlang Shen. Of course, it's just an illusion, or a spiritual enchantment. In his own mind, Meng Fan's divine soul could become whatever it wanted to become. One could only say that subconsciously turning into the Erlang God's appearance gave Meng Fan the illusion that his combat power had gained a boost. Right at this time, that Yuan Shen also began to make its move, erupting with infinite power and beginning to fully seize Meng Fan. Just as Meng Fan was about to fish out and fight to the death, a voice suddenly appeared in his mind. It was the system's voice that had been long overdue. During this period of time, Meng Fan was either experiencing the life of the commoners or honestly cultivating, so it had been a while since he had triggered a mission from the system. But at this time, when the life and death crisis was most critical, the system popped up again. Just when Meng Fan thought that the system was preparing to release some kind of task for him, the content of the system's voice prompt made his eyes widen violently. Surprise! More of a surprise! Virus intrusion detected! Turn on antivirus mode! This voice of the system was a bit inexplicable, and Meng Fan's first reaction was that he was a bit confused and didn't understand what the system meant. But soon, in less than a second, Meng Fan figured out the meaning of the system's words. The discovery of the viral invasion obviously meant that the Genin had invaded his mind and was trying to take over him, and by turning on the kill mode, it was obvious that the system had decided to step in and clean up this Genjutsu. This was naturally an unexpected pleasure for Meng Fan, and he was incomparably excited. Meng Fan is well aware of the power of the system, and this thing has even exceeded the level of immortal gods, reaching the point of incomprehensibility. A mere cultivator of the transformation spirit realm, and a bereaved dog with no physical body, with only the Yuan Shen left, was really scum in front of the system, and could be wiped out with his hands. It had to be said that it was also this bereaved dog that was unlucky enough to actually want to occupy Meng Fan's body as a nest. It's really a death wish. It was important to know that besides Meng Fan's body, there was also the system. This guy wanted to take over Meng Fan. In a sense, wouldn't he be taking over the system? Robbing a house with the system? What's this, if not a death wish? Let alone a transformation god. 
Meng Fan felt that even if a true immortal descended and tried to take over Meng Fan, it would be impossible to succeed, because as long as the system made a move, Meng Fan felt that a true immortal couldn't possibly be a match for the system. Although Meng Fan didn't know much about systems either, his intuition told Meng Fan that the existence of this thing called a system had definitely gone beyond the level of immortals, not to mention immortals. Even immortal emperors would not be able to casually place a god level physique on someone. This thing called a divine level technique was possible, but a divine level physique was definitely not so easy to get. Just from this point, Meng Fan felt that this systemic presence within his body was no weaker than an immortal emperor, and could even be said to be far beyond an immortal emperor. Of course, the system was the system, and Meng Fan was Meng Fan. This was something Meng Fan carried very clearly. Other than that, the system had never taken the initiative to help Meng Fan out, only providing some rewards. This is the first time that the system has ever taken a serious action when facing the reclaiming of the body. Through this outburst, Meng Fan learned about one of the system's bugs, which was that the system would step in to clean up once someone tried to take over his life. This is something that can be utilized. Even at this moment, Meng Fan thought of some options in his mind. For example, one encountered a powerful existence that one could not cope with, and that powerful existence originally wanted to kill Meng Fan. However, Meng Fan could take the opportunity to expose his god-level physique, and in that situation, I believe that not many people would be able to resist the temptation of a god-level physique. Therefore, that powerful existence that originally wanted to kill Meng Fan would most likely change his mind and choose to take over Meng Fan, because taking over Meng Fan was the same as having a god-level physique. In the entire secular world, other than Meng Fan it should be impossible for there to be a second god-level physique, even in the case of even the entire true spirit realm. A god-level physique was certainly a rare existence. Once Meng Fan's ploy succeeded and the other party changed from wanting to kill Meng Fan to wanting to take over Meng Fan, then Meng Fan would have succeeded. At that time, when the other party seized Meng Fan, they would despair and realize that the system had struck, and Meng Fan would have completely turned the danger into a safe haven. Thinking of this, Meng Fan's mouth couldn't help but reveal a sinister arc. This kind of ploy is just perfect. As the system voice appeared, a terrified scream abruptly came from Meng Fan's mind. For just a moment, the sound disappeared. Then that Yuan Shin in Meng Fan's mind also completely disappeared and annihilated. It's true soul annihilation. There's no crumbs left. If he didn't choose to take over Meng Fan, he might still have a chance to live on. And in the future, if someone else broke in, there was a high probability that he would be able to succeed in taking over Meng Fan. Even when Meng Fan left, he took the initiative to leave the cave and go to the outside world to find a suitable person to take over his body. He would still be able to take over his body and be resurrected. Unfortunately, he had chosen Meng Fan. Let's just say that he had a bad life. Pure bad luck. Who would have thought that Meng Fan was a traveler? Especially with a terrifying system in his body? The most outrageous thing about this system was that it was tantamount to giving Meng Fan the ability to be immune to taking over. Even Meng Fan thought of borrowing this bug to go. Chapter 117, The World of Memory. One thing led to another, and since he knew about this bug, Meng Fan was definitely going to take advantage of it. In this situation, even if a human immortal or even a true immortal tried to deal with Meng Fan, there was a chance that they would end up with their soul scattered. Of course, the probability of trying to deal with a true immortal in this situation was not expected to be high. After all, even if a true immortal found a god-level physique, they wouldn't necessarily have the gumption to take it over, because this was tantamount to giving up the immortal body. Taking over Meng Fan was in a sense tantamount to reincarnating and recultivating, so a god-level physique would probably not be as tempting to a true immortal. But for human immortals, who had not yet ascended to the immortal realm to become true immortals, it was very possible for them to give up their current cultivation and choose to take over their bodies and remodel. Human immortals, to put it bluntly, are still human. Reincarnation was not scary. Like Qin Shangming was reincarnated and reincarnated. So if you think about it this way, it could be said that Meng Fan wasn't afraid in a sense even if he encountered a human immortal. He even has the hope of getting a handful of immortals and getting a human immortal killed. At the Yuaning realm, getting a human immortal killed was definitely something that no one would dare to imagine even if they thought about it. Not even the heavenly emperor of the immortal world could have such a bizarre fantasy. Because it's really just pure fantasy now. Meng Fan shook his head expelling these chaotic thoughts from his mind. No matter what, the system really did me a big favor this time. Meng Fan said to himself, at the same time, his heart and mind vaguely felt a trace of gratitude towards the system. As a matter of fact, Meng Fan, who had just crossed over, 
was actually quite skeptical of himself and had a sense of crisis after he realized that there was a system in his body. After all, although this system brought all the benefits to himself, in the end, this system still existed in his own body. It's like, it's growing inside of you, a thing out of your control. Honestly, it's worse than having a tumor growing inside your body. At least the tumor is something tangible and something one can understand. This system, on the other hand, was out of sight and out of mind. And most importantly, one could not figure out what kind of thing the system was at all. So subconsciously, Meng Fan was actually very jealous and worried about this system. But all along the way, the system is helping itself and giving benefits. Just now, this system even saved his own life. If there was no system to step in, facing a Yuan Shen snatch from the transformation god realm, Meng Fan actually didn't have much certainty. Although he had previously relied on the Erlang Jinjuan's idea of a viewpoint and felt that he could take a stab at it, but he himself knew very well that the probability of winning the fight was only 10%. It may not even be a 10% chance. No matter how confident he was and how much he convinced himself, the truth was that the gap between him and a Yuan Shen of the Transformation God Realm was large and irreparable. Relying on just one Erlang True Lord's viewpoint would not make up for it at all. At this moment, that God Realm's Yuan Shen has been completely annihilated under the system's antivirus mode. There's no crumbs left. A smile appeared on Meng Fan's face, a smile that belonged to a winner. He won despite the fact that he hadn't even gotten to fight yet. And it's a layup. But just before Meng Fan could rejoice for long, his head suddenly ached. At that moment, Meng Fan's face changed drastically. Asterisk 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 asterisk. A cry of alarm escaped his mouth before he covered his head and fell headfirst to the ground. It wasn't that something unexpected had happened. Neither was it that the Yuan Shen hadn't annihilated cleanly. Nor was it that the system had problems. Nor was it that Meng Fan's body had problems. Rather, the memory is faulty. After that transformation god's Yuan Shen failed to seize Meng Fan, it was in a sense equivalent to being seized by Meng Fan. It's dishonest to take away from the world. And it backfires. This is the norm. In short, it was that after that transformation god had failed to take over Meng Fan, many memories remained in Meng Fan's mind. As for Meng Fan, the endless huge memories instantly flooded in instantly making him somewhat unable to withstand them. A god of transformation might have survived for thousands of years, or even tens of thousands of years. The majestic and terrifying memories of this are simply indescribable. So so many memories came flooding back in an instant that Meng Fan's little brain simply couldn't handle it. This was a point that Meng Fan hadn't thought of. It couldn't be helped that Meng Fan had never come into contact with the matter of seizing and being seized. And this was an unprecedented first for him. Meng Fan, who had fallen to the ground, closed his eyes and directly fainted. Outside the cave, Qin Shengming was still waiting anxiously. She wanted to go into the middle of the cave to take a look, but she didn't dare. Although she was concerned about Meng Fan's safety and truly didn't want anything to happen to him, this worry was based on the premise of her own safety. She would definitely not be willing to risk her life if she was asked to. Even for Qin Shengming, if one had to die between her and Meng Fan, she would rather it be Meng Fan. A dead friend of the road is not a dead friend of the road. She wanted Meng Fan to help her take revenge, and she also genuinely wanted to make friends with Meng Fan. But the premise of all this is based on your own safety. If something happened to her herself, or even if she died, then whether or not she took revenge, whether or not she could make friends with Meng Fan, then it really didn't matter at all. Therefore, Qin Shangming was certainly worried about Meng Fan at the moment, but she didn't have the courage to go into the cave to take a look. Even at this moment, she had an impulse to turn around and leave no longer caring about Meng Fan's death or life. After all, her own safety was the most important, but reason told her not to do that, at least not yet, unless, it was really certain that it had reached a sufficiently dangerous point, or that Meng Fan was certain of certain death, or certain defeat, she should only escape, right now, it's not the time. Meng Fan, who was in the cave at the moment, had collapsed on the ground and passed out, although he had fainted, Meng Fan was still conscious. He finds himself in the middle of a small mountain village and becomes a teenager. What's going on here? He looked at his hands. The skin was tender and his hands were smaller. I pinched my face and it felt chubby and tender to the touch. He subconsciously wanted to look in the mirror to see what he had become. But there were no mirrors around here at all. Inside this small mountain village, there were many children playing, and Meng Fan was among a group of children. He looked around, not understanding what this place was. What the hell? Wasn't he in the middle of a cave? and he was almost taken over? Then his eyes lit up as he recalled what had happened before he passed out. After that Yuan Shen was overthrown, the memories belonging to that transformation god erupted and surged forth. 
and then he himself couldn't carry that mammoth amount of memories and passed out. Meng Fan was somewhat enlightened. Could it be that at this moment, one was in the memories of that god of transformation? The teenager he possessed at the moment was that transformation god teenager era? What is this? Even if one wanted to fuse the memories of that Yuan Shen, there was no need to make such a mess, right? Taking away the life is taking away the life. Devouring memories is devouring memories. What's all this trouble for? Do you want to go through the life of that incarnate god yourself? Starting from a teenager to the fall of that transformation god, how many years must this be? How many memories must this devour? To be honest, Meng Fan was a bit fretful. Thinking with one's toes, one could tell that this transformation god had survived for at least thousands of years. Thousands of years of memories are naturally bad to devour and hard to receive. But if you have to use it that way, then it's even more torturous. This current situation could well be compared to a dream. And Meng Fan, needing to exist inside this dream for thousands of years. What kind of torture was this? Even if Meng Fan added his previous life, he had only lived more than 40 years in full. Let him stay inside this dream world for thousands of years in one breath. Then wouldn't his mind become an old monster of thousands of years? No. If I really take on the identity of this fellow and survive here for thousands of years, then even if I leave this place, return to the cave, return to that secular world, and return to Meng Fan's body, but would I really still be me in that situation? It's a fine line of thinking. Meng Fan's mind was a bit shocked and even a bit fearful. If I were really in this dream world, using the identity of that god of transformation to live again, I would experience all of this again. Then at that time, one would really not be Meng Fan anymore. Or to put it another way, wouldn't that transformation god seizing of the body be a success in a sense? Although he said that he was still Meng Fan, he had nothing more than a few decades of memories as Meng Fan. Instead, inside this world, one has to go through thousands of years, all living as that incarnate god, living in the memory of the other. By then, decades of memories are really nothing compared to these thousands of years of memories. In that case, wouldn't it be fair to say that that jerk, the god of transformation, had succeeded in his takeover of himself? For Meng Fan, this was clearly not acceptable. He is Meng Fan, this cannot be changed. Meng Fan became anxious, wanting to break this dream, or rather break this memory world, but he seems to be stuck here, and no matter what, it hasn't changed. Brother Yang, what's wrong with you? A little girl asked with some concern when she saw Meng Fan's face in a painful frenzy. Meng Fan glanced around and realized that many of the children were looking at him with some surprise. There was also a hint of fear and trepidation hidden in these astonished gazes. Fake. It's all fake. Meng Fan murmured as he frantically rushed out of this village, but he realized that this body, surprisingly, was not under his control. His consciousness rushed out of this body, but the body didn't move. In other words, he had no way to manipulate this body at all. This body was moving freely, acting according to his proper rules. Meng Fan was, at the moment, like a lone ghost detached from his physical body. The most frightening thing was that Meng Fan wasn't able to leave this physical body too far. Once his consciousness, or soul body, left this physical body for more than a hundred meters, it would be mandatory to return inside this physical body instantly. This couldn't help but make Meng Fan a little conditioned and simply go crazy. Honestly, what's the difference between that and jail? And it was still going to make him sit in jail for thousands of years in one breath, a torture he really couldn't accept. But this was something Meng Fan couldn't control and he could only be forced to endure it. In the blink of an eye, a month had passed. Meng Fan had tried many things, but he was still unable to leave this physical body for a distance of more than a hundred meters. As for leaving this memory world, it was even more completely impossible to do so. He's like a prisoner in a jail cell, and it's really incredibly painful. After two months, Meng Fan gradually accepted this life. It couldn't be helped. Man's ability to accept was strong, and since he couldn't resist, he could only accept it. He had also gotten a clear picture of this transformation god's identity and whatnot. This was not his intention, because he felt that this way, he was tantamount to being taken over in a different way. But there were some things that even if he didn't want to understand, he couldn't avoid them when they happened in front of him. After all, he was now a kind of consciousness body, not an entity, and he couldn't even do the simplest thing like closing his eyes and plugging his ears. Even if you don't want to see or hear, you can still see and hear. Two months later, Meng Fan's village, suffered a change. The entire village, all 78 people, were slaughtered, leaving no one behind. A real bloodbath. When the village was slaughtered, Meng Fan was picking herbs in the mountains, so he avoided the disaster and he didn't die. Upon returning to the village, he found all the villagers dead, father and mother, sister and brother, all slaughtered. 
and the brother in this body is only four years old. The murderer who slaughtered the village didn't even spare such a young child. The most terrifying thing was that a big hole appeared in the heart of all the villagers. Everyone's heart. It's been ripped out. This was a perverted murderer. And this body of Meng fans was enraged and murderous. He left this village and set out on a path of revenge. To be honest, Meng Fan didn't feel good in his heart when this kind of thing happened. Though he was reluctant to accept this guy's memories and everything about him. But having been forced to live in this village for two months, although Meng Fan didn't want to admit it, he was already familiar with some of the villagers. To see so many familiar people die, and die so horribly, to be honest, Meng Fan was a bit angry. Unconsciously, he had brought into this body. As much as he hated to admit it, it was true, and there was no denying that. Meng Fan was angry that these villagers had been killed, and he couldn't help but want to find the murderer as well. His grandmother, what kind of an existence is the transformation god in that cave? It's obviously been wiped clean by the system, but it's actually still able to use this way to shade me. Meng Fan couldn't help but sigh. If one really spends a lot of time inside this memory world, not to mention thousands of years, even if it's hundreds of years, or even just a few decades, it's possible to change one's mind in some way, or even to alter one's consciousness. This was terrifying, because in a sense, it probably meant that the other party had succeeded in taking over the body, although it wasn't a successful takeover in the common sense. Although Meng Fan was still Meng Fan, and was still dominated by his memorized personality, it just felt like something wasn't right. Alas, Meng Fan sighed, his heart not in the right place. He knew exactly what the problem was, and he knew exactly that it was wrong, but there is no way to change anything. Hopeless, he couldn't help but wonder, at this time, if Qin Xiangming rushed into the cave and woke himself up, then would he be able to leave this memory world? Unfortunately, at this moment, Qin Xiangming, who was outside the cave, was still staring at it with a tense face, not daring to step into it at all. If more than two months had also passed in that world where the cave was located, then there was a real possibility that Qin Xiangming would rush into the cave to take a look. After all, no matter what the situation was, it was impossible for the cave to remain calm after two months. Unfortunately, the flow of time in the world where Qin Shangming was, and this memory world where Meng Fan was, were not the same at all. More than two months had passed since Meng Fan had been in this memory world, but for Qin Shangming, only a moment had passed. One could even say that a moment had not passed. Compared to Meng Fan's current time flow in the memory world at this moment, the time flow in the real world was almost motionless and completely stagnant. Therefore, Meng Fan's idea of counting on Qin Shangming to save him was completely defeated. Soon, a year passed in the middle of the memory world. Three years have passed. Ten years have passed. A hundred years have passed. That body, joined a sect called the Green Cloud Sword Sect, then began to cultivate like crazy. Qi training, innate, foundation building, Jin Dan, and Yuanying. After reaching the Yuanying realm, this body found out the murderer who destroyed his mountain village in the first place. It was an evil sect, and this body finally killed that murderer to avenge the death of a loved one and then it is being hunted down by that evil sect. A thousand years passed. Two thousand years have passed. This body had been in seclusion and had finally cultivated to the realm of transformation. The first and only thing he did after he came out of the gate was to step on that evil sect, slaughtering the entire sect, not leaving a single one behind. Truly a river of blood, a mountain of corpses and a sea of blood. But where is a sect that is easy for one person to deal with? Although this guy slaughtered that sect, he himself was severely injured and on the verge of death, making it difficult for him to survive. He found a cave, then entered it and began to close his mind to heal his wounds. However, his injuries were too heavy, and no matter how much he healed, he could not recover the injuries on top of his body. With no choice but to give up his physical body, he was only able to seal his Yuan Shin away. In this way, his physical body was tantamount to complete death. As time passed, his body began to rot and oxidize. One year, Two years, ten years, one hundred years. In the end, his physical body completely faded away, leaving only tired white bones, a pure skeleton. His Yuan Shun, on the other hand, was completely sealed away, not daring to reveal it. I don't know how much time had passed, but a sudden movement occurred in the cave, followed by the door of the cave being opened. The two Yuaning puppets that were previously left in the cave rushed out of the gate and began to fight the intruders. It didn't take long before the two puppets seemed defeated and didn't move. Immediately following, Meng Fan saw two people, a man and a woman, walk into the cave. The man was none other than Meng Fan, and the woman was none other than Qin Xiangming. What happened next was clear to Meng Fan himself. Phew, Meng Fan let out a long breath. 
It's finally over. This guy's memory has finally come to an end. He couldn't remember how many years had passed, at least three or four thousand anyway. It was surprising that thousands of years had passed since he was trapped in this memory world. At this moment, the memory world shatters. Meng Fan woke up. He finally woke up and left that hellhole. But after waking up, Meng Fan was full of shock and looked around inexplicably. After waking up, he did not appear in that cave. Instead, he appeared in a cramped rental house, slumped in front of a computer. On the computer screen was a game interface. This, 